Web novel fanfiction TG the good. The latest of the latest. Chapter 180 Juigi sect was an inconspicuous, small sect amongst the rogue magic practitioners. Their approach and supernatural powers were nothing out of the ordinary. They rarely came into contact with outsiders, they were even more obscure than the Heaven Teller sect. However, the Juigi sect occasionally made an appearance during important events in the magical realm. That was how the name of their sect was remembered. When all the evil cults that worshipped the nine-head snake had arrived like a swarm of bees, the Jyogue sect's disciples had become restless. However, their form of sacrificial offerings, or their methods of worship were enough to cause anyone's blood to boil. Juigi sect was only a small sect that had existed for a few millennia but a few thousand people have died tragically as sacrificial offerings. In their course of special training, the small-eyed Shao Sha was unexpectedly quick and proficient in picking up the sect's folk magic. He almost never forgot anything after one glance and he could remember all the complicated, violent and ghastly ceremonies. He rapidly mastered the understandings, descriptions, and recordings the Juigi sect possessed in relation to the nine-headed snake Xiang Lu. Besides that, they also investigated the abilities, magic arts, and approach of the foreign believers. However, the information on them was limited and the existing information did not present anything unusual. Wen Liang's current ability was almost on par with the old demon rabbit Bu Lu. In the entire world, other than a few top master practitioners, there was almost no one worthy to be his opponent. Amongst these master practitioners, San Wei was already dead. Changli, Kone Nail, Hanba, Tian Shu, and Tian Hua were all severely injured. Hence, if someone were to jump out and point at Wen Leong and shouted, You are the world's number one sorcerer now. Wen Leong would certainly have laughed at this while being startled. Before Qin Zhui had even comprehend the process of hide the force, his own supernatural power were no less inferior to that of the top-tiered master practitioners like Qin Yao and Mahashui that preceded the supreme leaders. He once was equally matched with Wen Leong, back in the gold-consuming lair. When he had comprehended the process of hide the force, he made astonishing progress in his powers. Even if he was not evenly matched with the little demon rabbit Shan Duan, he could have given the rabbit a run for his money. Without underestimating the enemies, the two siblings were not too worried either. Gu Xiaojun fulfilled his duties responsibly. He instructed them seriously, these unorthodox evil sects, still thrive and resist despite the country's attack for millennials. They certainly must have have some strong points. Additionally, the people that have arrived are all key leaders of the evil cults. It is best that all of you be cautious. I am not saying your powers are not good enough but make sure you are not tricked by the opposing party. Wen Leon gave a forced laugh as he shook the few pieces of thin paper in his hand. I understand what you're trying to say. However, how are these ten pieces of paper that you have handed me prepare us to face them? Gu Xiaojun worried, he was afraid that the secret sect of this country that worshipped the nine-head snake could not understand the methods of these foreign practitioners. The information in Wen Liang's hand only consisted of simple introductions to the regional sorcery arts or devilry that could only serve as a reference in desperate times. After seven days, Gu Xiaojun finally obtained the information regarding the movements of these foreign practitioners. After they had entered the country, they had first strolled around, leaving no clues or directions to be followed. However, a few days ago, all of them had started advancing from all directions towards the western part slowly. At that point, Wen Leong and the rest were also almost done with their preparations. Before they departed, the miraculous small-eyed Xiao Sha had proceeded to make Wen Leong relax. Then, he rubbed Wen Leong's face ferociously. When Wen Leong stood in front of the mirror, as expected, he could barely recognize himself. He had turned into a teenager that appeared to be 16 or 17 years old. No matter which angle you looked from, just by looking at his facial features, he was still Wen Leong. There were no traces of glue or yellow mud on his face but his appearance was different. His spirit, temperament, expression, and looks were that of a young, teenage boy. Xiao Sha was rather satisfied with his work. He laughed as he clapped himself on the back. Every twelve hours, I will need to pinch you, lest you turn back to your original self. When Leong nodded, he remarked as he chuckled, 
then you need to pay attention to pinch me into the same appearance. Don't you change my appearance every time you rearrange my face. The people who had entered the country were the religious key persons of the nine-headed snake cults that were scattered all over the world. There were almost seventeen groups of people at this point, coming in from the north, south, east, and west, all the way from Europe, North America, Africa, and other regions. They were a mixture of races. These people were followers of the evil cult and were from low-profile, tight-knit organizations. However, they did not have contact with one another or came into contact with one another. They were akin to migratory birds of different species, migrating from all directions towards one single location. Since no one was acquainted, it was easy for Wen Liang's group to move among them. They followed behind others. Those that still milled about in the downtown district, Gu Xiaojun kept an eye on them. On the other hand, Wen Liang, Qin Zhui, Fei Fei, and Xiao Sha had left Wuhan city. They shadowed the movements of the foreign cultivators as they went about. However, their main direction was still pointed firmly towards the northwest. Wen Liang could truly appreciate the benefit of having another strong figure supporting him. Whether the enemies were in Beijing, Jinzhou, Haikou or Gilan, he was constantly receiving updates on the enemy's comings and goings, to the point that he only need ask and he could know how many bowls of rice these people had for dinner. The mission for Wen Liang and the rest was simple, keep a steady pace and walk in the general direction the group headed. They toured the scenic spots along the way. The further they walked to the west, the more followers there were. They slowly converged with the group of foreign practitioners. After that, the journey became even easier for Wen Liang and the rest. Even if they did not have Gu Xiaojun's feedback, all they would need to do was follow any troop they wished. Everyone was heading in the same path. They could even say that they were not following the enemy's tracks, but that the troops behind Wen Liang was actually following them. Wen Liang's group of four was led by by the leadership of the small-eyed Xiao Sha along the way. They persistently completed their set of worshipping ceremonies every day, of course, without the real sacrificial offerings but instead more in gesture. According to the message delivered by Gu Xiaojun, the rest of the troops were also carrying out the acts of worshipping diligently. They went from Lanzhou, to Xining, to Dunhuang, all the way to Tibet. Fei Fei said to Wen Liang with a smiley face, if you were to go on such a journey with a travel agency, I bet it would cost you no less than 4,000 bucks. Wen Liang nodded he made himself comfortable as he answered, if all of you were to pay me for services as a bodyguard, I would certainly earn back the money this operation has costed me. Occasionally, a few puffs of white clouds floated calmly past the sky, which was so blue that it looked like water was about to drip from it. Underneath the clouds, all things, such as grass, trees, humans, animals, distant hills, and blue lakes, ancient silence and vigorous vitality glistened under its reflection, condensing into a peacefulness that could not be broken. On the third day upon entering Tibet, the group received news that left them at loss on whether to cry or laugh. All the evil cults along the way have slowed down, almost every cult was affected by altitude sickness and majority of them were very sick. After Xiao Sha received this information, he was surprised. His small eyes were filled with astonishment. These people practice magic all the time, why are their bodies so weak? Fei Fei answered coolly, her face still filled with a joyous smile, no matter how strong a practitioner is, he is still human. It is very normal for one to experience altitude sickness the first time he comes up onto highlands. However, I predict that they will get used to the change faster than ordinary people. Xiao Sha was enlightened. His face filled with a maniacal smile as they counted with his fingers. Those from Africa, those from Southeast Asia, those from Europe they all added up to a total of 20 meters above sea level. Wen Leong was joyous as well. He asked the two siblings, are both of you feeling all right, up on these highlands? His body and bones had been transformed by the poison of life and death. When he had arrived at Tibet, other than feeling the air here was exceptionally pure that it refreshed his mind, he did not feel the least bit sick. Fei Fei shook her head. Her smile was conveyed a slight hint of proudness. She was just over twenty years old after all and she was at the peak of her radiance and high spirits of her age. We received special training on the highlands every year when we were off mission, we have since gotten used to. 
Before she could finish her sentence, Qin Zhui entered, staggering as he pushed the door open. His lips were as purple as kelp, his gaze drifted everywhere in a scattered manner. Xiao Sha grabbed onto Qin Zhui's hand and looked. He gave a forced smile as he spoke to the other two, laughing at others, now we have done it he has altitude sickness. Qin Zhui's fingertips were darkened and started turning blue. He appeared even scary than usual. Qin Zhui was so uncomfortable that even the act of breathing was difficult, yet he still found strength to retort in a hoarse voice, you're the one laughing at the others, but why am I the one who's suffering? Xiao Sha cared little to quarrel with him at the moment. He hastily pulled out medicines from the medical kit he carried along with him, which contained all sorts of pills such as Highland Health, Highland Calm, Highland Peace, Highland Strong. Qin Zhui burst out laughing upon seeing this, still spouting nonsense, is there a Highland Red? As he said this, he lifted his Tang knife and proceeded to head for the exit. I'm actually here to inform you that I am leaving for a day or two. When Leon grabbed him by the handful. What for? He did not dare allow Qin Zhui to simply go off while he was so ill, and he did not trust that Qin Zhui could take care of himself. After all, according to Wen Liang's knowledge, the mortality rate for altitude sickness was rather high. Qin Zhui panted for a long while as if working a pair of bellows before answering in a strained voice, This is the force. I need to fight the force, it's just right for me to practice my knife skills. Upon saying that, he paused for a moment of rest before adding, I know my limits, it will only take me a day or two to understand the force. I have no need for medication. Upon saying that, he exerted his strength and desperately pushed Wen Leong aside. He then pushed past the door and left. Wen Leong was filled with astonishment, Fei Fei consoled him softly, relax, there are still people nearby that are on our side, he will be fine. The rest of the believers suffered greatly from the altitude sickness. It was here that the different practices between the evil cults were revealed. The evil cult that came from rich and prosperous regions sought medical attention, while the evil cults that came from desolate, remote places performed dances meant to exorcise demons. That night, Fei Fei's expression was downcast as she informed Wen Leong that Qin Zhui was missing. Wen Leong was furious. He went out in search of Qin Zhui in the middle of the night. Thankfully, on the second evening, Qin Zhui had returned, his face glowing red. The group was relieved upon his return. The small-eyed Xiao Sha may have had some understanding of folk magic but despite having crossed paths with its practitioners regularly, their methods were still most mysterious to him and he had difficulty understanding them. He rubbed the back of his head with hands in slight surprise. Is it true that you can actually study and understand the force here and stop having altitude sickness? When Liang's mind was at ease, he laughed aloud as he explained on Qin Zhui's behalf, he is trained in the supernatural powers of force. He has his own force, while the sky and land here have their own. He had to first understand the force of the sky and land here before he could adjust his body, this is known as going with the force. Two forces that counteract one another and two forces that are akin to I don't really understand it all too well either but I think I have it figured out, that is roughly what it is. Upon saying this, he shot Qin Zhui an inquiring look. Unexpectedly, Qin Zhui tossed his tang knife to the ground. Ah bullshit. I had only been training for mere moments when I passed out. I was saved by the herdsmen of Highland Health. Qin Zhui was strong as a cow. If he hadn't been so blindly stubborn, he would have only had to suffer for a day or two before his body naturally adapted to the surroundings. Since he had taken some medication, he was now fine. Even Qin Zhui was struck with altitude sickness, much less the foreign practitioners. By the time they departed, seven or eight days had passed. Almost every troop left behind a few corpses. When Leong and his people moved along with the troops. The purest Qinghai Tibet plateau had conveyed its awe-inspiring mannerism. The Xian Lu worshippers smiled less and less as the journey progressed. They grew ever solemn, while Wen Leong received less and less information. Tibet was a large area of land with scare population and the enemies practiced some strange methods, it became extremely difficult to keep watch over them. Fei Fei and Xiao Sha continuously tried to predict the final destination of the evil cults. Finally, Based on the route's direction, 
they concluded that the destination was Lhasa. However, the evil cult followers proved the siblings' predictions wrong. A few troops passed by Lhasa but did not stop there. Other troops circled it, utterly ignoring Lhasa city and continued walking towards the west. Finally, a few days later, they slowly assembled in a small village known as Tuer and settled down there. Every evil cult that worshipped the nine-headed monster had finally reached their intended destination. Not far ahead of the small town of Tuer was a lake sacred to the Tibetan Buddhism sect, the Lake Namso. The sacred Lake Namso was also known as the Oasis, its name carried the meaning Heaven's Lake in the Tibetan language. The Buddhist followers considered it one of the four great powerful lakes. Legends say that it was the Buddhism rite location used by Haruka, the enlightened being of the Vajrayana sect. This body of pure water was both considered to be sacred land by the Buddhist followers and also an important tourist attraction in the, the northwest of China. The small town of Tuer was situated adjacent to the Great Lake, but its location was not easily accessible. That was why the population there was scarce. There were less than a hundred households in the town. However, in just a few days' time, a dozen troops had taken up residence there. The small town suddenly became crowded. Crowded albeit without the bustle. The locals did not possess an ounce of the usual Tibetan people's boldness or enthusiasm. They paid no attention to the arrival of the outsiders. Their gaze from glazed eyes did not contain any sense of curiosity or enmity, there was only numbness. The intruding evil cults also appeared lifeless. Their expressions gloomy. There was almost no conversation even between traveling companions. They did not seek lodging but instead built their own tents, milling around and waited like walking corpses. When Liang's group of four set up a base camp at the edge of the small town. Under Qin Zhui's protection, Fei Fei went out for stroll. It took her only a short while to circle around the entire small town. When she returned, she informed the rest in a determined manner, this town is filled with ghosts. Of course, when Leong understood that Fei Fei did not mean that there really were ghosts like Fifth Brother but that there were hidden secrets in this town. The small-eyed Xiao Sha laughed at Wen Leong. These people may not cry or laugh. They appear to have no emotions but they can't hide the truth from my sister. Fei Fei's specialty was that she could pry into another person's real emotions through reading his or her expressions, or the changes in their voice. Even when the person puts on a straight face, Fei Fei could tell from their eyes. Fei Fei wasted no time in speaking nonsense. She lowered her voice and spoke directly, the people in this small town and the intruding nine-head snake worshippers are the same, they are all agitated and in anticipation, just like wolves wolves. Wolves that had a sip of blood but have yet to partake in the flesh. When Leong took out his last stick of carrot. He had not been able to buy any more carrots since entering Tibet. Even his last stick of carrot had shriveled up and lost its crunchiness. Its texture was awful. Did the people of this town know the evil cult was coming? To this small town. Fei Fei frowned as she shook her head. We can't be certain of that. We will need to investigate the leaders of this town to assess the situation before she could finish her sentence, Qin Zhui who had been on guard outside suddenly gave out a ha. Simultaneously, Wen Leong laughed with a peculiar expression on his face. With his power of clairvoyance that spread out like water, he could sense a familiar presence. Moments later, the portiere of the tent was lifted. An old man with a straight back walked into the tent, covered in dust. Gu Xiaojun who had been following behind had come. Gu Xiaojun brought along with him a lot of provisions. He had also brought along a bag full of carrots, this elated Wen Leong. Gu Xiaojun entered the tent. He first nodded as greeting to everyone, then he started to explain simply, Ever since you had left Lhasa, I set off to follow you as well. As I am familiar with the West Tibetan region, I came here to be your guide. On the other hand, I found out, there are no forms of modern communication over here. Rather than sending someone else here, I might as well come over in person and explain myself clearly. When Leong laughed in a carefree manner, so did you bring your ping-pong paddle or not? When Leong remembered that Gu Xiaojun had once said that his specialty lied in playing ping-pong. Gu Xiaojun did not acknowledge Wen Leong, instead continued, I have already dismissed the people monitoring from the sides. 
This town here is too small, there is no safe distance to watch from. Moreover, now that the destination has been reached, the efforts that follow are entirely up to all of you. As he said this, Gu Xiaojun looked towards Wen Leong once again. But we will still keep a close watch on one or two of the troops, otherwise, we are as good as blind. After just a night's sleep, they could be gone. In order to monitor them closely, we must depend on you. Wen Leong was stunned. Me? Gu Xiaojun nodded reasonably. If these three were to try to get close, their presence will be noticed by the enemy party's psychics. No matter how weak or strong these foreigners were, they were still no ordinary human. Among them must certainly be sensitive people with psychic abilities that allowed them to sense their surroundings. Wen Leon gave out a forced laugh as he exchanged his stick of carrot for a new one. I am just like all of you. I am not able to hide my presence. Wen Leung's powers were great, but he had not learned how to conceal his aura or evade another's psychic ability. Thus, within the eyes of a magic practitioner, he would always be an ordinary person. When his chi points were first remolded by the poison of life and death, he was recognized as an ordinary person with superb inherent abilities in the eyes of the magic realm. Now that his body and bones were remodeled, he had lost those superficial endowments of his. Even in the eyes of Changli, when Leong was just an ordinary youngster. Qin Zhui chuckled as he poked his head into the tent. I will go. Combining the supernatural power of force and combining it with heaven and earth, it allows one to move about stealthily which is my specialty. Xiao Sha laughed. His eyes squinted and turned mischievous. Be careful, remember to bring along a few tablets of Highland Calm. Qin Zhui laughed out loud. It's Highland Health. Fei Fei laughed forcefully, interrupting both their carefree behavior. She wanted to comment on Gu Xiaojun's report of his recent discovery about the small town. As she was about to speak, she was interrupted by the old man. Ever since all of you left Lhasa and traveled west, I already predicted their destination. If it was not the Namso Sacred Lake, then it would have been the Tangula Mountains. I have looked into every nearby area that had a name and at first did not come up with anything of interest. However, upon closer inspection, I have found a hint. Tour Town, its history is rather interesting. Chapter, 181 Gu Xiaojun lowered his voice and spoke at an even pace, the small town of Tour is adjacent to Lake Namso. As it is not located nearby any transportation lines, it is not surprising that tourists do not linger there for long. However, something must not be right if not even one pilgrim passes through the town, right? Namso was sacred land to the Tibetan Buddhists. Every spring and summer, swarms of Buddhist believers came from all over the world to go on a pilgrimage. Many devotees made the difficult and long walk to Namso. To these believers, who put in painstaking effort into the journey, did not care for mobile transportation. For within their hearts, each step on the rugged path beneath their feet were like pious deeds Namso, at the end of their vision, was the homeland which they sought. However, when these believers arrived at the edge of the small town of Tuer, they avoided it, refusing to pass through or seek temporary lodgings there. This is because the people of this small town are not Buddhists. Gu Xiaojun spoke in a low voice but his tone conveyed seriousness. The Tibetan religions had distant origins and a long history. However, it was not complicated. The Bon religion, which originated in Tibet, and the foreign Buddhism had combined and is practiced as today's Tibetan Buddhism. Even though Wen Leong did not understand Tibet well, he knew that the majority of Tibetan people were very devout in their beliefs. Over thousands of years, both the Patala Palace and Lake Namso had turned into the Tibetan people's source of spiritual sustenance and was regarded as the homeland of their beliefs. Gu Xiaojun continued, This small town is next to Lake Namso but the townsfolk do not practice Buddhism. In the eyes of most Tibetan people, that is a sin. That is why no one is willing to enter this town. Xiao Sha squinted his eyes until they could barely be seen. He shook his head as he asked curiously, that doesn't sound right either. Why would the Tibetan people, who are known to be bold and brash, allow a bunch of people who aren't Buddhists to stay at the borders of the sacred lake? Gu Xiaojun glared at him. In comparison, the old man's eyes were much bigger than his. It is the border of the sacred lake. 
how can you expect them to fight and kill here? Even though the people of this town don't believe in Buddhism, they aren't slandering Buddha. They mind their own business and stay out of each other's way. Do you think all the eminent monks of Tibet are like you, fighting at the slightest hint of provocation? When Leung only then became aware of Xiao Sha's hot temper. However, Gu Xiaojun changed his tone as he came back to the topic of conversation, now that you mention it, there is a record stating that 700 years ago, some Tibetan people had decided to relocate here, nearly causing a fight to break out. The conflict was resolved by the head lama, Gisha, who was on one of his routine ritual walks around the sacred lake. Ever since then, no one has paid any attention to this place. Fei Fei was stunned for a moment. She asked in surprise, 700 years ago, this town had already existed? She looked towards Wen Leong, her face filled with puzzlement. She then smiled and explained herself, after 700 years, a desolated small town should either develop into something bigger or vanish completely. As such, it truly is a wonder that this place, which are at such odds with its surroundings, survive for 700 years. Wen Leong thought otherwise. The three families of Wen, Miao, and Luo have never came into contact with outsiders in the past. Yet, our teachings have been passed down for over 2,000 years. Fei Fei shook her head. That is different. The three families may have lived in seclusion but they were not absolutely cut off from the rest of the world. A maiden from the one family could be betrothed to an outsider and a man from the one family could take a bride who is not from the one family as well. Even the most conservative Qing Miao clansmen have intermarried with the nearby Miao clansmen. Hence, the three families are still considered to be connected to the outside world. Gu Xiaojun nodded from the side. That is correct. Firstly, the residents of Tuer Town have almost never come into contact with outsiders. Secondly, there was never a reason for the outsiders to seek them out. This town should not have even lasted a few decades, let alone centuries. When Leon picked up a half carrot, puzzlement written all over his face. He appeared uncertain as he asked, then, what is going on with them? It can't possibly be he was halfway through his musing when he suddenly thought of a possibility that frightened him. It can't be that they are demons which have lived for hundreds and thousands of years, right? In these modern times of the magical realm, excluding the demons, such as the big and little demon rabbits and the sword immortals of Black and White Island. An ordinary master sorcerer that could live up to two or three hundred years was already considered to have lived a long life. Both the three hundred year old enlightened person, Z.K., who was already deceased, and the Great Mercy Temple's two hundred year old monk, Hope Sense, was held in high regard in the magical realm. If the people of this town possessed the magic to stay alive for thousands of years, their actual power was unspeakable. Gu Xiaojun shook his head, his expression solemn but without any traces of anger. I do not know. Tibet is a mysterious place. There aren't many historical studies of this place that were passed down, and even fewer records about the existence of this small town of Tour. Since we are all here, there would be no point in us making blind guesses at things we can't understand. We will wing it from here on out. As he said that, he took out a medium-sized satchel from his travel bag and passed it to the small-eyed Xiao Sha. When Le Youngs was surprised, he realized that the old man's face, that was usually serious, was showing a hint of a mischievous smile. Xiao Sha was confused. He unzipped the satchel and pulled out something that looked like a folded plastic bag. He shouted oh no and his face turned a bright scarlet in the blink of an eye. Fei Fei cried out in surprise. She jumped up and ran out of the tent. She did not expect to run into Qin Zhui, who was hurrying into the tent. With swift, agile motions, Qin Zhui stretched out his arms and gently caught the blushing Fei Fei. He was about to speak when he spotted the item in Xiao Sha's hand. He laughed and asked curiously, this was made with some skill. What is it for? As he said that, he took in a deep breath and blew it out into the air valve on the seam of the plastic bag. A practitioner's breath was unusually strong. With the a thump sound, a blow-up doll, the size of a real human, made of some unknown material which was amazing to the touch, abruptly appeared in Qin Zhui's hand. Gu Xiaojun tried hard to keep his face looking serious. He said to Xiao Sha, don't you dare think of anything funny. 
Today is the middle of the month, the day the disciples of Nine Returns offer sacrifices to their God. Every evil cult gathered here has a sacrificial offering. How do you expect to fake through the ritual? When Leon could not decide if he wanted to cry or laugh, using a blow-up doll as a sacrificial offering wouldn't just be a failure, it would be like slapping the evil cults in the face. In contrast, Fei Fei, who was still blushing, shook her head. She pointed to Xiao Sha. He he has a way. The blush on Xiao Sha's face was so intense it seemed like he was turning into a red cloth. He gave out a forced smile as he stared at Wen Leong. With folk magic, most tricks are just camouflage tricks. With this in our hands as he said that he patted the blow-up doll. It won't be difficult to pass this test. Wen Leong did not believe him. In the sacrificial ritual of nine returns a living person was to be killed and separated into skin, bones, blood, flesh, and five internal organs, to represent the nine heads of Xiang Lu. Moreover, the mysterious small town's residents and the overseas evil cult followers were no ordinary people. Naturally, their vision was sharp. It would be pure foolishness to use the blow-up doll for this test. Unexpectedly, Xiao Sha raised his chin. He laughed arrogantly. You couldn't even tell where the four buckets of water I drank went to. By nightfall, similarly, you would not be able to tell that this is just a blow-up doll either. However Xiao Sha suddenly became dispirited. He waved his hands towards their leader. The performance is simple, but as for the rest of the items, the skin, flesh, bones, blood, and what not, you can't expect me to conjure them out of thin air right? Gu Xiaojun sniggered. I have already prepared those items for you ages ago. I got them from a hospital before I came here. Those items are all in the travel bag. You will need to generate some steam for them. They had followed the evil cult followers on their tour of all the scenic spots. By the time they had entered Tibet, it was already the beginning of the ninth month of the lunar year. The temperature at night was no more than a few Celsius. Following that, freshly harvested blood and flesh would release steam with hot air. The two young, master practitioner of the magical realm, Wen Leong and Qin Zhui, gazed at one another. Their forehead erupted with goosebumps. Xiao Sha opened the box that he carried with him. The box was was densely packed with small compartments, all filled with small tools, herbal medicine, pigments, etc. All the items were arranged by categories. Xiao Sha picked out and hid various items on his body, in preparation for him to display his skills during the sacrificial ritual tonight. Fei Fei caught Wen Liang's curious gaze. She laughed as she explained to him. Xiao Sha is proficient in the practice of folk magic, also known as the art of Jianghu, to put it simply, it is the ability of the Jianghu people back in ancient times. The tricks of Jianghu are divided into eight elements of gold point, hide, magic, martial arts, critic, cross-talk, mediate, and daegu. The people of Jianghu depends on these skills for a living. Wen Leong raised his eyebrows, looking interested. Please, tell me more. Gold point refers to fortune telling, hide means medicine selling, magic are actually tricks being performed, there's also a form of martial arts practice. Critic means book commenting, cross talk is voice mimicry, mediate is the use of medication in cessation of opium use, daegu means the art of performing daegu. Each of these eight sex artists has their own abilities. Qin Zhui interrupted Fei Fei, laughing in disapproval. Let's leave the others aside for now, I want to know about the unique skill used in the cross-talk sect. He had only just finished his sentence when Wen Liang's let out a scornful curse which echoed next to his ears, Qin Zhui is a fool, a blockhead that is no more than a tool. Qin Zhui turned around abruptly and glared at Wen Liang. Wen Liang hastily waved his hands and shook his head as he gave out a nervous laugh. That wasn't me. I didn't say that. Before his voice died away, Qin Zhui's voice echoed throughout the tent. You said it right, Qin Zhui is only a fool. Qin Zhui, upon hearing his own voice, was so startled that he squealed. One hand gripped tightly to his tang knife as he scoured his surroundings. Following that, loud cheers accompanied by a round of applause came at them from all directions. Qin Zhui took one more look at Gu Xiaojun and Fei Fei. 
Their mouths curled with the slightest hint of a smile but they still stood in the same spot as before. On the other hand, Xiao Sha was still tidying his tools, his mouth shut tight. Qin Zhui was honest and straightforward. He was not that foolish. He figured it out pretty quickly and used the hilt of his knife to poke at Xiao Sha's buttocks. He sniggered as he gave the thumbs up. That is amazing, how did you make those voices? Xiao Sha laughed, and gave his usual response. It is one of the many talents that sustain me, I can't tell you much but I can tell you that this trick was passed down by the flat word sect. This was an eye-opening experience for Qin Zhui. He was still reeling from the experience as he inquired closely, so, what is Daegu? An actor's name changes over a hundred times and the actor's face changes over a thousand. Xiao Sha explained simply. Following that, he stretched out his left hand and positioned his knife above the blow-up doll in front of him. With the knife, he stabbed the doll's neck in one quick, ferocious movement. An agonizing scream was heard immediately. The entire doll trembled. When he pulled out the knife, not only did the doll not explode or leak, a gush of fresh blood spurted out following the removal of the blade. Qin Zhui knew that it was all a fake but a few drops of cold sweat sprung up on his temples. On the other hand, Xiao Sha looked at his leader in joy, the joints on the fake human are really well made, its joints are very flexible, very easy to position. Gu Xiaojun laughed in a wicked manner, of course, it's one of the best. Xiao Sha nodded as he spoke in a formal tone, it is done. There will be no problem of me posing it as a living human in a while. Gu Xiaojun was elated. Wonderful. After the mission is complete, you may take this doll as a reward. Wen Leong admired Xiao Sha. He laughed as he patted Xiao Sha on the shoulder. Please teach me a few tricks of your, I will exchange it for information of my own methods. Qin Zhui immediately bounded over. I will teach you how to wield a knife, we can exchange as well. The three young lads was joyously discussing how to go about the exchange of their unique skills when Wen Leong recalled something. He turned to the side and asked Gu Xiaojun, if the rest of the evil cults are to use living people in their sacrificial ritual tonight, will you be interfering? It was Gu Xiaojun had anticipated this question. He laughed confidently. Don't worry, I have already figured that out. Did you notice, within their numbers, the further they walked, the fewer people there were? When Leon was stunned for a moment. He then reacted, so you are saying that they are using their own people as sacrifice to the god? Voluntarily. Gu Xiaojun nodded. They are a bunch of devil worshippers, they are proud to die. I am too lazy to interfere in that. We will not look at them but only carry out the ritual according to the way of nine returns. As he said that, he paused, as if he was trying to recall something. He turned around and looked towards Qin Zhui, I thought you were keeping an eye on those people outside. How come? Qin Zhui finally remembered why he had come back into the tent. He hastily said to the group, a group of townspeople have started approaching each camp. They entered and spoke a few words to the tenants inside before leaving. Then, I saw that the foreigners start discussing amongst themselves. Upon saying that, Qin Zhui blushed, he laughed shyly. The townspeople spoke in the Tibetan language and the foreigners spoke in their foreign tongue. I understand neither. Gu Xiaojun's eyes were flashing with excitement. Having someone come to visit on their own accord was far better than waiting around foolishly. Xia Sha released the air from the blow-up doll in quick succession and stuffed it into his sleeping bag. He started choosing an attire and pigments, in preparation to apply makeup on the fake human to make it realistic. Now long after, the portiere of their tent was raised. A few Tibetan people appeared on their doorstep, one of them entered. With his gaze on the ground, he dully uttered a few sentences in the Tibetan language. He did not care if they had understood him or not, just turned around and left. It was unknown whether it was because when Liang's group had such few people or because of the location of their camp, the few Tibetan people had visited the other camps before they came to theirs. Gu Xiaojun and the siblings understood the Tibetan language. The moment the Tibetan visitors left, Gu Xiaojun's expression immediately became gloomy. He frowned as he started to ponder. Fei Fei translated the other party's speech to Wen Leong in a soft voice, 
There are almost 20 troops of people in total that arrived but there can only be 9 troops that are to move forward in the end. The Tibetan people said that we can either leave on our own accord or we can chase away or kill the others, they do not care. When Leong frowned, the monster had nine heads. Is that why only nine troops are to be left? What if we accidentally killed too many and only eight troops are left? Fei Fei shrugged, she smiled mischievous smile, signifying that she had no comment. I don't know about that, they even gave us a deadline. Starting from dawn tomorrow, it ends in three days. By that time, if there are still more than nine troops left, they will not bother with us anymore. When Leong squinted his eyes, what do you mean? Fei Fei was still wearing the same helpless expression. Think we will have to carry out some tasks. It will proceed if there are nine troops left, but if ten troops are left, they will refuse to bring even one. Qin Zhui burst out laughing. He had a carefree expression on his face. Leaving only nine troops. That's a lot. I don't think you should worry even if only one troop is left. However, do take care when you are fighting. As he said that, he used his knife hilt to knock Wen Liang's shoulder. Seize just the right amount, don't fight until there are only eight troops left. It is not that easy to pool together if we are one troop less. Gu Xiaojun was not as carefree as Qin Zhui, his expression was solemn as he shook his head. It is not a difficult task to survive this but to not draw attention to ourselves. At that moment, outside became chaotic. The sound of footsteps and talking, accompanied by the highland wind, echoed and rippled continuously. When Leong and the rest walked out of the tent. Looking towards the rest of the faraway campsites, people had already started approaching one another, trying to establish ties and make pacts. When Leong derided and taunted involuntarily, they have been like the living dead during the whole journey, turns out they were just playing it cool. Ever since the evil cult followers had entered Tibet, they had appeared numb and desolate. However, upon hearing about the organization of the elimination tournament, they immediately became animated. The Tibetan people in the small town of Tuer had made the first move. It was obvious that they were regarded as the leaders. Even the evil cult followed that worshipped the nine-headed monster did not oppose their words. The evil cult followers gradually bustled about and started forming their own factions. In preparation for the approaching battle. Everyone here was a fanatic and had traveled all the way to Tibet from a great distance. They would never retreat and leave so easily. The evil cult followers walked to one another, yet no one walked towards Wen Liang's camp. On the contrary, the glance they shot to Wen Liang and the rest spoke of savage, wild beasts, hunting for prey. Qin Zhui scolded quietly in rage, these snobbish things that despise the feeble folk, they think they can bully us since our group is small. The smaller groups were made up of ten people while the bigger groups had up to the dozens. Only when Liang's group, counting the blow-up doll, was made up of six people. Other than Gu Xiaojun who had recently joined them, the rest of them were young people. Besides, when Leong appeared as though he was only 15 or 16 years old after he had his face squeezed by Xiao Sha. His face was filled with the immaturity of a teenager. In the eyes of the rest of the evil cult followers, they were the weakest link. Not only was no one willing to come forth and form an alliance with them, they became the first troop targeted for slaughter at that moment. Gu Xiaojun turned around and winked at Xiao Sha. Xiao Sha nodded in response and pulled Qin Zhui with him to the other campsites. They entered and came out in a while. Qin Zhui's fury becoming more and more obvious as they went. In the end, they were even chased out by the other parties. Qin Zhu was pointing angrily at the other parties and breaking out in curses. If it was not for Xiao Sha's persistent pulling, perhaps he would have raised his knife and cut down the other party's tent. Gu Xiaojun did not think that it was possible for anyone to want to form an alliance with them but they should still pretend to try. Fei Fei suddenly laughed. She pointed with her chin towards a few dispirited and dejected looking Africans. They are the same as us, they have been abandoned. More than ten black people with tall and slender physiques, with a sallow complexion, had already visited the majority of the campsites. In theory, they were not lacking in numbers, but for some reason, everybody refused to form an alliance with them. Seeing that they were receiving the same treatment as them, Gu Xiaojun's old face broke into a smile. 
After they had visited five or six campsites, Qin Zhui was red with rage as he pulled Xiao Sha back to their camp, refusing to visit the remaining campsites. Gu Xiaojun burst out laughing. The other parties are wolves forming an alliance with the dogs. Their initial purpose is to kill the rabbit, of course, they will not be bringing the rabbit along to play together with them as he said that, he turned around and glared at Wen Leong who had just brought out a stick of carrot. You're role-playing, aren't you? When Leong burst out laughing, he ducked back into the tent. At sunrise tomorrow, a chaotic battle would break out. By then, everyone will see the outcome clearly. When Leong speculation that the evil cult followers would make them a top target. It would not be a difficult task for him to protect his group. Everyone may be scheming and plotting, but once the opposing parties knew that these few followers were not delicious pork chop but were rocks instead, an internal conflict would be triggered immediately. The situation that seemed unfavorable did not seem too scary. When Leung's real concern was for the small town's residents, who had not changed in many centuries. He was not concerned about the troops of foreigners. Above the highlands, the sun had gone down but the sky was still bright. By the time the moon rose to the sky, the dozens of evil cult follower troops that were staying in the small town almost simultaneously ignited the bonfires by their campsites and began the worshipping ceremony to the nine-headed snake. It was night, it was the fifteenth day of the lunar month with a full moon. It was unknown whether the intensity of their prayers was due to devotion to their beliefs or for tomorrow's violent battle. Every single follower concentrated on performing all sorts of ceremonies. No one was scouting out the other campsites. The citizens of the small town of Tuer had since closed their doors as if they had entered dreamland. Everything was peaceful and quiet for now in this small town, whose period of existence was unknown. Xiao Xia's performance truly left Wen Leong dumbstruck. They obviously knew that the person who was being sacrificed was a fake. However, the movements of Xiao Xia stripping the skin and cutting away the flesh, causing the corpse to bleed and pulling out the bones were swift and agile. The fake person also seemed to struggle continuously, never ceasing to convulse. Its mouth opened and closed, rippling in agonizing screams not even they could see any flaws. By the time the sacrificial ritual was completed, Xiao Xia's clothes were drenched in sweat. Just as the sacrificial ritual was completed and Xiao Xia was about to tidy up the mess at the campsite, the unfortunate black people, who had suffered the same fate of not being able to form an alliance like them, visited with a solemn expression. Chapter, 182 When Leon could still recall, when he was studying in the county town, he had watched a movie titled, The Gods Must Be Crazy Too. The features of the lead actor and the black people, who suddenly visited, were very similar. Their complexion was black in color, penetrated by a layer of yellowish-gray. They were very tall but their backs were slightly bent. Perhaps it was because they lived on the grasslands, thus did not possess strong and tall physiques. On the contrary, they appeared to be slightly skinny and weak, with short curly hair coiling tightly on their scalp. The hints of never-ending sorrow etched into their wrinkles and their gaze. However, occasionally, a smile would appear, causing one to immediately feel their simple and honest nature. These African people did not appear evil. They did not carry any evil energy. Their leader walked in great strides towards Gu Xiaojun. He patted on his thin and bony chest strenuously, making a blunt banging sound. Simultaneously, his mouth spewed out a few syllables that sounded like gibberish. When Leong was afraid that the moment he exerted his strength, he would break his ribs or fracture his arm. Gu Xiaojun peered towards Fei Fei. Both of them shook their heads helplessly. No one could understand the African people's language. However, Fei Fei could read the other party's emotions, she told the group softly, anxious, dejected. The African people's leader shook his head. He continued to pat his chest strenuously, his mouth muttered repeatedly, Badis, tutatunt. Badis, tutatunt. Gu Xiaojun asked probingly, Your name? Body stood a tunt. A look of happiness floated on the African people's leader's face, he corrected the separation of his name, Badis, to the tunt. Gu Xiaojun laughed as he nodded, he patted on his chest. Gu Xiaojun. The African people's leader was elated, he immediately nodded his head vigorously. 
He stretched out his hand and pointed towards Gu Xiaojun. Gu Xiaochuan. Then he turned his hand and pointed at himself. Badis, to the tunt. He stopped for a moment. As if concluding that his name was too long, he shortened his name slightly. To the tunt. To the tunt. The small eyed Xiao Sha burst out laughing. Xiao Chuan. You're wearing a pair of huge trousers though. He has only laughed twice when his laugh was cut off by Gu Xiaojuan's guillotine like glare. When Leon was much smarter, he laughed from the side as he patted his chest. Yang. The rest of them sniggered as they imitated Wen Leon. They patted on their chests as they said, Joy. Fei. Sha. Badis Tudatun's memory was pretty good. Wen Leon and the rest only needed to say their names once and he remembered them all. He called out their names one by one, his pronunciation was accurate, with the exception of Gu Xiaojun, whom he still called Gu Xiaochuan. Gu Xiaojun heaved a sigh, he was felt at a loss. If Xiaochuan it was, then so be it. The name sounded rather artistic once he had gotten used to it. After Tudatunt was acquainted with everyone, his face shone with a heartfelt smile. He suddenly gestured, akin to a big bird, flapping his arms continuously, imitating the movements of flying. His mouth gave out a series of sharp cries like a falcon. Gu Xiaojun was extremely confused. Tudatunt flew for a long time before he stopped. He raised his left wing and pointed to himself, then raised his right wing and pointed to Gu Xiaochuan and the rest, looking at them in anticipation. Wen Leong suddenly understood. He had spent quite some time with Ah Dan and had a good understanding of body language. He turned his head to the side and hesitated on whether he should imitate the bird flapping movements as he said to Gu Xiaojun, male eagles. One of the wings represent him, the other wing is us. I think its meaning is almost the same as hands and feet. Fei Fei was desperately trying to refrain from laughing. She used an extremely slow speed as she asked Tudatunt, free. ND. Following that, she made a gesture of holding her hands together. Tutante had been in China for some time. Even though he still could not speak a word of Chinese, at the very least, he has heard many Chinese words. He seemed to understand the meaning of friend, the wrinkles on his face squeezed together in happiness, he roared in a choppy accent, free. ND. He stretched out his hand and pointed towards the two parties and probingly asked again, softly, friend? Finally, he stretched out a hand and held it out in midair as he watched Gu Xiaojun. The African people seemed to be truly desperate. The majority of the great powers had since divided up into factions and there were only two flocks of lambs left. A flock of black African lambs, and a flock of yellow Asian lambs. Gu Xiaojun laughed as he nodded. He stretched out his hand and gripped Tudatun's hand tightly and spoke determinately, friend. With the sound of a crash, Tudatun plucked a necklace made of a string of fangs of an unknown animal, perhaps a wolf or a jackal or a leopard or a hyena, from his neck. He hung it around Gu Xiaojun's neck in an appreciative manner, his mouth continuously repeated, friend, friend his tone sounded heavier the more he spoke. Gu Xiaojun gave out a forced smile as he patted his body. There was not even one worthy gift on him. Finally, Qin Zhui wrote a blessing talisman in good penmanship and gifted it to the African people's leader, which surprisingly, Tudatunt held up and waved around his forehead. It seems that he has watched some Chinese zombie films he kept the talisman away carefully, turned around and raised his hands high up towards his troop. All of a sudden, more than ten African people cheered in unison as if they had truly found their most trusted allies. Tudatunt waved his hands towards them and they immediately started bustling about. Like agile grassland jerboas, they proceeded to move their items and shifted their campsite next to Wen Leong in his team's tent. Gu Xiaojun suddenly raised his hand and slapped his forehead heavily. He chuckled. We are all out of our minds. He spoke to Tudatante in a flurry of Tibetan. When the small town's people were informing everybody about the elimination match, they had used the Tibetan language. It was apparent that the African people had understood them. Unexpectedly, Tudatunt shook his head, his face filled with puzzlement. He could not understand the Tibetan language at all. Even Qin Zhui was astonished, his tone persistent as he spoke to Wen Leong and the rest, 
when those Tibetan people were informing them, they had used the Tibetan language. Evidently, they were not speaking a foreign language. I do not understand what these people are saying now but I can still differentiate between the Tibetan language and foreign language. When Liang's expression turned solemn. The African people did not understand the Tibetan language, yet they were capable of understanding the words of the small town's residents. He pondered for a long time. There seemed to be only one explanation that made sense. As they shared the same beliefs, they were capable of surpassing the language barrier. Even though this idea seemed highly unlikely, it did not mean that it was not a possibility. Fei Fei peered at Wen Liang's face. She could roughly guess his thoughts. She nodded and used a voice that could only be heard by her own people, if what you are thinking is true, then there are two possibilities. First, is that between the troops, even though they each have their own language, they can still communicate with each other unhindered. Second, is that only the resident of Tuer town have the ability to communicate with Xiang Lu's followers unhindered. The people in between troops can't communicate. Gu Xiaojuan said in an affirmative tone, it is the second. If it was the first one, Tuta Tunt would have never formed an alliance with us. At that moment, Tuta Tunt was bustling about. He was drawing out a long line of small human figures in the sand with a wooden stick. The moment when Leong saw the drawing, he was overjoyed. The African people were drawing the different evil cult troops in the small town of Tour. Each human figure represented one troop. The African people's drawings may have been done with just simple lines, but within those few lines, one could see every troop's characteristic. For example, the Khmer people were short in stature and the contours of their faces sharp, the Koreans' eyes were closely arranged, the Europeans had long noses, the Indian people had their head wrapped in scarves. Qin Zhui pointed towards a human figure that seemed to have a talisman stuck to his face and asked in puzzlement, Who is this? Tatanta widened his mouth and revealed a mouthful of pearly white teeth. He pointed towards Gu Xiaojun and the rest and laughed. He pointed towards a tall human figure, with its back rested on the figure of the nine-headed snake and long silk in his hand, and pointed to himself as he continued to laugh joyously. When Leon and the rest were at a loss on whether to laugh or to cry. Tudetunt continued to draw his own human figure. Finally, on the row of small human figures, he drew out five circles, each encompassing of a few different human figures. Gu Xiaojun had long picked up on the hint, he laughed as he nodded. Our African companions are quite remarkable, they had spent the day going around each of the other campsite. Even though they did not manage to form any alliances, they had scrutinized the other troops. Tudetunt drew out the different alliances that have formed within the evil cult troops. Within each circle, there was also a human figure which he marked with a point symbol, this person appeared to be the leader of the alliances. The evil cult's alliances did not follow any laws, regions or race. There were a total of 18 troops of evil cult followers. They had currently divided into five major forces within the short period of half a day. Setting aside the China-Africa alliance, the rest of the four forces' heads were the Greeks, the Indians, the Khmer, and the Persian Empire immigrants from the Southwest Asia. Find authorized novels in Web Novel Faster Updates, Better Experience Please Click WW. Web Novel. Com for Visiting. These four troops had a great number of people while the other evil cult troops with lesser numbers attached themselves to other smaller groups in their surroundings. When the African people were relocating, the others were also moving their campsites as well. The few great forces were displayed in plain view. Right now, the alliance with the highest numbers was the Greeks' alliance. The number of people in their troop exceeded the others few times over. The rest of the three forces had almost the same amount of people. When Liang's group had the least amount of people. They only consisted of a dozen people, appearing exceptionally pathetic. Tudetunt realized that Gu Xiaojun understood the meaning of his drawings. His mouth widened as he laughed again. He stretched out and used his huge feet to erase the drawing on the ground rapidly then he patted his chest and gestured, full of confidence, finally emphasizing again, friend. When Leung truly did not have to heart tell to the others, perhaps these African people were not necessarily as kind as they seemed, but they were absolutely honest and simple. They did not possess the evil energy that was said to come with the nine-headed snake of legend. 
Perhaps the nine-headed snake in their drawings were utterly unrelated to good or evil, it was only a symbol of power which they worshipped. Gu Xiaojun burst out laughing as he nodded. He led the other four youngster back into their tent. In contrast, their African companions did not rest. They bustled about the surroundings of the two parties' campsites and continuously set about building defenses. Tudetunt would raise his head occasionally and see that the China people had already turned off the lights in their tent. His expression was one of puzzlement. He did not understand how the Chinese could still sleep peacefully when they were about to head into a life and death situation. He was suspicious of his allies, whether this was a mistake. Two lambs gathered together, in the eyes of a wolf, it was no problem at all. On the contrary, they posed an even bigger temptation. Gu Xiaojun's group of five laid down in a row in the tent. If a grave robber had entered right now, he would be startled, as the few of them were not sleeping at all but were discussing the mysterious small town and the approaching chaotic battle. All the cult followers of the nine-headed snake from all over the world had received the same calling simultaneously. In the beginning, when Leong had thought of the worst possible scenario, which was the nine-headed snake was about to struggle free from its shackles. However, when they arrived in the small town, a new possibility began to surface. The people of Tuer Town was undoubtedly connected to Xiang Lu that was currently chained in Black and White Island. They had been on guard next to Nanso Lake with painstaking efforts for such a long period of time. No one knew what they were guarding or what they were looking out for. They also did not know the about the powers of the town, like how they had the power to communicate with the other Xiang Lui followers. Gu Xiaojun reminded the group softly, we cannot gauge the severity of this battle. Perhaps, it will not be difficult for us to defend ourselves but do take note of two important matters. Firstly, do not display your skills in an overly flashy manner but we cannot be eliminated, but also never arouse the suspicion of the Tibetan people of Tuer Town. Secondly, be careful of the Africans, ha, hey, if they were only ten troops left in the end, they will not hesitate to stab us with their African knives. Upon saying that, he stopped for a moment as he looked towards Wen Leong and spoke softly, protect Fei Fei and Xiao Sha as best you can. Wen Leong felt there was no need to display his determination. He simply nodded a yes upon hearing that. How about you then? Gu Xiaojun sneered unpleasantly. Of course, you ought to protect me as well. On the highlands, nighttime arrived early and daytime started late. It was already seven o'clock in the morning but the skies were still dark and silent. Wen Leong and the rest could not sleep, with the exception of Gu Xiaojun. He slept soundly, occasionally letting out a snore. Qin Zhui lifted his tang knife and used a tone of speaking which did not allow for further discussion as he spoke to Wen Leong, once we start fighting, you are in charge of protecting the two siblings. If anything goes wrong, you will be the one to blame. He had always been a daring vanguard, afraid that someone else would burden him. When Leong raised the portiere and took in a deep breath of cooling air. He answered while he laughed, don't worry, all will be well if I do not have to protect you as well. The small eyes Xiao Sha followed behind Wen Leong. He urged in honesty, don't worry about me, I have my own tricks but you must protect my sister at all costs. Fei Fei did not object to this. She knew that now was not the time for modesty. She nodded towards Wen Leong. Thank you for your efforts. I will try my best to stay out of your way. Wen Leong laughed. Having such great teammates, he felt at ease, even though their fighting abilities were no different than that of little white rabbits in Wen Leong's eyes. It was obvious that the African people had not got any sleep, the sallow complexion on their face were even thicker now. They were holding sticks of short clubs in their hands which were almost the same color as their complexion, staring out at the surroundings vigilantly. Within the campsite, where the two parties have combined into one, the African people had spent the entire night drawing out a wild and savage-looking nine-headed snake on the ground. Under the reflection of the flames from their bonfires, the giant snake appeared to come to life. Its gaze gloomy yet fierce. The skies were still dark. Within their campsite, the silence before dawn was covered in a blanket of troubled agitation. Troops upon troops of evil cult followers gathered silently according to their own alliances. Everyone's gaze shifted towards the black and yellow lambs almost all at once. 
Finally, a dazzling streak of silver glow surged through the sky without warning. The black veil was shattered. Wen Leong had never witnessed dawn break in such a way. In the blink of an eye, the night had completely turned into day. The long wait broke the moment the sun rose. Tuta Tunt and his African companions almost simultaneously gave out long and sharp shrieks. Every person sounded like violent, hunting leopards, their bodies arching slightly. Their murky eyes reflected the bright glow, like ice shards. They stared firmly at the four enemy troops that had assembled at the far end. Unknown since when, the Tibetan people had walked out of their houses. The old and young, men, women, and children all of them gathered together, carrying no expression on their faces, gazing out numbly. They observed everything before them attentively but with an icy look and numb attitude. The small-eyed Shao Sha walked next to Tutatunt and patted Tutatunt on his bony shoulder. He held up a finger and pressed it to his lips. He gave out a tight smile as he shook his head. Stop screaming it had already been ten minutes since daybreak and the Africans had been shrieking continuously but the enemies did not attack. Fei Fei laughed softly towards Wen Leung. None of them wants to make the first move. It was then, Gu Xiaojun emerged from the tent with a look of impatience. The black people's howls were so shrill, even a sleeping elephant would be awakened by them. Wen Leung peered towards Gu Xiaojun with heartfelt admiration. So you knew that no one would be attacking us first? Gu Xiaojun yawned as he answered with sleepily, well, that was not a difficult guess. We appear the weakest here but we won't necessarily be targeted for slaughter first. Everyone wants to attack us last. Perhaps, they might help us to achieve our aim. As he said that, he turned around and instructed Xiao Sha within a relaxed tone, scare them a little so that they understand that whoever attacks us will certainly suffer losses. Xiao Sha burst out laughing. While under the ghastly gaze of their African comrades, he crossed his arms and walked to the border of their campsite. He stood with his legs wide apart. Xiao Sha stood unmoving outside of their camp but to his left and right, two rows of gigantic footprints appeared soundlessly as the ground, as if a group of invisible giants had lined up next to him. Wen Leong remembered seeing this trick once but Xiao Sha had then only left behind his own gigantic footprints and there was only one row of footprints. This time, there were dozens of giant footprints as if they had invisible bodyguards that were guarding closely next to Xiao Sha. There were also a few footprints moving about continuously. Even with Wen Leong's psychic abilities, he could not tell what was happening. In a flash, there was a stark contrast between the surprised Africans' companions in the campsite and the astonished evil cult followers opposite them. The Tibetan people's expressions were still cold and indifferent though, utterly nothing in the world was capable of moving them. It was as if, within a short moment, the lambs had turned into poisonous snakes. Let alone the amateur foreign evil cult followers, even when Leong or the big and little demon rabbits would have been petrified by the small-eyed Xiao Sha, if they had not known any better. Wen Leung's eyes were looking at the footprints on the ground, which were pacing back and forth, but he could not pick up on the giant's shadows. It never occurred to Tutatunt that his ally had such a shocking ability. How could a small-eyed youth possess such power? Within his surprised gaze, there was a whiff of concern mingled within, he urged Gu Xiaojun earnestly, friend. Gu Xiaojun burst out laughing, he patted the black man's shit to set his mind at ease. Friend, friend. The dawn massacre which was on everyone's imagination did not happen. The air of the town, with the gigantic footprints walking back and forth, turned from nervous scene to one of awkwardness. Qin Zhui held on to the Tang knife. He was becoming impatient. He turned his head to the side and asked Fei Fei, so, are we going to have to fight? Fei Fei had been observing the evil cult followers' expressions carefully, upon hearing Qin Zhui's words, she shook her head lightly, I can't tell, some of them are unyielding, they still want to try fighting us. Chapter, 183 Including Wen Leung's group, there were a total of 18 troops of evil cults that worshipped the nine-headed snake in the small town of Tuer. There could only be nine troops left in the end. Due to their stubbornness and persistence which was brought on by their religious fanaticism, more than a few people would certainly be dead by the end of this battle. 
Even when Leong was unaware of what sort of prophecy that they had received before they made their way to China but he could at least understand why these religious fanatics had decided that the best course of action for them was to stay. Every troop would rather die from being eliminated. That was why the ambience of the small town was thoroughly ghastly. Everyone was glaring at one another like ravenous tigers, yet they were also waiting for someone else to make the first move. If the organizer was to come forward and come up with a solution, then the situation could have been resolved with ease. There were to be nine troops left out of eighteen. They could have either paired up and fought each other, or divide themselves into smaller groups and compete by counting scores. All in all, it wouldn't be too difficult a task. Yet, the residents of the town did not speak, they gathered and watched from the sides since the early morning, they did not even have breakfast. Xiao Sha suddenly scoffed. He turned around and walked back to the campsite. The dozens of gigantic footprints beside him disappeared instantly. When Leong was astonished, he asked, Why did you come back? Xiao Sha gave him the evil eye. Bullshit, my sister just said that someone is unyielding, of course I should come back quickly. Qin Zhui lifted his tang knife, his eyes glimmered as he asked Fei Fei, Who are they, these who are unwilling to back down? Undoubtedly, when Le Yang's group's responsibilities had been divided well. Fei Fei was in charge of observing the enemy's expression to gain first-hand intelligence. Xiao Sha had the job of intimidating the others. When Leong and Qin Zhui were to stand guard and fight anyone who came close. Gu Xiaojun did not do anything. Even before Fei Fei answered, when Leong seemed to have realized something, he sneered as he said, I will go first. He got up and jumped backwards a few step. He seemed to be leaving himself some space for a starting run. At the same time, a strong-looking man from the Greek troop on the opposite side threw open his arms he jumped out of the group with his jaw clenched. Like a raging bull, he dashed in great strides, to the direction of Wen Leong and the rest's camp. Xiao Sha could not help himself. He burst out laughing from where he stood. Are we having a bull race here this is before he could finish his sentence, his mouth suddenly shut tight. Fear flashed across his face. The distance between the evil cults and their campsite was less than a few dozen meters. The bull-like strong man did not run very fast but moments later, the entirety of the small town shook with thundering footsteps. Every time the strong man's feet touched the ground, the ground would tremble and rumble loudly. Tudatunt led his troop in a series of loud shrieks, like a group of monkeys that realized danger was approaching them. Their expressions were savage as they waved their limbs about. The trembles grew stronger and stronger by the second. The remnants of the bonfire and the small rocks were trembling so hard, they started rolling everywhere around the campsite. Suddenly, following a loud call, when Leon gathered his strength and ran forward towards the strong man, whose body was three times the size of his. Cruel smiles appeared on the face of the Greek standing nearby. They knew that even the toughest and sturdiest pine tree on Mount Olympus could not withstand the strength of this strong man's one arm. Wen Leong did not run fast but went at the pace of an ordinary man. His hands were opened wide, shrieking loudly through his mouth along with his African allies. It was like watching a squirrel dash towards its true love, the great bear, with firm determination in defying all danger. Just as when Leong was about to crash into the strong man, a gust of strong wind swept past, Qin Zhui had already pulled ahead and surpassed him. He laughed loudly as he crashed into the Greek strong man. In a fight, how could Qin Zhui ever be content with second place? Qin Zhui slung his tang knife over his shoulder. He crashed into the strong man without holding back. Bang, a cracking sound like the air had exploded rang out, even the evil cult followers who were cruel and unyielding, gave out a soft scream of fear in unison. Their jaws dropped from fear, as they stared at the scene before their eyes in disbelief and bewilderment. The strong Greek, that was famous for his strength as well as his iron-like body, could not bear the tremendous force that rippled out from the impact of the crash. His body was like a balloon that was filled with water. The moment the two of them came into contact, his body exploded with a loud bang. The strong man, that had seemed extremely powerful a few moments ago, had been turned into a pile of ground meat in the blink of an eye, gut splattered in all directions. When Wen Leong was dashing forward, 
he had been controlling his strength the whole time. Following the group's earlier discussion, even while defeating the enemy, he was not allowed to be too flashy. Whether he was fighting with strength, his body or his poison hand or with poisons, even if he just stood still, he still had a way to kill the evil cult followers that pounced his way, without uttering a single word. However, Qin Zhui did not care for such things. His dash was filled with the spirit of the Olympics. At the same time, he had faced his opponents with the utmost respect, not hiding his body's strength as he crashed into the strong man and blew him to pieces. A shower of blood rained down and splattered everywhere. Wen Leung swayed and retreated back to Gu Xiaojun's side in a speed far quicker than before. His body was not tainted by even a single drop of blood. Even though he did not meet with the enemy head-on earlier, Wen Leung knew this in his heart. Aside from the rest, the strong man's abilities were even less than that of giant bull from the rogue practitioners. Even for two monk disciples, the strong man would not have been a problem for them. At this point, the sharp shrieks of the African allies in their campsite had turned into hoarse, alarmed cries. Judging from their voices, one would have guessed that they had just eaten three tones of salt. Qin Zhui dodged the shower of blood rain that was falling from the sky. He stood in between their campsite and the evil cult followers, he asked defiantly, that's it? His gaze dotted all around. His eyes swept back and forth across the enemy. Wherever he looked, the evil cult followers caught under his gaze could not help but feel frightened. Gu Xiaojun suddenly shouted, Don't stop Qin Zhui. Fei Fei, who had been serving underneath Gu Xiaojun as a soldier for some time, immediately understood their leader's intention. She explained to Wen Leung softly who was slightly puzzled, Our intention was to get the enemy to retreat in the face of difficulty but with that one attack. In the eyes of the rest of the troops, they think it was the Greek man that was too weak. Wen Leong had learned a lot as of late. He was much more quick to understand now, he laughed as he nodded, understood. If the Greeks want to retain their position, they must risk their lives in a counterattack. Fei Fei praised as she chuckled, it is so much easier to talk to a knowledgeable person. Rather than wait for the Greeks to attack, why don't we help the other troops bet them into defeat first, before we discuss this any further. After the China-African alliance, the Greeks were the strongest amongst the rest of the four alliances. The Greeks were like tigers amongst wild beasts, while the other three alliances were akin to wolves. Gu Xiaojun's intention was clear, he wanted the wolves to understand that the tiger was a fake. With a series of savage wild laughter, at a speed that could not be detected by the naked eye, Qin Zhui dove into the group of Greeks ferociously. Even before the opposing party could react, he had already bashed into a dozen people. The troops' formation instantly turned into chaotic mess. Although Qin Zhui did not stop running, his footsteps gradually slowed down. Every single one of the Greek evil cult followers were strong men built with bulky arms and strong waists. Their bodies was an accumulation of strength that was utterly unimaginable by any other ordinary beings. Just like chunks upon chunks of hard rocks, the moment their body was crushed into powder from the impact, the force from the impact sent wave after wave of uneasiness into Qin Shui's body mercilessly. It was easy to crash into one but it was no easy feat for him to crash into ten of them. By the time he had crashed into twenty, he was already in pain the situation had now turned from him crashing into them, to them throwing themselves at his body in true desperation. Fei Fei frowned as she spoke to Wen Leong, the Greeks are people who advocate for strength. Whether it stems from ancient myth or folk beliefs, they have always worshipped rigid strength. Qin Zhui is straining with the effort of going against that strength now. Wen Leong felt pride in his heart, for the martial arts practiced by the Greeks were slightly similar to his but paled in comparison when it came to power. Xiao Sha followed up the conversation from the side as he laughed, Qin Zhui is right now fitted to the old saying, how many nails can one nail into the body, even if that body is made of made of metal? Are you going to help him? When Leong came up with a plan in his heart, he understood Qin Zhui's abilities more than anyone. He shook his head as he laughed. He'll be fine. Find authorized novels in Web Novel Faster Updates, Better Experience Please Click www. Web Novel. Com for Visiting. As expected, Qin Zhui, who was swaying from the impact, raised his arms and pulled his tang knife from his back. 
With a raging roar, he chopped down with his knife. Every Greek evil cult follower that had been pushed back were now squalling. Just as they were about to surge forwards to intercept Qin Zhui, they suddenly felt as if the entirety of heaven and earth. Everything and anything in their surroundings, following the movement of the knife, converged into one impetus torrent, that crashed onto them. The people at the front of the lines did not even have the opportunity to scream out. They dropped dead where they stood. Even though the Tang knife did not touch their bodies, the grand tremendous force that rippled with the force of heaven and earth had caused their bones to explode without mercy. Wen Leong chuckled. Qin Zhui alone is enough to deal with them. Similarly, Gu Xiaojun laughed upon hearing that. This is chaos. That is splendid thing. Inadvertently, the rest of the three great powers have changed their direction. It was unknown since when their wolf-like, bloodthirsty gaze had shifted, from the direction of the China-Africa Alliance's campsite, to the the Greek evil cult followers troop. The few troops that had formed an alliance with the Greeks did not hesitate in the slightest as they abandoned their alliance chief. They fell back rapidly and quickly formed a new alliance. The Greeks could not hold out for much longer. There was utterly no one who could break past Qin Zhui's force, that was as powerful as the supernatural powers found in the supreme leaders of the Five Blessings, which was enough to beat all of them into pieces. Under Qin Zhui's relentless charge, almost half of the Greek evil cult followers, which had originally been a hundred men strong, were dead. Their formation was almost broken. Gu Xiaojun was about to instruct Wen Leong to call Qin Zhui back, when a bitter and shrill howl called out. It called to the skies from the group of Greek evil cult followers. A masculine old man with a face full of tattoos, just like an old lion king, appeared, roaring towards the heavens in a rage. With a flash, brown-colored flames sprung up all over his body. The sound of raged roaring turned into an agonizing scream in the blink of an eye. The fire burnt brightly, yet not enough that it concealed one's vision. The Greek's leader was turning into a pile of charred bones within the heart of the burning fire. When the roaring flames had consumed enough flesh and blood, it erupted with a bang into dozens of fire snakes while the corpse of the leader fell to the ground. The fire snake appeared intimidating and mighty as it filled everyone's vision. The surrounding troops that were eager to fight immediately fell back. They were afraid they might be affected by these unknown fire snakes. Qin Zhui waved his tang knife, protecting himself from harm. The Greeks, who got wrapped around by the brown-colored fire snakes, were akin to metal oars. They clenched their teeth firmly and refused to make a sound. Under the refinement of evil fire, they gradually disintegrated and reintegrated like steel. Some of the oars could not be refined in the end and turned into black, charred coal, accompanying that were half-sorrowful cries of agony. The fire snake carried along the cries of the deceased and melded it into the refinement of the others. Qin Zhui lifted up his tang knife. He watched as the Greek men were continuously strengthened by the art of devilry. His expression became more and more excited as it went on. More and more Greeks fell over and finally, there were only five of them left, they managed to pull through the evil fire. Just as the smoke and dust cleared, the shadow that had enshrouded them vanished and they appeared. The Greeks had transformed, not in appearance, not by their gaze nor their expressions, but in their mannerism. It was as if they were just still rocks not long ago, but now, they had been refined by their leaders and companions' life energy, turned into something akin to steel. Qin Zhui did not waste any time. He stepped forward, raising his knife to one of them, with a roar akin to thunder. The Greek roared softly simultaneously. To everyone's surprise, he stood his ground and raised his hand, and firmly grasped onto Qin Zhui's tang knife. With the sound of a soft pop, the two of them stopped and stood still. The small-eyed Xiao Sha stomped his foot non-stop out of nervousness, he stood to the far side as he shouted out an idea, pull out the knife. Stab him. Gu Xiaojun nodded his head from the side. It seemed like he approved of his underling's idea. None of them knew that Qin Zhui's knife was actually just the sheath. There was no way he could pull it out and stab someone with it. When Leung inhaled a deep breath, the skin on his body tightened abruptly. The African people started up again to the events at the moment. They started their sharp shrieking once more. This time, they scattered. Tudatunt was the leader. 
they each found a high spot in the campsite to watch the competition. Gu Xiaojun gave a forced laugh as he peered at Fei Fei. Did we just find a cheer squad as our ally? Fei Fei laughed as she nodded. I suspect that our African companions do not possess any formal abilities, otherwise, why would the others refuse to form an alliance with them? Tutatun's group albeit had came in small numbers, but they had more than ten people, unlike Wen Liang's group that was pathetically made up of five people. Moreover, out of the dozens of evil cult followers, there were another two or three troops that had almost the same level of manpower as the Africans but those people had easily formed an alliance. Finally, after a pause that lasted a full minute, Qin Zhui and the Greek's body shook in unison. Two twisted and curved rivers of blood slowly crawled out of Qin Zhui's ears. The Greek was like an ancient corpse that was suddenly exposed to sunlight. He rapidly withered, dried, and turned into a pile of dried bones in the blink of an eye. When Leon could not help but grind his teeth, he cursed softly, evil cult. The few Greeks that walked out of the evil fire had exchanged their lives in return for this power. Their strength and movements were powered and supported by the demonic spell. This Greek had been defeated by Qin Zhui. Upon that, the spell broke. He then turned into a charred corpse, burnt by scorching fire, like his fallen comrades. An evil cult may just be an evil cult but the power that had been summoned was truly despicable. It took only one person's effort to hurt Qin Zhui. Qin Zhui inhaled deeply. He looked towards the rest of the four remaining Greeks and murmured, Next. Before his voice died away, Qin Zhui abruptly cried out, he backed away rapidly. Not just one, but four came at him. Along with their icy cold stares, the muscles on the bodies of the four Greeks were angular as though chiseled by an axe. After their first companions fell, they pounced on Qin Zhui all at once. Qin Zhui had already knew, since the battle with the first Greek earlier, that these Greeks had been refined through the art of devilry. He could triumph against one, he could even call it even against two, he could protect himself in desperation against three, he would surely die against four. He was a martial art fanatic and being a foolish man, he had a vicious heart. Upon seeing his opponents coming in a group, his body turned around, and using the tang knife, he blazed off in a trail. He dove, like a ghost, into the Indian Alliance troop that was nearest to him. The Indian people and their allies cursed outrageously. Everyone understood that it was over for the Greeks. They had been the one with the highest number of people, booted with an equal amount of strength. The highest and mightiest troop had been defeated by the hands of an Asian person so hideous that no one could look at him. It was like watching a giant elephant, that appeared strong and huge, get flipped over by a crab with unimaginable power. It was useless to pay attention to the remaining four Greeks. When the art of devilry was exhausted, naturally they would die. Yet, despite everyone's expectation, the China man waved his tang knife as he guided the four monsters and dashed into the Indian troop. The leader of the Indian troop was a bony, thin old man with a goatee. His mouth, which was filled with the smell of curry, gave loud instructions to his people as well as his allies to disperse quickly without attacking. The evil cult followers that ran too slowly were either tossed away by the force of Qin Zhui's impact, or torn to pieces by the Greeks. The Indian people and their allies were deranged, yet everyone understood that they could not dash forward to avenge their companions, otherwise, this would turn into a tangled mess. Whether it was by the hands of the four warriors that stood with the Greeks' final essences, or the Asian man with the maniacal smile on his face. The price to pay for turning this into a violent battle was that their actual powers would be diminished, turning into fat meat served on a platter for the other great powers. The Indian people's troops scattered and fell into disarray. It would not take long before they got turned into a pile of scattered sand. The old goatee's eyes glimmered sharply, he shrunk and hid his body behind a few of his taller and stronger companions. Qin Zhui was running joyously when he suddenly felt the ground beneath his feet clamp around his feet without warning. A gush of silky soft, yet rigid force, akin to a slithering scaleless snake, tightly wound itself around him. Qin Zhui stopped moving and roared. He plunged his tang knife heavily into the ground. The crypt sounds of popping echoed out. The force that had entangled him was shattered but it had slowed him down. The four Greek warriors pounced at him 
their strong bodies blocking out the blue sky. Qin Zhui's vision darkened. He did not think as he raised his tang knife and slashed at the heavens in one swift stroke. However, the stroke that which Qin Zhui had exerted with all his might, surprisingly missed its target. The Greeks that pounced over were like agile birds. They circled around in mid-air in a manner that defied the laws of physics, and after a brief moment, somersaulted and shrieked as they crashed towards the Indian leader. The four Greek warriors flew up all at once, their heads and legs crashed into each other as they trashed in mid-air in a series of arcs, like meteors chasing after the moon. They flew in the direction of the Indian troops' corps. Finally, his vision started to blur, as when Leong appeared next to him. Qin Zhu gave out a laugh as he asked, Did you do that? When Leong chuckled as he pointed towards the Indian goatee leader. He tried to harm you earlier. Even if Wen Leong were to attempt to conceal his true power, he could not bear to see Qin Zhui, who was already injured, go through any more danger. Despite everything, Qin Zhui stayed composed. It's all right, I was the one who brought harm to him first. As he said that, he inhaled a deep breath and laughed once more. It was a great fight indeed. Following that, he pulled at Wen Leong and strolled back to their campsite almost lazily. The four Greeks were like iron emery wheels as they crashed next to the Indian leader. They jumped up and immediately engaged the Indians in a chaotic fight. The Indian people could not dodge them in time. They could only cry out and complain bitterly as they fought. Upon when Leong and Qin Zhui's return to their campsite, they were received with grand shouts from their African cheering squad. There was heartfelt admiration in Tutatun's glance as he looked upon the two young Chinese lads, he understood, in his heart, that he had finally found himself protection under these powerful forces. Qin Zhui was not injured too severely but he would not be fighting for some time to come. He did not waste time in talking upon his return, instead headed directly into the tent to recuperate. He had waved his knife and fought valiantly to display their power. If he had not been driven into a helpless corner, they could have rested easy knowing that no one would be scheming against them for a while. As it happens, a Khmer man and a Persian man walked out of their respective troops, the rigid smile that they displayed earlier was still hanging on their faces. They walked towards Wen Leong's campsite. Their African allies started shrieking in vigilance once again, revealing their gleaming white teeth. Chapter 184 Wen Leong had been vigilantly fixated on the Tibetan people in the small town of Tuer. He scarcely paid any attention to the evil cult followers. From his point of view, their method of dividing themselves based purely on their numbers was a weak move. They would never make it to the top. On Zhanyan's peak, the rogue cultivators had attempted to overwhelm their opponents with their numerical strength, but they had failed, defeated by the supernatural power of a master practitioner of Great Mercy Temple. They were blinded. Some crashed into the mountains, while some were thrown off the cliff. The power of the Greeks' devilry art had been extremely shocking. Even Qin Zhui could not handle the five remaining warriors. If these five were to enter the magical realm, it would definitely prove troublesome. If Wen Leong had not went through the trials back in the painting town in Shanghai, if his body and bones not not been remolded by the poison of life and death, it would be difficult to tell if he could have saved Qin Zhui earlier. However, the last of the Greek evil cult followers were already the living dead. With the last thread of life in their body, the instinct to slaughter became their only purpose and inherent ability. Find authorized novels in Web Novel Faster Updates, Better Experience Please Click WW. Web Novel. Calm for visiting. The Greeks were crumbling after their alliance broke apart. Judging by their numbers alone, they were already considered as the most vulnerable. The rest of the three alliances took advantage of the situation. The Indian people were busy encircling and suppressing the remaining Greek warriors the Khmer Alliance and the Persian Alliance dispatched their individual representatives in unison and came to Wen Leong's campsite. Gu Xiaojun could not hold himself back. He pointed towards the Africans and asked Fei Fei, can you please tell them to stop screaming like monkeys the moment they see someone approach us? Fei Fei shook her head, grinning from ear to ear. I will not. The two parties had a communication barrier but Fei Fei had the ability to read the other party's emotions and its changes based on just their expressions and voices. 
Hence, she could have gestured her intention to the other party without much difficulty. Compared to the rest of the evil cult followers, the outlook of the Persians were undoubtedly the most prominent. Their faces were tattooed with ancient scriptures. Their pale yellow-colored eyes occasionally rolled and rippled in faint but distinctive evil energy. Upon arriving at the entrance of their campsite, the Persian man completely disregarded the Africans whose screams were getting louder and louder. Their poisonous, snake-like gaze slowly swept over when Liang's troop and finally rested on the eldest member, Gu Xiaojun. He stretched out his hand and gestured, inviting Gu Xiaojun to step out for a discussion. Gu Xiaojun refused to go outside alone and attempt speaking face to face with an evil cult follower whose face was full of tattoos. He stood rooted to the spot, not caring whether the Persian man could understand his language, he roared loudly, speak freely. At this point, the Khmer people's representative also arrived at their campsite. He stared at the Persian man in apparent numbness. Fei Fei scoffed and said to the rest softly, these two are in cahoots. Gu Xiaojun frowned as he instructed unceremoniously, expose them. Fei Fei laughed. She stretched out her hands and pointed towards the two great powers representatives standing outside their campsite and then clasped her hands together, making the gesture of holding hands. The Khmer man and the Persian man were stunned. These two evil cult followers, from Southeast Asia and South Asia respectively, had been in correspondence for decades. Their mostly similar religious doctrines had allowed them to approve of each other's existence. Since their arrival in the small town of Tour, these two troops had not directly walked together but had instead built their own personal power. However, they had sworn, in the name of the nine-headed snake, that they would watch out for each other in today's battle. If judging simply by numbers, on the surface, it seemed like the Greek alliance that was just broken apart earlier was the strongest power. However, in truth, the troop with the highest number of people lied in the secret collusion between the Khmer people of Cambodia and the Persian immigrants from South Asia. The two evil cult followers' representatives that had arrived before Wen Liang's campsite did not expect the Asian people would see through their trick so easily. They were caught off guard and suddenly did not know what to say. After a moment, the Khmer man squeezed out a rigid smile from his dark and thin face and said to Fei Fei, eyesight, very good. The Khmer people had long been in a cultural exchange with the Chinese. Majority of Cambodians could speak some simple Mandarin. Gu Xiaojun heaved out a long sigh as he laughed, finally, we meet someone who understands, speak freely. The Indian Alliance troop was still in chaos. Even Qin Zhui had failed at defeating the four Greek warriors whom had launched a counterattack when at the verge of death. Needless to say, the Indian people were strong but not one of them was willing to sacrifice themselves to these dying wild beasts. The Indian leader, Old Goatee, had extricated himself from the situation under the protection of his bodyguards. As he left the fighting troop, upon seeing the other two great powers send out representatives to the Chinese's campsite, he too hastily sent out a representative, who walked in quick strides towards Wen Leung. The Khmer people's representative spoke in a string of ghastly and indiscernible Chinese. He was so nervous that his face was covered in sweat. When Liang's troop of five starred speechlessly at one another, no one could understand him. The Khmer people's representative could speak a few words in Chinese but there he could not for the life of him string together a proper sentence. The Persian man seemed to grow impatient as he listened. He pointed towards himself, then stretched out his hand and gestured the number four, then pointed to the Khmer man and gestured the number four again. He pointed to Gu Xiaojun and gestured number one. Finally, he gestured the numbers four plus four plus one, which equaled to the number nine. The Khmer man stretched out his hand and pointed towards the Indian people standing far away and the rest of the few troops that had stripped themselves away from the Greek alliance. He spoke in a simple and strained manner, will kill, we. Gu Xiaojun had not even responded when the Persian people's representative suddenly shouted loudly. His hand flipped as he pulled out his curved knife. His body turned in a circle as he agilely cut the Indian people's representative, that was approaching near, into two with just a stroke. Simultaneously, the Persian leader at the far side shouted in an awe-inspiring voice, the Persian evil cult followers that were gathered next to him pulled out their curved knives in unison. Their curved blades pointed straight at the Indian people's troop. 
After the Persian representative had kept away his curved knife, his expression was unusually odd. It had only took him a moment to cut the Indian man into two, but it was during that fleeting moment, that he had felt as if a gigantic threat was approaching, which disappeared as suddenly as it had came. Wen Leong chuckled. He had took a step and arrived in front of the Persian man then fell back next to the two siblings. The Persian man could not even see Wen Leong's movements. He only saw a blur in his vision, someone else was there and had disappeared almost instantaneously. It was then that the Persian man understood, when he drew out his knife earlier, Wen Leong did not know the Persian man's intentions. Wen Leong had immediately approached him, fast as lighting. When he saw that the Persian man was just dealing with the Indian man, he fell back. Tudatante suddenly stopped screaming. His eyes were filled with unease. There was even fear in his eyes as he looked towards Gu Xiaojun and the others. When he caught Wen Leong's gaze, he hastily stretched out his hand and patted his chest, repeatedly speaking with his choppy Chinese, friend. Friend. The two representatives' intention could not be any clearer. There were four troops in each of their alliances. In addition to Gu Xiaojun's group of five, there were nine troops in total. As for the rest of the evil cult followers, the Persian people and the Khmer people would be responsible in dealing with them. The Chinese people would only need to look away and do nothing. The situation between Wen Leong and their African allies suddenly became dangerous. Gu Xiaojun seemed to be interested in their proposal. His gaze alternated back and forth over the patrolling African people. Tudatunt felt like a lamb that was awaiting its slaughter. His gaze was simple yet sorrowful. He watched Gu Xiaojun quietly. His eyeballs rolled around. The lingering fear in between his brows could not be erased. Wen Leong gave Tudatunt a smile, signaling to him that he needed not worry. When these African people, who only knew how to scream, were patrolling last night, they had circled around the Chinese people's campsite as well. Even though there was no inherent use in them doing so, Wen Leong could see their kind intention with his eyes. Gu Xiaojun could see through Wen Leong's action. He reminded Wen Leong softly, Everyone here is an evil cult follower. They are all our enemies. Fei Fei suddenly took a step forward. Without waiting for her leader to speak again, she took the liberty of laughing as she nodded towards Tudatunt and said strenuously, Friend. Following that, she shifted her gaze towards the Persian and Khmer representatives and shook her head in determination. She stretched out her hand and pointed towards her people and the African people. Then clasped her fingers together and balled them into a fist. The African people were elated. Under their leader's guidance, they continued to shriek. The Persian representative laughed. He nodded towards Gu Xiaojun. Within his poisonous, snake-like eyes, a glimmer of admiring praise appeared. Fei Fei used an extremely soft voice and explained to Gu Xiaojun, who was staring at her in rage, the Tibetan people dislikes troops that betray its allies. When the Greeks were betrayed by their own allies earlier, the Tibetans' expressions were very angry. Gu Xiaojun was stunned for a moment. He looked towards Fei Fei. Really? Fei Fei blinked her eyes with an expression of injustice. She muttered an answer, of course it's real. Gu Xiaojun nodded. He roared loudly towards the representatives who stood little ways away, Chinese people never betray their allies. Upon hearing that, Wen Leong felt goosebumps erupt all over his body. The Khmer representative pondered for a moment then pointed with his finger in the direction of the Indian people and the other small troops of allies again. They, I kill. All of you, wait. Wen Leong was overjoyed. If it were not for the Khmer representative's anticipation and gesturing, just by listening to his words, Wen Leong would have that he meant I will come and kill all of you once I am done killing everyone else. Gu Xiaojun burst out laughing. Why? Isn't this good for us? Qin Zhui had alone made the entire Greek troop annihilate itself. He had forced the Greeks into exchanging their lives for the final power from the art of devilry. Following that, when Leong had moved at such a speed that even the evil cult followers' leaders had not been able to follow him, that they could not tell how he had tossed away those four savage Greek warriors. What scared the evil cult followers the most was this small-eyed bodyguard, who owned invisible giants, had yet to make his move. 
While the mysterious old man and young maiden seemed to have no intention of attacking at all, what actual powers were these five people hiding? Due to sudden emergence of the squad of five as a strong force, it broke the balance of the original plan of the Persian and Khmer people. Hence, they wanted to fight a quick battle to force a decision, put an end to the currently in chaos Indian representative troop and the Greek representative troop that had already lost its backbone. However, everyone was afraid that the Asians might stab them from behind. That was why they sent over representatives in an attempt to negotiate. Even if they failed in drawing the Asians to their side, at the very least, the Asians would be appeased temporarily. By the time everybody else was defeated, it would be much easier for them to eliminate the Asians. The Khmer representative opened his mouth. He appeared as if he wanted to swear at Gu Xiaojun. The Persian representative burst out laughing. He patted his companion's shoulder, turned around, and returned to his troop. The descendants of warriors, that had once battered Europe, trusted the Asians because they refused to abandon their ally. The Persian representatives moved left when Leon with a good impression of them. The African leader, Tutatunt, walked over. He pointed to himself for a while and pointed to old Gu. Occasionally, he pointed towards the outside, gesturing for a long while. Fei Fei finally understood. She laughed as she turned around and informed Gu Xiaojun, they are saying that, if someone were to attack us, they would not hesitate to engage them in combat. Gu Xiaojun burst out laughing. Relax. No one would dare screw with us right now. Tell them, our two families will rise and rank together smoothly. Since the Tibetan people of this small town fancied the act of being loyal to friends, Gu Xiaojun decided that he would speak of loyalty to friends until the end of time. Upon finishing his sentence, he stopped for a moment and hastily added to Fei Fei, please ask them to stop screaming. If they keep screaming, we will surely dissolve the alliance. The Persian leader was not an old man but a young warrior. He had on a pair of leather pants. His upper body was unclothed, but densely packed with scripture tattoos. Upon hearing his representative's report, he first raised his curved knife high in salute to Gu Xiaojun. Then, his sharp blade abruptly slashed through the air as he somersaulted out of his troop. He roared as he dashed towards the Indian people, knife in hand. The Persian people seemed to not favor the use of devilry. They only wanted to use the most primeval and savage method to slaughter the enemy. One could tell from their attire and weapons, that they were all warriors, similar to the Greeks. The other three troops under the Persian alliance's siege were the Surinamese people from North America, the Kayan originating from Borneo, and the Canaanites. Their alliance was obviously stronger than that of the Greeks, which had broken off the moment danger hit. Just as the Persian people charged forwards, the rest of the three troops scattered off simultaneously. They charged towards the Indians from three directions, in coordination with the main troop. The Khmer's leader was a middle-aged man of over forty years old. He had a thin and bony frame. His body was not bigger than that of an ape, but his movements were a hundred times more agile than one. He was leading his underlings and allies to pounce sideways towards the original Greek alliance. A tangled warfare was about to break out in the blink of an eye. Ever since when Leong had came out into society, he had encountered all forms of chaos, so much so that he could no longer keep track. This was a rare occurrence, him having the opportunity to keep out of the grand scene. His expression was relaxed as he stood in the campsite and took out a fresh stick of carrot. Gu Xiaojun appeared as calm and steady as before. His sneer was accompanied by a note of contempt. This gang of evil cult followers do not possess much in the way of abilities, they are only capable of using their arms to before he could finish his sentence, the entire ground suddenly started to tremble. Dozens of boulders as big as houses, fell like meteorites, slamming into the small town in loud bangs. The extremely loud explosion wiped away Old Gu's contemptuous sneer in a flash. The falling boulders did not follow any direction, purely crashing everywhere in a chaotic manner. The Khmer people, the Persian people, and the Indian people were all slammed by the boulders. Two chunks of rock even slammed into Wen Liang's campsite. Even though no one was hurt, it still petrified the bunch of Africans. The boulders slammed into the ground and immediately exploded on impact. It was only then, that Wen Liang saw the fear hidden within each of these boulders. 
golems with hideous appearances. Bodies like that a tortoise, complete with buck teeth and vestigial wings like that of a fly, and sharp claws, were wrapped in the boulders. The monsters appeared similar to the ancient Chinese mythological creature known as Bishi, that was used in decorative plinths of commemorative tablets, but its appearance was much more ferocious and malicious than that of Bishi. The poison steam that had just began settling underneath Wen Liang's feet immediately spread out and surrounded everyone. Wen Liang asked in fear, What is that? Fei Fei was seemed unusually calm. She stood next to Wen Liang and pondered out loud, This creature's is carries similarities to the Garuda beast in Angkor Wat. It appears to have been summoned by the Khmer. As if in response, the stone Garudas shook their heads and wagged their tails as they moved about. A series of sharp whistling sounds echoed from the Khmer troop. The Garuda beasts immediately raised their heads and let out a cry which sounded like sick cows. Following that, the Garuda beasts spread their legs. With the help of their vestigial wings, the beasts surged towards the enemies. The tangled warfare that had been brewing for a long time finally broke out. It was the exact opposite of what Gu Xiaojun had imagined. This was no simple battle. The Indian people still had not freed themselves of the four Greek warriors. When they were faced with the Persian people's wild attack, the goatee leader finally made up his mind. He commanded his troops loudly. The sounds of peculiar incantations echoed out continuously. The ground that had been calm just moments earlier, started to tremble with the Indian people's queer prayer. It only took seconds, then a stretch of forest burst out of the ground, concealing the entire Indian troop and their allies. Even a camel could guess that this stretch of forest belonged to the Indian people and stepping into would spell death to any enemy that was daring enough to invade them. The Persian warriors waved about their own curved knives in a ghastly manner. Rather than calling it waving, one could say that they were performing an ancient ceremony. Following the shouts of their young leader, everyone stabbed their knives into the loose soil. At high speeds, the ground underneath the blade split open, leaving behind streaks upon streaks of fissures. Shriveled hands struggled to stretch out from the fissures which had been slashed open in the ground by the Persian warriors. The palms clawed away at the ground. Dried corpses, bodies pure black in color and emanating a foul stench, jumped out of the ground and followed the Persian warriors as they dashed into the forest without the slightest hint of hesitation. It didn't matter which campsite the rest of the evil cult followers belonged to now, they all summoned their magic spells at this moment. Some were fiddling with flames, some summoned magical guardians, while some channeled the power of wild beasts all throughout the small town of Tuer, the sounds of ghosts weeping and wolves howling was heard. Qin Zhui had not been severely injured. He recuperated for a moment and recovered quickly. He walked out of the tent and was startled, he said, what the heck. We really shouldn't look down on this gang of foreigners. Wen Leong nodded his agreement. If we were to toss all these magic spells and supernatural powers into the magical realm, although it may not be as powerful as the five blessings, but the ordinary small sex would be no match for them. The dozen evil cults in the small town each displayed their own supernatural powers. The magic spells they summoned were quite remarkable. However, if pitted one to one, they did not possess the imposing mannerisms and domineering abilities of the Kunlun Sex Thousand Swords greeting. Nevertheless, if any ordinary small sect were to but heads with them, the small sects would certainly suffer losses. Xiao Sha may be an ordinary mortal, but he had always been in close dealings with the magical realm. He chimed in, in this town, gathered here are all the most incisive evil cult followers of the entire world, of course they are remarkable you you you. What are you doing? Qin Zhui did not wait for Xiao Sha to finish talking. He had raised his tang knife and dashed outside. If it was not for Wen Leong, who pulled him back, he would have already casted all caution to the wind and dashed into the evil cult followers battle and fought to his heart's content. Their African companions were not screaming anymore they were staring in bewilderment at the chaotic battlefield, Tudatun's face was dotted with cold sweat, he finally understood that China was a very dangerous place. The Persian people and their allies dashed into the forest. Apart from Wen Leong, who had psychic abilities, no one could make out the situation. The sounds of raging moans were heard and explosive bangs rang out from the gigantic trees. The smell of spilled blood hung in the air. 
the battle that the Khmer people waged was more direct. It was also a grander sight. Various foreign monsters of all shapes and sizes roared, pillars of flames soared high into the sky, the sounds of battle songs filled with strength and agonizing screams filled with terror converged into one. The troop of evil cult followers, that had abandoned the Greeks, were resisting the Khmer people's rapid attacks with all their might. They clenched their teeth as they pushed back their enemies, praying devotedly in attempt to seek the aid of their nine-headed snake deity. At last, it was obvious that the nine-headed snake did not play favorites. They managed to hold back the Khmer's forces through the daytime but by nightfall, they too had fallen and were slaughtered. The victorious Khmer people did not even take a moment to rest. They immediately instructed the remaining Garuda stone beasts and their allies to dive headfirst into the forest. The shouting and roaring from the forest, which had been gradually fading, grew loud once more. Chapter 185 Just as the moon was rising to the middle of the sky, the huge trees that stood strong and tall started to wither rapidly. The tree branches and leaves dropped onto the ground, accompanied by the sounds of spluttering. It did not take long before the whole forest was a pile of green on the ground. With arms across each other's shoulders, the Persians and Khmers walked out of the forest looking tired. Even though they were still bleeding from wounds on their bodies and brown-colored blood stains covered their faces, every one of them was laughing joyously. They had won. The irritating smell of curry that had perfumed the small town vanished completely. The young Persian warrior leader and the middle-aged Khmer captain walked shoulder to shoulder into Wen Liang's campsite. They laughed as they nodded towards Gu Xiaojun. They did not seem concerned for their own safety. The Khmer translator that was skilled in just two verses of the Chinese language had survived the tangled warfare. He limped behind as he followed his leader. The expression between his brows showed that he was relaxed. He pointed to the surviving evil cult followers as he laughed and said to Gu Xiaojun, We are seven, you are two. Xiao Sha felt that his words sounded a little sly. He muttered softly, You two are one. Gu Xiaojun laughed as he nodded. Even though the Kayan evil cult followers of the Persian alliance had attached themselves to the right troop, but they did not manage to escape from being slaughtered and destroyed entirely by the strong Indian people back in the forest. This incident solved two of the problems, that were not too serious, but was troublesome enough. Due to the evil cult followers' disregard towards the Chinese, this had helped Tutatunt from the African grasslands to achieve his aim. At this point, there were only nine troops left, fulfilling the Tibetan people's quota. However, the African people knew that if more people from their own tribe had come, they would have followed suit and disregarded Wen Liang's group as well. The evil cult followers that had schemed against each other and risked their lives in that desperate fight, surprisingly became like a family. Everyone was in complete harmony. Fei Fei spoke to the group softly, they are being genuine. This is not a pretense perhaps they think that the remaining people have all been chosen by the nine-headed snake. Wen Leong peered at Fei Fei once. His eyes were filled with heartfelt approval. Having a comrade who could see through the enemy's mood at all times was truly a blessing. Fei Fei roared with laughter in an extremely bold and forward manner. I can see that you are praising me wholeheartedly. Tudatun's face was flushed. One could not tell whether he was excited or shy. He walked next to Gu Xiaojun and gestured, as if trying to say that if they were to fight, they had no fear of death. Some of the evil cult leaders were giving Tudatunt the evil eye. They had all risked their lives in exchange for this promotion. While Wen Leong and the rest had displayed extraordinary skills, this gang of Africans could only be described as having been lucky and gained the rewards without putting in the work. On the other hand, the young Persian leader patted Tudatunt's shoulder in earnest. He laughed aloud as he said something. What he said almost drove the amateur Khmer translator into madness. It took him a long while, through a series of gestures and a whole lot of babbling, before Wen Leong understood him. The Persian leader meant to say, there is no need to blame yourself. Everything is as according to God's plan. There is no need to blame yourself, the wise and farsighted God has a vision that is sharper than any knife or sword. There is no need to blame yourself, we will have the chance to display our remarkable supernatural powers in the future. Wen Leong burst out laughing upon hearing this. 
He stretched out his hand and patted on his chest repeatedly as he spoke aloud to the Persian leader, Wen Leong. The Persian leader understood Wen Leong's intention. Using the same method, he laughed aloud and gave his name, Wahid. The Khmer leader despised the Africans but he was filled with admiration for the Chinese. He patted on his chest as he gave his name, G. When the foreign evil cult followers that worshipped the nine-headed monster had arrived in the small town of Tour, there were a total of 500 people at that point. However, there were only a little over a hundred of them left after the violent battle. The remaining nine troops were made up of the Chinese, the Persians, the Khmers, the Canaanites from Asia, the Surinamese from South America. A group of indigenous Indians from North America, a pack of aboriginals from Austria, and a few Goths from Europe. The two troops with the highest number of people amongst them were the Khmers and the Persians, with over twenty people. The rest of the troops were only survived by a dozen or so people. Wen Leung's group was still the smallest, which only consisted of five people. Everyone there had a communication barrier. They gestured to each other as they gathered. The evil cult followers that fought side by side earlier were exceptionally affectionate towards one another and were excited. They were in high spirits because they believed they had been chosen by the nine-headed snake god. They roared and shouted in joy. Despite all this, the Tibetan people barely acknowledged them. They had dispersed after the battle was over. They did not give the followers a departure date or even mention the next destination of their journey. The remaining evil cult followers did not press the matter. They gathered their campsites together and started celebrating, offering up their prayers. When Leon tried to discern the true purpose of the nine-headed snake's followers, why they had traveled such long distances to this mysterious little town of Tibet. He could not come up with anything. He tried to discuss this matter with his group on and off but their discussions did not bear any fruit. Also due to the communication barrier, it was difficult for them to gather any information from the other evil cult followers. Hence, he gave up. As long as he followed the troops, sooner or later, they would uncover the truth. Over the next few days, Wen Leong passed his time in extremely high spirits. He spent the afternoons eating medium-rare roast meat with the Africans, the nights drinking alcohol with the Persians. Halfway through drinks, he would be pulled away by the Khmers to sing songs everyone was in an elated mood. They spent the days and nights in enjoyment. Three days passed, before a few Tibetans entered their campsite at dusk. The events happened similarly, back when they had announced the elimination match. A Tibetan man, with downcast eyes, spoke in soft tone. Upon giving his speech, not caring whether the evil cult followers could hear his clearly or if they had understand him, turned and walked away. After the Tibetans left, the evil cult followers started bustling about. As when Leon predicted, the evil cult followers that did not understand the Tibetan language could understand the words the messenger had said. Perhaps it was because of high and pure power that came from their worship, or maybe it was because of some form of devilry, the communication barrier was overridden by the use of the Tibetan language as the carrier. This both shocked and frightened Wen Leong. Fortunately, Gu Xiaojun and the siblings could understand the Tibetan language. Otherwise, they would truly be in great trouble. Upon listening to the, the Tibetans' words, Gu Xiaojun had put on a long face. He translated to Wen Leong softly, they were saying that the other evil cult followers are to pack up and prepare to depart with them immediately. Xiao Sha could not speak a word to them but still went to every tent and bidded farewell to almost every troop leader. Wen Leong was astonished, the other evil cult's followers. What does that mean? Gu Xiaojun scoffed and said, that means excluding us. They want the five of us to stay behind to fight an enemy. Wen Leong's expression was a combination of surprise and suspicion. The moment Qin Zhui heard about a fight, he was excited. His expression was of deep concern as he inquired intently, A enemy is coming? What sort of enemy is it? Fei Fei answered on behalf of Gu Xiaojun, the Tibetan people said that the battle that took place a few days ago had startled the enemy, and as we speak, the enemies are rushing over to this town. Upon saying that, she stopped for a moment. Based on my predictions, the enemy the Tibetan people meant should be the Lamas. The people from the Tibetan Buddhism sect have kept to themselves and refused to involve themselves in any matters relating to the magical realm. 
Hence, in the eyes of magic users, the Tibetan Buddhism sect is considered to be an obscure magic sect. When Leon gave out a forced laugh as he fished out a stick of carrot. He broke the carrot into two and gave Qin Zhui one half before asking Gu Xiaojun, Do you have any friends in the Lama world? Gu Xiaojun was filled with uncertainty. He stared at Wen Leong as he said, I was just about to ask you the same thing. Wen Leong laughed. He had high levels of magical powers, as long as the enemy was not on the level of some old demon, such as Chang Li or Tian Shu, he was not concerned about facing them. That was why he did not take the matter of fighting seriously but he continued to inquire lightly, then, where are the Tibetans bringing the evil cult followers to? Gu Xiaojun shook his head. He was not concerned with this. The Tibetans did not say but as long as we have Xiao Sha here, that shouldn't be a problem. Upon saying that, his face filled with doubt. His expression was one of uncertainty as he asked Fei Fei softly, Do you think that the Tibetans have realized that we... Fei Fei shook her head. She spoke with absolute certainty in her voice, impossible. The expression the Tibetan people had when they looked at us was exactly the same as when they looked upon the rest of the evil cult followers. If the Tibetans were truly suspicious of us, no matter how icy their expressions are, they would never be able to hide it from me. Gu Xiaojun let out a long sigh of relief. It was only then that he nodded, his expression relaxing slightly. Qin Zhui sniggered. Leaving us behind to deal with the enemy. Surely it is because we are strong. Wen Leong was not as optimistic. This matter may appear straightforward but he wondered about alternatives. Something did not sit right with him, there were too many holes. He shook his head as she spoke softly, if that were the case, that would be the best case scenario. However, why not have everyone work together to kill the enemy? These evil cult followers have quite remarkable powers as well the Tibetans want to lead eight troops forward first. Are they not afraid that we will be destroyed by the enemy? If it is all right for us to be sacrificed, then why did we have the elimination match to choose nine troops? Qin Zhui felt confused after listening to Wen Leong. He pulled out the Tang knife from behind his back. With the sound of a swoosh, he plunged the knife into the ground. Why do you bother with things that you cannot figure out just yet? Sooner or later, the truth will reveal itself. Wen Leong laughed as he shook his head. It is true, there is no point in trying to figure out something we have no clue about. However, at the very least, we should acknowledge that this is rather odd, shouldn't we? Qin Zhui looked astonished. He stared at Wen Leon with his mouth hanging open, he could not understand. Gu Xiaojun nodded and seconded, what he just said is correct. He looked towards Fei Fei. When the Tibetan people were looking at the remaining nine troops of evil cult followers, what were their moods? Unexpectedly, Fei Fei, who had no problem looking into another person's soul all this while, shook her head and spoke hesitantly, I could not understand what I was seeing. Their mood was not within the category of happiness, anger, sorrow or joy it was like their expression was not human. Now, when Leong and Gu Xiaojun joined Qin Zhui, staring at Fei Fei with their mouths hanging open. After a few moments, Xiao Sha entered the tent chuckling, proclaiming proudly to the group, I have left behind tracking signals on all eight of the troops. We will not lose them within the next 300 miles. However are we really staying behind? Gu Xiaojun heaved a sigh. We are staying. To be frank, it's better for us to stay behind rather than any of them. Wen Leong gave a forced laugh as he nodded. He understood what was on Gu Xiaojun's mind. Of course, he was not referring to the level of their powers but trying to say that the people rushing over to fight the evil cult followers should be their friends. It would be better to have Wen Leong and the rest stop these enemies rather than allowing the Lamas to be ambushed by the real evil cult followers. However, even if Wen Leong regarded the Lamas as friends, would the Lamas trust them? He recalled then the process of him dealing with the Leong family. Wen Leong felt that that matter was still not fully settled. Gu Xiaojun pondered for a moment. He suddenly jumped up and pulled Fei Fei along to visit each of the evil cult followers, who were busy breaking camp. They talked and and gestured to the other parties, trying to get them to stay behind and help fight the enemy together. Wen Leong was confused. He did not understand why old Gu was doing this. 
most of the evil cult leaders were reluctant. They dared not go against the Tibetans' instructions. Only Tudatunt and the Persian leader agreed to discuss with the Tibetans, albeit after much persuading. Nevertheless, the results were as they had expected. The Tibetans reject the proposal with expressions as cold as ice. Gu Xiaojun did not seem disappointed though. It was only then that Wen Leong understood his actions. Old Gu was just trying to probe the Tibetans for more information. The only explanation was that there was to be one troop at most that stayed behind to deal with the enemy. There would be eight troops that would follow the Tibetans to the next destination. Gu Xiaojun was a cunning old fox. If Wen Leong had understood the old fox's true aim, he would no longer be a foolish young lad. Not before long, the Tibetans and the remaining eight troops of evil cult followers left the small town. They walked towards in the direction of the sacred Lake Nanso. When they left, the skies were completely dark. There were a total of over 100 evil cult followers, while the small town residents came up to about two to three hundred people. Counting all of them, the whole group was almost four to five hundred men strong. Their size was formidable but they barely made a sound, merely vanishing quietly over the edge of the horizon. When Leon then realized in astonishment, these Tibetans from the small town of Tuer did not own a single dog or cow. There seemed to be no other living creature in this town apart from its human residents. Over the last few days, the small town of Tuer in Tibet had went through moments of iciness and silence, scheming and plotting, joy and celebration. Finally, it became desolated, appearing almost deserted apart from the five companions that were left behind. Gu Xiaojun waited until the Tibetans and evil cult followers were out of sight before he gave his instructions. Search the town. See if anyone else stayed behind. Also look out for things that the Tibetans used. Wen Leong, Fei Fei, and Xiao Sha will make up one group. Qin Zhui, you're with me. The rest of them did not waste anything in obeying, only Qin Zhui muttered, I want to be in the same group as Wen Leong of course, his request was rejected. Wen Leong chuckled as he said, there shouldn't be anybody else here. Let's look out for anything suspicious. The town was very small. Wen Leong's psychic ability wrapped around the entire town like a thick fog. He could sense the siblings, Gu Xiaojun, and Qin Zhui within this fog. If any of his companions were to come across trouble, it would take him mere seconds to rush to their aid. Any ordinary magic user could not escape from his psychic feelers. Besides, if a true first-rate master sorcerer was hiding in this town, it would be a futile effort to depend on their naked eyes in searching. The five of them divided themselves into two groups and immediately spread out. Old Gu's pair were in charge of searching from west to east. Wen Liang's trio were to scout north to south. Hard winds blew through the highlands. The ice-covered hills in the distance acted like ferocious sharp knives, slicing through the wind. By the time the sound reached the town, the wind sounded like cries. The houses in the small town of Tuer were different from the stone houses of South Tibet, or the richly decorated tent houses of North Tibet. There was nothing special about these houses. The walls were a wash of grayish white, the roofs covered in grayish black slates. From the outside, the houses did not seem to be arranged in any pattern or style. The entire town was like rows upon rows of mahjong tiles, which had been flipped over and left on the ground in a mess. Xiao Sha was in no rush to enter the houses, but instead produced his compass and star chart. He was consulting the array of stars in the sky. Fei Fei explained to Wen Leong from the side, no matter which sect, the geographical layout of their buildings should follow a pattern. The messier it appears, the more likely it is to hold a secret. Some want to use it as a way to control the fates of heaven and earth, some want it to mimic celestial formations. Each and every sect is different, but once we have identified the town's arrangement, we should be able to uncover more of these Tibetans' backstory. Fei Fei spoke in almost a whisper. The silence in the town was deafening. Everyone could not help but lowered their voice, as if there were beasts that had been sleeping underneath their feet for millenniums and any slight movements would jolt the beasts awake. Wen Leong nodded. The entire town radiated with evil. Not only were the houses arranged in total disarray such that one house was in the east and the other in the west, the houses did not face one direction. 
Other than the patients of the Beijing Anding Hospital, who built their hostel in this manner, no other normal human being would build a small town this way. A few minutes later, Xiao Sha raised his head. His expression was filled with puzzlement. This town does not seem to be built in any arrangement that I know of. It, it's just a mess. Fei Fei chuckled, she not was nervous in the slightest. I see, it is all natural. As she said that, she strode towards the nearest house. She raised a hand and pushed open the wooden door of the house. She flipped on her torchlight and walked in. Wen Leong and Xiao Sha followed behind closely. The house was only a dozen square meters. There was only a mattress, a table, and a stove. Everything was tidy and spotless. Other than that, there did not seem to be anything of note in the house. Xiao Sha frowned. The Tibetan lands experienced strong winds and little rain, any ordinary Tibetan house would never be this clean. With such simple furnishings, there was no need to search through anything. Everything seemed to lay out bare right in front of them. Fei Fei raised her nose and sniffed the air. She asked in a puzzled tone, Can you smell that? Wen Leong gave a slight nod. Don't worry, it isn't poison. He had picked up on the scent the moment they entered the house. A faint, distinct stench was floating in the air. It smelled like a failed attempt at fermented fish. The walls were not covered in any tiles, and there were no hidden tunnels underneath the house. The house was just a house. All the houses were exactly the same. The furnishing and arrangement were exactly the same in all the houses. The trio's search progressed quickly. It did not take them long before they had searched the entire small town. With over a hundred houses, there was no one to be found in that small town. There was utterly nothing that they could find in helping to reveal the identity of its residents. There was nothing there for them to go over. Every single house in this small town of Tuer only possessed the two suspicious qualities, the faint fishy stench and the strangely spotless furniture and rooms however, when Leong could make no sense of it. Gu Xiaojuan's duo came back empty-handed as well. Everyone was confused. At that moment, when Leong's psychic feelers, which had covered the entire small town, shook faintly. A group of people with agile footsteps were rushing towards the town. To his surprise, Wen Leong felt a sense of relief. The enemies were approaching. At least, it meant that those Tibetans were telling the truth. He felt his spirits restore as he said to his companion softly. The enemies are here. After his bones and body had been remodeled by the poison of life and death, his psychic abilities had heightened considerably. The area that he could cover with his psychic ability had increased by many folds as compared to before. Gu Xiaojun behaved in the same way as Wen Leong. He let out a long breathe. If that is truly the enemy, then all is well. As he saw Qin Zhui become excited and lifted his Tang knife, wanting to dash forward immediately to face the enemy. Gu Xiaojun hastily reminded him. Don't forget, these people are not really our enemies. Wen Leong suddenly frowned. His psychic ability that swirled around like a fog had reflected to him the appearance of the intruders. He muttered to himself, how can it be them as he said this, he suddenly thought of something. He pulled Qin Zhui to in front of Xiao Sha, he spoke in soft yet urgent tone, quick, smack him. Xiao Sha's eyes were filled with confusion but when Leong insisted, smack his face. Xiao Sha understood then. He did not bother speaking as he raised his hands and slapped Qin Zhui's face a few times. He was pretty rough with Qin Zhui's face. Qin Zhui was transformed with a new appearance in the blink of an eye. He was still unspeakably hideous but no one could tell he was Qin Zhui anymore. Gu Xiaojun frowned, he asked Wen Leong in a low tone, the people who are coming know Qin Zhui. Wen Leong gave a forced smile as he shook his head. More than that. They know me too. The moment he finished his sentence, a streak of bright red lit up the night sky, filling it with a dazzling array of stars. It tainted everyone's vision with the color of blood. Qin Zhui watched the immortal radiance that had erupted in mid-air with his usual naive and innocent expression. He squinted his eyes as he asked Wen Leong softly, Who are these people? Oh. What's wrong with you? Qin Zhui suddenly realized that Wen Leong's face had drained of blood and was rather pale. 
Even his body was trembling in fear. When Leong took in a big gulp of air. He was trying to suppress the fear in heart desperately, before opening his mouth slowly, struggling to enunciate his words properly like he was using all his strength, they they are here for for recommended votes. Chapter 186 The origins and the behavior of the Tibetans in Tuer town had left some questions to be answered. Up until now, when Leong and his group had already participated in an elimination race, eaten roast meat with the African brothers for a few days, and had been dispatched to stay in the town to fight an enemy. Even if Gu Xiaojin had no intention of fighting with them, in order to continue investigating this case, they could only follow the Tibetans' orders and chase away the enemy. There were two possibilities as to who would come and hunt the evil cult followers. One of it would be the Buddhist elites who simply wanted to keep the peace and order. How could they let the evil cult followers run rampant near their sacred lake? The second possibility was that some sorcerers had discovered the nine-headed snake's followers' scheme and had rushed over to stop it. If it was the former, then they had little to say. They could not hope to explain the situation anyway. They would attack them directly, push them back, and chase after the evil cult followers. If it was the latter and if they were lucky, their two parties could form an alliance and when Liang's group would be able to find out the true intentions of the Tibetans and evil cult followers. Of course, both of these possibilities were really low. It was just enough to bring hope but they knew better than to have any wild wishes. Qin Zhui lifted his head and observed the red glowing light in the sky. The initial excitement in his eyes quickly faded as he said in a dispirited manner, this magical power is nothing special who exactly is it? The other party was traveling fast. Wen Leong did not have the time to explain to him as he said to Gu Xiaojun in a low voice. We will try not speak. We will let you handle this. If negotiations fall through, then I will attack them. Don't worry, these people aren't that strong. An idea came to Qin Zhui all of a sudden. A sense of genuine happiness appeared on his ugly face, the one who is coming is at nineteen. When Leon was caught in between wanting to cry and laugh as he chided, its first brother, Xia. Qin Zhui remained unaware. He did not detect the sarcasm in Wen Leong's tone. He said in astonishment, that old man has came as well. Qin Zhui's tone was respectful when he spoke of his future father-in-law. Qin Zhui's voice had barely faded when a slightly hoarse voice yelled coldly, You have just commented on the skills of my disciple, you must be an expert. How fortunate this priest is able to meet an expert today. As he said this, a short figure appeared at the edge of the town, a pair of bright eyes stared straight at Gu Xiaojun. Gu Xiaojun was slightly shocked, it wasn't me who said that. The other party's gaze shifted onto Xiao Sha's face as he sneered, I wasn't talking to you either. Xiao Sha was at a complete loss. He asked with a puzzled face, then, were you talking to me sir? The man's gaze fixed on Gu Xiaojun once more. Ugly man, why are your eyes twitching? Qin Zhui, who was standing beside Gu Xiaojun answered simply, my face is uncomfortable he had been buffeted by sand and his face felt uncomfortable. After saying that, he frowned. Did you address me earlier, old man? Fei Fei, who had been watching from the sides, was hit with a sudden realization. She said to her companions in a low voice, I think I get it. He's he's cross-eyed. The man's gaze was like electric, suddenly locking on Wen Leung. The young girl should talk less. She has to know that calamity can originate from one's mouth. Wen Leong nodded towards Fei Fei and smiled bitterly. The Taoist currently standing just outside the town border had white brows, white beard, and white hair. He stood no taller than three feet but he was stern and cold. He was the supreme leader of the Chilean immortal sect. When Wen Leong had led a team into the gold-consuming lair on back on Chilean mountain, they had crossed paths with him many times. When they left, the dwarf Taoist priest had been badly injured by cone nail and was out cold. Some thirty younger Taoists appeared behind the Taoist priest, one after another. They all looked familiar. These men have all met Wen Leong in the gold consuming lair. After cone nail had been revived and broken out of the frozen forest, the gold consuming lair had been completely destroyed. The land of metal element in the magical realm had also vanished along with it. The two-thousand-year-old Chilean immortal sect became no more than a memory. 
When Leon could not understand why the Taoist priests had left Mount Chilian had come to Tibet to catch evil cult followers. When Leong and Qin Zhui's features had been rearranged by the small-eyed Xiao Xiao. Even they would not have recognized their own reflection in a mirror. They were not worried in the slightest that they would be recognized by the dwarf Taoist priest. The Chilian immortal sect held a deep grudge against Wen Leong. If they had met directly, the other party would surely have attacked them on first sight. Qin Zhui had also been training at the edge of the gold-consuming lair. Logically speaking, it would not matter much even if he were to be recognized. However, when Leong worried that he might spill the beans whilst attempting to explain. Hence, he decided to have Qin Zhui disguised to prevent any complications. Another figure appeared silently beside the dwarf Taoist priest. He was a dark-skinned, fierce-looking head lama, whose rotund body was clad in a red robe. He did not look much like a leader. If he were to take off his monk robes and wield a carving knife, he could have been mistaken for a butcher. When Qin Zhui saw the head lama, his gaze brightened, his entire body felt invigorated. The head lama was like a glaring veda, his eyes bulging like huge bronze bells. He stared fiercely at Qin Zhui. The people of Qilian immortal sect and the head lama did not step into the town but instead stood at its border. They stared at the five people inside the town, like crouching tigers about to spring. Fei Fei used an extremely low tone to tell her companions about the feelings of their opponents based on their expression, they are confident but distrustful of us. They want to see us try to bluff them on purpose. Xiao Xia smiled bitterly and nodded. He also whispered, they're here to catch evil cult followers. Of course they'll treat us as such. When Leong suddenly cried out in surprise. His upper body, which was tougher than iron rock, convulsed for a moment, startling his four companions. When Le Young's expression was first of shock, then it changed to a look of joy. Finally, he let out a long sigh, as if he had finally shrugged off a burden. He chuckled and shook his head at the group. It's nothing, it's nothing. Fei Fei's gaze stayed on his face for a bit longer. She could read Wen Le Young's current feelings as clear as day. She asked with a smile, did something good happen? Wen Leong laughed. He did not pay any attention to the glaring Chilean disciples at the town border. He nodded towards Fei Fei, you're right, something great did just happen. Gu Xiaojun ignored the jumpy Wen Leong. He laughed at the sky, then looked towards the head lama and the Taoist priest as he asked, are you passing by? It seems like this town has no residents, food or drinks. We two were just passing this town on our journey. The tanned and rotund head lama squinted his eyes and quickly scanned the faces of Wen Leong and the others, quick as lighting. He spoke in choppy sounding Mandarin as he asked, Where did the residents of this town go? The moment the head lama's gaze swept across his face, Wen Leong felt his face drain of blood. At the same time, his spirit was greatly shook. Thank goodness the opponent's gaze had moved on quickly. When Leong had felt this sensation before, it was known at the Weeping Buddha Knife site. He had experienced it once from the gaze of a past opponent. Frankly, Gu Xiaojun was unsure of how to continue the cover-up story. He could not tell them the truth. Even if he did, there was no guarantee that the other party would believe him. He decided to wing it. He chuckled and shook head. How would I know where the town's residents have gone? Essentially, he was telling the truth. Next to him, his companions nodded in unison. Gu Xiaojun paused before continuing to ask with a smile, How do I address you, great master? Which temple do you belong to? Upon saying this, old Gu executed a bow. This was a Tibetan etiquette. Lamas are held in high regard amongst the Tibetan people. They were the embodiment of kindness, justice, and mercy. The Taoist priest's gaze swept back and forth among the five people in Wen Liang's group. Nobody knew what he was looking at or looking for. The head lama did not forget his manners and returned the gesture. I go by the name Rangyong. I do not belong to any temple. His voice was stiff, even slightly hoarse. At first it was not pleasant to the ears but his tone exuded fairness and peace, making his listeners relax their body and spirit without even realizing, completely forgetting about his unpleasant voice. 
Fei Fei frowned slightly and told Wen Leong in a low voice, Rang Yong means natural and God made in the Tibetan language. Wen Leong did not understand what Fei Fei had just said. Natural Lama? There was a tone of mockery in his voice. He had no intentions of being disrespectful but he found the name strange and a bit funny. However, Fei Fei was grim. She pondered carefully, her head cocked to the side. I think I've read about the Lama Rangyong in some ancient texts before. Rangyong's gaze turned genuine and warm now. He seemed in no hurry to speak. He simply smiled at Fei Fei. Fei Fei was silent for a while. Finally, she remembered. She confidently told her four companions who were beside her, Lama Rangyong is not a name, but a title. Then, like reading a passage from a textbook, she recited in a low voice, walking across the soft earth, radiating like the warm sun, protecting the delicate flowers, bringing the gentle breeze. Eyes never shutting in the dark, forever radiating with light Lama Rangyong, Skywalker of the Highlands. After saying all these abstract things, Fei Fei added something more useful, he has great magical powers and is very powerful. That last sentence filled Qin Zhui with joy. Lama Rangyong smiled at Fei Fei. The fierce face suddenly turned merciful and friendly with a smile. A knowledgeable person possessed the eye to differentiate between good and evil. He can see through the fog in the deep valley and find peace within nature. I, Rangyong, do not advise people to be good, only to be at peace. As he said his, he paused briefly. He looked at the five of them one by one and asked with a smile, Are you all at peace? The five of them nodded and answered in unison, We are. Their voices had barely faded when the dwarf Taoist priest suddenly howled like thunder, At peace my SS. He stretched out his hands, leaping high into the air. He stared at Fei Fei fiercely and cursed, Surrender you villain. Suddenly, a flare lit up the night sky. Akin to a fiery snake, it mercilessly and relentlessly chased after one Leong. Fei Fei had almost fainted out of fear. She only remembered that the Taoist priest was cross-eyed after he had launched his attack. Following this, the Taoist priest attacked. His disciples behind him launched their swords into the air and gestured in a series of movements. The sword seemed to come to life and sailed through the air. They formed a blazing red chain in mid-air, mercilessly striking at one Leon. The entire sky burned bright red from the enchanted flames. Head Lama Rangyong shook his head and said in a low voice, Try not to hurt anyone. Nobody had expected the dwarf Taoist priest's attack right then. When Leong swayed and immediately pulled Gu Xiaojun and the siblings back, shielding them from the swords. Qin Zhui took a step forward. With the Tang knife in his hand, he called upon the force of heaven and earth and brought it down to meet the flaming flying swords. With a loud boom, sparks flew everywhere. Qin Zhui and the priests from the Qilian Immortal sect staggered backwards. They were evenly matched. When Leong was surprised to find the magical powers of the Qilian Immortal sect had grown a lot since they had last met back in the gold-consuming lair. He thought about it briefly and understood. When they were in the land of metal element, perhaps the Qilian disciples' fire magic had been limited by the metal element and could not wield their knives as freely. Qin Zhui seemed relaxed, he was after all, much more in his element while fighting. He laughed and praised, not bad. Again. As he said this, he hacked down with his tang knife. He slashes a a few dozen times in a row, mercilessly attacking the enemy from all directions. The dwarf Taoist priest and the disciples that he had brought did not back down. They leaped up and charged into the town. They fought back against Qin Zhui, directing their flying swords towards him. At all once, swords whistled through the air and the blaze blocked out the sky. The Taoist priest's howls and Qin Zhui's mad laughter intertwined with each other. Lama Rangyong too stepped into the town with light footsteps. He trailed at an arm's length behind the Chilean disciples, his eyes never leaving Wen Leong. Xiao Sha had seen his fair share of battles. He was not shocked by the roiling and fierce battle between Qin Zhui and the Chilean disciples, but he did ask Gu Xiaojun in surprise, Chief, didn't you say devout Buddhists would never want to enter this town? Gu Xiaojun did not have the patience to discuss such trivial matters with Xiao Sha and answered simply, then perhaps he isn't devout. 
Head Lama Rangyong did not seem the least bit angered. He chuckled and said, devotion and where your feet touch aren't related his voice had barely faded when his expression turned icy cold. His entire being exuded a savageness akin to a wild demon. He howled, stop. His body swayed and he rushed into the heart of battle like a fiery tornado. Wen Leung also bared his teeth. He let out a long howl, so loud that it could penetrate metal and shatter rocks. He rushed towards Lama Rangyong in a streak of lighting. His psychic ability did not allow him to see a practitioner's magic roots, but looking at Lama Rangyong's movements alone, Wen Leung knew. His strength and method of practice were not inferior to his own. If he manages to land even one hit on Qin Zhui, the ugly youth would only be spitting blood if he was lucky, maybe even worse. Just as Lama Rangyong rushed into the battle and grabbed onto Qin Zhui's Tang knife, when Leong exhaled and yelled. He pounced to the Lama's side, looking like a strange bird. He extended his arms and grabbed the other's burly arm. His poison punch was primed and brimming with the poison of life and death, attacking instantaneously like spilled mercury. The metal poison stream which had gathered under his feet burst up and helped Qin Zhui to block the oncoming fire swords from the Chilean priests. Suddenly, a huge pair of claws burst out of the ground and grabbed onto Wen Liang's foot, holding onto him firmly. Wen Liang's psychic fog had been scattered then. He had earlier detected the enemy underneath the ground but the opponent was too quick. It was as if the opponent had grabbed at him the moment he felt a gap within the psychic boundary. Wen Liang let out a long howl. His pushed his feet against the ground and soared into the air. Qin Zhui and Lama Rangyong continued to grapple at each other. Together, they leaped up into the sky. With a PSSCHH, a giant pangolin, covered in scales, was pulled out of ground like a carrot by Wen Leong. The giant pangolin was enormous. His upper body stuck out from the ground, while his lower body was still embedded into the ground below. Wen Leong silently cursed his own carelessness. If the dwarf Taoist priest was here, how could the divine mountain guardian beast not follow? Back on the mountain, when Leong had lived with Petit for quite some time. They had been happy to be in each other's company and he did not regard Petu as an enemy. A thought flashed through his mind then, he had changed his appearance. The other person would only see an evil cult follower, not Wen Leong. Even if Petu knew of his true identity, the line of Tua Xie and the Chilean immortal sect had been at odds with each other over the course of two thousand years. Petu might even ignore the threat of Changli and go all out in in seeking revenge and repaying the insurmountable debts. Petu's magic roots were superior to that of the old demon rabbit Shan Duan. In addition to that, Lama Rangyong was evenly matched with Wen Leong. As a result, Wen Leong and Qin Zhui could not gain a foothold over the enemy. Wen Leong struggled in mid-air, trying to break free of the pangolin's hold. He gritted his teeth as his expression turned stony. As if making a huge decision, he yelled out, Let go before I break your arms. Patu, who held firm, opened his mouth in a chuckle and was about to reply when his a cat caught his tongue. He let out a cry of surprise. It was as if from deep underground, another larger beast was yanking on his tail. The giant pangolin flailed and struggled, before his being was pulled back into the ground in a whoosh. He only had the time to leave behind two words, help me. Whether it was out of the kindness in his heart, or Patu was too busy struggling against the force that pulled him, he had let go of his grip on Wen Leong. The sudden turn of events had left everyone dumbstruck. Wen Leong stood still, speechless and unmoving. Chapter 187 the giant pangolin Patu had just emerged from the earth, when it was unceremoniously pulled back into the ground almost just as quickly. Its exit had been more stunning than its entrance. Up to old tricks I see, when Leong thought to himself as he stood stunned. The giant pangolin had put on this act once back in the gold-consuming lair. When Leong, head Lama Rangyong, and ugly man Qin Zhui seemed shocked by the abrupt turn of events. Upon landing, they ceased their fighting and stood in silence. Each staring at the ground, not knowing what to make of it. The ground was flat and even, not a single crack was to be found. The giant pangolin had used its magic powers to dig a tunnel into the mountains and burrow through the ground. 
Hence, no matter where or how he tunneled, when he left the site, the ground would be restored to its original condition. There wouldn't be any gaping holes left in the ground. A furious howl drew everyone's attention back to the present. The dwarf Taoist priest was furious. His eyes looked like they were about to pop out at any moment. He casted a series of spells and struck the ground mercilessly. The soil roiled and turned with a deafening bang, but the giant pangolin did not emerge. After the dwarf Taoist priest finished his frantic trashing, he howled again in a high-pitched voice. He stared daggers at Qin Zhui and pounced towards Wen Leong. Sly thief! You have already took so much from the immortal sect and yet you do not stop. You vicious little demon! Wen Leong was stunned. He sidestepped and evaded the incoming dwarf Taoist priest. He frowned and asked in return, You recognize me? His face had been rearranged by Xiao Sha and should be unrecognizable. His bones have been remolded by the poison of life and death and his magical powers should have increased by leaps and bounds. Both his appearance and his spirit were different from when they last met. The disciples of the Chilean immortal sect should not have been able to discern his true identity. The dwarf Taoist priest got ready to charge again, but head Lama Rangyong gave out a loud growl, like a provoked grizzly bear. Stop! There is evil at work here. As he said this, he stood straight and his body flexed. His fat body was like a huge mountain, standing firmly between Wen Leong and the Taoist priest. Giant Pangolin Patu, which was covered in an armor of scales, had penetrated Wen Leong's psychic shield with no problem and grabbed his feet before he could react. It was apparent that the grave wounds, which had been inflicted by Chang Li, had healed completely. When old demon Rabbit Bulu was still a kid, Patu was already the divine beast of the immortal sect, famous for his ferocity. Back at the edge of the stone forest, it was Cone Nail who had managed to pull Patu away. What beast was pulling it now? It mattered little what kind of creature did it, it must have been something more powerful than the divine beast. The dwarf Taoist priest sneered at the head lama. You're right. This little demon here is its accomplice. As he said that, he gestured and directed one of the flying swords towards Wen Leong and Qin Zhui. However, the head lama shook his head. That's impossible. As he said this, he turned his round and plump head towards Wen Leong and asked, Who are you really? Why are you truly here? Where did the people of this town go? From his choice of words, it seems as though he did not regard Wen Leong's group as evil cult followers. He seemed to have forgotten that a fierce battle had just took place. Wen Leong let out a cry of surprise. He reached out and easily knocked the flying sword that flew towards him aside on the ground with his fingers. He frowned and asked, What are you guys doing here? The head lama tried to appear relaxed as he smiled but he was losing his patience. Watching the two parties continue to attack each other, even with him standing between them, was like them playing badminton across a net. He howled at them furiously, Will you only stop when all of us are dead, even when facing the threat of a great evil? The dwarf Taoist priest released his control over the sword. He asked the head lama with a pale face, the ones who harmed the divine beast of the immortal sect, was it truly not them? While he talked, his cold gaze locked onto Qin Zhui's face. Qin Zhui thought that the Taoist priest was looking at him. He met the gaze and shook his head, of course not. We weren't the ones who attacked first. Of course I attacked first. Should I have waited until after you've played your tricks and brought havoc onto my immortal sect for another two thousand years? The dwarf Taoist priest answered through gritted teeth. He paused before continuing, his anger rising up as he scolded loudly, the Chilean immortal sect originally had no grudge against you but since two thousand years ago, you've given us so much trouble and you can't even seem to stop now. Even if the Chilean immortal sect were to disappear off the face of the earth, what good would that do you? When Leong and Qin Zhui looked towards each other, they were confused. Upon seeing that the two parties have stopped attacking each other, Head Lama Ranyong instructed the two parties seriously, please don't cause any more trouble. Just wait for me here. I have a plan to rescue the citizens and kill the demon. Following that, he leaped into the town and flitted between the houses. His movements were so swift that it was hard to keep track of him. Even Gu Xiaojun understood that the situation was unusual. 
He quickly walked up to Wen Liang's back and asked in a low voice, Who are they? What's happening? Wen Liang smiled bitterly and shook his head. He heaved a long sigh in attempt to calm himself. He shook his head slowly at the dwarf Taoist priest, I am not responsible for all that has happened in the last two thousand years. Back in the gold-consuming lair, you were all gravely injured and were in no condition to fight. If I had wanted to cause you trouble, I would not have waited until now. Divine Beast Patu had assisted me in looking for Grand Master Changli back in Shanghai, I only have gratitude towards it and have absolutely no intention of harming it. Find authorized novels in Web Novel Faster Updates, Better Experience Please Click WW. Web Novel. Calm for Visiting. The eyebrows of the dwarf Taoist priest knitted together. His gaze was still locked on Qin Zhui. Then why are you guys here? You've even tried to disguise yourself, weren't you going to ambush us? Qin Zhui felt uncomfortable under the priest's stare. He silently picked up his feet and went to stand beside Wen Leong. When he noticed that the dwarf Taoist priest's gaze did not move, he sighed in relief, assured that the priest was not looking at him. Wen Leong shook his head quickly. There's been a misunderstanding here. Then he called Xiao Sha to rearrange his face back. He looked earnestly at the dwarf Taoist priest. Please answer me this. Why have the immortal sect disciples traveled here? When Master Rang Yung returns, we can join forces and rescue the divine beast. When he finished, Wen Leong glanced towards Gu Xiaojun. Gu Xiaojun nodded while wearing a serious look on his face. Finding the underground demon would not only mean saving Patu, but it might also give them clues as to why the Tibetans had wanted them to stay behind. He understood that the beast which had pulled the pangolin away was not something that would be easy to beat. But if Lama Rangyong were willing to take action, together with Wen Leong, Qin Zhui, and the Chilean disciples, they might just stand a chance. The dwarf Taoist priest sneered scornfully without even a second thought. Preposterous. They could never hope to defeat a beast that could snatch away Patu. Despite the odds, Wen Leong's smile was confident and warm. He nodded vigorously at the dwarf Taoist priest. You need not worry. As long as Master Rangyong leads us to that beast, even if I have to fight tooth to nail, I will save divine beast Patu. Qin Zhui laughed in a heartless manner from the side what if the pangolin is dead? How will we save it then? Wen Leong glared at him. Then we will take revenge. Seeing the confidence on Wen Leong's face, the dwarf Taoist priest was hit with a sudden realization. Joy appeared on his face, which quickly turned into doubt. Behind this Tuasye disciple, there was still the demon Kat Changli. This boy had so much confidence, there had to be another expert teaching him. That expert might just be the rumored short man from two thousand years ago. There was no mistake, this person was a great enemy, but this great enemy was also the one who could help him rescue the divine beast now. Wen Leong waited patently. The Taoist priest lowered his head. He looked rather anxious, then suddenly happy, which turned into an angry frown. He was in lost in his own thoughts. Gu Xiaojun grew impatient and coughed lightly, awakening the dwarf Taoist priest from his daze. The Taoist priest hesitated briefly before slowly gave them the story. After having been tragically defeated in the gold-consuming lair, the Chilean immortal sex dream went down the pipeline. They had no hopes of restoring their name or a way to seek revenge. The dwarf Taoist priest had lost his spirit and dismissed his disciples. Many of them left. Only thirty or so loyal disciples refused to leave the dwarf Taoist priest allowed them to stay by his side. They decided to leave Mount Chilian and traveled across the world in search of inner peace. The giant pangolin Patu had never been one to withstand loneliness. Upon returning to the mountain, it discovered that the disciples had decided to move on. It was happy to lift its tail and follow them. Magic practitioners do not care for worldly possessions. Everywhere the dwarf Taoist priest looked, the world was in chaos. He had sought to find inner peace, but he got aggravated instead. Giant Pangolin Patu had been all over the world in the few thousand years of its existence. In an effort to help the disciples, it had led them to the Tibetan's plateaus. As expected, on the Tibetan plateau, 
the Chilean disciples were attracted by the azure sky above their heads, the fragrant soil under their feet, the cool and fresh air, and the lofty snow-capped mountains that went as far as the eye could see. Although there was no accumulation of heaven and earth's primordial spirit energy like back on Mount Chilean, the pure appearance of nature spoke to their souls. Hence, they stayed and had been in Tibet ever since. By chance, the Chilean disciples had met the head Lama Rangyong. Although the two parties had different beliefs, they were both cultivators of heaven. They each had their own specialty in the knowledge of nature. They became fast friends. As head Lama Rangyong was also a wanderer with no place to call home and nowhere to go, he decided to take on the role of tour guide to the immortal sect. He led the Chilean disciples and the giant pangolin Patu across the plateau. To reach the sacred lake Namso, one usually can only go between April to September. The rainy season on the plateau would usually seal off the land. However, the Lama and the Taoist priests were no ordinary people, they were not held back by such things. There was also a different sense of enjoyment of seeing Namso during the rainy season. It was at this time that they had passed by the town, on the way to Namso Lake. Gu Xiaojun and the others looked at each other. They shook their heads with a bitter smile. They now understood that the head Lama Rangyong and the Chilean disciples' passing was a mere coincidence. They were not the enemies mentioned by the town's Tibetans after all. Qin Zhui saw the group shaking their heads, he too hung his head. Qin Zhui's gave off an air of solemnness and remorse. Qin Zhui's look reminded Wen Leong of his two silly uncles. The dwarf Taoist priest snorted coldly as he commented, if I had known it was you earlier, I would have taken a detour. You're our only a underling. If we had wanted to take revenge, we would have looked for Chang Li or Tua Xia instead. Wen Leong smiled. Although the dwarf Taoist priest's words sounded cold and hard, he was a man who could clearly distinguish between kindness and hatred. In the gold-consuming lair, not only had Wen Leong spared the lives of the Chilean disciples, he had even saved the life of the giant pangolin and the dwarf Taoist priest. Qin Zhui was dissatisfied with his explanation. He stared at the Taoist priest as he questioned, then why did you guys attack us after barely exchanging two sentences? If it wasn't my powers of hide the force. The dwarf Taoist priest's gaze was like electric. It shifted from the empty space beside Wen Leong onto Gu Xiaojun's face. You asked for it. When the Chilean disciples attacked, they were aiming for Wen Leong, Qin Zhui had stepped in to intervene of his own volition. Gu Xiaojun felt an itch on his face from seemingly being stared at the cross-eyed priest. It's uncomfortable to have someone look at your face while they talked to another person. Old Gu laughed as he shook his head and tried to bring back the topic, Immortal, please continue. After Wen Leong's powers had improved, the area which he was able to cover with his psychic ability had also widened greatly. Before the dwarf Taoist priest had noticed him, he had already detected the presence of the Chilean disciples. However, the giant pangolin Patu had been following behind the dwarf Taoist priest. Wen Leong had been foolish to think that the other party would not notice him earlier. He did not expect that when he was searching the town in vain and chatting with Gu Xiaojun and the others, Patu's psychic ability had already locked in on them in the town. Their movements had already been discovered by the Chilean immortal sect. While Wen Leong had changed his appearance, his voice did not change. Patu had recognized him immediately. However, Patu's intention was to look the other way but Wen Leong who had noticed them said, the enemy is here. To top it all off, he had made Qin Zhui put on a disguise as well. Qin Zhui had trained at the edge of the gold-consuming lair before but had never met the Chilean disciples. Though, the Chilean disciples knew of him. Wen Leong had made Qin Zhui put on the disguise to prevent any misunderstandings but then plan had backfired on him. To the other party, they had thought that these five people, including Wen Leong, were purposely waiting to ambush them. Fei Fei was hit with a sudden realization. She understood now why these people had adopted the attitude of, I know you're telling a lie but I do not want to expose you, I want to see you put on a show till the bitter end, when they had first arrived at the edge of the town. Fei Fei had also mistook their expressions, thought they had regarded them as evil cult followers. The misunderstanding just got deeper and deeper. Even though giant Pangolin Patu thought well of Wen Leong, it could not let Wen Leong harm its people. 
It had not intend for matter to get so out of hand. Pe Tu had only wanted to grab hold of Wen Leong, give him a good scolding, and let the matter slide. Head Lama Ranyong had not wanted to involve himself in their conflict either. He had came up to say a word or two. Upon seeing that he could not resolve the matter, he stepped back. However, the head lama quickly noticed a powerful monster inside the town and had moved to stop the two parties. Which when Leong had mistook as wanting to harm Qin Zhui it was only after Pe Tu had been pulled away by the unidentified being, that the two parties stopped their fighting. The incident was not complicated but if they had not talked through it, nobody would have stood a chance of understanding it alone. The coming of the Chilean immortal sect on the Tibetan plateau had been a pure coincidence. Wen Leon would have never thought. The dwarf Taoist priest would also never have thought that Wen Leon's phrase of, the enemy is here, would carry such a strange and complicated premise. The five people of Wen Leon's group finally understood the situation but the dwarf Taoist priest was still in doubt. After relaying his own story, he questioned in a sharp voice, then why are you guys here? What was that beast that has captured my immortal sex divine beast? Wen Leong and Gu Xiaojun looked to each other. They wondered whether they should tell the other party about their own affairs. Suddenly, a red shadow flew in front their face. Head Lama Rangyong had already scouted the town and returned to their side. His expression was grim as he looked straight at Wen Leong with bright eyes. This is no ordinary demon. Where did the townspeople go? Why are you all here? Please tell us only the truth. As he said this, he gave an unexpected bow towards the five of them. The dwarf Taoist priest took note that the head lama did not mention any rescue plan upon his return, only asking after the group instead. He was at a loss on what to do and his face flushed red with frustration. Master Rangyong quickly stretched out a meaty palm and held on the Taoist priest's shoulders lightly. When the moon is in the middle of the sky and our shadows directly beneath our feet, only then can we break the town to find that evil demon. As he said this, he pointed at the slowly climbing moon. It was only halfway up the sky now. Calmness returned to Lama Rangjung's voice. Every word he spoke was composed and steady, like the earth, making one feel at peace. The dwarf Taoist priest sighed. The divine mountain guardian beast is in grave danger, how can I not worry? While he talked, he motioned for his knife again and looked like he wanted to lead his disciples into digging a big hole. Lama Rangyong held on firmly the Taoist priest's shoulder. His calm voice was full of confidence. I have some knowledge about the demon's origins. Your divine beast is safe for now. Fei Fei also tried to console him. Master Rangyong is the skywalker of the plateau, no one knows this place better than him. If he says it's fine, then it's fine. May the immortals rest easy. We will think of a plan together to face that monster. The dwarf Taoist priest was stunned, he gritted his teeth and nodded in agreement. On the side, Gu Xiaojun pulled Wen Leong away from the group and asked in a low voice, if the lama turns out to not be a good person, can you handle him? As he said this, he paused briefly and said in a cold voice, I mean kill him so that he doesn't talk. Gu Xiaojun was not too worried about the Chilean immortal sect since the their background was much simpler. However, he did not let his guard down against the Lama Rangyong, which he knew nothing of. Wen Leong answered confidently as he chuckled, don't worry. That will be a piece of cake. Although the answer was meant to be satisfying, Gu Xiaojun's face was still full of doubt as he said seriously, I know that you don't usually brag. Now, during this crucial moment, Please don't start from what he had saw from the battle just now, when Leong could not gain the upper hand even after having went all out. Old Gu was uncertain where when Leong got his confidence. When Leong coughed. In his heart, he mused that he must be thought of foolish. He just smiled and shook his head, just tell the truth to the Lama and have Fei Fei observe his expressions. If anything goes wrong, I will attack and dispose of him immediately. Gu Xiaojun chose to believe him as he nodded. All right, that was my plan as well. The important thing is to let Fei Fei have the chance to observe the Lama. In this confusing muddle of mutual suspicion and strange happenings, having a comrade such as Fei Fei on their side was truly a blessing. After Gu Xiaojun and Wen Leong had finished their discussion, they returned to the group. He did not hold back. 
He told them everything, he started from when the evil cult followers had gathered in the country. He only kept the governmental background of him and the siblings from them. He told them they were from a non-governmental organization specifically dealing with the occult. This was because most people from the magical realm were unwilling to have any ties with government bodies. The head lama did not interrupt but his expression turned grim. A deep anger and terror could be read upon his face. Fei Fei's gaze never left the lama's face for even a second. Finally, she shook her head at Gu Xiaojun, no problems here. Qin Zhui watched as the head lama lowered his head in silent thought. He was burning with impatience, he moved in to ask, Lama, what exactly is this monster under the town? Master Rang Yong lifted his head and looked towards them. He ignored Qin Zhui's question and instead mentioned the town. This town is not a gathering place for evil cult followers. It's a place where loyal people had sacrificed their lives in hopes of being lifted up to heaven. When he said this, the five people in Wen Liang's group were puzzled. Tuer town had mysterious origins and its inhabitants were eccentric. They guarded the holy land of the Tibetan Buddhism sect and yet did not believe in Buddha. Even the nearby inhabitants regarded them as rebels. However, Lama Rangyong were now saying that they are good people. Chapter 188 When Leong and the group were stunned by Lama Rangyong's words. They stood there gawking at each other for some time. They had so many questions but did not know where to start. The group stood around looking puzzled, had Lama Rangyong was in no hurry explain though. Instead, he took out a flute, which was a foot long, from the front of his robes. When Wen Leong saw the object Rangyong held in his hands, he gritted his teeth and moved in front to shield everyone. The expressions on some of the elder Chilean immortal sect disciples grew dark. They drew their swords and pointed them towards the Lama. They could tell with just a glance that the flute Rangyong had pulled out was made of human bone. There were marks across the bone, one end was tipped in silver. Under the sad and lonely moonlight, the flute emanated a cold lifelessness. Back on the central plains, only the demon people of the evil cults were known to make magic weapons out of bones. Fei Fei on the other hand was rather familiar with Tibetan Buddhist religious practices. She was worried that when Leong might attack the Lama and quickly explained to him softly, a human bone flute is a musical instrument used in the rituals of the Tibetan Buddhism sect. You are prohibited from wielding it unless you're a high-ranking practitioner. This is not some evil tool, please don't be too hasty. Rang Yong ignored the people around him. He placed the human bone flute to his lips and blew softly. A shriek, like a tragic howl of an evil ghost, broke across the plains and traveled far and wide. The high, cold plains appeared tranquil under the still night sky. Suddenly, a long hum of Buddhist chants broke the silence and the golden light of Buddha flowed through the skies. A rainbow of light burst out from a little, inconspicuous temple that stood in the middle of the plains, the plaque hanging outside rotten beyond repair. A few aging lamas, who looked like they didn't even have the energy to take their next breathe, walked out silently from the dilapidated temple. Their gaze was icy cold as they looked towards the direction of Namso Lake. They breathed in deeply. They slowly sat down and started chanting the Vajrasekra Sutra under their breath. The holy light, which had suddenly erupted from the little temple, went out. Darkness and peace resumed on the plains. On the eastern side of the Yarlung Tsangpa Grand Canyon, in the Great Prosperity Temple which has been an attraction to devotees for thousands of years, a young lama flew down its halls. He ran with a face filled with fear, tainted by a little excitement. He stumbled as he barged into the meditation room of the head lama of the temple. He had even forgot to knock. The stern-looking head lama did not scold his disciple, as he usually would, instead looked seriously at the young lama and asked in a low voice, Rangyong? The young lama nodded hastily. With a low moan, the head instructed solemnly, every disciple is to carry out the protection ritual at once. The already pitch black temple was quickly lit up and a few hundred disciples started bustling about. On the mountainside of Nam Cha Barwa, a shabby but peaceful faced flagellant was looking up at the night sky with a serene smile. Suddenly, his earlobes vibrated quickly. He jumped to his feet and quickly pulled out Vajra Kalakas inscripted with Tibetan Buddhism mantras. He stuck them into the ground around him, while chanting sutras at the top of his voice. 
Every word he uttered came out like a clap of thunder. Under Shuling Mountain, someone blew on a conch and its sound traveled in all directions. On top of Tsangpa Badong Falls, someone was churning the prayer wheels. The roaring waters could not muffle the low rumble of the turning prayer wheel. In the tents on Zyge's plains, someone was whacking a rod and shaking some bells. The sounds of the divine exorcism was not loud but it traveled far. With a single note from the human bone flute, the Tibetan plains had been awakened. Master Rangyum took his time in putting his flute away. He listened intently for a while before smiling at Wen Leong. Wen Leong did not know that every practitioner on the plateau was currently busying themselves. I have summoned help from practitioners all over the land in defeating this demon. When the moon hangs in the center of the sky, the Buddhist power will have reached its peak. Hee hee, I wonder if I can accomplish what even King Geezer could not. Wen Leong did not know who this geezer was but he still smiled and nodded without a word. However, the expressions on Gu Xiao Jun, Fei Fei and Xiao Sha faces changed. Master Rangyong looked up at the sky. He decides that it was still early. He proceeded to sit down cross-legged. The evil demon won't come out again. He reached out and patted the ground, inviting the others to sit down as well. Then, he slowly asked, does anyone here know of the epic of King Geezer? Gu Xiaojun, Fei Fei, and Xiao Sha were familiar with the Tibetan culture and nodded their heads in unison. Xiao Sha added, mainly for Wen Liang's benefit, legend has it, back in ancient times, demons ran rampant across the Tibetan lands, bringing endless disaster wherever they roamed. The heavenly god took pity on the people and decided to come down to earth in the form of King Geezer and slayed the demons, bringing peace and happiness to the people. That is why the plateau is so peaceful today. After King Geezer had accomplished his goal, he returned back to the heavenly realm. Master Rangyong nodded with a smile. Continue. He seemed at peace, seeming to not worry about the impending battle against the demon. Xiao Sha was dumbstruck, he replied in a murmur, continue. About what? That's all I know. Fei Fei broke out in a laugh. The master had asked about the epic of King Geezer, not King Geezer himself. You are always too quick to assume. Xiao Sha suddenly understood. He smiled sheepishly and continued to explain, the epic of King Geezer refers to a long story, singing of this heavenly god's journey on earth. It starts from when King Geezer was born all the way until he ascended back to the heavenly realm. It is the longest epic in the world, with a few million words. Qin Zhui let out an awe. Ah. He did not believe it, he repeated back to Xiao Sha, a few million words. Xiao Sha nodded as he stole a glance at Head Lama Rangyong. The Head Lama maintained his silence, as if Xiao Sha's explanation had not been enough to satisfy him. Fei Fei, who could observe people's expressions, could guess what Rangyong really wanted to hear. She chuckled as she took over from her brother. This epic has been passed down by the Xuacheng artists by word of mouth through many generations, and it still lives on to this day. In our current time, there are a few hundred versions sung by different artists. There is also another interesting fact about them. As she said this, Fei Fei lower her voice. A mysterious smile broke out on her delicate face, these individuals are known as the divine singers. Fei Fei clammed up upon saying this. She looked at Wen Leong with sparkling eyes. Her face was full of expectation. Wen Leong knew what she wanted him to ask. He decided to take the bait. Divine singers. What do you mean? Fei Fei smiled in satisfaction and continued, Many Tibetan Shuachang artists say that they received the decree of King Geezer through their dreams, claiming to have been told by King Geezer himself. These people are known as the divine singers. Wen Leong was dismayed. The title of Divine Singers had sounded grand, but upon hearing its explanation, it sounded like the opening introduction of old monk Ji Fei when he tells a story. Fei Fei could understand what was on Wen Liang's mind with just a glance. She paid it no mind as she shook her head and smiled, it's not what you think. Maybe some artist brag in this way to earn money but there were truly some children who could suddenly recite the epic of King Geezer, when they previously knew not a word of it. This usually happens after they recover from being really ill. Nobody could explain how this could have happened, children being able to remember and recite the epic, 
which is over a million words, seemingly overnight. It is listed as number one in the list of top ten mysterious cases of Tibet. Qin Zhui was enjoying this story. He questioned hastily, what are the other nine mysterious cases? Head Lama Rangyum was startled. He was worried that the topic would go off the rails. He quickly coughed and spoke steadily, it is true that there are divine singers, just that there aren't as many as the rumors would have you believe. However, at least one would appear every hundred years. Gu Xiaojuan's eyes lit up, Master, are you a divine singer? Head Lama Rangyum was at a loss, he looked at Gu Xiaojun and shook his head strongly, of course not. We aren't that lucky. This time, everyone's spirits fell, not just Wen Liang's. The dwarf Taoist priest's face was filled with worry. He glared at Qin Zhui and said rudely, If you aren't some singer, then why are you mentioning this at all? Qin Zhui had not gotten used to the priest's cross-eyed gaze. He replied instinctively, It wasn't me. Lama Rangyong remained patient. He smiled and appeased everyone, Relax. Some stories must be told in full for them to be truly understood. Nobody knows how long this town has stood here. The townspeople do not interact with the outside world. They do not believe in Buddhism and do not worship Buddha. The town is also situated near the sacred lake. This town was regarded as the rebellious town by the believers on this plateau. In ancient times, there had been requests for them to relocate by devout Tibetans and even Buddhists. However, these requests fell on deaf ears. The head lama had finally brought the topic back to the town. Although slightly impatient, the group listened intently to his slow narration. Seven hundred years ago, the public could no longer sit by and ignore the town of Tour. A huge group of Tibetans decided to form an army and planned to destroy the town. As he said this, head lama Rangyong suddenly gave a bitter smile. Around this time, someone had discovered that the residents of Tuer town possessed some magical powers and would prove hard to defeat. Hence, three great temples joined forces and amassed a troop of 2,000 Tibetan soldiers. Compared to the exoteric Buddhism sect disciples, the Tibetan Buddhism sect believers were more aggressive in nature. Wen Leong did not know how to feel about this but Gu Xiaojun understood and was in shock. Tibet was located on a plateau and was sparsely populated. To have managed to amass a troop of 9,000 soldiers 700 years ago in such a short time was no small feat. Wen Leong thought that it was awkward to have only the head lama speak. He nodded and chimed in, I have heard of this incident. After that, they were stopped by a head lama who was making his way around the lake chanting sutras. When Gu Xiaojun had arrived in Tibet, he had told them about this. However, they were not aware of how large the scale of conflict was. You are referring to head lama Gesha. Rang Yung smiled faintly and shook his head at Wen Leong. Actually, Head Lama Gisha was the leader that had been appointed by the people. The reason he was at Namso Lake was not because he had wanted to go around the lake chanting sutras. His real intentions were to lead the Tibetan soldiers in crushing the town. The group could not believe it. The ancient records and actual facts differed greatly. Master Rangyong spoke in a slow and honest tone. Every word was warm to the ears, starkly contrasting his fierce face. Amassing 9,000 Tibetan soldiers was no small feat. From planning the invasion to gathering the troops, this task took them almost a month to complete. However, nobody had predicted the emergence of a dozen or so divine singers while this all took place. Xiao Sha knitted his brows, were they true divine singers? Master Rang Yung nodded, of course. The other did not question any further. The land of Tibet held many mysteries. The emergence of divine singers could not be explained by logic, but the believers must have had a way to authenticate the claim of a divine singer. True divine singers did exist but their appearance was rare. Only one was known to appear every hundred years or so. It had only been seven hundred years ago when three great temples had gathered their troops to march on tour town, when suddenly a dozen or so authentic divine singers had appeared on the plateau. The long poems, which these singers sang, were all related to the town of Tuer. From the mouths of these divine singers, they sang a canto that had never been recorded in previous versions of the epic of King Geezer. King Geezer was regarded as the combination of a god, a dragon, and hope. 
a hero that was half God and half human. He had came down to earth to relieve the people of their suffering. He emerged victorious from every battle, until he met his match. It was a great and powerful evil demon. This demon was cruel and abominable, it regarded killing as a sport. No matter who fell victim to this evil demon, they would be killed mercilessly, only after having been put through nine days of endless torture. Qin Zhui smiled heartlessly, that's why the giant pangolin is safe for the time being, right? Xiao Sha did not notice the ghastly pale face of the dwarf Taoist priest before he continued, but he will be suffering. Head Lama Ranyong only smiled and continued on with the history of the town. According to these divine singers, King Geezer had led a group of brave and loyal warriors into this monster's lair. After an earth-shaking battle, they finally managed to contain the demon, but all his 277 warriors had perished in battle. Upon capturing the demon, King Geezer came to realize that it was difficult to kill. So King Geezer decided to drag it to Lake Namso, and use the pure energy of the sacred lake and the collected power of prayers from devotees all over, to chain the monster to the lake. The 277 warriors who had gave their lives in the battle also foregoed their chance at reincarnation. They chose to remain as the living dead, staying at the edge of Lake Nadmso. They tied down the demon using a combination of their unholiness and the purity of the sacred lake, eternally shackling the monster to this place. As he said this, Head Lama Ranyong sighed. When these men chose to exit samsara, they no longer belonged to this earth. The warm sunlight felt like scorching flames to them. The cool and refreshing moonlight felt like ice-cold needles. They chose to suffer the pains of eternal hell to chain down and guard this demon. That is why I said this place is where loyalty reached the heavens. In the songs of the divine singers, they spoke of the townspeople's exit from the three worlds and the five elements. To put it lightly, they were no longer bound by Buddhist laws. To put it badly, they had been abandoned by Buddha. That was why they did not worship nor honor Buddha. The songs of the divine singers were regarded as the voices of the gods themselves. In ancient Tibet, every sentence they sang was treated with the utmost respect. The song, sang by the dozen or so divine singers at the same time from different places, eventually reached the ears of the Tibetan soldier's leader, Head Lama Gesha. The head lama wasted no time. After having the reports confirmed, he called off the attack on Tour Town. After this incident, the few great temples issued a joint decree, forbidding anyone to disturb the peace of Tour Town. As gathering Tibetan soldiers to attack Tour Town was bad for the organizers' reputation, in following records, it was decisively toned down. The number of people who knew the truth diminished over the years. After Head Lama Ranyong finished his retelling of the town, he paused briefly then added drilly, but after the attack was called off, no more reiterations regarding this town was heard from the mouths of the divine singers that had appeared. Among the people present, Gu Xiaojun was the quickest to understand. He reacted immediately, what you're saying is, there was something amiss about those divine singers. This was all too coincidental. The epic of King Geezer that had been sung by the divine singers before and after the incident never mentioned the town or the 277 warriors. Only when the head lama had gathered the troops to crush the town did a bunch of such singers appear. Head lama Rangyong shook his head. I don't know the answer to that, but this place he said as he pointed to the town of messy houses. This place is laid out in the form of a Tibetan Buddhism sect mandala. However the head lama's voice suddenly became stern. The musical instruments that guarded the four corners of the mandala has been damaged by someone. That is why the demon is able to run free again. Gu Xiaojun and Xiao Sha both stood up abruptly. They cried out unhappily, didn't you just say that the monster wouldn't show itself for now? Now you're saying that the mandala is broken and the monster is running free? The two men whimpered as they looked around in alarm. They were worried that the monster would suddenly pounce and snatch them away. Head Lama Rangyong seemed carefree as he looked at them calmly. He chuckled, don't worry, the mandala is still in place, but the magic circle is weakening. Although the monster can move, it will have to struggle for a bit before it can hope to resurface and re-enter the mortal realm. The divine beast's capture just now was due to its wandering underground. The demon will not be able to break ground for now. 
If the giant pangolin Patu had not been so carelessly in his tunneling, he would not have been captured. Qin Zhui suddenly gave out a laugh. The townspeople were an eclectic mix though. There were made up of men and women, the elderly and children among them as well. Had King Gezer lead the remnants of a rabble army to subdue the demon? If that was the case, King Gezer being the sole survivor of that battle should not have come as a surprise. Fei Fei stared at Qin Zhui sternly. King Gezer was held in the highest of regards in the hearts of the Tibetan people. If they had heard his words then, they would have risked their lives and took out their swords to hurt him. Rang Yung chose not to argue with this unreasonable person. His expression did not change as he explained patiently, King Gezer had divine protection in the help of the gods. His bravery alone was enough to face a thousand white yaks. His warriors did not rely on pure muscle strength to move boulders. They were all individuals with pure souls. The blue skies were reflected azure in their eyes. The breeze that caressed their bodies never turned foul. Qin Zhui was not sure if he had understood what he just heard. He nodded hesitantly. So it's some form of magical power? Rang Yong laughed. You can say that a pure person is filled with pure energy. Now, the time is almost upon us, is there anything more you would like to know? After he finished, he looked up at the sky. The moon had climbed slowly to the top of everyone's head. Their shadows which had formerly been long and slanting, had turned short and fat. It was funny and incredibly strange in a way that was indescribable. The dwarf Taoist priest stomped his feet. He stared at Qin Zhui and asked, After half a day, you still have not told us what this monster actually is. The head lama gave an expression like he had just been wronged. I don't know either. The songs and records have never mentioned it. He was a person of dark skin and fearsome looks. Logically speaking, the wronged expression on his face would make anyone's skin crawl. Even the dwarf Taoist priest, who was worried to death about his beast, could not help but smile emphatically. Rang Zheng's expression was as like an open book, it clearly showed his feelings, whether he was happy, angry, in mourning or hesitating. His expressions were completely separated from his looks. Gu Xiaojun breathed in deeply. Perhaps we're better off not knowing what it is. Regardless whether the divine singers from 700 years ago were authentic or not, a monster which even Pe Tu could not resist must be ferocious and tough. If they knew what it was, it might just shatter their courage. Qin Zhui, who was usually slow, understood Gu Xiaojun's words this time and laughed gallantly. This is known as jumping into the well blindfolded. We're going to jump anyways, might as well not know how deep the well is. Wen Leong still carried an air of confidence, as if he did not fear that the monster underground might prove to be more powerful than him. At that moment, Xiao Sha who had been silent this whole time, opened his mouth. He softly reminded the group, time's up. The bright and pure moon was finally at the center of the sky. Everyone's shadow had been pushed under their feet. All forms of Tibetan Buddhism sect music erupted and came from all directions like raging waves. It shattered the stifling silence of the town. The sad, short grass at the edge of Tour Town moved even though no wind was blowing. Similar to the most devout and humble believer, they desperately laid their weak selves flat to the ground, facing where layers upon layers of divine lights rippled through the sky. A stalwart, godly figure, glittering gold and jade, slowly took form in the middle of the surging Buddha's light. Its facial features emanated ferocity. It had six arms, six heads, and six feet. Its divine eyes glowed with a burning rage and were looking down towards the town of Tuer. Fei Fei's voice was filled with terror. Yamantaka. Yamantaka was one of the eight great deities of the Tibetan Buddhism sect, in charge of guarding the West. With his great powers, he can cast away evil spirits and subdue evil dragons. Under the signaling from the human bone flute, all the Buddhists of Tibet had prostrated themselves and chanted sutras simultaneously. When the moon had reached the center of the sky, they had finally finished their sutras and summoned forth Yamantaka. A great pressure seemed to fall over the town of Tuer upon this deity's godly appearance in the sky. All the houses moaned in unison, causing everyone wince in pain. Head Lama Rangyong leaped to his feet. His shout was like rolling thunder. 
I have called upon the whole Tibetan Buddhism sect to gather their powers and invoke this deity, this god who suppresses foul things. You guys go and pull up the houses in the town, quickly. Remember, you must pull them out but not destroy them. After saying that, his hands folded together in the various Tibetan Buddhism sect hand signs. He began to put his feet one in front of the other, taking huge strides along the circle. As he did this, he placed down various musical instruments carved with Tibetan Buddhism mantras. Tuer Town had been used as a Tibetan Buddhism sect mandala. While it suppressed the monster, it also kept out the outside world. If they wanted to find this monster, kill it, and rescue their friend, they would first have to break the seal of the mandala. However, once the seal is broken, the monster would be able to break out of its prison, upon the vanishing of its shackles. That was why Head Lama Rangyung had sent out his signal with the human bone flute, requesting help from Tibetan Buddhism sect elites from all over Tibet. They had managed to invoke the appearance of the godly Yamantaka at the point when the moon was at its fullest. The god acted as a replacement for the town mandala, holding down the monster and preventing it from escaping. Head Lama Rangyung had the supreme power of Buddha and mercy in his heart. This place reflected black and white island. The mandala charm of Tuer Town was already broken, the monster's escape was just a question of time. That was why he had decided to give his all tonight and exorcise the demon. Head Lama Rangyong was bustled about. However, the others did not move. The three elites with the greatest abilities, Wen Leong, Qin Zhui, and the dwarf Taoist priest looked at each other the dwarf Taoist priest's gaze did not fully meet theirs. Wen Leong grimaced as he asked Head Lama Rangyong, who was running around, in a loud voice, Master, pull out the houses. How do we do that? Rang Yung replied without stopping his business. Just pull them as if you were pulling out carrots. Gu Xiao Jun was getting frustrated. He reached out and wrapped his arms around Xiao Sha beside him. He made a gesture pulling upwards and yelled at Rang Yung, like this? Rang Yung replied firmly, Yes. Exactly. When Leong did not waste any more time. He dashed towards the nearest house. He hugged a corner of the house with his arms and tried pulling it up. The walls did not shatter. The house suddenly let out a wail that was akin to a night owl being shot dead. The soil under that corner loosened. When Leong saw that it was working. He exerted more force, yelling out so loudly that the sounds reached the heavens. After some struggling, the house was pulled out of the ground by his incredible strength. Thick, black blood started spraying and gushing out of the house after it got pulled out of the ground. The faint and barely discernible stink from earlier now wafted through the town in strong waves. It rippled and rolled out with the thick, black blood, covering the entire town in an instant. The house had been pulled out. Nobody would have thought that the houses of this town were like the rotting teeth of an ancient monster. When they were pulled out, thick, foul blood oozed out of it and emitted a horrible stench. Chapter, 189 Head Lama Rangyong, who was running around the town in great strides, shouted, That's it. Pull out every single house. Start from the outside. Leave the house at the center for last. Qin Zhui and the dwarf Taoist priest made their move. They followed in Wen Liang's footsteps, gripping the houses, pulling them out like carrots. With a considerable amount of yelling, they too managed to pull out the houses of Tuer Town. The houses were hollow but remained intact. The walls and roof did not shatter, even under the exertion of great force and the strong vibrations. When Leong and the group pulled out the houses one by one and tried to evade the spray of blood and pus. Then, they casually tossed away the houses in their grasp and moved on to the next target. When a house was pulled out, Foul-smelling blood mixed with pus would gush out of the ground and leave an enormous, pitch-black hole. However, after a while the gaping hole would vanish. The ground returned to its original state as if nothing had happened. The surface of the ground of Tuer Town was like the skin and bones of a god. The ground seemed to have magical healing abilities. The three elites worked together and managed to pull out half the houses in a short span of time. The entire town shook wildly. Underneath their feet, a beast which had been pinned down by heavenly nails for ten thousand years howled. It arched its body continuously, 
sending tremors through the town, in an effort to break free of its cage. Within Wen Liang's psychic fog, he could not detect the presence of anything other than his own people. However, a foul aura gushed forth and encased him like a spider's web, covering him in layers. It suffocated him, his bones and tendons felt like shattering. Yamantaka's face was ferocious as he soared through the sky. The Buddhist demon subduing force that the god emitted could not be seen, only felt. It struck the town in waves, raging hit after hit. The waves of awe-inspiring righteousness broke upon the town, like it had encountered an unseen black reef, scattering and fading. Suddenly, a sharp and furious howl called out. A few dozen flying swords engulfed in blazing flames, rose to the sky. The flying swords of the Chilean disciples had felt the burning call, filled with evil intent, and had broken free of their master's control. They leaped into the air, ready to strike. The trio of elites dismantled the Tibetan Buddhism sex monster subduing mandala, while the Lama summoned the force of Yamantaka. However, it seemed ineffective in suppressing the monster's restlessness. Wen Leong howled furiously as he tossed a house far away. He looked up, calling out anxiously to head Lama Rangyong, I don't think this is working. The monster will break free. Head Lama Rangyong had already went countless laps around the town. His body was drenched in sweat. He replied in a loud voice, You mustn't stop, you mustn't stop for even the briefest moment. Or else the force of the mandala will rebound and hurt you. Continue what you're doing and do not worry about anything else. Wen Leong was shocked. He became angry from embarrassment and cried out, Why didn't you say so earlier? He rushed towards the houses which still stood tall. Qin Zhui had already pulled out more than ten houses. He was covered head to toe in putrid, viscous black blood. He backed up Lama Rangyong, shouting, Didn't you know? We can't stop the momentum when attempting to break the circle, not even for the briefest of moments. Wen Leong had never learned the basics of magic. He truly had no clue. Head Lama Rangyong finally completed his task in placing the musical instruments around the town. He abruptly stopped running, joined his feet together, and rooted himself to the spot like a nail in wood. He made hand signs as he doubled over, using all his energy as he was tapping into his own life force. He opened his mouth to howl, but no sound came out. Gu Xiaojun and the sibling, who were watching anxiously from the side, felt a suffocating sensation grow in their chest. They wished they had a knife to cut open their chest and release this madness-inducing pressure. A few seconds passed, but those seconds felt like an eternity. Just when they were about to collapse from their maddening suffocation, a series of ear-splitting yells, like the godly thunder of the ninth heaven, blasted through the night. The evil energy which had enveloped the town was ripped to pieces. Rangyong opened his mouth and tried to howl desperately, but the voice that rang out came from the god Yamantaka in the sky. Vajra. Sattva. It was the Tibetan Buddhism sex Vajra Sattva mantra. Every syllable of the incantation was like a heavenly hammer which struck down from the sky, down onto the restless town. Wen Leong felt a weight lift off his body. The pressure from the evil energy, which had made it hard for him to move, had been destroyed by the godly Yamantaka's mantra. The freed Wen Leong felt as light as a feather. Head Lama Rangyong had invoked the mantra and finally suppressed the unnamed monster's presence. He did not stop, rushing to the center of the town to join Wen Leong and the others in dismantling the mandala. Within ten minutes, the houses in the entire town of Tuer were lying on their sides. Only the house in the center was left. Master Rangyong yelled, All together now. The four of them moved like lightning. They each grabbed a corner of the house, looked towards one another and nodded. They heavied out a breath and let out a yell simultaneously, pulling upwards with all their might. Xiao Sha and Fei Fei could not help but exclaim in surprise. The final house heaved upwards, under the simultaneous exertion of strength of the four elites, but remained planted. The ground had become soft and sticky, like gum, exerting all its strength in gripping the house, unwilling to let it go. Head Lama Rangyong grew frantic. He yelled loudly in the Tibetan tongue. He rallied his three companions, cheering them on to pull out the house no matter what, or else all would have been for nothing. If they did not destroy the mandala, they would suffer greatly from the recoil of the seal. 
the dwarf Taoist priest was the first to give in. He called out to his disciples for help. The immortal sect disciples immediately invoked the sword formation, using it to support their supreme leader and carried him upward. Qin Zhui unsheathed his knife and slashed frantically at the ground, using hide the force to sustain his energy. When Leong and the head lama gave out a strangled cry. They rode on the remnants of the momentum, used their full strength, and pulled the house upwards. With a soft pop, the last house detached from the ground under the combined strength of the four elites. A sad and shrill wail from an unseen force rang out, shattering everyone's eardrums it instantly destroyed the combined magical powers of the Tibetan Buddhism sect, the Taoists, and the force. Mercilessly striking deep into their minds, like a rusty old blade. At the same time, the long swords that covered the skies wailed and scrambled in all directions, like a swarm of disturbed bees, ignoring their master's instructions. Gu Xiaojun and the siblings fell flat on their backs as if having rehearsed it. They let out a strangled cry as they were knocked off their feet by the shrill howl. Then, thick black blood, flowing like lava of an erupting volcano, gushed out from the hole left behind by the final house. The blood formed a column and shot straight up into the sky, soaring high above their heads. When the other houses had been pulled up, the black blood only sprayed out. However, under this final house, hit an angry volcano. The Chilean disciples who were watching from the town's border, shouted loudly. They directed their swords to intercept the incoming downpour of blood. The worst fear of the practitioner's swords was corrosion from foul things. Gu Xiaojun and the siblings held out umbrellas made of an unknown material. The blood rain made clanking noises as they hit the umbrellas. Although the black blood looked terrifying, it proved neither poisonous nor harmful. Even when the blood splashed onto their bodies, other than it being sticky, it was not life-threatening. The demon subduing mandala in the town had finally been destroyed. The efficiency in which the elites had displayed would have made the relocation office weep tears of joy for days on end. Head Lama Rangyong held a dignified expression, shaking slightly in excitement. He took a deep breath, composed himself, and said solemnly to the others, If you wish to vanquish the demon, come with me. This will be an extremely dangerous venture and you may not return from it. Do think it over carefully. Following that, he went quiet and leaped up to meet the gushing black blood, jumping down the big hole at its base. Qin Zhui followed closely behind. The pose he struck was like that of an ugly duck. He flailed wildly as he rushed towards the black blood and leaped into the hole after the head lama. The dwarf Taoist priest turned and shouted to his disciples, You may not follow me into the hole, this is an order. His gaze was far off from where his disciples stood but nevertheless, the peace and kindness in his eyes could be easily read. The Chilean disciples started an uproar. A few of the older Taoists wanted to say something when the dwarf Taoist priest squinted his eyes. His kind demeanor was instantly washed away by a sense of sternness and resolution. Hold your tongues. How dare you speak against my orders. If you do not see me after three days, do not wait for me. He dives into the source of the black blood, chasing after Qin Zhui and the head lama. When Leong was the last man. He looked at Gu Xiaojun who was still holding up his umbrella, do you guys want to go down too? Gu Xiaojun nodded resolutely. He strode towards Wen Leong and without saying a word, climbed up onto his back with agile movements. He turned and said to the siblings, wait for me here. The siblings shook their heads in unison. Gu Xiaojun glared at them. That is an order. Stop this nonsense. Erm if I do not return after three days, then you guys report to headquarters. When Leon laughed and nodded towards the siblings, he instructed, stay safe. Then, with Gu Xiaojun strapped to his back, he leaped into the column of black blood and rushed into the big hole. After everyone had gone down, Yamantaka's Dharmakeya seemed to give out a sigh as it descended slowly from the sky. The column of endless gushing black blood grew smaller by the second. The godly deity descended from the sky, its dharmakaya shook lightly, and firmly pressed on the wound left behind on the ground. At the same time, a Brahmin chant called out from the skies. The various musical instruments, which had Lama Rangyong had placed around the town while circling it, rang out. The light of Buddha surged through the sky. 
It was not strong but each layer was clearly visible, enveloping the town of Tur in a myriad of colors. As long as the flowing light in Yamantaka did not vanish, the evil beast under the town would not be able to escape. The Chilean disciples retreated to outside the circle and retracted their flying swords. They looked towards one another, all their faces etched with unease. One of them came forward and started chanting the Taoist code. He led his brothers to sit down cross-legged and did not move. They sat still, waiting for the reappearance of their supreme leader and the divine beast. The siblings carried their tent, pitching it beside the Chilean disciples. When Leung broke through the column of black blood and aimed for the ground. After free falling for another thirty meters, he landed on his feet. Then, he gave out a low grunt. A stench, which was much stronger than the black blood back on the surface, had assaulted his senses in an instant. Even though he had dabbled in poisons ever since a young age, his chest could not help but tighten at the smell. Gu Xiaojun, who was riding on his back, was knocked out cold instantly by the stench. Before him, Qin Zhui, the dwarf Taoist priest, and the head lama were all holding their noses. Qin Zhui complained with all his might, this stinks. It's like a fking manure pit in here. Wen Leong quickly applied a cleansing medicinal powder onto the nostrils of his passenger. Gu Xiaojun gave out a loud sneeze. He woke up abruptly. He did not show the slightest hint of stepping down from his perch. He looked around him as he asked in a murmur, why is this place so smelly next time, we should bring gas masks. When Leung applied the medicinal powder onto the noses of the other three cultivators. He frowned and said, that's the smell of putrefaction. His sense slowly expanded. His psychic fog emanated in all directions. Practitioners do not fear poison or foul stenches, they are able to neutralize toxins using their life force. However, this would not only exhaust their powers, they would grow lethargic over time. With the one family's detoxifying and cleansing medicinal powder, they felt a cool sensation spread within their bodies. Their lungs and chest eased. Despite the strong stench, surrounding them was just a pitch black empty space. The four elites, Wen Leong, the Lama, the dwarf Taoist priest, and Qin Zhui had their psychic powers to protect them while also possessing the night eye. Their eyesight was not affected by the amount of light. Only Gu Xiaojun was pointing around a flashlight as he smiled sheepishly, military grade. RRT2 Effective illumination range of up to 300 meters. When Leung's gaze did not follow the flashlight's beam. He closed his eyes and furrowed his brows. A few seconds had passed and his eyes shot open. He looked behind the head lama and pointed, what's that? They were shrouded in endless darkness. Through his psychic fog, he could barely make out a large silhouette at the edge of his senses. Head Lama Rangyong shook his head. I am no better than you guys. I know nothing about the undergrounds of Tour Town. We will know once we see it. He ran and led the way towards the huge object. The group followed suit and covered ground quickly. They ran swiftly along the empty darkness. Through their psychic ability, the huge object slowly took shape within their minds. As they grew closer, they were overcome with fright. Gu Xiaojun exclaimed in astonishment. The light of his torch fell upon a row of stalagmites. They were the size of skyscrapers, or huge mountains. They stood straight and ferocious in the darkness. When Leong and the group stopped upon reaching the base of the stalagmites. The stalagmites were thick at the base and tapered off towards the top. From afar, they could barely make out their shape. Standing in front of it was like standing under sharpened peaks. Their vision was filled with the steep and towering image. Dozens of stalagmites were arranged neatly in a row. Each stalagmite's base measured at least a hundred meters in diameter. The space between each of them was no more than half a meter. Gu Xiaojun was shocked by the strange sight before him. He lowered his voice and said to Wen Leong, the world's greatest and largest stalagmite recorded has a base diameter of 134 meters, with a height of more than 60 meters, but there is only one such stalagmite. Although these aren't as huge as that one but this is a whole row of them. Every single one of them as big as the next, as he said this, he suddenly let out an at dot. He turned sideways and slipped through the space between the stalagmites. 
A few meters from where the stalagmites stood, a row of huge stalactites hung down from above. Their tips just barely touched the ground. Although Gu Xiaojun could not see clearly to the top of the cave, he guessed that this row of stalactites were about the same size as the stalagmites behind him. Stalagmites and stalactites are cone-shaped objects. The former grew upwards whereas the latter was the opposite. Geological phenomenons like these could easily be found in karst caves the world over. However, this would be the only place where the two were known to be arranged neatly in rows. Gu Xiaojun lifted his head and looked around for a long time. He chuckled, look at these two rows of sharp rocks, don't they resemble the teeth of a giant dog? He had barely finished his sentence when Qin Zhui breathed out coldly, I don't think it's a dog. Gu Xiaojun laughed. Then what beast is it? Pausing he had come to a frightening realization. His whole body started to tremble as he stared at the four practitioners with fearful eyes. He gave out a strange cry. They are actually teeth. These two rows of rock columns are actual teeth. Gu Xiaojun's flashlight clanked as it fell to the ground. The light beam rolled around in the dark. When the flash of light met someone's eyes, it gave out a dazzling glare. When Leong, the head lama, the dwarf Taoist priest, and Qin Zhui were top elites in the magical realm. They had already completely scanned the place with their psychic abilities. The rock columns, which looked like sharp, towering bamboo shoots, were exactly that. Two rows of ferocious fangs, fitting into one another. When Leong hesitated before opening his mouth slowly, the skeleton of an unknown beast, with an undetermined shape, has been laying underneath Tour Town this whole time. The huge beast's skull alone is bigger than a small town. Master Rangyong continued, the Tibetan Buddhist mandala in this town must have been set to seal this beast away. The spot where we jumped down from must have been the top of its skull. As he said this, he reached out a hand and pointed to the top of his head. Qin Zhui stood in between the front and rear rows of teeth. He extended his arms to gauge the distance between them. He laughed coldly, with a space this big, what did it use to eat? Set aside the distance between the two rows of teeth, even the space between two fangs could fit a yak. Head Lama Rangyong frowned. He was as puzzled by this as everyone else. Helplessly he said, the Tour Town Mandala that suppressed this monster must have been made with great insight and wisdom. The practitioner who did this has done a great service to mankind. Gu Xiaojun was not easily deterred. When he was confronted with something he did not understand, he would do all he can to get to the bottom of things. Regardless how huge the monster was, it is now a just a pile of bones. It is finally dead, isn't it? The monster that had been subdued by King Geezer has been reduced to bones. Then, another beast captured the pangolin. The head lama did not wait for a reply from the others before he shook his head. No, Based on the songs from the Divine Singers, the beast was sealed away because it proved hard to kill. How could it die of old age that easily? Damn it, if it was only a pile of bones, why does it smell so bad in here? The dwarf Taoist priest, who had been silent ever since they descended into this place, suddenly interrupted, the smell here is not as strong compared to where we first landed. Qin Zhui was not bothered about whether the stench around him was strong or faint, he casually helped answer Gu Xiaojun's question. That isn't something very difficult to understand. This monster, which has been reduced to bones, was captured and subdued by King Geezer. The beast, which had captured the giant pangolin and wanted to break out of this cage, must have also been captured and subdued by King Geezer. As he said this, he held up two fingers and concluded with a serious expression, the mandala must have been suppressing two monsters. One died while another is still alive. Gu Xiaojun's eyes lit up. He smiled as he nodded, that makes sense. Head Lama Rangyong shook his head and refuted Qin Zhui's words, you do not know how specific the epic of King Geezer is. If there were two monsters, it would have been mentioned. Qin Zhui pouted. We don't even know if the epic of King Geezer was authentic or not. The group fell into silence. If they could not even be sure of their premise, any further discussion would be pointless. After a while, Head Lama Rangyong continued, although the appearance of those divine singers is questionable, the Tibetan Buddhism sect was already flourishing 700 years ago. 
whether the divine singers were authentic or not, they could not have fooled the wise eyes of Buddhists. If they were fake, how could they have convinced Head Lama Gisha to recall his troops? Gu Xiaojun was frustrated to the point of stomping his foot. Head Lama, what are you getting at? Rang Yong laughed. There's only one monster or the poets would have sung otherwise. The death we see before our eyes is not true death. The monster may have turned into bones, but it still exists. Qin Zhui laughed and nodded but he was betrayed by the look of confusion on his face. This guy clearly did not understand a word the Lama had said. Gu Xiaojun snorted dismissively. You're saying that even after being reduced to bones, this monster still isn't dead? Upon saying that, he pondered for a while. He carefully enunciated a word that he heard Xiao Sha mention once, the necromancy. Rang Yong burst out in laughter. There was no trace of worry in them. I don't know. It's fine if you just get the general idea. Anyways, there is still a monster here and it must be related to this skeleton somehow. We shouldn't have to think too much, just kill the demon and rescue the divine beast. We will know when we see the monster. After settling the matter, he turned, intending to lead the group down the giant beast's throat. However, Gu Xiaojun stood rooted to the spot. He chided Rang Yong seriously, whether it's one or two monsters, master, we should think carefully before making any plans. If there is only one, then naturally we should give chase into the depths of this skeleton. However, if there were two of them we would accomplish nothing by running around this stinky skeleton. The demon that captured the pangolin could be outside there. As he said this, he pointed his finger towards the outside the rows of teeth. At this moment, the dwarf Taoist priest snorted as he looked at Qin Zhui while saying, Why don't you step out and take a look yourself? Qin Zhui had already gotten used to this. He smiled and looked at Gu Xiaojun, he was talking to you. Oh, replied Gu Xiaojun. Ichi placed one hand on one of the stalactites, which grazed the ground from the sky. He tried to peer through the gaps with the help of his flashlight. Beyond the teeth, there was only darkness. Even the military-grade flashlight, which beams had the ability to travel far, could not pierce through the darkness. After looking around for a few seconds with squinted eyes, Gu Xiaojun suddenly let out a low, muffled grunt. The extremely thick darkness, which was impenetrable by his flashlight, seemed to overwhelm him in the blink of an eye. It flowed into this body through every pore of his skin, stopping his flow of blood and strangled his lungs. The sensation almost made his chest burst open. For a brief moment, old Gu, whose nerves were tougher than steel, lost his sense of self. Head Lama Ranyong responded quickly. He pulled Gu Xiaojun back and softly pressed his thumb upon Gu Xiaojun's Donjong acupoint, helping the blood to flow once again and restoring his qi. Gu Xiaojun slowly came back to his senses. He pointed at the life-threatening darkness outside, which would certainly have killed him if he had stared for a moment longer. What what is that? Qin Zhui saw the look on Gu Xiaojun's face and was overwhelmed with glee. There's nothing outside. It is a void. This space has been severed from the mortal realm. It's a space that was opened up by the Tibetan Buddhism's spiritual energy, specifically to seal away the giant monster. That's why to find the divine beast, we must move into the monster's belly. We can't go in any other direction. That was why when we were above ground, we could not reach it no matter how hard we tried to dig. Only by destroying the mandala, could we break the spell and enter. Head Lama Rangyong said this as he turned and walked towards the throat of the skeleton. The group of elites turned to follow him. Gu Xiaojun climbed once again onto Wen Liang's back. From his sour expression, he seemed to have half a mind to install a safety belt onto Wen Liang when they got back. Chapter 190 Teeth that soared above ten stories, a skull the size of a town. The skull was massive. Even as when Leong and the others stood inside it, they could not determine what kind of monster it was. Their view was limited. Even with their psychic ability, they could barely make out the outline of the skull. The group followed Head Lama Rangyong and ran at full speed, their shadows barely keeping up. They gradually moved away from the skull, plunging into the monster's chest through its throat. The rotting stench of putrefaction became stronger the deeper they went. 
when Leon realized in horror at the carcass of the giant monster had not completely decayed. He could still make out its hands and feet. The lips, chin, and the top of the skull had turned into dense white bones but there was still some leftover flesh along the neck area. Upon reaching the chest cavity, they were completely surrounded by decaying and rotting meat. It was like melting wax or viscous mud and had difficulty staying on the walls. It flowed slowly and clumsily. Their footsteps gave out a squish every time they took a step forward. Rotting flesh covered in pus and blood would occasionally fall in big chunks from the ceiling. It broke apart and spewed everywhere upon hitting the floor, making wet splattering noises. Luckily, when Leon and the others possessed psychic abilities and already knew their surroundings pretty well, reacting quickly and dodging any falling flesh. If they had been ordinary people, even if they did not succumb to the smell of death or die of fright, they would have been dragged under the decaying flesh and drowned. The flesh acted like quicksand, sucking in anything on its surface. The group utilized their chi as they moved forward. Their bodies were lighter than falling leaves. They practically floated above the decaying flesh, occasionally stopping to discern their location before continuing on swiftly. Qin Zhui was normally brave, but even his complexion turned green as he walked through the rotting flesh swamp. The dwarf Taoist priest's face carried no expression, his gaze seemed to drift far away. Gu Xiaojun exerted all the force in his limbs and secured himself firmly onto Wen Liang's back. He kept reminding his driver to drive carefully. Wen Liang had no qualms about carrying Gu Xiaojun but he was curious about something. He turned and asked Gu Xiaojun behind him, Tell us, do you have any abilities? Gu Xiaojun smiled sheepishly. Only Ping Pong his voice had barely faded and the four elites noticed something at almost the same time. The four of them stopped unison. They turned their heads and listened intently. Qin Zhui gripped his tang knife. He glanced at Wen Leong with a sour expression, I don't think it's a good idea to fight here. Unexpectedly, the dwarf Taoist priest agreed with Qin Zhui. He smiled bitterly and nodded. They had been brave enough to come down here, they were not afraid of danger. Nevertheless, nobody wanted to fight surrounded by stinky, rotting flesh. Kacha. It was like metal rubbing against metal. In the quiet carrion swap, it sounded especially piercing on the ears. Gu Xiaojun conjured a QSZ-92 from behind him, almost like magic. He swiftly crossed his hands over each other. The barrel and the light beam from his flashlight were parallel as he aimed into the distance. After confirming there was nothing amiss, he looked at the other four and saw the look of disdain upon their faces, what? Qin Zhui opened his mouth and to speak but only a squeak came out. He jumped up frantically, almost hysterical. So many. The dwarf Taoist priest had also cried out in exasperation, forgetting he was supposed to exude the manners of a learned person. Run. He shuddered and dashed forward. He had only taken one step when a fiery shadow suddenly rolled in front of him. Two hands held him down by the shoulders. Head Lama Rangyong had stopped him, advising in a low tone, it's no use. We've been surrounded. The dwarf Taoist priest was bothered and angry. He threw a gaze sharper than a knife, from beside the Lama's head. Some guide you or stop weighing me down, my calves are sinking. The Lama quickly moved his hands and pulled out the Taoist priest, whom he had accidentally pushed into the ground. Wen Liang's expression was at ease. He turned and advised Gu Xiaojun softly, later, when you're firing your pistol, please steer clear of my ears. Gu Xiaojun felt irritation at Wen Liang's words. What exactly is? Pop. A soft sound cut Gu Xiaojun short. A bubble of blood the size of a well had erupted a few feet away from them. The sound was crisp. Too thick, bronze bristles swayed as they stuck out of the ground. It looked like the antennae of some extraterrestrial being. A bug crawled out clumsily, it struggled to free its plump body from the grip of the carrion swamp. Upon succeeding, it jumped up and down a few times to shake the gunk off itself. It revealed to have a red shell with a black tinge. It then proceeded to circle Wen Leong in the group, regarding them with growing curiosity. Wen Leong turned his head slightly. He pointed at the bug with his chin as he asked Gu Xiaojun softly, look familiar? 
Gu Xiaojun gripped his gun tightly, almost leaving a dent. He stretched out his neck and gulped as he responded in an equally low voice, it does. It's just that it's just too huge. It was a brown-colored bug with six legs and a thick shell. Its body was the shape of an old-fashioned military bottle, its forehead shaped like a flat spade. Even children who grew up in the city would have no problem recognizing it, the dung tortoise. It also went by the name of Mr. Dung Shell. Officially, it was known as the Dung Beetle. Normally, it would only be the size of a ten-cent coin. These bugs could easily be found, from the North Pole all the way to the equator. However, this Dung Beetle seemed to have been in the dark for too long. Its eyes had already begun to degenerate, turning into two black lumps of dead meat. The bug, which was having the time of its life, extended its antennae and moved closer then further again. It was massive compared to other specimens of its species. A dung beetle that was as large as a millstone. Compared to the dead giant beast that they were in, with teeth larger than small mountains, this living dung beetle larger than a cow was more impressive. When Leong and the rest entertained the hallucination that perhaps it wasn't that the monster and the beetle were large, but actually they were the ones who had shrunk. Nobody moved a muscle. They all stared at the big bug as it jumped about. When they realized that the big bug would probably not attack them, Gu Xiaojun let out a sigh of relief. He nodded and instructed the group, yeah, let's not bother with it. No matter how big it is, it's still just a bug. These things eat decaying flesh. That is why it is inside a carcass. We're all living men and thus shouldn't interest it. As he said this, he paused briefly and laughed drilly in a low voice. A dung beetle is far better than a big fat maggot. Contrary to Gu Xiaojun's belief, this huge dung beetle, in fact, did have a strong interest in them. It made no move to leave, pondering why these chunks of meat were standing. The few practitioners did not move. They were not afraid of this one bug but through their psychic abilities, they sensed that the seemingly endless carrion swamp was filled with these things. These bugs had been hiding in the carrion, totally still, thus making them undetectable earlier. When they had sped through the monster, they had unknowingly startled the bugs. They were surrounded before they realized it. Currently, countless big dung beetles were crawling to the surface from the depth silently. They stopped about twenty inches under the group's feet, as if waiting for a signal from their scout, on the surface, on whether these people were Sichuan dishes or a pile of dung. Head Lama Rangyong had spent his days walking across the plateau. He knew the whole of Tibet like the back of his hand, but this was his first time seeing such a huge bug. He continued Gu Xiaojuan's sentence and urged the group in a low voice, the beast is watching us. Try not to startle it. When it loses interest in us, it should go away on its own. Even the Lama did not seem confident in his own plan. The number of dung beetles below the surface grew steadily in numbers, but not a single one surfaced. When Leong felt like he was standing at the mouth of a dung beetle volcano. Although he was not afraid, the hairs on his body still stood on end. Qin Zhui's tang knife was pointed at the dung beetle as he asked the Lama incredulously, a huge dung beetle feeding on a huge carcass, this is just a package, nothing strange about it. However, what I don't get it, how did they get here? Isn't this huge beast carcass sealed off by the Tibetan Buddhist mandala? There was nothing strange about a bug being in a carcass. What was strange that how these bugs had got into this carcass? The huge beast was not buried under the ground but was actually in a void that had been opened up by Tibetan Buddhist magic. Master Rangyong shrugged his shoulders, his expression helpless. I don't know either. Gu Xiaojun shook his head and said, don't underestimate the dung beetle. The ancient Egyptians used to worship them. There are even drawing of dung beetles on the walls of the pyramids. They were held in high regard. According to legend, the ancient Egyptians had a practice of rearing these bugs, keeping them alive for millions of years. They believed the dung beetles protected the secrets of the world. There may be something magical about these dung beetles. If that is the case, their appearance may not be as strange as it seems. When Leung turned and glanced at Gu Xiaojun. He smiled cheekily as he said, you know quite a lot about dung beetles. Is that your speciality? Xiao Sha was skilled in folk magic, Fei Fei knew how to read expressions. 
Wen Leong had always felt that the special task force under Gu Xiaojun's command, which dealt specifically with magic practitioners, were very talented. That was why he was heavily curious as to what was Gu Xiaojun's skills. Gu Xiaojun smiled, knowing a lot of things isn't a special ability anymore. You don't have have to ask repeatedly, I do not have any special abilities. Wen Leong shook his head in disbelief. He wanted to question Gu Xiaojun further but was struck with a thought. He shifted his gaze to head Lama Renyong. Divine Beast Pa Tu had been traveling through the earth, it should not have been connected to this space right? Wen Leong did not care how the bugs had got in. If they were lucky, they would be able to leave in peace if not, there would be a bloodbath. He had no control over how that turns out but if the beast was not buried underground but in a void, no matter how the giant pangolin tunneled, it should not have been captured by the demon. The head lama had not even replied when the dwarf Taoist priest coldly ended that thought. The divine beast's tunneling powers are magic. When Patu had vanished, the Taoist priest had been flustered and his heart was torn with madness. He had even instructed his disciples to dig a hole. He had calmed down since. He was also a wise person, or else he would not have been able to become Chilean immortal sect supreme leader. The divine beast's magical powers of tunneling isn't like digging a hole with your hands and feet but it's like using the force from the earth and shattering the void. As long as there's earth, one can traverse freely. Master Rangjung's smile was tinged with surprise as if shocked that Wen Leong was skilled but possessed no basic knowledge of magic. Tunneling magic is actually shattering and traveling through the void within the earth. When the divine beast cast his magic, he might have affected the seal and unintentionally passed by this spot and thus got captured by the demon. The huge dung beetle had been circling the five of them for a few minutes now. Its antennae brushed against their bodies. After seemed to have confirmed that these things were not appetizing, it turned around, shook its back, and crawled away slowly. Gu Xiaojun chuckled lightly, his tone full of joy, that was a false alarm. The bug had no intentions of fighting us, he had barely finished his sentence when the huge dung beetle suddenly turned around. Its mouth seemed to move as if smiling at the group. It was sneering. The boundless carrion swap under their feet started to boil, countless huge blood bubbles erupted on the surface. Thousands of huge dung beetles struggled and emerged from the ground. They shook their big fat bodies and surrounded the group in the blink of an eye. Nobody had expected this. Qin Zhui howled in anger, sly bugs. The Tang knife in his hand whistled. It conjured up a rolling tempest and slashed down. The dung beetles weren't waiting for a signal. They were just using this single dung beetle as a distraction to stall their prey as they gathered like coming to a dinner party. Today is a mid-autumn day, even the bugs wanted something good to eat author's note, please ignore this. Once he attacked, Qin Zhui immediately regained his bravery. His slash was like roaring thunder. Even if African rhinos had charged at him, they would have been pushed aside. With a loud bang, only a single beetle, which had taken the blow head on, was smashed to pieces, much to everyone's surprise. When Leong had felt the biting cold of the hide the force slash but the surrounding bugs seemed barely affected. Qin Zhui had gathered up and used the power of the world. Whether facing a single enemy or a whole group, it should have had the same power. However, it was like there hadn't been any magical power in that slash. He had only managed to smash that bug to pieces through brute force. Qin Zhui was stunned. He forgot about his surroundings. He frowned and muttered to himself, wondering where he had gone wrong. He had obviously used his hide the force power. Martial fanatic Qin Zhui was lost in thought but the diners did not slow down. Two huge bugs pounced on him almost at the same time. The Lama and Dwarf Taoist priest cast their magical powers to fight against the tide of incoming bugs. Wen Leong howled. He leapt towards Qin Zhui, wanting to pull him away. Suddenly, two loud shots rang out beside his ears. Gu Xiaojun had fired his gun. Slimy juice sprayed everywhere as the bullets hit their target. The two bugs, which were on Qin Zhui, did not even have the chance to wail before their heads were blasted to pieces. They fell to the ground with a thud. Qin Zhui was shocked back to his senses. 
He wiped away the greenish-yellow juice on his face with his sleeve and looked at Gu Xiaojuan's gun with fright. That's one powerful weapon. As he said this, he kicked back a few big bugs, flipping them over, and rushed to join his team. Gu Xiaojun smiled proudly. It's the bullets. The ammunition in his Type 92 handgun did not have a name but it could prove lethal in combat. It could penetrate a 50mm pine board, after penetrating a helmet steel plate, at 50 meters away. Its penetration power was higher than that of the internationally famous Parabellum bullets. High penetration, fast travel speed, highly stable. These three properties guaranteed the upset of the internal pressure in the bugs the instant the bullet penetrated the bugs' heads, blasting them to pieces. Head Lama Rangyong, the dwarf Taoist priest, and Qin Zhui roared ferociously, attacking the bugs mercilessly. Only when Leong stood still. He was worried that if he moved too fast, Gu Xiaojun would hit the head lama by mistake. Qin Zhui continuously slashed with his tang knife. Just like before, he could only kill one bug per slash. Other than the bug which was directly in front of him, his force magical powers had no effect the surrounding dung beetles. After a few moments, Qin Zhui started laughing almost happily. The dwarf Taoist, even while in midst of some pressing affairs, spared the time to ask Qin Zhui loudly, Did you figure out a way to push the enemy back? Qin Zhui replied with a laugh. No. It's just that I have figured out why my magic powers are ineffective against these bugs. The dwarf Taoist priest turned and glared at Wen Leong. In this created space under the mandala seal, compared to the newcomer Qin Zhui, these bugs were masters of this place. The force of this world which Qin Zhui invoked using his magic powers was the survival element of these bugs. For Qin Zhui to use the force in this place to fight the local bugs was like trying to drown a fish in water, or throw a bird off a building, hoping it will drop to its death. However, Qin Zhui continued to laugh. In the end, he simply stopped fighting. He ran to Wen Liang's side and said, I have some thinking to do. Then he proceeded to take cover behind Wen Liang. These bugs did not possess any magical powers. However, they had great strength. A dung beetle the size of a fingernail could roll a ping-pong-sized dung ball and cross the world at the same time. They also had thick shells. The dung beetle had a local name, the Iron Armor General. Their shells were as hard as metal plates. Even the most skilled practitioner would need to exert some energy to smash it to pieces. Master Rangyong had already killed a dozen huge bugs. His body was covered head to toe in thick juice, which splattered when the bug got blasted. He gritted his teeth and wondered if he should spend some of his life force and activate an even greater magic spell. The dark mass of bugs was endless. If he did not call upon a greater magical power, it would prove difficult for them to escape. However, they have not even caught a glimpse of the shadow of the true monster. If he uses up his energy now, he figured that would spell trouble in the future. Consecutive gunshots rang out. The bugs that rushed over were mercilessly shot in the head by Gu Xiaojun's modern firearm. When Liang's body shook with every shot, his vision started to blur. When Gu Xiaojun finally stopped to change the cartridge, Wen Liang pulled him off his back and pushed him towards Qin Zhui. His body trembled as he pulled the two other to him. He willed the metal poison stream, that had always been dwelling under his feet, to flow and emanate silently towards the bugs around them. Chirping wails burst out. As the metal poison stream flowed, it caught on the huge dung beetle's long legs and corroded them. They buckled and their legs were slowly burnt away by the poison until nothing was left. Their heavy clumsy bodies sunk into the poison metal stream. After a few moments of painful trashing, they stopped moving. Gu Xiaojun had just reloaded when he saw the bugs fall one by one in front of his eyes. He asked in a hoarse voice, that easy for you. Qin Zhui, who was still racking his brains, was startled by the scene in front of him. He lifted his head and stared in disbelief as the bugs around him struggled and fell in batches. When Leong had divided the metal poison stream into two parts. One part formed a protective circle around the group while the other flowed around rampantly. It flowed to wherever the density of the bugs was the highest. When Leong smiled as he replied Gu Xiaojun, they're all normal bugs, just a little bigger. 
The metal poison stream contained the poison harvested from two large bronze ants from the land of metal element. Even the average practitioner would not have stood a chance against it, let alone these bugs. Although the dung beetles were huge, they were only normal living beings that had no culmination of life force energy. If killing these things had been a competition, no matter who the opponent was, any one Butsao disciple would emerge victorious against them. After having suffered heavy losses under the poison's power, the bugs finally seemed to understand that it would be no easy feat to kill these humans. Finally, they gave up and turned tail, tunneling back into the stinky carrion swamp. All of them retreated. Only the bodies of the fallen were left behind. Qin Zhui was not satisfied and could not let go of his hatred. He asked Wen Leong through gritted teeth, Can you go after them? Go and poison all those bastards to death. Wen Leong smiled and nodded. It wouldn't be difficult to give chase but that would be a waste of time, the metal poison stream constantly dwelled and lay dormant under Wen Leong's feet. Upon being activated, nothing could stand in its way. Theoretically, it would be possible for Wen Leong to direct the poison stream down the layers of the carrion, chasing after the bugs but the problem was that this carcass was massive. Wen Leong reckoned that he would not be able to complete this task, even if his hair turned white. In that case, Xiaoyi and Mumu, who were waiting to get married, would turn into the 2009 version of Changli, endlessly traveling the world in search of their groom. Wen Leong had not even finished speaking when a voice cried out in surprise. Gu Xiaojun was on top of Qin Zhui's back. His left arm professionally placed on top of his right arm, the barrel moved in tandem with the flashlight's beam, searching for a target. After a few moments of fruitless searching, he asked with a lost expression, where did that sound come from? The two most skilled among them, Wen Leong and Head Lama Rangyong, carried grim expressions on their faces. They sandwiched the other three protectively. The sharp cry seemed to come from all around them. Even they could not determine the speaker's location. After a while, the voice spoke again. The voice was sharp and hoarse, carrying with it a jerky tone. Can you really kill all those bastards? The voice was trembling in unconcealed excitement. Gu Xiaojun raised his hands quickly and aimed into the depths of the beast's chest. He calls out, What are you? Come out. The voice had not bothered to conceal its location. Even old Gu could clearly tell where it came from. The voice agreed joyfully, then went quiet. Within the huge beast carcass, silence fell all around them, like a blanket. The few cultivators held their breaths and focused their minds. They threw out their psychic nets as far as they would reach. After a few minutes, when Leon and the head lama, whose psychic abilities had the greatest range, looked to each other. They moved and stood next to the dwarf Taoist priest. They stood with the priest between them and each placed a hand on his shoulders. The head lama said in a low voice, Immortal, please remain calm. The Taoist gave Qin Zhui a puzzled look. Qin Zhui looked back at the priest. A few moments passed, then the dwarf Taoist priest roared in anger. His body trembled fiercely but he stayed where he was, grinding his teeth. The sounds of towing reached Gu Xiaojun's ears. The object sounded big and heavy. The person dragging the object moved in a hurry. At the edge of their vision, a red monkey no taller than twenty inches was running towards the group with light footsteps. Behind him, he was dragging the giant pangolin Patu. Gu Xiaojun's palms grew clammy, cold sweat trickled down his forehead. He lowered his voice and asked Wen Leong. Should I fire? At a range of 50 meters, I can blast that thing's head. Wen Leong was startled by this idea and quickly shook his head. He silently mused that Gu Xiaojun and Xiaoyi must share a common language. A monster that could tow giant pangolin patu and still able to run at the same time would never be beaten by a handgun. Chapter 191 The monkey who stood no taller than 20 inches was towing the foothill-sized divine pangolin behind him. When it entered within the line of sight, it stopped short from the group. It opened its mouth and out came a dry and jerky voice, Can you really kill every single bug here? Although when Leong had prepared himself, his skin still crawled upon seeing the creature. The monkey scratched at its ears and cheeks in embarrassment it spoke in Mandarin and not in the Tibetan language. 
The monkey had a fire red body and big blue eyes, which glowed faintly under the golden light of Gu Xiaojuan's torch. They looked cold and sharp, like ice crystals. The giant pangolin was laying down beside the monkey and did not move, half his body had sunken into the carrion swap. One could not be sure if the pangolin was still alive. Tang knife in hand, Qin Zhui pointed it at the faraway monkey as he asked the others in a low, puzzled tone, a fiery red monkey? What kind of demon is that? Gu Xiao took aim from behind Qin Zhui's back, training his gun and flashlight on the creature. It was too far away though. The handgun would be useless from this range. Head Lama Rangyong shook his head. He has not come across this kind of monkey before either. He spoke hesitantly in low voice, under heaven, you will find four spiritual primates. The first is the intelligent stone monkey, of flexible wit and extremely skilled in battle. The second is the red-bottomed horse monkey who understands yin and yang, cheating death and prolonging life. Long-armed ape monkey is the third monkey, the master of time and space. The final one is the six-eared macaque, he hears and knows everything under the sun. I think this monkey is. Gu Xiaojun, who was still pointing his torch at the monkey, sounded delirious as he finished the head lama sentence. The master is right. Sun Wukong, the great sage equal of heaven. He was the intelligent stone monkey, he who wreaked havoc back in the heavenly kingdom but master the four types of primates that you have just mentioned don't they come from the play of journey to the west. That isn't a very dependable source is it? Oh, said Rang Yong as he chuckled. I have only heard of this from the mouth of others. This demon is foreign to these lands, thus I do not know much. Let's try to get close and I will cast my Tibetan Buddhism sect spell of the five eyes and discern its true body. The few people there had been on edge before they met the enemy. Now upon spotting the other party, they all let their guard down. Nobody bothered with answering the monkey's question, instead was engrossed in their own speculating. The monkey was in no hurry though, it took the opportunity to observe the five of them. Its round eyes shifted from person to person. The monkey's gaze stopped on Gu Xiaojuan's hand, looking very interested in the flashlight that he held. It tugged on the giant pangolin behind him. This thing is one of your allies. At the mention of Patu, the dwarf Taoist priest could not hold back any longer. He took one step forward and said to the monkey in a booming voice, Return the divine beast, then we can talk. The dwarf Taoist priest knew that this monkey of strange origins was not to be taken lightly. He also knew that his treasured divine beast would not be returned to him so easily. He only said as he did to make the other party talk more. He wanted to ask as the pangolin's conditions, whether it was dead or alive. The monkey unexpectedly parted its lips into a smile. It nodded its head eagerly. You can have him. It jumped up and threw the pangolin. Patu, which was bigger in size than a house, came flying straight towards them. Luckily, the people on Wen Liang's side were top elites. Although this happened quickly, their reaction speeds were even faster. They all yelled and leapt up to meet the pangolin. The dwarf Taoist priest, Qin Zhui, and head Lama Rangyong smoothly caught the pangolin while Wen Liang charged to the front, anticipating a sneak attack from the monkey. The giant pangolin flipped as it went through the air. Wen Leung, who stood at the front, managed to dodge the pangolin. His senses heightened as he spread out his physic fog, fixed intently on the fiery red monkey at the edge of his vision. The monkey did not move. It grinned and chuckled while it watched them. As Qin Zhui, the lama, and the dwarf priest were about to receive the pangolin, the monkey squawked loudly. It rushed towards the group, faster than lightning, leaving only blurry red afterimages in Wen Liang's mind. Wen Liang did not even have time to warn the people behind him. He only caught the glimpse of a red shadow before his eyes. He launched his faulty punch and metal poison stream but not before the enemy made it past his line of defense. Shouts erupted behind him, accompanied by the bang of shots fired. When Wen Liang gritted his teeth, he turned around to give chase and aid his comrades when a giant shadow flew across his face. A strong wind blew past him. Before Wen Leong stood only the other four of his party. The monkey had returned to its original spot. The giant pangolin was back at his side, 
its condition unknown. It was as if nothing had happened. However, in the monkey's hands were two extra objects. Gu Xiaojun's flashlight and handgun. Everyone looked like they had just been forced to swallow a bucket full of lemon juice. The monkey had first tossed the pangolin to distract them, then only made its move when they were about to catch the divine beast. It rushed past Wen Leung, snatched back the pangolin and plucked the items out of Gu Xiaojun's hands. Gu Xiaojun, who was on Qin Zhui's back, was dumbfounded. He stared in disbelief at his empty hands. He had felt little sparks of fire on his hands and could not help but open them in alarm. In the blink of an eye, he had lost possession of his only two weapons. Old Gu returned to his senses. He called to Wen Leung, can you carry me instead please? Old Gu felt unsafe on Qin Zhui's back. Wen Leung did not object and allowed Old Gu to climb onto his back once more. Together with his other three comrades, they took slow and careful steps towards the monkey. The red monkey was completely engrossed in his new toys. Ignoring the others, it sniffed at the objects, even trying to take a bite out of them. After tinkering for a while, the monkey pointed the flashlight towards its own big round eyes, as if wanting to understand how it was producing the blazing light. The military-grade flashlight should have caused an instant loss of vision when directed towards the eyes at close range but the monkey seemed completely unaffected. It toyed joyfully with it for some time before turning and aiming it at Wen Leung. Wen Leung immediately stopped in his tracks. Gu Xiaojun, who was on Wen Leung's back, tried to give the monkey a smile but only managed to look like he was crying in desperation. The monkey knew its manners and returned a smile to old Gu. It looked scarier than a ghost, displaying all its teeth. Its voice was dry, sounding like two sandpapers rubbing against each other. What magic weapon is this? If he had been one Buzwa, he would have told the monkey that the flashlight was the Vairokana demon chasing Buddha's light or something like that. Old Gu was not as childish as him though. He merely squinted his eyes, choosing not to answer. The monkey was indifferent. It started playing with the handgun. After taking a few nibbles, it realized it was not edible. He then aimed the barrel at its eyes and bang. The handgun went off. A puff of green smoke rose from the barrel. Wen Leong could not help but grind his teeth. Only he and Head Lama saw it, the moment the monkey had pulled the trigger and fired, its head had instantly snapped out of the way and dodged the bullet. The point-blank shot had missed its eyes. The monkey commented dully, it makes a great deal of noise but it's too slow. It tossed away the handgun and flashlight with a wave of its hands. Its gaze returned to Wen Leong and the others. The monkey chuckled and asked, what else do you guys have? The monkey may have acted playful and restless but its voice lacked any youthful vigor. Qin Zhui, who was pointing his tang knife at the monkey, was taken aback at this question. He immediately hid his tang knife behind his back. The red monkey shook its head at Qin Zhui. That's not something good, it said with a smile before its expression suddenly became agitated. It waved its skinny fists and struck at the wet and slippery grounds of the carrion swap. With a loud boom, a dozen huge dung beetles were sent flying. When Leong and the group had no time to react, only catching flashes of red crisscrossing in front of their eyes. Popping sounds erupted all around them. In a few seconds, the bugs that had been sent flying had been smashed to pieces by the red monkey. Find authorized novels in Web Novel Faster Updates, Better Experience Please Click WW. Web Novel. Calm for visiting. The monkey did not seem pleased and continued to jump and shriek. It only settled down after every bug had been torn to pieces. The monkey then returned to its original spot once more, stomped and cursed, stars that can't be wiped clean. It waved towards Wen Leong and the others. This place is too filthy, let's talk further inside. It turned around and ran with nimble steps deeper into the giant beast carcass, still dragging the giant pangolin behind him. Wen Leong and the others looked to each other. Nobody spoke as they followed behind the monkey. Wen Leong stooped down to pick up the handgun and flashlight, under heavy pleas from Gu Xiaojun. The monkey moved at a pace that was neither fast nor slow, pangolin in tow. It was at a speed which even the slowest amongst them, 
the dwarf Taoist priest, could keep up only after exerting his full strength. They passed their surroundings in almost complete silence, only the blunt dragging sounds of the giant pangolin could be heard. The light of Gu Xiaojun's torch wandered about in the dark. The slick, rotting flesh beneath them gradually gave way to firmer meat. Thick blood vessels, tendons, and bones intertwined under their feet. The stench which had assaulted their nostrils earlier, also dissipated considerably. The lower half of the giant beast had yet to rot, the flesh still remained fresh. When Leon grunted under his breath. The head of this giant beast, which had been suppressed under Tour Town, had been reduced to just its skull. Its neck and chest had been in the advanced stages of decay, containing remnants of decaying flesh and dead skin. He did not know whether this was the abdomen or the buttocks, but it was still in perfect condition. Decay had not set in yet. The red monkey found a spot that was relatively dry and finally stopped. Its big eyes rolled around, its gaze scanned the faces of the new intruders. The monkey seemed to read their thoughts. It patted the giant pangolin as it laughed hoarsely. This thing isn't dead yet, I can assure you. It extended a finger and pointed it at head Lama Rangyong. You wish to kill me, he he. It then pointed to the dwarf Taoist priest. You want to save your monster. The Taoist priest looked slightly stunned, then grunted heavily. Compared to the monkey, the pangolin was no monster. The monkey's finger then pointed to Wen Leong, Old Gu, and Qin Zhui. You guys came down here in search of answers. But the red monkey lifted up its chin as if in deep thought. You guys don't even know where to start asking and you still want to look for answers. The monkey's mimicry of human gestures was hilarious, but at that moment, nobody could bring themselves to laugh. The red monkey had revealed everyone's thoughts in just a few short words, especially the thoughts of Wen Leong and his original companions. They had posed as nine-head snake believers and came to this town. They had wanted to find out the reason for the evil cult's gathering, reaching this town and entered the elimination battle, then being told to stay back to fight an enemy. Now, they had followed head Lama Rangyong and broke the mandala seal left behind from millions of years ago. Seemingly unrelated matters had taken place one after the other. Up until now, when Leong did not know whether the order from the Tibetans for them to stay behind in Tour Town was related to the mandala seal or not. A monkey that had been sealed away by the mandala. A monkey that was capable of capturing the divine beast Patu. A monkey that lived inside a giant beast carcass. A monkey that knew how to speak Mandarin. A monkey that hated dung beetles. A monkey that knew how to read minds. Qin Zhui's eyes were full of fear. He stared at the monkey and asked, You. You can read our minds. He turned and looked to Gu Xiaojun who was beside him. We should have brought Fei Fei with us. We're in the blind like this. Now that their surroundings were drier and the flesh under their feet firmer, Gu Xiaojun hopped down from Wen Liang's back. He cursed at Qin Zhui, nonsense. You can't expect Fei Fei to read a monkey. The red monkey unexpectedly shook its head. It answered Qin Zhui in a gruff voice, read your mind. I'm not a god, I can't do such a thing. Qin Zhui shook his head in protest. Then how do you know what's on our minds? The monkey stood up like a human as it looked up and laughed. Yes, I may have been sealed away by the mandala of the Tibetan Buddhism sect. I have not seen the blue skies in a few thousand years but I can clearly see what goes on in that town. The monkey stared at the direction of the sky as it said this, scanning the town. Twenty-six Taoist priests are sitting like tree pickets. The small-eyed boy is sleeping soundly. The little girl is. Its expression was one of puzzlement as it mentioned Fei Fei. It places two fingers on its lips and made a gesture of puckering its lips together before continuing, puffing out smoke. Wen Leong was shocked. He turned and looked at old Gu. Fei Fei smokes. Old Gu gave a half smile. To be able to see through the hearts of men anyone who learns this skill cannot hope to be happy again. This child can't find any outlet other than taking the occasional smoke when nobody is looking. Qin Zhui glanced at old Gu and Wen Leong in wonder. He did not understand how these two stayed so casual in the face of a great enemy. Gu Xiaojun was pardonable, 
his role now like that of Tang Seng in Journey to the West. To put it plainly, he was nothing but a sitting duck. He could only rely on the others to do his fighting, he wasn't of much help. Like Tang Seng in Journey to the West, he was never anxious. Wen Leong however had been confident ever since they had come down from Tour Town. Qin Zhui did not know what ace Wen Leong was hiding up his sleeves. After speaking to Wen Leong, Gu Xiaojun quickly lifted his head and looked at the red monkey. You can see what is happening in the town. Do you know what has happened before this as well? The evil cult followers had gathered in this town on the plateau, something else must have happened even before that. Gu Xiaojun and his party had traveled here in search of the truth. The red monkey revealed a satisfied look. It put on airs as it nodded. If you guys want to know what happened, feel free to ask me. If Baldi there wants to kill me then come. If the short Taoist priest wants this demon, that's negotiable. However. The monkey squinted at Wen Leong. Can you really wipe out all those bugs? The monkey was acting like an elder in front of him, putting on an act like it was Buddha. This made Wen Leong feel helpless and uncomfortable. Wen Leong did not say anything but old Gu answered for him. He's an expert in poison. You've seen the methods he used to kill those bugs firsthand. If he can't kill all those bugs, no one else under heaven can. The dwarf Taoist priest snorted and reverted the topic back to the pangolin, if the divine beast is unharmed, then we'll talk. The monkey quickly yanked out a handful of scales from Patu's backside. Patu who had been silent all this while wailed out. His huge body twisted in agony then fell down again with a crash, fainting once more. The dwarf Taoist priest burned with anger and roared, How dare you, you demon! He drew his flying sword and was about to risk his life when his shoulder suddenly felt heavy. Head Lama Rangyong, who had stood by silently, held him back. He shook his head with a grim expression. The words he spoke next baffled everyone. He's not a demon. He's a man. The group was stunned into silence. A series of shrill, long laughs flew out of the monkey's mouth. The monkey laughed hysterically as it pointed at Master Rangyong with a finger. Good Lama. You can see that I'm a man. Good good good. The three consecutive goods echoed within the giant beast's body, shaking it like thunder. Deep dissatisfaction and hatred were expressed in those few words. Gu Xiaojun threw Wen Leong a look as he instructed in a low voice, we must get to the bottom of things. He then turned to Master Rangyong. What's going on here really? Wen Leong nodded. He rummaged through his pockets. Instead of a carrot, to old Gu's surprise, Wen Leong pulled out his cell phone. When the mandala had been set up to seal away this monster, it had not sealed away a mobile cell tower with it. A cell phone was practically useless here but when Leon smiled as his nimble fingers flew across the keyboard. Master Rangyong slowly produced a bone mala as he stared at the red monkey coldly. He answered old Gu dryly, we can only ask him. The monkey's laugh vanished. Its expression quickly returned back to normal. Its big eyes were cunning, like that of a shrewd merchant. It extended its five fingers and counted, I have the giant pangolin, the Lama wants to know about my origins before deciding on whether to off me, you guys want to know what happened in the town. After it had finished counting its own bargaining chips, it started counting the bargaining counters of Wen Liang's group. The monkey only said four words. Destroy all those bugs. Although Wen Liang did not understand the monkey's hatred for these huge dung beetles, he still made a proud face. Wiping out the bugs will be a piece of cake. Tell us everything you know and I'll help you wipe out the bugs. The head lama frowned and wanted to say something. Before he could do that, he was cut off by Wen Leong raising his cell phone to the front of his face. A few lines were written on the screen, after we get to the bottom of this, if we must, we will kill him. The head lama shook his head. He took Wen Leong's cell phone and typed out a few words. We can't believe everything the demon says. I will perish together with him. Head Lama Rangjung's intentions were clear. He would not believe a word coming from this man who dressed up like a monkey. After Wen Leong had asked all that he wanted to know, he would risk his life and bring down the enemy, sacrificing himself if he must. 
Head Lama Ranyang had not planned to return alive since he had jumped down that hole. The demon which even King Geezer could only seal but not kill, it would take extreme measures to be rid of it. Wen Leong had not expected that Ranyang knew how to operate a cell phone. He looked at the Lama in surprise. He smiled and shook his head. He typed out a few more words. I am here, may the master relax. Gu Xiaojun laughed uproariously and said anything that came to mind. He was trying to cover up for Wen Leong and the head lama, giving them time to type. The red monkey ignored Gu Xiaojun. It simply extended its neck and looked at Wen Leong with a smile. It waited patiently for them to finish their typed conversation before asking in a steady tone, discussing how to kill me. It coughed. You don't need to be so secretive. Let's make this simple. I'll tell you guys everything you want to know and I will return the big pangolin to you. You guys help me wipe out those bugs, not even a single is to be left, and then we'll talk about other matters. The monkey pondered before continuing, after the bugs are wiped clean, I'll be in an extremely good mood. You guys should seize that opportunity then to beg for my forgiveness, and I may just let you go. Remember, if you miss that timing, even I can't help you. If you guys insist on trying to kill me forget it. You guys really can't touch me. Its expression was sincere as it spoke, his tone even eager. Gu Xiaojun nodded and said to the monkey. We'll see how it goes since this is a business transaction, every word of yours must be true. The monkey wore a proud expression. Now, it was no normal monkey but instead a high and mighty monkey author's note, kindly ignore the monkey parts from here on. I have no need for lies. You guys aren't even worth the effort. It could not suppress its excitement. It anxiously wanted to start the deal and waved its arms what do you want to know? Ask away. The price of this deal had been clearly laid out. When Leon and the others were to get rid of the bugs, the monkey will then return the giant pangolin and tell them everything it knew. Then, they will no longer owe each other. When Leon felt that there was something off though. Wait. Qin Zhui called out suddenly. He looked at the red monkey. Will it be difficult for you to catch and subdue us? The monkey shook his head as if the question bored him. I'll be honest, it'll be as easy as raising my one arm. Wen Liang's face lit up. He understood what was off. As expected, Qin Zhui questioned, then why do you have to make a deal with us? Wouldn't it just be easier to capture us and make us kill them? Wen Liang nodded in agreement. Among his group, Qin Zhui was the least manipulative. The questions he thought of were the most simple and direct. The monkey's reply was terse and brash, carrying only five words, it's more fun this way. Qin Zhui was amused. This answer had surprised him and left no ground for a retort. He changed the question, after we wipe out the bugs, your powers would increase tremendously. He had not yet finished his sentence when the monkey shook its head impatiently. It's nothing like that. These bugs have nothing to do with my powers. This matter can't be explained simply. If I wanted to capture all of you and kill you right now, easy peasy. It would make no difference to you guys if my powers increase upon the death of these bugs. It waved its arms, grabbed at the giant pangolin, and tossed it towards the group. The abilities of all of you combined would not even add up to this pangolin, and this pangolin is nothing but a kitten in my eyes. Chapter 192 The dwarf Taoist priest and head Lama Ranyong leapt up and caught the divine beast Patu. Even though Patu was passed out, there seemed to be no physical wounds on its body. The dwarf Taoist priest fed the divine beast a potion and measured the beast's life force, but Patu remained unresponsive. The red monkey sniggered and reminded the priest, every time you pull out its scales, it will wake up for a brief second. Why don't you try that? The dwarf Taoist priest was deranged. He wanted to jump up and charge the monkey but was stopped by Qin Zhui. Head Lama Ranyong stared towards the red monkey with dread, what did you do to? The red monkey did not even allow the head Lama to finish his sentence. It shrugged impatiently. I had only forced it to eat some bugs. It ate a few before wailing and passing out after that. The dwarf Taoist priest was shocked upon hearing this. He looked at Qin Zhui and asked, are those dung beetles poisonous? 
Qin Zhui hollered at Wen Leong. He was asking you. Wen Leong shook his head. The dung beetle's mild toxicity should not have been a problem to the divine beast. My guess is that he passed out from rage. It was the immortal sex divine beast after all. Being forced fed by a monkey to eat huge beetles, nobody would have been able to withstand such humiliation. The red monkey shook its head innocently. Pangolins are supposed to eat bugs right? That's half the reason why I caught him and brought him here. Half was because I was bored, half was because I thought it would be fun, the final half was because he's supposed to eat bugs. Qin Zhui spat ferociously, that's three halves already. Head Lama Rangyong asked coldly, why don't you kill those bugs yourself? With your powers and the thousands of years you have spent here, it shouldn't be a problem for you. The monkey shook its head again. It's an extremely complicated explanation. Once I tell you the reason, you'll probably have more questions than answers. Hence, I shall put this matter aside for now and come back to it later. Qin Zhui waved his tang knife in a rage. Since you want to put this matter aside for now and explain everything later, what else is there for us to ask? You might as well start with telling us about yourself, from the beginning. Start with whether you are a human or a monkey. The red monkey nodded in agreement. It was about to start its story when it suddenly thought of something. It strolled at Wen Leong, relaxing its hands and clasped them behind his back. So, can you really kill the bugs? This time, even Gu Xiaojun grew impatient. He stomped his foot and cursed, You really are a thurfking, long winded monkey. Why do you keep asking that question? The red monkey completely ignored Gu Xiaojun. It stretched out its hand and grabbed onto Wen Leong. He ran towards the direction of the decaying chest cavity, pulling Wen Leong with him. The rest of the elites exclaimed in surprise and gave chase, leaving Gu Xiaojun behind. Wen Leong only felt a tremendous force pulling at his wrist, he barely even had time to react. He was powerless against the monkey's pull. His ears were filled with the howling of the wind as the monkey dragged him along. He could barely keep up, flying behind like a kite. The speed that they went was far faster than if he had run on his own. Just as when Leong thought he was being attacked and wanted to retaliate, the sound of the monkey's laughter reached his ears. Do not be frightened, do not be frightened. I just want to see you launch your trick against these bugs. When I see that you can deliver, our deal can proceed. If you really can kill these bugs, I will not harm you. The three elites went chasing after the monkey and Wen Leong. Gu Xiaojun could not hope to keep up with them. He stomped his foot and cursed as everyone disappeared over the horizon. He was left behind with the giant pangolin. The moment they disappeared from sight, the giant pangolin's eyes flew open, startling Gu Xiaojun. Did you just wake up or were you feigning a coma? Patu chided softly, what do you think? Can such a coincidence happen? Me waking up just as the monkey is leaving? Other than cutting through the mountains and burrowing holes, the pangolin had a special tactic which was feigning his own death. This was among some of its most useful tricks and innate abilities. Nobody could tell that it was acting because it was just an instinctive behavior, not a Taoist magic art. Not even the red monkey could see through the pangolin's trick. It chose that moment when everyone had left to open its eyes. Patu was not acquainted with Gu Xiaojun but it was aware of everything that had happened earlier. He did not waste any time and spoke directly to Gu Xiaojun in a low and urgent tone, this monkey has profound magic roots, only slightly inferior to Changli. We are running out of time, they will be back shortly. You must instruct Wen Leong and the Taoist priest to not act recklessly. Should their sneak attack fail, the entire group will perish as well. Gu Xiaojun checked on his pistol. He took out a few bullets from his pocket. As he refilled the bullets, he shook his head and heaved a sigh. Why bother with a damn sneak attack? When the monkey returns in a while, I will risk my life to fight him. It is possible that the monkey has already ripped Wen Leong apart. The giant pangolin shook its big head. Do you think it would be necessary for him to pick a specific spot to kill all of you? He's just planning to use that one family youngster to kill the bugs. As long as the young one lad can pass the test, they will return in a while. Gu Xiaojun was no fool, he understood what the pangolin was telling him. 
He laughed as he nodded in agreement. Patu continued, I will wait for the opportunity to launch a sneak attack but until then, no matter how annoying the monkey gets, you must prevent the young one lad and the rest from pouncing the monkey or they will surely be doomed. Wait for me to launch the attack, then we will all revolt together. Tugging Wen Leong along behind him, he and the monkey ran for a while before coming to a halt. Wen Leong raised his head and saw that they had returned to the foul-smelling, decaying chest cavity. The red monkey stretched out its hand and pointed forwards. Show me how you plan to kill the bugs. Wen Leong possessed the ability of the metal poison stream under his feet and the poison of life and death had remolded his meridian point and bones. He was now considered a top-tier master practitioner in the magic realm. There was no need for him to use the usual tricks of the Wen Butsao against normal enemies but he still kept himself fully equipped with tools and materials to launch his poison attacks. The was the symbol of the Wen family disciples after all and he would never abandon this tradition so easily. From his leather bag, Wen Leong took out a chunk of grey, withered grass, a pinch of red-coloured medicinal powder, a dried-up black bee, and a leaf so green it looked like it had just been plucked off a tree. He pinched off a little of each material and placed them into his palm. He then started to rub them together. The monkey stood on tiptoe as it observed Wen Leong's hands, asking curiously, what is this? Wen Leong has forgotten how long it's been since he had the need to refine a poison recipe. From his heart, came an unspeakable sensation that was familiar and melancholic. He could not help but relax and enjoy the process, he patiently explained to the monkey, the withered grass is called the terrified heart. Once it is ignited, it will give out a scent that will terrify anyone. Any bug that may be sleeping soundly will be immediately awakened. The dried bee is called the sweet-scented honeybee. Any worm, insect, ant, bird or beast will not be able to resist its sweet honey scent. The tree leaf is called the bewitching eye. It will mercilessly enchant anyone who comes into contact with it. The monkey listened to Wen Leong's explanation with great interest. It could not help but ask Wen Leong, where can I obtain these items? Wen Leong scoffed and laughed, he answered, you will not be able to obtain these items easily anywhere. These things are made through long and hard labor. Take for example the sweet-scented honeybee. It comes from a bee that has fed on royal jelly for six full years. It can only eat the royal jelly secreted and produced by the queen bee. The monkey nodded but there was something strange about Wen Liang's explanation. It then shook its head. That's not right. A honeybee doesn't take that long before becoming fully grown. How will the queen bee continue to feed it royal jelly then? Also, Bees do not live up to six years neither does the queen bee right? Wen Leong burst out laughing. Of course they don't live that long. That is why we will have to employ a special recipe to allow the queen bee to live longer and keep the young larvae from modeling. Only after the young larvae has been fed six years worth of royal jelly, we will then change the recipe again, allowing the larvae to turn into adult bees in just three days. Then, we will have successfully refined the sweet-scented honeybee. The recipes used can't be easily explained in one or two sentences. Even if everything goes smoothly in the beginning, we still need to be careful during the refinement process. We only feed the bees dues collected within the hour, distributing them out to three honeycombs that are located in the wild mountain peaks and using lots of honeydew in short, it's an extremely troublesome process. The monkey stared at one Leong in bewilderment and shook its head. It stretched out its hand and pointed towards the red-colored powder. What is this then? Wen Leong swelled with pride. It's just plain chili powder. Combine this with the terrified heart, the sweet-scented honeybee, and the bewitching eye, it will lure every single bug out of hiding. The combination isn't toxic. However, once I add in a little bit of chili powder he he his hand opened and closed abruptly. He nodded satisfactorily. It is done. This recipe is called the enchanting soul. Qin Zhui and the rest only arrived then. Upon seeing Wen Leong unharmed and chatting with the monkey in a carefree manner, they heaved a long sigh of relief. When Leong had rubbed the materials into a fine powder between his palms he took out a fist-sized jade pot from his leather bag and carefully poured the powder into the pot. He selected a location and put the pot down on the ground. Wen Leong then proceeded to heat the pot. 
The monkey raised its nose to the air and took a whiff before asking Wen Leong suspiciously, why do I not detect any smell? Wen Leong laughed slyly. It is meant for bugs, not monkeys. When the jade pot was sufficiently heated, the blood and flesh swap suddenly became agitated. In a heartbeat, countless gigantic dung beetle bore out of the decaying flesh, one after the other and made a mad dash for the pot. The beetles paid no attention to Wen Leong and the rest. Every single bug that made their way towards the pot looked like they were suddenly overcome with seizures. They squeaked and squealed in agony as they withered on the spot. Their six, powerful legs shook madly, followed by a gushing of yellow-green pus from their mouths. The dung beetles fell dead. Living beetles took up position behind their fallen comrades. They merely stepped over the dead corpses, still attempting to get to the jade pot. The entire episode took place in just a few minutes. Hundreds of beetle corpses piled up around the pot. The enchanting soul poison in the pot eventually evaporated into nothingness from the heat. The giant dung beetles that had exited from the decaying flesh and had yet to die shook their heads. The remaining beetles broke out of their trance. They turned and surrounded the group, malicious intent dripping off of them. The monkey's eyes filled with excitement. It raised its head and looked at Wen Leong, continue. Wen Leong chuckled and shook his head. Give us the story first. He raised up his metal poison stream from under his feet and dispersed the beetles before bending over to retrieve the jade pot. The reason he was so patient earlier, slowing explaining the wonders of the Wen family poison recipe was so that so could reminisce. And more importantly, let the monkey understand the complicated process better so that the monkey would feel confident in his skill. There were millions of giant dung beetles in here, depending solely on the medicinal herbs on Wen Leong would be far from enough. The red monkey did not seem disappointed, in fact, he seemed glad. It burst out laughing as it tugged at Wen Leong's wrist again. We shall talk about this after we return to the better ground. It spread its legs and ran back towards Gu Xiaojun and the giant pangolin. Qin Zhui, the head lama, and the Taoist priest groaned as they turned around and chased after them once more. Gu Xiaojun was getting nervous from the wait. Suddenly, a blur ran past him. The monkey had returned with Wen Leong right behind him. After a while, Rang Yong, Qin Zhui and the rest reached as well, panting laboriously. The monkey's mood had become elated after having witnessed Wen Leong's miraculous method of killing the beetles. It scratched its ears and cheeks non-stop, beaming in joy. Qin Zhui was angry from having to run back and forth. He stared at the monkey with an unpleasant expression. Hey monkey, now that you have seen our plan to kill the bugs, you ought to tell us your story right about now. The red monkey nodded delightedly. I was human initially, my given name was the monkey grew silent. The event had taken place so long ago that it had forgotten its own name. The monkey's face took on an agonized expression. It stretched out a finger and wrapped it against his forehead. Nobody dared to make a sound. A few minutes later, a joyful look spread across the monkey's face, it burst out laughing. Qian Ren. My given name was Qian Ren. The sound of its violent and wild laugh gradually faded away. The monkey's expression turned mournful, even pitiful. It continued, I was living in seclusion and was practicing in the ending cave in Mount Hua. I have lost count of the numbers of years since then. The monkey rolled its golden-colored eyeballs towards the group. Have any of you ever heard of the Ending Cave? The dwarf Taoist priest was directly descended from a famous sect and had a profound knowledge in the history of magic. He nodded upon hearing the monkey's words. Mount Hua's ending CAE is the same as the Chilean Mountain's gold-consuming lair. It is one of the five perfect, elemental lands. The gold-consuming layer was bound to the metal element while the ending cave was of the wood element. What a waste though the dwarf Taoist priest's expression turned into one of pity. It is now deserted. The monkey named Xian Ren peered at the dwarf Taoist priest, trying to appraise the priest. It seems that you, little child, knows quite a bit. The dwarf Taoist priest sneered nastily at the monkey. The rest of their faces grew odd, desperately trying to resist the urge to laugh. Xian Ren continued, I did not care for worldly affairs. 
I concentrated only in the cultivation of my wood element magic in the ending cave in there, nothing could distract me from my craft. However, I was dissatisfied with my progress, I had hoped that I could improve faster. I was already in the ending cave, the task to find an even better wood element conductor proved to be difficult. Qin Zhui who stood at the side shook his head in a disapproving manner. You are a senior from a line of obscure practitioners. How do you not understand that any engagement in heaven's power should be done in a gradual manner? An impatient heart will only accomplish the opposite. Monkey, even I am waiting to reach the peak of my powers, before he could finish his sentence, a sharp howl exploded from the red monkey Qian Ren's mouth, a red shadow flew towards Qin Zhui. The monkey raised its fists and started pounding on Qin Zhui's chest. Qin Zhui screamed out in pain. He did not even have time to react before he was struck by heavy blows from the monkey. He fell to the ground. When Leong and the rest turned pale from fear. Some of them tried to assist Qin Zhui, launching their powers and pounced towards the monkey. Old Gu stomped his foot in rage, he cursed at the giant pangolin in his heart. With all this fighting, how could he not step in? Fortunately, Qin Ji was not severely injured. He turned around and leapt up. He raised his knife and was about to dash forward to fight when he saw that the red monkey had returned to its spot, hands clasped behind its back. It paid utterly no attention to the few master cultivators who were staring at it in contempt, merely telling them in an icy tone. Earlier it was fine that all of you were addressing me by the name of monkey but now that you know my name, if you dare call me a monkey again, I will make sure to rip your corpse into a million pieces after you're dead. It raised its head and shot its gaze at Qin Zhui. When Qin Zhui heard Qian Ren's words, he was stunned. He lowered his tang knife and sniggered. Sorry, it was my fault. You had every right to hit me. Qin Zhui may be an honest and straightforward person with a simple mind but he was also reasonable. The red monkey Qian Ren waved its hand. Forget about it. It continued, back then, I had a close friend. His name was Kong Nuer. Qian Ren took a long while to recall his friend's name but upon mentioning it, he did not hesitate at all. That proved that they had a most intimate friendship. The ending cave had been the same as the gold-consuming lair. Both of these places were lands where the purest energy of the five elements gathered. Qian Ren was an obscure practitioner but the fact that he had cultivated in a treasured land of the wood element like the ending cave, his supernatural powers must be unspeakably high. He had no concern for the rest of the world. Other than the other practitioner known as Kong Nuer, he had no other relatives or friends. His entire heart and mind were devoted to the refinement of his practice. Despite taking up residence in the land of the wood element like Ending Cave, Qian Ren was still unsatisfied with his progress. He made every effort to search for other methods that may have assisted him in improving his powers. One day, Kong Nuer paid him a visit, bringing with him a piece of Gomang seed. The dwarf Taoist priest gaze turned into one of shock as he asked the red monkey Qian Ren in earnest, was it truly the seed of Gomang? Qian Ren's expression grew puzzled. It looked towards the Taoist priest as it asked, are you talking to me? The Taoist priest's gaze was not looking straight at Qian Ren but was looking away from its face at a 30 degree angle instead, seeming to look away in the distance. When Leong inquired, what is Gomang's seed? Go Mang is known as the Eastern Wood Deity. The Taoist priest's tone of speaking sounded like he was dreaming. His entire person was completely enraptured by the thought of this precious seed of Go Mang. Go Mang was a legendary deity. He was in charge of the world's wood element. Before he achieved mastery in his practice, he stood as an immortal tree in the land of sunrise. The seed of Go Mang is said to be a seed from this immortal tree. When Leong smiled weirdly. The Taoist priest's other words were reliable but when Leong was not sure about this land of sunrise. The red monkey paid no attention to Wen Leong's turn of expression as it continued, no one has ever seen Guomang's seed. No one knows if the deity was even real or not but the seed that was brought to me by Kong Nuer was as flawless as jade and glowed with immortal radiance. The moment the seed entered the ending cave, the ancient trees that blocked the sky all bowed in submission towards the seed. I used my physic abilities and prodded into its depths. 
the power of the wood element contained within it was as pure as the sky and as vast as the sea. Qin Zhui's expression turned peculiar. He hesitated as he interrupted the red monkey Qian Ren in his retelling, Mon, Qian Ren, there is something I do not know if I should say aloud. He hastily continued, forgetting all pretense of courtesy from earlier. If this Guomang seed was truly a rare artifact that was so hard to find, why would Kong Nuer just gift it to you? Qin Zhui shut up then. He knew his silence spoke louder than his voice at that moment. Qian Ren revealed a smile, as if he was expecting that very question. Firstly, Kong Nuer was my only intimate friend. Secondly, Kong Nuer cultivated in the art of heaven and earth, he studied the stars and its positions, watched the sun and moons crossing through the skies. My studies were important to him. Thirdly He. When this Go Mang seed is placed right in front of your face, how could anyone not be attracted to it? Naturally, he would think of the best way for this seed's power to be utilized. Qin Zhui sniggered. After being punched by Qian Ren, he felt something akin to friendliness this monkey. Why do you even bother to mention this in relation to me? This matter is unrelated to me. Please, continue. Red monkey Qian Ren inhaled a deep breath, trying very hard to control the excitement in its heart. I was disappointed by the slow progress of my practice. Upon seeing such a treasure before my eyes, I did not care for anything else. I could not express to Kong Nuer how grateful I was for his gift, I would have given him my life if he had asked for it. Qian Ren was not a crude or impetuous man. After receiving the Gomang seed, he made sure to study the treasure thoroughly. He confirmed that the seed contained the purest and the most intense power of the wood element. Drawing on its powers should only prove advantageous to him with no drawbacks or side effects. He started to siphon power from Gomang seed in an effort to refine his own body. With the extra power from Gomang seed, Qian Ren made vast improvements in his practice far faster than ever before. It had turned out even better than he had hoped, he was delighted. He promised himself that he would pluck a star from the sky and gift it to his best friend when he finally ascends to heaven as an immortal one day, he lost control of the seed. He could not stem the flow of power from the spiritual seed, it overflowed like the great ocean. There was utterly no way to stop the flow of overwhelming power as it surged into his body. Within a night, the entire force contained within the treasured seed had been forcefully stuffed into Qian Ren's body. The whole group which was was made out of magic experts, apart from Gu Xiaojun, was shocked upon hearing this. There should only be one outcome of such an event. Anyone who absorbed such an overwhelming load of power would explode and die, not even his ashes would remain. In the eyes of the group, the red monkey's smile translated into unspeakable ghastliness. Qian Ren's body could not contain the tremendous force flowing into him from the seed but he was still a top practitioner with many skills. He dominated the entire wood element magic scene. Despite being under such agony from the seed's power. He managed to launch a spell which combined his physical body to the ending cave he hoped that the boundless magic in the ending cave would help him to exhaust and absorb the power of Go Mang's seed and save him. The forest around the ending cave grew in size overnight, almost swallowing half of Mount Hua. The winds and clouds glowed with strange colors, gigantic rocks were smashed apart by the rapidly growing trees. Mountain creeks and waterfalls were buried under curtains of long, wild grass. The immortal trees in the sacred land burst forth and up to the heavens. Most of the power in Go Mang's seed had successfully been transferred into the ending cave but a small sliver still remained within Qian Ren's body. Qian Ren had utterly no way to extract the immortal power from himself and it ate away at his body. It would take about three months, maybe even six, before his body wasted away. When Qian Ren could no longer suppress the immortal power, he would then close his eyes and accept his death. Qian Ren had failed in using the power within the Go Mang seed for his refinement. On the contrary, he suffered great losses because of it. He had yet to acquire the level of mastery he needed to become an immortal, and now, he only had a few months left to live. The ending cave, that was flowing with pure wood magic, had rapidly grown overnight. This explosion of spiritual energy startled every practitioner in the magical realm. Everyone thought that the phenomenon on Mount Hua signaled the rebirth of a heavenly treasure. 
master practitioners from all over the world made their way hastily over to Mount Hua. Even some unorthodox practitioners arrived, like flocks of migrating birds. They hoped to use the power for their own selfish means and gains. After suffering greatly from this event, Qian Ren became ruthless and tyrannical. He could not stand anyone stepping onto his Mount Hua and killed anyone who dared to do so. Back in the present, the red monkey Qian Ren laughed maniacally. Even though I had been harmed by the spiritual seed and suffered greatly, at least I gained something out of it. The ending cave had grown enormous from all the power of Go Mang's seed and my body was now one with this place. I had unintentionally bound my life force to the ending cave if I were to die, the ending cave would wither away in the blink of an eye. It paused for a moment before repeating in a hoarse and strained voice. If I were to die, that place would surely die along with me. Ha! The sound of Qian Ren's laughter was ecstatic and wild. Chapter 193 Many moons have passed since the events on Mount Hua has taken place. There was no way to prove the degree of authenticity to any of the monkey's claims. Master cultivators from every sect in the world had rushed over to Mount Hua. Even with the power of the ending cave behind him, Qian Ren soon became exhausted from killing everyone who came. Back in ancient times when the cultivation in heaven's powers was flourishing, there had been many practitioners in the world. Even if there were a hundred Qian Rens, they would not have been able to kill off all the cultivators that were coming in droves. Just as he had exhausted all his power and was awaiting death, preparing to perish together with the entire ending cave, Kong Nu'er who had brought him the spiritual seed came. When the two best friends met, they embraced and cried bitterly. Kong Nu'er thumped his chest and cried in regret. Despite turning into a ruthless and tyrannical person, Qian Ren never once blamed his best friend for what happened. Qian Ren had a profound cultivation base and Kong Nu'er was his most intimate friend. Kong Nu'er's supernatural powers were no less inferior to Qian Ren's. A large group of practitioners whom he had never met before had arrived with Kong Nu'er. With their help, Qian Ren managed to hang on to his life just a little longer. Despite his best efforts in guarding the cave, Qian Ren was only awaiting his death. Two months passed, Kong Nu'er who had come to the mountain to help kill the enemies, approached Qian Ren in a pleasant manner. He presented to Qian Ren, who was desperately trying to suppress the divine power in his body, a roll of bamboo slips that he had found on an enemy's corpse. The red monkey Qian Ren's voice was deep and hoarse, it echoed through the giant beast corpse. His voice was not joyous nor dispirited but within his flat and dull tone, there was a hidden power capable of shattering the world. On the bamboo strips were recordings regarding the whereabouts of a strange beast, hidden in the western regions. This rare beast ha ha. 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 What a shame, at that moment, I still thought Kong Nu'er was trying to do good by me. What a shame that I did not see through Kong Nu'er's cruel and malicious intention. Qin Zhui grew bored of the monkey's long-winded story. Qian Ren laughed with almost every sentence he spoke. Qin Zhui shook his head and interrupted the monkey. It was you that met with an accident while trying to harness the seed's power. It was you who had made a mistake, probably due to your lack of understanding in divine energy. You shouldn't blame your mistake on your friend. The red monkey raised its head and started to laugh wildly and bitterly. Of course I do not blame Kong Nu'er, I still regarded him as my best friend at that time. When he rushed over to my aid, I wailed bitterly to him. I pointed to the brightest star in the sky and told him that I had wanted to become an immortal and pluck that star as a gift to him. The red monkey's eyes were bloodshot, almost squeezing out tears of blood. Its laughter pierced everyone's eardrums, like sharp knives. The laughing went on and on. Qian Ren suddenly started to pull out his own fur, scratching wildly at his body and drawing blood. Before long, his body was covered in fur matted with blood. The strange beast in the west that had been recorded on the bamboo strips, is me, the golden monkey. Even had Lama Rangyong and the dwarf Taoist priest, who had extensive knowledge of magical creatures, have never heard of this golden monkey. Everyone just stood and stared at one another. They knew that an important twist was about to come to light. The implications of this event should reveal how the Qian Ren turned from a human into a monkey. 
Over the millenniums of fighting over extraordinary treasures, practitioners all over had created infinite enmity between one another. Through Qian Ren's doing, he had laid the foundation for a bloodbath around the ending cave as this event was caused by the enmity between practitioners and did not involve ordinary people, King Geezer did not intervene. That was why there was no mention of King Geezer ever having stepped foot on Mount Hua in folk legends. Qian Ren finally stopped laughing. His tone returned to its prior dullness but a faint hint of bitterness still remained. The golden monkey is a strange beast connected to the metal element. It does not possess any supernatural powers but its body was said to be unimaginably tough. The golden monkey is also rumored to be cruel and cunning but the creature was only an ancient legend. I had never thought I would come across a recording of it. I at first did not think much of this monkey but Kong Newer helped me he he. That's right, he helped me. He helped me to see an almost unimaginable plan. Amongst the five elements, hardness would triumph over softness. Following that, the metal element should be able to tame the wood element. Qian Ren was about to explode and die due to the divine wood elemental powers trapped in his body. The golden monkey, which was extremely rare, was a strange beast possessing metal elements. Kong Nuer thought up a method to enter the body. Qin Zhui's jaw dropped in astonishment. What do you mean enter the body? A ghastly smile appeared on the red monkey's face. That means to fuse with the golden monkey's body. Qin Zhui felt confused, he could not understand Qian Ren. He asked probingly, is it is it the act of taking over the monkey's body? Qian Ren shook his head. No no. The act of taking over a body would mean using one's primordial spirit to seize control over the other. Firstly, your old man here has never cultivated the practice of the primordial spirit. Secondly, there was an accumulation of power attached to my soul that could not be controlled. Not only would it be impossible for me to seize the other body, but it'd be useless as well. In order for me to retain my life, your old man must protect his human body. Qin Zhui grew agitated, he shook his head and said, Stop referring to yourself as old man, you old man. Otherwise, this old man here will start referring to myself as old man while speaking to you, old man. The red monkey Qian Ren laughed out loud. He did not waste time bickering with Qin Zhui over this trivial matter. Kong Nuer was referring to a spell known as Enter the Body. It's a spell that would merge my human body with the body of the golden monkey. The monkey possessed high amounts of metal elemental energy that should be capable of dissolving the overflowing wood magic within me. Qin Zhui was still dissatisfied despite the monkey's explanation. He gestured at Qian Ren. You must have been a regular-sized human. How did you merge with the body of a small monkey? He suddenly recalled something and glanced at the dwarf Taoist priest, a cheeky grin spread across his face. He then looked towards the red monkey again and asked, when you were a human, how tall were you? The dwarf Taoist turned green in rage, he stared at Gu Xiaojun with the wrath to match a god, if you and I survive this to see the day of light, I will certainly challenge your magic to its limits. Gu Xiaojun didn't know how to react. He waved his hands. You weren't talking to me right? Of course not, I was talking to the ugly monster. The priest's gaze shifted to head Lama Rangyong as he spoke to Gu Xiaojun. Whether it was in Taoist magic spells, science, technology, or academics, there is only one determining factor in the process of evolution. Practicality Magic spells from ancient times lacked in strength when compared to the arts of the future generation but spells had been more abundant in nature and had many more functions. Majority of those spells grew out of favor for being useless in facing an enemy or to one's practice. These tricks were lost through the generations. That was why the act of entering the body, mentioned by the red monkey Qian Ren was unknown to even the leading master cultivators of today's world. Rang Yong, the dwarf Taoist priest and Qin Zhui could not understand it. Back then, the enter the body magic spell was a dangerous one but it was not impossible. Qian Ren, who had only a few months left to live, read the bamboo strips and listened to Kong Nuer's plan. He did not have much faith in the plan. He was an elite practitioner, he had no qualms whether he remained human or became a demon. In his goal to achieve immortality, 
he was willing to turn over every piece of cow dung in order to continue his practice but to fuse with the creature like the golden monkey, that sounded like an impossible plan. The chance of this monkey's existence was also very low. However, after much persuasion from Kong Nuer, which Qian Ren thought was his friend trying to make up for his actions, Qian Ren agreed to Kong Nuer's plan. He left Mount Hua with Kong Nuer. They traveled a long way to the western regions while the group of practitioners which had been brought over by Kong Nuer stayed behind and guarded his house in the ending cave. The red monkey Qian Ren said gravely to Qin Zhui, I told Kong Nuer that even if I were to die, I wanted to die in the ending cave. Defying Qian Ren's expectations, they got lucky upon arriving in the western regions. After going through a few twists and turns, they managed to capture the golden monkey with surprising ease. Kong Nuer laid down a magic altar and launched the magic spell that same night. He expertly refined Qian Ren's body into the golden monkey. The creature that stood in front of them was still a monkey though. Even though the group could guess the ending to that story, they could not help but feel a little astonished. How did such a huge human turn into a golden monkey? Qin Zhui suddenly asked a totally unrelated question, the golden monkey but you are red in color. When Leong quickly took a step forward to Qin Zhui, afraid that the monkey might get angry and punch Qin Zhui again. Unexpectedly, Qian Ren burst out laughing. It explained to Qin Zhui calmly, it was originally gold in color but it turned red. Qin Zhui decided to drop the issue of how the gold-colored monkey turned red for now. He diverted the topic. Even though you had turned you did manage to save your life right? The golden monkey is a spiritual creature and if you had sincerely picked up your practice again, perhaps you could have achieved some level of power. You can't just blame everything on Kong Nua right? Qian Ren, who had been agitated and angry earlier, suddenly sounded really tired. Its voice and tone of speaking had become calm. It pondered for a moment before it looked towards ugly Qin Zhui and laughed, I noticed something. You seem eager to know how Kong Nuer betrayed me. Qin Zhui laughed in embarrassment. He scratched his head and changed to a new question. I do not know of this enter the body spell but I guess it should be magic from a demon sect or a death sect. I thought you said that Kong Nuer cultivated the power of the sun and moon, yet he knew how to perform this spell. Did you not think that that was suspicious? The red monkey joined in on Qin Zhui's laughter, much to everyone's surprise. It seems that the monkey had taken a fancy to this honest, straightforward, ugly-looking youth. It's not just the spell, but also how we found and captured the golden monkey so easily. These were all indeed suspicious. Kong Nuer was my best friend though and I chided myself that I could even suspect him of anything. Thinking back now, I was being foolish. What a fool I was. The monkey's laughter continued. There was hatred nor joy in its laughter, just hollow, dry emptiness. I had not expected it. After I was refined into the monkey's body, I could not perform my magic anymore because Qian Ren's expression was dull. From the moment I entered the body, I became the monkey while the monkey remained a monkey. Qian Ren was a monkey, while the monkey remained a monkey. Qian Ren's laughter was cold and flat, yet it condensed and did not fade, echoing next to everyone's ears. What sort of creature was the golden monkey? It is a spiritual being that born of the world's metal energy. Even though I entered the body, I had no control over it. I couldn't find a way to control its movements. I was just like a parasite that had merged with its blood vessels, only barely retaining my primordial spirit. When Leong and the rest were dumbstruck, barely comprehending the story. A distinguished magic practitioner had turned into a monkey and could not control the body he went into. He could only watch as he turned into a beast. This was certainly a first-rate tragedy. Qin Zhui's expression turned pale along with the monkey's laughter. If it was true that Kong Nuer had wanted to harm you, what was his purpose in doing so? Qian Ren took his time before it continued, this golden monkey was the purest embodiment of the metal element. I was refined by Kong Nuer's spell into its body. The monkey's body cut off my spiritual ties to Mount Hua's ending cave. Qin Zhui opened his mouth to speak but Qian Ren simply shook its head towards him. It was cut off, not destroyed. 
From then on, I was simply the golden monkey and the ending cave just became the ending cave even if I were to die thousands of times over. The ending cave would not be affected the monkey walked to Qin Zhui, raised its head and stared straight into the man's eyes. Now, do you understand the purpose of Kong Nuer's betrayal? The red monkey did not bother with waiting for answering, simply turned tail and walked away with its hands clasped behind its back. As it turned around, it held not the appearance of a wild monster, but instead was like a loneliest old man in the world. When Liang's face too held an unpleasant expression. He inhaled a long breath and murmured, Kong Nuer was trying to seize your wood elemental land, the ending cave. The red monkey Qian Ren whipped around, its expression regaining its previous savageness. That's right. After I had entered the body, Kong Nuer suddenly knelt in front of me and told me the whole story. He disclosed the whole secret, leaving nothing out. He had orchestrated everything, from beginning to end. This malicious bastard, he schemed against me and took from me the land of the wood element. Every word Qian Ren uttered were pulverized by this teeth and then squeezed out from between his teeth gaps. They were so full of poisonous enmity that it could have smashed bones and broken the spirit of any man. When he gifted me with the seed of Go Mang, he had already predicted that I would end up in a bad situation. After Qian Ren entered the body, he became the golden monkey. Despite being able to listen and understand everything around him, he could not control the monkey's body. It was only then that Kong Nuer explained the truth to him. When Kong Nuer had gifted Qian Ren with Go Mang's seed, he knew that Qian Ren would try to use its power and would lose control eventually. He predicted that Qian Ren would depend on his wood element practice and transmit the gush of power into the ending cave Kong Nuer had just been using Qian Ren as a conductor. He had wanted to trigger the growth of the ending cave using the power of the spiritual seed. Qian Ren was unaware of Kong Nuer's true intentions. He had been completely deceived. The ending cave may have grown exponentially but the cave's spiritual roots were now tied to Qian Ren's life force. The ending cave would wither away the moment Qian Ren died. Kong Nuer had even expected this. Before giving the seed to Qian Ren, he had led his fellow practitioners and prepared for various setbacks. They had already found and prepared the golden monkey beforehand, then helped the severely injured and dying Qian Ren in defeating the incoming practitioners, then slipped in the prepared bamboo slips to Qian Ren, urging him to go to the west. When they reached the western regions, the golden monkey had already been prepared and was easily found. Kong Nuer immediately launched the magic spell and refined his body into the creature. The monkey's metal element energy successfully cut off Qian Ren's body to the ending cave everything had fallen into place. Everything had been planned laboriously by Kong Nuer, just to seize Qian Ren's pure wood element land. The red monkey Qian Ren finally finished his story, of how he had turned from a man into a monkey. When Leung, Qin Zhui, and the head lama Rangyong looked solemn. Kong Nuer was a dark and evil person with sinister intentions. He deserved to be killed. Suddenly, a loud panting sound was heard. The sound echoed all around them. The panting sounded like a pair of bellow working hard at a forge, forceful and strong. Even when Leung who had the lung capacity ten times the average person was incapable of panting so loudly. When Leung and the rest were puzzled. A thunderous, raging roar suddenly sounded out. I am so mad right now. The giant pangolin, that had been lying motionless on the ground, suddenly jumped up. Its eyes were bloodshot and the scales on its body stood on end. It appeared to be shimmering with overwhelming heavenly power. Everyone there including the red monkey was startled. Only Gu Xiaojun stomped his feet and cursed, you who can't even clamp a jujube fruit in a monkey's buttocks. You reveal yourself just because of this insignificant matter. The giant pangolin's pointy head shuddered. Its voice was more startling than a clap of thunder. I couldn't stand it anymore. How could there exist such a vile and malicious bastard? scheming against his own friend and taking away their treasured land and immortal cave. He even willingly turned his friend into a monkey. A man of such vicious motives, I will kill him if I ever see him. The divine beast of the immortal sect had a hot temper. The red monkey tilted its head, sizing put two up and down in glee. It spoke in a peculiar tone. One could not tell if it was a mocking tone, contempt or rage. 
I can't believe you were just feigning a coma and I fell for it. Well done, well done. It then shot its gaze towards Gu Xiaojun. What does you who can't even clamp a jujube fruit in a monkey's buttocks mean? Gu Xiaojun quickly took two steps back and hid behind the other master cultivators. He cautiously said, it means it means that the dog's stomach that can't even hide 100 grams of butter. Qin Zhui scoffed, he did not expect Gu Xiaojun to know so many witty remarks. He frowned as he refocused the topic. He asked Qian Ren, were you trapped in this monster's body by Kong Nuer? The head lama Renyong exploded in anger at this question. Shut up! How dare you say that the pious deed of King Geezer is Kong Nuer's doing? Qin Zhui realized he had asked the wrong question and had made the lama angry. He quickly switched to a new question. So how did you survive? Kong Nuer turned you into this, he could have easily just killed you and ended all his troubles. Why didn't he bother to do so? Qian Ren's face was filled with bitterness, its expression and gaze were poisonous but upon hearing Qin Zhui's question, its face softened and said joyously, how could he have killed me? I had already entered the golden monkey's body. He did not possess the ability to kill it. The golden monkey was the embodiment of the purest metal element in the world. Who would be capable of killing it? Kong Nuer was aware that I could not control the monkey as well. He knew that I would not be able to seek revenge against him. After he had successfully used the monkey in cutting my ties to the ending cave, he let the monkey go. At this point, Gu Xiaojun frowned and asked, what use would it be for Kong Nuer to take over your ending cave? It's not like he was cultivating in wood element magic. Qin Zhui thought this was a silly question. Even if he did not practice wood element magic, a land with the purest form of any element would greatly improve anyone's magic practice. My own supernatural power of force also improved remarkably when I practiced in the gold-consuming lair. I did not cultivate the magic spells of the metal element. The red monkey Qian Ren shook its head. That is not completely correct. He had been my friend after all and I would never have rejected him if he had just wanted to practice in the ending cave he had used me to trigger the ending cave's growth. He told me the real reason he wanted to take over my ending cave was to use it to refine some sort of weapon. The human had already turned into a monkey. Upon hearing the first half of the story, Qin Zhui was already seething with rage. This did not stop his curiosity though. He urged Qian Ren to continue. So how did you end up in your current position? What is the deal with this gigantic beast corpse? Qian Ren had radiated with enmity while it spoke of Kong Nuer's betrayal. After it was done telling this portion of events, the monkey's story became much duller. In between the recounting of Kong Nuer's betrayal, the giant pangolin put too had revealed itself and messed up its own plan of attack. It was unknown whether these events had taken place millions or even eons ago, but the monkey had finally gotten its story off its chest. It smiled warmly at the group. I was fused with the monkey. Regardless of how I put it, my life was saved at last. The golden monkey's body really did help to dissolve the vast power of the wood element magic stuck in my body. Qian Ren had felt uncomfortable. The golden monkey, which now had the wood element magic mixed up in its body, felt uncomfortable as well. Even though it could dissolve the power, it would prove to be a slow and agonizing process. The battle between the purest powers of two opposing elements was blindingly painful, swallowing up the mind and breaking the bones. Monkey had frequent outbreaks of craziness whenever the powers clashed with each other. The golden monkey had been regarded as a hostile creature. Every time it went crazy, it would commit horrendous crimes and leave massive destruction in its wake. Qian Ren could do nothing but watch helplessly. Many years passed before the golden monkey came across a top elite with strong supernatural powers. This elite then decided to eliminate it. When Leung gulped and asked, was it King Geezer? Qian Ren shook its head. I do not know his name. Don't tell me when you're capturing a monkey, you will announce your name to it. The latter half of Qian Ren's story matched up with the epic of King Geezer that was told earlier by head Lama Renyong. After a series of laborious battles, the golden monkey had finally been captured by the master practitioner of the highlands but not before his 270 disciples had been lost. At this point, when Leung asked as if a letting go of a heavy burden, 
so what you're saying is the creature that had been wreaking havoc across the western region was actually the work of the golden monkey and not you? Qian Ren nodded. Of course. If I could control the monkey, I would not have allowed it to cause harm to others. I would have since figured out a way to get revenge against Kong Nuer. Head Lama Rangyong pondered before speaking in a low voice, how can you prove that it was really the golden monkey that King Geezer was trying to suppress and not you? Before they had descended through the mandala from the small town of Tuer, everyone already had preconceived ideas of what had happened. They had expected to find the evil monster of the evil cult here. However, upon hearing Monkey Qian Ren's story, they found his story a truly unprecedented tragedy. Even the giant pangolin, that had been force-fed bugs by the monkey, could not contain its rage. It may have been easy to convince the others but in the eyes of the head lama, this was a matter of life and death. He had planned on perishing together with this monster before he came down. It was impossible that he would let this evildoer go so easily. Qian Ren smiled viciously. The monkey clasped its hands behind its back and once more assumed the air of an erudite person. Why is there a need to prove anything? By the time this deal is over, you can go ahead and continue to think of me as the golden monkey. Come and try to kill me. Qin Zhui tugged at the head lama's robes lightly and pointed at the monkey with his chin. He used his finger and dipped his head, signaling that the monkey has gone through mental trauma and there was no use in debating with it. Head Lama Rangyong smiled as he said to Qian Ren, Please, go on. The ugly Qin Zhui nodded strenuously, That's right, that's right. Please continue. What's the story with this giant beast corpse, where did all those dung beetles come from, and how are you able to control the monkey now? Chapter, 194 A huge living human had been forcefully stuffed into the golden monkey's body using a magic spell. The clash of the purest powers of the metal and wood element in its body drove the already evil and cruel creature to new extremes. It started wreaking havoc all across the western region and had finally stoked the anger of a master cultivator. The story of the king's heroic deed in leading his loyal and brave warriors to capture the monkey had appeared briefly about 700 years ago, coinciding with when the Tibetan army was preparing to march on the town of Tuer. The divine singers that appeared before and after that event had never sang such a story before. All these matters were already past the point of verification, but whoever had come forth to kill the golden monkey, whether it truly was King Geezer or not, must certainly have been a kind-hearted and brave practitioner, his heart devoted to the well-being of the people of Earth. The master of the highland may have caught the monkey but he did not have the power to kill it. The golden monkey was born out of the world's metal element after all and it would take a huge amount of effort to take its life. Since there was no way to kill it, this highland practitioner came up with an idea. It decided to suppress and seal away the golden monkey instead. The master caught a dog-headed eagle of the fire element and sealed the golden monkey into the body of this creature. Back in ancient times, dog-headed eagles had been a part of massacres all over the western region. These monsters had a dog's head and an eagle's body came in various sizes. The smaller ones were sizes of bald eagles and fed on smaller animals. These creatures were cunning in nature but cowardly. Common folk did not fear them. The larger ones could block the skies and blot out the sun. They swallowed smoke and spat out fire, feeding on large pythons and even the occasional dragon. Considered spiritual beasts born of the fire element, even dragons would avoid the dog-headed eagles. The legend goes, if the golden-winged Depang that hated all evil were to come across these creatures, they would certainly kill it without a second thought. The red monkey Qian Ren jumped and stared straight at Qin Zhui as if confronting a formidable enemy. Now don't you go asking me where the cultivator had got a hold of dog-headed eagle. He did not say a word to me of his plan so I do not know where he found this creature. The dog-headed eagle was a strange beast belonging to the fire element and thus was perfect in restraining the golden monkey's sharp metal element. The dog-headed eagle's fire qualities did not equal the pureness of the monkey's metal element though. Even with this method of restraining, this prison would only hold the monkey for a few centuries. Sooner or later, the monkey would break free. The practitioner then employed another unique skill. He fused the golden monkey and the dog-headed eagle into one. 
This form of magic was similar to the enter the body spell used by Kong Nuer when refining Qian Ren into the monkey's body. The difference was that Qian Ren and the monkey's body had been completely fused together to become one while the golden monkey only became a part of the giant dog-headed eagle's body. The monkey still existed as itself and could move freely within the giant body but it would not be able to leave. When Leong and the others stood staring at each in wonder. They had just figured out, the giant corpse they were standing in was a giant monster that had the head of a dog and the body of an eagle. The dog-headed eagle was a wild and untamed monster but it was significantly easier to handle as compared to the golden monkey. The practitioner sealed away the dog-headed eagle, that was imprisoning the golden monkey, at the edge of Nadmso Lake. He channeled the pure water powers of the lake using the Tibetan Buddhism sect Mandala and shackled down the dog-headed eagle of the fire element. A human trapped inside the body of a monkey, which was trapped in the body of a giant bird, a giant bird with a dog's head. Breaking the wood element with the metal element, trapping the metal element with the fire element, and suppressing the fire element with the water element. Kong Nuer's evil scheme had triggered the growth and seized the ending cave from Qian Ren. Qian Ren had been sealed away by his best friend into the golden monkey's body. The golden monkey then created trouble across the western region. The Highland Master then trapped the golden monkey and had sealed it within the body of a dog-headed eagle of fire. Then using the water power element of Namso Lake, the cultivator had then grounded the dog-headed eagle the edge of the lake. The Tibetan Buddhism sect Mandala had been set up in the town and its residents had chosen to stay behind to guard it, giving up their chance at rebirth. The general picture had been painted clearly by the monkey Qian Ren but there were still a few holes left. How did the dung beetles get in and how was Qian Ren controlling the golden monkey now? Also, how was the small town of Tuer connected to the nine-headed snake? No one was thinking of those dung beetles at this moment though. When Leong and Gu Xiaojun have barely kept up with the sequence of events, even the magic history experts had trouble keeping up. The monkey shut up then, seeing that they were all clearly confused. It looked towards them and smiled, giving them time to digest all the information. Find authorized novels in Web Novel Faster Updates, Better Experience Please Click www. Web Novel. Calm for Visiting. After some time, the hideous Qin Zhui spoke cautiously, so all this there's something that we're not getting right. The monkey laughed loudly, its face filled with anticipation. Of course there's something you're not getting but you have to figure it out which part it is yourself. Wen Leong did not understand why Qian Ren was so friendly to his ugly friend. Qin Zhui rolled his eyes in thought. He pondered out loud, stuttering, the golden monkey had become a part of the dog-headed eagle's body. This magic spell is albeit amazing but there's a huge flaw in the master's plan. The monkey Qian Ren's eyes lit up. It gave out a shouted, roaring like thunder, continue, please. Qin Zhui puffed out his chest and continued as if he had suddenly glimpsed a spark of inspiration. The two beasts had existed in the same body. There may have been an inter-restricting factor between the five elements but the golden monkey is far stronger than the dog-headed eagle when comparing strength alone. The monkey would eventually rule take control of the other. The monkey may not be able to leave the dog-headed eagle's body but in reality, it had actually been positioned to take control of the eagle Qin Zhui stopped for a moment and thought his statement was misguided. He changed tack. No no the dog-headed eagle became the armor of the golden monkey. Whether dead or alive, its body which was initially its prison would later become the monkey's armor instead. The monkey Qian Ren looked to the sky and laughed, it was delighted. That is correct. You, my child, may be hideous but you have quite the inquisitive mind. It is not an eventuality though, it has been for a long time. Since a few centuries ago, the monkey had already gained control over the dog-headed eagle and just like you said, this eagle became the monkey's flesh armor from that point on. Qin Zhui seemed delighted that he had been acknowledged but he still had questions. What was the use for a suit of armor? The dog-headed eagle had been suppressed by the mandala seal powered by the lake Namso, the armor can't go anywhere, it was still trapped in a prison after all. In the learning atmosphere, the dwarf Taoist priest too temporarily forgot about the enmity between the two parties. The wood element in your body had been neutralized by the monkey while the fire element of the eagle, in turn, melted away the monkey's metal element. 
The giant eagle had been suppressed by the water of Natamso Lake though. If you wished to see the light of day again, you would have to first break the Mandala seal or destroy Natamso Lake. As long as the mandala remained, any other effort would be a waste of time. The monkey Qian Ren was unforgiving towards the dwarf Taoist priest. It glared at the priest with huge angry eyes. You are such a fool. The power of the fire element may appear in this realm in the form of flames but it is not the flames itself. The heavenly power of wood shelters itself in trees and grass but it the foliage itself isn't the wood power. When Leon was all muddled and confused when he heard that but the dwarf Taoist priest and Qin Zhui gradually came to understand. Qian Ren truly regarded itself as a teacher, treating the cross-eyed elder and the ugly youth in front of him as his disciples. The monkey breathed in deeply and slowed down his speech, explaining patiently. The inter-restriction of the five elements, I'll use the simplest example, water beats fire. Now, the water here is not actual water and fire isn't actually just fire. It only manifests itself in those forms but what we need to look at is the essence of these objects. The way that water restricts fire is not as simple as pouring a basin of water of fire to extinguish it. We should see it as the essence of water has the power to contain the essence of fire. Monkey Qian Ren paused, then his voice suddenly grew sonorous and forceful. Water may restrict fire but that does not mean that the Yin water had destroyed the Yang fire into nothingness. The Yang fire still exists, it only lost its material form and was melted into the water. The act of holding, that is the golden rule when we speak of inter-restriction. All of you here liken inter-restriction to simply a power being destroyed but what about the inter-promotion between the five elements? The monkey's sharp metal dissolved the wood element in my body but this did not destroy its power, instead, absorbing the power into itself. The wood element lost its material form and from then on, posed no more harm to me. Do you understand now? Old Gu and Wen Leong did not understand the monkey's long explanation. They stood around feeling embarrassed, trying to play it off by busying with their clothes. The few other practitioners, including the giant pangolin, were ghastly pale. Their eyes filled with intense disbelief. The ancient books and recordings that they had been studying all their lives, the principles that had been passed down by their teachers and seniors, had only spoken of the inter-restriction of the five elements as one element destroying the other. Qian Ren's claim shattered their whole understanding of the five elements, it blinded them all. A crucial point drifted before their eyes but they could not find it in themselves to grasp it fully. It was Gu Xiaojun who finally broke the silence. He said to the monkey Qian Ren, I think it's best if you just continue with your story first. As for the principle of the five elements, we will try to comprehend it slowly. Qian Ren looked towards the glazed-eyed looking group before it, all feelings of enthusiasm from before was gone. With a, he, it waved its hands and tried to rouse the group. Everyone. Stop thinking now. If you get possessed with figuring this out, the old man will have to waste time in healing you later. The practitioner had drawn upon the water element of the sacred lake using the Tibetan Buddhism sect mandala but this was only a temporary measure. At most, it would only hold for a few millenniums but sooner or later, the monkey would have broken out of the prison after having gained control of the giant bird. By the time the monkey had gained control over the giant bird, Qian Ren's wood element, the gold monkey's metal element, and the dog-headed eagle's fire element had fused and converged into the body of the giant bird. This would have severely changed its level of power, making this beast now stronger than ever before. No matter how powerful the water element of Lake Nadmso was, it would not have been able to withstand the combined forces of the other three elements. The monkey Qian then chuckled. The Highland Master had already taken into account all these things. He predicted that the monkey would gain complete control of the giant eagle's body and the bird would be dead by then. The dog-headed eagle was a spiritual beast of the fire element though and its corpse would never decay. That was why when he sealed away the dog-headed eagle, he simultaneously cast another spell that sealed in a strange species of dung beetles in with the giant bird. Upon the death of the dog-headed eagle, the dung beetles would then be released upon its decaying corpse. The dung beetles would then make quick work of the corpse, tearing away the flesh and leaving only bone but new flesh was always growing. The dog-headed eagle corpse would go through this cycle, again and again, 
being chewed into nothingness and then regrowing new flesh. Over and over this process repeated itself over many centuries. Meanwhile, the monkey that had been fused to the bird could not gather enough strength to break through the mandala seal. The pangolin patu had only been captured by the monkey because it had unknowingly entered the body of the dog-headed eagle. The monkey Qian Ren may not have possessed any powers outside of the giant's body but within it, it had no equal. This time, everyone understood the chain of events. Everyone wore an expression of shock. They were in awe and astonished at the Highland Master's thorough plan of action. The Master Cultivator had employed two methods in his plan to suppress the monkey. He had drawn upon the power of the sacred lake into the town of Tuer and created the seal. This was meant to shackle the dog-headed eagle while it was still alive. After the monkey has gained complete control over the bird's body and the flesh armor was dead, phase two would be launched. The dung beetles would be released and they would start chewing away on the corpse, rendering the flesh armor of the monkey useless. In truth, the mandala seal in the town of Tuer had been useless for years. The true shackles that kept the creature down were the countless amount of dung beetles. Qin Zhui may not have understood the principle of the five elements which Qian Ren was trying to explain earlier but he did understand this part. He stretched out a finger and pointed to Qian Ren, so tell us, how are you controlling the monkey's body now? Qian Ren's head bobbed up and down as it laughed. I too thought that I would never see the light of day ever again. The golden monkey was by right a spiritual creature, born of the metal element. It was born out of the power of heaven and earth and was never supposed to leave its spiritual home. Upon being sealed into this void and away from the energy source of its primordial spirit, the monkey's soul was severely injured. Over the many years it was locked away, its spirit gradually withered and faded away into nothingness. What was left was a body without a master which naturally became mine. This ending, neither Kong Nuer nor the master practitioner would have been able to predict it. Qian Ren had been sealed away into the monkey and the monkey, in turn, had been sealed into the dog-headed eagle. Many years passed and the monkey finally gained control over the dog-headed eagle, and now Qian Ren controlled the monkey. The golden monkey which had originally been gold in color had turned red, due to the convergence of water, fire, metal, and wood elemental magic in its body. The creature that stood in front of them currently had red fur and golden eyes. The giant pangolin patu was a burly creature with a square, wide face. It tossed about its thick, huge tail as he studied the monkey carefully. It exhaled a long breath as if relieved. The pangolin's message was obvious enough. The monkey's transformation was quite favorable, even pretty. It was certainly better than having a tuft of red fur here, a tuft of yellow there, than another tuft in green. Qin Zhui laughed as he shook his head. He concluded, so, a thousand years later, the story finally comes to an end huh? The monkey Qian Ren had been through a great ordeal. He was first harmed by his best friend Kong Nuer through a series of evil schemes. Kong Nuer then had turned him into a parasite in the body of a monkey. After that, the monkey had been caught and captured by the master practitioner of the highland, firmly sealed away. Qian Ren then finally managed to gain control over the monkey and the bird but he still went through days and nights of endless torture from the dung beetles chewing on its flesh. The monkey Qian Ren unconsciously stretched out its claws and scratched its neck a few times. After a few moments, it stopped and chuckled. I've been in this monkey's body for too long. I seem to have picked up some of its bad habits. When I saw the giant pangolin pass by, I couldn't help myself. If I was in my right mind, I would not have captured it or forced it to eat bugs. The pangolin spat on the ground in fury, asking in a low growl, those bugs, why don't you catch them yourself? Once you've caught them all, you could. Qian Ren interrupted the pangolin, its face squeezed into a hideous smile. The dog-headed eagle corpse is a part of me, its flesh is my flesh. It certainly would not be difficult for me to kill one or two bugs but if you expect me to bore into my own skin and bones to kill off thousands and then find their eggs and obliterate those, you must be crazy. Qian Ren was just a monkey but even if it had been an immortal monkey, he would not necessarily have the ability to part his own flesh and catch all the bugs and dig out the eggs from between its bones. He could only hope to get help from outsiders. Qin Zhui realized something and cried out in alarm. 
he turned and glared at the monkey. You asked us to help you exterminate the bugs just so that you could gain control of this body. You would be unstoppable then. He shook his head as if he had said the wrong thing. I am not afraid of you escaping this seal but the old father is angry at you for tricking me. Now that you have accidentally told us the truth, the old father shall see to it that you are properly dealt with. The monkey was stunned at Qin Zhui scolding him, it blinked its eyes and stared at Qin Zhui. He asked in puzzlement, since when did the old father trick you? Qian Ren was a monkey that refused to give up. He must take back the title old father for himself. Qin Zhui waved his tang knife in a rage. Just now you had told us that the act of catching the bugs and killing them is not related to your powers. In reality, once the bugs have been exterminated, your power will be restored. Qian Ren finally understood their concern. It raised its small head and laughed aloud. I have not tricked you. The bird's body is just a flesh armor. If the bird's body is not restored, I would certainly be powerless towards outside objects. No matter how strong I am, I would not be able to exert my powers right now. However, if the fight is imminent, you will be dealing with me inside this bird's stomach, not with the giant bird outside. Qin Ji was stunned for a moment, so you're saying that this giant bird is unrelated to you? The monkey jumped up and down in impatience. Where did this fool come from? To deal with outside forces, I would have to depend on the giant bird's body. However, within the giant bird itself, I can deal with you directly and have no need for the bird. Qin Zhui sniggered. You should use the word bird so carelessly. It sounds like you're cursing someone. Translators note, the word bird here is also used to refer to male genitals. The monkey's eyes were blazing, it was outraged. The rest of them were slightly amused by Qin Zhui's silly comment. The origin of the monkey was completely unrelated to the nine-headed snake. Gu Xiaojun and Wen Liang's real concern laid in the town's recent transformation. Why had the nine-headed snake followers gathered in this town? Where had the town's residents brought the followers to? How did this all relate to the mandala seal that was left there? Gu Xiaojun's forehead wrinkled with so many questions, every line in his forehead was a deep furrow. He hoped that the monkey would be able to shed some light on this. He hastily took a step forward and briefly recounted the incidents back in Tour Town. He intended to guide the topic of discussion to the small town. Mon Qian Ren, what happened in Tour? Wen Liang's expression was not as easygoing as before. It was as if he was frightened of something. He tried to speak but a cat seemed to have caught his tongue. From the beginning, both parties had agreed that the monkey was to answer all their questions and then the group would be responsible for exterminating all the bugs in return. The monkey had the attitude of a true businessman after all. It burst out laughing. The residents of the town were followers of the master practitioner which followed him to capture and kill the monkey. You now know that these people had actually died, volunteering to give up their chance at rebirth and become zombie soldiers under the reanimation of the master cultivator. They stayed was to guard the town of Tuer for all eternity, to prevent outsiders from damaging the Mandala seal. The Highland master's powers were great but he had missed one crucial detail. Gu Xiaojun wrapped it to attention. What was it? The monkey Qian Ren gave him the evil eye. You look too eager right now. Without acknowledging old Gu's slowly reddening face, the monkey continued. This place is an entanglement of four elements, water, fire, metal, and wood. Only one element is missing out of the five and that would have been fine if it was just for a few years but after so many centuries, this place has already become. Qin Zhui cut him off before he could even finish. The missing element was earth. This would upset the balance between heaven and earth and the malevolent energy of the entire world would leak into this place. There should always be a balance between the five elements. The process of interpromotion and interrestriction between the elements should be a continuous, unbroken cycle but in this little town of Tuer, there had only been the presence of four elements. The thickest and heaviest element, earth, had been missing. To any practitioner who cultivated the power of the five elements, they would know that this would result in the breaking of heaven and earth. The monkey Qian Ren broke out laughing while nodding its head vigorously. That is correct. As time passed, 
The balance between heaven and earth in this town was broken and evil energy had started to accumulate here. Although, countless eminent monks had performed their rituals next to the sacred lake. This did help in dissolving most of the evil energy here. Gu Xiaojun stomped his foot in rage. Will you please get to the point? Stop talking in circles already. The monkey disregarded him completely, raising its head and burst out laughing again. The old father has not had anyone to speak to for far too long. If I do not take this chance to say everything I can, would never forgive myself. The small town had become evil and malicious after having absorbed all that evil energy. The sacred lake did help in dissolving most of that energy but after so many years, it would take a toll on the townspeople. Great Master Rang Zheng's eyebrows shot up, his gaze turned razor sharp as he explained to Wen Leong and the rest. The people of this town had opted out of being reborn, choosing to exit the three levels of the universe and six realms of existence of their own free will. These people had the purest and kindest hearts when they were alive but after their death, if they had been absorbing the evil energy all this time, there is no doubt that they have become corrupted by now. Their hearts would have changed. The monkey chuckled as it took over from the head lama. Most importantly, under the corruption from the evil energy, these living dead soldiers could no longer retain the purity and tranquility that they had possessed upon their death. They could not even hold on to their dying wish. Now that you understand this, know that it was them who had turned their backs on Tour Town. The damage upon the Tibetan Buddhism sex instrument, the instruments that held down the four corners of the mandala, was destroyed by their very hands. Qian Ren sounded rather nonchalant with this topic, after all, the thing was keeping it there was not the magical power of the Tibetan Buddhism sect mandala but it was those giant dung beetles that could not stop feasting on its body. Head Lama Rangjung's predictions before coming down here have been proven to be absolutely wrong. Whether this monster would see the light of day once again was not dependent on the mandala. In other words, it had served its purpose in suppressing Qian Ren, it had completed its mission. It could now retire with dignity. Of course, the residents of Tour had not followed suit. They turned their gaze elsewhere instead. They had left to attend to matters regarding the nine-headed snake. Wen Liang's anxiety grew. These small town's residents had been corrupted by the evil energy. They had destroyed the mandala and departed from the highlands but these things still gave them no clue as to why the nine-headed snake followers had gathered here. The monkey watched in glee as Wen Leong and the rest grew ever anxious. Only when it was satisfied, did the monkey reveal the truth to them. These people had been tainted with evil energy, the pureness in their heart could not last. A few decades ago, they had been enslaved by another embodiment of pure evil. When Leon ground his teeth together. What do you mean an embodiment of pure evil? Qian Ren chuckled, it was a practitioner who drew upon the evil energy of the world. The residents of Tuer Town shed their role as disciples of the Highland Master and instead turned to follow a new master. When Qian Ren finished its sentence, a click sound came out of head Lama Rangjung's mouth, followed by a river of blood flowing out from the corner of his mouth. Chapter, 195 Qin Zhui flared up in anger. He raised his tang knife and aimed it towards the red monkey Qian Ren. Did you attack him? Head Lama Rangyong shook his head. He stretched out his hand to block the tang knife and spoke in a muffled voice, this is no fault of his. He lowered his head and spat out a mouthful of blood onto his palm, followed by a tooth. The warriors from the epic, who were loyal to the immortal who had descended to this earth, had lost their pure hearts under the influence of evil energy and was then subdued by another entity. The head lama was infuriated. He had clenched his jaw together so hard, he broke a tooth. The head lama inhaled a deep breath before addressing the monkey in an infuriated tone, continue the story. Gu Xiaojun nodded hastily. And do not leave out any details. Don't make us chase you for all the answers, it's driving us mad. Qian Ren merely chuckled at this. It nodded towards head Lama Rangyong and said, Please be patient. The monkey had spent millenniums suffering from misfortune. Even though his temperament had been influenced by the golden monkey, his personal character was quite calm in nature. He disregarded head Lama Rangjung's rudeness. If it had been with Grand Master Changli, no one would have dared to speak to her in such a manner. She would have used her bare hands to tear that person to pieces. 
With some effort, the monkey recalled the story and starting speaking slowly, a few decades ago, I had already noticed that there was something wrong with the townspeople. They still appeared as stone cold as before but their hearts were agitated. Have you ever seen a wolf that has been trapped? They will run around the cage ceaselessly, refusing to rest for even a moment. It was like there were wolves trapped in their hearts. Qian Ren had used a metaphor frequently used on the highlands. When Leong and Qin Zhui looked to one another in knowing. They recalled when they had first arrived in the small town of Tuer, Fei Fei's comment on the town's residents and the evil cult followers. She had said, wolves. Wolves that had a sip of blood but have yet to partake in the flesh. I do not understand what kind of magic the people on the highland were cultivating but under the influence of the evil energy, the townspeople's hearts never stopped struggling Qian Ren spoke in a monotonous tone. Whether the town's residents were divine troops descended from heaven or soul reapers from hell, it never concerned me. A dozen or so years ago, a herd of antelopes strayed from their path and galloped into the small town. Qin Zhui's small eyes widened in great surprise, you mean actual antelopes? Like the animal? The monkey Qian Ren nodded, its voice becoming even more detached. Yes, like the animal. Without the slightest hint of hesitation, the small town's residents chased the antelopes out but the animals refused to leave they milled about the small town's border and pleaded with the townspeople for help, tears running down their faces. When night fell, a pack of hungry wolves arrived in the town and killed every single antelope. The howls of wolves echoed throughout the entire town. Everyone was in disbelief. Head Lama Rangyong frowned deeply, something was troubling him. A few days later, the wolf pack returned to the town but this time, they were the ones being chased. They had now become the antelopes. They ran into the town, tail between their legs, hoping to find shelter. The residents once again chased out the animals. Over a hundred wolves roamed at the edge of the town, howling bitterly and hissing in contempt. A she-wolf attempted to send its pups into the town but even they were chased out by the townspeople. A group of hunters wearing the traditional attire of the Tibetans arrived on horseback as night fell. The stench of wolf blood mingled with the reflection of their knives. Head Lama Rangyong heaved a heavy sigh. He raised his head and looked towards the monkey. Did these hunters meet the same fate? The monkey Qian Ren nodded. Just like the antelopes and the wolves from before, these hunters attempted to seek asylum in the village a few days later. They were being chased as well. The hunters were killed by a group of sorcerers. The time though, the sorcerers did not leave after killing the hunters. They tossed their weapons into the sky and cast a demon exorcising spell, intent on getting rid of the small town's people. The townsfolk immediately launched a thunder-like counterattack. Qian Ren who had been watching the whole battle excitedly from beneath the seal. What he did not expect was this group of sorcerers, who had first shown threatening supernatural powers, did not even have time to retaliate. In the blink of an eye, the small town's residents had slaughtered them all. As they died though, they cried out. They sounded like small children. Head Lama Rangyong could not contain his anger. He roared in rage. The nerve of those evildoers. He raised his arms and balled up his fists, bringing them down on the ground beneath him, ferociously pounding away. He was filled with all the anger of heaven and earth and he could no other way to vent. A red shadow flew past. The monkey who had been standing to the side suddenly appeared in front of the head llama. It stretched out a small claw and firmly held onto the llama's fists that threw punch after punch. It sneered in contempt. I know you're very angry right now but is there any way you could not hurt me in the process? The llama's eyes widened. Since when did I he only got halfway through his sentence before he shut his mouth? The ground beneath their feet was not the soil of the earth but the body of the monkey. All the bones, the blood vessels, the muscles they were all part of the monkey. The monkey Qian Ren released the llama's fists as it continued on with the story. When these sorcerers had been killing the hunters, they showed great bravery. Sadly, upon being struck by the townspeople's counterattack, they became as fragile as paper men. Their body was blown to bits and scattered. Upon examination, they realized in astonishment that they were the bodies of children between three to five. A cloaking spell. 
the monkey did not even wait for them to ask before answering. It then explained in a low voice, a cloaking spell had been cast over these children. If they had not died, it would have been very difficult to tell that they were not adults. The children's minds had been concealed. They were like puppets. The attacks that they launched and the treasured weapons that they had used did not belong to them. Somebody else had been controlling them from behind the scenes. The monkey took a deep breath, sneering as it continued. The antelopes, the snow wolves, the hunters, and the child sorcerers, they had all been sent by the other party. Chin Jui frowned. What happened? The wolves that fed on the antelopes, the hunters that killed the wolves, the evil children that had slaughtered the humans was it the work of heaven and earth's a uh, power something. The monkey Qian Ren shook its head impatiently. This may have seemed like an insignificant matter but the residents of the town, their hearts had been slowly been corrupted by the evil energy. Their hearts had been in turmoil. After having gone through a series of events that had led to the death of so many innocents, their hearts were already at the edge of breaking. When they accidentally killed the group of children, they parted ways with kindness and transformed into demons. The town's residents turned into demons overnight. The pureness in their hearts had been completely destroyed by evil energy. As they had opted out of being reborn, they turned into wraiths and lonely ghosts. Then, under the watchful eye of the red monkey, an evil sorcerer entered the small town and enslaved the town's residents. The town's residents destroyed the instruments that guarded the four corners of the mandala. They had been about to pull out the houses when they were stopped by the evil sorcerer. The red monkey Qian Ren shrugged then laughed. I think he didn't know what was being suppressed underneath the seal. He had more important matters at hand. So he did not wish to release a monster that might cause unwanted chaos. The town's residents' act of destroying the instruments could have been considered a ceremony. A ceremony to bid farewell to the ancient saint they once followed and goodbye to the pureness of their hearts. From the evil sorcerer's point of view, the instruments guarding the mandala had been destroyed but the mandala still remained. Even with its weakened state, it would take at least another century before the monster underneath could hope to break the seal. He didn't know that since centuries ago, the true power holding the monster down was not the mandala but the beetles instead. The evil sorcerer did not care for the creature sealed under that small town. His only aim was to recruit the group of disciples left behind by the highland master. The town's residents obeyed his instructions to stay behind and continue masquerading as the walking dead. This had taken place a dozen years ago and the sorcerer had not been seen since then, up until a year ago. Qian Ren shrugged helplessly at this point. Since he had subdued the people of this town, he had no need for verbal communication with them. There was no need for him to gesture. When he arrived in the town, he merely stood in the center of it while the townsfolk surrounded him. They stood around like tree stumps, standing there for a whole day. It was like a silent ceremony. I can never hope to understand it. Your group came to this town about a year from that incident. Qian Ren paused for a moment and pondered for a while, before nodding in confirmation I have now told you everything that needs to be told. The monkey's life story had been full of twists and turns. It had taken a long time to recount the whole story, stunning everyone into bewilderment and disbelief. The story of the town had been much simpler and could be easily explained in just a few sentences. To sum it up, an evil sorcerer is working from the shadows and the small town's residents had been enslaved and recruited into the devil's sect. When Leong and Gu Xiaojun were at a loss for words, Qin Jui stared at the monkey with wide eyes. That's all. That is all you know about this matter. The monkey Qian Ren ignored Qin Jui. It beamed with joy, gazing upon each and everyone's faces. Qian Ren started checking off with his fingers. I have returned the giant pangolin to you. I have already told you about my origins and my trials. I have also finished telling about the town's recent happenings. Qian Ren clasped his hands behind his back. Shouldn't you be preparing to kill the bugs? Qin Zhui replied, Is it true, once all the bugs are gone, you will be able to break out of this seal? The monkey Qian Ren nodded with confidence. That is true. Once all the bugs have been exterminated, the dog-headed eagle will be restored to its unblemished state. A cautious expression, one that Wen Leong had never seen before, 
appeared on Qin Shui's face. He squinted his eyes as he studied the monkey up and down. He spoke in a serious tone. If you have no way to prove that you aren't the golden monkey that had been suppressed by King Geezer, then we cannot help you. The monkey waved its hands at Qin Shui, cutting him off. This is not the time for you to speak, confused fool. Shut your mouth and stand aside. The dwarf Taoist priest finally saw an opportunity for revenge. He sneered as he commented. Confused fool, did you just listen to the story and stopped using your brain? Maybe you don't even have a brain to begin with. Qin Zhui was livid. He raised his tang knife, pointing it at the priest's nose. When we get out of here, we ought to have a race. He then paused for a moment before adding, you're not allowed to help him. He waved his knife at the giant pangolin. Head Lama Rangyong shook his head and smiled tightly. He took a step and stood between Qin Zhui and the priest, who wanted to resolve their dispute right there and then. If Sir Qian Ren had really been planning to trick us, he would never have told us the truth about those bugs holding him down. Qin Zhui was confused. What are you saying? Gu Xiaojun was growing impatient. He quickly explained, if Mon Qianren had been planning to trick us, then he would not have told us that the Tibetan Buddhism sect Mandala is not useless in holding him back. He would not have revealed to us that it's actually those bugs that are shackling him to this place, preventing him from escaping. From old Gu's tone, he showed that he was on the monkey's side. Qin Zhui's eyes lit up. His ugly face filled with understanding as he nodded wholeheartedly. You've got a point there. Qian Ren was supposed to be a magic practitioner, practicing hard to achieve mastery over the wood element. He had been framed by his friend and turned into a monkey, which had then been trapped in a void. He has suffered the agony of being chewed to nothingness by the dung beetles for millenniums his life story was truly a piteous one. If Qin Zhui could help him in any way, he would gladly do so. Head Lama Rangyong sighed. The golden monkey had gone on a killing spree which resulted in King Geezer capturing and sealing it away but the true blame of that lies in Kong Nuer. I have high hopes for you, sir, after you are released. The monkey Qian Ren been tricked and trapped in this void for too many years. It had grown stubborn and tyrannical. The monkey finally had the opportunity to retell its story and let go of its burdens. Qian Ren felt rather grateful to these people. It was satisfied that everything was coming to a happy ending. It chuckled and nodded, after the bugs have been exterminated and you do not dare face off with me, scram. Head Lama Rangyong smiled widely. He turned around and looked towards Wen Leong. Then will you please proceed with the extermination? Wen Leong looked at the faces around him, some were smiling affectionately, some were expectant, some even threw him an encouraging look. Wen Leong's face fell and he shook his head. There are too many of them how can how can I kill all of them? Upon hearing his helpless cry, they all stood around dumbfounded like wooden chickens, including the red monkey and the giant pangolin. Assuming there were over thousands of dung beetles in this bird's body, the small number of ingredients when Leong had on him wouldn't be enough to kill all of them. There was also the problem of the bug's eggs hiding in between the bones. When Leong's voice grew softer than the buzz of a mosquito. He stuttered as he tried to explain himself. I had thought that Qian Ren was a demon who had committed uncountable evil deeds. I assumed we would fight him sooner or later, that's why I made that promise. The monkey walked towards Wen Leon, the entire dog-headed eagle corpse shook with every step it took. He walked right up to Wen Leon's face and raised its head, asking in a low tone, the items from earlier, the terrified heart-bewitching eye enchanting soul and whatnot, does not work. When Leong put on a long face, he answered frankly, it does work but I the scale wouldn't be big enough. It would have been enough for a hundred bugs, difficult against a thousand, but absolutely impossible against two thousand. However when Leong spoke up, resolute and decisive. Please give me a few months. I will prepare thoroughly and come back to exterminate all the bugs in one swift go. The monkey did not reply. It stood in front of Wen Leong, hands clasped behind its back, staring at him in cold fury. The atmosphere felt heavy as if the air had turned into ice. Even if you used all your strength, it would feel almost impossible to even take in a breath. Gu Xiaojun suddenly laughed. 
His laughter was so dry feeling like sandpaper against one's eardrums little one does have a point. We will return again when we are well prepared and kill off those dumb beetles in one go. The giant pangolin put two dropped its divine demeanor. It played along and laughed with a strange expression on its face, he does have a point, he does have a point. The dwarf Taoist priest looked uncomfortable, as the usually majestic divine beast of the immortal sect stared at him with that ghastly smile. Patu glared. What the hell you staring at? Smile. The cultivators the divine beast the leader of the secret service each one wearing a smile uglier than the last. It wasn't that they were scared, they just felt really bad that after all the monkey had gone through, it now has to go through one more betrayal. They could see no other way to justify themselves and just smiled. Gu Xiaojun had stated his point of view, while he raised his leg and kicked Qin Zhui. Only then did Qin Zhui react. He nodded in earnest, quickly agreeing with their discussion. In my opinion, the most difficult part would be to find and destroy all the bug eggs. By the time when Leong returns with a more effective recipe, your body will probably be chewed clean by then. The bugs would then have nowhere to hide. A raging howl suddenly exploded, drowning out Qin Zhui's voice. The monkey was glaring at them, its smile sinister. I will make sure that none of you will die for now. I will make sure that you watch as you get chewed into a skeleton by those bugs. Make sure you are alive as they eat the flesh off your face. None of you are allowed to die. Before the monkey's voice had even faded, their vision was filled with streaks of red shadows. The sound of heavy blows rang out and moans echoed out after one another. One by one, they all slammed into the ground. It had taken the monkey only a few seconds to bring everyone to the ground. It shouted in a rage, everyone. Stand up for the old father. Whoever stands up last, I will gouge out one of his eyeballs and force feed it to him. When Leung's group possessed unprecedented power. They could have wiped out the whole magical realm in one go if they had wanted to but before the monkey, they couldn't even counterattack. The monkey controlled its strength perfectly. The strongest in the group was the giant pangolin, who had been training for millenniums, while the weakest person was the person with no magic powers, Gu Xiaojun. The force the monkey had to exert in order to bring down Pe Tu could have killed a hundred Gu Xiaojuns yet Gu Xiaojun survived. Everyone suffered agonizing pain from the monkey's attack but none of them died. When Leon cried out. He flipped over and jumped up. He roared. If you want to punish someone, punish me alone. They are not, he was cut short by his own scream. He fell over once again. The monkey struck him over and over, he didn't have the chance to launch his faulty punch. Qin Zhui jumped in and attempted to stop the monkey. With a loud explosion, he was thrown backwards and flew through the air like a dead fish. The monkey had seized his tang knife and unceremoniously broke it into two. The treasured weapon was destroyed and Qin Zhui was severely injured. Gu Xiaojun was exasperated, he cried out, do not hesitate, subdue the monkey, the monkey punched Gu Xiaojun in the throat. Old Gu felt his Adam's apple was about to be squeezed out of his windpipe. A terrifying crack immediately followed after Gu Xiaojun's shout. The monkey sneered as it aimed a kick at the head llama, who had pounced forward to intercept it. Qian Ren then turned around and stretched out a hand, grabbing and crushing two of the priest's ribs. It then caught the giant pangolin by the tail and swung it around. Only then it stretched out its hands once again and pinched old Gu's throat again to set the bones back. The monkey sniggered, don't worry. I told you no one is dying today. In fact, no one is allowed to die. Gu Xiaojun's face had turned into the color of ash. He was inhaling mouthfuls of air like he had just survived a drowning. He could not say a word. The monkey had not employed any supernatural powers, merely punching with its fists and kicking with its legs. In the blink of an eye, everyone was defeated a second time. It stood and looked grimly at the dwarf Taoist priest. You were the last one to get up right. As it said this, it pointed a claw at the priest's eyeballs. Left eye or right eye, I will let you choose. A ba escaped the dwarf Taoist priest's lips. He struggled to fight back, willing to risk his life but he couldn't move. There was a heavy force holding him back from behind. 
Wen Liang's left hand was holding on to Qin Zhui while he held the priest back with his right. His eyes were murderous as he glared at the monkey Qian Ren. The monkey stopped his barrage of attacks. It raised its chin, seeming to find amusement in Wen Liang's death stare. This battle was full of resentment. Not only Wen Liang but everyone, upon meeting the monkey earlier, had thought that they would end up in a violent battle in the end. No one had really put their heart into the deal. They had not expected to meet such an unfortunate man with a sorrowful past. Qian Ren felt like it had been betrayed, it had trusted them. The monkey felt cheated. It was deranged. If there had only been him, Wen Leong would have allowed the monkey to beat him up and vent out its anger. Wen Leong would not have allowed it to kill him of course. At this point, Qin Zhui and the dwarf Taoist priest were severely injured. Gu Xiaojun had just gone to hell and came back. The teachings of Wen Butsao did not produce dense disciples. The knife has been placed against his throat, Wen Leong did not care who was right or wrong now. He held on to his two severely injured companions and glared at the monkey, he shouted hoarsely, You've got me. The severely injured Qin Zhui cursed, You have not got me. Gu Xiaojun stood behind Wen Leong and waited for Wen Leong to pull out his trump card. Old Gu's eyes brightened. He had been present at the fierce battle of Painting Town. He knew that You've Got Me could summon the giant sword, the molten metal fire bell. That sword was left back in Painting Town, stabbed diagonally into the ground and wrapped in a huge carpet. The monkey Qian Ren burst out laughing, its gaze was filled with wonderment as it looked towards Wen Leong. And here I thought you were an unyielding man before it could finish its sentence, a loud pop was heard from Wen Leong. A red-colored bug squealed and shot out from his chest, trailing in a dazzling arc. It shot straight towards Qian Ren at lightning speed. With a wave of Qian Ren's hand, the bug and its trail vanished. Wen Leong had called on the bug who in turn would be able to summon the giant molten metal fire bell sword. He had not expected the bug to pounce forward of its own accord. You've got me was lucky that the monkey did not simply just crush it. The monkey clenched the bug in his palm as the hairs on the bug's body stiffened. The bug kept buzzing about, turning in circles. The monkey looked towards Wen Leong in apprehension. It finally understood. This bug here is called You've Got Me. It then followed with another question, sounding quite upset. So you were planning all along to use this creature to destroy me? Back in Shanghai, You've Got Me have spent a wild night out, partying way too hard in one of the clubs. The very next day in Painting Town that had been created by Leong Tian, You've Got Me had summoned the giant molten metal fire bell sword. It had killed the Ning Jiao and rescued Wen Leong. Leong Tian's witchcraft dimension had also sadly been destroyed by the giant sword's power, causing Painting Town's conjurer to perish along with the split body of the Taoist priest San Wei. Ever since then, You've Got Me had been sleeping off its hangover. It laid still in Wen Leong's chest and barely moved. Every time Wen Leong used his finger to tickle it, the bug would simply turn over in agitation and continue sleeping. Wen Leong had met the head Lama Rangyong, the dwarf Taoist priest, and the Chilean disciples not long ago back in Tour Town. The bug had chosen that moment to awaken. That was why Wen Leong had cried out, startling Fei Fei, Xiao Sha, and the rest. You've Got Me might be small but it had the might of the gigantic divine sword behind it. The molten metal fire bell had decapitated the Ning Jiao before it could retaliate. That was when Wen Leong had started taking on every challenge. He did not fear anything from then on, even as they descended into the seal. He had been steadfast and confident. Despite feeling utmost pity towards the monkey Qian Ren, Wen Leong could not just stand by and watch as it injured his friends. He couldn't allow the monkey to beat his friends senseless and fed them to the dung beetles. He then decided to call upon You've Got Me. You've Got Me had obeyed his command in just a single try, to his great surprise, but where was the molten metal fire bell? The monkey Qian Ren held the bug in its fist. The smile on its face was turning sinister but the monkey suddenly frowned, rolling its eyes towards the sky and looking at something on the surface. Wen Leong was felt his nerves fray in anticipation. He turned around and passed his two severely injured companions to Gu Xiaojun. He was bracing for the monkey's counterattack, 
which he predicted that the monkey would launch upon the appearance of the molten metal fire bell. The divine sword did not appear though. The monkey retracted its gaze. It opened up its palm and brought the bug up to its eyes, observing the bug closely. You've got me was elated that the darkness had been lifted. Its plump body assumed an impressive posture, coiling itself and aimed at the monkey's golden eyes, ready to strike. When Leon whistled hastily, signaling to you've got me to stay calm. When Leon knew that the bug was fast but it could have been no faster than the QSC-92 bullet. The molten metal fire bell still has not arrived. When Leon realized with dawning horror, that perhaps the sword was incapable of entering this space. Chapter, 196 Even though it had not managed to summon the molten metal fire bell, You've Got Me was still revving to go. It was practically itching for a fight, wanting to have a go at the red monkey Qian Ren. It seems as though You've Got Me was still drunk. The red monkey had been furious earlier and was aggressively beating when Leong and the rest, now stood still and observed You've Got Me with intense interest. The monkey calmed down once again. It frowned and asked when Leong, are you acquainted with the fire master? When Leong did not know how to respond to that. He stood rooted to the spot, simply glaring at the monkey. Gu Xiaojun was glad for the change in mood. At least the beatings have stopped. He moved to Wen Leong's side and repeated the question back to the monkey, you know the fire master. The monkey nodded. It spoke in a proud manner. Of course I knew the fire master I had been practicing with elemental magic while he was cultivating the essence of fire. We were both at the peak of our cultivation, masters of their own element. Perhaps it was because these events had happened so long ago that Qian Ren seemed to have difficulty in recalling its memories. Old Gu and Wen Leong looked to each other. Old Gu sniggered, in that case, you should know about the power of the giant sword then. Qian Ren hesitated before laughing. I do I do I did not expect that you would be connected to the fire master though. This old father owes him a favor. He he. Qian Ren diverted the topic of conversation then. Its gaze was piercing, firmly locked onto Wen Liang's face. Young lad, if I were to give you three months, will you swear to come back and remove all the dung beetles for me? This change of event was truly unexpected. Wen Leong did not know why You've Got Me could sometimes summon the molten metal fire bell and sometimes could not. However, if he is thinking about this correctly, there was some sort of connection between the fire master and the divine sword which the bug is the link somehow. Wen Leong did not care to ask further into the matter. He nodded hastily. In three months, I promise to return and help you remove these poison bugs. Qian Ren laughed and nodded in respect to the fire Arya fire fire master. Everyone nodded their heads. The monkey continued, in respect of the fire master, I will release you but you are to return alone. For the next three months, I will make sure they stay healthy and alive. The monkey's intentions could not be clearer. It wanted to keep hostages. When Leong did not know how to answer. The head Lama Ranyong took a step forward and shook his head. No, I am going to go after the wicked scoundrel that tainted the spirits of the king's loyal warriors. I cannot stay here. If Sir Wen were to leave and not return, I offer to cut my own throat as an apology after I have dealt with the evildoer. Before the head lama had barely finished, Gu Xiaojun boomed out, the evil cult followers from all around the world have gathered on these highlands for a reason. This matter of the nine-headed snake is connected to the fate of the world, I must follow through with it. If Wen Leong does not return, I too will commit suicide and be buried with you. I have to return to the Chilean disciples and look out for them. If Wen Leong were to never return, this old father also the giant pangolin too declared its position. Old Gu and Patu were echoing the awe-inspiring speech of the head lama. That certainly was an uproar. The monkey calmed down, much to everyone's surprise. It gazed at everyone present like a housewife picking out Chinese cabbage at a market stall. It nodded at some of them and shook its head at the others. After some time, it spoke to the group in a decisive manner, whoever I ask to stay shall stay. You're the ones who have broken the deal, you have no right to be negotiating. The fire fire master's honor is not as great as you imagine it to be. Admittedly, it was truly like a market inside the dog-headed eagle's body. 
there was no room for them to refuse the monkey, no matter what they thought. To Wen Liang's surprise, Qian Ren only chose two hostages, the dwarf Taoist priest and Qin Jui. The giant pangolin, the head lama, and Gu Xiaojun were allowed to follow Wen Liang and return to the surface. Wen Liang shook his head in disagreement. He ignored Gu Xiaojun's glance. He pointed at Qin Jui who was lying injured on the ground. Before he could even say a word, the monkey interrupted him, Are you able to heal him? When Leong was stunned, then a joyous smile spread across his face. Are you going to heal his injuries? Qin Jui glared at the monkey. He clenched his teeth and spoke in a voice seething with anger, Even if you can heal this old man here, it would be useless. My treasured weapon had already been destroyed, my lifetime of practice. The monkey laughed in response. You ungrateful young lad, why do you think the old father didn't destroy anyone else's treasured weapon? Your martial arts practice is fine but if keep holding on to that broken knife and continue to train with it, you will not achieve your life goal till the day you die. Qin Zhui seemed to forget his injuries, raising his hand and pushing Gu Xiaojun away. What do you mean? He then cried out in alarm and tumbled to the ground again. The monkey stretched out its hand to shoo away the few people crowding around him with their attempts to help, resulting in Qin Zhui falling head first in front of the monkey. On its face was a ghost of a smile, young lad, you had first cultivated in the skill of enter the force, then you practiced hide the force, correct? Qin Zhui was severely injured but this fall was not serious. He could not get up though so he just turned over and lied with his back to the ground, looking up at the monkey. The short and small monkey now looked much bigger from Qin Zhui's point of view. Break the force. Break the force with the knife. The monkey laughed at him. Bullshit. Sure you can learn to break the force but what good would that do you? That skill would be useless if you relied on it for the rest of your life. This old father destroyed your knife so that you can forget about the force and achieve zero force. When Leong and Qin Zhui simultaneously gave out an O. Back in the gold-consuming lair, the jade knife Guo Huan had told Qin Zhui that the next step in his practice was to achieve zero force after hiding the force but Qin Zhui had not understood then. When Qin Zhui was at Nine Peaks Mountain, the old demon rabbit had told him about breaking the force. Qin Zhui was overjoyed that he had found a new clue then. The monkey's statement perfectly matched with Guo Huan's earlier words. Their experience was after all far greater than the old demon rabbit. The two old demon statements were identical. In order to achieve a breakthrough, Qin Zhui would have to find out more about this zero force. Qin Zhui waved his hand dismissively at Wen Leong. I will stay, you guys leave. The dwarf Taoist priest looked towards Gu Xiaojun and reminded Wen Leong in a desperate voice, three months. The terms have been set by the monkey. There was absolutely no room for anyone to refute. They then realized the power from the western region deity that had been summoned by head Lama Rangyong had lifted, unknown since when. This brand of supernatural power was only ever meant to be a temporary measure and would not last forever. When Leong resumed carrying Gu Xiaojun and together with the head Lama and the giant pangolin, they returned to the surface world. The seal of Tuer Town was almost in shambles and since they were not a part of the dog-headed eagle, the seal did not hold them back and they dashed past it without much effort. You've got me had returned to Wen Liang's body with joy. As long as Wen Liang was safe, it could rest easy. The bug, which was still hangover, was still pretty riled up from its adventures. It continued to cry out softly while crawling all over Wen Liang's body like a tiny train on the tracks. Occasionally, it crawled up Gu Xiaojun's body and made his hair stand on end. The sky above the small town was bright. When Leong inquired and found out that they had spent almost two days in the eagle's stomach. The moment the Chilean disciples caught sight of the divine beast Patu, they broke out in thunderous cheers but they then realized, their supreme leader was nowhere to be seen. When Leong briefly recounted their encounter to the company that had been waiting for them to return. Fei Fei wailed regretfully. She thumped her chest and stomped her feet, appearing extremely depressed. Hearing Wen Liang's story, the chance to study the monkey's expression sounded like a missed opportunity. Old Gu sniggered and consoled her. Do not fret. Three months from now, you will have the chance to study a talking bird. 
As he said that, he pulled out a pen from his chest pocket. When Leon learned that it was actually a recorder. Fei Fei may have missed the chance to stud the monkey's face but she could still come up with some clues just from its voice. Fei Fei pulled Xiao Sha off to the side and they both started listening intently. Gu Xiao Jun then spoke to Wen Leong softly, Qian Ren is not a fool. Wen Leong raised his eyebrows. What do you mean? Upon hearing Qian Ren's story, Head Lama Ranyong had decided to investigate the evil sorcerer that had broken the pure hearts of the followers left behind by King Geezer to guard the mandala. The only lead he had on the evil sorcerer was the group of evil cults that had gathered on the highlands. The head lama aligned himself with Wen Leong and his original group. Upon hearing Gu Xiaojuan's statement, he nodded in agreement. The hostages he kept, they were not chosen blindly. As he spoke, the head lama produced instruments that Wen Leong did not recognize from the front of his robes and started putting them down in a circle, making a soundproof circle around them. This prevented the monkey Qian Ren from eavesdropping on their conversation. After he had finished, Rang Yong raised his thick and dark hand. He counted off on his fingers while addressing Wen Leong, this is the first time we are meeting, there isn't much kinship between us. If it were to take me as a hostage, you guys would not be too bothered. Wen Leong's interest was piqued. The Lama then pointed to old Gu. I do not understand the ties between all of you but I know that he is an ordinary human. He would never have survived being trapped underground for three months. It would only be troublesome for the monkey if he stays behind. If he dies and you have a close relationship, you might refuse to return and exterminate the bugs. Gu Xiaojun took over from the Lama, continuing the dissection, the most important thing to note is that the monkey pinned down the Taoist priest but released the giant pangolin. Anyone could see that the Chilean immortal sect supreme leader has a profound relationship with the divine beast. It kept one of the pair and released the other, prompting them to force you to return with the formula. When Leong was no fool, he understood the situation clearly after they have finished. He laughed loudly as he nodded, that is true. It had chosen to keep the supreme leader and not the divine beast because Patu's strength is far greater. With the divine beast monitoring me, even if I decide not to rescue Qin Zhui, I would have to answer to the divine beast Patu. Gu Xiaojun laughed. Qian Ren kept Qin Zhui because it saw you and Qin Zhui join hands in battle. He and you certainly have a good enough relationship. Also according to my observation, Qian Ren seemed to have taken a fancy towards Qin Zhui. The practitioner has spent millenniums alone and perhaps had wished for a disciple. This could be the making of that ugly lad. The giant pangolin Patu lumbered into the Lama's soundproof circle. It asked Wen Leong bluntly, Young lad, will you be able to remove every single one of those dung beetles? Wen Leong nodded. Those bugs are just odd in size. It would be difficult to settle them with brute force but with the use of poison, it would be no different than killing cockroaches. I just have to get in contact with my family and have them send me the materials. He asked for pen and paper from the sibling and hastily drafted a message to his family, including the recipe and the volume of ingredients needed. He took out a letter talisman belonging to the Wen family from his chest pocket. Wen Leong passed the talisman and the letter to the pangolin, instructing the divine beast, please deliver these to the Wen family and bid my family to prepare the ingredients. Have them send the goods to this town when everything is prepared. The matter of killing the bugs is a small one. Patu gave out a sigh of relief as if letting go of a heavy burden. All is well then. I just thought, if everything else failed, I would have requested you to get help from Grand Master Changli. This way is the simplest. It is best we do not need to bother the grand old lady as it said this, it paused for a moment and then laughed heartily. I will have no need to run this errand personally. The children of the immortal sect can deliver the letter. The giant pangolin had already decided long ago that he would not leave Wen Liang's side. Otherwise, if the young lad were to disappear, it would have no means to find Wen Liang again. Patu handled the delegation, immediately calling upon the Chilean immortal sect disciples and instructed them to deliver the items to Nine Peaks Mountain. Even without their supreme leader to hold their front line, the elite disciples of the Chilean immortal sect were a force not to be trifled with within the magical realm. They agreed to deliver the letter as staying back would prove useless, 
they wouldn't be of much help here. Based on power alone, if when Liang's group proved not to be enough, the immortal sex disciples could not help either. The Chilean disciples worshipped the giant pangolin as a deity. The divine beast tossed its tail while giving them instructions. Over twenty disciples departed immediately. Every one of them left in a flash, leaving the small town of Tuer even more desolate than before. Of course, Gu Xiaojun understood Pe Tu's intentions, his old face beamed with joy. Two days had passed in this small town. Although they have lost Qin Zhui, they now had two additional members to their group. The head Lama Rangyong and the divine beast Pe Tu would help them in their mission. Pe Tu's magic roots were definitely more prominent than that of Wen Leong and Rangyong but it was also more volatile and accident prone. Rang Zheng's powers were on par with Wen Liang's but he had an added skill. He was a high-ranking personage amongst the people of the highlands. Judging from how he had summoned help from the practitioners from the highland and concentrated their powers using just the human bone flute, having his aid is equivalent to having all of Tibet's Buddhist heroes behind them. As soon as the medicinal materials are delivered by the Wen family, the process of exterminating the bugs for Qian Ren would be an easy one for Wen Liang. As easy as lifting a finger, thus he was not too worried. He refused to just sit back and wait though. They needed to continue investigating the matter of the evil cult followers. Just relying on the collective powers of Wen Leong, the head Lama Rangyong, and Patu, the evil cult followers that had gathered here on highlands would not stand a chance. The evil cult followers' powers were pretty weak and this puzzled Wen Leong. He wondered what could the nine-headed snake need from a group of foreigners with weak abilities. Patu grew impatient as it slammed its tail on the ground. So what's our next move? Are we going after the group of living dead? Fei Fei who had been pacing back and forth suddenly started jumping on the spot. With the recorder pen pressed to her ear, she raised her head and spoke to old Gu in a confidential manner. Everything the creature had been truthful all throughout the beginning but it's lying about the fire master. This person is a made-up entity. Gu Xiaojun and the head lama both smiled knowingly as if that was what they expected, the giant pangolin Patu was puzzled at this though. It was about to speak when its expression changed abruptly. The divine beast lifted its rapidly twitching nose into the air as if sensing danger. It rose up and shouted loudly, Immortal sect disciples. Retreat. Oh goddamn this soundproof circle. It dove into the ground and burrowed away. When Leong and the head Lama Rangyong frowned in unison. They looked to one another in astonishment. Gu Xiaojun stretched out his hand and grabbed onto both of them. What is it? The head Lama Rangyong spoke in a strained voice, it's the enemy. The enemy that is coming for Tour Town. Old Gu started to laugh. It is best that the enemy is here. They had been entrusted to stop the enemy after all. They were still trying to figure out if they should continue waiting or give chase when the enemy finally arrived. They could either talk to the enemy into retreating or fight them into submission. Once they were done with this task, they could continue their search for the evil cult followers. After the events of the past few days, Old Gu had started to miss his African brother, Tudatunt. When Leong gave a forced smile as he said, this group of enemies is large. There is a total of over 1,000 people. Also, they are acquaintances of ours. Gu Zayajin's laughter vanished. His eyeballs almost popped out of their sockets. He stared at Wen Leong and repeated, over 1,000 people. At this point, the giant pangolin had successfully pulled back the Chilean disciples albeit in a disorderly manner. The moment it entered the town, it shouted in a rage, what is that? There are over a thousand people in that group. It waved its hands and instructed its disciples furiously, I command everyone to fall back. With a loud bang, Patu changed from his earthly form to his demon one. It raised its head and howled in anger, filling the air with a sonorous and forceful voice. Its howl was filled with murderous intent, a warning to the enemy which was rapidly approaching. A moment later, a familiar voice rang out. Taoism Code, Disciples of Kunlun. Execute the demon, kill the people in the town without mercy. Over a thousand voices answered with a resounding yes to the Taoism code instructions, shattering the tranquility of the highlands. Their swords reflected the shimmering sky. 
Countless Taoist disciples were hurtling towards the small town at lightning speed. They aimed for the small town while under the protection of a sword formation. Gu Xiaojun gave out a choked scream. He turned and asked Wen Leong, is that the Kunlun sect? Why are they here? Wen Leong shook his head. He waved his hand and stopped the giant pangolin who was about to launch itself at the incoming horde. His body blurred as he jumped to the town's border. He roared, come out Lu Zheng. I am. The enemies, who looked like they would not give up until the small town was destroyed, were the disciples of Kunlun donning green-colored long robes. The person issuing orders from afar was Wen Liang's old acquaintance, Kunlun sect supreme leader, Lu Zheng. Lu Zheng did not even wait for Wen Liang to finish his sentence, he cut off Wen Liang off with a loud roar, Taoism Code, Disciples of Kunlun. Execute the demons. The moment the Taoism Code was given, it was difficult to change its course. Wen Leong had fought many confused battles over the last few days but he refused to believe that the Kunlun sect would still attack him despite seeing him. He did not wait for Lu Zheng to complete issuing the order before shouting back, Execute my ass. A tremendous force flowed through Wen Leong's poisonous bones and chi points. His entire person became as heavy as a hill but moved as fast as lightning. He pounced towards the Kunlun disciples. The few Taoist priests at the front of the line were caught off guard. Just like empty bottles blocking the path of the savage horse, they were tossed aside from Wen Liang's impact. The Kunlun disciples originated from Black and White Island, their lineage had existed for millenniums and they were very disciplined in their conduct. They were thrown into chaos for mere moments before they calmed down and closed ranks. The senior disciples shouted out. Streaks of swords flashed through the air and came together to shape themselves into dragons, peering at him from all directions. Wen Leong grew nervous and angry. He clenched his teeth and was about to charge forward despite the danger when suddenly, something tightened around his ankles. The giant pangolin had stuck its head out from the ground and pulled him under in one swift motion. Wen Leong felt his body tighten and loosed almost all at once. While being protected by Patu, they sped past the sword dragons surrounding them through under the ground. Patu then tossed Wen Leong forward with all its might, and laughed uproariously, Go! Capture that starred supreme leader and strike him on my behalf. A few huge and thick sword dragons tried to encircle Wen Leong but failed to suppress him. They were like leeches looking to suck out their souls and chew on his bones, immediately giving chase in the direction of Wen Leong and Patu, giving out a loud bang. The giant pangolin turned around right after sending Wen Leong away. It spread out its limbs, the scales on its body stiffened. Its already large body grew by several folds as it laughed madly and smothered countless Kunlun divine swords. In a blink of an eye, the clashing sounds of metal echoed through the sky. Wen Leong dashed through the enemy's formation to grab onto Lu Zheng. Pe Tu had burrowed underground to help him with this. Head Lama Rangyong had formed a seal with his hands and guarded the small town of Tuer. He was also preparing to defend the people in the town. The Chilean immortal sex disciples brandished their own flying swords and took up their flaming sword formation. However, their red-colored sword formation was no stronger than a red beltfish when compared to the sword dragons of the Kunlun sect. Old Gu led the Fei Fei siblings. Each of them held a handgun but they were at a loss at where to aim it. Head Lama Rangyong was knowledgeable and rich in experience but his knowledge was only limited to the highlands. He understood the Taoist magic from the central lands but he had never engaged with them on such a, a large scale before. Now that he was seeing the Kunlun disciples launching their flying swords one after the other and their imposing mannerism, he was truly startled. These Kunlun sect disciples' cultivation base was not worth a mention in his eyes but their joined forces were awe-inspiring. If the person that took the brunt force of the swords had been him and not the giant pangolin, he surely would have suffered greatly. Without a doubt, the disciples of the Kunlun sect were giving it their all. Earlier when the enlightened person Tian Shu had been dealing with the fifth brother, Hanba, in the city god temple, he had only brought along seventy-two esteemed sword seniors and over three hundred high-ranking disciples. This time, they had turned up with their full strength. Even fresh disciples who have only entered the school for less than three months came as well under the behest of their leader. 
they clenched their teeth and guided their three-inch flying swords through the air and fought desperately. Certainly, they perceived this as a grave matter of life and death. The giant pangolin met the joint attack of the thousand Kunlun sect disciples with great difficulty. It managed to last for mere moments before it gave out a shriek and fell to the ground. The entire ground shook when the body of the pangolin hit the earth. The countless long swords hummed and took off in all directions. They flew everywhere due to the tremendous force, their masters losing their command momentarily. All this had happened in a blink of an eye. When Leon was now running at the speed of light. He dashed and stood in front of the little supreme leader, Lu Zheng, raising his fist to punch Lu Zheng out of desperation. What the FCK are you doing, you starved? Before he could land his punch though, when Leong suddenly cried out in surprise. His fist froze in midair. It had only been a few months since they've met but it was as if the little supreme leader had turned into a different person. The original Lu Zheng had been mischievous and brutish. His body was built and his face handsome. When he tried, he could put on the airs befitting an official air of a famous sect. The Lu Zheng in front of Wen Leong right now was withered in body and sallow in complexion. He was so skinny that there seemed to only be skin clinging to his bones. His face was so gaunt that one would only notice the huge pair of eyes sticking out. If he were to be put into the dog-headed eagle's body, he could have been brothers with Qian Ren. Wen Leong may have frozen in midair but Lu Zheng did not hold back. Grunting in a low voice, he stretched out his skinny, chicken leg like hands and grabbed onto Wen Leong. Wen Leong quickly reacted. His hands closed around Lu Zheng's fists that were attempting to break his ribs. Wen Leong felt a strong gush of life force invade him, bursting into his chest through the supreme leader's hands, akin to an icy cold spear. Wen Leong's poisonous body immediately prepared to counterattack with the faulty punch. The two parties were locked in a battle in strength and Wen Leong was stumped once again. Chapter, 197 Lu Zheng's powers had increased tremendously from before. He could now fight on par with Wen Leong. Lu Zheng's life force was pure and sharp. However, he was obviously not accustomed to his new strength, or else even Wen Leong, who had his bones remolded by poison, might not have withstood his attack. After his initial blow, Lu Zheng retracted his powers and stopped his attacks. He frowned as he scrutinized Wen Leong. It is really is you. He waved for his disciples to stop their attack. Wen Leong's brows knitted together, what do you mean? Of course. It's me. Lu Zheng broke out into a smile. A sense of friendliness shone through his eyes but it vanished just as quickly as it came. I knew there was something strange about this town. Your powers have increased as well. This led me to believe that it was all some kind of trick of the eye cast by the enemy to deceive us. Lu Zheng's gaze shifted to the people standing inside the town's borders. They they're not the original inhabitants. Wen Leong nodded in response. They're my friends. We have just arrived here not long ago ourselves. Lu Zheng's eyes bulged all of a sudden. Then where are the town's residents? Where have they gone? Wen Leong shook his head. He did not answer the question and diverted the topic instead, what's going on here? He gestured towards the Kunlun disciples, who were recalling their flying swords and were slowly gathering around their supreme leader. Not had only Lu Zheng's powers improve, the magic powers of these Kunlun disciples were on the same level as the Kunlun sword seniors that he had met back at the city god temple of Shanghai. If it had not been for the giant pangolin's desperate attempt to stop them, when Leong would have suffered grievous wounds from the assault of the sword dragons. Lu Zheng hesitated before opening his mouth and speaking stoically, my master and the two immortal uncles have passed away. When Leong was taken aback at this discovery, he pulled Lu Zheng to his feet. Let's discuss this further inside the town. Lu Zheng did not protest. He instructed the 1000 Kunlun sect disciples to stand by. He followed behind Wen Leong. The giant pangolin Patu, who had been struck senseless by the divine swords earlier, slowly got to his feet. He returned to his earthly form and staggered like a drunkard into the town. When they arrived in the middle of the town, Wen Leong repeated solemnly, the enlightened person Tian Shu has passed away. Lu Zheng nodded rigidly, 
Uncle Tian Hua as well. Lu Zheng had shrunk down to just a bag of bones in the last few months. It seemed to be empty under the Taoist robe. Gu Xiaojun was worried that if Lu Zheng would break his thin neck just by nodding. Before the master passed away, he passed on his remaining powers to me and the Kunlun disciples. My uncle buried himself in the sword grave and called upon the sword with his spirit. Lu Zheng stated rather drilly. The abilities of the three sword saints of Black and White Island were unparalleled. Before his passing, the enlightened person Tian Shu had used a secret technique to pass on his remaining powers to Lu Zheng and all the Kunlun disciples. That was how the Kunlun sect as a whole had been raised to another level. Little supreme leader Lu Zheng had attained the level of power of an elite, like the old demon rabbit Bu Lu. If it has been the former Kunlun sect, the disciples would not even have the chance to activate their sword formation before Wen Leong had got a hold of Lu Zheng. The sword dragons had been a formation formed by the flying swords of the Kunlun disciples. It was not, as Wen Leong had thought, the thousand swords greeting magic spell that had been used at the sword grave at the feet of the Kunlun mountains. Wen Leong said with a soft smile, Thank goodness you did not cast the thousand swords greeting. He was trying to soothe and distract Lu Zheng. Lu Jing merely squinted his eyes in disapproval. He did not find Wen Liang's joke amusing. He said, slowly, word for word, the thousand swords greeting is used to kill Lu Jing changed the topic then. He lifted his eyes and looked at Wen Liang. Why are you guys here? Where are the town's people? Wen Liang roughly recounted their experience in Tour Town. The town's residents have left with the evil cult followers a few days ago. He lowered his voice, does the passing of the two sword immortals have anything to do with this town? Little supreme leader Lu Jing grunted in a noncommittal manner. He continued to question Wen Leong, in which direction did they go? Wen Leong did not answer but Gu Xiaojun, who was frowning, opened his mouth, we are investigating the nine-headed snake cult followers. You guys pose such a large force. If you meddle in this, it'll... Lu Zheng stretched out a hand and cut Gu Xiaojun short, if you are going to tell me, we will go look for them ourselves. I can't let them escape. Gu Xiaojun may have been a mere mortal but he showed no weakness in front of Lu Zheng. He said forcefully, if you want revenge, we will do whatever we can to help you but this issue involves the re-emergence of Xiang Lu. Nobody should act recklessly. Wen Leong hastily moved to stand between the two. Let's not quarrel. What exactly happened to the enlightened person Tian Shu and Tian Hua? Lu Zheng looked at Wen Leong and answered flatly, Master and uncle were badly injured by some scheming, wicked some men. The two elders had rushed back before their final breath and left us with a clue. He closed his eyes and said, word for words, in a cold tone, If we, the thousand disciples of the Kunlun sect, cannot have this revenge, we will gladly lay down our swords and follow the heroic souls of my master and uncle into the grave. These words had no effect on Wen Leong. He was merely puzzled. Who is this enemy you speak of? Also, the enlightened person Tian Yin still hasn't, in the Kunlun ranks, the only remaining member of the Three Sword Immortals was the enlightened person Tian Yin, who has not shown himself. Logically speaking, with such a serious matter taking place, the enlightened person should have come out of his seclusion and take charge. Wen Leong had only made it halfway through his sentence before he closed his mouth. Things must not be so simple, or else Tian Shu and Tian Hua would have looked for their big brother, enlightened person Tian Yin himself, and not the little supreme leader. Lu Zheng's expression turned savage for a moment but he regained his ice-cold demeanor just as quickly. When Leong had picked up from Lu Zheng's statements, other than the fact that the two swords immortals had died. One of them had passed down his remaining powers to his apprentice and the Kunlun disciples before his death while he cultivated the sword with his spirit. Other than that, he did not know anything else. After some thinking, when Leong opened his mouth and asked Lu Zheng. What do the deaths of the two enlightened person have to do with this town at the nine-headed snake cult followers? He followed that with a heavy and sincere promise. I will help you get your revenge. Lu Zheng did not react immediately. He answered slowly, long after Wen Leong had finished talking. He managed a weak smile as he waved lightly. 
The grudges of the master are like grudges of a father, I shan't trouble anyone else with this matter. He then turned and whistled to the Kunlun disciples. He said no more, just turned around and left. In the space of a blink of an eye, the thousand Kunlun disciples vanished from sight. When Leong stood riveted to the spot. Two out of three black and white island sword immortals had died. Lu Zheng led the Kunlun disciples, resorting to reckless tactics without first investigating. Every Kunlun disciple had been filled with hatred. When Leong and Old Gu looked at each other. They knew things had just gotten more complicated. When Leong hesitated for a moment before saying bitterly, even if the two enlightened had been badly injured, I would still have not been able to withstand their deathly counterattacks. A few months ago, Tian Shu had been badly injured by fifth brother Hanba at the city god temple of Shanghai. Enlightened person Tian Hua Tu had suffered grievous wounds and fainted after a fierce battle with Changli, San Wei, and Hanba. Even if this were so, killing these two heavily wounded elites, breaking through the many layers of prohibition spells that surrounded Black and White Island. Getting past the heavy protection of the Kunlun disciples, this would have been no easy feat. Cultivators on their level could also launch an extremely powerful counterattack before their deaths. The Kunlun sect had taken on a position of vengeful wrath. It was obvious that their foe was still at large. When Leung spoke out loud as he thought things over, his speech slow and steady, the Tibetan people of this town must have made us stay back to deal with the disciples of the Kunlun sect. The Tibetans had asked us to stay because they trusted in our abilities. The Kunlun sect's search had led them here. The deaths of the two sword immortals must be related to the town's bodyguards or that unknown evil sorcerer. If that is the case, I'm afraid to say that the magic abilities of the enemy are far beyond what we may have imagined. Old Gu snorted and nodded in agreement. There are many strong people among the magical practitioners under the heavens, there will always be something new that we have never encountered before but the investigation must go on. At that moment, Fei Fei suddenly jumped and shouted with some excitement, I get it. The others had been immersed in their own thoughts at this point, thinking about Black and White Island and trying to gauge the enemy's level of strength. All of them were startled by Fei Fei's sudden exclamation. Old Gu glared at his subordinate. What did you get? You know what happened on Black and White Island? Fei Fei reacted to her leader unprofessionally. She stuck her tongue out Old Gu playfully. Not Black and White Island but the monkey Qian Ren. When Leon could not help it to exterminate the bugs right then and there. Although it was mad with rage, it still hoped that it can be free again. That's why, after capturing the bug, it fabricated a lie about some fire master to make it seem less awkward. Also, it could see the outside world despite being stuck in that bird's belly. It must have noticed the Kunlun sect coming from miles away. When Leon understood then. He temporarily forgot about Black and White Island. The monkey did not wish for U.S. to bear a grudge. He was worried that the people we left here back on the surface would be killed by the Kunlun sect and we would take our anger out on him. That's why he chased us back up here. The monkey had been angry but it still kept a level head. It would not take any chances in escaping this hell and seeing the skies again. The old and little foxes had seen through the monkey Qian Ren's intentions and laughed together. Qian Ren sat inside the stomach of the dog-headed eagle. It rubbed its palms together with some embarrassment. It muttered under its breath, I can hear everything you say. Which of you called me a monkey? I will remember it. Gu Xiaojun wasted no more time. The group of Qilian immortal sect disciples embarked on their journey to send the message to Nine Peaks Mountain. The others quickly packed up and set out immediately. After meeting their enemy, they logically went after the big group. Xiao Sha had left tracking signals on the other evil cult followers. He had consorted with his secret fold magic ability to do this. He swiftly tracked them northwards. Although more than two days have passed, according to Xiao Sha, the evil cult followers and the Tibetan folk have not gone far. Xiao Sha could still follow their trail. The distance between them and the group was about 150 kilometers. Among the six of them, there were three individuals with amazing methods of practice. The head lama was a Tibetan Buddhism sect practitioner, 
when Leong had a body that had been refined by poison, and the giant pangolin was a great demon that has been alive for thousands of years. Their psychic nets were scattered far and wide. Initially, the Kunlun disciples had been within the boundaries of their psychic net but soon, they disappeared from it. Due to them having to rely on Xiao Sha to lead the way, when Leong and his group could not travel fast. The head lama grew anxious whereas the pangolin Patu seemed at leisure. It walked while its large tail wagged behind it. It had no intention of catching the evil cult followers. The pangolin merely stuck by Wen Liang's side, as if keeping an eye on a thief. It hoped that they would not be able to find the evil cult followers. As soon as the Wen family's insecticide arrives, the pangolin would exchange it for the dwarf Taoist priest and part ways with this group of people. Xiao Sha's tracking speed increased gradually. Few people passed through the highlands, which proved a good thing for his tracking skills. After passing through a low hill, the sight before everyone opened up and brightened. A cold, delicious breeze blew across their faces. A resplendent shimmer reflected in their eyes, the great and still Nadmso Lake. Even someone like Wen Leong, who cultivated in poison and had a tyrannical method of practice, was deeply awed by the purity of the highland's sacred lake. Above their heads, a sky so blue that it was hard to look away. Comforting, still blue waters before them. Lofty, snow-capped peaks glittered in the distance. A gentle breeze blew all their troubles and exhaustion away. When Wen Leong laid eyes on Natanso Lake, there was only one thing on his mind. If only I had brought Xiaoyi and Mumu with us. It was currently in the rainy season. There were only a few people around Nadmso Lake. A few devout Buddhists were walking around the lake and chanting sutras. Head Lama Rangyong was quite well known amongst these highlands. He was recognized the moment he showed up. They started to kneel before him and paid their respects, Head Lama Rangyong returned the gesture in kind. Xiao Sha was visibly delighted. It's easier to track them here. He looked to the three cultivators, can someone carry me? We can go faster that way. Old Gu climbed up on the giant pangolin's back, the head lama proceeded to carry Fei Fei. Xiao Sha patted Wen Liang's shoulder as he pointed, follow the lake westward. Don't go too fast, about forty miles will do. Wen Liang laughed and broke out into a run. Xiao Sha cheered loudly. After taking a couple of steps ahead, they stopped for Xiao Sha to pick up the trail again. Xiao Sha would observe for a while and point out the way. Other than him, nobody could see the marks that had been left behind. The three pairs moved faster than galloping horses. The few practitioners hurried along at wild speeds, long past the speed limit. Namso was regarded as a sacred lake by the Tibetan people. The practice of chanting sutras while walking around the lake has existed since ancient times. Legend has it, one could obtain many blessings by walking around the lake. An ordinary person may not be able to it feel but through the eyes of these practitioners, one would notice the sacred lake had magical properties. Running around the lake had become a form of training for them. Their life energy and blood flowed unhindered, giving rise to a sense of comfort from deep within the bones. Head Lama Rangyong chuckled as he explained to the others, Namso's sacred lake is so clean and pure, a heavenly water spirit must reside within its depths. Otherwise, achieving this state would be difficult. When Leong ran to the head Lama's side. He turned and asked with a smile, Heavenly water spirit. What sort of treasure is that? To put it simply, it is the soul of ice. It is the mother of Ean water, the gentlest of the five elements. King Geezer had been able to invoke the power of Namso Lake to create the Mandala Seal due to the presence of such a treasure. The gentle force of the water element enshrouds this great lake is from the heavenly water spirit. As we run along its banks, it does not affect our powers but it produces a healthy effect on our bodies. As the head lama said this, he turned to ask Gu Xiaojun who was on the pangolin's back, would you like to come down and have a run as well? The quicker your blood flows, the better you will feel. Gu Xiaojun quickly shook his head. At my age, I can't run that fast anymore. Wen Leong, being a young lad in his early twenties, could not help but feel great curiosity towards these legendary treasures. He slowed down and kept pace with the head lama. Then if I were to jump into the lake, 
will I be able to find this water spirit? Head Lama Rangyong nodded in earnest. You could, but the Lama looked then like a bald fox that had bet his friends to go beat the hunting hound instead of the heavenly highland walker he was supposed to be. Legend has it that the heavenly water spirit takes the shape of a drop of water. It would be near impossible to find it in such a, a large body of water. If you can find a way to test every single drop of water, perhaps you'll be able to find it. When Leong laughed, then you will have to make me two buns. He knew Hat Namso was a saline lake. Fei Fei too was interested in their topic of conversation. She asked the Lama with a small giggle, Master, what about our inlands Lake Dantang and Lake Tai? Do they contain such treasure as well? Rang Zheng nodded firmly. In the beginning, they all had them. The heavenly water spirit had definitely blessed the whole world. The origins of these lakes are only spoken of in legend. Not only the great lakes of the world, even the long and great rivers under heaven must be related to the heavenly water spirit. However, the lakes and rivers inland aren't as peaceful or calm as the ones on the highlands. The heavenly water spirit within them have gradually withered away but in Nanso, the purity of the sky and the earth gathers around it. Not only has this kept the water spirit alive but it has helped it to grow as well. I reckon it's now the size of a fist. Ha! If that's the case, mister. Wen's search will be much easier. Everyone laughed along humorously. After hearing the Lama's words, they consciously took deeper breaths. The air on the Tibetan plateau was thin. Their stamina was quickly exhausted with the vigorous exercise of running around the huge lake. However, as they ran along the lake, maybe it was just a placebo effect but their spirits lifted up. The group of picked up their pace but as night fell, even Fei Fei knew there was something wrong. The three knights grew suspicious. The faces of the three horses gradually turned pale. The giant pandolin Patu finally broke out hysterically. It cursed loudly at Shao Sha, little pstard, you're literally just taking us for a ride, aren't you? Head Lama Rangyong scowled as well. He looked like an angry deity. We have gone in a full circle. When Leon turned to Shao Sha and said, we're starting on a second round now. Oh, Namso Lake. The second largest saline lake in China. It had a perimeter of about 150 kilometers. Shao Sha had on a helpless expression. He defended himself in a soft voice. This. Tracking art is called mystery at every step. I can only read their footsteps and retrace them if they did a lap around the lake, then we will have to do the same. The giant pangolin exclaimed in surprise as he moved closer to Shao Sha, then what if they did ten laps around the lake? Shao Sha replied with a weary smile, then we will have to do ten laps as well. Even if all ten rounds of the enemy's footsteps were on top of one another, I can only make out the second round after we have finished the first. The giant pangolin rolled its eyes and pondered for a long while before saying in a shocked voice, there really is a mystery going on here. When Leong thought of another question. I thought you sensed there were about 150 kilometers away. This one lap around the lake is about that distance, isn't it? Xiao Sha smiled proudly, in a straight line. When Leong was dumbstruck. He stopped and cursed. That doesn't make any sense. You can only see the first step in a circle but then you say they are 150 meters away in a straight line. Gu Xiaojun was seething with anger. Why would you care if he makes sense or not? If everything made sense then where did those four buckets of water go? Stop your complaining and keep running. Nanso Lake was a place flowing with the power of the utmost gentle water element. As a result, they did not feel tired from their sprint around it. If it had been another place, even when Leong would have collapsed after the 150-kilometer marathon. The group picked up their pace again. Devout Buddhists, who were chanting sutras around the lake, stared open-mouthed at the little girl on Lama Rangjung's back. How many blessings do I have to accumulate at the chance for the heavenly walker to carry me around the lake? They pondered. Pangolin Patu's impatience started to rise. He cussed out loud, this bunch of evil cult followers must have been out of their minds. Going around the lake in circles, it was halfway through its curse when Xiao Sha suddenly cried out and pointed away from the lake, their circling ended here. 
the group changed their direction after making a lap and a half around the sacred lake. They traveled northeast and slowed down their pace. The further the enemies were, the fainter their tracks became. Xiao Sha may have some trouble tracing the steps if they went too fast, and the mounts dared not sprint wildly as they had done before. It would be troublesome if they exhausted themselves even before reaching the evil cult followers. Xiao Sha's tracking art may have led the group on a detour, making it seem slightly less efficient, but it did have one perk. They could clearly see where the enemy had been. When Leong asked Head Lama Rangyong as they hurried along, putting aside the evil cult followers, the Tibetan folk of Tour Town, could they have been praying for blessings while rounding the lake? The Head Lama shook his head in resolution. Impossible. They have already exited samsara. On top of that, they are now tainted with foul energy. They could not have done such a thing. I reckon that they plan on borrowing the power of the heavenly water spirit to enact some water-based dark magic. The giant pangolin smiled in triumph. The earth element flows through my body. If those crooked people are in fact preparing a spell using the water element, we've hit the jackpot. Gu Xiaojun took out his handgun. This is a weapon made from metal element magic. I'm not afraid of whatever dark magic they can conjure up. When Leung chuckled and asked him, you guys are relying on just handguns. Why didn't you bring something with more firepower? Anyone who went on an adventure to the wild would know that a handgun had a limited range, low accuracy, and little power. It would be useful in a close-ranged fight but against a larger beast, it would prove almost useless. Gu Xiaojun glared at Wen Leong, you try pinning a rifle to your belt. The comings and goings of the evil cult followers and the ex-guardians of Tour Town has been strange and mysterious thus far. In addition, there was now the great grudge borne by the Kunlun sect and for whatever reason, they have walked one whole circle around the lake. When Leong and his group could no longer make sense of the situation. They silently agreed that they would not discuss the matter anymore, merely chatting idly as they went on their journey. They followed Xiao Sha's lead and chased after the footsteps. Chapter, 198 The further they moved away from Namso Lake, the closer they got to the evil cult followers. Although there was supposedly no more than 150 kilometers between them and the enemy group, Xiao Sha's pace in tracking was slowing down. They could not seem to catch up with the evil cult followers. Every day, they camped and rested whenever Xiao Sha had completely exhausted himself. They continued on their journey at the first light of day. This cycle went on for four days until the lift Tangula Mountains come into view and blocked out the sky. Xiao Sha finally called for a halt. He scrutinized the ground and started turning on the spot. He walked a few steps to the left then jumped onto the right as if his body was spasming and he had lost all control over it. The giant pangolin glared at Xiao Sha and chided, What are you doing? Xiao Sha's face was filled with shock. He ignored Patu, running around back and forth the area. He kept busy for almost half a day before he stopped. He lifted his head to his companions as he stammered, they they parted ways. The eight groups had split up here, going in eight different directions. After taking a lap around the sacred lake Natmso, the evil cult followers had gone off northeast until they reached the Tangula Mountains. Upon reaching the mountain's base, they scattered in eight different directions, like a glass bottle that had been blasted to pieces. Xiao Sha did not wait for his leader to question before explaining himself, I had branded the leader of each group with marks, each distinct from the other. From what I can see, each leader led their own troops in a different direction from the rest. He stretched out his hand and pointed to the different directions as he sounded off, the Khmer people went southwest, the Persian people went northwest, the Surinamese people. What about the small town's guardians? Head Lama Rangyong interrupted, his brows furrowed in concern. Technically, the group that had gone froth ahead of them could be divided into nine groups. Eight of those groups consisted of the evil cult worshippers from the different regions and the last group was made up of the original inhabitants of Tour Town. The formerly loyal and brave guardians that had been left behind by the highland cultivator. Xiao Sha shook his head. The Tibetan people were too odd. I did not dare to mark them for fear they would notice me. I can't track them. He looked towards his leader. What do we do now? Gu Xiaojun responded without hesitation, find the Persians, 
follow them. Back during the elimination race, apart from the China team, the ones with the most eye-catching performance and outstanding abilities were the Persians and the Indians but the Indians had been annihilated. Old Gu was confident in his decision to locate the Persians. Xiao Sha turned westward and led the group in a chase. After some distance, Pangolin Patu swiftly plunged into the ground. He followed behind the group via under the earth. The head lama too kept his distance from the group, keeping himself out of sight. They did not want to be seen together with Wen Leong and the others as they had not originally traveled with the group. Xiao Sha was not a slow runner and traveled fairly quickly but Wen Leong grew anxious still. They ran for about 15 kilometers before Xiao Sha stopped again. Loft mountains rose in front of their eyes but around them, not a single soul was to be found. Patu poked his sharp head out of the ground, its face etched with impatience. Kid, why did you stop? Fei Fei grew defensive of her brother, turning and scolding the pangolin angrily, he needs to rest. No one can stand running endlessly for that long. Despite being physically fit Xiao Sha had, after all, ran the last fifteen kilometers. His face had turned pale. He panted heavily and shook his head. I stopped because the enemy's tracks have stopped. It ends here. The head lama caught up to them and rejoined the group. Patu emerged from the ground in a muffled boom. It ends here. What do you mean? Did they grow wings and fly away or something? Xiao Sha tried hard to calm himself. He squinted his already small eyes into one thin line. If they knew how to fly, they would have done so a long time ago. They would not have waited until now to do so. As he said this, he took out a shovel from the travel bag that Wen Leong had been carrying and started to dig. Old Gu and Fei Fei looked at each other and followed in Xiao Sha's footsteps. Wen Leong hastily took the shovel from Fei Fei and dug according to Xiao Sha's commands. Patu was a typical, worthless wretch. When someone asked it to do something, he would turn down the request and display a face of unwillingness. When nobody asked for his help, it would sulk in the corner wearing a look of boredom. Patu folded its arms and watched the group for a bit, then criticized them. Step aside, all of you. I am the ancestor of digging, I can do this much faster than any of you. Without giving them a chance to protest, the pangolin pushed them aside and dug into the ground. Patu's thick, strong arms made quick work of the earth while simultaneously using its back claws and tail to push the dirt out of the hole. Patu may have used magic to tunnel into the earth but digging was also a natural instinct it possessed. When it moved, the difference between it and other creatures was obvious. The giant pangolin worked at the speed of light within the 12-meter square drawn out by Xiao Sha. To anybody watching, the patch of ground before them sunk steadily into the earth, like tofu being scraped away by a knife. In no time at all, Patu had dug a pit about 10 meters deep. It called to the people above, they're coming out. With a whoosh, a bare-chested Persian man with a golden band around his left arm suddenly leapt out of the pit. His eyes were filled with deep grief and betrayal. He stared at the group with a fierce look. Fei Fei had poked her head into the pit to take a look when the gruesome, burly man shot up to meet her. She cried out and fell back in alarm. The sounds of gunshots rang out. Old Gu and Xiao Sha reacted quickly to the man. They had immediately pulled out their guns and started to shoot. Wen Leong smiled bitterly as he shouted into the pit, that was a bad joke. The man who had been shot did not cry out in pain. He did a somersault upon being hit and fell to the ground like a dead fish. Old Gu only saw it then, the man was already dead. Patu laughed loudly from inside the pit. It was a mischievous demon. When it had dug up the corpse, it had tossed the body up. At the bottom of the pit, a dozen or so corpses laid one on top of the other. They were all followers of the Persian evil cult, a golden band around their arms their gallant leader, Wahid, was among them. On every Persian's face was a look of surprise and anger. There was a deep gash on each of their backs. Despite having mentally prepared themselves while they dug the hole, upon seeing the corpses, Wen Leong's group still gasped in surprise. Patu and Wen Leong worked together to transport the corpses onto the surface, laying them neatly side by side. With Gu Xiaojun's help, 
Xiao Sha checked on the bodies while simultaneously calling out his findings. Liver mortis has set in, you can see this from where the blood pools. Their corneas are cloudy but their pupils can still be clearly seen. Rigor mortis is starting to leave the body the upper part of the body is starting to relax. These people have been dead for about a day to a day and a half now. Xiao Sha proceed to examine the wound upon concluding the time of death. Xiao Sha discovered a gruesome detail, all of the corpses were missing their hearts. Judging by their positions and the spray of blood on their wounds, these Persian evil cult followers had been bound and had their hearts carved out while they were still breathing. The technique they use to carve out the hearts is different from what I know. They swept in from behind Xiao Sha's already small eyes became even more impossibly smaller as he squinted with a frown. Other than the bodies below the earth, there were no other clues in their immediate surroundings. No footprints no signs of any battle. Old Gu nodded. He wasted no time in giving his next order. Let's follow another direction and find the other groups. After another six hours, Xiao Sha found the spot where the Khmer people had disappeared. The giant pangolin bore into the earth under the watchful eyes of the group. Like the Persians, the dozen or so skinny but bold Khmer people had been killed and buried. However, it wasn't their hearts which were missing. Their deaths were far more gruesome. The corpses were akin to empty canvas sacks, all their bones had been removed. Even their skulls had been removed by some strange and unknown technique. The only wound on them was positioned along with where their spine should have been. When Leong started to grind his teeth, Xiao Sha did not stop there. He led the group on to the other groups. At the third location, they found the Indians buried there. Their brown red skin had taken on a frightful pale color. Their bodies were shriveled and stiff. Their skulls were severed from their spines, bearing fatal knife wounds. Their corpses had been drained of all their blood but around the pit, there was not a single drop could be found. The town's residents had taken with them every single drop. In the fourth pit were the Surinamese people. Cause of death was similar to the Persians but it was their liver which was missing, not their heart. Digging up the bodies and checking them did not take a lot of time. The problem lies in the fact that these eight groups had all went in different directions. Xiao Sha's tracking skill could only lead them to the next group after they have backtracked to where the groups had first scattered. Even great elites of the magical world like when Leong and Rang Yong felt exhausted after running around all day and night, let alone ordinary people like Xiao Sha and Fei Fei. The speed of their investigation had dropped considerably, from finding the corpse pits to checking over the bodies. It was noon of the third day before they had managed to find the seventh group of followers. All of the groups had died violently and been buried in pits. But too cursed in anger, did these town residents have to divide them up and kill them separately? Why couldn't they have just killed them all in one go? All of the dead belonged to one evil cult or another, none of the bodies was Tibetan. Patu, who did not like to use its brain, could have easily guessed who the perpetrators of the murders were. The location each corpse pit varied greatly from where the groups had broken off from each other. Some were near while some were much farther away. Fei Fei bit her lip in frustration and said, it's some sort of pattern, we just can't see it yet. Fei Fei opened the notebook which she had brought with her. She drew out a map indicating the location of the corpse pits and showed it to the others. She chuckled, if we could superimpose a map of the world onto this drawing, you would be able to see it clearly. Where the groups had split up, that is the center and judging from the direction and the distance of each pit in correlation to the next, each group had been buried according to where they originate from. The center acted as the Tibetan plateau. They are some errors but they are negligible. These guardians sure are well versed in world geography. Fei Fei drew out a rough sketch of a world map next to her drawing of the corpse pit locations. She sketched the continents and oceans. As when Leon looked it was just as Fei Fei had predicted. If they had condensed the world map into a hundred kilometer map. The spot where the evil cult followers had parted ways was the base of the Tangula Mountains and the location of every pit was the coordinates for the country of origin for each group. The corpse pit of the Persian evil cult followers lined up with the coordinates of ancient Persia the corpse pit of the Khmer corresponded to the location of Cambodia the burial place of the Indians followed the location of the North American grasslands. Fei Fei was an intelligent girl. 
she had already realized the oddity of the situation after they had found the third corpse pit. After the Indians, she had instructed Xiao Sha to search for their targets according to which was the nearest to where they were. They had now dug up seven pits so far. The only one left was the pit which should contain their African brothers, which was furthermost from them. The giant pangolin took a look at Fei Fei's notebook. Its face filled with puzzlement. I had heard that the earth is round but what you drew it looks more like a butt and is flat. Fei Fei ignored the divine beast. She flipped over a few pages and read out the forensics data that she had been collecting. Seven out of eight groups of evil cult followers had been located so far. The hearts of the Persians had been carved out. The Surinamese people had their liver removed. The Canaanites were missing their spleens. The Australian aboriginals had their lungs taken out. The Khmers had all their bones removed, even their teeth. The Indians were drained of all their blood. The Gothic evil cult followers from Europe had suffered the most tragic death of all. Their corpses were nothing more than a mess of flesh, hair, blood, and bones. No one could tell apart the bodies, they were buried in one blood-red pile in the pit. Even if one had summoned help from every medical expert and makeup masters of funeral parlors from all over the world, there'd be little hope in restoring these bodies to their original looks. The seven groups all had suffered different deaths. Their time of death, other than the Goths whose were unintelligible, were all roughly the same. Upon Fei Fei finishing her report on the death of the evil cult followers, everyone stood around looking at each other. Other than Gu Xiaojun, who was an experienced and knowledgeable old fox, nobody could wrap their head around the matter. When suddenly faced with such a complicated case that had such bizarre causes of deaths, none of them could come up with any solid conclusion. After a while, when Leung said slowly, excluding the Goths who had been crushed into a mash of flesh, the other six groups, they each had their heart, liver, spleen, lungs, bones, and blood taken away respectively. Although I do not understand the use of each material, it must be part of a plan to cast some devilry art. This ritual must be related to the nine-headed snake. Rangyong was familiar with the powers of the Tibetan Buddhist magic. He knew a fair amount about the magic arts of the few sects on the central plains but he could not place where this kind of magic was from. After thinking hard for a while, he gave up and sighed, I don't get it. I don't know. I can be certain of one thing though. The African followers will be missing their kidneys. The others nodded in agreement. They had already noticed, from the groups that they have uncovered, four of the five internal organs had been removed. The final piece, the kidney, must be harvested from the evil cult followers. By the look of things, the African brother would not be able to hold on to their kidneys for much longer. The members of the group pondered with the thoughts in their own head. Gu Xiaojun took a deep breath and reminded his companions in a loud voice, we can discuss this further once we have found the bodies of the Africans. Gu Xiaojun may have been an ordinary human but he was the one with the greatest experience in solving mysteries, even more than all the rest combined. In his experience, the final clue always shed the most light on the situation. If one started to come up with any theories too early, they would hit a wall very soon and that would be of no help in finding out the truth. That was what he reminded the others of. Xiao Sha's complexion was pale. He had been hard at work for the past few days, tracing eight different sets of footprints. The corpse pit nearest to the breakaway point was 15 kilometers away. Xiao Sha was exhausted but he still managed to keep his spirits up as he continued to observe the tracks on the ground. The others did not waste any energy in commenting, just silently followed behind Xiao Sha. Fei Fei was heartbroken, seeing the exhaustion on her little brother's face. She fell to Wen Liang's side and asked softly, Does your family have any formulas or medicines which could restore a person's stamina? Wen Liang frowned and shook his head. We do but it is too strong for anyone not trained in venomancy. It would be like quenching your thirst with salt water, it would do more harm than good. If I gave this concoction to Xiao Sha, it would damage his heart and kidneys. Xiao Sha was shocked upon hearing this. He quickly shook his head he would not do anything that might jeopardize his kidney functions. As the sky started to darken, Xiao Sha stopped and sat on the ground. He pointed to a spot roughly three meters in front of him and looked towards the giant pangolin with tired eyes. Dig. 
Xiao Xia laid down and started to snore almost immediately. Fei Fei whipped out a sleeping bed and asked for Wen Liang's help to tuck her brother in. The giant pangolin knew that this was the final pit. The fog in the surrounding area was the thickest and most confusing here. Pa Tu started to claw away at the soil. The dark-skinned corpses were found just a few dozen meters below the surface, laid on top of one another. Patu tossed the bodies upwards while Wen Leong caught them and laid them beside the pit. Old Gu donned a pair of white gloves and took over Xiao Xia's role in examining the bodies. Wen Leong was well versed in his family's teachings. He also had gained some experience after studying the Jianghu. Wen Leong may not have possessed the deductive knowledge of death like Old Gu and Xiao Xia but he could at least point out the cause of death just by glancing at the corpses. When Wen Leong had caught the first corpse, he frowned. The corpse's dark skin carried a slightly purplish tone, indicating the cause of death to be strangulation. The bodies did not have any wounds on their backs, as the group had guessed. Wen Leong felt something amiss when he looked at the black man. He could not tell what it was though that bothered him. Patu was tossing up the bodies at a steady pace, leaving Wen Leong very little time to ponder over the matter. Wen Leong merely caught body after body and laid them down at Old Gu's feet. The bodies were slowly being cleared from the pit. The African cult followers all had clean, smooth bodies, with no fatal wounds on them. Their skins were purplish and their eyes had a white cast over them, it was obvious they had suffocated to death. Wen Leong finally realized what was wrong with the bodies. It was at this moment that the body of the African cult leader, Badis Tudatunt, was tossed up. The strings on Wen Liang's heart tightened. He reached out to catch the body when suddenly, Tudatun's eyes flew open. Tudatun's eyes were bloodshot and filled with malice. The previously still, bamboo thin body sprang to life, attempting to wrap both its hands around Wen Liang's throat. In the haste of the moment, Wen Liang could not tell whether Tudatun was not dead or was the body a zombie of some sort. All he knew was that he could not risk hurting Tudatun. The African strike was swift and sudden but it was still slow in Wen Liang's eyes. Wen Liang merely took a small step back from the pit, avoiding Tudatun's attack. Recognition flashed through the man's eyes. The African relaxed his fighting stance as he asked in a hoarse and surprised voice, Yang. Whack! Tudatun was hit by the next corpse that Patu had thrown up. Patu emerged laughing. It winked at Wen Liang. Did that give you a fright, kid? The divine beast was the ancestor of playing dead, Tudatun's trick did not fool it for a second. The demon was a prankster at heart though and did not want to expose the trick too early. Gu Xiaojun stomped his feet in anger. Luckily his dark brother had attacked when he did. If Tudatun had waited after Wen Leong had put him down with the other corpses, twenty old Gus would be dead by now. Tudatun recognized the group as his acquaintances. He heaved a long sigh and went limp, falling to the ground heavily. Out of the dozen African followers, he was the only one who had survived. With the giant pangolin's protection, Fei Fei escorted the African leader some distance away from the pit to question him. Wen Leong and the others crowded around the corpses of the Africans. They looked at one another in puzzlement. These people had not been disemboweled as they had predicted but instead buried alive after being restrained by magic. The stranger detail, which Wen Leong had failed to notice at first, was that these bodies had no hair. The hair on their heads, their eyebrows, even the fine hairs on up and down their arms and legs had been shaved off by the Tibetans. Their entire body was so smooth, with one touch, it made one's skin crawl. Old Gu held Fei Fei's notebook in his hands and tried to connect the eight clues that they had uncovered. He led the group to sit down and officially started their analysis of the case. The eight cult groups have had four out of five main organs removed, the spleen, lungs, heart, and liver. Hair, blood, and bone was also collected from the corpses. There was also the mystery item collected from the gruesomely, mashed-up bodies of the Goths. The Lama spoke first, from what I understand, no matter what spell or method they use, devilry usually asks for one or all five of the organs. There'd be no reason to take only four. Old Gu suddenly flashed a smile something about it was unsettling. He shook his head and said to the head lama, Master, 
You've only just arrived at this town hence you see yourself as a man on a hunt for an evil sorcerer. The truth is, we have another disguise. We are known as the Jogue sect. In the eyes of the Tuer Tibetan people, we are also a group of evil cult followers who worship the nine-headed snake. Oh no! Wen Leong cried out. His hands unconsciously went to where his kidneys were located. What you mean is that they're not done with the evil cult followers yet and they have counted in our kidneys as well? Master Rangyong squinted his eyes. He shook his head after some pondering. This doesn't make sense. If the evil cultivator wanted our your kidneys, he would not have just left. He would have at least waited for you guys before departing. Gu Xiaojun waved his hands dismissively. It's just an inference. Let's try to piece together all the clues first, perhaps that will make it easier for us to reach a conclusion. For now, let's count looking straight into the head lama's eyes, his tone got heavy. Our kidneys in as well. If one of the five organs were missing, nothing could be accomplished. Now, old Gu counted in their kidneys as well. Five organs, bones, blood, hair, and flesh. What can they do with them? Rather, what could this all mean? Old Gu's brows knitted together in concentration as he reiterated the story so far, the actions of the evil cultivator are somehow related to the nine-headed snake, Xiang Lu. Only nine groups of evil cult followers were left in the end, most probably to represent the nine heads of Xiang Lui. When Leong suddenly interrupted in an excited whisper, I think I've got it. Chapter 199 When Leong picked up a nearby rock and wrote out a few characters, metal, wood, water, fire, earth, sun, moon, stars, and chaos. He pointed at the words on the ground and said to Gu Xiaojun and the head lama, in the gold-consuming lair on Mount Chilian. We had unintentionally broken the cloaking spell one left behind by Grand Master Tuasya and met the heaven cone nail of the water element which the master had revived. Cone nail had told me that the heaven cone nails holding down Xiang Lu on Black and White Island were divided into these nine attributes. Every heaven cone nail corresponded to one of the heads of Xiang Lu. Together, using the power of the universe, they shackled down Xiang Lu and kept him bound to Black and White Island eternally. This knowledge about the heaven cone nails of Black and White Island could not have been known by outsiders. Wen Leong himself had only learned about the nine attributes out of coincidence. Wen Leong paused. He allowed Gu Xiaojun and Rang Yong some time to digest this new information before continuing, whether according to the practice of the immortal arts. Or folk medicine, or in the study of poisons of my own family, each of the five organs of the human body corresponded to each of the five elements. The liver that carries qi and blood throughout the body is governed by the wood element the fiery and strong yang heart is ruled by the fire element the spleen that transports water and food is affiliated to the earth element the lungs that purify the air we breathe is tied to metal the kidneys which store vitality and facilitates the movement of liquids is attributed to in water. The liver, heart, spleen, lungs, and kidneys, whether in Buddhist magic or following medical tomes, they each corresponded to the five elements of wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. Rang Zheng's eyes lit up. Bones that support the tendons and flesh are considered to be yang in nature, associating with the sun while blood which is attributed to the moon contains feminine yin energy and provides oxygen and nutrients to the whole body. The hairs the stars may be. There are many sutras and poems referring to the bones and blood as representations of the sun and moon but I have not heard much about hair. Gu Xiaojun laughed as he slowly began to understand. Let's just go with that, the hairs as stars. The mixing of bones and blood shall be the glare of the sun and the light of the moon, followed by the multitude of stars, uncountable as the hair on one's body. Ha! Make sense, make sense. Following old Gu's daring proclamation, when Leon continued, then the Gothic followers who were crushed into a pile of flesh, was chaos. All the bodies had been mashed together into one that nobody would be able to tell if someone had scooped away a few spoonfuls. When Leon was unsure of what he had just said. Nevertheless, the head Lama Rangyong nodded solemnly. Let's put it this way. Each of the nine groups had one element taken from their bodies by the cronies of the evil sorcerers, each element corresponds to one of the heaven cone nails. If Wen Leong counted in his own kidneys with the nine groups, 
five organs, bones, blood, hairs, and a lump of chaotic meat. Each of these items corresponded with one of the heaven cone nails subduing Xian Lu according to Buddhist magic laws. Old Gu smiled, his mind working a mile a minute. He shook his head and interrupted the head lama, this might not be related to the heaven cone nails but more of a dark recipe meant for the nine-headed snake. We may not understand the evil sorcerer's magic but the materials they had gathered had been extracted out of the bodies of Xian Lu's believers. No matter how I look at it, I don't think it's to make a weapon to shatter the heaven cone nails but more like ingredients in a soup recipe. A soup to nourish Xiang Lu's body. Maybe the evil sorcerer believed that the bodies of Xiang Lu's followers are capable of invoking a special effect in the evil creature. Old Gu added. When Leong chuckled as he patted his side. Then, with our kidneys missing from the list of ingredients, this soup might not be successful. Rang Yong nodded confidently. Whether the evil sorcerer or the tainted guardians of the small town, they have to find us sooner or later to perfect this soup. If they come looking for us, it will save us a lot of time looking for them. According to Saint Tu Tian Shu of Black and White Island, each of the nine heaven cone nails was tied to one of Xian Lu's nine heads. That was why the revived cone nail shared the same fate as the escaped wicked soul. Lucky for them, when Leong had learned about the nine heaven cone nails back at the gold-consuming lair. That made it possible for him to connect the happenings now to the nine heads of Xiang Lu. Across the eight corpse pits, it was apparent that each group had suffered and died in many different ways. Different parts of their bodies had been removed by the residents of Tour Town. Other than the water element, the eight other elements, metal, wood, fire, earth, sun, moon, stars, and chaos, were accounted for. With old Gu's sharp mind and Rang Zheng's vast knowledge, it should not have been difficult for them to surmise the intentions of the evil sorcerer. The answer was laid out right in front of them. The evil sorcerer was collecting ingredients from the bodies of the nine-headed snake believers to cast a spell to help the evil creature. As to why that person has picked the hearts of the Persians or the bones from the Khmer whether this was done with a purpose or randomly, it was irrelevant to the bigger picture so they did not dwell upon it. When Leon understood one thing though. Whether it was casting a spell or brewing poisons, if you only have 999 of the 1000 ingredients needed, it would fail. As long as they kept this in mind, meaning that they were to protect and hold on to their kidneys, this should keep the world at peace. The evil sorcerer's magic would prove useless. Old Gu laughed happily and boomed, the evil sorcerer's spell was doomed to fail from the start. We are not true believers of the nine-headed snake. Even if he did take my kidneys, I'm afraid it would prove to be useless. The evil sorcerer had spent a lot of effort into gathering the believers of the nine-headed snake onto the highlands and picked out nine groups from those present. Perhaps it was because their bodies had changed somehow from worshipping the nine-headed snake or through the refinement of their practice, and this was perhaps crucial to the magic of helping Xiang Lu. If the body parts of any normal folk would have been sufficient, the evil sorcerer would not have gone through so much trouble to gather them all. The three detectives had reached a conclusion while Fei Fei had also finished her interview with Tudatunt. She left the African leader under Patu's watch and dashed back to the group. Her face spoke of exhaustion but also excitement. I've got it, roughly. The beginning is more or less of what we have guessed so far. This tribe of Africans have believed in and worshipped this nine-headed snake for generations. Tudatunt is the leader of their tribe. Not long ago, while making sacrifices to their god, he received a divine reply. When Leung asked incredulously, there really was an oracle. That must have been quite the spectacle. The others have yet to grasp the seriousness of the situation, only had Lama Rangjung's face had turned pale. He almost forgot himself as he grabbed onto Fei Fei's wrists with his meaty hands. Are you certain? The black man received an oracle. Fei Fei kept her cool, unknown whether this was from all the training she had been through or she just didn't want to waste time. She simply shrugged and nodded, yes, I'm sure. The black man cannot fool me. Although they do not speak the same language, Fei Fei was skilled in observing expressions. She also knew some words of the North African grassland language. Coupled together with some hand gesturing, her communication with Tudatunt proved to be quite smooth. In addition, 
as long as the subject was human, any lie they tried to tell would not escape Fei Fei. Rang Yong noticed his inappropriate behavior then. His face flushed, he let go of the young lady in haste. He explained to the others in a solemn voice, I have always been worried about the matter of the oracle but I had not said anything as there was no concrete evidence for it. Gu Xiaojun snorted and egged on the head lama, Master, we're already this far in. You don't have to explain to us all your reasonings. Rang Yong rushed through the next part, the oracle itself isn't really anything of interest. These evil cult followers are believers of the nine-headed snake. Although their magic powers appear average, they are still connected to Xiang Lu. That's why, if Xiang Lu had wanted to contact them, it would not have been difficult. However, the crucial point here is that if Xiang Lu had wanted to do so, it must be the one to cast the magic. A hard thump interrupted the head lama. He turned to find Gu Xiaojun slumped on the ground. Old Gu did not bother to get back up. He stared at Rang Yong with frightened eyes. You mean to say Xiang Lu has already escaped from Black and White Island? The evil sorcerer whom Qian Ren mentioned could be Xiang Lu in human form. The lines on Master Rang Zheng's face was pulled taut. He remained silent. When Leon felt his heart beating wildly. He calmed himself and questioned Rang Yong, what if what if it was not the real Xiang Lu but instead was the escaped wicked soul? Rang Zheng's brows rose slightly. He looked at Wen Leon. What do you mean? The head lama had only read about how Xiang Lu was being subdued on Black and White Island through the power of the Heaven Cone Nails. He did not know about the one broken nail and the escaped wicked soul. Fei Fei and Old Gu had heard this story from Wen Leong before. They recounted the story of how one of the souls of the nine-headed snake had made its escape and was eventually sealed away in Hanba's body for thousands of years. Head Lama Rangyong heaved a sigh of relief after listening to their tale. The lines between his brows smoothed and he relaxed considerably. If this wicked soul had gathered enough power, it could have very well sent out the summons for the evil cult followers. Gu Xiaojun's expression did not lighten. He turned and looked towards Wen Leong. Could it be fifth brother Hanba? Wen Leong was worried about the exact same thing. This evil sorcerer had visited the small town of Tuer about a year ago. After the initial shock of hearing Master Rangjung's thoughts, Wen Leong determined that the evil sorcerer was not Xiang Lu. Wen Leong had just met Saint Tian Shu a few months ago. If the nine headed snake had escaped and was creating chaos, Tian Shu and Tian Hua would not have wasted their time in fighting Hanba. The demon cat Changli, the spark of evil, would have suffered divine punishment as well if Xiang Lu had really escaped from Black and White Island. The evil sorcerer from Tuer Town must be related to Xiang Lu one way or another to be able to spread the message that called upon the creature's followers. If he was not Xiang Lu's true body, then it must be Xiang Lu's wicked soul. The wicked soul had been greatly weakened by Grand Master Mi Su who used the Thousand Year Trick to bind it to the body of Fifth Brother Hanba, after being tainted by death energy. Unless Wen Liang's expression turned sour as he contemplated the possibility that the wicked soul had been controlling Fifth Brother Hanba. From the beginning till now, it was truly the wicked soul that had been causing havoc and tricked Painting Town, Changli, Sanwei, Cone Nail, and countless other elites. Everybody had thought Fifth Brother Hanba was in control of the imprisoned wicked soul. In truth, wicked soul had been controlling Fifth Brother all along, biding its time and waiting for the opportunity to strike and release Xiang Lu's true body. According to the Red Monkey Qian Ren, the evil sorcerer carried with him an aura of utmost darkness. This zombie would naturally absorb the foul energies of the world. Gu Xiaojun started shaking Xiao Sha, who was still tucked away in his sleeping bag and hastily started to pack for home. If the evil sorcerer really was fifth brother Hanba, his men would not have been able to go against him. Secondly, it seems that they have managed to dupe the sorcerer with their kidneys and have successfully put an end to the sorcerer's evil plans. Wen Leong tried to make sense of the information but his mind was a mess. He had been through too much recently. To his surprise, he could not recall any experiences or associations directly linked to Fifth Brother Hanba. Wen Leong could not come up with any reason to be suspicious of Fifth Brother Hanba but that does not prove the zombie's absolute innocence. Wen Leong decided not to think too much about past events. 
he shook his head at old Goo. We can't say anything for sure about Fifth Brother just yet. Perhaps there's another explanation for this. For example, the two swords immortals Tian Shu and Tian Hua. Greatest enemies, the Kunlun sect. Old Gu snorted. There's nothing to it. The wicked soul harbors a deep grudge against Tian Shu and Tian Hua. It took its chance to kill them while they were heavily wounded. Tian Yin may as well be dead, never to come out of his seclusion. Wen Liang's face grew fierce. If that's the case, then Lu Zheng should know the identity of the killer. Why did he not share that information with me? Gu Xiaojun could see that Wen Liang was desperate. He smiled bitterly and shook his head. Why are you asking me this when you already know the answer? Lu Jing knew you consider Hanba as kin, how could he tell you? Fei Fei suddenly interrupted, standing up to defend Wen Liang, that's not it. Lu Zheng's expression was full of pain and disappointment. When Wen Liang questioned him closely about the killer, he showed signs of shame. Gu Xiaojun's packing slowed down. Shame. What would he be ashamed of? As he said this, he waved his hand impatiently. Tian Shu and Tian Hua may have been murdered, perhaps by the tainted guardians of Tuer Town but I am not in charge of investigating such matters. We have already foiled the evil sorcerer's plan to help the nine-headed snake, I do not want to risk ourselves any further. Old Gu paused slightly after his statement. He said to Wen Leon earnestly, regardless whether Wicked Soul has truly taken control over Hanba, if you wish to pursue this matter, I suggest you bring Grand Master Chongli along with you. If it turns out that the evil sorcerer truly is Brother Hanba, you could not hope to defeat him on your own. Wen Leong shook his head confidently. I might not need to just yet. Hanba was ambushed by Sanwei and Cone Nail not long ago and was badly injured. His powers should still be greatly diminished. If we have to do battle, our chances of winning are high. Old Gu stopped his packing. He pondered for a while then broke out chortling. You should have said so earlier. I've played the role of the bad guy in vain. Gu Xiaojun's laughter only lasted for mere seconds before he changed back to his usual stern self. Regardless if this is connected to Hanba or the Wicked Soul, we should be heading back. As long as the evil sorcerer isn't the nine-headed snake, his identity doesn't matter. The devilry art that the evil sorcerer had wanted to use has already been thwarted by us, our mission has been accomplished. Wen Leong looked at old Gu with half a smile on his face. From his point of view, if this was truly a mission, it was just getting started. He had not expected old Gu to declare the mission over. Old Gu picked his next words carefully. He left out a groan before continuing to speak, smiling awkwardly. First, the mission that was given to me by my superiors is done. I'll have to speak to my leaders before acting on the matter of the evil sorcerer and the town's guardians. Secondly, to be frank, if we proceed with the investigation, we will not be of any help, we would also. As he said this, Wen Leong nodded in comprehension. He smiled and said, I understand. The Tibetans or the evil sorcerers will be hunting us. Xiao Sha's tracking art and Fei Fei's people reading skills had helped him a great deal in this journey but they were just ordinary people after all, with no magical powers to speak of. What would inevitably follow would be round after round of brutal killings. The three of them would be in harm's way with no way to defend themselves. The goal of Gu Xiaojuan's group for this trip was not to annihilate the Tibetan townspeople or apprehend the evil sorcerer but merely to investigate the evil cult followers who had entered the country in droves. If there truly was an evil plot going on, they were tasked to foil it and stop those plans. Old Gu made arrangements to leave Xiao Sha, who had been taking a nap, crawled out of the sleeping bag. His complexion was much better than before. When he heard that the mission had been accomplished and that his tracking art was a crucial factor in solving the case, he was immediately invigorated. Only Fei Fei stood rooted to the spot. She smiled bitterly at Gu Xiaojun. Chief, you have yet to hear Tutatun's full tale. It might still be too early to call it mission accomplished. Gu Xiaojun gave out an ah. The others then recalled that Fei Fei had only started talking the testimony that she had received when they got sidetracked by Lama Rangjung's oracle interference. Fei Fei had yet to finish her story. 
Gu Xiaojun asked cautiously, is something wrong? Fei Fei nodded her head. She pushed her little brother, go back to sleep, there's much more for you to do later. Xiao Sha did not argue, merely crawling back into the sleeping bag in response. It seems like he did not like to use his brain much and would gladly do as he was told. Fei Fei then started to recount the African's testimony. If one measured the time that has passed, it has been one year since the nine-headed snake believers had received their oracle back on the African grasslands. It matched up with Qian Ren's account of when the evil sorcerer had returned to the town the second time. The god which the Africans worshipped for generations had finally responded to them. The details of the oracle and the way it was presented could not have possibly be explained in its entirety between Fei Fei and the Dark Man but it was clear that they had been instructed to head for the small town of Tuer on the Tibetan plateau. Tudatunt had immediately gathered up the most skilled and devout tribesmen and departed on their journey. Fei Fei skipped over the travel processes that followed up to when the Africans had arrived at the town. Firstly, they had had the wisdom to form an alliance with Wen Leong and his group. They then won the ensuing battle easily without much fight and got through the elimination round unscathed. They were then led away by the Tibetan townspeople while Wen Leong and the others stayed back to deal with the enemy. Xiao Sha poked his head out from the sleeping bag. Sis, what else happened when the evil cult followers followed the Tibetan people out of town? Rang Yong, true to his nature, followed his heart. He wore his feelings on his sleeve and did not bother with the manners of an erudite person. He turned and stared at Xiao Sha in fierce disbelief. Have you forgotten already? Perhaps you riders did not have to think much about it but us mounts almost broke our legs. Xiao Sha understood then. We did run a lap and a half around the lake is that what Tudatunt is saying too? Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www. Web novel. Calm for visiting. Fei Fei's expression turned grim. When they were running around the lake, the Tibetan people had been trying to locate something. Although Tudatunt did not understand their magic, he could tell that they did not find what they were looking for. Everything he said after that is the same as we have concluded. The Tibetans had run around the sacred lake in vain. They then led the evil cult followers northeast, to the base of the Tangula Mountains. They split off into eight groups and headed in different directions. Every group consisted of evil cult followers and twice the amount of Tibetan people. Upon reaching this spot, Tudatunt was pinned down by the Tibetan people's magic, shaven clean, thrown into the pit to be buried alive. Although the Africans knew the art of breath-holding, they could not do it forever. Tudatunt's skill had been the most profound and was the only one who had managed to survive. When he had been rescued, Tudatunt initially thought that the enemy had returned. He continued to hold his breath and readied himself for a sneak attack. When he realized it was his friend Yang, he relaxed immediately. Xiao Sha asked in shock after Fei Fei finished, what were they looking for around the Great Lake? Fei Fei glanced at her little brother with a broken expression, then gave Wen Leong a smile and looked to the others warily. He's too tired. He just woke up and his brain is not functioning properly yet. Wen Leong smiled awkwardly, he was not following Fei Fei's train of thought. He did not understand. What were the Tibetan people looking for at the sacred lake? The head lama grunted in a low voice. There are countless musical instruments that have been tossed into the sacred lake by generations of great practitioners. However, those guardians who have exited samsara and tainted by evil energy would only be seeking their own demise by touching these musical instruments. Other than that, there is only one other great heavenly treasure left in that sacred lake. Wen Leong was shocked. The heavenly heavenly water spirit. The killing intent in the squinted eyes of the head lama was as cold as a blade. These arrogant, greedy men intend to desecrate the sacred lake. Fei Fei shook her head. She ignored head lama Rangjung's rage. The point is, what did they want the heavenly water spirit for? After she finished, she squinted her eyes and looked towards Wen Leong but no matter how hard she tried, she could not mask her naturally smiley face. I was listening to your theories just now. I think we all get the general idea but there's one crucial point you guys did not address. Currently, they are only eight of the nine snake heads are alive. 
All who cultivated in Buddha was of great patience and Rangyong was certainly no exception. He patiently explained the theory of spell casting or refining medicines. They can never do with one less ingredient from the nine elements. They could not just ignore the use of the material just because one of the nine heads had died. Even if Xiang Lu only had one remaining head, they would still need to gather all nine ingredients if they wished to nourish the beast through some form of devilry. Fei Fei chuckled and shook her head. That doesn't make any sense, it's too coincidental. How is it that the dead head is of the water element and that we are in such luck? Cone nail was of the water element, the dead head of the nine-headed snake was also of the water element. Currently, out of all the materials from the eight groups, only the kidneys, which was of the water element, was the only one of the five organs left. The probability was like one out of nine. Although the chances were not that slim, to have run into it was a great coincidence on its own. Authors note, after I wrote this, I felt something was amiss. If one were to pick nine materials from nine groups, the probability of one Liang's group being chosen to have their kidneys picked would be one out of nine. Those who are good in math can help out in calculating this. If you can't do it, then let us all go ask Zhang Xiaohua. Fei Fei stared at Wen Liang, eyes wide and unblinking. Rather than saying that we got lucky, I for one feel that they never wanted our kidneys. This explanation seems far more likely. Besides Fei Fei's voice rang out like an unyielding, yellow aureole, crisp and unrelenting. The way I see it, the Tibetan townsfolk would never go looking for us again because they never wanted our kidneys in the first place. When the Tibetan people asked us to stay behind in Tour Town, they didn't mention anything about wanting us to catch up to them. Wen Leung finally got the picture. AR first, Wen Leung and the others had not known the contents of the oracle. That was why they could not guess why the Tibetan people had wanted to leave them behind in the town. Now, through Tuta Tunt, they knew the oracle had only summoned them to Tour Town. Whatever was to happen after, even the evil cult followers had no idea. That was why, if Wen Leung and the other truly had been evil cult followers, they would have listened to the town's residents and stayed back to keep the enemy at bay. If the Tibetan people did not return, they would have never left. It can be said that the Tibetan people had left the Chinese representative team in the town to perish. They had wanted Wen Leung to help them guard the seal with his remaining years. Of course, the Tibetan town's residents did not know that Wen Leung's group were undercover agents. Naturally, they did not think that the group would have followed after them. Having understood that, Wen Leung and Old Gu looked at each other in alarm. Luckily they had not caught up with the Tibetan people or else their cover would have been blown. Finally, Fei Fei left no more room for second thoughts as she waved and said resolutely to Wen Leung, so, all that you have inferred earlier were all wrong. Wen Leung was slightly puzzled. The inference had clearly been made by Gu Xiaojun, since when did they become his? Then it hit him, Gu Xiaojun was Fei Fei's superior. Fei Fei read Wen Leung's mind in a glance. She giggled and stuck out her tongue. She did not wait for anyone to raise any more questions as she continued, from what I can see. The Tibetan people had wanted to gather the nine materials that govern the five elements, the sun, the moon, the stars, and chaos, but the thing that governs water. It seems like they have found a better replacement for it. That's why they went around the lake. Head Lama Rangjung's eye twitched. You're saying that they wanted to find the heavenly water spirit? The heavenly water spirit contained the pure power of the water element. To use it as a replacement for the kidneys of Wan Liang's group, from the aspect of function, it was plausible. But when Liang's voice was hesitant, didn't Tudetunt say that these Tibetan people could not find the heavenly water spirit from the lakeside? Maybe there's some other heavenly water spirit somewhere else? Who knows? Fei Fei answered helplessly. Fei Fei's inference was similar to the one made by Gu Xiaojun, Wen Leong, and the others earlier. The evil sorcerer and the living dead guardians under his control wanted to gather all nine materials which symbolized or contained one of the nine attributes to cast some sort of devilry art. The difference in their judgment was that old Ji Yu had thought that among these nine materials, the evil cultivators still needed their kidneys while Fei Fei thought that the item the other party was looking for was the more powerful heavenly water spirit. Without a doubt, Fei Fei's theory was more precise and concrete. 
she had basically persuaded Gu Xiaojun that regardless of whether the evil sorcerer had found the heavenly water spirit, he would not be coming back for their kidneys. Things seemed to have cleared up. According to Fei Fei, many more mysteries laid on top of the case and could not be resolved yet. Wen Leon went through all the facts in his head once more. Although nine teams had remained after the elimination rounds, the other party had needed only eight teams that was why they left the strongest team behind to guard the town in the Tibetan people's place. Maybe they had wanted them to snipe the enemy, maybe they had wanted them to protect the seal. After all, the evil sorcerer had something more important to attend to. If the sealed monster had broken free, it would not be beneficial to him. The remaining eight teams had their bones removed and hearts carved out. Each of them met with different misfortune. Other than the water element, all other eight elements were accounted for. Due to the fact that Xian Lu's water element had been dead, they needed another more powerful water element treasure in the process of casting their spell. That was why the evil sorcerer had set his eyes upon the heavenly water spirit. Currently, the whereabouts of the Tibetan townsfolk were unknown but according to Fei Fei's prediction, they should be looking for a way to obtain the heavenly water spirit. With a thump, old Gu tossed his backpack which was over his shoulders back onto the ground. If they are not coming for us, we are going after them. Where did those zombies go? Who had a way to locate them? One the term, prohibition spell, has been changed to, cloaking spell, dot. Two the term, enlightened person, has been changed to, saint, dot. Chapter, 200. Xiao Sha shook his head from his place inside the sleeping bag. For safety reasons, he had only planted markers on the evil cult followers. He had not expected the Tibetans would kill every single evil cult follower, leaving him without a clue. From Wen Liang's perception. It does help that they came up with some conclusions but the actual facts do not perturb him. He has already made up his mind to investigate the evil sorcerer's identity, with or without any help. Wen Liang looked towards old Gu in excitement. I take it that you will not be leaving. Old Gu shook his head, why the hell should I leave when the mission is still not complete? As long as the evil sorcerer's plans were yet to be foiled, Gu Xiaojun's mission was still considered incomplete. When Leong smiled as he consoled old Gu, I will be teaming up with head Lama Rangyong to investigate the later events. Before Wen Leong could finish his sentence, Gu Xiaojun heaved a sigh and interrupted him. Do you think I do not want to leave yet? When he could not come up with a solid plan, Old Gu always relied on his instincts and experience as a soldier, even though he was just an ordinary human, no matter whom the enemy he was facing. Gu Xiaojun waved his hand. The odd expression on his face vanished, switching back to his usual look of command and experience. He frowned as he spoke to Xiao Sha, think hard again. The Tibetans shaved away the African cult followers' hair, is it possible that? Xiao Sha shook his head so hard that his teeth chattered. That's not how the trick works. The markers I placed are completely unrelated to. Fei Fei stood by frowning. She had been contemplating something from where she stood and finally, she spoke slowly, Chief, please let me try. As she said this, she fished out a GPS device from the bottom of her backpack and being to operate it swiftly. Fei Fei tinkered for a bit, then swept a beaming smile towards the three magic elites, Wen Leong, Rang Yong, and Putu. Which of you immortal seniors could please give me a lift and run for another few rounds? We will need to revisit every corpse pit as I need to download the coordinates of each location. Wen Leong was a spry young man and would usually have no problem running for a bit while carrying a girl on his back. Running up to all eight corpse pits with almost no rest in between. That was proving to be quite the challenge. At every corpse pit, Fei Fei would download the coordinates of their location. This process took no less than half a minute before she was jumping up on Wen Liang's back again, yelling, to the next one. Wen Liang gave out a strained laugh as he ran, tilting his head to look at Fei Fei and ask, why did not do this earlier? Fei Fei shook her head, her face filled with regret. This did not occur to me earlier. I was only focused on figuring out the cause of death of the evil cult followers, that's why I did not think to download it. Even though when Leon could move as fast as the wind, by the time they arrived back at their campsite, the sky was already brightened. Fei Fei did not care for any rest, instead started bustling about her device, 
connecting the coordination of the eight corpse pits. With the aid of the GPS device, the calculations which resulted were much more accurate than what Fei Fei first drew on her map. Patu was a creature that strove to make headway into any situation. It looked towards Head Lama Rangyang, who was smiling serenely but not speaking, and then to Wen Leong who was panting on the ground. It finally could not conceal its curiosity any longer. Pe Tu moved its huge head closer to Fei Fei and asked, What are you doing? Head Lama Rangyong immediately followed and nodded fervently, That's right, that's right. Please tell us, quick. I have been wanting to ask that question since earlier. Pe Tu shot a glare towards the Lama. You were smiling in such a steady and sure manner that I thought you knew what was going on. Rangyong sniggered as he shook his head. She was so focused on her task earlier, I didn't want to break her concentration. Fei Fei giggled and started to explain in a calm and composed manner, as we discussed earlier if the positions of the corpse pits are located as I predicted on the world map. Then knowing where burial grounds of the evil cult followers are, we can predict where they had come from. Gu Xiaojun nodded. That is correct, so. Patu turned its huge and square face towards old Gu, turns out you do not know what this little girl is up to as well. Why did you not ask? Old Gu burst out laughing. I do not usually ask about the process, I merely wait for results. As he said this, he waved to Fei Fei to continue speaking. The Tibetans did a thorough job. They made certain to kill these people at a certain location so there must be some purpose for that Fei Fei continued. Head Lama Rangyong smiled then, he continued Fei Fei's conversation, uh, I do not fully understand the principles of devilry arts but I think I can make a guess on its effects. These evil cult followers may not have possessed great magical powers but they had magical powers nonetheless. Of course, they would have acquired a certain level of power after having practiced from some time, that is to say, their abilities would have been much stronger if they were back on their own native homes instead of in a foreign location. At this point, the head lama frowned. The group looked at him with a mixture of curiosity and loss. The Lama's words were a little too abstract for them to understand. Rangyong pondered for a moment as if trying to think of a better way to explain himself. He spoke again after a few minutes, rephrasing, let me put it this way, think of the evil cult followers as medicinal ingredients. The Persians were like ginseng grown in the mountains, the Khmer were the lingji mushroom from snowy peaks, etc. etc. The ginseng's medicinal effects are strongest when freshly picked from the mountains and forests. By the time it is taken to the inland, no matter how well preserved, its medicinal effects would have greatly diminished. The evil cult followers that worshipped Xiang Lu are also the same. After this explanation was provided, Wen Leong could roughly understand the story. He came from an elite family devoted to refining and learning about poisons for many generations past. In essence, this concept was the same as refining a poison. The toxicity of a poison ingredient was much purer and stronger when used and harvested in its own cave rather than in another location. When Leong responded to Rang Zheng's statement, the evil sorcerer cast a magic spell to dig out the heart of the Persians. If these hearts had been dug out from them back in their homeland, its effect would have been much greater there. When their hearts were dug out on the highlands, its effect was greatly reduced. Rang Yong could finally convey his theory in an understandable way. He laughed heartily and nodded. That is correct. It is the same for these evil cult followers. The evil sorcerer did not have the energy to travel all around the world to visit the birthplaces of these followers to harvest their hearts, lungs, bones, and blood. That was why he lured them put into the desert. However, in order to achieve and maintain the maximum effect, at the base of the Tangula Mountains, the evil cultivator had exerted his power in creating a miniature version of heaven and earth. This miniature version of heaven and earth may have been a scaled down but it was complete in terms of ratio to the real world. Within this space, he matched the evil cult followers to the location of their native homeland and killed them there, extracting the materials he needed. Ranyong halted for a moment, allowing the group time to digest and understand what he had just told them before providing them with the conclusion. Rather than killing them in any random location, by doing this, he had managed to extract materials which have a better effect. Simply put, 
the head lama's convoluted theory was that the residents of Tuer town chose to kill the evil cult followers on selected locations, which were in accordance to their native lands, in order to achieve and maintain the medicinal effects of the parts extracted from them. Find authorized novels in Web Novel Faster Updates, Better Experience Please Click www. Web Novel. Calm for visiting. Fei Fei stared in bewilderment at that theory. She had not expected the head lama to be able to unravel the evil sorcerers and his followers' methods. His statement sounded very plausible. She nodded her head and continued to explain her idea, I wasn't thinking of that. Head Lama Rangyong looked disappointed for a moment. I was only thinking of the fact that the evil sorcerer had instructed to kill those Xiang Lu followers in very precise locations. This would certainly be a matter of extreme precision for the evil sorcerer. There must be no mistake in calculating these locations. Where they were told to kill the people and dig out their hearts, that would be where the Tibetans would kill the followers and dig their hearts out. The group nodded in agreement. Fei Fei was indeed an intelligent young lady. Even though she was unaware of the evil sorcerer's ways and practices, her own speculation comes very close to head Lama Rangjung's explanation, who has extensive and strong cultivation roots. A smile hung on Fei Fei's face, making it so no one could read her expression. She spoke her next words full of pride, it was only because of the unsuly precise locations of where those evil cult followers had been killed, I had thought of a method that could possibly be useful in locating them. That was why I requested Wen Leong to run with me on a trip. Wen Leong had been listening to many stories for the past few years. He had already become a professional audience. He chimed in and asked, what method is that? Fei Fei nodded at Wen Leong with eyes of joy, she pronounced each word carefully, distance. Direction. No matter how small the map of the world was scaled down, they would still require a point of reference, a united and original starting point. That means the person who drew the map and the position that he used to observe this miniature world must be a fixed location. Do you understand that? Old Gu and Xiao Sha, who had received strict training on the knowledge of surveying and drawing maps, nodded without the slightest hint of hesitation. Tudatunt was at a loss for what to do. He cracked open his lips in a smile, revealing two rows of ghastly white teeth as he sniggered. Xiao Sha had since come out of the sleeping bag. He was originally a healthy person and had rested for more than half the night, he had regained his energy by now. He chuckled as he tried to explain to Wen Leong. If you were to draw a map, he stretched out a hand and placed two pieces of rock on the ground, one big and one small. In order to get an accurate measurement of the distance between these two pieces of rock, you will need to fix your position. Only then can you scale down the size of these rocks and the distance in between in the correct ratio and draw out precise illustrations. No matter which mapping point you choose, during the process of drawing the map, you change change your location. If you fail to do this, for example, you draw out the distance of you and the big rock is one kilometer away, then you run two kilometers towards the small rock and draw it at from that point. If you refer to the map that you have drawn, the distance between the two rocks would certainly be inaccurate, do you understand that? As Xiao Sha was not very articulate and when Leong did not possess any basic knowledge of mapping, he could only understand the rough idea. Nevertheless, he understood the heart of what they were saying. In order to draw out a precise map, there would have to be one fixed mapping point, which would be the original starting point mentioned by Fei Fei. The giant pangolin Patu gave out a, ha, as it said, stop talking about the big rock and the small rock, it's better if you not mention it at all. You're making us more confused. Fei Fei could feel the group coming around to her idea, she continued, this mapping point could be any location, it doesn't have to be in the center of this miniature heaven and earth. We're currently trying to locate the mapping point of this space. Theoretically, it is where the map drawer stood when they cast the spell. This mapping point could be of importance but it could also not mean anything. Worst case scenario, the evil sorcerer could have simply found a random spot and decided where the pits should be after. We may not find anything even if we rush over there. Best case scenario, the evil sorcerer had set up base there since the beginning of their plan and has not moved from that spot. That base may have become the mapping point for the miniature heaven and earth out of convenience. No matter what the circumstances may be, 
they would still have to check out that spot and clear it of any suspicious activity. When Leon was frowning so hard that his brows twisted like a pair of pretzels. He understood everything Fei Fei had sighed but to him, trying to locate this mapping point was like giving him a world map and asking him to find the position of the person who drew that map. Fei Fei looked towards Wen Leon with a smile. She shook her head gently, it's not like what you imagine. Wen Leon hastily stretched out his hand and rubbed his face. When I'm with you, I can't get even an inch of privacy. Fei Fei laughed out loud. A different mapping point will not affect the ratio of the map but it will affect the position of the corpse pit. If the location was a different point, all the locations of the corpse pits would rotate accordingly. This was known as the principle of equidistance. Fei Fei held a GPS in her hand which she used to download the coordinates of the corpse pits and the actual coordinates of the represented land from the world map. This was not a difficult thing to do, simply time consuming. About an hour or two later, Fei Fei cheered in glee, the zombies have entered the mountains. The point is on the Tangula Mountains, to the southeast slope of the Jeladangdong Peak, on the Jiangandira Glacier. Gu Xiaojun and Xiao Sha jumped up simultaneously. They started packing swiftly, preparing to depart as soon as possible. Gu Xiaojun was brimming with enthusiasm upon determining the target of their mission. In high spirits, he fed the group with the geographical knowledge he possessed, the Jiangandiru Glacier is also known as the Jiangandiru Snowy Mountain. It was formed way back in ancient times. The ice has been accumulating there for thousands and millions of years. The ice is a dozen meters thick, maybe even in the hundreds. It's a place on the highland where few people tread. Xiao Sha tossed all the heavy luggage onto Wen Leong and head Lama Rangjung's back unceremoniously. He chuckled as he continued old Gu's sentence, the Jiangandira Glacier was completely unknown to man but it was marked down during a geological expedition to find the original source of the Yangtze River. It was determined that these snowy peaks were the source and thus the location rose to fame. Wen Leong laughed. The opportunity for the descendants of the Yan and Huang Emperor to visit the source of the Yangtze River was indeed a fortunate event. Suddenly, a thunder-like roar erupted from Rangjuan's throat. In that instant, Wen Leong thought that an enemy was approaching. Before he could react, Head Lama Rangjung's has already moved, looking like a fire cloud in his red robes. His body flashed past Wen Leong as he moved to Xiao Sha's side. He grabbed Xiao Sha's wrists, what are you say oh no? Before Rang Yong could finish his sentence, he jumped up, hands trembling. With a sound of a crack, Xiao Sha's entire arm dropped out of its socket and into the Lama's hands. Rang Yong had not intended to hurt Xiao Sha but he had not expected Xiao Sha to be so fragile. Strangely, Xiao Sha's face did not show any signs of pain or agony. He looked at the Lama serenely, Great Master, you ought to be more careful. The bones and bodies of an ordinary human cannot bear to be grabbed by you so forcefully. As he said this, his shoulder shook. From the sleeve, fresh blood spurted out and an arm started sprouting out. Rang Yong realized he had been tricked by the small-eyed boy's folk magic. He turned around and looked down at the arm he held in his hands. The arm felt absolutely lifelike in its appearance and texture. There was no way to tell if the arm was real or fake. Rang Yong tossed the arm back to Xiao Sha. His worried expression was replaced by a look of mixed emotions, not knowing whether to laugh or to cry. He continued his earlier line of questioning, is it true that the Jiangandiru Glacier is the original source of the Yangtze River? Xiao Sha nodded in confirmation. He asked almost in a mocking voice, the Great Master has been a heavenly walker on these highlands for decades now. How could you not know of this? I did not know, I did not know Rang Yong frowned, obviously distracted. A few moments later, he gave out a forced laugh and said, this is still about the heavenly water spirit. There is certain to be a strong heavenly water spirit of the original source of the great Yangtze River. The evil sorcerer and his minions have entered the Tangula Mountains in search of this precious water element. The Tibetans had failed to locate the heavenly water spirit of the Namso Lake thus, led by the evil sorcerer, the enemy group had rushed towards the original source if the Yangtze River on the top of the Tangula Mountains. They had already killed all the evil cult followers before they entered the mountains. 
it seems they were determined to acquire the heavenly water spirit that was located on the Jiangandira glacier. Maybe the evil sorcerer had even found his prized treasure by now. Gu Xiaojun and Wen Leong wasted no more time. They immediately moved to depart when a series of babbling shrieks rang out. Tudatunt ran over and stretched out his arms, blocking everyone's way. He shrieked continuously as he gestured. His intention was obvious, he wanted to follow the group into the mountains. He wanted to avenge his fallen comrades. You are lucky you weren't killed. You should go home. Tudatunt's gesturing became frantic. The giant pangolin grabbed a hold of him and tossed him some feet away. This was an urgent matter. When Leong and the rest did not have time to argue with their African brother. Not to mention that these three cultivators would be carrying the luggage and one special agent each on their backs. They moved swiftly and in a flash were gone, disappearing under the foothills in the blink of an eye. Tudatun's face was filled with sorrow. He stood up and brushed the dirt off himself. Clenching his teeth, he ran towards the direction of the Tangula Mountains after the group. When Leong and the Divine Beast Patu were used to seeing high mountains and great rivers. Upon first entering the greatest mountain on the highlands, they were slightly disappointed. The place was not as grand as they had imagined. The mountains were not as jagged or steep as they had predicted. After having run some distance, they felt the sky was so low that it was about to fall on top of their heads and crush them. The blanket of white clouds above their heads was like blooming white lotus flowers, auspicious and friendly. The winds of the Tangula Mountains were not so friendly though. It was bitter and cold, bidding into there like the howling, chilly winds in the dead of winter but the air was so thick and heavy that no ordinary person could have endured it. It pressed on the bodies of the explorers mercilessly, every step they took felt like it took every ounce of energy they had. When Leong had not expected the Tangula Mountains to be as luxuriously green and idyllic as his family home but he had also not expected the hike to feel so heavy. The sensation was less like they were hiking the mountain, more like the mountain was hiking them. Neither of the three cultivators cared to show off. They hurried through their journey in the day and at night rested for a fixed six hours. Every one of them understood that a violent battle was on the horizon. On the third day, they crossed a nameless mountain ridge and finally strode over the snow line. The main peak of the Tangula Mountains, the Jeladangdong Peak, was near. It looked like a giant beast that was sound asleep. Its towering body curled up into a ball laid down quietly. Nobody knew if this beast was truly asleep or if it was merely closing its eyes, secretly peering at however entered the mountains. Since crossing the snow line, when Leon could not help but slow down his footsteps. He did not dare to speak too loud. He had yet to absorb the poison of the surrounding water element. He did not wish to cause a collapse of the snowy peak with his faulty punch. These soaring mountains were high and lacked oxygen. Even Fei Fei's laughter sounded strained. There's no need to be so cautious, it's fine to speak out loud. The cause of an avalanche is actually due to the melting of glaciers and natural gravity. Frankly, even if a helicopter passed through, it would not trigger an avalanche. The probability of snow collapsing from one's shouting is non-existent. However, an avalanche is certainly terrifying so everyone is very careful about it. That is why they pass on false information on to others, out of fear. Upon saying that, she started shouting loudly as a prank. Xiao Sha was on the head llama's back. He turned around and shouted towards Wen Leong, if an avalanche is capable of being triggered by the sound of a voice, it would also be triggered by the footsteps of hikers. Those that hike snowy mountains often use ice picks to dig into the road, the clanging sound that action makes is much more aggravating than the sound of any human's voice. When Leong hastily picked up his pace. He spoke to Xiao Sha in a voice filled with caution, it is best to be careful. My encounters for the past few years have all been low probability events. The giant pangolin that was walking at the head of the line slammed its tail. It turned around and scoffed. It shot a one lay on a contemptuous glare. Can your encounters be any more than mine? This old father can even dig out an old demon every time it burrows underground. Wen Leong had not heard such a carefree thought in the last few days. He could not help but laugh out loud. 
His crisp and loud laughter echoed through the mountains. The echo of his laughter rang throughout the snow-capped mountain. It sounded like the mountains were haunted. Just as the sounds of Wen Liang's laughter faded, a loud crack sounded. The crystal clear sound of cracking ice reached everyone's ears. The three transport vehicles stopped dead in their tracks. They stood looking at one another and thought in their hearts that this could not really be happening right now. The crunchy sound of ice cracking rang out continuously. A spider web of fissures started appearing about 10 meters away from the group, but the fissures moved slowly like someone was using a chisel to knock on the ice from underneath the surface. In a few moments, with the sound of a pop, the ice sheet broke in the shape of a hole the size of a well. A white, shadowy humanoid figure leapt out of the hole like a fish. When they realized it wasn't an avalanche, Old Gu, Xiao Sha, and Fei Fei let out a sigh of relief and watched the man who had just sprung out of the ice with intense interest. On the other hand, Wen Leong, Rang Yong, and the giant pangolin gazed at one another in astonishment. The expression on their faces was hideous. One of them achieved saint status from introducing poison into his body, the other was a master in the mindful training of the Tibetan Buddhism sect, while the last of them has achieved mastery in the demon arts. They had already cast out their psychic net to cover their entire surroundings but even now, when their eyes could see the white shadow's facial features and even the frost between the man's brows, their ability still captured nothing. They could not sense this man's presence at all. The person that had suddenly appeared was not old. He appeared to be a youth of thirteen or fourteen years old, being of bony and short stature. There was nothing remarkable about his appearance but his entire person seemed to shine and was transparent like he was built out of ice carving and snow bricks. His white robes covered him from head to toe so he appeared to be fused to the entire snow mountain. The white-robed youth sized them up carefully. After a while, he looked towards Gu Xiaojun who appeared to be the oldest in the group, where are all of you heading? When he spoke, everyone was startled. He may have had a snow doll-like and youthful appearance but his voice was surprisingly hoarse. It pierced at one's eardrums it was as if there was a razor blade stuck in his throat and he slashed every word he spoke into two. Even when nine and when thirteen could have seen that a person who could break through an ice sheet dozens of meters thick was no ordinary person. Gu Xiaojun's face was ghastly pale, the expression on his face could not be read. Who are you then? An obscure cultivator of the Tangula Mountains. As he spoke, Old Gu squeezed the giant pangolin's shoulders, signaling the beast to be prepared. The white-robed youth had arrived in an absolutely unprecedented was and could possibly be related to the evil sorcerer. They could not be too wary of him. At the same moment, Wen Leong made a hand gesture towards the head lama without speaking. They shuffled along slowly, trying to encircle the opposing party. The white-robed youth immediately picked up on their hostility. His mouth cracked into a smile, please don't misunderstand me. There was quite a crowd that had entered the mountain recently. I am here to ask you if anything auspicious is about to happen the youth's smile was relaxing and made one happy, his laughter, on the other hand, was terrifying. Old Gu had no intention of telling the truth. He sneered as he pondered how to go about the matter. Suddenly, a loud cry rang out, echoing between the layers of snow-capped mountain, rushing into the depths of their eardrums the moment the white-robed youth heard the cry, his expression changed to one of shock. With a shriek, he dove head first back through the ice like a robust seagull. All at once, Wen Leong, Rang Yong, and Patu gave out a simultaneous shout. They struck, fast as lightning, grabbing towards the white-robed youth. Chapter 201 The white-robed youth may have been swift but he was no match for Wen Leong, Rang Yong, and Patu's day. Upon launching their simultaneous attack, before the youth's body could even touch the surface of the ice, six large hands had grabbed onto him firmly. Gu Xiaojun watched as the youth with unknown origins was caught. A small smile spread across his face but the three elites suddenly let out a cry of shock. A layer of white frost had rapidly spread from the youth's body and up their fingers. In a flash, their hands were frozen. The frost shimmered magnificently under the reflection of sunlight, creeping rapidly up their arms they were under attack and in self-defense. They prepared to use their powers but before they had even exerted an ounce of strength, the frost shattered. This had slowed them down, 
thwarting their attempt at capturing the youth. Everything happened in just a blink of an eye and before they could try again, the white-robed youth had disappeared under the thick layer of ice underneath everyone's feet. With a crack, the pangolin Patu attempted to chase after the youth but only reappeared with an empty, long, white robe in its paws. When the white-robed youth was escaping, he did not break the ice as he had first done when appearing. Instead, as his body was about to make contact with the ice, he merely melted into the ice, like a snowflake that fell upon a fire, he disappeared without a trace. Patu shook the long robe in its paws helplessly. It pouted its lips and laughed sheepishly. This young lad's magic art is nothing special, just rare. Which is how he got away from me. I won't let him get away the next time I see him, no matter what. When Leon was astonished at how the other party managed to vanish so completely, simply melting away into the ice sheet. He pointed to the spot where the youth disappeared. What kind of magic was that? On the other hand, Head Lama Rangyong was frowning. He appeared to be deep in thought as he stared at the hole that had been made by the youth earlier. Patu had let the youth escape and was feeling slightly embarrassed. Edwit was grateful for the diversion in the topic, hastily answering when Leon, this is an escape art. Almost the same as my ability to burrow underground but his skill is. When Leon chimed in, the ice escape. Patu burst out laughing. What the hell is an ice escape? This the art of water escape. Once he is fully trained, he can also use the ice to escape. As it said that, Patu flipped the long robe about in its hands, looking for any clues. The long robe was snowy white in color. Under the reflection of the sunlight, radiant strands of silver could be detected. The group may have comprised of experienced and knowledgeable individuals but nobody knew what material the robe was made of. When Patu had given chase earlier, it had managed to grab the youth, they both used their life force in the brief struggle yet the robe was not torn nor ripped at all. It was made with a material of unusually resilient quality. The giant pangolin fiddled with the long robe yet he could not understand how it was so resilient. He passed the robe to Fei Fei and chuckled, this is a remarkable piece of material, I shall gift it to you before he could finish his sentiment, a white figure scurried underneath his feet, as fast as lightning. The figure pulled the robe out of Patu's paws in one swift attempt. As the group readied for an attack, the figure dove head first back into the ice, leaving behind a sound of peculiar, croaking-like laughter. I think it's better if you returned my robe. Everyone had thought the youth had left. He had been secretly lurking underneath their feet all along, waiting for an opportunity to seize back his robe. When Leung the other's psychic ability had failed to detect any trace of him. The divine beast was so angry that its lungs almost burst. A long and aggressive howl burst from its lips. The beast's gigantic body jumped high into the air, balling up its fists like hammers and slammed into the ground with a loud bang. It was attempting to use its demon powers that it had accumulated over the centuries to push the white-robed youth out of the ice. The first time the youth managed to escape, it could have been attributed to the fact that the youth's magic powers were unfamiliar. To its surprise, the youth had now managed to seize the long robe right out of its paws. The particularly distasteful part was, based on the youth's brand of ice magic, his life force was actually not all that impressive. He relied on his strange ability to hide his body and the art of water escape to trick and successfully escape from the clutches of the few strong elites over and over again. When Leong and the head lama were so startled that their eyes were wide in shock. Each one of them took one side as they jumped up and was trying to restrain the giant pangolin that was thrashing wildly in midair. Patu was finally held down by its two companions. It panted in rage. Its bronze eyes shone with murderous intent as it glared at Wen Leong and Rang Yong. Why the hell did you stop me? Rang Yong smiled gently and calmly. When you burrow underground to escape, can one find you by digging away the soil? The other party has escaped by water, you will never capture him even if you crush the whole ice sheet to pieces. The art of escape through the five elements is a brand of magic. One uses the power of one of the five elements to break through spaces. The act of escaping by burrowing underground is not like an earthworm that bore into the soil, neither is the water escape like how a beltfish swims away in the ocean. 
If it was, the act of escaping by fire would just mean that the person who attempted it would be barbecued as he comforted Patu, he had also conveniently explained the art of escape using the five elements to the rest of the group. Wen Leong hastily nodded in agreement at the Lama's statement. In truth, he was more worried Patu might cause an avalanche. Patu's face was filled with astonishment. I was not going to simply break open the ice. I had planned to use the demonic energy of the earth element to break his escape spell. Halfway through the beast's speech, a pale old face suddenly stuck out from behind the pangolin's shoulder. He bared his teeth and widened his mouth towards the group, when Leong could not tell if the face was crying or laughing. When Leong's heart thumped in his chest. Before he could act on his first instinct to, to punch the face, a crisp voice laughed and reminded him from behind him. That's our leader. The three master cultivators earlier had moved so swiftly that their passengers didn't get the chance to dismount. Patu's passenger, Old Gu, had suffered greatly from the divine beast's violent actions. Gu Xiaojun's body was fatigued from having to hold on for dear life and had to rest for half the day before he could continue with the journey. Despite the startling episode, he still had a clear mind. He stuck his head out from Patu's back and pointed at the ice hole that the white-robed youth had created. Master Rangyong, do you know the origins of the individual from earlier? The group looked towards where old Gu was pointing and gave out a surprised huh. T everyone's surprise, due to the vibrations made by Patu, the sides of the irregular hole had chipped off to form the shape of a six-petal flower. Patu forgot its anger for a moment and laughed as it spoke, this flower is rather beautiful. Every single petal was round and symmetrical, forming an ice flower the size of a well. Coupled with the reflection of the blue sky and the surrounding snow, the ice flower gave of a sense of sweetness to anyone who looked at it. A cool and refreshing sensation penetrated straight to one's heart. Rang Yung moved calmly, not in any hurry to speak. He first placed Xiao Sha back on top the ground before procuring four pieces of Vajva Kalaka from his chest pocket. They were densely engraved with mantras from the Tibetan Buddhism sect. He jumped up and spun around, scattering his ritual instruments around them. In a booming voice, he chanted, Deyata Om Gadii Gadii Bara. The Tibetan Buddhism sect mantra echoed throughout the mountains and the four pieces of Vajva Kalaka shook abruptly in response, projecting the radiating light of Buddha. The brilliant, golden light reached into the ice sheet underneath the group's feet. In the blink of an eye, the ice sheet turned even more transparent than glass. The frozen soil and rocks underneath the thousand-year glacier could clearly be seen and the youth was nowhere in sight. Head Lama Rangyung exhaled. He has left. Following that, he chuckled and said, I won't say I know about this much but I have heard of this flower mark. The head Lama was a heavenly figure on the highlands of Tibet. He had close relationships with practitioners from all over Tibet. He took extra care to keep in touch with the trainees that practiced Tibetan Buddhism. That was why he could call for help from all over Tibet just by using the human bone flute. He had an old friend who had been meditating and cultivating in the Tapas monastic practice at Jeladendong Peak, up in the Tangula Mountains. That old friend had once mentioned about this flower mark to head Lama Rangyong. The group become visibly excited. Patu urged the head Lama, what did this friend of yours say? Who was that young lad? Patu burst out laughing, perhaps the young lad was trying to tell us his name using this chiseled ice hole. The family name Hua. Fei Fei frowned, yet still appeared to be smiling, making her look peculiar yet adorable. Is this tribe of obscure practitioners residents of the Central Plains? Head Lama Rangyong shook his head. I am a Buddhist follower thus care little for other obscure cultivators in the land of Tibet. My friend had only mentioned this to me in passing, I am afraid I do not know much. Gu Xiaojun, Fei Fei, and Xiao Sha exchanged glances. Their initial purpose of entering the mountain was to pursue and capture the residents of Tour Town and the evil sorcerer and now they have come Actos another obscure tribe of practitioners who bear the family name of Hua. If these obscure practitioners had been ordinary practitioners, they would not have been concerned. Seeing the other party's trick earlier, managing to escape twice, once from all of the three elites present and the other even successfully seizing back his long robe from the divine beast, this was a cause for concern. Fei Fei was the most cautious one in the group. 
She continued to frown and raise the question on everyone's mind, is it possible that the Hua family is in league with the evil sorcerer and the Tibetans of Tuer town? The expression on head Lama Rangjung's face was one of helplessness. I cannot say for sure. My friend mentioned that he had close contact with one of the members of the Hua family. Initially, I had not planned to call on my friend. After all, his brand of magic and supernatural power would be of little help to us. However, I think we need to pay him a visit now since the people of the Hua family have already shown their face. We need to find out more about this tribe's origins and background. As he said that, the head Lama Rangyong turned his head towards Patu and laughed. Also stopped you earlier because I knew he would be hard to catch since he escaped using water. Besides, I took into consideration that if there was no connection between the Hua family and the evil sorcerer, your attack might just complicate matters further. After all, the other party had come over and announced to us his family name. It was us who did not understand. The ice river that Wen Leong and the group were heading to was situated on the Jeladaindong Peak on the Nanling Mutan. As they were entering the mountain from the northwest direction, Head Lama Rangjung's friend was on the way. He looked at the color of the sky and bent down to retrieve his ritual instruments. He hosisted Xiao Sha back onto his shoulders. We should move quickly so that we can reach my friend's immortal cave before darkness falls. When Leon and the group picked up their pace. They moved swiftly across the vast snow field like a gust of white smoke, following behind the head Lama Rangyong, dashing at full speed. As the group disappeared over the horizon, the spell casted by head Lama Rangyong on the large stretch of opaque ice sheet slowly dispersed. The three elites were tense now as there was an enemy capable of escaping the group's combined physic ability. Patu could look out for the enemy but he could only rely on its eyes to see and its ears to hear. The three passengers were alert and surveying their surroundings vigilantly as they went along their journey. The white-robed youth did not appear anymore during their journey. It was clear that he had left the group and was attending to his own business. The Jeladaindong Peak is the highest peak of the Tangula Mountains. It was situated 6,000 meters above sea level. However, Tibet itself was also 4 to 5,000 meters above sea level. That was why the majestic peak did not seem that high. The base of the mountain to the peak was less than a thousand meters in height. This would not have been difficult for the few elites of the magical realm but as they scaled the mountain to Jeladaindong Peak, even when Leong who grew up on a mountain could not help but complain. The reason why Jeladaindong Peak was such a challenge was not because of slippery ice and snow sludge, nor because it was steep but because it was wide, making it difficult to climb. Over the years, glacial cirques, knife-shaped mountain ridges, pyramid-shaped peaks, and ice rivers formed by frozen ice squeezed together on the wide mountain ridge. The smaller ones were less than a hundred meters while the bigger ones were three to five hundred meters in height. In order to reach the highest point of the Jeladaindong Peak, when Leong and company had to cross through these gigantic ice and snow cliffs one after the other. Xiao Sha, who was on Rangjung's back, suggested softly, Great Master, why don't you blow the flute and summon your friend to us instead? Rangjung's laughed helplessly but if one were to listen closely, there was a tinge of pride hidden in his laughter. The moment the bone flute is blown, the whole magical realm of Tibet would be rushing over to help. This item here is like a megaphone, not a cell phone. There is no way to use it to call just one person. It can only call to an entire crowd. Also, blowing the bone flute might alert our enemies. The winds on the mountain were bitterly cold all year round, creating ferocious and terrifyingly huge fissures everywhere on the higher parts of the ice cliffs. They looked irregular and mottled, like welts left behind after an earth-shaking war. The narrower ice fissures were less than a finger's width while the wider ones were seven to eight meters. These obstacles would have been very difficult for an ordinary man but this was only a trivial matter for Wen Leong and the other two elites. The three of them braced the strong winds and did not stop for even a moment, dashing madly all the way through. Occasional dark blue lights penetrated to the surface from the depths of the fissures. Fei Fei could not stand to be silent, even with the strong howling of the wind. She was still chuckling and telling when Leong, those fissures emit the strange blue light are mineral veins containing rock crystals. They are one of the precious minerals obtainable only from Jeladaindong Peak. When Leong slowed down his footsteps. 
It was not to look at the rock crystals but because he was afraid that if he ran too fast, the strong backwind would choke Fei Fei. So long as he could keep pace with the head llama, he was on track. He laughed and replied lightheartedly, Is it expensive? Fei Fei answered with a smile, Only the ones with high purity are expensive. The ordinary ones as used as a construction material. It's a pretty good paving material. Wen Leung laughed and was about to speak when an unusual ray of light from one of the blue mineral veins caught his eye. Wen Leung immediately whistled for his companions. He turned around and returned to the fissure he had just crossed. He scaled down the steep ice fissure as agilely as an ape. It did not take him long to jump onto the mineral vein that was dozens of meters wide and slightly elevated. This ice fissure was narrow on the top and wide at the bottom, similar to the shape of a flattened glass used in the traditional cupping therapy. This fissure was not formed from rigid ice that had cracked open but instead was a converging point between two ice cliffs. As strong winds blew through the mountain peak all year long, the surface of the ice appeared flat and smooth hence people could not actually tell it was two separate ice cliffs without looking closely. As the summer season had just passed, the snow sludge that had accumulated on the fissure had melted away, revealing its odd shape. Fei Fei could not tell what Wen Leong was thinking. As she was about to inquire about his intentions, she suddenly gave out a soft cry of alarm. Dozens of long swords were scattered on top of the blue mineral vein. Wen Leong immediately cast out his shayak net, carefully examining his surroundings. He instructed Fei Fei to light up a few flares for more light. In the brightness of the flares, he surveyed his surroundings. The blue color underneath his feet was the crystal mineral vein. It curved and twisted in between the two humongous ice cliffs and snaked from the top to the bottom. It glimmered all colors of the rainbow under the reflection of the fire from the flares, making one feel dizzy and bedazzled at the same time. After he had determined that there was no one else around, Wen Leon bent over and lifted up one of the swords. Before he could study the sword closely, he cried out in alarm and tossed the precious sword back on the ground. Fei Fei was startled. She jumped off his back, her expression was one of panic. She lifted the QSC-92 and asked softly, what is it? Wen Leon was stunned for a moment before he laughed in an almost menacing manner. He bent over and picked up the sword once more. To his side, Fei Fei suddenly felt a piercing coldness radiating from Wen Leyang's body. Not a few moments later, the giant pangolin and the head llama was climbing down the ice fissure in agile movements. They were stunned upon seeing all the long swords that were scattered on the ground. Patu's face was filled with puzzlement. It was about to bend over and pick up one of the long swords when Wen Leung, who was standing fixed to the ground, growled, Stop. He flashed past the group and attempted to push Patu away from the swords. Patu jumped backwards in haste. Even though it had dodged Wen Leung's attack, it was still startled. It shouted in rage, What in the world are you doing? Wen Leung's expression was not fierce not stern. There was neither embarrassment on his face but instead had a look of surprise and joy, like a madman. He stared at Patu and said, There is poison on the swords. Patu had rarely seen an honest person who had gone mad. The divine beast's eyes widened as it took another furtive step back. Why the hell are you happy about that? It paused for a moment before it continued angrily, Why are you so damn happy that there's poison? Wen Leong was not just joyous, he was elated. The last time he had absorbed any poison this strong was when he first returned to the Wen family village with severe injuries. The poison of life and death in his body had absorbed the strong poisons from the boundary spell on Nine Peaks Mountain and assimilated that using the power of Aang and Yang in his body, remolding his bones to become even stronger. Ever since then, Wen Leung's power had improved vastly. After assimilating the poison, he resumed his previous state towards toxins and could not be harmed by ordinary poison but his body had not been able to find any stronger poison to absorb. However, the moment he picked up the long sword, a rush of ice needles invaded his body upon contact. The poison of life and death in his body had surged forward like a bed of hungry snakes, surging out from the gaps of his bones and the pores of his skin. The poison was assimilated into his body within mere seconds. Wen Leong was an expert in poisons and could tell that the strong poison on the sword was something called water poison of utmost purity. 
However, the amount was too little. To Wen Leon, it was like a drop of water to a big sized camel that was about to die of thirst in the desert. Wen Leon picked up another sword. It did not disappoint. His poison of life and death drained the water poison upon the sword in a flash. After removing the poison off the sword did he wave his hands and toss the long sword to Patu. Be careful. There is strong water poison on the sword. It would be difficult for any ordinary practitioner to withstand its effects. It giant pangolin sneered, am I an ordinary practitioner? It lifted its paws to receive the long sword. The giant beast may be stubborn but it still shuffled away from the long swords that were scattered all over the ground. It was aware that Wen Leong was one of the most poisonous creatures on earth. Any strong poison capable of rousing Wen Leong was certainly not the He Ding Hong. Editor note, arsenic is made from He Ding Hong. Gu Xiaojun may be old but he had sharp eyes. The moment Patu caught the long sword, he could read the ancient scriptures engraved at the bottom of the sword's blade. He read softly, Kunlun Shok Seal. The head lama too took Wen Liang's advice. He did not touch the long swords as he cautiously walked among them. He lowered his head to take a closer long at the scriptures engraved on the blades. He spoke them out loud, Kunlun Desert Rebel Kunlun Pointed Chase Kunlun Perverse Ridge These are all the flying swords that belong to the Kunlun practitioners. Wen Leong did not answer. As he picked up one long sword after the other, absorbing the water poison, he suddenly felt a sense of nostalgia in his heart. He felt as if he had returned to his childhood, plucking off a handful of Sephora flowers when the trees were in bloom, sucking off that single drop of clear honey from its roots. Though sweet, it was merely a tiny drop. After sucking the honey, he would move on to the next flower. The divine beast Patu was in a foul mood. After it had determined that the flying swords belonged to the Kunlun disciples, the beast's bronze eyes widened. This group of ox noses put poison on their swords. Rangyong laughed as he shook his head. Not necessarily. Strong poisons are capable of defiling the flying swords. What I believe, a pack of Kunlun disciples met with an enemy. Whether one was a demon or an immortal, one should have grown wiser with age. With the divine beast Patu however, unknown how many thousands of years old it was, instead of growing wiser, it just cultivated a bad attitude. The giant pangolin shook its head in disagreement. I see neither a living person nor a corpse. The person is gone but the sword is poisonous. As it said this, it heaved a sigh. You are still lacking in experience. The more impossible something is, the more meticulous the enemy is. In the past few millenniums, this old one had seen plenty of these situations. When Leon was done absorbing the strong water element poison off the long swords. When he heard what the giant pangolin had said, he shook his head, at a loss whether to cry or to laugh. Even if the poison was intentionally placed, it should have been placed at a more obvious location right? If I had not slowed down, they could have filled this place with all the long swords of the Kunlun gang and we would have missed them. Let's not discuss the motive. Even as the Kunlun gang had been planning to ambush us, Lu Jing knows about my practice in poisons. He would not be so foolish as to try to use poison against me. The toxicity on those swords would have been enough to deal with an ordinary disciple of the Kunlun sect but it would be far from enough to deal with any of you. As he said that, Wen Leong visibly excited. I did not allow you to touch the flying swords because I was afraid that the water poison would be wasted. The giant pangolin had made a fool of itself but it refused to give up. It insisted on its argument and refused to budge. Then where are the corpses? Where are the corpses then? There were only the flying swords on the ground but no corpses. The strangest part, whether it was a disciple of the same sector and enemy, the Kunlun gang would not have left behind their flying swords when they buried their dead. Even if the sword was tainted with poison. The giant pangolin was loudly going on and on at the others about the devilish ways of the Kunlun sect and Fei Fei tugged at Wen Liang's sleeve. She used her chin to point towards ahead of them, her expression was vigilant as she raised the gun in hand, appearing rather heroic. Wen Liang took one look and immediately stepped forward to shield Fei Fei behind him. At the same time, the giant pangolin and the head lama growled and assumed a defensive stance. 
In the depths of the gigantic ice cliff that was as bright as a mirror, a dozen human figures stood together in a huddle. Fei Fei let out a long breath and sighed in relief as she saw that the people were trapped in the ice. She lowered her gun. When Leon still stood by, speaking in a steady voice, when I first came down here, there was nothing underneath that ice. I did not even detect these people with my psychic net. As when Leon said that, the human figures came into clearer focus. It was not that the human figures had walked out of the ice but more like the group's vision gradually focused. There were a dozen people wearing their hair up in a bun in the style of a Taoist master and they had on green robes. They were all Kunlun disciples. Wen Leon was sure that he had even met one or two of them on occasion. The giant pangolin rubbed its eyes in disbelief. It said in a low voice, What the hell are you bastards doing? It asked its companions, What shall we do? Shall I tunnel in and take a look? Before the pangolin's voice had died away, expression of joy appeared on the faces of the Kunlun disciples' faces as if they had heard the pangolin's words. They nodded their heads vigorously towards Wen Leong and his group. Chapter, 202 Fei Fei's wrist trembled and her flashlight dropped to the ground. As the flashlight rolled, its bright light slashed through the darkness. In the depth of the glacier that was formed millenniums ago, drawing its form from non-existence to existence, from indistinctiveness to complete revelation, a dozen of Kunlun disciples was akin to the figures in a drawing, appearing soundlessly. They seemed to be frozen in the ice that was a dozen meters deep, yet they could portray their expressions easily and could even nod slightly. There was only the split rustling sound of the cold flares in the surroundings, which sounded extremely alike the hissing sounds of a dozen poisonous snakes. Under the reflection of the cold flares and a few heavy-duty outdoor flashlights, the gigantic glacier shimmered with a dazzling array of colors. The Kunlun disciples' expressions differed from one another. Some were smiling while some were anticipating as they nodded strenuously from the depth of the glacier towards Wen Leong and the rest. Wen Leong could only feel his scalp tightening. He bit his tongue intentionally, just to be sure he is not in a dream. What the FCK? This is the first time I am witnessing a living ice lantern. Xiao Sha jumped down from the head lama's back and stood alongside his sister. He squinted his eyes as he stared firmly at the people in ice. After a long while, he finally shook his head, this is not a fooling trick of the folk magic. I cannot tell what is going on. Even though the dozen of Kunlun disciples could not move freely, their expressions were lively. However, underneath the slightly ghastly ice, each of their smiles was reflected with a slight gloomy color and a feeling of ghastliness. Is this an illusion? Gu Xiaojun asked the others softly, the three cultivators shook their heads in unison. Even they could not determine that. As the people in the ice could only be noticed by one's vision, similar to the white-robed youth that they met recently, these people could not be detected by their telegnosis ability and they had to rely on their senses. Head Lama Ranyong tried to use the previous method. He took out his Vajva Kalaka once again and launched the Tibetan Buddhism sect supernatural power of vision, the golden-colored Buddha's light that was awe-inspiring yet majestic completely illuminated the gigantic glacier. The Kunlun disciples were still there. There were even a few of them who squinted their eyes due to the brightness as if they could not get used to the sudden bright light. The head lama inhaled a deep breath as he shook his head to his companions, that is not an illusion. Under the incantation of Prajnaparamita Mantra, any magic spell that was any more profound would be broken. Patu sneered, if it is not an art of illusion, then it must be real. The Kunlun sect's little stars are capable of performing the art of water escape as well. They must be hiding inside to trick us. The glacier is intact and sturdy, there is not even a streak of fissure on it, without the water escape magic art, there is no way for them to enter the ice. While the pangolin was talking, its hand turned over abruptly, giving out a low muffled growl, scram out of there for the old father. Its palm firmly pressed onto the ice cliff. Following the pressure of Patu's palm, a dim brown-colored dark light was akin to a humongous and magnificent shadow of a knife, rolling up from the glacier. Shattering the Buddha's light that was recently conjured from the Lama's Tibetan Buddhism sex Prajnaparamita Mantra in a flash. It was using the demonic primordial energy to break the spell. This palm was not meant to shatter the rigid ice, but to directly force its demonic primordial energy into the ice cliff, 
using its pure and dignified life vitality to completely shatter the other party's magic spell. This was a method that used brute force to break the magic. There was not an ounce of fanciness in the method. Any magic spell that was any more magnificent and dazzling, once faced with the life vitality force of an enemy whose actual power exceeded himself, it was as fragile and useless as a soap bubble. The demonic primordial energy in the glacier was akin to a fierce cyclone, completely swept away the rest of the magic spells in the blink of an eye. Even the Buddha's light that was conjured by the head lama was broken as well. When Leong had a pretty good understanding of the Kunlun sect's supernatural power. Let alone the dozen of Taoist priests, even if there were more disciples, their magic spell would not even resist such a savage blow of Patu. However, the Kunlun disciples were still safe and sound within the glacier. The Kunlun Taoist priest that was standing in the front row, who when Leong had met on a few occasions revealed a peculiar expression as if he could not understand what Patu was doing. His face muscles were convulsing and finally, he opened his mouth slowly in an attempt to make a sound as if he wanted to say something to them. After a long while, his voice finally penetrated through the glacier in a slow yet twisted manner. By the time his voice entered Wen Liang's ears, it was akin to a sound recording that was intentionally slowed down by countless times. The voice was so low it was impossible for Wen Liang to tell what was he talking about. Nevertheless, the odd sounds of whining echoed continuously, as if there was a man without a tongue howling desperately from the other end of a void. Patu's strike was futile. The densely arranged scales on its tail stiffened completely as its palms clasped together as it let out a muffled growl and struck towards the ice cliff again. Just as its hands were about to press onto the ice cliff, when Leung suddenly realized that two rows of crystal clear tears flowed out from the eyes of the Kunlun Taoist priest that was heading the troop. The brown colored demonic primordial energy that was surging into the ice cliff was vigorous and fluctuating, akin to a gush of an agitated sandstorm, rolling towards the glacier. Almost simultaneously, the whining voice that was penetrating from within the glacier turned into a torn howl. It was as if a litter of starving cubs that were on the verge of death could no longer resist the temptation of its instinct. The howling sound that the cubs made when they stretched out their paws abruptly and tore through their companion's stomach. It was hard to tell if it was a sorrowful cry or a cheer. There was only the bitterness of bloody violence. The moment the howling of a dozen Kunlun disciples echoed, they abruptly pounced forward. Everyone opened his mouth and revealed his ghastly pale teeth as they pounced as fast as lightning towards Patu's palms that were exerting its energy and pressed onto the glacier. Under the attack of the Kunlun disciples in the ice, even someone as strong as Patu could not pull back its hands in time. The divine beast sneered once ferociously. When it was scattering its demonic primordial energy, it was also simultaneously channeling its power through its arms as long as these ghastly unidentified Taoist priests dared to touch it. It would make sure that it broke their bones and scattered their ashes to the winds. However, no one had expected that the moment the two parties came into contact, Patu suddenly raised its head and sneezed into the sky. An enormous, outrageous sneeze. Find authorized novels in Web Novel Faster Updates, Better Experience Please Click www. Web Novel. Calm for visiting. At the sound of a whoosh, Patu was pulled by the Kunlun disciples into the glacier. There was not an ounce of damage to the ice surface. The pangolin's entire body was trembling vigorously as it was pulled into the depth of the glacier by the other party rapidly. It turned around and looked towards its companion with a gaze that was filled with fear. When Leon erupted in goosebumps. It was just like when he was watching a movie, the audience next to him suddenly dove headfirst into the screen. Following that the audience started gesticulating and performing with the characters in the movie. In a blink of an eye, Patu had already been dragged by the Kunlun disciples for four to five meters. When Leon squalled towards Rang Yong, break the ice. He could no longer care about anything else as he launched the faulty punch rippling with the power of life and death through every joint of his entire body and dove headfirst into the rigid ice cliff. Ong a bo jiang me luo sa luo. The head lama too was counting a string of bone beads. His mouth was enunciating the incantation word by word. His voice was sonorous and forceful as he chanted the mantra of light. Every incantation was akin to the loud crash of the heaven's thunder, strong enough to shatter any evil spirit that was creating mischief, 
while his expression was filled with resentment as he punched with his fist and kicked with his legs. He channeled the power of wrathful deities to guard next to Wen Liang's side and he chased forward with quick strides. If they were to compete against each other, Wen Liang and the head lama's actual power was almost on par. However, when it came to the act of digging through the mountain and breaking through ice, it only took a few steps to compare the two parties. The great master Rang Zheng's punches and kicks contained the seed of a tremendous force, icicles were splattering everywhere after he crashed through it, his speed of advancement was albeit not too slow. He still needed to punch inward step by step while Wen Liang's used his entire body to slice through the ice, just like a scorching hot knife cutting into a piece of butter without any resistance. Old Gu, Fei Fei and Xiao Sha gazed at one another. No one knew what to do. Old Gu glared at Xiao Sha and asked, Do you have a way of dealing with this using your folk magic? Xiao Sha put on a long face and pouted as he answered, My trick is to scare people, not enough to scare ghosts. When Liang's speed was extremely swift, but compared to the ghost Taoist priests that were moving in the glacier as agile as fish in the water, he was still too slow. Any better swimmer was incapable of catching a living beltfish watched helplessly as the ghosts dragged the pangolin and ran further and further. Patu was unsure which type of magic spell was launched by the ghost Taoist priests. Its entire body was in the ice cliff, but its movements were utterly incapable of damaging the ice surface. It was just like a shadow that was firmly pulled by the other party and was running towards inwards. Just as everyone was in a chaos, Patu turned from its human form into its true demonic body. The surrounding glacier was immediately stretched by the pangolin's body, which was full of purple scales, into layers of gigantic fissures. The muffled sound of cracking sounded like exploding beans crackling and spluttering within the ice. When Leong was joyous, if Patu was capable of stretching the rigid ice into cracking, it had already broken the other party's magic spell and revealed its demonic body in the ice cliff. The moment Patu's demon body was revealed, it immediately roared hoarsely, There is no need to help me. The scales on its body stiffened up in an awe-inspiring manner, the brown-colored demonic primordial energy that was delivered by Patu into the ice cliff initially was akin to an evil fish that picked up the fishy stench. The demonic primordial energy followed the master's roar and encircled from all directions. Within the muffled sounds of cracking, the energy wrapped around every single Kunlun disciples. In the blink of an eye, the energy had already coagulated into a gigantic stone lock that tied around all the enemies. One after another Kunlun disciple struggled desperately with ferocious expression. However, just by depending on their power, there was no way they could struggle themselves free from the giant pangolin's magic spell. The three ordinary person that clenched their teeth out of anxiousness witnessed as Patu suddenly exploded with martial prowess and destroyed almost one out of three of the enemy in a short while. They cheered in unison. When Leong and the head lama stopped moving, they laughed to each other as they shook their head. The giant pangolin was a few thousand years old and had achieved mastery in its demon power. As long as it did not bump into the old demons like Kone Nail, Qian Ren and Changli, even if it was attacked sneakily, it would not yield that easily. When Leong secretly considered. All the top master cultivators that were alive, except Hanba, caught Patu. The thundering loud noise echoed continuously, the giant pangolin used its tail to drag its captives. Its two thick and strong front claws shattered the ice surface and its face was filled with rage as it cursed with brutal words and returned to the bottom of the ice fissure. The pangolin turned back to its human form with a loud bang. It raised its hand and slapped the Kunlun Taoist priest that was locked at the front position by the stone lock, Little Pstard, why do you plot against your own family's divine beast immortal senior? That Kunlun Taoist priest's expression was in agony, yet he remained indifferent towards Patu's slap. He was only struggling to free himself desperately. Patu raised its hand in preparation to slap again, when Wen Leong grabbed a handful of its arm, please slow down for a moment, what happened earlier? The moment Wen Leong mentioned of what happened earlier, Patu was even more furious. It spat out a mouthful of saliva ferociously and spoke loudly, this gang of bastards used the magic spell of water element to sneak an attack. The old father was caught off guard by their poison of water, my demonic primordial energy became scattered for a moment. 
They then pulled me into the ice using the water escape spell Patu immediately summoned his true body of the earth element and first used its life vitality to cleanse away the strong poison before breaking the other party's magic spell and counterattacked. It almost did not waste any strength capturing the enemy. When Leon wanted to speak further when Patu's huge hands waved once, do not ask anymore, the old father does not honor anyone. Once I am done asking the question to clarify the situation, I will flay and swallow these little bastard that dared to raid the old father, if the Kunlun Taoist priests were to seek revenge, then ask them to look for me. As it was saying it raised its hand and at the sound of a clap, it served one slap onto each Kunlun disciple's face. It then asked with a maniacal smile, what enmity does the Chilean immortal sect and the Kunlun sect have, such that your gang of famous sect need to create trouble in the ice? Patu slapped the leader into facial paralysis. His entire body was trembling vigorously as he opened his mouth strenuously. Patu burst out laughing, if you are sensible then you shall answer honestly, otherwise huh? The Kunlun disciple opened his mouth but he did not speak he spat out a bubble. The Taoist priest exhaled a long breath joyously. A bubble that was the size of a fist. As Patu was attacked it was initially filled with pent-up anger and had yet to vent. Suddenly, it witnessed the other party blowing raspberries to itself. It was so furious its brows were scrunched together as it cursed in rage and struck as fast as lightning. Its punch landed heavily on the Taoist priest's face. Everyone cried out in surprise. Under its punch, it was as if all the moisture was drained away from the plump Taoist priest. At the sound of a whoosh, he turned into a withered and ugly dried corpse. Head Lama Rangjung's expression showed signs of displeasure. He spoke in a lowered voice, the divine beast's supernatural power is a bit too brutal right? Patu looked astonished. Absent-mindedly, it looked towards the Kunlun disciple that was punched into a dried corpse before his eyes. It shook its head in puzzlement, it is not my. When Leung also frowned, there is something wrong with this bubble. He had been standing next to the Kunlun disciple all along. His sight was much better than the Lama Rangjung's. He could clearly see that, underneath the bubble, there was a fine long tail that was dragging the bubble secretly. Just as the bubble's long tail was rapidly pulled away from the Kunlun Taoist priest's mouth, the Taoist priest too simultaneously turned into a dried corpse. The bubble that was dragging along its long tail was akin to a large-sized transparent tadpole. It swam about nervously in midair. Its huge head swayed left and right. It seemed to be extremely unaccustomed to the outside environment. Its tail trembled faster and faster, then its entire body trembled once ferociously all of a sudden. It turned around its body in midair without a sign and dashed towards Wen Leong who was closest to him at the speed of lightning. Wen Leong immediately stretched out his hand. His five fingers oscillated like wheels as he struck ferociously onto the monster that could be a ghost spirit or a bug. The moment that giant tadpole was struck by the faulty punch, it gave out the exploding sound that was even fiercer and more forceful than the heavenly thunder and exploded itself in a loud bang. Wen Leong gave out a muffled hump simultaneously. The tremendous force struck his entire body and he was retreating continuously as a layer of frost appeared in between his beard and hair. This form of unknown creature contained the poison of water that was very pure and strong. It was exactly the same as the poison that had tainted the Kunlun flying swords. The poison of water invaded his body and immediately assimilated itself with the poison of life and death. Everybody was greatly startled. They were just about to rush over when Wen Leong who was lying on the ground spoke with a hoarse yet urgent manner, I am all right, be careful. Just as everybody else's attention was fixated on Wen Leong's body, the rest of the dozen Taoist priests opened their mouths in unison. Every one of them spat out the same type of transparent tadpole the size of a fist. After the Taoist priests heaved out a sigh filled with pleasure, they gave out a ghastly sonic boom before turning into dried corpses. A dozen of giant tadpoles sprung out and immediately gave out the rustling sound of cries, just like the raging giant bees with its home destroyed. The tadpoles dashed towards everybody else from all directions with trembling tails. The great master Rangyong gave a low growl as his hands opened up. The four pieces of Vajvakalaka that were stabbed onto the ice cliff shot into the air. Within the loud noise, akin to exploding thunder, seven to eight giant tadpoles exploded, 
being stabbed by the Tibetan Buddhism sect's mass instrument. In the blink of an eye, more than half of those ghostly creatures were stabbed. It seemed that the creatures were not that terrifying after all. Head Lama Rangjung's face had only relaxed and the Vajvakalaka that were shot into midair shook vigorously for a few times. The golden light suddenly extinguished without a sign. A layer of dark blue colored glacier that was invisible to the naked eyes had already completely covered the Lama's Tibetan Buddhism sect mass instruments. Head Lama Rangjung's expression changed abruptly. He roared, Poison. His hands were turning again in an attempt to continue summoning his mass instruments when the remaining three semi-transparent giant tadpoles had already bumped onto his face at lightning speed. As the Lama's face was huge, he was struck by the fist-sized tadpoles at the same time. After the tadpoles struck onto the Lama, the tadpoles did not explode or flew away, but the tadpoles were like small puddles of living water swimming on the Lama's face swiftly, along his ears and mouth. The tadpoles moved its tails desperately, in an attempt to bore itself into the Lama's body. Rang Yung gave out a muffled humph as his fat body fell to the ground with a loud bang. When Patu realized that Rang Yung made an attack that almost killed all these ghostly creatures in a flash, it protected everybody else from advancing wholeheartedly. It did not expect that the Lama would suddenly fall over. Just as it was about to pounce forward to rescue the Lama, when Leong had already jumped up. He roared loudly, Do not touch the strong poison, allow me. His entire person was akin to a fierce cheetah, pouncing in front of the head llama swiftly. His hands trembled rapidly. With two muffled sounds of continuous bangs, the giant tadpoles that had already squeezed more than half of its body into the llama's ears were struck by one Liang's trembling fingers. Out of the three unidentified ghostly creatures, two were flattening its heads and bored into his ears, while the other one was shaking its head and wagging its tail, attempting to pry open his tightly shut mouth desperately. As a result, the shocking sound of thunder erupted in front of his eardrums. Head Lama Rangyong was extreme unlucky today. Even though Head Lama Rangyong possessed exquisite Buddhism magic art and the Zen mind that was unmoved by all things, he was still a human after all. As long as one was a human, one possessed instinctive reaction. He immediately opened his mouth when his two ears were filled with loud explosions. When Leung shattered the two monster tadpoles. Its cold strong poison of gentle water invaded his body ferociously along his fingertips. The poison of life and death surged wildly and rapidly assimilated itself with the poison of water, but the process slowed down when Leung's movement in rescuing the Lama by half a second. As he did not expect the Lama would open his mouth to welcome the guest, he only managed to stretch out his hand and grabbed onto the tadpole's tail in the midst of panic. At the soft sound of a squeak, when Leong pulled off the tadpole's tail, its fist-sized head bored into Rang Jung's body. The Lama's eyes were suddenly fixated, his pupils that were initially clear turned into watery blue in a flash. He almost exerted all the strength from his entire body to roar towards when Leong hoarsely, the poison I deal by myself cannot. Before his voice died away, he abruptly screamed out in agony. His hands covered his head and he started rolling everywhere on the ground. When Leon almost bit off his tongue. He was thinking in his heart why would the Lama speak at this moment, his mouth shouted, You've got me. He took out the bamboo needles that he carried. He hesitated for a moment before he grinded his teeth as if he had finally made up his mind for something. His movements were agile as he started filling medicinal powder into the bamboo needles. The fiery red, you've got me, heard its master's summon. It jumped out joyously and cruised tightly onto the head llama's body in swift motion. Its body stiffened abruptly after a moment and it ululated as it dashed onto the llama's head. The thing that was swallowed by the llama was not a poison but it was an odd creature that contained poison of water. The creature was alive. The moment it entered the llama's body it immediately swam about everywhere. You've got me, was the larva of fire elements king of bugs. It stuck itself tightly to the llama's body in order to locate that semi-transparent little monster. Even though when Leong had never heard of such a creature before, he could figure out what it roughly was. That was why he released his precious bug such that his bug could help him locate the monster hiding in the llama's body. You've got me rolled around on the llama's bald head. It ululated in an extremely anxious manner as it nodded continuously towards its master as a signal. 
when Leon clenched his teeth and made a move as swift as the wind. According to You've Got Me's guidance, he continuously pricked bamboo needles into the top of the llama's head, while simultaneously stretched out his hand to rapidly knock onto the area next to the bamboo needles. It was the skill of the Wen family to fuse the medicinal powder in the bamboo needles into the surrounding blood vessels. The tadpole-like monster that surged into the llama's body had surged against the current into head llama Rangjung's skull. When its track was discovered by You've Got Me, when Leyang's bamboo needles had sealed off its path. It was chased downwards under You've Got Me's guidance. You've Got Me was ululating and jumping. It only took a moment for Wen Leong to prick the llama's head and face full of bamboo needles. Finally, You've Got Me started chasing along the llama's neck towards his chest. Wen Leong had already assimilated the poison of water that had invaded his body completely at this moment. His hands and legs became even more agile. His movements were so swift it bedazzled one. After a long while, he finally exhaled a long breath of relief. The bamboo needles formed a circle and were trapping the tadpole in between the head llama's lower abdomen. At the muffled sound of a bang, head llama Rangjung's body that had already quieted down suddenly shook once. The tadpole that had been driven into a corner exploded and released all its toxicity. The head llama simultaneously exhaled a long breath as he spoke softly, I can handle the rest by myself. He sat up and slowly closed his eyes. When Leon waited for a while. When there were no further movements, he became completely steady and sure. Head Lama Rangyung had no way to control this unknown monster creature from running everywhere in his body. Now that the monster was burst, its poison of water was albeit pure and strong, he could still manage to dissolve the poison using his cultivation base. After the crowd watched the two humans and a bug bustled about, everything finally quieted down at this moment. There was only, you've got me, that was still hanging on to the llama's body and refused to leave it ululated continuously to its master. It seemed that it had yet to play to its great satisfaction and was hoping that someone would toss another, tadpole, into the llama's mouth. But too possessed great experience, yet it had never seen such a terrifying creature before. If it was not for Wen Leong, this tadpole would never cease before it churned the llama's brain into muddled soup. It asked him with lingering fear, what kind of creature was that? When Leung answered as if he was deep in thoughts, it was alive, it should be some form of bug as well. Its body contained the poison of water of utmost disposition, but the amount was too little he absorbed a total of three tadpoles poison of water, but there was no significant reaction from his body yet. After he idled for a while, when Leung continued, the medicinal powder that I was using earlier was not meant to draw out the poison but it was meant to draw out the bug. If that creature was not a living one, my medicine would not have been useful. As he was saying that, when Leung picked up the four pieces of Vajva Kalakas that were corroded by the poison of water and returned them to the Lama in high spirits. In the past, when he absorbed Xiu Er's poison of earth, Emoya's poison of metal, the results were like a shadow that was cast as soon as a pole was raised. He received instantaneous results. However, after he was done absorbing the poison of water, other than feeling slightly healthier and more vigorous, he had not experienced any other reactions. After all, the tadpole contained too little amount of poison of water. Especially after his body and bones were remolded by the poison of life and death, his body was like a ship that rose with the tide level, his body improved. That amount of poison of water was not enough for him to reach a new level of cultivation base. Fei Fei had just calmed her petrified soul. She chimed in out of astonishment from the side, you were unsure if the medicinal powder was useful or not yet you dared to use it on the head llama. Xiao Sha continued his sister's conversation and added, he treated the dead llama as a living lamate is still slightly better than not treating the llama at all. Patu was still in disbelief, it was a bug. How can there be a bug in this world capable of escaping my telegnosis ability? The head llama finally exhaled a long and foul breath. Pale blue-colored water oozed out of his seven orifices simultaneously. He opened his eyes once again, his pupil had regained its prior clarity. You've got me, claimed the credit of saving the llama this time. As it saw that the llama was finally safe and sound, it raised its head in pride and ululated loudly. If one were to listen closely, it was as if this little fellow was shouting continuously, Vote for me. Vote for me. 
Vote for me. Chapter, 203. When Leung asked in a rather strange manner, Great Master, the tadpole's toxicity should not be too strong, right? The tadpole's poison of water was albeit pure and strong, its amount was very little. The toxicity would be difficult to cause any harm to head Lama Rangjung's cultivation base. However, when he used his life vitality to dissolve the toxicity, it seemed that he had exerted laborious efforts. He appeared tired and his gaze was not as lively as before. Rangyung gave a forced laugh and scoffed, the poison of water still came in second, most of my life vitality is dealing with your bug and the medicinal powder in the bamboo needles. As he was saying that, he showed his body to Wen Leon. His body was densely covered in small holes pricked by, you've got me. You've got me was extremely excited when it was chasing after the tadpole. However, it had steel stings on its entire body. The llama was afraid that he would delay the bug's speed. Hence, he dared not cultivate his power to resist. Rangyung got dressed and stood up. He first nodded in appreciation to Wen Leong as he laughed, I have no words to express his gratitude for saving my life. After saying that, he stopped for a moment, these bamboo needles can it be removed? Wen Leong gave out an, oh no. He apologized profusely and hastily retrieved all the bamboo needles. The llama's plump and round head was pricked like a pickled cucumber. At least, the llama was alive and he was not too severely injured. He was only slightly exhausted, so he could totally persevere. He stretched out his hand and pointed to his body, the tadpole was not a ghost or demon. It was definitely alive, however it had an exceptionally peculiar feature. The Tibetan Buddhism sex cultivator inherently possessed the inner sight that was clear and bright. As the odd tadpole entered Rangjung's body, it made him see through the creature. The moment the semi-transparent tadpole was tainted with liquid, it was capable of launching a spell that was similar to the art of water escape. That was why the creature surged into his brain but it did not churn his brain to a pulp. This form of water escape ability was the monster's inherent ability and not a form of magic cultivation. Moreover, the part that was used by this creature to control a person was its tail. The Lama Rangjung's voice was low as there was lingering fear in his heart. When the creature burrowed into his skull, its remnant tail was shaking as it tried to wrap its tail around Rangjung's brain on a few attempts. However, as most of its tail was ripped out by Wen Leung that was why it failed. Even so, the head lama felt confused and uneasy, almost losing control of his body. If you've got me were to arrive a bit later, it was afraid that he would not hold up anymore. Not only that. Head Lama Rangyung continued to describe the horrors of the creature, this creature is the embodiment of the water element. Water is formless, that is why our telegnosis ability cannot detect its presence. I do not know how this group of Kunlun disciples ended up here but after they discovered the strange creatures, their treasured weapons and flying swords were corroded by the creature's poison of water and were rendered useless. Their bodies were controlled by the strange creatures as well. But two had finally understood. It nodded as it sneered, once the person is controlled by this creature, the person will have the creature's inherent attribute. The person becomes capable of escaping with water. That is why they can move in the ice unhindered. Simultaneously, they also become the embodiment of water, there is no way our telegnosis ability can detect them. When Leong heaved a sigh. One of the deceased Kunlun Taoist priests appeared familiar to him. Whether it was during the Five Blessings gathering on the Nine Peaks Mountain or the Great Hanba Battle in the City God Temple, this person was always following next to Lu Zheng. He was obviously an important personage in the Kunlun sect. Nevertheless, he died when he brought his disciples here to handle some unknown affairs. Even in astonishment, Xiao Sha could not widen his eyes. He spoke in a low, monotonous voice, so, what kind of creature is this? Rang Yong squinted his eyes. He shook his head in a rigid manner, I do not know. The embodiment of water capable of escaping the telegnosis ability's detection was only a theory in the past. This form of five elements embodiment almost never appears in history. When Leong suddenly thought of Cone Nail. No wonder she appeared suddenly out of nowhere every time. His telegnosis ability could not detect her at all. He was feeling a little narcissist. In fact, 
based on cone nails cultivation power and supernatural power, even without the embodiment of water element, it would not be that difficult for her to hide from his telegnosis ability. Gu Xiaojun thought of another question, do you still remember the white-robed youth? He is also capable of escaping by ice and capable of hiding from your telegnosis ability. Oh is it possible that he is controlled by the bug as well? Head Lama Rangyong was stunned, he laughed as he shook his head, that young man left behind the marker of the Hua family. The way he spoke and handled matters was agile and lively, the creature can never be that smart. The few people scouted around the area at the base of the ice fissure but they did not find anything else that was suspicious. After they buried the Kunlun disciples, they embarked on their journey again and rushed towards the immortal cave of the head lama's friend. Due to the incident in the ice fissure, by the time they arrived at the immortal cave, the sky had turned completely dark. Gentle moonlight emitted from the sky scattered quietly over the ice-capped mountain that was covered in thick snow. The reflection did not appear chill and serene, but it felt like there were layers of unorthodox charm. There was a slanted pyramidal peak located at the far end, appearing just like a curved knife that protruded out of the mountain, pointing towards the boundless sky. Its sharp wilderness and loneliness could not be concealed. Head Lama Rangyong pointed to the pyramidal peak afar and laughed, My friend is staying at the cave under the peak, he is a tapas cultivator. I think that he will not even light up a bonfire for us. You children, please do not expect him to treat us courteously. Upon saying that, he shouted loudly, My old friend Ji Song, Rang Yong is here. Rang Jung's voice sounded fair and clam. There was not an ounce of rudeness in his voice. Yet, when his voice was firmly echoing in the bitter cold mountain draft, every single word he spoke was as sturdy as iron. Fei Fei was already asleep on Wen Liang's back. She was jolted awake by Rang Jung's voice. She was stunned for a moment before she laughed softly, 13. The great master's friend is called 13. What sort of classical reference is this? As she was saying that, she explained to Wen Leung, in the Tibetan language, the term Ji Song is a number, it means 13. Rang Yong was about to meet his old friend. He was feeling delightful and joyous. Laughing aloud, he answered Fei Fei, Bulsht, classical reference. He was the thirteenth child in his family that is why he is called thirteen. This person's temperament is a litly a little peculiar. The Lama was at a loss of whether to laugh or cry, he continued to advise them, if you were to launch an attack carelessly, there is no need for all of you to behave courteously but please do not hurt him. As head Lama Rangyong was speaking, an icy cold soft cry echoed from the direction of the pyramidal peak abruptly in reply to Lama's shout earlier. The shadow of a human figure swayed left and right in the mountain draft as if the person would be blown away at any time. However, his speed was extremely fast as he approached the group. It did not take a moment's time before the person arrived in front of the group. Rang Yun laughed aloud as he introduced the person to his companions, this is Ji Song, the tapas cultivator of the Jeladane Dong Peak. Ji Song was extremely tall, a head taller than Wen Leong who was 1.8 meters tall. Yet he was exceedingly thin. Rang Yun was in a good mood upon meeting his old friend, he continued to laugh and told Wen Leong, he had been cultivating laboriously since young and had never eaten or drank well since he was a child. That was why his body was like a bamboo pole. Ji Song and the African leader Tutatunt had similar physique. They were both skinny and tall but Tutatunt's skinniness made one feel pity, while Ji Song's skinniness made one feel terrified. His skin was tightly wrapped around his bones, his forehead was shriveled and his cheeks were sunken. There was only a pair of large eyes left on his face. A strand of savageness appeared in the midst of his rolling eyes. As Ji Song had been in the companionship of blizzard and strong wind all year long, his entire body was enshrouded with the icicle-like sharpness. The moment Ji Song met his old friend, not only there was no joy in his expression, there was slight impatience. He frowned as he asked the Lama, Why did you come here? I have a matter to discuss with you. Head Lama Rang Yong spoke as he grabbed Ji Song's hand that was as skinny as a bamboo pole, well, don't just stand there in the wilderness, let us go to your place first before we discuss further. Unexpectedly, Ji Song stood on the same spot without budging. He shook his hand in an attempt to break free from the Lama's grip, 
I am on my way out to handle some affairs, you can wait for me at my place. Rang Yong had a highly honorable status on the highland. Almost all the Tibetan cultivators were respectful to him and dared not neglect him at all, but Ji Song who did not seem to possess any ability that was superior had a temperament and mannerism that was not inferior. Rang Yong was apparently used to Ji Song's icy cold appearance. He was not offended at all. His huge hand was still firmly gripping onto Ji Song's skinny wrist, he chuckled, Do you still want to go out since I am here? Any matter as important as the heaven is Rang Yong was halfway through his speech when he suddenly frowned and sized Ji Song up and down meticulously. His tone of speaking sounded stern, Is there an opponent that is troubling you? A torn red-colored fabric robe was draped over Ji Song's shoulders. He had a Vidra belt in the pocket in front of his chest and a pure white-colored Tibetan horn on his back. His other hand was still holding a Vidra dorge. Wen Leung did not understand the Tibetan Buddhism sect but judging by Ji Song's fully armed appearance, he could tell that Ji Song was about to go out and fight. Ji Song's strange eyes turned and glared at the head Lama Rangyong, who knows who are those people. Do not hold on to me, I will not forgive you if they got away. Upon saying that, he started swinging his arm desperately in an attempt to struggle free from Rangyong, yet the head Lama did not behave courteously either. His huge hand was akin to a metal clamp, gripping tightly onto Ji Song and refused to let go as if once his grip was loosened the other party would run away so fast his shadow disappeared. The giant pangolin watched as the two persons exchanged irrelevant conversation. They spoke for a long while yet they could not come up with an answer so they stood there playing arm wrestling. It lost its patience and shouted angrily in a low voice, everyone stop fighting. The skinny one speaks first, what are you going to do? No one expected that before Pa Tu could finish its sentence, Ji Song shouted in rage all of a sudden, What kind of creature are you? This is not the place for you to speak. He raised the Vidra Dorge and pounded right onto its face and head. Pa Tu was not one that could be beaten by him. It retreated as fast as lightning and squalled in rage. It rushed forward and was about to hit Ji Song when Wen Leung hastily jumped in between the both of them. He waved his hands and before he could speak, Ji Song was waving the musical instrument in his hand and knocked repeatedly on Wen Liang's head, his mouth was still cursing furiously, common person, scram. Wen Liang was still carrying a girl on his back. He watched helplessly as the Vitra Dorge was about to beat himself mercilessly. Rage filled his heart. If he was a common person, he would surely be beaten to a pulp. His hands turned over, moved towards the Vidra Dorge and launched the faulty punch. Two gushes of tremendous force rippled together. Wen Leong stood unmoved, while Ji Song's buttocks landed into the head Lama's arms. If it was not for Rang Yong who was still grabbing onto his hand, perhaps he would fall into somewhere unknown. Wen Leong's cultivation base now was no less inferior than the old demon rabbit Bulu. How would an ordinary cultivator's supernatural power resist? Ji Song gave out an ow as he jumped and stood up. He risked his life in an attempt to struggle free from Rang Jung's hand like a mad chick while he used the Vidra Dorge to point at Wen Leong, I have misjudged you. Turns out you are not an ordinary person, come at me again you bastard. Xiao Sha burst out laughing, he lied on the head Lama's back and shouted loudly towards Wen Leong, he is an unreasonable person, beat him. Fei Fei was much more sensible than Xiao Sha but she was also laughing hard, do not beat him, do not beat him, this thirteen is albeit a little unreasonable, he knows a lot of things. The head Lama Rang Yong witnessed the scene before his eyes was turned into a chaos. His wrist turned over abruptly, he gave a shove with the bottom of his foot and directly tossed Ji Song onto the snow ground. His plump body turned around as he used both of his thick legs to firmly lock onto Ji Song. The Lama did not launch the Tibetan Buddhism sect's supernatural power but he performed the orthodox highlands art of wrestle. As he was pinning down Ji Song, he was also using his body to separate Ji Song from Wen Leong and Patu. He then spoke, if you are defeated you will help us and tell us the truth. Ji Song exerted himself and stuck out his head from Rang Jung's buttocks. He nodded strenuously. He immediately turned over and jumped up. He glared at Wen Leong and Patu, who amongst the both of you is fighting me. Patu pouted, it turned around and said to Wen Leong, You go. I am afraid I might break him. 
When Leung laughed as he nodded, he did not even lay down Fei Fei as he asked Ji Song, so when do we start? Fei Fei lied next to Wen Leung's ear and spoke with an extremely soft voice, Ji Song is not truly unreasonable, he is fearless he knows that the great master will not allow anyone to hurt him. Ji Song seized the opportunity when they were talking. He placed down the Tibetan Buddhism sect's unmovable body Dharma Mudra on his surroundings to prevent the enemy from raiding him in agile movements and sniggered, now is the time to start. Upon saying that, he raised his hand and shook the Vajra bell strenuously. He crossed the Vajra dorge in his hand and was about to chant the Tibetan Buddhism sect's mantra, when the vision before his eyes blurred unexpectedly. The opposing party had already approached him. Ji Song's unmovable body Dharma Mudra was utterly futile in resisting the enemy and was broken by Wen Liang's faulty punch. Ji Song was trying to retreat, when the shadow of a human figure swayed messily before himself abruptly. The silver bell-like laughter sounded far yet near, his right and left shoulder felt heavy in a flash, he was already patted by Wen Liang in a manner that was not too light nor heavy. By the time Ji Song was growling in rage and waving about his Vichra Dorge to fight back, when Leong had already retreated back to his original spot. He chuckled as he asked Ji Song, so are we still fighting? Ji Song's face was filled with unwillingness. His shriveled face was covered in evil wrinkles, he opened his mouth in preparation to speak when he suddenly shouted something madly. His bamboo pole-like body was akin to convulsing as he somersaulted and fell to the ground. Fei Fei who was lying on Wen Leong's back was startled. She asked softly, what is he screaming about? Wen Leung answered with a steadfast tone, spicy. Since Ji Song was a close acquaintance of Rang Yong, he was not a bad person. However, he had no regards that his act earlier could kill a person. Hence, Wen Leung could not help but to attack him as a punishment. He planted the Sichuan cuisine on Ji Song's body. Head Lama Rangyong stretched out his hand to support Ji Song who was flushing from the spiciness, he gave a forced laugh as he shook his head, it is not considered injustice to teach you a lesson. Upon saying that, he looked up at Wen Leong. Wen Leong did not wait for the Lama to speak. He laughed as he walked forward, he held up his canteen and fed Ji Song a mouthful of water. The Sichuan cuisine was a special recipe capable of defeating the opponent by a surprise move. It was easy to make and easy to disperse, it was even easier to dissolve. It could be dissolved immediately by drinking water. Ji Song hastily drank a few gulps of water and slowly recuperated. He glared at Wen Leong as if Wen Leong was a monster. He panted as he asked, what kind of magic spell was that? He did not wait for Wen Leong to answer before he closed his eyes, the corners of his mouth convulsed again and again as if he was trying to recall the sensation earlier. He finally jumped up and gave Wen Leong a thumbs up, awesome. Wen Leong was at a loss whether to laugh or cry as he turned around and gazed at Fei Fei. Fei Fei giggled. She could see through Wen Leong's inner thoughts, Ji Song is not an unreasonable person. After they fought, Ji Song regained his prior mannerism of despising everyone, he pointed to Wen Leong as he turned around and looked at Rang Yong, what do you want to ask? I know most of the things related to the Jeladaindong peak. Rang Yong did not immediately ask about the Hua family but asked Ji Song, who is the person you going after? Ji Song gave out a, he. He answered in a joyous manner, I was cultivating the wrathful deities Diana a few days ago, my body and mind was not allowed to move outside. Since there was rarely any human presence on the Jeladaindong peak, I paid no attention to the outer world and only set down a layer of unmovable body Dharma Mudra to protect myself. I used snow spiders to seal off the cave's entrance. However, when I regained my consciousness I realized that someone spied on my immortal's cave. On the other hand, when Leong squinted his eyes as he inquired closely, what kind of creature is the snow pearl? Translators note, snow pearl and snow spider has the same pronunciation in Mandarin. The snow spider is a species of giant spider, it has eight legs and a round abdomen. It likes to feed on meat and is capable of spinning web. It is slightly spiritual. I use the spiders to seal off the cave when I engage in closed-door cultivation. Ji Song answered with a groan. It was only then when Leung realized that the other party was not talking about the snow pearl. 
He thought that the creature Ji Song grew was the ghost bubbles he found in the ice fissure. There was a recording about this species of snow spider in the place of birth, life, sickness and death. It was considered a poisonous bug that was rather incisive, any ordinary person that was stung by it would be immediately rendered unsalvageable. After all, not everyone could afford to afford to grow a mountain-guarding divine beast like the Great Mercy Temple or the Chilean Immortal Sect. An ordinary cultivator would grow some spiritual bug that contained strong poison to look after his home and this was quite normal. Ji Song had been engaging in mediation and closed-door cultivation recently. By the time he awakened, he realized that the snow spiders that were sealing the entrance were pinched to death and someone had visited his immortal's cave he had very little acquaintance. Even if someone were to visit him and saw that the snow spiders had sealed the entrance. Someone would know that he was engaging in closed-door cultivation and would either wait for him or leave there was no reason to pinch those spiders to death. Rang Yung frowned for a moment, is there anything missing from your place? Ji Song shook his head, if you were a thief, you saw that there were two spiders the size of pot cover hanging by the door, would you still have the guts to enter? His tone of speaking sounded as if he had swallowed gunpowder. It was impossible to hear him speak anything pleasant to the others. Rang Yung did not pay attention to Ji Song's tone of speaking as he continued, if there was nothing missing and your person was safe and sound, the other party should be visiting your place to scout. The moment that someone saw that it was just an ordinary cultivator, that person retreated. The expression of unwillingness filled Ji Song's face, he continued discreetly, so that two snow spiders of mine died for nothing. As long as this gang of people had not left the Tangula Mountains, they would not be able to run away from me. Ji Song was short-tempered. Someone seized the opportunity when he was engaging in closed-door cultivation to stroll around his immortal's cave, killed his snow spiders that were guarding his door. Hence, he immediately chased after them out of rage, just in time to bump into Rang Yong who was visiting with Wen Leong and the rest. The head lama's eyes brightened in curiosity, is there a way for you to locate them? Ji Song's mouth cracked into a rarely seen smile. There was a little pride in his smile, the person who came to my place killed the snow spiders but his body was also tainted with the spider web. Wen Leong gave a pleasant smile. The snow spiders were enormous that was why they spun a web to hunt for prey. The male spider was smaller in size, but even when it was separated by the distance of dozens of kilometers it could still find the female spider from the female spider's scent. Since Ji Song was growing these creatures, naturally he understood the spider's habits very well, he made use of the male spider to track down the person whose body was tainted with the spider web. As long as the person did not run too far, he could certainly find and chased up to him. Rang Yung muttered to himself before continuing, so which direction were they heading to? In reality, Rang Yung did not even ask many questions but Ji Song's expression had become exceedingly agitated as if he was controlling his patience desperately as he answered, they were heading to the summit. Wen Leong and the rest's expression became relieved as their speculation was confirmed. They were still on the northwest slope of the Jeladendong Peak, if they were to head to the Jiangandiru Glacier they would first need to hike over the summit of the mountain. Rang Yong cast a consulting gaze towards Wen Leong and Gu Xiaojun. Everyone had the same thinking, old Gu straightforwardly said, then we shall chase after them with him. It is either the evil cult followers or the Kunlun disciples. Ji Song spoke impatiently, when we come face to face with them, all of you do not attack them, I will avenge myself. As he was saying that he started walking and chased in the direction of the mountain summit. He only took a few steps when he complimented, but if they came in numbers, then all of you shall help me. The group laughed. Since they met Ji Song, this is the first time he finally spoke of something dependable. This person albeit had a peculiar temperament, he was truly not considered a foolish person. The group of people hiked all the way towards the summit of the Jeladendong Peak. Of course, Rang Yong did not waste time. He followed closely next to Ji Song and inquired about the Hua family. Ji Song's expression was unpleasant all along, but the moment Rang Yong mentioned of the Hua family, he immediately changed his expression. He appeared slightly in awe, and a little fearful, did all of you offend them? These people are the real obscure cultivators. Even though they had no concerns over the world affair but it is absolutely forbidden to provoke them, otherwise they would never rest until you die. Rang Yong was about to speak. 
He watched Ji Song's expression as he suddenly recalled something, my old friend Ji Song, I thought that you are fearless. You acted so imposing and prestigious upon meeting the Lama, yet your face is shadowed with fear when I mentioned the Hua family. As he was saying that he squinted his eyes and shot Ji Song an evil stare, could it be that you know the Lama would never hurt you, so you acted unreasonably to the Lama? Ji Song had yet to speak when Fei Fei laughed and continued the head Lama's conversation, just as the great master had expected, he could not conceal his emotions from me. Ji Song scoffed heavily and pretended not to have heard Fei Fei's words. He picked up his speed and ran towards the mountain summit. Head Lama Rangyong was at a loss whether to laugh or cry as he rushed over and refocused the topic of conversation, how much do you know about the Hua family? Ji Song did not talk nonsense as he directly told about everything he knew about the Hua family to Rangyong. The Hua family was supposed to be the obscure cultivator of the central plains but millenniums ago. One of the first ancestors unintentionally discovered a new cultivation method, that was why he moved his entire family to the Tangula Mountains. They engaged in the cultivation method of the water element. With Ji Song's cultivation base, there was utterly no way he could see through their abilities, he was even less daring to investigate about their tracks. When Wen Leong learned that the Hua family was already in this place for over a thousand years, he felt much more steady and sure in his heart. After all, the longer the Hua family was there, the less possibility there was for them to be associated to the evil cultivators. There was not a lot of people could be as capable as his grand master Tua Xia that could make arrangement for an affair two thousand years later. The Hua family's supernatural power was secondary. They were too ghastly as they were mysterious and unpredictable and even telegnosis ability could not detect them. If they were enemies, then the journey to the snow mountain would be undeniable more dangerous. That was all that Ji Song knew, he did not speak more than a few sentences before he shut his mouth. Rang Yong was feeling rather helpless, so the group did not speak anymore but crossed layers of knife ridges and ice cirque swiftly. They finally arrived at the summit of Jeladaindong Peak before daylight the next day. The summit of Jeladaindong Peak was a stretch of plains. The land appeared flat and smooth at first glance but in reality, it was firmly covered in the ice cap as thick as a hundred meters. Some wide and some narrow fissures were arranged in a crisscross pattern. The ice cliffs and ice cirques were all linked together. Near to where the group that had just arrived at the peak was a stretch of campsite standing tall out of nowhere. Everyone probed around a little and was startled by the campsite that was located dozens of meters away. This place was apparently sealed by a magic spell and could hide from the detection of telegnosis ability. Ji Song scoffed, the person who visited my immortal's cave is in that tent. As he was saying that, he removed an agitated snow spider from his chest pocket and tossed it onto the ground. The spider immediately concealed itself into the snow as it burrowed into a tiny snow mound on the ground, and ran towards the campsite swiftly. On the other hand, Ji Song did not dash towards the campsite impatiently, but he held his chin in slight doubt, these tents here it seems that there are too many people here, right? Even though the campsite was built in a simple method, the layers of overlapping tents connected to one another. It could hold up to thousands of people. When Leong and Rang Yong gazed at one another. They simultaneously spoke of one word softly, Kunlun. They were tracking down the corpse pit at the foothill of Tangula Mountains that delayed their journey by a few days. They did not expect that the Kunlun's battalion had already entered the mountain since earlier. The evil cultivator with a big scheme in his heart and the warriors of the small town, the Kunlun disciples that swore an oath of revenge. The obscure cultivator Hua family that was mysterious and ghastly and when Liang's group of people had turned the originally tranquil and peaceful snow peak of the Tangula Mountains, into a bustling scene soundlessly. Chapter, 204 The interconnected stretch of tents on the snow peak of the Jeladaindong Peak was large enough to hold thousands of people. Even though there was no obvious marker, when Leong that had just arrived on the summit could tell that it was the Kunlun disciples' campsite. There was no other battalion this grand in this area other than them. The Kunlun disciples were albeit cultivators, they were still humans after all. Especially when they were in the snow peak, with the strong wind blowing, it was so cold a drop of water could be turned into ice. They needed a campsite where they could rest. The Kunlun cultivation method had its own specialty. 
even when Leyang's telegnosis ability that allowed him to drift outside nature could not detect their presence before he stepped onto the summit. However, when Leyang had no time to ponder about that, he gazed at the rest with his face filled with fear, the entire campsite was too quiet. His telegnosis ability was futile. Theoretically, at the same time, when Leong discovered the campsite, the Kunlun disciples should notice their presence as well. The Kunlun sect was one of the five blessings of the right path in the cultivation world. The disciples were well trained with strict discipline. However, with when Leong and the rest just meters away from this campsite, other than the howling of strong winds on their surroundings, not a sound could be heard. In the enormous stretch of campsite, everything was deadly still. When Leong suddenly had a baffling feeling. He felt that this was unlike a campsite, but more like a cemetery. The morning sun that had just risen appeared warm and solid but weak. The pale sunlight pierced through the chilly wind that was howling in rage with great difficulties and shed onto the campsite in slanted rays. Not only did it not bring a sense of warmth, it was rippling with slight gloominess. The rest of the few people had yet to speak but Ji Song was the first person that jumped out. He puffed up his bony thin chest and spoke with an icy cold tone, I will go first. He turned around and looked towards the campsite as he roared loudly in rage, who was the one that hurt my mountain guarding divine beast. Come out quickly and face your doom. As he was saying that his hands crossed, the Vajra bell in his chest pocket shot out into the air abruptly. The tinkering sound of bells was heard accompanied by its continuous shakings. Patu's face was obviously filled with rage. How could Ji Song surprisingly address his two spiders as the mountain guarding divine beast? Those words made Patu felt very frustrated. The Vajra bell rang faster and faster yet there were no replies. Ji Song's face was filled with impatience. He suddenly opened his mouth and chanted the Tibetan Buddhism sect mantra, Ong Zi Song Zi Song Sua Ha. Ong Zi Song Zi Song Sua Ha. When Leon thought that Ji Song was about to launch his supernatural power to attack the campsite. His body moved ever so slightly in an attempt to stop Ji Song when the head Lama Rangyong on his side suddenly gave out a ha. He stretched out his hand and blocked when Leon. The head Lama's expression was first astonished then an irresistible smile appeared on his dark-colored huge face. The seven syllables mantra did not turn louder under the influence of the bell but it became clearer and clearer. Even when Leong and the rest who were standing aside could feel that they became high-spirited. It felt like drinking a large glass of chilled water after waking up from a hangover, their bodies became stimulated and excited for a moment. However, other than that, there was no other supernatural power that was performed by Ji Song. Ji Song chanted the seven-word syllables mantra for a few times and his supernatural power suddenly vanished. He strolled relaxingly back to when Leong sighed and spoke dully, there is no one here. The head lama burst out with the loudest laughter that could shake the heaven and earth that made everyone startled. Even the strong wind ran away in fear before his laughter, my old friend Ji Song, I think you were chanting the refreshing mantra right? This mantra's only use was to refresh the spirit and awaken the mind. When Leong and the rest were dumbfounded all of a sudden. Ji Song feigned his mannerism for a long period of time, he was actually blowing the wake-up horn at the Kunlun sect. His wake-up horn had been blown for a long while yet he could not see any Taoist priest that had just awakened. That was why he could tell that there was no one in the campsite now. The group understood the situation considerably, Ji Song was a person that appeared to be tough outwardly but timid inwardly. He dared not urge his treasured weapons to attack the Kunlun sect's campsite directly but he refused to be embarrassed. That was why he ran forward and chanted the refreshing mantra to the Kunlun Taoist priests loudly. Patu glared at Ji Song ferociously. It waved its hand towards Wen Leong, both of us shall enter. The Lama will protect the three common people. Gu Xiaojun and the rest jumped down from their transport vehicle. The head Lama held the human bone beads in his hand, appearing like a great mountain as he firmly blocked the common people behind his back. Ji Song clasped his hand at his back and his expression still remained as savage as before, his mouth was muttering in an icy cold tone, for hurting my snow spiders, you will ultimately pay with your life. Yet he stood on the same spot. When Leon shouted loudly towards the campsite, Lu Zheng, we are about to enter. 
Whether there was anyone in there, it was still necessary for Wen Leon to greet them. After he was done shouting, he nodded towards Patu. Both of them walked towards the campsite side by side. The campsite was suppressed by the Taoist magic art. Wen Leon, Patu or Rang Zheng's telegnosis ability was incapable of detecting what was happening inside but this form of magic spell was only effective at guarding against the outside but not the inside. Once Wen Leon stepped into the campsite, he felt that he suddenly sprang into a humongous soap bubble of a small world, his telegnosis ability became crystal clear all of a sudden. He immediately dashed towards the inside of the campsite. Just as when Leong and Patu entered the campsite in a flash, the colorful Taoist banners in all corners of the campsite shook abruptly. Within a series of muffled thunder-like roaring, the banners vaporized into a puff of green smoke. Patu was stunned for a moment, followed closely by its abrupt change of expression as it squalled, a prohibition spell has been triggered before his voice died away, a few thousand streaks of lightning erupted in the sky. Within the loud crashing sounds, the sharp purple-colored lightning bolts struck onto the both them just like a storm. Other than the sound of surging heaven's thunder, there were also layers of raging flames that were roaring. Countless large rocks appeared out of thin air. A few sword dragons that were attacking violently it was afraid that there was nothing left of the mountain ceiling prohibition spell in Kunlun Mountain's Yushu Palace. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng brought along everything from his entire sect. The few people on the outside turned pale with fear. The head lama had the fastest reaction. His plump and large body rippled in a layer of fiery cloud as he dashed towards the campsite ferociously. The moment he started chanting the Mahavirokana mantra of light, he immediately heard the mountain peaks responding shouts and muffled sounds. The string of human bone beads in his hand that was already so worn turned black and shattered abruptly. A few thousand rays of Buddha's light ripped and struck towards the prohibition spell in the campsite. The bone beads were made from the bone in between the brows or the top of the skull of a lama that achieved mastery in cultivation. One bead could only be made from one lama. That was why his 108 rosary beads were made from 108 lama's blessing. The Mahavirokana mantra of light triggered the power of cultivation that had been accumulated for millenniums in order to aid Rangyong in launching the strongest Tibetan Buddhism sect's supernatural power. The fatal prohibition spell of the Kunlun sect, the Tibetan Buddhism sect's divine power that rippled from the Lama. The metal poison stream that surged underneath Wen Liang's feet and the demonic primordial energy of the earth element that was released from the divine beast Patu's strange cry entangled in the wild wind. It was akin to the bursting of the sun and moon and the collapse of the heaven and earth. It was unknown who was the one that gave out a series of agonizing howls, the sounds were akin to knives as it pulverized the Tangula mountain silence. At the sound of a thud, the first person that fell onto the ground was the ghastly pale Ji Song. His frightened pupils were bewildered under the reflection of the colorful radiance that rippled from the supernatural powers and treasured weapons, just like a laser chip. Only after a long while, the Taoist magic prohibition spell with seemingly unsurpassed power gradually dispersed off. The thick and dense smoke was blown away in layers by the roaring strong wind, when Leong and the giant pangolin held on to each other. They swayed for a few times towards the direction of Old Gu and the rest before falling head first onto the ground. The Lama's red-colored robe turned into hundreds of red cloth strips. The cloth strips draped his body in a hilarious way. His huge face with dark complexion turned ghastly pale out of exhaustion. He turned around on the same spot for half a circle before lying on the ground stiffly. By the time everybody else staggered and dashed into the campsite, when Leong and Patu who had already turned into its demon body lied in the shape of the word, and, respectively. Translators note, Patu has a tail. They were looking at each other while sniggering foolishly. Both of them were covered in wounds so deep they could see the bones from head to toe. The wounds cracked open their skin, akin to a doll's mouth. Some wounds appeared to be crying while some smiling. Fei Fei realized that when Leong was still alive, her eyes reddened. Her little lips quivered for a few times as if she was about to bawl loudly but she finally suppressed the urge to cry. When she saw that he was still laughing, she stomped her foot in rage and anxiousness. She sounded a little choked up as she said, what is the point of laughing now? You are lucky that you are still alive. 
Then, she started dressing Wen Liang's wounds. Wen Liang spoke with great difficulties, is the Lama Ranyong still well? Fei Fei turned around and took a look. Ji Song was bustling about to help Ranyong up, the Lama was albeit unusually confused and was injured rather severely, he was also giggling maniacally. Xiao Sha looked at Patu and Wen Liang, then he looked at the head Lama Ranyong. His small eyes were filled with puzzlement. The rest of the people did not understand. The ability to join hands and destroy the prohibition spell with shocking power was an event with such a high sense of achievement. Yet, the three men were laughing in a manner that was unlike people that had just escaped death in an almost miraculous manner. But more like a first grade student that had just received 100 points in his exam score, so fully satisfied that he did not know about anything else other than to laugh. Even top master cultivators like Chang Li, Hanba or Kone Nail would be caught off guard and thrown into confusion by such an incisive prohibition spell. Even though they would not die, if they were not careful, they would be wounded. The giant pangolin Patu tossed for a long while before managing to turn over, he laughed towards the head Lama weakly, Rang Yong, Patu owes you one. Under Xiao Sha's support, Wen Leong stood up with shivering legs. He shouted towards the head Lama, I cannot express my gratitude towards you for saving my life in words. The three men exerted all their strength out of desperation to resist this fatal supernatural power that was comparable to the god's punishment. If it was not Rang Yong who exerted the cultivation base of his entire body to aid in time, the odds were mostly against Wen Leong and the pangolin. Rang Yong waved his hand once, almost flinging away his entire arm. He clenched his teeth in pain while he laughed aloud in an incomparably hideous manner, I am only saving your lives out of convenience, there is no need to be too thankful. The pangolin spat out a mouthful of bloody saliva ferociously. It shook its head as it cursed, out of convenience. Conveniently turning your robe into a fishing net. Upon saying, the three of them laughed aloud together. Wen Leong laughed so hard that his bones were almost falling apart. It was only then he stopped laughing aloud. He looked around the campsite and exclaimed with heartfelt admiration, the Kunlun Taoist magic is exceedingly amazing. This entire mountaintop was crashed by the unsurpassed power of the prohibition spell into a heavily cratered land but not even one of the tents in the campsite topple over. The sword dragons and scorching flames that completely swarmed over Wen Leong and Patu earlier surprisingly did not even scrape the side of a tent. Gu Xiaojun cautiously opened the tent. The giant pangolin Patu spoke from the side, there is not even a person in the campsite. Its telegnosis ability had already swept past the entire stretch of campsite even before the prohibition spell was triggered. It was all emptiness. There was no one there. No one knew where did the battalion of Kunlun Taoist priests go. Patu was in a rather good mood. Everyone appeared pleasing in its eyes after it escaped death from a great catastrophe. Even Gu Xiaojun benefited from that. Upon saying that, Patu chuckled and complimented, such an incisive prohibition spell is already launched, there will not be any more ambush later. You can search the area if you want to, it is alright. Fei Fei and the skinny bamboo pole Ji Song remained on the same spot to take care of the three severely injured members that were cultivating their poison power, life vitality, and demonic primordial energy respectively to recuperate. Old Gu brought along Xiao Sha as they started searching around the campsite rapidly. Being attentive, Fei Fei was afraid that they would feel cold due to their severe injuries, she used the solid fuel that she carried along to ignite a bonfire in front of them. This was the first time since Fei Fei executed the mission that she brought along an adequate set of equipment. It was mainly because she had the better transportation vehicle this time. Even though they were terribly injured, they were persons with extraordinary physique. Especially, since when Liang's cultivation method was based on the path of turning his human body into a saint, he healed at an extremely fast speed. Not only his bleeding had stopped by itself now, if one were to examine closely, fine granulations were forming on his wounds. His wounds had started to heal slowly. Besides, the head Lama and Patu were carrying rare and treasured potions on their bodies. Even though the three persons were incapable of instantly recovering, as long as they could recuperate in calmness, it would only take a day or two before they could regain some of their primordial vitality. Ji Song was shocked. He had never fought Rang Yong before. 
Even though he had a short competition with Wen Leong, the competition was not an actual comparison of their superpowers. Ji Song was aware that their abilities were stronger than his but he had absolutely never expected them to be so strong. He could never imagine that the three persons could resist and even survive the incisive prohibition spell that would petrify him even if he was being brushed slightly. Ji Song gave a few hollow laughs, his face filled with admiration. He was about to think of something to say. He held his silence for a long while before he spat out a mouthful of spit ferociously, so this campsite belongs to the Kunlun sect. Those Taoist priests are an abomination. There is obviously no one here but they leave behind such a violent prohibition spell. Before his voice died away, the head Lama Rangyong and Patu opened their eyes at the same time. They gazed into each other's eyes. The head Lama pondered for a moment before he spoke, sounding like he was muttering to himself but also sounded like he was asking Patuzday. If there is no one else in the campsite, do they even need to use a prohibition spell to suppress this place? The giant pangolin swayed its pointy head and made a puzzled expression. A few question marks appeared on its lizard-like face. It was truly a little frightening. When Leong did not plan to acknowledge Ji Song initially but listening to his other two companions' conversation, he opened his eyes as well and asked, What do you mean? Patu was aware that Wen Leong had no knowledge of anything. Hence, it explained to him with an extremely rare patience, the Taoist banners that launched the prohibition spell were treasured weapons that the Taoist family refined laboriously. The Kunlun disciples' absence was nothing but to deal with an enemy, they should not be leaving behind such an incisive treasured weapon. Wen Leung seemed to not fully understand the explanation, those flags the Taoist banners can be used as a treasured weapon to deal with an enemy. When he saw the other two persons nodding their heads, he was suddenly enlightened. The Taoist banners were capable of launching the prohibition spell with tremendous power. It seemed to be really precious. However, when the Kunlun disciples left their lodge in a swarm, their purpose was certainly not for hunting. If their intention was to deal with the enemies, the incisive Taoist banners should be carried with them all the time and not used to guard these empty tents. Ji Song did not pay attention to their conversation. He only glared at Wen Leong with fear on his face. He was puzzled. How could this young lad who possessed shocking supernatural power did not even know about such a simple fact that the Taoist banner could be used as a treasured weapon to blast the enemy? Wen Leong pondered for a while then he spoke slowly, so in this campsite is something important there. Is that why they left behind the Taoist banners that formed into the prohibition spell to guard that item? The giant pangolin became joyous and gave out a th ha. Its pitch black colored eyes were filled with greed, that would be perfect. That would be compensation from the Taoist priests for causing my body full of injuries. Upon saying that, it stopped for a moment, then it honored the code of brotherhood and complimented, we will divide it amongst the three of us. Both of you are injured too. When Leong rubbed his palms together out of slight embarrassment, we are acquaintances. It is rather mean for us to steal from them right? Rangyong sniggered as he shook his head. He refocused the topic of conversation, there is another possibility, the Kunlun disciples had some emergency unforeseen event such that they had to leave urgently. That was why they did not manage to remove the prohibition spell and retrieve the Taoist banners off course, if it would be better if the banners are guarding some precious then it will be even better. As he was saying that the Lama's eyes were burning with brightness. Just by thinking with his buttocks, he could tell how precious the treasure was if it was guarded by such an incisive prohibition spell. At this moment, Gu Xiaojun who had just bore out of the tent suddenly spoke and continued the Lama's conversation, from my point of view, there may not be a treasure. I think the first half of the great master's sentence would be more dependable. As he was saying that, he tossed over a Taoist disciple's commonly used bag. At the sound of a thud, the bag landed in front of the few people. The items inside the bag spilled out. There was a dozen of cinnabar talismans. Even the piercing cold wild winds on the snow peak could not turn over a corner of these talismans. These talismans were apparently cast with a remarkable magic spell that it was not afraid of being blown away. Other than the talismans, there was also a piece of topaz meteoric water token and an iron bagua. Patu was a mountain-guarding divine beast of the Chilean immortal sect. 
It was considered of the same lineage as the Taoist school so it was a natural connoisseur. Upon seeing these items, its expression was a combination of sternness and disappointment, these items here are all the treasured weapons that are refined by the cultivators through laborious efforts. They have always carried these items with them. Xiao Sha also found quite a few Taoist treasured weapons from a few tents, including the square Dharma Mudra, the disaster-breaking rod. The yin and yang mirror, the phoenix feather fan, the heaven's fire basin there was an abundance of treasured weapons of all sorts and all types. Every item was engraved with Kunlun's marker without exception. Pe Tu hastily glanced through and said to Wen Leong, These items' power is not worth a mention but these are no doubt Taoist priests' treasured weapons. Upon saying that, everyone shot an inquisitive gaze towards Gu Xiaojun. Gu Xiaojun understood the group's intention, he immediately answered, These items were placed in their packs or traveling bags that they carried on their bodies and were just placed next to their bed where they could reach easily. On the other hand old Gu's gaze became obviously sharper in a flash and then returned to normal in the blink of an eye, there are also flying swords. There are still some flying swords that had yet to be unsheathed in the tents, the swords are still in the scabbards. Xiao Sha stopped searching around. He walked in front of the group and continued to compliment, in some of the tents, there are also green-colored Taoist robes that are scattered around. As he was saying that, he looked towards Ji Song, your spider is seducing a robe. No one was humored by Xiao Sha's joke. Everyone inhaled a sharp cold breath ferociously. It was clear that something had happened to the Kunlun disciples. When the Kunlun disciples were leaving, their prohibition spell was still there. It was apparent that there was no enemy had attacked their place. The campsite was neat and tidy. There were no signs of struggle. No matter how they thought, it still appeared that the Kunlun disciples escaped by themselves. However, if they were going to confront an enemy then why did they leave behind their treasured weapons in the tents? What actually happened capable of making the Kunlun disciples that had already made astonishing advancement in their cultivation power to leave in such a hurry that they forgot about their flying swords? When Leon was engrossed in his thoughts, he asked probingly, is it possible that it is the creatures? That species of strange tadpoles? That species of strange tadpoles was the embodiment of water. It was capable of escaping from Wen Leong and the rest's telegnosis ability, perhaps the tadpoles could escape the campsite's prohibition spell. Moreover, the tadpoles could swim in the snow-capped mountain unhindered. Patu gave out a, ha, if this was a campsite for ten persons or even one hundred persons, then it is possible that the tadpoles did this. However, there are thousands of cultivators, yet no one noticed that they had been raided by the creatures. Even if they were all controlled by the creatures in the end, there would still be a sequence of events. Since no one triggered the prohibition spell and no one launched the supernatural power or the flying sword, it seems to me that this may not necessarily be the creature's doing. Ji Song could not resist any more. He rolled around his strange eyes as he asked the group, what kind of creature is that? Your description is so subtle. Rang Yung explained about their encounter with the strange tadpoles to him. Ji Song's eyes widened even more in surprise. He did not know how many times he had made the frightened expression, this creature I have never heard of it before, I have never seen it on the Jeladandong Peak, oh no, on the entire Tangula Mountains. When Leong inhaled a long breath, stop guessing. We ought to figure out a way to look for them. As he was saying that he tried to move his body once. He gave a forced laugh as he shook his head and asked Rang Yong and the giant pangolin, how long do all of you need? When the prohibition spell dispersed off, they did not feel anything yet. As his vitality energy was circulating to heal the body, he could feel the discomfort in his limbs and bones that were almost scattered, when Leon attempted but there was no way he could exert any strength. Rang Yong too gave a forced laugh and heaved a sigh, another one and a half day at least. Patu's answer was even more straightforward, the same as the Lama. Being so severely injured, it was not an easy task to heal. They could only heal a little of their primordial vitality as a temporary measure, such that they could move and walk by themselves and at least possess the power of one attack upon meeting the enemy. When Leong laughed without a reason, he spoke in elation, I am faster than the both of you. Even though he could not exert any strength at this time, he knew that his body healed at an extremely fast speed. 
It would only take one day's time at most before he could jump up and perform the faulty punch. Based on his cultivation method of turning his human body into saint, the external injuries were nothing. As long as he did not die, he could heal as soon as possible even if his injuries were even more severe. The Lama and the Pangolin curled up their lips in disgust. Disdain filled their faces as they started closing their eyes and recuperated. Old Gu and Xiao Sha stood up and continued to search the other tents. Ji Song sniggered to Wen Leong, cautiously concealing his flattering intention, Little brother's cultivation method is so marvelous. Before he could finish his sentence, the giant pangolin that had just closed its eyes suddenly opened its eyes and spouted a gush of cold humph out of its nostrils. Ji Song was startled, he hastily continued, the divine beast's cultivation method is also remarkable to the greatest extent. The pangolin coughed, I was not aiming at you. He <laughs> he it was laughing halfway, when it suddenly turned around and spoke to Wen Leong in an accented voice, Yang. Wen Leong was stunned. His telegnosis ability detected something as well, he frowned and gave a forced laugh as he shook his head, why is he here? Ji Song immediately jumped up. His hand gripped tightly onto the Vitra Dorge. His face was filled with vigilance as he asked, is that the enemy? Click, the crisp sound of the gun's bolt being pulled was heard. The witty Fei Fei could already make a guess of who that was, holding the QSC-92. She laughed as she answered Ji Song, it should not be, but it could be. The Lama laughed softly. He turned around and said to Fei Fei, the little girl need not worry. If he were to possess any malicious intent. Even if the Lama could not stand, the Lama would still make sure he is not reborn again. As he was saying that, he removed a Vajva Kalaka from his chest pocket in a strenuous movement and stabbed onto the snow ground in front of himself. After more than ten minutes, a dark-colored head slowly probed out of the mountain cliff. He appeared unusually conspicuous in the snowy white land. When Leung's African brother Tutatunt had arrived. Chapter, 205 When Leung and the others rescued African brother Tutatunt from the corpse pit. He was the sole survivor of the evil cult followers. He could not understand what Wen Leong and the others were discussing but he could get the gist just by observing their expressions. The Tibetan people who murdered his tribesmen had already entered the mountain. Even the most devout believer would not be able to tolerate the Tuer Tibetan people's act of killing without forewarning. Tudatunt had entered into Tangula Mountains to seek revenge. It was rare for an African to be able to withstand the cold. Naturally, Tudatunt could not keep up with the speed of Wen Leung's group and was left far behind. However, Wen Leung and the others were held up at the bottom of the ice fissure for half a day and took a detour to the Immortal's Cave where Ji Song cultivated. After all, Tudatunt was a cultivator, his traveling speed was much faster than an ordinary human. He caught up in no time. Not long ago, the prohibition spell was triggered at the Kunlun sex tents and almost tore the place down. Tudatunt, whose head was spinning and had no idea where he should go, happily followed their voices and ran towards them. Tudatunt peeped with extreme caution. When he noticed the person that was sitting not far from him was his most dearly beloved Yang, he was overjoyed. He howled and ran towards Wen Leong. His happy face was like a blooming flower, a black flower. He ran halfway when a yell erupted in mid-air, from whence came ugly ghost. Ji Song waved his Vitra Dorge and struck at Tudatunt's head. Tudatunt looked up and pronounced a stream of syllables, which no one understood. However, when Leung's reckoned he must have shouted, where did this ugly ghost come from the African brother rolled sideways with agile movements and dodged Ji Song's attack. Then, he leaped and ran. He did not run far but ran in circles around Wen Leung. Two skinny bamboos, one black and one brown, chased and hit each other. Their speed was similar. Ji Song was right on the black man's tail, he was always that close to hitting his target but kept on missing. He cried in frustration. Wen Leong tried very hard to suppress his laughter. He managed to call the furious Ji Song back. Tudatunt did not bother about his bamboo brother and jumped in front of Wen Leong. His spittle flew everywhere as he gestured and spoke. Then, he went beside the campfire. He cuddled his bony thin body into a ball and looked at them pitiably. Fei Fei roughly understood from watching him. 
She explained to Wen Leon with a smile, he wants to travel with us, to seek revenge for his fallen friends he also said that he is a brave warrior. Wen Leon laughed, forget it. From the day we met him, I never saw him fight. I have only heard him scream. Maybe it was because of the other party's delicate, pitiable gaze, maybe it was because he ate his roasted meat, when Leung's impression of his African brother was not bad. Especially when they ate meat, he always saved the best part for them. Not to mention the evil soul, even the town residents, who were King Geezer's legendary guardian, despite being corroded by the foulness, they were already highly skilled. Even if when Leung was not fifth brother Hanba, he reckoned that he was the only one capable of facing him. It would be a fierce battle and he would not be able to care for the others. Strictly speaking, Old Gu, Fei Fei and Xiao Sha were the country's soldiers. They would not retreat without a valid reason. Wen Leon could not say anything and could only plan in accordance to how things were. He would have to risk his life to look after them. However, it would be a burden to look after his African brother. Nevertheless, Wen Leong could not allow Tutatanti to meet his demise just because Wen Leong let him be. Wen Leong shook his head at Fei Fei. He did not speak until Tutatant who curled up beside the fire jumped to his feet suddenly. Tutatanti bared his teeth at Wen Leong as he danced and squalled. Africans had explosive expressions when Leong was greatly shocked by him this time. He quickly told Fei Fei, if he is willing to follow then let him follow, make him stop screaming. However, Fei Fei squinted her eyes. She scrutinized Tutatun's expression, her tone was slightly perplexed, I think he discovered some danger. During the elimination race, they kept squalling like this. When Leon was injured but his telegnosis ability was unaffected. He expanded his telegnosis ability but did not notice anything. However, Tutatun's expression was of extreme urgency like a greatly frightened monkey. His voice became sharper and sharper. He eventually ran over and wanted to hug Wen Leung. Ji Song's movements were extremely fast and stopped him in an instant. The two bamboo poles were of a similar height. Their eyes were almost at the same level. They stared at each other. One was eccentric while the other was frightened and afraid. At this moment, the giant pangolin widened its eyes suddenly. It lifted its pointed head and twitched its nose. It sniffed the air carefully as if a dangerous scent was wafting by. A series of shuffling sounds, which sounded hasty, could be heard. The snow spider that was playing with the Taoist robe in the tent ran out wildly as if shocked by some stimulation. It jumped and bumped in its haste, eventually running into a small protruding ice. It mashed its own body. When Leong and Rangyong looked at each other, their telegnosis abilities still could not sense anything. At this moment, the giant pangolin, who was so injured it could barely move, convulsed. It leaped up reflexively and squalled, we're doomed. Then, with a bang, it fell heavily to the ground. Gu Xiaojun and Xiao Sha heard the commotion outside and went out of the tent to gather with the group. They asked in great urgency about what had transpired. Pe Tu shook its head, almost numbly. Its pitch-black eyes were full of despair. Even it did not know what would happen next. Everything was unrelated to the cultivator's telegnosis ability. It was purely the instinct of wild beasts to predict the coming of a catastrophe. Tutatun's sharp scream escalated after a moment of silence. It was even more intense and hurried than before. His sharp cries almost made his throat bleed. From his looks, Fei Fei saw that a great danger was coming. She placed her hands under Wen Liang's armpits as she intended to pull him to his feet and she shouted one word to the others in a sharp voice. Run! Gu Xiaojun and Xiao Sha hopped onto their transportation without a second thought. They carried the wounded and broke into a sprint. Ji Song's body swayed as he carried the head lama with Xiao Sha. Tutatunt kept on squalling but his limbs did not stop, he towed Wen Liang with the help of Fei Fei. Only old Gu had a helpless expression as he negotiated with Putu, can you turn back into your human form? His voice had barely faded when their surroundings quieted down suddenly. The strong wind as cold as an iron horn on the mountain peak vanished in an instant. Tutatunt also shut his mouth. He stretched out his fingers that were no thicker than a chopstick as he pointed in utmost despair at the direction of the snow-covered peak far away. 
Everybody followed his finger and looked. They were flabbergasted. A layer of thin, shiny, almost transparent color of water skimmed swiftly from a faraway section of the stretch of snow-covered peaks like an undercurrent. Where the water color skimmed, the initially fluffy and light snow surface immediately turned into a rigid appearance. The sunlight casted a strange brilliance. Everything froze into hard ice in an instant. The always strong Fei Fei said a technical term as if she was moaning, instant low pressure flash freezing she let go of Wen Leong abruptly. She turned around and ran in front of her little brother Xiao Xiao. She used her body, which could only be described as slender, to shield her brother. Xiao Xia howled furiously. He turned over and shielded his sister behind him. The siblings continued to entangle with each other. The flash freeze emanated quickly. It covered most of the huge snow-covered peak in a dozen seconds. It was like a giant invisible phantom that pounced on the group mercilessly. If the three strongest cultivators among them were not injured, they could naturally resist this cold wave that surged through the sky and the earth. However, they could not even stand right now, let alone activate their magic powers. A few dozen meters behind them was a cliff. They had nowhere to run. Gu Xiaojuan's face was painted in a greenish hue like death. He stood on the spot silently. He had given up all useless struggles. Fei Fei's movements were the fastest just now but she picked the wrong direction. Hence, Wen Leong who was lying on the ground was now the vanguard of the group. He laid limply on the ground with pride. He could only look as the resplendent white emanated towards him after it swallowed the earth in front of him. Wen Leong could barely recall having watched a disaster film. The epicenter of a low-pressured cold wave skimmed past and froze everything in its path in a fraction of a second. The flash freeze came strangely fast. The deepest impression that Wen Leong had was when the cold wave reached him, the blazing campfire nearby grew stagnant the instant the low temperature skimmed past. Then, it let out a muffled bang and vanished quickly. Almost at the same time, a sensation of which he was unsure whether it was extreme cold or extreme heat rolled into his body quickly. The moment before he died, he could not bring himself to close his eyes. At the instant when Leon was about to be frozen into an ice sculpture, his chest heated up suddenly. A puff of pure black glow erupted fiercely and wildly without a sound. A black ball the size of a fist jumped out of thin air and barricaded itself on Wen Liang's chest. The black light was as thick as matter, it immediately chased off the boundless cold. Nobody expected that there would be a twist for the better at their deathbeds. The group hastily huddled behind Wen Liang. They stared with gritted teeth at the water-colored flash freeze that spread towards their surroundings under the black light's protection. Only the giant pangolin Patu stared at the black ball. A few seconds later, it seemed to have remembered something and squalled with fright. Other than the area protected by the black ball, the entire few hundred kilometers of Jeladandong snow-covered peaks were covered by the flash freeze. The water-colored cold wave did not give up. Like the evil spirits in the unholy land, it surged in layers of impatience as it wanted to break into the black glow. It would not stop until it froze when Leong and the others into a frozen lump. The crackling sound of the flash freeze sounded endlessly with a noise dreary and dismal as if the mountain's belly was gradually crumbling. The black ball rotated swiftly in mid-air. The black glow grew thicker and thicker. Finally, after a few minutes, it erupted with a crisp snap. Millions of cracks spread across the frozen snow-covered peaks. Then, when Leong heard the sound of wind again. Not only could the flash freeze not seep into the black light, it was utterly scattered by the pure black glow. An extremely furious howl projected forth from afar, wicked demons breaking my spell, even a thousand deaths could not atone you the one who spoke had an extremely hoarse voice. It did not sound like the Hua family's youth whom Wen Leong and the others have met before this. This person sounded older. The other party had not finished when another rigid voice like a wooden peg sounded rudely from Wen Liang's chest, FCKU. A white arc of lightning erupted beside Wen Liang. A huge white moon's blade shot swiftly towards afar. It was fast like lightning but it did not stir up any wind. Then a hoarse wail sounded. A human figure was mercilessly pierced at the shoulder blades by the moon glaive and crashed out of the surface of the ice. 
Only then, the group understood that the flash freeze just now was not a natural phenomenon but the enemy's magic. By the looks of the wounded person's attire, it was the obscure cultivator of the Tangula Mountains, the elite of Hua family. The spell of the white-garbed middle-aged man was broken and revealed himself. That was why he was taken down by the moon's blade with one hit. However, Wen Leong did not bother about the enemy who was slowly towed towards them by the moon's blade but he pulled on the jade knife hung around his neck with surprise and joy, you're awake? The moon's blade was ghastly pale, it stood for Yin's error the sun's blade was matte black, it stood for Yang's mistake. The one who saved them from imminent danger was Guo Huan's powerful magic weapon Yin's error Yang's mistake. If the magic weapon was activated, naturally it meant that Guo Huan had woken up. Guo Huan's voice was as rigid as ever, useless brat, need me to save your ass every time halfway through his sentence, Guo Huan suddenly switched to a surprised and angered tone, what the FCK is this? Who put this thing into the jade knife? Chang Li and fifth brother Hanba had killed San Wei and badly wounded Zhui Zi at Miao Stockade Village. After the Taoist priest San Wei died, its primordial soul fled into the jade knife to linger on with its dying breath. Wen Leung laughed and wanted to explain when Fei Fei suddenly came over and pulled on his sleeve. She pointed at the ground and quickly wrote four words on the snow, his words are insincere. Wen Leung knitted his brows. Fei Fei continued to write, he asks as if he does not know, he is playing dumb. At this moment, Guo Huan exclaimed in surprise. His rigid voice could not conceal his amazement, this little girl knows how to read minds. Then, it teased with a malicious intent, one lad, you're almost a married man. Fei Fei gave an oh no, as she smiled bitterly and shook her head. In her haste, she reminded Wen Leong with written words but she overlooked the fact that since Guo Huan could activate his magic weapon and land a hit on the hiding obscure cultivator, he could naturally read the words she wrote on the snow. Wen Leong was shocked as he asked casually, how did you know I'm about to get married he had not finished when Guo Huan sneered and interrupted him, you're still so dumb. Even the little girl could see through me. Wen Leong pondered for a while and was hit with a sudden realization. He asked Guo Huan with a bitter smile, you were awake all this time. Guo Huan had almost exhausted all of his spirit primordial energy in the gold-consuming lair and fell into a deep slumber after sustaining heavy injuries. Not long after that, he woke up a few times. Although he only stayed awake for brief periods of time, he had once said that he could awaken completely after going through the cycle of fainting and waking up. However, he did not wake up after the series of fierce battles at Shanghai's painting town. Before painting town's Leong Tian died, he had told Wen Leong everything he knew about what the three grand masters had done two thousand years ago. Wen Leong had one question then, whether it was in the past or in the present, the person who killed demons to extract their primordial energy was their own kin. However, according to Guo Huan, he did not recognize the person who killed him. Nonetheless, the one who saved him was Grand Master Tuasye himself. The stories of the two parties were clearly in conflict. The person who killed demons to extract their primordial energy 2000 years ago and had the ability to injure Guo Huan would have been Tuasye's second brother Misu. If Tuas Ye ran into his second brother while he was killing demons to extract their primordial energy, he would definitely run over and stab Guo Huan a few more times. He had no reason to battle his second brother and rescue Guo Huan after that. In no time, Wen Leong figured out why Guo Huan had to lie. The line of Tuas Ye and Chang Li had always been his archenemies. When Guo Huan fell into the enemy's hands, he had to fabricate a lie to protect himself. If Tuas Ye had saved Guo Huan so many years ago, the Wen Butsao naturally had no reasons to defeat this mountain ghost. If Guo Huan spoke the truth, Wen Butsao would have found a way there and then to grind him into thunder's heart sand. Wen Leung scratched his hair in mild distress, he seemed to have thought of something, were you when I found the jade knife in the belly of Mount Amei already awake? Guo Huan had been exposed. He decided not to hide the truth. After all, he could activate the two powerful treasured weapons. He had the confidence to speak. Even if they truly fell out, he had the confidence to fight his enemies with the Yin's error and Yang's mistake. He snorted, not bad, young lad. When I said that you're dumb, you're not completely dumb. 
Do you want me to tell you everything from the start, or do you want to question me? Wen Leong was overjoyed. He carefully cradled the jade knife in his hands, it'd be best if you started from the beginning. Guo Huan immediately started to speak from the beginning. The first half of the story he told Wen Leong and the others were true, but the elite who killed demons to extract their primordial energy was actually the zombie controlling Misu. After a fierce battle, Guo Huan's Dharmakeya was almost destroyed. However, Guo Huan was also a powerful great demon. He made a close call when his demonic soul escaped into the jade knife. It plunged deep into the mountain and hid within the mountain's belly. Mi Su had labored in vain. He killed the demon but did not obtain its primordial energy. It was impossible for him to find a small knife the length of a finger among the huge mountain. He left since he could not do anything. Two thousand years later, when Wen Leong dug his way out from Mount Amei's belly, he found the jade knife under Wei Mo's calculations. Guo Huan was conscious back then. He could tell from Wen Leong's faulty punch that Wen Leong was his archenemy, but he could not move, nor did he have any treasured weapons as protection, hence he could only play dead. He followed Wen Leong out of the mountain. He understood a lot from their conversations, including Tuo Xie's disappearance, Chang Li's painful wait in the ancient cave for two thousand years and knew nothing about the outside world, etc. Absorbing lightning was the special property of the Thunder Heart Jade. It was unrelated to whether his primordial soul was awake or not. He then unintentionally discovered that his lost treasure was in the hands of Jilong Sek's supreme leader. He quickly acted and took it by force without hesitation. After he succeeded, Guo Huan's demonic primordial energy was badly damaged he could not seek revenge on Tuo Xie's descendants other than perishing together. It was true that he refined a dumb split body. In addition to that, Wen Leong and the others had no idea what had happened in the past, that was why he told that great lie. He said that it was Tuo Xie who saved him that time. According to his understanding of Wen Leong and the others, it was highly probable that they would help him find that split body. As to how he would persuade Chang Li to help him, he needed not to worry about it because Wen Leong would naturally help him in that. To protect his hope of being free again, Guo Huan had activated his magic weapon to rescue Wen Leong a few times of his own accord. The damage to the jade knife and the diminishing of his demonic primordial energy were true. There are already a few nicks on the jade knife and it could no longer absorb the power of heaven's thunder. It could only serve as an ordinary soul vessel. The price Guo Huan had paid was not small indeed. When Leong Tian was telling Wen Leong about the past with his final breath at Painting Town, Guo Huan had just waked up. He understood that his lies had been exposed. Hence, he did not speak up again. After that, Mi Su's zombie and Lu Luo's descendants appeared one after another. Eventually, even the teachings left behind by Tuo Xie in the Jade Talisman was discovered by Wen Leong. Guo Huan could no longer cover up for his lies. When the flash freeze erupted just now, the jade knife was already very weak. Guo Huan was worried that his only abode would be destroyed. Hence, he summoned his treasured weapons and saved everyone in Wen Liang's group. Ever since he was badly injured at the gold consuming lair, he had recuperated for a long time and could direct his yin's error yang's mistake at will. After explaining, Guo Huan laughed rigidly. Young lad, listen well. I had saved you just now to protect my own body, it was not for you. He had no choice but to summon his treasured weapon. He initially prepared an explanation that would make himself sound good, but with Fei Fei there, he had been exposed to the first sentence. Guo Huan did not know about Fei Fei's ability, he thought that this young girl knew some mind reading art of devilry. He decided not to fabricate more lies and truthfully told them everything. The others did not understand the sequence of events and could not understand it. Only the giant pangolin remembered the great demon who was on par with Chang Li two thousand years ago after it saw the yin's error yang's mistake. Guo Huan did not know that the person who injured him so many years ago was Lu Luo. He only added in the end Tuo Xie rescued me behind the truth and deceived everyone. He even made the people from the Wen family treat him with a sense of guilt and friendliness. Wen Leong cradled the jade knife with his hands firmly. After a while, he heaved a sigh. He shook his head with a bitter smile, you bunch of old demons, every one of you are ancestors of lies. 
As he said this, he carefully hung the jade knife around his neck. He chuckled and asked, How's your roommate? How's he doing? Yin's error had towed the white-robed man over. Together with Yang's mistake, they did not vanish in the air but circled the group with a malicious intent. The brown bamboo pole Ji Song was full of alarm but his sharp gaze could not conceal his fear. The black bamboo pole Tutatunt was filled with curiosity. He looked as if he wanted to touch this pair of treasured weapons to see what they were made of. Guo Huan was in a trance. He paused for a moment before he asked, You. Wen Leong chuckled. He extended his fingers and counted, the jade knife absorbed Taoist priest Qing Niao's thunder Buddhist magic, subdued Taoist priest Zi Ke's unmovable sun and moon's disaster, withstood the weeping Buddha's palm strike. Inside the gold-consuming lair and just now whether it was the jade knife or Guohuan, I cannot even finish counting the times that you have rescued me with one hand I'll have to at least help you find your split body, but if you want to seek revenge on my grand master, you'll have to kill me first. After he finished, Wen Leong paused briefly then laughed heartlessly, Actually, you think that I'm not bad, don't you? Guo Huan had been awake for a long time. He had also regained his primordial energy. If he wanted to direct his treasured weapons in a sneak attack, Wen Leong would not be alive even if he had twenty lives. Guo Huan was silent for a while. He did not say a word. He only grunted in a low voice after a while and answered Wen Leong's question in a low, muffled voice, that primordial soul is still sleeping, not waking up. There was a hint of joy in his tone. Wen Leong was not a person to fuss over trifles. Guo Huan had saved him for who knows how many times, he did not want to fuss over a selfish lie. Also, even if Guo Huan found his split body and regained his freedom, his powers would also be greatly diminished. He would not be any threat to Grand Master Changli. Gu Xiaojun also looked jubilant. The old fox understood that another powerful helper had joined their ranks, their chances of success increased significantly. He waited for Wen Leong and Guo Huan to finish talking before he looked at the badly wounded white robed man on the ground. He glared at the man with fierce eyes and asked, Why do you want to harm us? What are you guys plotting? The white robed man's skin was like the youth whom they have met not long ago. It was soft and crystal-like but there were fine wrinkles at the edge of his eyes. A long beard grew between his lips and under his lower jaw. He did not look young. He twitched as he lay on the ground. His eyes were shut and had a pained expression. When he heard Gu Xiaojuan's words, he quickly opened his eyes. He stared fiercely at the people in front of him and growled hoarsely. All of you must die. Chapter 206 after the middle-aged white-robed man cursed venomously, he shut his eyes tightly. He ignored the others no matter what they asked. Xiao Sha grew impatient. He turned and asked Gu Xiaojun for instructions, Chief, shall we use the method? The thousands of disciples had mysteriously disappeared from the Kunlun campsite. This Hua family elite had launched a sneak attack on them while they were badly injured. If it was not for Guohua acting in the nick of time, everyone at the scene would have died a tragic death. From Xiao Sha's perception, the obscure cultivator Hua family in the Tangula Mountains most probably had connections with the mysterious evil cultivator. He was prepared to extort information from him by torture. Gu Xiaojun meditated in silence and had not said a word when Fei Fei shook her head. She said to her own brother, from his looks unlikely. He does not give much thought to our lives or deaths. She could analyze the other person's true thoughts from their expressions and tone. The one who came to kill them did not care about the lives or deaths of the people he intended to kill. Gu Xiaojun trusted Fei Fei a lot. He nodded and instructed Xiao Sha, tie him up for now. I'll tell you if we have to use the method. Xiao Sha immediately prepared the rope. Guo Huan had always been talkative and finally, he had the chance to talk casually. He laughed rigidly from the jade knife, the yin's error's slash had already drained him of his spirit primordial energy. He is good for nothing for three to five months, there is no need to bind him. The group of people was discussing how they should deal with the Hua family disciple. However, African brother Tutatunt was unusually busy. At times, he stuck his ear to the ground like a reconnoiter. At times, he would sniff the ground like a hunting hound and crawl around swiftly. 
After a while, he suddenly growled and jumped up strongly. Then he squalled at Wen Leung. Maybe it was because Wen Leung's final performance in the elimination rounds was too eye-catching, the African brother believed in him the most. He would tell him everything first. Fei Fei quickly came over, intending to chase Tutatunt away with indignation. She was worried that he was bothering Wen Leung who was recuperating. Wen Leung smiled and shook his head, it's fine. Ask him what's he trying to say. His method of practice was unique. The poison of life and death within his body did not need his instructions and flowed out of his limbs and bones as it busied itself to repair his body. He did not need to be like Patu and Rangyong who had to focus their spirits and enter a trance to direct their life vitality with all their heart. Even if Wen Leong talked or thought or ate carrots, it would not hinder his body's swift recuperation. Currently, Patu and Rangyong had already sealed their five senses. They closed their eyes and started to direct their life vitality to heal themselves with the hopes that they could recuperate as soon as possible. They entered a state where they completely forgot themselves, utterly had no idea about what was happening outside. Normally, Fei Fei's communication with Tutatunt was quite smooth, but this time, Fei Fei was still puzzled even after gesturing with him. Xiao Xia laughed heartlessly at Wen Leong from the side, looks like she's faced with a lot of new vocabularies now. Tutatunt grew more impatient as he talked. He picked up an ice fragment, squatted on the ground and drew a simple picture. It was a fist-sized circle with a long tail. If it was before, Fei Fei would have asked him with a shout, why did you draw a balloon? However, when the group saw this picture, everyone knitted their brows. Xiao Xia's expression also turned grim. He asked his big sister in a low voice, did he draw the strange tadpole in the ice fissure? Tutatunt did not stop after he finished his drawing. He pointed at the newly drawn tadpole and then sprawled on the ground. He wriggled his body like a mudfish. He inched his way forward on the ice, then he went back on his feet at pointed towards the depths of the snow-covered peak. Even Ji Song understood his meaning. He said with some fright, there is a strange tadpole running towards that direction under the ice under our feet? As he said this, he looked at the surrounding ice surface with alarm. However, he scoffed, old friend Rang Young said that this worm is a monster of utmost true water. Even a cultivator's telegnosis ability could not sense it. But you? You can sense its tracks. Tutatunt did not understand a word Ji Song said. He opened his mouth and smiled honestly at his bamboo pole brother. He exposed rows of big white teeth. Fei Fei squinted her delicate eyes and said confidently to Wen Leung, Tutatunt isn't lying. Old Gu coughed from the side, his expression was helpless. Xiao Xia broke into a laughter and said to Fei Fei, next time, report any findings to the chief first, Wen Leung's not the one issuing your paychecks. Xiao Xia's sentence earned him the eye rolls of Gu Xiao Jun, Fei Fei and Wen Leung. He rubbed his hands embarrassedly and diverted the topic, Tutatunt might not have seen this worm before. He couldn't have drawn it on a whim. Ji Song was unsatisfied. He looked to be the type who liked to argue, maybe he had seen it before in the mountain. If you guys can meet it, so can he. When Leung shook his head, before the Hua family disciple made his move, Tutatunt noticed another abnormality before Patu did. Maybe he really does have a plan to as he said this, Wen Leung could not help but smile. He recalled the performance of the African representative team during the elimination rounds, his expression quickly brightened up, maybe, this is their ability. Wen Leung had guessed it right. The group of African evil cult followers led by Tutatunt had no magic powers of fighting abilities worth mentioning, but they had a sense sharper than a wild beast. They could sense danger before it happened. They could even sense a strange worm that could not be detected by the cultivator's telegnosis ability. Fei Fei did not bother about Wan Leung's words but looked at the white-robed middle-aged man on the ground with something on her mind. Wen Leung did not disturb her. He moved his arm strenuously and signaled to Tutatunt to continue talking. Tutatunt saw that he was recognized by Wen Leung and his confidence soared. He ran forward a few steps and drew another big circle in front of the strange tadpole. He pointed at the faraway direction of the snow-covered peak and continued making gestures. This time, Wen Leung had no choice but to call Fei Fei over to translate. 
After gesticulating for a long while, Fei Fei returned to Wen Liang's side. As if on purpose, she increased her volume so that everyone would hear, the strange tadpole is chasing after that big thing in front of it. However, even Tudatunt could not determine what that thing is. When Fei Fei was talking, the corner of her sight was always on the badly injured Hua family disciple. After a brief moment, Fei Fei reopened her mouth and said seriously to Wen Leong, about this matter she had just said these three words when she suddenly remembered something. She hastily shut her mouth and turned towards Gu Xiaojun, this matter is important. Because, as she said this, she pointed at the Hua family disciple, he spilled the beans. The Hua family disciple's expression did not change from the viewpoint of Wen Leong and the others, but he could not fool Fei Fei. Ever since Tutatunt discovered the worm, the Hua family disciple's expression started to have subtle changes. Fei Fei could only see that his interest in this worm and the big circle in front of it had reached an unbelievable level. About the details, it could only be extorted by torture. Xiao Sha did not talk nonsense. He dragged the prisoner into one of the tents. At this moment, Tudatunt suddenly started squalling again. He gesticulated continuously towards the group with a face full of fright. Eventually, he stomped his foot and howled like a wild beast. His whole body arched. Like a black sharp arrow, he rushed towards Xiao Sha with swift movements and sent Xiao Sha flying with a shoulder tackle. Xiao Sha scolded with fury, what's your problem? His body flew for a few meters. On the spot where he stood, a sharp ice spike protruded without warning. If it was not for Tudatunt, Xiao Sha would have been impaled by now. Tudatunt's body was abnormally agile. He dodged in midair like an alert fish. Although he could not keep his center of gravity stable and was tossed aside by the great inertial force, he still managed to evade the ice spike. Old Gu and Fei Fei finally reacted. They screamed in unison, someone is ambushing us. They drew their guns with swift movements and ran towards Xiao Sha to support him. When the group was flustered, a white-garbed man suddenly popped out of the ice cap and propped the badly wounded middle-aged man up. Gu Xiaojun and the others stopped in their tracks. They raised their weapons and aimed. Xiao Sha's body bounced up the moment it touched the ice. Xiao Sha raised his weapon. Tudatunt and Ji Song stood side by side and gathered with old Gu and the others. They spread out like a fan and faced their opponent. The rescuer was someone whom Wen Leong and the others have met. He was the white-robed youth they met not long ago. The white-robed youth ignored the few enemies in front of him. He went about his own business and checked the wounds of the middle-aged man. He lifted his head after a while. His sharp gaze swept across the group of people. Finally, it stopped on Tudatun's face, ugly ghost, you can see through my true body in art of escape. Tudatun did not understand what he said. He shook his head steadily. The white-robed man was stupefied. He seemed to be perplexed, you can't see through. Then, he stopped arguing with Tudatunt. His voice was hoarser because of the anger, who injured my uncle Quan, come out and meet your doom. His voice barely faded when a ghastly pale light suddenly flew past the top of his head. The huge Yin's error appeared in midair. Guo Huan sneered rigidly, a babe still wet behind the ears, flaunting his prowess, not knowing how high the heavens are or how thick the ground is, you won't even know why you died when you die. The white-robed youth was visibly shocked. He could tell that Yin Errors was a powerful magic weapon with a glance. It was not something that he could handle. He did not have to hesitate. He pulled the middle-aged Hua disciple named Uncle Quan and escaped into the ice cap. They vanished in the blink of an eye. He only left a taunt, you guys have destroyed my family's magic and harmed my family's elder. None of you may hope to go back alive. Nobody had expected that the Yin's error did not move in the mid-air and allowed the other party to escape. Old Gu would have liked to crush the jade knife there and then. He scolded angrily, why did you let him run? Although Guo Huan had healed, he was still a demonic soul. He could not use his treasured weapons as he wished. It was all right for him summon it out for a swing but every time he used the magic weapon, not only will the jade knife be damaged, his primordial soul's energy would also be greatly diminished. He would have to fall into a deep sleep to recuperate after a few times. 
naturally, he would not want to waste an attack as powerful as a thunderbolt on the white-robed youth. It was enough to scare the opponent away. Wen Leung also understood that using Yin's error Yang's mistake to fight against the evil cultivator was more worthwhile compared to using it against the white-robed youth. The white-robed youth had snatched their prisoner away and escaped unharmed. Just as Wen Leung had guessed, the only usefulness of Tudatun's refined ability was a sharp sense. Not only could he detect the strange tadpole, even when the Hua family disciple of True Water Body cast his art of escape, it did not escape his eyes. Faced with Xiao Sha and Fei Fei's gratitude, Tudatunt smiled honestly and shook his head. He waved his reed stem arms wildly, signaling them to not think too much about this. Then, he seemed to have remembered something and started gesturing with a flustered expression. Fei Fei explained to the others in a low voice, the white-robed youth, strange tadpole and the strange big circle. As she said this, Fei Fei pointed at the big circle drawn by the black man on the ground, the direction they were heading in is the same. By the looks of things, the big circle is at the front, a strange tadpole is chasing after the big circle while the white-robed youth also went in pursuit after he rescued his uncle. Tudatun said that if we do not move out immediately, he would not be able to sense their tracks once they get too far. When Leon was stupefied. He said with a frown, that big circle is alive. It can run and move. Fei Fei nodded and looked at her leader. Gu Xiaojun was in an awkward situation. Kun Lun, Hua family, evil cultivator, nine-headed snake, water element strange worm had a complicated relationship. It was a complicated mess. If he wanted to make sense out of this, he would have to follow the lead in front of him no matter what. However, if he did that, it would be no different than seeking their own deaths. Guo Huan understood the thoughts of the group. He said impolitely, don't get any funny ideas. I'm not going anywhere other than under Wen Liang's neck. Wen Liang diverted the topic. He suddenly asked Guo Huan blindly, how many times can you stand using your treasured weapon to fight the enemy? Guo Huan would not normally activate Yin's error Yang's mistake, but Wen Liang was sure that he would not sit idly and wait for his doom at life and death moments. As expected, Guo Huan did not conceal the truth as he replied with ill manners, twice. Thrice, at most. There was a hint of guilt in Wen Liang's smile as he said probingly, actually it's already good that you can use it once more, right? Guo Huan always spoke with a habit of bragging. Last time, in the gold-consuming lair, Guo Huan had resolutely said that he could help Wen Liang block the bronze ant's poison of stream with Yang's mistake, but it waved for two seconds and vanished, almost costing Wen Liang his life. The more one bragged, the more he would believe his own words. Guo Huan grunted. He did not have the time to retort when he suddenly thought about Wen Liang's objective. He quickly stated his stand, you can go after it if you want, but don't go having any ideas about my treasured weapons. I won't be taking unnecessary risks with you. When Leon smiled and acted shamelessly, then you may leave go on, leave. Guo Huan would have loved to have a go at Wen Leon with his moon's blade. He panted heavily and tried hard to make his voice sound calmer, if you leave and an enemy comes, they will all die. It will only take you a day to recuperate. Wen Leon did not say anything else. He looked at his two badly injured companions, his expression was hesitant. At this moment, a fair and gentle voice sounded without warning, go in pursuit with ease. I'll hold this fort. It was unknown when the Lama Rangyong had woken up from his trance. He looked at Wen Leong with bright eyes. Naturally, Wen Leong's thoughts were to have Tuta Tunt lead him to pursue the worm and the Hua family members. He was also badly injured and could barely fight a foe, but with Guo Huan's help, it would not be a problem to protect himself if he was truly in danger. However, his only worry was that if he left, the others would all be in a dangerous situation. The Lama Rangyong saw that when Leong was still hesitating, his tone was filled with impatience, if there's an enemy ambush, worst comes to worst, this Lama will forgo his life's cultivation base and invoke Yamantaka's godly appearance. Rather than wasting time here, why don't you go and find out clues about the enemy? Scram! After he finished, the Lama paused. He shifted his gaze towards Ji Song. By his looks, he wanted Ji Song to aid Wen Leong in this pursuit. Ji Song looked to his left and right, pretending not to notice. 
Wen Leong did not hesitate. He nodded towards Fei Fei. Although Fei Fei was reluctant for Wen Leong to take the risk, she did not stop him. She gesticulated towards Tudatunt and exchanged several strange syllables. Tudatunt jumped over jubilantly. He carried Wen Leong on his back and ran towards the boundless majestic snow-covered peaks. The others stayed put and waited for their return. Old Gu, Fei Fei and Xiao Sha were ordinary humans. They could not keep up with Tudatunt's speed. They were also aware that they would only get in the way if they followed. The big circle, Worm and the two Hua family disciples were swiftly escaping in the ice. Tudatunt gave chase wildly on the snow. He quickly disappeared from sight. Tudatunt had long legs. He looked just like an ostrich carrying Wen Leong. The speed at which he ran was fast. Wen Leong said nothing. He tried hard to expand his telegnosis ability towards his surroundings. He strived to find something. However, other than icy snow and the strong wind, there was nothing around them, it was completely empty. They pursued until dusk fell. Tudatunt finally slowed down. He was covered in sweat. He placed Wen Leong down beside him. Then, he sprawled on the ice surface again. He listened and sniffed as he busied himself. Guo Huan wondered within the jade knife, what does this mean? Wen Leong looked at Tudatunt's expression and shook his head with a bitter smile, looks like he has lost them. As expected, Tudatunt crawled back on his feet after a short while. His face was full of dejection. He first shrugged at Wen Leong, pointed at the ice surface then gestured an exaggerated depth with his arms he signaled that the big circle, worm, and the Hua family obscure cultivator had dove too deep. He could no longer pick up their tracks. The ice cap on Jeladendong Peak was more than a hundred meters thick. If the other party was traveling in a shallow area, Tudatunt could still manage to keep up. However, when they reached this spot, the other party suddenly dove deep. The African brother could not do anything. When Leung caressed the fine hairs that sprouted up under his chin lately, he smiled bitterly with dissatisfaction showing on his face. They had pursued all this while. The end was just before their eyes but the other party unexpectedly took a deep dive underground. Now his body had healed greatly, but it still was not enough for him to use the faulty punch to penetrate this hard ice. Of course, Guo Huan would not be willing to use his treasured weapons to crack the ice. Tudatunt was unsatisfied. He gesticulated towards Wen Leong and asked probingly, Do you want to look for the ice fissure so we can climb down and have a look? Tudatunt shook his head resolutely. Then, he skipped and ran towards the ice fissure dozens of meters away from them. He climbed down with agile limbs. Guo Huan broke into laughter. In no time, Tudatunt reappeared with ice shards covering his head. He joined his palms together and parted them while still joined at the wrist. This time it was Guo Huan who asked, the fissure got narrower as it got deeper and you can't go down. Tudatunt shook his head resolutely again. He found another fissure and jumped down. Wen Leung seemed to have understood. He shook his head to say that he did not understand what you said. On the snow-covered peak, many fissures intertwine with each other. The ice cap, which Wen Leung was on, had an outrageous amount of ice fissures. They spread out like a spider's web. It was apparent that the contour of the peak was crooked and savage. However, these fissures were not very wide and were all shaped like a funnel, they could not go down too deep. Tudatunt seemed to know that his actions now were extremely important. He would not give up. He went up and down every fissure tirelessly. Sometimes, he went down a fissure and surfaced from the neighboring fissure. Although he knew that there were natural passageways formed among these fissures, Wen Leong still felt that Tudatunt's actions were strange. He had an urge after he observed for some time. If someone gave him a mallet, he would hit Tudatunt's head the moment he appeared. After he tried all of the nearby fissures, Tudatunt ran to a further spot. Wen Leong's expression shifted from a bitter smile to one of touched. The African brother did not even know why he had to do such things. He would go out of his way just because someone asked for his help. Tudatunt labored endlessly, working from dusk till the crescent moon hung in the sky. He was exhausted to the point where he could no longer keep his back straight. 
His tall and lanky figure was the size of a matchstick in Wen Liang's eyes. Wen Liang's wounds healed quickly now. He reckoned that he would be able to use his faulty punch to break the ice come dawn. If they waited until tomorrow's noon, his body would practically be healed. Tudatunt carried him and pursued from dawn till dusk. It was meaningless to return to the campsite now. If they ran back, it would be daybreak when they arrived. During that moment, even if Rang Yong and Patu were not completely healed, they could at least protect themselves when faced with an enemy. When Leon raised his volume and shouted at Tudatunt far away. He wanted to call him back and wait until tomorrow morning where he would break the ice with faulty punch and see for himself. However, Tudatunt waved his arms from afar, his face was full of joy. He pointed strongly in front of him and opened his arms in an exaggerated manner. He meant that this fissure was large. Then, he flipped and leaped. Like a nimble monkey, he climbed down swiftly. A dozen minutes later, a slightly suffocating sharp cry came from the far away fissure. A moment later, Tudatunt scrambled out of the fissure as if his pants was on fire. His face was full of fright as he squalled and ran towards Wen Leong. Wen Leong was familiar with this expression. He stood up strenuously. He walked towards Tudatunt while he said to Guo Huan, something's wrong. Guo Huan laughed pompously, you're bound to bump into the big worm when you tunneled into enough holes. His voice barely faded when Wen Leong's body suddenly shook. He noticed with surprise that his telegnosis ability detected an enemy. Within Wen Liang's telegnosis ability, eight figures were flying swiftly up the fissure like angered falcons. These people were not the white-robed Hua family but the small town's Tibetan people in old-fashioned clothes. These Tibetans had been hiding and lying silently, waiting under that wide fissure. Their motives were unknown but they were unintentionally dug up by Tuta Tunt, who was searching frantically for the worm and obscure cultivators. Chapter, 207 Wen Leong felt dizzy. They set out to investigate the reason the evil cult followers gathered but ran into a person who hid within a monkey within a dog-headed bird on tour town they tracked the evil cult followers and discovered eight corpse pits and a cleanly shaven tutatunt they chased after the Tibetan people and the evil cultivator into the mountains and ran into an obscure cultivator Hua family and a strange tadpole they hunted the snow spider with Ji Song and found the empty Kunlun sect campsite. They also discovered a murder and a great lie told by Guo Huan they were pursuing the Hua family disciples, the strange tadpole and the unnamed big circle, and they ran into a group of Tibetan people. These Tibetan people were the subordinates of the legendary King Gizer. They were corrupted by foulness after they exited samsara and were subdued by the evil cultivator. They each had profound cultivation bases. They were much faster than Tudatunt. If Tudatunt did not have his ability to sense danger before it happened and escaped before the enemy showed up, he would not have any chance to escape. Wen Liang's body had healed considerably. However, this process meant that his fighting prowess would strengthen gradually. It was not that he needed a whole day to recover, but with every hour that passed, his fighting prowess recovered by one twelfth. Nevertheless, up until now, he had no way of fighting the Tibetan people. The Tibetan people wore their usual lifeless looks. Other than a hint of malicious foulness which sparked in their cloudy eyes every once in a while, their faces were expressionless. If the Tibetan people were like swift and fierce eagles, Tudatun's speed could only be a grouse's. As he squalled and ran, carrying Wen Leong on his back, the Tuer town's Tibetan people were already no more than a dozen meters from them. A rigid yell which sounded like Virokana's saving Sanskrit scattered pleasantly in the howling wind. The huge Yin's error erupted in a ghastly pale in the night sky. It suddenly slashed the Tibetan people. A series of piercing rubbing sounds sounded hastily. Without anyone noticing, Yin's error's body-shattering tearing sound had shattered the strong wind's howl into a million pieces. The Tibetan people did not even manage to wail before they turned into a pile of broken bones and bloody flesh. What shocked Wen Leung the most was that there was uncontainable fresh blood within these Tibetan people's bodies when every one of them was killed, they were like an exploded blood canister. Tall columns of blood gushed out of them. What were they trying to celebrate with blood fountains? Guo Huan had defeated the enemy in one swoop but Tudatun's expression did not show signs of calming down. He continued to squall. 
he carried Wen Leong on his shoulders and ran for his life. The loyalty of this African brother was very valuable. He had not run very far when Wen Leong felt a jolt from the ground. Tuta Tunt lost his footing and crashed heavily on the ground with Wen Leong. Loud crackling sounds could be heard continuously as if the entire snow covered peak was crumbling. Wen Leong and Tuta Tunt could not even stand up, let alone continue with their run. Wen Leong looked around him in fear. He asked Guo Huan in astonishment, Is this an earthquake? Or an avalanche? Guo Huan had just brazenly activated the Yin's error. His consciousness was obviously weakened. He panted inside the jade knife, Young lad, a great calamity is upon us. His voice barely faded when a white sheet, which covered the heavens and the earth, abruptly barged into Wen Liang's eyes. The multitude of stars in the sky and the bright crescent moon were utterly swallowed by this savage and vast white sheet. Wen Leong was stunned for a while before he realized what had happened. A huge ice cap far away had been flipped over by someone. It was crashing down on him with the momentum of an avalanche. The ancient ice on the snow-covered peak was more than a hundred meters thick. The ice cap that was crashing down on them with a roar had a volume not inferior to an ice mountain. Wen Liang's eyes and mind were filled with a boundless brimless whiteness. Even if he was made of steel, if he was hit solid, he could only enter the house through the door's crack after this. Tuta Tunt stopped running. He sat on the ground and held Wen Leong tight. From afar, they resembled the higher brothers. Demon body breaking spell. Guo Huan's yell was sonorous and strong. A crisp pa sounded from Wen Liang's neck. Yang's mistake son's blade leaped out. The blazing black glow shattered the huge ice cap into pieces in a flash. Wen Leong did not even have the time to sigh in relief when he noticed in astonishment that it was not the only chunk of huge ice rock that flew at him. A dozen ancient ice rocks capable of filling a small pond flew consecutively towards them from afar. They came continuously as if there was a hot-tempered giant far away who was tearing the snow-covered peak and would not stop until he crushed them into mashed flesh. Demon Body Breaking Spell Guo Huan's voice made one want to vomit. Yang's mistake's black glow did not diminish as it protected Wen Leong whereas Yin's error moon's blade howled and spun towards the direction of the incoming ice caps with a roar. It continuously shattered the ancient ice and shot forward like lightning. A series of explosions were heard on the vast snow-covered peak. The ancient ice shattered into countless huge chunks and planted themselves into the ground in all directions. It was true that Guo Huan had regained some primordial life vitality these few months but he could only manage to use his magic weapons twice. The first time, he had used it against the white-robed middle-aged man's low-temperature sneak attack and he just used Yin's error to kill the Tibetan people while Yang's mistake protected Wen Leong. After he depleted his primordial life vitality, he could only activate the demonic magic power demon body breaking spell, which was similar to the devil's dismantlement. He destroyed his own body to eke out primordial life vitality to activate his treasure. Moon's blade shot out with a howl. If he did not annihilate the enemy attacking them, the higher brothers would be crushed to death sooner or later. As expected, Blazing puffs of blood joined together and shot towards the sky like an apocalyptic firework. After the dozens of ice chunks were shattered, there was no more ice chunks thrown in their way. The moon's blade was like a vulture that was drunk after getting injured. It reeled back. Of course, such a rare treasure would not be harmed so easily. It was Guo Huan that was harmed. When Leong pushed Tuta Tunt away with some force. He lowered his head and looked at the jade knife which dangled before his chest. Another two obvious cracks appeared on the knife. It looked as if it would shatter at any time. Guo Huan's voice came from within the jade knife, it was the Tibetan people from Tuer town who cast the spell to harm us. There were a total of more than thirty people, now they're all dead. This knife can't hold on much longer. Young lad, go and find my immortal's cave immortal's cave, find find my split body, quick. His voice was as rigid as always but his volume was getting softer. Eventually, he seemed to not have the energy to speak, he tried a few times before he finished his sentence. There were still messy loud sounds around them. Wen Leong did not quite catch what Guo Huan had said. 
He wanted to question closely when he suddenly realized that the ice was not raining on them anymore. Why did the crackling sound not stop when Leon did not have the time to look around him when his body suddenly sank? Amidst the ice shards and snow scraps, which erupted loudly, he fell into a fissure in the ground. The ice cap, which they were standing on, had an abnormal number of fissures. As it was not very sturdy to begin with, under the consecutive impacts of the great force, when Leyang's wish was granted. He did not have to break the ice with his faulty punch but it had collapsed. The loud explosion was like coarse wooden stakes. They mercilessly wedged themselves into Wen Leong's gears. Wen Leong and Tudatunt hugged into a ball as they fell downwards in wild confusion. Wen Leong tried to exert force and adjust their falling position but he could not do it due to his injuries. Finally, with a loud bang, they crashed heavily onto the ground. Wen Leong clearly felt that his eyeballs lurched outwards, they almost flew out of their sockets. Tudatunt got off Wen Leong with embarrassment. He was lucky he had Wen Leong break the fall for him. He did not even lose a single tooth. Wen Leong tried to exert force and stood up. He did not bother about his surroundings. He pointed upwards and gesticulated to Tudatunt, he wanted him to think of a way to find a path upwards. Tudatunt was utterly puzzled. They were trying so hard to come down just now and now Wen Leong wanted to climb up. Wen Leong understood what he meant. He shook his head and scolded with a bitter smile, careless. Before this, they could have relied on the jade knife Guo Huan. The white-robed youth was no threat to them. However, Guo Huan had cracked when Leong had not finished gesticulating when the ice cap shook violently once more. The two dropped down again. Tudatunt was still on top while Wen Leong was still the human mattress. After they got back to their feet a second time, when Leong started to suspect that his African brother did that on purpose. This time, beneath them, it was no longer the enchanting ancient ice but frozen soil. The layers of distant brilliant blue twinkled endlessly. When Leong's heart relaxed. He understood that they had reached the bottom of the ice cap. They were standing on the true peak of Jeladendong. It was the same as the bottom of the ice fissure where they discovered the strange tadpole. They were standing on a crystallite vein. Tudatunt seemed to have knocked his head during the second fall. He gritted his teeth and massaged his head. Wen Leung exclaimed softly in surprise. With an unknown source of strength, he leaped up suddenly. He had wanted to reach out and take some medicine for Tudatunt but he noticed from Tudatunt's unintentional glance that the ice surface at both sides was filled with countless densely packed figures. It was dark outside. The bottom of the ice fissure was also pitch black. Tudatunt did not have Wen Leyang's eyesight. He had no idea what had happened. When he heard Wen Leyang scream, he started searching hastily to look for him. Wen Leyang grabbed Tudatunt, who was about to touch the ice wall. He lit up the flare that he brought and tossed it on the ground. He did not have modern equipment with him like old Gu and Fei Fei but the flares of the place of birth, life, sickness and death was no ordinary object. The ember was small but it illuminated nicely. The brightness was not inferior to stage pyrotechnics. It did not have the glaring flash. The ember was as stable as a solid and it burned for a reasonably long time. Wen Buzwa had once said that if he were ever driven out of one family because of his nonsense talk, he would steal a box of flares to sell before he left. He could be a millionaire with just a box. The gentle and ample light instantly shattered the darkness under the ice cap. Tudatunt finally noticed in shock that behind the two sides of thick ice walls stood a few hundred people. They were looking at them with peculiar expressions. Green robes. Taoist hairstyles. Flying swords slung behind their backs. The people in the ice walls were all Kunlun disciples. Wen Leong was not a stranger to circumstances like this. However, last time it was only a dozen Kunlun disciples, now it was a few hundreds of them. They could all be Kunlun disciples. Wen Leong pulled Tudatunt and tried his best to position themselves in the middle. They kept a distance of a few meters from both walls. After he searched for a brief moment, he gave up his vain attempt. He wanted to find Lu Zheng but the few hundred people blocked each other's faces. Other than the front row, he could not make out the details of the people at the back. 
the Kunlun sect disciples all had different expressions. They either smiled or frowned. However, the gaze that shot towards when Leong and Tudatunt had the same expression. Interesting. It was as if a child who held an apple in his hand but looked at the pear on the table and thought about switching them. Guo Huan had no more energy to activate his yin's error yang's mistake but he was not so exhausted that he must immediately fall into a deep sleep to cultivate his spirit. He had been acting dumb the first few months but he knew about the things that happened outside. His raspy voice said, the strange tadpole. I knew it. The ones who ambushed the Kunlun campsite were these bugs that came and went like shadows. Needless to say, these Kunlun disciples were controlled by those strange tadpoles. However, there was one thing that Wen Leong did not understand. Even if these bugs went against the laws of nature and reproduced into this large number, they could not have controlled every disciple on such a short period of time. The campsite was neat and tidy with no signs of battle or retaliation. Under the few hundred interesting gazes, Wen Leong only felt unsettled and short-tempered. He wished he could jump and curse. The chattering of his teeth was abnormally clear in the extreme silence under the ice cap. Their back and front were blocked by the fallen ice rocks. To their flanks were the ice surface. When Leong and the others were trapped. However, even if he had regained his physical strength, he could not climb up the rocks. Even with giant pangolin Patu's cultivation base, he was pulled by the strange tadpole-controlled Kunlun disciples the moment he came into contact with the ice wall. The ice cap was the bug's territory. When Leong could not find a way to get back up the surface. He took a deep breath and relaxed his body. He sat down cross-legged. Tudatun saw that he had sat down, he quickly imitated him and sat cross-legged as well. However, the African brother was not used to sitting cross-legged. He could not sit very still and his body kept swaying like a vibrating phone. When Leong quickly produced the wound medicine and dressed Tudatun's wound strenuously while he said to the jade knife under his neck, if we can hold out until tomorrow noon, my body will be fully healed. Guo Huan grunted and asked, then what? Then I'll break the ice. Lu Zheng had rescued me before at Painting Town. I can't just sit here while his disciples' bodies are ravaged by the bugs. He paused briefly after he finished and squinted his eyes, besides, we can't go up. Let's give it a try, maybe maybe it's a blessing, or maybe it's a disaster, we can't know for sure. These strange tadpoles contained utmost poison of water within their bodies. To Wen Leon, it was great nourishment. However, if he truly broke into the ice surface, he was worried that he would only be able to pop a few bugs before the others invaded his body and turned him into the walking dead. Wen Leong had just finished talking when a hoarse and unpleasant sound sounded without warning from a dozen meters above the ice surface, if you barge in here to kill the bugs, then the Taoist priests will become corpses. As he spoke, the white-robed youth carried his badly wounded companion and leaped down from the high ice surface. Wen Leong was astonished. He did not have the time to feel shocked and he questioned closely immediately, these Kunlun disciples aren't dead. The white-robed youth carefully laid his elder in his embrace down on the ground. He nodded towards Wen Leong. Wen Leong added another question, can they be restored to their original conditions? The white-robed youth seemed to have no more hostility towards Wen Leong. He smiled and continued to nod. This youth was already snow-white in complexion. When he smiled, he looked pure and brilliant. However, when he spoke, even the most beautiful face was torn by his hoarse voice, I think there's a misunderstanding between us. Tudatunt regained consciousness. He stood up in alarm. He arched his body as if ready to pounce on the opponent at any minute. However, his hand that secretly pulled on Wen Leong's arm revealed his true intentions. He was ready to bring Wen Leong and run. Wen Leong suddenly realized that his African brother did not scream before the white-robed youth appeared. He turned and looked at him, perplexed, Tudatunt, how come you're not sensitive this time? Tudatunt was not foolish. Although they did not share the same language, he understood Wen Leong's question. He pointed at his injured head shamefacedly, then pointed at the two ice walls. The gazes of all the Kunlun disciples behind the ice walls shifted with his moving finger. Tudatun's ability was not an instinct but a skill refined after many years of training. 
when he used it, he needed complete focus. He had just knocked his head and saw a few hundred men in the ice, standing upright and looking at him with malicious smiles. He had tossed the bugs, white robes and whatnot to the back of his mind. Due to his carelessness, he did not notice the other party. When Leong talked nonsense to clear his own mind up. He turned and looked at the white-robed youth, his face was expressionless, your elder had activated his magic powers when we were badly injured without even understanding the situation and nearly got us all killed. You're saying that this is a misunderstanding? The white-robed youth laughed and nodded, that's right, it's a misunderstanding. When Leung missed Fei Fei. If that girl was beside him, she could tell if the white robe was telling the truth with a glance. The white-robed youth laughed hoarsely for a while before he continued, if I did not wish to talk or if I wanted to ambush you, I need not show myself. When Leong smiled with a scorn, you better think of a way to deal with my yin's error yang's mistake before you even think of ambushing me. As he said this, he pointed rudely at the middle-aged man who was lying down. He could not let his opponent know that he could not use yin's error yang's mistake. The muscle on the white-robed youth's face twitched. He muttered for a while and opened his mouth slowly. He said straightforwardly, I knew that there might be a misunderstanding when I saw you kill those Tibetan people. As he said this, his upper body inclined slightly. His clear gaze looked straight into Wen Leong's eyes, if you don't want to talk, I'll leave immediately. Wen Leong forthrightly said, let's talk. Then, he rummaged in his pocket for a long while. He took out his brand new cell phone and switched on the voice recorder function. He thought that if he could leave this place, he would let Fei Fei listen to the recording. She would know if the white-robed youth was lying or not. He had learned from Chang Li's experience in the Miao Stockade village and bought a model with a super long standby time. Although they had been in Tibet for a long time, he simply shut his cell phone off because there was no signal. Now, he learned from old Gu and switched on his phone and started recording. The white-robed youth was astonished. He looked on with curiosity, what is this object? Wen Leong did not have the patience to explain it to him. He shook his head and smiled, why don't you tell me how this is all a misunderstanding? You thought that we were on the Tibetan people's side but the way I see it, it is more likely that you guys are the Tibetan people's comrades. The white-robed youth knitted his brows and thought for a while. He seemed to ponder from which point he should start talking. Wen Leong reminded him with a smile, from the beginning. First, Talk about the origins of the Hua family. The white-robed youth nodded. He opened his mouth forthrightly, our Hua family were originally obscure cultivators in the central plains. We practiced water element magic art for generations. However, a thousand and three hundred years ago, a dozen elite ancestors searched for the heavenly water spirit as he said this, the white robe paused, his gaze had a hint of doubt. When Leong understood his meaning and nodded, the heavenly water spirit is the ice soul's water spirit, that's what I know. As the Jiangindiru glacier is the source of the Yangtze River, there should be a heavenly water spirit there. Your ancestors arrived here, found the heavenly water spirit and settled down here. When Leong rarely interrupted a person's statements with this much nonsense but this time, he learned from one Buzwa to buy his body time to recuperate. The white-robed youth shook his head and smiled bitterly, almost, but it's not that simple. The Hua family originated from the central plains and cultivated water element magic art. It was unknown how many of their ancestors from generations past have walked all over the world in search of the water element's utmost treasure, the heavenly water spirit. They went to lakes, ponds and swamps. They naturally went to the sources of famous and great rivers too but to put it frankly, the heavenly water spirit was a drop of water of unknown size. It could never be precisely found if it was mixed in the river. It was the same at the Jiangindiru glacier. The heavenly water spirit could be the ice shards under their feet or a drop of water that fell off a stalactite. It was not an easy task to find it. Not only did the Hua family ancestors who came to Jeladaindong Peak more than a thousand years ago not find the heavenly water spirit, they were attacked by the strange bugs that resembled giant tadpoles. The white-robed youth kept talking as he flipped his small fair hands. A fist-sized tadpole was sprawled on his palms when Leong grinded his teeth. If it were not for his unhealed wounds, he would have popped this abominable thing. 
The white-robed youth chuckled, we call these things firecrackers. When Leong laughed hysterically, firecrackers. Hmm, indeed, this thing goes out with a loud bang. The white-robed youth reached out and touched the firecracker, dot. His expression was very gentle. He obviously liked this abominable thing very much. Then, his palms curled slightly. The obedience of the strange tadpole was comparable to You've Got Me. Its body shuddered and crawled back into his sleeve. When Leung frowned, you treat this evil thing as a treasure. As he said this, he squinted his eyes fiercely and pointed at the ice wall, how do you explain these Kunlun disciples? The white-robed youth quickly waved, listen, I can explain everything. If the Hua family wanted to enter the world and bring harm, we wouldn't coop ourselves on Tangula Mountains for a thousand years. I can explain all this in detail, you'll be the judge if I'm a friend or foe. Wen Leung nodded. He could not help but ask out of curiosity, are these things really bugs? They're living organisms. The white-robed youth nodded, of course they're alive. From your perception, they contain utmost poison of water and can control other people, naturally, you would label it as something evil. But, from our Hua family's perspective, they're obedient little babies. You must let me finish, I guarantee that you and I will see eye to eye. When Leon felt his hairs stiffened and made a signal for him to continue, then put away that obedient baby of yours and continue talking. Your ancestors were attacked by the bugs, then. Tutatunt did not understand what the two of them were talking about. He sat at one side and yawned. Chapter 208 The Hua family was supposed to be the obscure cultivators of the Central Plains. They were trying to figure out a way to find the heavenly water spirit for generations. More than a thousand years ago, a dozen of Hua's first ancestors followed along the Yangtze River and arrived at the Jiangandira Glacier of the Jeladaindong Peak's southeast slope. However, they failed to find the heavenly water spirit and were even attacked by the strange tadpoles. After the strange tadpole bore into the human body, it would immediately control its host to dive back into the ice sheet. If the host were to leave the ice sheet, the host would be similar to the Kunlun disciples that Patu caught, such that the host would open his mouth and spat out the bug. The host would turn into a dried corpse while the strange tadpole would then look for a new host. Even the Hua family that cultivated in the water element magic art had never heard of such a local creature in the Jeladaindong Peak. Seven of them were suddenly controlled by the bugs and dove into the ice sheet. The remaining Hua family members refused to give up on saving their tribesmen's lives, so they chased after them laboriously. After a series of twists and turns, with three more lives sacrificed, they finally seized back six of their tribesmen. One of the first ancestors named Hua Laogao, was controlled by the bug but managed to escape. He was never found regardless. When Leong could not help but laugh, Hua Laogao. That name he occasionally interrupted the conversation in order to make the conversation last for a longer period of time. Not even by midday the next day, by the next daybreak, he would be able to regain most of his combat capabilities. By then, even if the white-robed youth were to carry out any malicious trick, he was capable of handling it. The white-robed youth could not see through Wen Liang's intention. He laughed as he shook his head. Even he found the name funny, we are obscure cultivators. Our names are only our codes. As long as we can remember each other then it is all right. Since that event, the Hua family suffered heavy casualties. The top master cultivators of the family were almost diminished by half. The remaining few persons did not dare to wander through the ice river anymore. They brought along their relatives already withered corpses and returned to the central plains in low spirits. At this point, the white-robed youth's face suddenly glowed, no one expected that the first ancestor Hua Langao who was already controlled by the bug and escaped into the ice mountain suddenly returned to his home. His grand old man did not die and his senses were restored completely. Even though he could not confirm if the white-robed youth was telling the truth, Wen Leong could not suppress his emotions anymore and became slightly excited. He pointed towards the densely arranged Kunlun disciples on the two sides of the ice walls, after being inhabited by that parasitic monster by that firecracker, the human would not die. The white-robed youth nodded strenuously. His voice became more and more excited, not only was the first ancestor Hua Laogao alive, 
he achieved great advancement in his cultivation power. He refined into the embodiment of heavenly water. This species of strange tadpole would certainly pounce forward upon seeing a human. Once the tadpoles entered the body, there was no way for the human to resist. The living person would immediately turn into the bug's puppet, but unexpectedly this process was not a parasitic relationship but a mutualistic relationship. The bug was a monster of utmost disposition in the water element. With the moistening of the water element, all things on earth lived in a mutualistic relationship. Not only was it not considered a disaster when the bug bored into the body, it was an extremely remarkable blessing. After that the first ancestor Hua Laogao's body was taken over by the bug, his body was uncontrollable but his consciousness was still present. He could clearly sense that after the bug entered his body, his body was also slowly being transformed into the body of the water element. By the time his body's element category was exactly the same as the bug, the bug would then leave his body. However, this entire process was not allowed to be interrupted. Before the body was fully transformed, if the bug were to leave its parasitic host, it would drain all the moisture from the host's body. When Liang's expression became dull in a moment. They were not aware of this reason earlier. Hence, Patu pried out all of those dozen Kunlun disciples from the ice sheet, killing them instead. I found a dozen of Taoist priests that were buried in the ice fissure on the northwest slope, the white-robed youth could make a guess of the sequence of events that took place. His voice was albeit hoarse and unpleasant, his tone of speaking was filled with consolation, all of you do not know of the firecracker's characteristic, there is no need to blame yourself. Even my family that spent generations cultivating in the water element magic art did not know what to do before we met the firecrackers, our effort to save the people turned into killing the people instead. In the boundless universe, there were many strange and inconceivable matters in the world. Not only the bug was capable of escaping through water and ice, the bug even contained the poison of water that was capable of controlling the human's body. Shockingly, after a period of time, when the bug was done helping its host to transform his body, it would even return the body back to its owner. When Leong heaved a sigh, he stopped worrying about that dozen of Kunlun disciples that had already deceased and refocused the topic. This species of bugs contained the poison of water of utmost disposition, even though the amount is too little, it is purest to the greatest extent. The white-robed youth was stunned. He looked towards Wen Leong in excitement, how did you know that? The poison of water was also a formless matter. Unless one was poisoned with it, there was no way one could notice that. The poison of water was pure. Under normal circumstances, the person who was poisoned would die immediately. This concept was similar to no one knew how fast he was riding the motorcycle, those that have seen it died in the collision. When Leong did not manage to answer, he gave a forced laugh as he continued, I wanted to ask if the bug helped its parasitic host to forge the embodiment of true water, would it be passing its poison of water to the parasitic host as well? The white-robed youth laughed in a joyous manner. He intentionally stopped the story at a climax to keep the listener in suspense, do not be anxious. Listen to my story patiently. It is still early. Being able to cultivate into the embodiment of true water, the cultivator would not only become formless true water, capable of escaping the detection of other cultivators' telegnosis ability. For cultivators that cultivated in the water element magic art, the embodiment of true water was akin to a person who cultivated in martial art was first trained in the tendon changing and marrow washing qigong. His cultivation in the future would yield twice the result with half the effort. The misfortune that dawned upon the first ancestor Hua Laogao became a blessing in disguise. As he returned to his home, he told them about the sequence of events from beginning to the end. The Hua family's clan elder immediately decided to move the entire tribe to the west. They cultivated obscurely in hope that they could ascend into the heaven and become immortals. The people who were planning to leave the earth did not possess the concept of hometown and native land. Hence, ever since then, the Hua family turned from the central plains obscure cultivators to the Tangula Mountains obscure cultivators. As when Leung mentioned, when the bug was in a parasitic process, not only would it help its host to transform his physique, it would even pass its poison of water of utmost disposition to its host. The first ancestor of Hua family fumbled around for a period of time through trials and errors, before they finally formed the current cultivation method of the Hua family's disciples. 
they would first form a mutualistic relationship with the firecrackers. From there, they received the embodiment of true water while simultaneously received a portion of poison of water of utmost disposition from the bugs. Following that, they used the Hua family's cultivation method and slowly refined the poison of water in their bodies into life vitality for the purpose of enhancing their cultivation method. When Leong frowned, he inquired closely out of instincts, you can refine the poison of water into life vitality. The white-robed youth nodded, that is our Hua family's special cultivation method, transforming poison of water into life vitality. Even though the firecracker's poison of water is in a small amount, it is precious because of its utmost purity. After the process of refinement, the water element life vitality that is refined is exceedingly powerful. When Leon laughed as he shook his head and did not say anything. In his perspective, refining the utmost purest poison power into life vitality was more like steeping the best quality tea leaves in water. After a few soaks, one poured away all the tea and leave behind the tasteless tea leaves. The white-robed youth could not tell what was when Leong thinking in his heart, he continued, but in the final analysis, the amount of poison of water that is contained in the firecracker is still too little. By the time it is passed on to the mutualistic host then it is even lesser to increase the life vitality. Over a period of time, we grow the firecrackers in our bodies for a period of time in order to absorb the poison of water in their bodies. When Le Young's expression was slightly puzzled, a little confused about that statement. On the other hand, the white-robed youth was very patient. He chuckled with his hoarse voice and patiently explained to Wen Leung. The firecracker fancied occupying the human body, but once a firecracker occupied the body, the other bugs would never come into contact anymore. To every member of the Hua family, the first firecracker they acquired would be the one and only firecracker in their lifetimes. The firecracker would help its host to transform his body. After it passed its poison of water, it would recuperate for a period of time afterwards and its toxicity would be restored again. At this point, the Hua family disciple would draw the bug into his body again and bore into the glacier to absorb the toxic. This process was repeated over and over again in the future. After the firecracker completed the mutualistic relationship for the first time, it would recognize its master and turn into an obedient child from then on. It would never bore into another person's body anymore. When Leong had already seen and heard too much new information in his lifetime. Even a person could be sealed into the body of a monkey that was then sealed into the dog-headed eagle's body. Even though the matter of firecracker sounded strange and eccentric, he could still accept it easily. He chuckled as he stretched his body lazily. He then stood up and moved his limbs. His body suddenly swayed once. In the extremely frightened gaze of the white-robed youth, one of Wen Liang's fingers had already firmly pressed onto the area between his brows. Until this point, the matter in discussion was albeit not considered intricate, it involved the cultivation method and the firecrackers. It took some time for the white-robed youth to explain it. When Leung's physical strength had already restored partially, this white-robed youth's cultivation base was still shallow. He could only rely on his embodiment of true body that brought along the ghost-like power. Hence, when he was unexpectedly suppressed by Wen Leung, he had no room for resistance. When Leung's finger pressed onto the area between the white-robed youth's brows. He would only need to exert a little strength to be able to press a hole into the white-robed youth's skull. The white-robed youth was both astonished and furious as he asked Wen Leung loudly, Why did you do that? Wen Leung chuckled, You are even willing to tell me all about the Hua family's cultivation method. Needless to say, you do not plan to let me walk away from all this alive. The method of cultivation, whether it belonged to which sect, it was still considered an exceedingly important secret. Let alone the cultivation sects, even the ordinary martial arts sects, upon discovering the person who stole secrets from the sect they would chase and kill him for a thousand miles. The minor ones would be punished by digging out his eyes and pulling out his tendons, while the severe one would be punished by decapitation or digging out his heart. No one would behave like this white-robed youth, who joyously told about the cultivation method of his family to the others. The white-robed youth seemed to be slightly confused, so why did you choose to attack now when you could have just summoned your crescent blade earlier and take me out at that point? When Leung blinked his eyes in confusion, he did not what to say. There was already a slight uneasiness in his heart. 
it seemed that his act of pretending to be a man of long experience was about to embarrass himself. Regardless of whether it was the act of summoning the crescent blade of Yin's error in the campsite to threaten the white-robed youth or the usage of Yang's mistake on the snow-capped land recently to resist the ice cliff or the usage of the Yin's error to slaughter the enemy. In the eyes of an outsider, Wen Leong was undoubtedly an enormous power. Of course, the white-robed youth was unaware that the incisive weapon had already passed its expiry date. Since the other party was willing to come forward and discuss with Wen Leong, he had already tossed the idea of life to the side, as for his purpose there was only two without exception, the better possibility was that he wanted to resolve the misunderstanding. So that when Leong could save the Kunlun Taoist priests the worst possibility was that he was planning to launch some unknown schemes and plots, such that he could destroy this strong and powerful enemy of his. Whether the white-robed youth meant well or not, there was no way to distinguish yet at this point. However, since the man was daring enough to show up, it meant that he was already unafraid of dying. In the eyes of the white-robed youth, Wen Leong's fingertip was totally the same as the violent crescent blade of Yin's error. As expected, the white-robed youth's expression had already become infuriated yet insulted, whatever I have told you are all superficial knowledge. The most crucial part of the Hua family's cultivation method was how to use the water element magic art to dissolve the firecracker's strong poison into life vitality and that is only one of it. Upon saying that, the youth stopped for a moment, his following sentence truly startled Wen Leong so much his primordial soul almost left his body. Secondly, there is no purpose for an outsider to know about the cultivation method of my family. The Hua family has been growing these bugs here for over a thousand years, we are familiarized with the bugs' temperament. I will only need to whistle once and I will guarantee you that all the firecrackers will be crawling out of its hosts' mouths and turn those people that stole our bugs to cultivate into a bag of bones. As he was saying that, the white-robed youth turned over his hands. His movements were swift as he placed a pale blue-colored whistle that was akin to be made from crystal into his mouth. His eyes were glimmering as he glared at Wen Leong without a sense of submission. In reality, as long as the Hua family could master the second trick, there would be nobody else except for their family to be able to use the firecracker to cultivate. No one could survive if he was halfway through the transformation. When the Hua family member blew the whistle once, the bug would bring along all the moisture in his body and escape. That was why when the white-robed youth was talking about his family's cultivation method, he was completely unscrupulous, for no one was capable of stealing his sex cultivation method. When Leong immediately retracted his finger. His face was filled with embarrassed smile, it is my fault. This is unrelated to them. Please do not ever blow that whistle. Not that when Leong was incapable of snatching the whistle, he felt that the white-robed youth made a fair point. Even if the Hua family's cultivation method was revealed to another person, the other person dared not take the risk to cultivate it. Whatever the white-robed youth told him was utterly not considered a secret for themselves. The white-robed youth was obviously infuriated by Wen Leong. His cheeks were puffed up and his eyes were glaring as if he was hesitating whether he should blow the whistle. Wen Leong appeared to be relaxed on the surface but the skin underneath on his entire body tightened. As long as the other party attempted to blow the whistle, before the sound of the whistle was heard, he would crush the white-robed youth's neck at one go. Finally, the white-robed youth put away the whistle, he frowned as he gave Wen Leong a fierce stare, why are you being so suspicious? If I wanted to kill you, I have my own way as well. Of course, Wen Leong would not challenge his words, Wen Leong apologized frantically, he was feeling extremely frustrated in his heart. If it was Wen Buzwa, he would certainly not behave as recklessly as Wen Leong. At least he would clarify the situation first before he made the decision to attack or not. The white-robed youth had a pretty good character. He did not mind the misunderstanding as much and dropped it after a while, refocusing the topic of discussion onto the situation on hand, this is the Hua family's origin and cultivation method. My family spent generations living in seclusion in the Tangula Mountains, we barely keep in touch with the outsider. We are safe and sound all the while, however as he was saying that, there was a sense of enmity and hatred that flashed past his face, he asked Wen Leong in reply, so what is going on with those Tibetan people and how about all of you? You ought to explain yourself. Wen Leong did not waste time talking nonsense. 
He asked the white-robed youth directly, have you ever heard of Xian Lu? On the white-robed youth's face, the expression of recalling a memory floated. It seemed that he was thinking that the two words of Xian Lu sounded rather familiar but he could not recall where did he hear that. He had been quiet all along. Then, he was suddenly enlightened, when the heaven and earth were born together, the nine-headed monster that caused troubles during the birth of the universe. I have heard of the family elders mentioned it before. Is it a story? So, it is real that this creature exists? Wen Leung nodded. He explained the important incidents that took place ever since he discovered that the nine-headed snake's followers from all over the world gathered in the small town of the highland. He explained about the Tibetan people, the Kunlun disciples, the identities of the people that traveled with him clearly and finally he emphasized by pronouncing his words with strength. We are unaware that there is a Hua family that is living in the Tangula Mountains beforehand. Needless to say that we do not see all of you as the enemy. Upon saying that, he paused for a moment then he complimented out of his unwillingness to submit, but it was that family member of yours Uncle Quan, who wanted to kill us the moment he attacked us. The white-robed youth giggled surprisingly. His face was overwhelmed with the expression of joy. He shook his head to Wen Leong, do not be impatient, it is still better to explain the matters one by one. Wen Leong gave out a he, you have been talking for a long while but there is still not a definitive reason even until now. The sky on the outside was already suffused with the first light of the day. His body was mostly healed but his prediction earlier was wrong. His body required slightly longer time to heal than his prediction. The white-robed youth's laughter vanished as he continued, the Hua family is peaceful for a thousand years. Until about ten days ago, a group of Tibetan people suddenly entered the Tangula Mountains. These people were penetrating with evil and malevolent energy everywhere but our family would not start a feud with the outsiders, so we pay no regards to them. As long as they do not provoke us, we will never oppose them as well at this point, the white-robed youth suddenly became infuriated. He punched ferociously onto the ground as if he was venting anger. A stretch of blue-colored crystal mine was pounded with sand and stones flying everywhere. The firecracker that was hidden in his clothes suddenly sprung out and wrapped around a small chunk of crystal ore. The sounds of scraping and cracking echoed. It took only a while before half a chunk ate off the crystal ore. The white-robed youth chuckled, the firecracker's favorite food is the snow mountain's crystal ore. At this point, the sound of ululation suddenly echoed from Wen Liang's body. It was unknown since when did you've got me was already awakened from its sleep. It suddenly realized that a water element bug was eating ostentatiously outside. The hard stings on its body stiffened as it dashed outside. That firecracker recently passed on its toxicity to the white-robed youth and had yet to recover. It dared not risk its life to fight you've got me, so it hugged half of the crystal ore, refusing to let go and ran back to its master's side in a combination of scramming and running. In comparison, the fire element's temperament was explosive, you've got me was akin to a bully, it ululated in a threatening manner. While the water element's temperament was firm and unyielding, the firecracker was akin to an honest child that was protecting its apple, it staggered and cried incessantly. The moment you've got me rushed forward, Tutatunt was like a monkey with its tail being stepped on. He suddenly jumped up. He was shrieking and jabbering. His skinny face was all twisted and contorted. It was pointing towards the two sides of ice walls desperately. On the other hand, the white-robed youth stretched out his hand and retrieved the firecracker into his chest pocket. He jumped up similarly with a panic expression on his face, his voice sounded hoarse and stern as he shouted loudly, how can you still bring around this type of fire element bug? Put it away quick, put it away quick. Be careful you might lead to a great disaster. The moment you've got me appeared those Kunlun puppets that were standing quietly in the ice walls suddenly became agitated. Their strange and eccentric gaze became incisive yet sharp. Their expressions became savage in a flash. Struggling in an attempt to dash out. You've got me discovered a sworn about enemy and rushed outside for a fight. When it realized at that point that it was a lone warrior that was deep in the enemy's line, it utterly did not need the master's summon. The hard fur on its body turned limp in the blink of an eye, it ran towards Wen Liang's chest swiftly, and refused to get out no matter what. You've got me was a spiritualized bug. 
It had already recognized its master since earlier. On usual days, it would only need to hide in one Liang's chest and its fire element's malevolence would be immediately concealed by the master's body. It would be difficult for a profound cultivator to realize that a bug was hiding on one Liang's chest, that was why the moment it's bored back to its nest now, its presence earlier vanished without a trace. The Kunlun puppets were akin to losing their target. Their gazes were in a frenzy. Their movement also became much slower but they still appeared slightly agitated. The white-robed youth's expression turned beyond solemn. He could not care about scolding Wen Leong, his mouth continuously whistled. He stretched out his hand and rapidly scratched peculiar-looking ancient scripts onto ice wall. After a long while, before those puppets finally quieted down and turned back to their usual forms. It was only then the white-robed youth exhaled a long breath. He stretched out his hand and wiped away the densely dotted sweat on his forehead, turned around and glared at Wen Leong. When Leong sniggered out of embarrassment, he made a joke, my bug has lost this time, next time we will bring along your firecracker, to you've got me's territory he was suddenly stunned. The white-robed did not acknowledge Wen Leong's expression but he laughed, you've got Mu had a name he thought for a moment before his eyes glowed, he burst out laughing, you are such a malicious person, this bug's name is a trap. Wen Leong followed and let out a rigid laugh. He frowned and spoke, he had just thought of something earlier, your firecracker, or my you've got me, are all legendary beasts, but how can there be so many of them? Even for poisonous bugs like the fire-headed centipede, ghost-faced spider and green-eyed scorpion that were weaker than you've got me, by two levels were all the rare precious of the world. These bugs would never be like firecrackers, coming in a huge herd and large numbers. When Wen Leong and the rest were in the campsite, they dared not conclude that the Kunlun disciples were attacked by this species of strange bugs, because theoretically, it was impossible for there to be so many such strange bugs in the world. Even if the firecrackers were limited by its environment, such that the firecrackers could not leave the Jeladaindong Peak, if its population was so enormous, then any other living creature on the snow mountain could not survive as well. The white-robed youth laughed in a manner that was beyond proud, the firecrackers did not come in a large number initially. There was only one or two of them, but my first ancestor went on a trip of a thousand miles and found a group of master cultivators capable of raising insects and vermin in the shoe state. However, these people had a strange temperament. They were the same as us, refusing to come into contact with the outsiders. The first ancestor persevered with his effort and finally won over them, he begged for their help and finally found a way to breed the firecrackers. Before the white-robed youth could finish his sentence, when Leong suddenly burst out laughing. His chest was puffed up and he was filled with pride as he asked the white-robed youth, the people that your first ancestor begged were they from the Nine Peaks Mountain on the west of Sichuan, the disciples of Wen Butsao, the Wen family. Who else could be more outstanding than the Wen family in their abilities to manipulate poisonous bugs in between the heaven and the earth? Moreover, the people were from the territory of Sichuan. The white-robed youth was startled by Wen Leong's sudden burst of laughter, he waited for Wen Leong to finish talking when he could not help but to laugh, what kind of nonsense are you talking about? What do you mean by the Nine Peaks Mountains Wen Butsao? My first ancestor went to the Seven Maidens Mountains foothill in the middle part of the Shu state, he sought help from a group of Qing Miao clan. Wen Leong's laughter stopped abruptly. He gave out another two, uh, before he gave a few hollow laughs, those are the disciples of Miao Bujiao. They were of the same sect as our Wen family. We are as close as brothers. This was the truth but because Wen Leong made a poor judgment in the beginning, he sounded like he was lying in order to get on the good side. As expected the white-robed youth's face was filled with disbelief, he pursed his lips and spoke, you can always clarify if this is a misunderstanding. We are supposed to be bound by a common hatred for the enemy, there is no need to make up such a lie. Speaking of the expertise in using poison, refining and breeding poisonous creature, the one family fully deserved the number one title in the world. However, if one was purely discussing fiddling of bugs and snakes, the Miao Bujiao that was skilled in using bugs for a spell was the true connoisseur. If a scorpion was given to the one family, a one family could use it to poison a village of people but if a scorpion was given to the Miao Bujiao, they could breed out countless scorpions. Wen Leong had been acting presumptuously twice towards the white-robed youth. As a result, he became passive, 
he gave a forced laugh as he hastily changed the topic of discussion, so what happened after the Tibetan people enter the mountain? Not long after the Tibetan people entered the mountain, there was a large battalion of Taoist school disciples that entered the mountain. We became even more curtained that, it was the enmity between these two gang of people. They chased and escaped all the way into the great mountain. In order not to cause any further misunderstandings, we recalled the disciples who were surveilling the situation. Yet, unexpectedly that caused a great disaster. As he was saying that, the white-robed youth inhaled a deep breath, he calmed his emotions with great difficulties, do you still remember a few days ago? When we first met, there was a sharp howling noise that echoed through the entire mountain valley suddenly and I immediately withdrew afterwards. When Leon nodded, the white-robed youth continued, that was the warning sign of the family. Something happened at home. When Leon was suddenly enlightened, it was not a wonder this youth's expression immediately changed all of sudden. He no longer tried to talk anymore but left immediately but when Leon was still slightly puzzled, so despite all that you still have the intention to seize back your robe? The white-robed youth gave a forced laugh and shook his head, all of you suddenly attacked and revealed your hostility. Our family's robe is tailored one and only to each person, the more critically dangerous the situation is, the more I cannot let this item that can be used as an authenticating token to fall into your hands. Otherwise, if all of you were to possess evil intention and truly trap my family, I can never atone my sin even if I die a millionth times. When Leung exhaled a long breath, the white-robed youth behaved calmly in an emergency, he was meticulous. When Leung understood at that point that within this ice hole here, there was not only him that was experienced. Chapter, 209 The blazing sun had just risen. When Leung was severely injured by the prohibition spell in the campsite. Nevertheless, he managed to completely heal himself in a day and a night and the strength of his body had been fully restored. Hence, he was in a splendid mood. He even felt that the white-robed youth's extremely hoarse and broken gong-like voice sounded much more pleasant. The white-robed youth paid no attention to Wen Liang's change in his physique and his expression, as he continued on his own accord, that a firecracker was a species of spiritual bug found on the great snow mountains. It was supposed to come in small amounts and was very rare and precious but we learned from the erudite people from the Miao Stockade village in the middle of Shu state on how to breed, grow and control the bugs when the white-robed youth mentioned of the Miao Bujiao. His tone of speaking to his expression was filled with admiration and gratitude, my family opened up a cave then we sent over a batch of disciples that were specially tasked to be in charge of caring for the firecrackers. Dot. For over a thousand years, our family had been breeding a few thousands of firecrackers. When Leon knew that when the other party was explaining a crucial point, yet there must be a reason why he suddenly diverted the topic of discussion onto the firecracker. When Leon was trying to be patient as he waited for the white-robed youth to continue talking. However, when he heard of the amount of firecrackers, he was still startled and could not help but to ask, why are there so many of the bugs? How many people are there in your Hua family? There could only be one mutualistic relationship formed between a person and a firecracker in his entire lifetime. Now that the Hua family was growing thousands of firecrackers, could it be that the Hua family was made up of thousands of people as well? This amount seemed to be a little too huge right? The white-robed youth was startled by Wen Liang's question, he hastily shook his head, of course, there are not so many people in my family. But for us, the firecrackers are our best companions they are the enemy's fatal opponent. Moreover, the bugs are very spiritual and obedient, naturally, the more the merrier. So we try to breed as many as we can. The firecracker possessed exceedingly strong pet instincts. The firecracker without a master would pounce on a human the moment it met one. It was naturally a blessing for the person who was pounced on by the firecracker but once the creature had pounced into the body, if it was summoned by the Hua family's people using a whistle, the end result would be awful. If someone were to try to cause harm to the Hua family, the Hua family had utterly no need to attack. They would only need to release the bugs then all was well and safe. Let alone a cultivator of ordinary cultivation sex, even the head Lama Ranyong, who possessed profound cultivation base, was almost taken down by a firecracker. When Leong was suddenly enlightened at this point. He squinted his eyes and stared at the white-robed youth with a spurious smile, 
when you released the, the firecrackers, was it to deal with the Tibetan people or the Kunlun disciples? The dozen Taoist priests at the bottom of the ice fissure earlier and the hundreds of Kunlun disciples on his side were all attacked by the bugs. Needless to say, this was the trick launched by the Hua family. Yet, unexpectedly, the white-robed youth shook his head, it is true that these Taoist priests were raided by the firecrackers, but it was not controlled by our Hua family. As he was saying that, he stopped for a moment, now that you have roughly understood the bugs and the Hua family's sequence of events, the rest of the matters would be much easier to explain. When Leong hastily nodded, he understood that he was about to reach the climax of the topic. Recently, first came the Tibetan people of the small town exuding with evil energy, then came the Kunlun disciples that were filled with a murder intent, following that it was Wen Liang's group of eccentric people that entered the mountain. Even though the Hua family disciples did not acknowledge the matter, as it was unrelated to them, this white-robed youth could no longer suppress his curiosity. He jumped out to block Wen Liang and his people's way, in an attempt to ask for an explanation as to why they entered the Tangula Mountains. It was at that moment the Hua family's warning sign of a long whistle echoed through the entire mountain valley. The white-robed youth knew that something happened at home, he immediately treated every outsider that entered the mountain as his enemy as well. Of course, due to Wen Leong and the rest's way of conduct back then, anyone would be treating them as the enemy. The white-robed youth snatched back his robe. He could no longer care about pestering them anymore but hastily rushed back home. He found out that the cave that they used to breed the firecrackers was raided. Over twenty Hua family disciples who were guarding and caring for the bugs were killed. The people who committed the murder was the Tibetan people. After the Tibetan people destroyed the cave, they released all the firecrackers. They rapidly evacuated themselves as well. By the time the rest of the Hua family's master cultivators arrived, there was only a stretch of ruins and their tribesmen's corpses that were left behind. At this point, the white-robed youth explained to Wen Leong that the firecrackers are able to escape through water and ice inherently. That is why we use the treasured weapons of the fire element to separate the area between where the firecrackers are bred and the outside's ice sheet. This way we can prevent the firecrackers from escaping. After those Tibetan people killed our people, they destroyed the treasured weapon and connected the ice sheet to the cave, releasing all the bugs. Wen Leong frowned, so the Tibetan people were actually scheming for these strange bugs on the snow mountain? Did the bugs leave together with them? Were they aware of the method that was used to disperse these firecrackers? The white-robed youth shook his head ferociously, no. They were not trying to seize the bugs, but they released the bugs. It is of the same concept as unlocking a cage, such that the wild beasts inside are set free. The white-robed youth's expression was a combination of infuriation and puzzlement. We did not understand why were the Tibetan people opposing us and we did not understand why did the firecrackers that pounced onto a human the moment it saw one did not attack them. Wen Leong did not speak. Yet, the jade knife Guo Huan hanging under his neck suddenly sneered and spoke, why is it so difficult to figure that out? Those Tibetan people are the living dead that opted out of being reborn. Your family's firecrackers only pounce on the living human. They are not interested in these walking dead people. The white-robed youth gave out a ha huh, dot. It was unknown whether he was startled by Guo Huan or he was startled by Guo Huan's words, it took a moment before he muttered and asked, so those Tibetan people they are all zombies. As he was saying that, the expression of enlightenment appeared on his face. Even though the firecrackers had a peculiar temperament and the poison of water was powerful, they did not pose an ounce of threat to the Tibetan people. Guo Huan scoffed with slight contempt. It enunciated clearly to emphasize its speech, the living dead. Apparently, there was some difference in between the zombies and this small town's living dead that opted out of being reborn, but Guo Huan was too lazy to explain. It urged the white-robed youth to continue his story. With such a critical event that took place, the entire Hua family was in a rage. Other than the disciples that were engaging in a mutualistic relationship with the bugs in the ice sheet, everyone came out to chase after the enemy, simultaneously searching for the firecrackers that had escaped. There was a huge difference between an obscure cultivator and the cultivators that engaged in cultivating in a sect. The obscure cultivator cultivated purely in the cultivation method to ascend to the heaven. 
Their method of cultivation did not involve too many tricks that were useful in battles and resisting the enemy. Just like Wei Mo from the Heaven Teller sect, his entire capability lied in the skill of counting and telling. Any insignificant disciples of the five blessings that had engaged in the cultivation for a few years would have the ability to strike him so hard he would need to look for his teeth on the ground. While an orthodox cultivator of a sect, when engaged in the dispute and enmity of the cultivation world, he would often pursue the great power and great supernatural power in his cultivation method. And even to a certain degree, the act of cultivating for the ascension to heaven to become an immortal was just a minor detail for the disciple of the great sects. The obscure cultivators had a higher percentage of achieving the possibility to ascend to the heaven as an immortal. Nevertheless, the probability to become an immortal was small on its own, whether it was one in a million or one in a hundred, even though the difference was by a hundred times, both appeared similarly unreachable. Let alone being compared to the orthodox sects, most of the obscure cultivators' cultivation method was far less inferior to the giant bull or the red grand ant. The Hua family disciples possessed the embodiment of true water. Their movements and tracks were harder to be traced than a ghost. As such, it would improve their cultivation method's combat capability. They were more than capable of dealing with cultivators of Ji Song's level. However, once they encountered the Tibetan people that were corroded by malevolent energy and had since opted out of being reborn, they lost immediately. The principle of this situation was akin to the falcon that was far agiler than the bear but the falcon could never succeed at killing a bear. That was why it was not a difficult task for the Hua family disciples to locate the Tibetan people. When both parties fought, the Hua family never manages to avenge themselves. On the contrary, a lot of the Hua family disciples were injured. The moment Guo Huan displayed his weapons, Yin's error and Yang's mistake, the treasured weapons smashed dozens of Tibetan people into pieces. However, the Yin's error and Yang's mistake were the incisive treasured weapons with indescribable powers. Even Chang Li attempted to steal this pair of treasure in the past, provoking Guo Huan. At this point, Wen Leong laughed as he shook his head. He consoled the white robed youth, your Hua family's supernatural power was rather remarkable as well. The flash freeze that was launched by your uncle Quan almost froze all of us into ice pillars. The white robed youth gave a forced laugh as he shook his head, that was the largest treasured weapon that was refined by our Hua family laboriously all these years. It was not supposed to be used to attack Human 7 if it was used to deal with the Tibetan people, I am afraid that its effectiveness was still far less inferior. Wen Leung smiled but no longer spoke. Frankly, if none of the three persons Wen Leung, Patu or Rangyong were injured at that time, they could firmly withstand the supernatural power of Flash Freeze. A powerful enemy had confronted the Hua family. Even though they were counter-attacking laboriously, they still managed to separate a portion of their people to hunt for the firecrackers. These strange bugs were the foundation of their cultivation. Should they delay their time to hunt for the firecrackers? It would be extremely difficult for them to capture these bugs later that were capable of escaping in the ice sheet and swim everywhere and capable of escaping a cultivator's telegnosis ability. Moreover, the rainy season had arrived. It would not take long before the entire highland would be covered by heavy snow. By then, no one knew if these bugs would be escaping out of the Tangula Mountains with the ice and snow. If they were to truly escape into the mortal world, another chaos would break out. Fortunately, the firecrackers possessed the collective animal behavior to live in a group. Hence, they did not disperse in all directions like birds. Other than a very small amount that was separated from the big group, the rest of the bugs gathered together. As they were trapped in a cave for too long, when they could finally see the light of the day, they started moving at ease everywhere on the snow peak. I suppose the dozen of Taoist priests under the ice fissure of the west slope encountered a small pack of independently traveling firecrackers. The white robed youth's tone of speaking sounded a little sorrowful. It was unknown which method did the Kunlun sect use, enabling them to follow the Tibetan people from the small town of Tuer all the way into the Tangula Mountains. Their orthodox school's disciples possessed significantly high attainment in their cultivation. Of course, they would not be surging in a chaotic ball of mess onto the mountain peak like the obscure cultivators when they were marching forward. Other than the battalion's disciples, there were also a dozen troops of disciples that were wandering around the peripheral areas. 
They were in charge of finding new paths and giving out warning signs. One of the Kunlun disciple troops had encountered the dozen of firecrackers that were traveling independently. Unfortunately, when Leong and his group found the location randomly, even though they did not have the intention to harm others, they accidentally destroyed the Kunlun disciples' lives. Every time when Leong thought of this matter, he felt apologetic from the bottom of his heart. He heaved a sigh and pointed to the two sides of surrounding ice walls, so they were raided by a large group of firecrackers at their campsite. The white-robed youth was at a loss whether to laugh or cry as he nodded. This was an unlucky year for the Kunlun gang that offended the Tangula Mountains. Their small troop of soldiers encountered a small group of strange bugs, while their large troop of soldiers encountered a large stretch of bug tide. When Leong was still a little confused, the Kunlun sect's disciples possessed rather remarkable cultivation base. Even if a large stretch of bugs were to arrive in a swarm, perhaps they would still be seized in the end, they would never surrender without a fight. The campsite was all neat and tidy, there was utterly no signs of a struggle or fight. The white-robed youth smiled as he explained to Wen Leong, this species of bugs are the embodiment of true water and the snow mountain's legendary beasts. You can think of it as a drop of water a drop of water that fuses with another drop of water, it is still a drop of water, but it is slightly bigger. Wen Leong pondered for a moment before he was filled with fear, so you are telling me that these bugs can fuse together with one another and turn into a gigantic bug? The white robe shook his head then nodded, in reality, there are thousands and millions of tiny firecrackers, but on the outside, it appears just like a large-sized bug. Thousands of the firecrackers squeezing together can give free rein to their water element vividly. At first glance, it appears just like a lake. When Leong finally figured out what happened. The bugs did not arrive one by one, or troop by troop, or gush by gush, but they formed into a stretch of water and sprung out from underneath the ice sheet soundlessly, annihilating the entire campsite in the blink of an eye. The firecrackers inherently fancied pouncing on humans. They met an entire campsite's worth of hosts in the middle of their sightseeing tour. Thousands of firecrackers and almost a thousand of Kunlun disciples. How many of the bugs were left afterwards? Wen Leong did not forget to calculate the numbers despite being in the midst of astonishment. The white-robed youth laughed bafflingly for a moment, there was a sense of gloating over others' misfortune in him. The firecrackers that managed to pounce onto its hosts immediately brought along the humans and escaped into the depth of the ice sheet. As he was saying that he stretched out his hand and pointed to the rest of the Kunlun disciples with different expressions in the ice wall and then he continued. The rest of the firecrackers did not leave perhaps there was still unwillingness in their hearts. They wanted to wait for the next person's return to the campsite. So, all of them settled down in the ice sheet underneath the campsite. When Leong drew in a cold breath, when we arrived at the campsite, they were underneath our feet? How was it that they did not bore out from the ground and pounced on us? The white robe nodded strenuously, that the firecrackers do not like the sunlight, unless they are startled and stimulated or that we intentionally disperse them. Otherwise, they seldom pounce onto humans during the day. Actually, my uncle Quan had already discovered the large group of firecrackers before your arrival. He was preparing the treasured weapon and the magic spell. However, when all of you came, you all triggered the campsite's prohibition spell. The Kunlun campsite's prohibition spell could not detect the true water's formless firecrackers, but the prohibition spell was exceptionally sensitive at picking up when Leong and the rest's presence. The moment they entered the campsite, they immediately drew in the Kunlun magic spell's heaven-splitting and earth-shocking baptism, simultaneously startling the thousands of firecrackers lying in dormant underneath the ice. The large group of bugs was eager to take action. They were watching the few hosts above joyously, as they started ascending to the surface of the ice sheet slowly. When the large group of bugs was floating upwards, the bugs triggered the magic spell that was laid down by that Uncle Quan from Hua family, triggering the treasured weapon, thus triggering the art of freeze. The firecrackers were the water element legendary beasts of the Snow Mountain's ice river and there was only this form of freezing magic spell that was capable of suppressing them temporarily. Then the Hua family's master cultivators would conjure the art of moving ice and water to transport the bugs back to the prohibition spell formed by the fire element treasured weapon. 
Only then the task would be considered complete. When Leon finally understood the situation. He asked out of astonishment, Uncle Uncle Quan launched the magic spell, in order to capture the bugs. Not because he was trying to attack us. Before the white-robed youth could speak, when Leong suddenly complained, I am sure that he can at least inform us beforehand, right? Anyhow, he ought to wait for us to retreat out of the scope of the freezing spell. Your Hua family truly does not treasure the lives of the others. At the end of his speech, his tone of speaking had already turned from dissatisfaction to interrogative. The white-robed youth refused to show weakness. His bright eyes widened as he looked into Wen Liang's eyes directly, the first time we met all of you, you were attempting to attack me. Naturally, you were an enemy and not a friend. Let alone Uncle Quan, anyone would consider all of you in the same category as the Tibetan people. It would not be an injustice for us to freeze all of you into pieces. When Liang's gaze was no longer as determined as before. His gaze started drifting away gradually. He thought of the moment they entered the mountain they had attempted to capture the white-robed youth. It was not an injustice for the other party to misunderstand their intention and consider them as the enemy. The white-robed youth's expression calmed down, it is true that Uncle Quan had the intention to kill all of you, but what is done is done. It is not worthwhile for us to deny. However he, I did not expect that all of you are capable of breaking Uncle Quan's magic spell. Uncle Quan's art of freeze could not cover that entire stretch of snow peak. Their Hua family's treasured weapon was weaker than Guo Huan's Yin's error and Yang's mistake by a few grades. The magic spell failed to take form in the end and was countercharged by the power of Yang's mistake. The Hua family's treasured weapon was shattered. Hence, the large group of firecrackers was only frozen for a while before it could move freely. These bugs were exceedingly intelligent. They knew that someone was coming after them. They could not care about capturing hosts anymore and immediately started fleeing for their lives. The white-robed youth was also pursuing the bug-tied dot. He was utilizing the collective animal behavior of this species of strange bugs. He released his the firecracker that had already recognized its master and pursued all the way. By the time he arrived at the area near the campsite, he was just in time to catch up with Xiao Sha who was about to extort confession by torture. He did not even consider before he jumped out and rescued Uncle Quan. As he was greatly startled by Guo Huan's crescent blade, he dared not seek revenge or launch his escape method but continued to pursue the bug tied under the guidance of his own firecracker. When Leon was completely enlightened. He was at a loss whether to cry or laugh as he drew a huge circle on the ground, he asked Tutatunt, so that huge circle that you drew is the combination of all the bugs. Tutatunt looked at this familiar huge circle. His mouth cracked into a smile as he laughed in an honest manner. When Leon gave him a thumbs up and gave a heartfelt praise, you are extraordinary. Tutatunt was virtually a radar with high sensitivity. He could foresee danger. He could discover these water element strange bugs that could even render the cultivator's telegnosis ability useless. Of course, the radar would still be short-circuited upon banging his head. The two rounds of cloth used to wrap around the wound on Tutatun's head right now made him appear like a Somali soldier. Even though the bug tide fled swiftly after it was startled, it did not flee in any path out of fright. It was fleeing towards its companions that had just abducted almost a thousand hosts. The firecrackers possessed strong animal collective behavior. Once they noticed the approaching danger, they immediately gathered with the bugs that had just recognized its master in order to protect its companions that were engaged in the assimilation process. Under Tutatun's guidance, when Leong rushed all the way to this spot. When Leong was startled again. He clenched his teeth in fear as he glared at his surroundings, so this nearby regiones infested with thousands of firecrackers, without masters. They how is it that they are not pouncing onto us? The sky had just brightened outside. However, when they arrived at this spot it was still nighttime. How could the bugs not pounce on them? The white-robed youth's face was glowing with pride, of course it is because of us. Before the both of you arrived here, our family's brothers and sisters had already rushed over to this spot. We exerted laborious efforts but finally managed to pacify the bugs, however that group of Tibetan people still refused to give up. 
As he was saying that, his face was filled with cruelty but the gaze that he used to look at when Leon was filled with slight expectation. The Hua family's people managed to rush over in time. They succeeded in controlling the large batch of firecrackers. However, the dozens of Tibetan people appeared at the same time. They dived under the ice fissure in an attempt to break the Hua family's shackles on the bugs. At that moment, when Leong arrived at this spot, Tutatunt was bustling about up and down and finally dove head first into the wasp's nest, drawing out the Tibetan people. Guo Huan launched his demon body breaking spell twice, instructing the Yin's error and Yang's mistake to launch its great martial prowess and annihilated all the Tibetan people at one stroke. The Hua family disciples finally understood that when Leong and the Tibetan people were not the birds of a feather. The white robed youth encountered Wen Leong on two occasions. Every time they met, the situation was filled with hostility. It was also because of that, the white robed youth's appearance would mean that they were most earnest and sincere. That was why he appeared now. The white robed youth finally finished telling about the course of events that took place. He exhaled a long breath. It was not wild talks and lies when I told you earlier that I could deal with you. If I wanted to harm you earlier, I would only need to unlock the magic spell and release the thousands of bugs. Even if you had three heads and six arms, you would not be able to run out of here alive. As he was saying that, the white-robed youth suddenly remembered, you've got me, dot. He hastily stretched out his hand and pointed towards Wen Liang's chest, his tone of speaking was filled with solemnness, be sure to keep your eyes on that fire element bug of yours. The water and fire element interrestrix one another. If it was released, it would easily stimulate the firecrackers, temper, such that the firecrackers can truly struggle free from our magic spell. The white-robed youth suddenly laughed, actually it is fine as well. At the worst, consider it as a bargain for yourself. The embodiment of the true water shall be a gift for you. You annihilated the Tibetan people earlier. That is considered a great help to us. When Leong hastily shook his head, small matter, there is no need to thank me. The matter of the embodiment of true water was too incredulous. No one knew if the Hua family disciples would wait for the firecracker to bore into his body and blow the whistle to draw the firecracker out. The white-robed youth could not read Wen Liang's narrow-mindedness. He continued, the tribe's elders were trying to figure out a way to deal with the enemies. Those that came rushing over to suppress the bugs were the juniors that were almost the same age as me. Our supernatural power was no match for those Tibetan people. The firecrackers were ineffective towards them. If it was not you who came rushing over in time, we could only run away and allow them to free the firecrackers at will. Moreover, as he was saying that, the white-robed youth pointed to the Kunlun disciples, the odds were against these Taoist priests. When Leong stretched out a hand and rubbed onto the area between his brows that he frowned so hard it turned sore. So the Tibetan people from the small town of Tuer was not trying to deal with Yerhua family but only wanted to release the bugs. The white-robed youth could not judge this situation as two separate matters as well as when Leong could. He sneered boldly, releasing the bugs, is equal to driving the Hua family to its death. Wen Leong coughed. He asked the old demon in the jade knife that was filled with schemes, do you think the Tibetan people releasing the bugs was related to that water element treasure that they were looking for? Now that Guo Huan understood the sequence of events, its tone of speaking sounded pompous and pretentious, what else can there be other than that? They are all the living dead. They will not be so fussed to travel a long distance to the great snow mountain just so they can set the firecrackers free because they pity the firecrackers. The white-robed youth interrupted out of curiosity, what is the water element treasure? Without waiting for Wen Leong to speak, Guo Huan spoke in an unpleasant tone, what an idiotic young lad. Other than the heavenly water spirit, is there anything else that is a water element treasure? The white-robed youth's expression was filled with astonishment. His mouth widened as he shook his head absent-mindedly, so you are saying that they can locate the heavenly water spirit through the firecrackers? Impossible. It is true that the Hua family spent over a thousand years in breeding firecrackers, but we have never given up on the idea to seek the heavenly water spirit. Guo Huan did not wait for him to finish talking before it sneered in an icy cold manner. Its voice sounded more rigid than the hardest million-year-old glacier in the depth of the snow peak, 
that is why I said all you young lads have no knowledge at all. Just depending on a great snow mountain, you think that you can grow out such strange and eccentric bugs. Call it firecrackers or tadpoles, this species of legendary bugs of the utmost element is most certainly related to the heavenly water spirit. The white-robed youth was both surprised and joyous. He could not hold himself back as he inquired closely, so if I am to release the bugs now and follow them, I would be able to find the heavenly water spirit. His voice was initially unpleasant and hoarse. Due to his intense tone, his voice turned sharper all of a sudden, making Wen Leong felt uneasy in his heart. Chapter, 210 Guo Huans responded uncourteously, I do not know. Ask the Tibetan people. This was a crucial matter, when Leong became serious as he asked the white-robed youth, after that the firecrackers left your family's cave, was there a specific direction that the firecrackers were heading to? The white-robed youth shook his head, ever since they escaped out of the Jiangandiru glacier, they crawled onto the snow peak along the mountain slope, then they started wandering everywhere. There was not any direction that I could speak off will the senior please show me the right path. His final half of the sentence was meant for Guohuan. Guo Huan spoke impatiently, stop being noisy before the old father. It is the bugs that your own family is breeding yet you are asking me this question. Where do you find such a principle under the heavens? If I say I do not know, I mean it. Guo Huan will never lie ever since he was born. Wen Leung felt goosebumps erupting all over his body as he heard Guo Huan's words. The white-robed youth appeared rather disappointed. He sat on the same spot and became a little distracted. Wen Leung's injuries were mostly healed at this point. He had a rough idea of the Hua family's events. He was concerned about his companion's situation in his heart, so he looked towards the white-robed youth but did not speak. He could not help but to cough softly, so are we just going to idle here? The white-robed youth was suddenly jolted back to reality by Wen Leung's words. He dropped the matter of heavenly water spirit temporarily, we have already suppressed the firecrackers. A few of my brothers and sisters are on their way to inform the family elders. I am waiting for their arrival here to launch a magic spell together. We will first send the bugs back then we will discuss further, as for the Tibetan people as he was saying that, the white-robed youth looked at Wen Leong with glimmering eyes. His voice was albeit hoarse, but his tone of speaking sounded very sincere, we are bound by a common hatred for the same enemy. Will you please help our Hua family? The Hua family's effort in dealing with the Tibetan people was futile, while the white-robed youth witnessed the supernatural power launched by Wen Liang's group of people with his own eyes. Hence, he risked his life to show himself in order to locate Wen Liang and revealed the sequence of events to Wen Liang with the aim to form an alliance with Wen Liang. The white-robed youth stopped for a moment before he complimented, whether it is the Snow Peak or the Jiangandira Glacier, my family's disciples know the places like the back of our hands. We also possess the water element magic to protect ourselves. There is utterly no way the Tibetan people can lose their trail before us. If all of you accept my family's assistance, the effort to deal with the enemy is as easy as turning over your hand. After we are done eradicating the Tibetan people, I will plead my family elders to gift all of you the embodiment of true water. I will never die peacefully if I were to break my promise. When Leung realized that the other party was swearing an oath. He hastily laughed and interrupted, there is no need to swear an oath. I will still need to discuss with my companions before I can make a decision on this matter. If everything that you have told me is the truth, we will join hands with the Hua family to deal with the enemy. As he was saying that, he saved the voice recording and pocketed the cell phone. He would still need to depend on this item to determine if the white-robed youth's words were genuine from Fei Fei. The white-robed youth did not waste time to persuade Wen Leung. He nodded and laughed in an extremely joyous manner. He procured a small crystal clear icicle the size of the little finger from his chest. A streak of silver-colored mist enshrouded a talisman in the icicle. You will only need to squeeze this into pieces, I will rush over to your side. I will be waiting for your good news respectfully. Generally, the cultivation sects or the well-known families possessed treasured weapons similar to the flying sword that delivered messages, capable of being used to communicate in a relatively small area. 
If when Leong were to bring along this stick of icicle to Hawaii and squeezed it there, the white-robed youth would never sense anything regardless. When Leong placed the icicle cautiously into his chest pocket of course, this treasured weapon would not be easily melted away by Wen Leong's body temperature. He stretched out his hand and pointed to the Kunlun disciples, they how long before they can. The white-robed youth pondered for a moment, our people who are engaged in the cultivation of water element magic art will need one to two years' time. If these Taoist priests were hoping to attain freedom, they will need at least another three to five years. Wen Leon gave a forced laugh as he shook his head. This matter was beyond anyone's control. The Kunlun disciples were considered extremely lucky that were given the opportunity to stay alive. Wen Leon could only hope that it was as mentioned by the white-robed youth that several years later they would be awakened and received the embodiment of true water. However, Wen Leon could not tell if the embodiment of true water was a good thing or bad thing as the Kunlun Taoist priests that engaged in the cultivation of their own cultivation method. The poison of life and death circulated within Wen Leon's body as he looked towards the densely arranged Kunlun disciples on his two sides. He suddenly recalled something else, once if a firecracker pounce onto its host, is there a necessity for it to capture the human as well? The first time they encountered the Kunlun disciples that were controlled on their journey, the giant pangolin was dragged into the ice wall. The bugs are actually helping the other bugs to capture new hosts. These firecrackers are rather sensible you see. As he was speaking, the white-robed youth used his hand to lightly glide past the ice surface. The Kunlun disciples' expressions appeared as if they were enjoying the process without exception, akin to a cat that had just stretched its body. When Leong laughed, so these bugs pounce onto its hosts then attempt to help its companions. What is its ultimate plan then? So that it could enhance its cultivation power as well. The white-robed youth shook his head and laughed, how can that be? Not only the act was not helpful in enhancing its cultivation power, it will even exhaust the power of water element in itself. It is only its natural instinct as such. When Leong burst out laughing, these bugs should be not called the firecrackers, but they should be called the learn from Lei Fong. His clear laughter echoed in between the ice walls. The puppet smiled hearing his laughter, appearing unusually ghastly. The white-robed youth did not understand such a profound sentence. He followed along and laughed foolishly for a few times before he spoke, I will escort you to the top. When Leung nodded in response, I wish to take a look at the bug tide that had been frozen into ice and then I will gather with my companions. The white-robed youth understood that the action would prove his words genuine. He nodded in an exceedingly delightful manner. It was until this point when the crisp sound of a crack abruptly echoed from an area far away. The sound was albeit soft, it was akin to an extremely sharp razor blade, that suddenly slashed the silence in the depth of the ice sheets into pieces. Soon after, the two sides of ice walls shook in an obvious manner, every Kunlun disciple inside abruptly opened their eyes. Their gaze brought along a layer of deep panic. Tutatunt jumped up, he started squalling and jabbering, his skinny face was contorted in fear. It only took a moment, the muffled thundering sound and layers of shaking echoed from afar as if the snow peak above them had just experienced another enormous avalanche once again. The white-robed youth was only stunned for a moment before he reacted to the situation rapidly. He frowned as he asked loudly, what happened? There were many youth disciples from his Hua family that were on garrison duty around the surroundings. Everything that was happening on the surrounding was under their surveillance, even if an avalanche were to appear, it should not happen so abruptly. A similarly hoarse voice immediately answered, Hua Xiao San and Hua Xiao Cha have already gone out to check. The white-robed youth was apparently an esteemed personage amongst his fellow disciples of the same sect. His voice was heard continuously as he issued a series of instructions, Xiao Duo Xiao Shi Xiao Feng go out and reinforce Xiao Chao. Immediately inform me of what had happened. Hua Xiao Dai and Hua Xiao Mi come down and pacify the firecrackers, that are still in the process of recognizing its masters. Hua Xiao Lu and Hua Xiao Zhu go over and welcome the family elders. They ought to have arrived now. The rest of the disciples form the Tibetan Buddhism Madra and protect the bug tide. A series of hoarse and unpleasant replies echoed in unison. 
A male and a female porcelain doll-like charming white-robed youths jumped out from the protruding ice wall in a flash and nodded lightly to Wen Leon. They started drawing unsophisticated yet complicated ancient scripts continuously on the ice wall, while simultaneously pacifying the Kunlun disciples that were already slightly chaotic. Wen Leong squinted his eyes as he carefully spread out his water-like telegnosis ability but the area that was shaking was still too far away from here. He could not reach it. The white-robed youth clasped his hands behind his back. His gaze was filled with solemnness yet he sounded convincing as he comforted Wen Leong, we will find out what happened in a while. Please be calm and do not be agitated. Wen Leong nodded. He pointed to the two sides of Kunlun disciples in the ice walls, be sure to protect them. These Taoist priests are our friends, not foes. They entered the snow peak in order to pursue and kill those Tibetan people. The white-robed youth spoke earnestly, don't worry. When Leong and the Hua family's youth disciples were feeling uneasy and insecure as they waited for the people who went to find out the situation to return. Guo Huan was not concerned at all. It was muttering to itself in the jade knife, Hua Lao Gao, Hua Xiaoshiha, your family elders are truly very lazy. Child, what is your name then? The white-robed youth could tell that the jade knife was an item of powerful influence. Even though he was slightly distracted, he still he gave out a forced laugh as he answered, Hua Xiaoyao. The Hua family boy that was pacifying the puppet disciples in front of the ice walls turned around and laughed, we address him by the name of Xiaoyao Er. Perhaps it was the Hua family's cultivation that was causing some specific injuries to the throat, these Hua family's people. Whether it was that severely injured Uncle Quan or this group of youth disciples, all of them sounded like a broken gong. They did not even sound like a whole broken gong, at best they sounded like a half a broken gong. When Leon was stunned for a moment, whether it was Xiao Yao or Xiao Yao Er, these were all female names. He observed the white-robed youth before him closely once again. The white-robed youth had crystal-clear complexion and was unusually charming. However he was still young his small body had yet to grow and develop, judging on his innocent appearance, it was difficult to tell his gender, when Leong could not help but to laugh and asked, Mr. Hua. Or Miss Hua. Hua Xiaoyao had yet to speak when the shaking in their surroundings had already turned stronger and stronger. The land under the snow peak was jumping ferociously as if there was an ancient gigantic beast that was roaring and attempting to break through the soil. There were large chunks of floating ice that started collapsing and rolling down continuously from the snow peak. Tudatunt could no longer care about squalling at this point. He stood on the ground, tumbled to the left and right and finally he crawled onto the ground and dared not budge anymore. A layer of icy cold rage enshrouded Hua Xiaoyao's body. He glared at the Hua family disciple that was reporting the enemy's situation as he spoke in rage, what do you mean that they came by breaking the ice? Do not panic, please explain in detail. That Hua family disciple gestured with his hands continuously but there was no way he could describe what really happened. Out of anxiety, his forehead was dotted with sweat beads the size of a bean. Hua Xiaoyao realized that he did not manage to find out the situation so he frowned and changed his question, how many Tibetan people are there? The Hua family disciple that who went to find out the situation hastily answered, I do not know. Hua Xiaoyao howled in rage, he clenched his teeth as he shouted, Hua Xiaoshan are you kidding me? Go out again and find before he could finish his sentence, when Leong suddenly scoffed, there is no need. There are a total of eight enemies that are coming. The enemies had already dashed into his telegnosis abilities detection at this moment. Hua Xiaoyao was slightly stunned for a moment, his expression obviously calmed down. He knew that it was difficult to deal with the Tibetan people. However, just by depending on the dozens of Hua family disciples, it was absolutely not difficult for them to fight the eight enemies. Nevertheless, Wen Liang's face was more rigid than iron. He stretched out his leg and drew a circle on the ground. He then walked around the circle and drew another eight long lines in the area surrounding the circle like a child that drew out a sun, eight people, coming in from eight directions. Moreover, every single person is coming by breaking the ice. Eight Tibetan people surrounded them from eight directions. Every single person was rippling with unparalleled tremendous force, just like an incisive icebreaker with unmatched horsepower, shattering the ice sheet as thick as a hundred meters and dashed towards them at full speed. 
Hua Xiaoyao finally understood what happened. He turned ghastly pale as he almost fell on the ground. One person's strength was enough to blast through the ice sheet. Even a top master cultivator became too inferior in the face of such supernatural power and even so there were eight that were approaching them. He clenched his teeth ferociously then and left behind the severely injured Uncle Quan to his fellow youth disciples. His voice sounded hoarse as he issued a command rapidly, everyone retreat. His two final words were almost squeezed out from the gaps between his teeth. There would still be other opportunities to capture the bugs after the bugs were released but there would be no way for human lives to be resurrected after death. Hua Xiaoyao's command was blameless. These Tibetan people's purpose could not be any clearer. They were here to release the bugs once again. Not only the bug tide that was frozen into ice but also the thousands of firecrackers that were assimilating with the Kunlun disciples. In case the ice surface was shattered, the firecrackers would escape out of the Kunlun disciples' mouths. All the Taoist priests would turn into dried corpses. Hua Xiaoyao looked towards Wen Leong after he issued the command, he asked softly, How about you? Wen Leong shook his head, I will give it a try at stopping them before I discuss any further. Guo Huan sniggered coldly, These eight living dead are completely different from yesterday's rubbish that were slaughtered by the Yin's error and Yang's mistake. It is best for you to consider thoroughly. It is difficult to tell who will win in a match of one on one, let alone eight at once. Upon saying that it stopped for a moment before it hastily bided, do not count on my demon body breaking spell anymore, I can no longer break anymore. When Leung burst out laughing, he inhaled a deep breath and abruptly gave out a loud roar that sounded like a muffled thunder. He selected a location then jumped up high in the air. After he jumped past every single one of the Kunlun disciples' heads, he dove head first into the thick and hard ice. The Tibetan people encircled the area in eight directions but some were approaching faster while some were slow. The slower ones were a few kilometers away from them, while the faster ones were already a stone's throw away. Wen Leong headed towards the enemy that was closest to him. The white-robed youth Hua Xiaoyao gave out a long and sharp howl simultaneously. He launched the water element escape spell to follow closely behind Wen Leong. The rest of the Hua family disciples no longer guarded the Tibetan Buddhism Madra, they were akin to a school of agile silver fishes as they shuttled through the ice walls continuously akin to ghosts. They followed right behind Wen Leong and Xiao Yao like a swarm of bees. One strong person could triumph against ten martial art experts. Standing before the Tibetan people who were capable of blasting through the ice sheet and dashing madly all the way, their Tibetan Buddhism sex madra was as fragile as the spider web. There was not even half an ounce of effectiveness from it. All the white-robed disciples including Hua Xiaoyao realized in astonishment that the speed that Wen Leong exerted his strange art of punching to break the ice was surprisingly even faster than their art of water escape. From the bird's eye view, this stretch of snow peaks ice sheet was akin to a sudden chaos. Two streaks of snow lines that blasted through countless gigantic ice cliffs all the way were akin to two trains that were approaching head on and refused to give way to one another. The trains approached nearer and nearer in lightning speed and finally exploded with a loud bang that blasted through the heaven and the earth, colliding into one another ferociously. The bold and unrestrained tremendous force that felt like the heaven and earth was destroyed. Every single one of the white-robed disciples was blown away by the collision ferociously in the midst of their squalling sounds. A puff of avalanche that could measure up to a raging volcano surged skywards accompanied by wild roars and shattered the snow peak's already thin sunlight all at once. Under the collision, when Leung's countless joints on his entire body were rippling with the tremendous force of the faulty punch. The moment it came into contact with the air, it was converted into almost a hundred heavy blows at one go. Just like a storm, that slammed into the enemy's body magnificently. While at the same time a gush of a similar strong power of countercharge echoed from the Tibetan people's body, when Leong felt as if he had truly collided with a train. He swung his limbs as he squalled and was blown away. Fortunately, the, the train was knocked down by him as well, making the Hua family disciples that escaped into the ice sheet once again cheered in joy. When Leong stood up with his facial features contorted, while the Tibetan people convulsed for a few times, then he lied on the ground unmoved. When Leung felt as if the teeth in his entire mouth were shaking. 
he drew in a cold breath and felt as all his teeth gaps were leaking air. He could not help but say, oh my goodness. The jade knife Guohuan gave out a, ha, I cannot believe that someone still knows how to launch this form of magic spell. When Leon chose another direction this time. He continued to collide on a grand and spectacular scale as Guohuan explained to him in a leisurely manner, the nine tripod cauldron is forged in the Xia dynasty for the purpose of suppressing the entire country of China. There was a sect that cultivated an ancient black magic used this as a pretext for their spell, and called the spell the Great Xia's Nine Tripod Cauldron. Anyone that was cast with this spell became hard and strong and robust as the Xia's tripod cauldron that could suppress the heaven. But that person would not last long, when the magic spell was exhausted, the person that was cast with the spell would perish with his bones shattered as well. When Leon was so furious he was clenching and grinding his teeth. It was only then he realized that the Tibetan people were using the trick of suicide bombing with them now. He knew that there was no need to acknowledge them obviously. It would not take long before these living dead were doomed but he could not just wait and watched helplessly as the living dead came running over and blasting the Kunlun disciples into pieces. The second puff of snow raging flame that appeared grander than the world crushing fireworks surged into the sky accompanied by a roar. When Leong slammed heavily for the second time. After the second collision, he felt as if his eyeballs had already impeded his eyelids when he was blinking his eyes. After the first round of intense collision, when Leong fell backwards for a dozen meters. After the second round of collision, when Leong directly fell from the intense spot back to Tutatun's side, startling his African brother. Tutatun thought that when Leong's cultivation of suddenly appearing and disappearing was horrible. Two were destroyed, there were still six Tibetan people left. Two of them were in front while two were behind. They dashed towards him without a pause. When Leong did not have the time to consider whether he could defend this place or not. He was attempting to stand firmly on the ground with great efforts. Every time after Tutatunt helped him to stand up, the moment Tutatunt loosened his grip, when Leong fell on the ground with limp limbs like a marionette that lost its strings. Yet, Tutatunt was still persistent as ever there was no way when Leong could even catch a breath, he could not even speak but he was pondering in his heart whether he had ever offended the African brother. Just as Tutatunt was letting go of him for the third time, suddenly a pair of strong huge hands firmly plugged under one Leong's armpits. A voice that was filled with heroic spirit laughed aloud, let me help you this round, you can take a short rest. As he was saying that, he placed Wen Leong firmly onto the ground then turned around and bided to the tunt, do not pull him to stand anymore all right. Another voice muttered and scolded, the Lama is always full of nonsensical talks, the opponent is already here, we shall brace them side by side separately then. Where the voice was heard, a huge tail that was covered in scales before Wen Leong's eyes swung, accompanied by the demonic evil energy that rolled across the heaven and the earth. A gigantic shadow dove head first into the ice sheet and braced towards a Tibetan person. The four persons of old Gu, Xiao Sha, Fei Fei and Ji Song had already been escorted down by the pangolin. They looked towards the thousand Kunlun Taoist priests in the ice walls with their faces filled with astonishment. After daybreak, Rang Yong and the giant pangolin had already regained most of their combat capabilities. They immediately departed and sought after Wen Leung. Xiao Sha had already patted the mechanism of mystery in every step onto Wen Leong before he left. Even though they were traveling at a slow speed during the journey, it was just the perfect opportunity for the two master cultivators to recuperate. It was only when the ice surface was shaking earlier and the eight Tibetan people dashed over, Rang Yong and the giant pangolin exerted their power simultaneously. Their telegnosis ability was spread out far and wide. As the African brother was so conspicuous, he was a great position indicator, they managed to rush over just in time for the crucial moment. When Leung's experience of the heaven's thunder that crashed into the hellfire for two times was fully reflected in Rang Yung and the giant pangolin's telegnosis ability. Amongst these two persons, one was a wild and unyielding great demon, while the other devoted particular care to free his heart and his character. Their heroic spirits burst out entirely for a moment, the giant pangolin swung its tail and dashed out, while the Lama Rangyong suddenly turned over his hands. His thick and plump palms were abruptly plated in thick gold dust. 
The clanking sound of iron and stones was heard in the midst of his palm's cross strikes, he shouted loudly all of a sudden. O Vidra Sattva HM in the midst of his raging shouts of mantra, his plump and sturdy body shattered the layers of ice walls all the way. He chose a Tibetan people and braced forward as well. Guo Huan laughed out aloud suddenly, Good Baldi! Good Pangolin! Now that is what I call a good fight. A bold fight. A heroic fight. A most decadent fight. All of a sudden, the Lama's mantra and Patu's raging howl turned into the sound of loud laughter. A pack of old demons' laughter echoed outrageously within the layers of the million-year-old glacier, startling the forever desolated world of the Jeladaindong peak to death. An explosive yet muffled collision sound exploded with a loud bang. The unrestrained, heroic sound of laughter that despised the entire world suddenly turned into agonizing screams the Lama approached with surging heroic spirits akin to a giant eagle that spread out its wings. Yet as a result, he somersaulted and rolled back from the path that was opened up himself. The sound of curses filled with Gansu province's accent echoed from the giant pangolin side as well. By the time the head Lama clenched his teeth and stood up once again, the giant pangolin had already completed another collision. But too was rather intelligent. As the first time it crashed with its head, the second time it changed to another direction, and used its body to block against the Tibetan people who was charging forward. The third time it changed to the other half side of its body and intercepted the Tibetan people that were closest to itself. The Lama also squalled once as he launched the Tibetan Buddhism sect's Vajrasattva's mantra once again and used his lifetime's cultivation base to summon the embodiment of Avanasitva. He dashed into the ice surface with a loud crash. It was still the same violent sounds of collision. The sixth Tibetan people had died a violent death. The giant pangolin's scolding became even louder, the bald Lama is not a good egg, you purposely arrive one step later. The Lama refused to give the impression of weakness as he scolded back, then you could have dodged. Under the rivalry of the tremendous force without any fancy details, it was a clear judgment whose cultivation base was more profound. The giant pangolin resisted three Tibetan people by itself and it could still curse with great difficulties. When Leon almost fell apart after he crashed away two Tibetan people, while the Lama's physical fighting skill was the weakest, perhaps he could still survive after colliding with one, but it was truly beyond his power to collide with two. Eight Tibetan people, six had already collided to death. The remaining two were still running wildly and approaching from afar. These Tibetan people were akin to the iron frogs that were wound tightly. They did not understand what was fear, they only knew that their sole purpose was to surge forward. When Leon had a sturdy body. After bracing the tremendous force of the two collisions earlier, he suddenly felt as if the bones of his entire body were shattered, but he was not severely injured under the protection of the poison of life and death. This was purely a trial of strength, the faulty punch held the supremacy over the entire world. Now that he had already rested for a while, he reminded Patu and the Lama loudly, there are still two more of them. The pangolin and the Lama gazed towards one another while giving each other a forced smile. If they were to clench their teeth in determination and collided the two Tibetan people into pieces, perhaps it was doable out of desperation but the two cultivators were already severely injured. Their old injuries had yet to fully heal. If they were to suffer new injuries, their next recuperation would take more than just a day and a half for a full restoration. The two continuously collided for three times, it could tell about the knack of the collision, so it spoke with slight puzzlement, it seemed that the Tibetan people were cast with the ancient legacy spell of Great Xia's Nine Tripod Cauldrons. They would never live long even if we were to disregard them these two cultivators did not even understand the purpose of this battle. They were only doing so because they saw that when Leong crashed forward and then crashed backward. That was why they roared and charged forward as well. However, after analyzing the situation, as long as the matter was not threatening its own or Wen Liang's life, Patu would not be willing to risk its life. On the other hand, the Lama did not care about this. The small town's Tibetan people were already subdued by the evil cultivator. The mission of the Lama's current trip was to eradicate them and that cunning evil cultivator. He suddenly clenched his teeth, his eyes widened into the size larger than bronze bells, he shouted akin to a Tibetan Buddhism sex wrathful deity, stop wasting your time talking nonsense, let us go again. 
It was at this exact moment, a sonorous and forceful voice echoed magnificently in midair, piercing into the depth of everyone's eardrums. Taoism Code. The Bullet Swords. Execute the Demon. This slightly hoarse voice sounded like the sounds of the nature that gladdened Wen Liang's heart and refreshed his mind. Wen Liang was both surprised and joyous as he jumped up and roared loudly, Lu Zheng. The sky above the snow peak suddenly darkened. Chapter 211 The thousands of swords hummed in unison, sounding like a raging roar. It was unknown how many of these long swords, which did not have a shine on their blades but was penetrating with sharpness and brutality all over its blades, rushed forward and covered the sky. The swords had already raided the snow peak in a flash. Above the snow peak, the final two Tibetans were running wildly and breaking the ice all the way. Countless humongous ice chunks were blasted and rolled everywhere. Under the blue sky, thousands of divine swords shook in rage accompanied by the shocking hum. The swords converged into a mighty torrent of steel akin to a divine dragon, which could agitate everyone's telegnosis ability and breath easily. Layers of light green-colored radiance circulated around the little supreme leader Lu Zheng, who was sitting cross-legged and floating three feet from the ground. His eyes were widened in rage his pupils were muddled and rippling with the sharp color of water. There were seventy-two Taoist priests with different body shapes and sizes following behind him. They built their formation based on the astrological position of the North Star in seventy-two blessed plots as they reinforced Lu Zheng to command the Kunlun's thousand swords. The dark cloud-like sword formation arrived in a flash. The humming sound of metal had already turned into a sharp roar of heaven's thunder. The sword formation divided into two streaks of thick and violent sword dragons under the guidance of Lu Zheng and stabbed towards the snow peak in a loud bang. The splattered ice and the shocking blood fountain were completely annihilated by the long sword's mighty torrent. The final two Tibetans did not even have the opportunity to scream out in agony before they were pulverized by the Kunlun sect's exceedingly magnificent sword formation. The corpses splattered everywhere covering an area of a few kilometers in circumference. As compared to the Great Battle of the Weeping Buddha on Nine Peaks Mountain and the laborious Battle of the Soldiers of the Netherland and Ning Jiao in the Painting Town, the power of the Kunlun's Thousand Swords greeting formation had been enhanced by many folds. The giant Pangolin and Rangyong met Wen Leong and were about to leap forward as the human figures before their eyes swayed abruptly. The group of Kunlun sect's master cultivators had already jumped down to the bottom of the ice fissure. Lu Zheng was about to speak when he suddenly realized that the densely arranged people in the ice walls were the disciples of his sect. His slightly relaxed expression suddenly turned cold and stern again. The seventy-two disciples behind Lu Zheng almost squalled in unison. They lifted their flying swords and were about to break the ice to salvage their fellow disciples. Wen Leong hastily shouted loudly to stop them. Lu Zheng could tell that there was something peculiar about the disciples in the ice walls. His gaze was icy cold and he glared at Hua Xiaoyao, who was standing next to Wen Leong, is this your sorcery's trick? A group of white-robed youths behind Hua Xiaoyao whistled together and abruptly vanished into the ice walls. The Kunlun disciples shouted in rage once again and their flying swords hummed. The two parties were about to attack each other really soon again. Wen Leong hastily jumped in between the two parties. He explained about the firecracker's temperament and the sequence of events to Lu Zheng. As he was explaining, he peered at Fei Fei once. Fei Fei was listening to the cell phone's voice recording earlier. She nodded to Wen Leong lightly at this point, signaling that Hua Xiaoyao was telling the truth. Wen Leong exhaled a long breath and finally nodded to Lu Zheng solemnly. I vouch for the Hua family. The Kunlun disciples are safe and sound. The white-robed youth Hua Xiaoyao complimented in an icy cold tone, they are also safe and sound in the future. It will take at least three years, at most five years. Then, I will return you these thousand Kunlun disciples with the embodiment of true water. Upon saying that, he paused for a moment and continued, If you do not trust me, after the matter on hand is solved, I will stay with you and you can exchange my life with the Kunlun disciples in the future. Both the Kunlun sect or Wen Liang's group entered the snow mountain with the sole purpose of looking for the Tibetans. They had no intention to make the Hua family an enemy. Even though Hua Xiaoyao, who was the youth disciples' leader, 
had yet to achieve mastery in his cultivation method, his courage and resourcefulness were portrayed differently from others. The formidable force of the supernatural power launched by Lu Zheng earlier was shocking. Hua Xiaoyao was afraid that the firecrackers would cause a strong enemy for the family that was why he immediately followed when Leong instated his stand for the Kunlun disciples. There are almost a thousand Kunlun disciples, are you alone worthy of the exchange? Lu Zheng was initially a happy-go-lucky and warm-tempered person but after his master teacher's sect went through drastic changes, his temperament became much more desolated and tyrannical. He no longer sounded as virtuous and sincere as he was before. However, upon saying this, he no longer continued to rebuke but waved his hand and commanded the disciples behind him to retract their flying swords. He had trusted Hua Xiaoyao's words. When Lu Zheng turned around and looked at Wen Leong, his gaze appeared slightly warmer than before. His tone of speaking became slightly gentler, in the ice fissure of the southern slope, we found a dozen Kunlun disciples' corpses. Was it you who buried them? Wen Leong blushed and nodded dimly. Lu Zheng possessed a rather intelligent mind. After he learned about the habits and characteristics of the firecrackers, he could roughly make a guess of the dozen disciples' cause of death. He shook his head slowly at Wen Leong, it is difficult to avoid even if I were in your place. This enmity is not related to you. As he was saying that his tone of speaking turned savage again. On his shriveled and emancipated face, countless raging wrinkles engraved in his bones and printed on his heart appeared swiftly. It was at this point, Gu Xiaojun laughed dryly. He helped Wen Leong to divert the topic. He pointed to Lu Zheng and the group of Kunlun elder disciples behind his back, so all of you were not in the campsite. What happened? Lu Zheng smiled, the raging wrinkles on his face faded quietly. The Kunlun sect entered the Tangula Mountains in order to pursue the Tibetans. A dozen of smaller troops were separated from the large battalion that was led by capable and experienced disciples. They were in charge of warning, garrison and pathfinding duties. After they circled around the Tangula Mountains for a few times, they did not manage to locate the Tibetans. Hence, they made their way until the snow peak and were exhausted. Lu Zheng issued the command to set up a campsite and recuperate. However, there were a few smaller troops that had yet to return and had lost contact with the main troop. Lu Zheng led his disciples and cast a domineering prohibition spell over their campsite, he speculated that even if the enemies were to sneak an attack on the campsite, they could hold up for a while. After that, he left with the Kunlun 72 esteemed sword seniors to search for the disappeared disciples. Lu Zheng inhaled a long and deep breath. He spoke in a lowered voice, before the master teacher passed away, I once promised his grand old man that I would defend the Kunlun sect's foundation of thousands of years. Every single one of the Kunlun disciples is my life. There were a total of five troops that made up about almost a hundred Kunlun disciples that had disappeared. Lu Zheng only managed to locate one of the troops at the end, which was the Taoist priests that were buried underneath the ice fissure by Wen Leong. As for the others, perhaps they were assassinated by the Tibetans, perhaps they were pounced by the bugs and had entered the depth of the ice sheet. Wen Leong and the rest were taking a detour to the pyramidal peak to seek for Ji Song, that was why they were on different paths with Lu Zheng and the Kunlun disciples. At this point, Lu Zheng suddenly diverted the topic, he turned around and looked towards Wen Leong. Do you still remember that I have mentioned that before my master teacher and his brother passed away, the master teacher passed down his remaining life vitality force to me and the Kunlun disciples? On the other hand, the master teacher's brother Tian Hua used his body to nourish the swords. He entered the Kunlun swords with his body. Wen Leong and the rest did not speak but nodded. The so called nourishing sword, in simpler words, meant that he passed down his life vitality force to the Kunlun's thousand of swords, such that the sword formation's formidable power was enhanced vastly. Just as Lu Zheng was searching for the missing disciples' whereabouts, he suddenly sensed that the Kunlun sword formation was about to achieve successful completion. Lu Zheng dared not take rash actions. Along with the 72 esteemed sword seniors, they guarded their state of mind. They held their breaths and concentrated on sensing the sword formation's life vitality. This was the miraculous part of the Kunlun's magic, which Lu Zheng did not explain specifically. After all, it was just another process of a sword formation being reborn then recognized its master. 
The Kunlun Mountains and the Tangula Mountains were albeit hundreds of kilometers away, the spirit primordial energy could break through the space and was utterly not confined to the limits of distance. When the prohibition spell was triggered on the snow peak, the group of Kunlun master cultivators meditated to feel the sword formation's life vitality. They entered a state of nirvana and did not notice the anomaly that happened on the snow peak. It was until daybreak, the sword formation was only considered officially achieved successful completion and became even more domineering and incisive. Lu Zheng and the rest did not procrastinate. They rushed back to the campsite and discovered that something bad happened. They immediately tracked and searched all the way and finally caught up to the final two Tibetans who were cast with the magic spell, Great Xia's Nine Tripod Cauldron. Lu Zheng did not even consider before he launched the recently nourished sword formation. Not only he intended to slaughter the enemy, he was also trying out the formidable power of the Kunlun Thousand Swords that had recently arisen from Nirvana. After he explained, Lu Zheng coughed lightly for a few times, the master teacher's brother Tian Hua sacrificed his dharma body and finally refined himself into this set of Kunlun sword formation. When Leong heaved a sigh. He stretched out his hand and patted Lu Zheng's shoulder, who was the wicked person that killed two sword immortals. Lu Zheng's gaze lowered. He was not looking at anyone, his voice sounded slightly nonchalant and desolated, the enmity of the Black and White Island and the Kunlun sect will not be avenged by the others. We will do this ourselves. There is no need for you to inquire anymore. At this point, Fei Fei, who was brooding in silence at the side, suddenly spoke, was it the enlightened person Tian Yin? Lu Zheng's expression remained rigid, no one could read his true thoughts regardless. Nevertheless, he could not escape Fei Fei's observation. Every single change in Lu Zhang's expression would be reflected on his face, which would fall into Fei Fei's eyes. Her voice sounded icy cold yet crisp. Her determination was as sharp as a blade that could cut through metal and jade, shattering every Kunlun disciple's desolation. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng suddenly raised his head. His eyes stared straight into Fei Fei. There was no hatred, threat and even less stern murder intent in his gaze, it was only akin to the waveless dead water that was about to freeze that was so hard it suffocated those he looked at. Xiao Sha immediately took a step forward. He blocked his sister behind him, he was afraid the Kunlun disciples would turn violent and revolted. Fei Fei pulled her little brother. She refused to give any impression of her weakness as she glared back at Lu Zheng, the three enlightened persons of the Black and White Island lived solitarily and guarded the heaven. They contributed boundless charitable and pious deeds to the living creatures and the world. The three enlightened persons of Tian Shu, Tian Hua, and Tian Yin are just as described. Every one of them lived up to clear conscience. If you are to hide the truth, you have just looked down on them. Lu Zheng's gaze jolted. The gush of lifeless determination scattered slightly. Fei Fei paused for a moment. She sounded much more gentle this time as she spoke of an awkward sounding sentence, the enlightened person Tian Yin is no longer the enlightened person Tian Yin, you ought to understand this point. That malicious and tyrannical bugger you know now, he does not deserve to be addressed as Tian Yin. I am no one but a common people, I cannot be of help to you, I can only hope that all of you work together as a team, as she was saying that she stretched out her hand and pointed to the both of Wen Leong and Lu Zheng. And kill that bugger, only then you can calmly dream of Tian Yin's gallant soul smiles in satisfaction in the netherworld. It was unknown since when two rows of slightly murky tears rolled down from Lu Zheng's eyes. His Adam's apple was trembling. Continuously giving out the muffled sound of clicking in his throat as if a gush of thousand-year-old sulkiness that had already spiraled and entangled around his heart was trying to struggle free from its shackles strenuously and was attempting to surge to the outside. Finally, that gush of sorrow that consumed Lu Zheng turned into a series of bitter howls that tore through metal and stone and gushed out of Lu Zheng's mouth. The seventy-two Kunlun disciples behind him followed their supreme leader's bitter howl as they burst into loud wails together. Every single esteemed sword seniors were older than a hundred years. Gray hair covered their heads, yet they were behaving like children that had recently lost a relative right now. They wailed and thumped on their chests and stomped their feet in deep sorrow as they cried in grievance until all that was left were themselves. Anger, hatred, heartache, sorrow. 
This was the most bitter and forlorn howl in the world that echoed through the entire snow peak in a flash. When Leon wiped away the moisture on the corners of his eyes. He nodded towards Fei Fei earnestly to signal that he understood that Fei Fei had already examined Lu Zheng's expression and that he understood who was the real assassin here. Lu Zheng refused to mention this matter from the beginning to the end, he regarded this matter as the humiliation of the Black and White Island and Kunlun sect that could never be erased. Fei Fei's words felt as though nectar was pouring down on them and tranquilizing their souls, that softened Lu Zheng's heart. The enlightened person Tian Yin had committed mass tyranny yet it was unrelated to himself. The three sword immortals, who were the solitary heaven guardian of the black and white island, would forever bear four words on their face. Not to be disgraced. The bawling and howling did not stop for a long time. Only after a long while, the little supreme leader gradually stopped howling. Tears covered his entire face, his expression remained mournful as before but his gaze was already glowing in the long-lost liveliness and exuberance. He did not wait for Wen Leong to inquire closely and he started revealing the truth of how the two enlightened persons Tian Shu and Tian Hua were murdered. The three sword immortals of the Black and White Island cultivated in a very special cultivation method. Their progress was always much slower than the other sects but they were granted the lifespan of thousands of years. Even though their progress was slow, they cultivated for years and years until their cultivation power was high enough to look down on the world. Two thousand years ago, they pursued the demon cat Chang Li out of rage, they gathered the master cultivators of great sects and engaged in a heaven-shocking battle with the Grand Master Tua Xia and Chang Li. The three sword immortals were injured and they returned to the Black and White Island. At this time, when Leung gestured and interrupted Lu Zheng, not long after the event, our Grand Master Tua Xia traveled a great distance to the Black and White Island. He attempted to explain the matter that involved Xiang Lu's evil soul to the enlightened person Tian Yin. Lu Zheng's expression was obviously astonished, Tua Xia once came to the Black and White Island. Following that he gave a forced laugh and shook his head, about this matter, the Great Master and his brother were uninformed of this. Otherwise, how would they spend two thousand years and exerted all their efforts in searching for Xiang Lu's evil soul? It is best for you to continue to listen to my story. Amongst the three enlightened persons' cultivation power, the eldest brother disciple Tian Yin was the strongest. After the violent battle two thousand years ago, they were all injured rather severely but Tian Yin was in the best condition. After they returned to the Black and White Island, the two persons of Tian Shu and Tian Hua immediately engaged in closed-door cultivation and recuperated. Tian Yin did not seem to be injured severely, that was why he did not need to engage in closed-door cultivation. When Leung nodded, he understood that when the Grand Master Tua Xia traveled to the Black and White Island. He arrived just in time when the other two persons were engaging in closed-door cultivation, that was why he revealed about Lu Luo and Mi Su's doings entirely to the enlightened person Tian Yin. In addition to that, he stripped away his witchcraft power and inserted the witchcraft power into the jade talisman then passed it to the enlightened person Tian Yin and requested Tian Yin to help him in passing on the jade talisman to his disciples' descendants on behalf of himself. The enlightened person Tian Yin was the sword immortal that was the pick of the generation. His way of conduct was naturally dependable. Moreover, these two parties were albeit tied with profound enmity, their goal at that moment was the same. They wanted to figure out every possible way to suppress the nine-headed monster. The Grand Master Tua Xia then left the Black and White Island and disappeared without a trace. However, whatever he was doing, it was mostly related to Xiang Lu. After a period of time, Tian Shu and Tian Hua's health was completely restored but by the time they left the closed-door cultivation. They discovered in astonishment that the enlightened person Tian Yin who was initially injured the least was already on the verge of death. According to Tian Yin's personal statement, he suffered hidden injuries from that battle that even he failed to realize that himself, his life vitality was scattered and he was about to die from the reversed blood flow into his heart. The little supreme leader heaved a sigh, he shook his head gently, actually, at that time, the master teacher Uncle Tian Yin was already behaving oddly but the master teacher and the master teacher's brother did not notice that. The rest of the two enlightened persons realized that their brother disciple was dying soon. 
They did not hesitate as they transferred the cultivation power from their body into Tian Yin's body, helping him to protect the life vitality that would heal his heart meridian. Following that, Tian Yin engaged in closed-door cultivation and started using the turtle breathing Qigong to heal his injuries. Tian Shu and Tian Hua almost exhausted their life vitality this time. They were only completely healed after over a hundred years. They started searching for the escaped Xiang Lu's evil soul everywhere while simultaneously setting up the Kunlun sect to help them to walk amongst the mortal world. The Kunlun sect was albeit originated from the Black and White Island, their cultivation method was widely different from the Black and White Islands. Of course, the enlightened person Tian Shu would not train his disciples the same way he did, he could not let his disciples spend thousands of years to slowly build their foundation establishment. At this point, Lu Zheng suddenly gestured the word Nine to the people behind his back. Nine of the Kunlun esteemed sword seniors behind him immediately stepped forward, they stood side by side before Wen Leong and the rest. Lu Zheng pointed to the nine esteemed sword seniors, he diverted the topic, these nine persons are the brothers that suckled on the same breast and their thinking are the same. When Leung's face was filled with astonishment for the nine Taoist priests before his eyes came in different shapes and sizes. They did not appear similar to each other at all. Let alone calling them the nine brothers, no one would believe them even if they were from nine different species. Lu Jing noticed when Leung's puzzled expression, he gave a rarely seen laugh, I am only giving you an example. Of course, these nine seniors are not blood brothers. The Kunlun esteemed sword seniors were the senior disciples. Even though Lu Zheng was the supreme leader, his tone of speaking was still unusually respectful toward them. However, if these nine persons were to collaborate and launched a magic spell that was exceedingly complicated or combined their powers to operate an extremely precise instrument, it would never be enough just by depending on their empathy to one another. Lu Zheng's words were truly baffling, but no one interrupted him. Everyone listened to him attentively as he continued, they would still need a conductor, a conductor that was capable of exercising control over the entire scene. Upon saying that, when Leon gave out a woe, his face was filled with disbelief, he hesitated as he asked, so you are talking about Xiang Lu. When Leon's final two words were spoken through his clenched teeth. Lu Zheng's expression was solemn all along. He nodded earnestly, that is right, I am talking about Xiang Lu, the nine-headed Xiang Lu. The giant pangolin was clearly confused from listening to Lu Zheng as if it was enshrouded in mist. It could no longer restrain itself anymore as it swung its tail in rage, speak straight to the point. Is it fun to talk about something in riddles? Everybody else did not speak. Only Guo Huan who cursed in an icy cold manner, the idiot that is foolish to the greatest extent. You cultivated for thousands of years in vain yet you cannot even understand this. He is telling you that Xiang Lu has nine head, but ten souls. At the sound of a muffled thud, the pangolin's huge tail slammed onto the ground. Even the black and white island swords immortals were unaware of this. There was one evil soul in each of Xiang Lu's nine heads but no one could have expected that, inside Xiang Lu's body, there was one more soul. Xiao Sha chuckled. His eyes were already squinted until almost disappearing, Xiang Lu's souls are truly worthless. Lu Zheng curled the corners of his lips slightly and gave a forced smile, Xiang Lu had nine heads and ten souls. The nine souls are separately used to control each head, while the soul in its body is the true soul that is exercising control. Old Gu, Fei Fei, Wen Leong, Rang Yong and the rest stood gazing at one another. They could already make a faint guess of the enlightened person's encounter. It was most likely related to the true soul of Xiang Lu. As expected, Lu Zheng continued to speak, none of us would have thought that when Chang Li crushed the water element heaven's cone nail. The soul that seized the opportunity to escape out its body was more than just the evil soul in that particular head. Even the true soul had escaped. The escape of the evil soul in that head had caused an unknown amount of disturbances in the past two thousand years. Xiang Lu's true soul that was obviously stronger also emerged. Wen Liang's face flushed scarlet out of embarrassment. It was all because of his grand master Chang Li who did something at the spur of a moment, that resulted in all these events. Lu Zheng's eyes squinted in a manner that was not easily noticed as if he had seen through Wen Liang's thoughts. He spoke dully, 
how many innocent lives had been involved due to the malicious disturbances that occurred in the past 2,000 years. The Kunlun sect would seek justice from the fairy maiden Chongli sooner or later. When Liang's heart was suffocating with discomfort as he looked around at the Kunlun sect, the Jade Knife Guohuan, Patu's Chilian immortal sect, the obscure cultivator Hua family before his eyes. The Ayang sect of the Five Blessings, the demon sects that were exterminated 2,000 years ago, even their three families of one, Miao, Luo. Everyone's misfortune, which followed along a sharp noise that was heard 2,000 years ago, befell on them when the heaven's cone nail was crushed. The vision that suddenly floated before his eyes was of the first time he met Changli on the Zhanyan peak back then, the way she smiled sweetly when she said, if you want to charge, you must charge with a disaster. Due to the spur of a moment, malicious disturbances happened in the world. Fei Fei noticed that when Liang's expression. She stretched out her cold little hands, and lightly massaged his temples for a few times. The head Lama Ranyong was also aware of the process of the events, he suddenly spoke to Wen Liang, free your heart and free your character. There is no need to be concerned about so many things. When Liang was jolted awake, he frowned as he pondered attentively. Then, he suddenly spoke and burst out laughing, the Grand Master came forward for Chongli, he had already borne the matter. The descendants of Tuasya should naturally follow the Grand Master's lead. When all the Masters look for the Grand Master Chongli for revenge in the future, you will still need to overcome me first. The head Lama Rangyong gave out an oh that was filled with astonishment. His eyes widened into the size larger than bronze bells, as he looked towards Wen Leong, the Lama did not mean that what the Lama meant to say was the past and the history is unrelated to you. Ever since when Leong continuously learned about the terrible disasters that were caused by Changli 2000 years ago and all types of disturbances that came along with that, there was always a knot in his heart. There were truly too many innocent lives that were involved. Many of his close comrades by his side were actually deadly enemies of Tua Xia and Chang Li He could finally see the light at this moment, what was the thousands years enmity, who was right and who was wrong he patted on his shoulders loudly. He had decided to bear the resentment and let things be. The people with the surname Wen had always helped their relatives but never helped the cause. Wen Leong continued to laugh aloud. He was like a small man entrusted with greatness that was beaming with joy, whether all of you are refining in cultivation or refining in treasured weapons, no one is stopping all of you. If you think that you have the ability to seek revenge, come and kill the one family first before facing my family's Grand Master Changli. By the time Xiang Lu's matter is solved, all of you that come looking for me and have a drink with me, remember to bring along some scrumptious dishes. Those that intend to seek revenge, do not forget to bring your knives. Everyone is welcomed. The Hua family's white-robed disciples had already bored out of the ice walls by now and were gathering around Hua Xiaoyao. They did not know about the past, so they did not understand what was going on. A group of master cultivators that were still bound by a common hatred for the enemy earlier discussed and somehow turned into the discussion of drinking and revenge. The white-robed disciples looked at Hua Xiaoyao strenuously, trying to understand the situation. They wanted to know once they started fighting, whose side should the Hua family help. Tudatunt did not understand Mandarin but he could sense the gradually thickening heat, which was leading up to a fight. He jumped up and stood behind Wen Leong and bared his teeth loyally towards a group of Kunlun disciples. Lu Zheng was red with rage. He stared at Wen Leong coldly for a long while. On his face that was already indescribably thin and pallid, a sincere smile that could only be derived from his moral nature bloomed. Even though the smile was not accompanied by laughter, his sonorous tone of speaking gave full expression to his heroic mannerism. Very well, when the matter of nine-headed Xiang Lu is solved, Lu Zheng will come looking for you to have a drink and revenge. Pe Tu slammed its huge tail. It was laughing aloud as well, our Chilean immortal sect will have a drink first, then then discuss later. The moment it thought of the agony of being plucked off its entire body scales, its heroic spirit that had just surged from its great toes directly to its skull, bored back into his bone gaps and hid. Wen Leong and Lu Zheng gazed at one another and laughed. Their top priority at the moment was to execute the evil cultivator, to suppress Xiang Lu once again. As for the future matters, whether it was the act of having a drink or revenge, they were too lazy to care about it now. 
Within the two young men's laughter, Guo Huan's rigid voice echoed back and forth in between the ice walls, do not forget that the person who shattered the heaven's cone nail, included me, the mountain ghost's portion of power. What an honor for Guo Huan to have the ability to cause this unprecedented calamity. What an honor to have the ability to cause an unprecedented calamity. The ability to become the world's enemy, just for the passion of a man and a woman's love coldly neglecting every single person in the world, just to warm the woman in his heart. That was Tuo Xie's real temperament. The ability to bear patiently for two thousand years just for an entrustment that tore their time and age into pieces. That was the heroic spirit of the two marvels Lu Luo and Mi Su. Heroic spirit, real temperament, honor, Chang Li, Tuo Xie, Lu Luo, Mi Su, the four persons each gave a slap, slapping the world with thousands of years of malicious disturbances. Chapter 212 the sound of laughter and squalling overlapped, continuously echoed in between the ice walls. A white-robed youth lightly poked his leader, Xiaoyao, what are they so happy about? Hua Xiaoyao stared in bewilderment at Wen Leong, Lu Zheng, the giant pangolin and the others. He muttered to himself, they are all f***ing crazy. The laughter suddenly vanished. They turned around abruptly. Their gloomy and ghastly gaze stared straight at the white-robed youth. Hua Xiaoyao's heart thudded loudly. His gaze was distracted as he backed away for two steps. Just as he was about to give a forced laugh and explain, the group of madmen started laughing wildly and loudly again. They stretched out their hands and pointed at him. They laughed so hard their tears were splattering. They laughed so hard that their saliva was flowing they laughed so hard they were tumbling to the right and left as if they were watching the most interesting event in the world. Tudatunt did not understand the reason. He stretched out his hand and pointed to the white-robed youth and followed Wen Leong as he giggled foolishly. Xiao Sha elbowed Fei Fei and asked softly, what is going on with them? Fei Fei surprisingly heaved a sigh in the midst of her smile. She said something baffling, let them laugh, they have been suppressing themselves for too long. Their laughter is like crying. After a long while, their laughter stopped. After the wild laugh, everyone's face was filled with lethargy. When Leong made a hand gesture towards Lu Zheng, continue, tell us about Xiang Lu's nine heads and ten souls. When the heaven's cone nail was crushed, the true soul that had escaped as well. Lu Zheng dried the tears in the corners of his eyes from the laughter, he continued to tell the story. Chang Li, Guo Huan and the solitary heaven guardian sword immortals they fought into a ball of mess in the black and white island. The three enlightened persons of the Tian generation thought that Guo Huan and Chang Li were accomplices in the beginning. Needless to say, the battle was chaotic. The evil soul within the snake's head seized the opportunity during the chaos to flee the black and white island and finally escaped to the mortal world and seized San Wei's body from the Yang sect. On the other hand, the true soul did not seize the opportunity to run away in the chaos but hid within the enlightened person Tian Yin's body secretly and soundlessly. Of course, this true soul was no creature of the mortal world. Even the enlightened person Tian Yin did not notice it. Guo Huan was one of the main characters in the chaos of Black and White Island. When it heard of this part of the story, it could not help but to give out a, he, I did not expect that the primitive monster's true soul was by my side, the old father is lucky not to be possessed by the soul. Lu Jing shook his head, Xiang Lu's true soul fled in order to save its true body. Naturally, it would need to possess someone that was beyond familiar to the Black and White Island, for example, the three sword immortals' bodies that were permanently residing there. Even if you and Chang Li were brutal and tyrannical in your demon power, it would never choose you. Amongst the three of them, the master teacher Uncle Tian Yin had the most profound cultivation base, that was why the true soul secretly bore into his grand old man's body. At this point, Fei Fei suddenly interrupted, Hold on. There is one more thing that I do not understand. These matters were the mysteries of two thousand years ago, I am certain that the two enlightened persons Tian Shu and Tian Hua were unaware of the situation. How did you find out then? After Xiang Lu's true soul took control of the immortal senior Tian Yin, did he sit down and tell you everything? Being meticulous, Fei Fei could tell that Lu Zheng was speaking the truth. However, theoretically speaking, 
before the successful hunt of Xian Lu's true soul, there was no way the others could find out about these matters. Hence, she questioned Lu Zheng. Lu Zheng continued to shake his head, I will explain later when I tell you about the part where my esteemed master teacher and master teacher's brother were killed. If I were to talk about that now, it will only create more queries. When Leon seized the opportunity and hastily inquired. If the true soul attached itself to the enlightened person Tian Yin's body so that he could look for the opportunity to crush the other heaven's cone nails, Xiang Lu should have been able to escape. Why did it wait for such a long period of time of two thousand years? The puzzlement caused by being pestered beyond endurance appeared on Lu Zhang's face. First, it was Fei Fei's shocking words right to his face, then it was Wen Leong who laughed wildly to vent the frustration in his heart. The frost that had recently frozen Lu Zhang's face had already melted away. His expression gradually turned normal, Xian Lu's true soul did not know that the three seniors received the entrustment to protect the great formation of heaven's cone nails. Their bodies were laid with a seal, such that no matter how much they exerted their powers, they would never cause any harm to the great formation. In the eyes of the black and white island, the three of them were like the air, yet in the eyes of an outside enemy, they were the divine swords that executed the demon. When Leong was suddenly enlightened. It turned out the three sword immortals from the Tian generation had no way they could destroy a grass or a tree on the black and white island. Lu Jing seemed to be afraid that Wen Leong might ask again. As when Leong lowered his head to ponder, Lu Jing hastily spoke faster and continued the story. After the three sword immortals attack, Guo Hua squalled as he fought and explained while Chang Li continuously attempted to disturb their vision and hearing on the side. Xiang Lu's true soul understood that these two demons would not stay long on the black and white island, which was why it chose Tian Yin. However, Tian Yin's cultivation base was rather remarkable. His primordial soul was under the secure protection of his life vitality. If Xiang Lu's true soul were to completely exercise control over his body, it would still need to go through a process. If the true soul were to revolt immediately, the other two enlightened persons would certainly notice. That was why even after the three enlightened persons chased Chang Li from the Black and White Island until the violent battle with Tua Xie and returned to the Black and White Island again, the enlightened person Tian Yin was still himself. Xiang Lu's true soul was only lurking in his body secretly and did not make any move then. It was until after they returned to the Black and White Island, when the two sword immortals Tian Shu and Tian Hua were engaged in closed-door cultivation to recuperate their injuries. The true soul seized the opportunity to launch its attack and seized Tian Yin's body. When your family's Grand Master Tua Xie rushed over to the Black and White Island to explain to us about pursuing and killing the evil soul, if the timing was properly calculated, Tian Yin had already turned into Xiang Lu's true soul. That was why no one knew anything about Tua Xie's visit to the Black and White Island, Lu Zheng paused for a moment before continuing, only the true soul knew about Tua Xie's whereabouts. When Leung nodded, you mentioned about the three sword immortals earlier. Before he could finish his sentence, Lu Zheng, who was startled, hastily waved his hands to stop Wen Leung, Big Brother Wen, will you please at least wait for me to finish the story before you ask any more questions. When Leung burst out laughing, Big Brother Wen is the name used to address my family's first uncle. As he was saying that he made the hand gesture of please continue to Lu Zheng and no longer asked any further questions. Even though one of the heaven's cone nails was crushed, its magic power still existed. The heaven's cone nail was capable of suppressing Xiang Lu for a period of time. Similarly, it was also because the great formation's survival, Xiang Lu's true soul had fled. Before the rest of the eight heaven's cone nails were completely shattered, before Xiang Lu's flesh body was freed, there was no way the true soul could bore back into the body. After Xiang Lu's true soul took possession of the enlightened person Tian Yin's body, it had only realized that its calculations based on wishful thinking did not fall through. Tian Yin's body was utterly useless in causing any damage on the Black and White Island. Xiang Lu's true soul was pinned down by the heaven's cone nail for many millenniums and megananums, it was extremely weak and fragile. When it forcefully occupied Tian Yin's body once again, its primordial vitality was even more gravely injured, it was temporarily too weak to search for a new host. 
when the two enlightened persons of Tian Shu and Tian Hua left the closed door cultivation. Xiang Lu's true soul did not attack or kill them but it was deliberately counting on seizing the two persons' vitality power before it killed them, only then it pretended to be severely injured. The other two sword immortals did not expect the scheme, they exerted their lifetime's cultivation base in order to save their brother disciple. Xiang Lu's true soul was supposed to already prevail its trickery, yet as a result, it did not expect that its scheme was inferior to those made by heaven, its plan failed again. The Three Sword Immortals cultivation method was passed down from one direct line of succession. They could inject their powers to one another. Moreover, there was one more special feature about their cultivation, which was the life vitality that was injected into the body would first pass through the primordial spirit. Xian Lu's true soul could not be completely swallowed by Tian Yin's primordial spirit at the time. It was true that it tricked Tian Shu and Tian Hua into giving it their life vitality force but as a result, it helped Tian Yin's primordial soul that had just been suppressed earlier to grow stronger. He almost managed to seize back his body. This form of unseen battle was equal to the spiritual power from the same source but was used by different souls in a chaotic fight. Xiang Lu's true soul seized the opportunity when the other two persons had yet to discover the truth and hastily forced the body into engaging in closed-door cultivation. From then on, it went into reclusion in the Black and White Island for the period of 2000 years. Ever since then, the two enlightened persons Tian Shu and Tian Hua never see Tian Yin. The initial plan of Xiang Lu's true soul was to attach itself to Tian Yin's body and destroy the remaining heaven's cone nail while releasing its flesh body. Then, it would flee back to its original body, this way it could spare a lot of its strength and effort. At this point, Lu Jing suddenly laughed. This true soul was the leader of the rest of the nine souls, it was as intelligent as the heaven. The true soul did not expect that its seemingly clever doings turned out to be a foolish one instead. The enlightened person Tian Yin's body could not cause any harm towards the great formation of heaven's cone nails. The true soul watched helplessly as the chains that were binding its flesh body was well within its reach yet it had no way to reach it. It wanted to return but it could not. While one of the nine evil souls escaped, the remaining eight souls acted on its free will. Without the true soul's control, the act of struggling produced half the results with double the effort, that was why it took 2000 years. The remaining eight heavens cone nails were albeit shaky and unsteady, the nails were still suppressing the true body of the nine-headed monster. If the true soul did not act on the strength of its own imagined cleverness and were to stay in its flesh body and conducted the rest of the eight evil souls to cooperate effectively. It was afraid that Xian Lu would have already returned to the mortal world a few hundred years ago. Not only that, the process of the true soul controlling the enlightened person Tian Yin's body was apparently full of twists and turns. The enlightened person Tian Yin's cultivation base of refining his soul to nourish his energy was extremely profound. In addition to his two junior brother disciples' unintentional assistance, he would not be so easily subdued. The enlightened person Tian Yin's body was inhabited by two souls, one was a primitive great demon that was created at the same time as the heaven, while the other was the sword immortal of the generation with profound cultivation base. Even though Xiang Lu gradually occupied the absolute advantage point in the battle, Tian Yin depended on its home advantage to hide and conceal himself. His power gradually grew weaker but he was not completely swallowed by Xiang Lu's true soul. Every once in a while, Tian Yin would jump out to create disturbances, just like a sting that was pricked into the lion's paw, he was piteously minute but his effect was enormous. This was also the reason why Xian Lu's true soul had no way to make trouble in the past 2000 years. When Fei Fei heard of this, her expression was stunned, so you are saying that the enlightened person Tian Yin is still alive? Lu Zheng did not acknowledge Fei Fei's question but he diverted away from the climax of the conversation and refocused the topic back to the recent incident. In order to pursue that escaped Xian Lu's evil soul, the master teacher and the master teacher's brother Tian Hua were injured in Shanghai. When Leon could not help but nod, he had already known the entire course of how the two enlightened persons were wounded. They were injured in the hands of their Tuasye's descendants. Tian Shu and Tian Hua were severely injured, by the time the enlightened person Tian Hua regained consciousness, the both of them returned to the Black and White Island to recuperate. 
what was unexpected to the both of them was, their senior brother disciple, that was engaged in closed-door cultivation for two thousand years had surprisingly come out. What surprised them even more, their senior brother disciple launched a sudden attack on them viciously, he completely severed their chance of revival at one strike. Even though Tian Xu and Tian Hua were suffering from fatal injuries, their cultivation base instinctively counterattacked on the verge of death and struck Tian Yin. The three sword immortals of Black and White Island originated from the same source. Their cultivation method had a special feature, the two junior brother disciples' counterattack helped Tian Yin's soul to become stronger. Tian Yin and Xiang Lu were inhabiting in one body but Tian Yin was completely aware of the events. He turned mad from extreme rage, in addition to the help of his two junior brother disciples' life vitality force, he released his life vitality force entirely and surprisingly pinned down Xiang Lu. For a short period of time, Tian Yin's body returned to its real master's control. The enlightened person Tian Xu and Tian Hua were severely injured and it was certain that they would die but because of their profound cultivation base, they managed to hold on for a little while longer. The three solitary heaven guardian sword immortals of the Black and White Island finally reunited again after two thousand years, yet it was the last time they saw each other after they parted in life and would soon be separated by death. The enlightened person Tian Yin utilized the time he had to explain the rough idea of the course of events. Both Tian Shu and Tian Hua dragged along their remaining bodies and escaped the Black and White Island. They passed down the truth to the little supreme leader Lu Zheng. Then, one of them passed down his power to the disciples of his sect, while the other was buried in death and used his spirit to nourish the swords. As Tian Yin's primordial spirit released its spirit primordial energy, his soul was dispersed not long after his two junior brother disciples returned to the Kunlun Mountains and his body was entirely seized by Xiang Lu's true soul as well. Due to pressing times for the three enlightened persons of the Black and White Island, Tian Yin did not manage to mention that Tua Xia once came to the Black and White Island. When Leong felt very oppressed upon hearing that, he suddenly squalled and somersaulted as he stood up and punched heavily into the ground. Huge chunks of crystal ores were shattered and rolled around. A few firecrackers bored out of the white-robed youth's sleeves joyously. The firecrackers grasped onto the ore and started chewing happily, You've got me, was much more sensible this time, it did not move nor oilated, pretending that it was not around. In order to prevent Tian Yin's primordial spirit from counterattacking, even though Xian Lu managed to exercise control over Tian Yin's body for the past two thousand years. It dared not oppose the master cultivators all along, it was even more afraid to harm the two enlightened persons Tian Shu and Tian Hua. Hence, it seized the opportunity when the both of them were severely injured this time to launch an attack, even so Tian Yin still managed to take control of his body temporarily. Master Rangyong chanted a phrase of unknown Tibetan Buddhism sex mantra softly that seemed to be some form of incantation used for releasing the gallant soul from purgatory upon one's peaceful passing. After he was done chanting, he heaved a sigh and spoke, when Sir Tua Xie first arrived at the island, if he were to meet the enlightened person Tian Shu or Tian Hua, the both of them would never be killed. When Leong was feeling rather uncomfortable initially for Tian Shu and Tian Hua were both injured in the hands of the both of Hanba and Demon Cat. If they were never injured, the true soul would never dare to launch an attack that added to their injuries, but the head lama's words immediately enlightened him. When Tuasya visited the Black and White Island, his sole purpose was to clarify the situation with the two brother disciples in restoring the great formation of heaven's cone nails and trapping Xiang Lu's evil soul. If Tian Shu and Tian Hua were aware of Tuasya's plan, then they would not be fighting with the zombie or demon cat, naturally, they would not be injured, or even killed. However, in the final analysis of the matter, it was still caused by Changli who crushed the heaven's cone nail, the descendant of Tuasye's sect could never justify that and did not plan to justify. If the group were to be alive after they dealt with the nine-headed monster, they could set the past enmity in order later on. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng was finally done telling the course of events, this was not an overly complicated matter. It was only due to the involvement of Black and White Island's cultivation method and some unknown abstract concept of the true soul. 
It sounded slightly ambiguous but if one were to put it in simpler words, there was only a phrase in reality, the enlightened person Tian Yin's body was possessed by Xiang Lu and he killed both Tian Xu and Tian Hua. A smile filled with kindness was hanging on Fei Fei's face, I do not understand. It was truly admirable that the enlightened person Tian Yin had been fighting laboriously with Xiang Lu for the past 2000 years, but why are you why are you constantly haunted by a gush of shameful intent? Lu Zheng shook his head and gave a forced laugh, my family's senior was supposed to be the people in charge of suppressing and guarding Xiang Lu but in the end, he was possessed by the evil soul, this shame ha. Lu Zheng's field of vision is too narrow. Fei Fei nodded and laughed, the three immortal seniors stood upright on their two legs between heaven and earth, the black and white island's descendants are not allowed to belittle themselves. If a common person were to tell the world's largest cultivation sect that they were not allowed to belittle themselves, anyone would laugh their teeth off at the thought of it but Lu Zheng nodded his head strenuously. When Lu Zheng was mentioning about his master teacher's enmity, he was still filled with hatred as before but his solemnness had already started to feel livelier and started to feel aspired. It no longer felt like the horror of despair out of extreme disappointment. Fei Fei still had questions to ask but she hesitated. She pondered for a moment before she continued, there is something I am not sure if I should. Ask away, it is all right. Lu Zheng's voice sounded fair and loud, penetrating with thriving vitality. Fei Fei seemed to be thinking how to phrase her question. After a while, she finally chose the most straightforward and most hurtful but also the most understandable words, please do not blame me for offending you. Once the enlightened person Tian Yin temporarily regained control of his own body, why did he not kill himself? I am saying that, killing his own body. When Leong hastily stretched out his hand and pulled Fei Fei to his back, he was afraid Lu Zheng might jump up and tear her into pieces. Lu Zheng's eyes widened for a moment, he first took a look at Fei Fei, then he shot his glare onto Wen Leong's face in the end, are you bearing for this little girl as well? Could Wen Leong say that he did not care? He could only give a forced smile as he nodded. Lu Jing clenched his teeth and nodded, very well. Even though her crime is not punishable by death, I will still need to hit you. Wen Leong laughed aloud as he answered, very well, anyhow I am used to being hit, you can come looking for me anytime you feel like hitting me. I was also thinking to ask that question earlier, it is best for you to consider that it was me who asked that question. Since it was difficult for Tian Yin to avoid the predestined fate of dispersed soul in the end, why did he not seize the opportunity when he was in control of his body, to straightforwardly killed himself and destroyed his dharma body? It was still better than being occupied by the true soul into committing evil. Lu Zheng's eyes swept past Wen Leong from head to toe, he seemed to be considering which part of Wen Leong's body should he hit. The master teacher uncle's primordial spirit was already exhausted back then, he did not have the strength to destroy his own dharma body. When Leung suddenly felt that he was the loser in this deal, it was very unworthy for him to be hit. Looking at the giant pangolin and the head lama Rangjung's malicious smiles, he had already understood that this question was only significant for those who did not understand about cultivation method. Master Rangjung's question was obviously more professional than when Leung, Fei Fei, and the rest, if the head priest Tian Yin's dharma body was destroyed, then what would happen to Xiang Lu's true that bugger? The situation right now had already shifted from the narration of the past to how to deal with the bugger, everyone was holding back their stomach full of questions. Lu Zheng shook his head in an extremely straightforward manner, I do not know. Rang Yung frowned as he continued to ask Lu Zheng, does the black and white island know of a method to refine this true bugger? No. Lu Zheng's expression clearly stated that the Lama's questions were very foolish. The three sword immortals of the black and white island had utterly no idea that the nine-headed Xiang Lu possessed another true soul, they knew even less of how to deal with it. The giant pangolin chuckled, what is the fking purpose to consider so much? As it was saying that it used its tail to slap on Wen Leung. Please request your family's Grand Master Chong Li and fifth brother Hanba to launch the attack and first deal with the enlightened person Tian Yin's Dharma body before we discuss any further it was halfway through its speech when it suddenly stopped speaking. Moments later, it was suddenly enlightened, no. If the bugger were to take fancy on Chong Li's cultivation base then it will be an even bigger trouble when it bore into her body. 
If Xiang Lu's true soul could enter and exit a body at its pleasure, then who was still capable of dealing with it? It was afraid when it failed to defeat Tian Yin, not that there was no other person more incisive than Tian Yin. But if it were to bore into another person's body then the moment when Leong thought of the possibility of Chang Li being possessed by the true soul, his mind was so chaotic and confused he felt as if he was fainting. Fortunately, Lu Jing finally laughed and spoke slightly comforting words, on the contrary, it is not as dramatic as you described, the bugger and my family's master teacher uncle struggled for two thousand years. It had already fused with the master teacher uncle's power of dharma body as one before the dharma body was shattered, there was no way its primordial spirit could leave the body. Only by destroying the master teacher uncle's dharma body, that bugger could flee out of the body, perhaps it would still look for somebody else to possess. However this bugger's soul power was rather profound, it could implode at any time, such that its primordial spirit could break away from the dharma body. Pe Tu pondered on Lu Zheng's statement. It finally understood, the fine scales of his entire face were twisted along with its brows, after Tian Yin's dharma body is shattered, then Xiang Lu's true soul will come out and look for another person to possess again. All of you have no other method to deal or refine this true soul of Xiang Lu. Upon saying that, it watched as Lu Zheng nodded strenuously, Patu continued to scold and rage out of exasperation, in this case, who can do anything to that bugger? If Tian Yin's Dharma body is shattered, it will attach itself to you or my body, then we can only watch as our primordial spirit is destroyed by it and our flesh bodies being used as its puppet. Lu Zheng nodded and spoke with righteousness, Lu Zheng may be unworthy but he will never let his master teacher uncle's Dharma body be defiled by that bugger. Now that everyone was discussing a series of professional issues like the primordial spirit, vitality power, dharma body and etc., when Leong had to use all his brain cells before he could catch up to the group's discussion desperately. The head lama Rang Yong muttered to himself for a while then he continued Lu Zhang's topic slowly, if that is the case, our effort in figuring out a way to destroy the enlightened person Tian Yin's dharma body can be a good deed actually. No matter whose body that bugger attached itself to as long as the person is not Chang Li or Hanba, as compared to it occupying the immortal senior Tian Yin's body, it is still less dangerous. The enlightened person Tian Yin's Dharma body had profound cultivation base, the power was exceedingly strong, if Tian Yin's body was used to commit evil doings and sins then it would certainly cause a terrible disaster in the mortal world. Even though the true soul had no way to utilize this dharma body into destroying the great formation of the black and white island. It could still use the body to execute its scheme, such that it could adopt another method to nourish Xiang Lu or destroy the black and white island's prohibition spell. By the time Xiang Lu's true body was returned to the mortal world once again, the true soul would only need to destroy Tian Yin's dharma body then it could bore back into its original body. If Tian Yin's dharma body was shattered, as long as the true soul did not possess the body of unparalleled demon immortal like Chang Li or Guo Huan, no matter whose body it occupied once again, the danger would be greatly reduced. At this moment, the jade knife Guo Huan that had not been speaking much all along suddenly scoffed in an icy cold manner, after all that is said, everything is still nonsense. The old father wishes to ask all of you, if you were to request for the master cultivators like Chang Li or Hanba to come forward and deal with this bugger. You are only afraid that the moment the bugger meets them it will immediately explode its dharma body and then attached its soul to their bodies, right? Everyone nodded, when Leon complimented, that is why in the matter of dealing with the bugger, we can never request for them to launch an attack, otherwise we will help the bugger to achieve its aim instead. We can only figure out a way ourselves to look for the bugger and destroy the enlightened person Tian Yin's dharma body first before we discuss further. Guo Huan burst out laughing. Its voice was filled with contempt, then the old father asks you again, if Chang Li or Hanba does not launch an attack, how are all of you going to deal with the bugger that is possessing Tian Yin's dharma body? The issue that Wen Leong and the rest were discussing was akin to a few criminals that were planning on how to beat up the supreme leader of the Wudang sect. They did not consider that they could not even defeat the other subsidiary Wudang disciples, needless to think about beating the daylight out of the supreme leader. Lu Zheng laughed with a preconceived idea in his heart, he had only spoken of the three words of Kunlun sword formation, when he was mercilessly interrupted by Guo Huan, bullshit. Just by depending on your thousand swords power, you cannot even deal with Tian Yin's dharma body. 
Chapter, 213 Lu Zheng was astonished. He looked at the jade knife with a stunned expression, my master had told me before his passing that the thousand swords of the sword grave and my uncle's primordial soul complement each other. He could increase the power of the sword formation tremendously. When the sword formation is successfully cultivated, even he could not stop it during his prime. The power of the sword formation just now was already out of one Liang's speculations. He could not tell how much power was contained in it. The only thing he was sure of was that even with his steel tendons and iron bones, he could only run in front of the Kunlun sword dragon. Also, among the three master seniors, although uncle's cultivation base was the most profound, it was only slightly better than the other two. The sword formation, which his master could not stop, he might not be able to stop it either. Besides, there's me and the seventy-two esteemed sword seniors, even if he risked our lives, we must Lu Zheng continued to explain. Black and White Island was hit with a sudden disaster, Lu Zheng had momentarily lost his sanity, his mind was engrossed in revenge. He had chased all the way to Tangula Mountains even before the sword formation was cultivated, he had not given the problem of prowess any thoughts. After he had calmed himself down and the sword formation was cultivated, it was his best reliance to face the true soul and destroy his uncle's Dharmakeya. He knew that Guo Huan was an outstanding great demon. Although he was now in shackles, his outlook on things would not be mistaken. However, he still explained with dissatisfaction. Guo Huan's rigid voice mercilessly crushed Lu Zheng's hopes into pieces, I do not need you to tell me about the magical powers of Black and White Island's three enlightened persons. You have said it yourself, that Bugger pretended to be badly wounded two thousand years ago and conned Tian Shu and Tian Hua of their life vitality forces. Now, Tian Yin's body is destroyed and his soul scattered, every bit of his life vitality force is inside that leather bag. Not only that, the buggers and Tian Yin's primordial spirits have been rolling and fighting each other for two thousand years. This is also cultivation for their bodies. Hee <laughs> hee, with your sword formation, forget it. Although Guo Huan's voice was cold, he spoke the truth, if you want to destroy Tian Yin's Dharmakeya by force, you can only ask the help of another elite. You might just win if Chang Li or Hanba was willing to come and join forces with your sword formation. Everyone was fretful. They had gone a full circle and returned to their initial topic. If Chang Lu or Hanba attacked, they would be possessed by the true soul if they did not attack, nobody could fight against the true soul. Lu Zhang's expression was indefinite. He lowered his head and kept quiet. Gu Xiaojun chuckled from the side, it doesn't mean that we can't kill it even though we can't beat it. Let's just think of a way to cheat it. Gu Xiaojun was an ordinary person but all these years he had dealt with cultivators who came to wreak havoc in the mortal world. At the end of the day, the cultivators, who were captured by him, were all cheated by him. No one could beat him on this kind of experience. The group of people had talked for half a day but the Hua family elite elder had not arrived. White-robed Hua Xiaoyao felt anxious from the wait. He dispatched some people to fetch him while he could not help but interrupt old Gu, how do we trick it? Gu Xiaojun cursed rudely, you'll have to take some time to think about what good stuff to have for dinner, you're delusional if you think that I could come up with a plan for such a huge matter instantly. As he said this, he turned towards Lu Zheng and shifted into an earnest tone, we cannot rush these things, nor can we be rash. Only by preserving our lives can we have the opportunity to cheat that that bugger. At the end of the day, old Gu was worried that Lu Zheng would fling caution to the wind and risk his life to fight the true soul. Xiao Sha also consoled from the side, even a primordial undying monster such as Xian Lu was pinned on black and white island in the end, let alone one escaped soul. Pe Tu did not have great ambitions like the others. Since it understood that true soul would be a handful, it had sounded his retreat. If it did not rely on Wen Leong to save the dwarf Taoist priest, it would have wagged its tail and left long ago, it was the ancient gods who pinned nine-headed Xian Lu on Black and White Island. It wasn't cheated by humans, don't lump these two things together. Xiao Sha pouted. He glared at Patu, unwilling to show weakness, did you see the situation with your own eyes? How can you believe such baseless rumors? If there really is a heavenly god, then we don't have to trouble ourselves. If Xiang Lu escapes, we can just ask him to pin it down again. 
most cultivators believed in a heavenly god. After Xiao Sha spoke, even Guo Huan shook his head inside the jade knife. Although Wen Leong was an atheist, he said to Xiao Sha with a bitter smile, Cone Nail is one of the nine demons of doing heaven's cone nails. She personally said that it was the ancient god who subdued Xiang Lu and refined the heaven's cone nails. Only, now, nobody knows where he went to. Fei Fei did not support Wen Leong this time but picked the same side as Xiao Sha. She shook her head at Wen Leong, if you were born with godly magic powers and don't know the whereabouts of your parents, you would also think that your parents are gods. Old Gu nodded strongly, there are countless of alien species under the heavens, there are even more monsters, but has anyone seen a god? White-robed Hua Xiaoyao was young and robust, he could not help but chimed in the debate, how many wise men in the past have crossed God's punishment and became immortals? If they did not become immortals or gods, where have they gone? If it was a fist fight, then old Gu would be in the last place, but if it was an argument, as long as Guo Huan stayed silent, he would be the champion, maybe they shattered the void, maybe their bodies were destroyed. If they really became immortals, how come not even one of them had returned? There are too many things that we do not understand in the world. You can attribute all those onto a god, but who among you have seen gods? The head Lama Rangyong did not join in the debate. He saw that they were getting off topic. He suddenly took a step forward and clapped his hands softly. A soft clap was heard. As if all sounds were gathered in his palms, the bottom of the ice fissure instantly quieted down. The Lama saw that everyone did not open their mouths anymore. He nodded with a smile, you guys are getting off topic. Whether the ones who refined the heaven's cone nails were humans or gods, it has nothing much to do with our current predicament. However, Mr. Gu made a very nice point. No matter powerful that that bugger is, we still have to face it. If we can't beat it, we'll trick it, if that fails, we'll fight it. The first part of the Lama's words was like an erudite person, the second part was like an old gambler who was frustrated with loss. When they mentioned about the matter of demon subduing on Black and White Island, Wen Leong suddenly recalled something. He turned and looked at Lu Zheng, you had just said that the three enlightened persons were ordered to guard Black and White Island. Is there another mystic sword immortal above the three enlightened persons? He had wanted to ask this question previously but was stopped by Lu Zheng. Lu Zheng shrugged, of course there is. The three masters did not pop out of a crack in the rock. They naturally inherited their skills from their master. However, they have never told me about these things and I reckon that the grand masters of the previous generations had already passed away. If they were still around, they should have shown themselves when a serious matter such as the destruction of the heaven's cone nails formation. Old Gu chuckled from the side. The way I see it, the elites who subdued the nine-headed snake back then were the masters of Black and White Island's three sword immortals. As he said this, he waved his hand, we can't prove this either, so it's pointless to talk about this. After all, it's Xian Lu and that bugger we're dealing with now. At the end of the day, we must go against anything that bugger wants to do. If he wants to sleep, we'll strike gongs if he wants to take a wife, we'll take the woman by force if he wants to answer nature's call, we'll block the toilet. Old Gu felt that his metaphors were vivid, he was amused at himself. He looked at Lu Zheng and continued, what scheme did that bugger have on the highlands? How did you chase him to this place? Lu Jing first shook his head, uncle had been in one body with that bugger for two thousand years. Although he was suppressed and could not free himself, he knew what that bugger had done. As he said this, Lu Jing extended three fingers, uncle had told my master that the bugger had done three things in the outside world all these years. Xiang Lu's true soul had been desperately suppressing and hunting Tian Yin's primordial spirit. In the recent few hundred years, the enlightened person Tian Yin's force of retaliation diminished. Xiang Lu had mustered up its courage, sneaked out of Black and White Island and did three things. One of the things was that the true soul had come to Tour Town a dozen years ago. It used treacherous methods and invoked the foulness within the guardians. It subdued these living dead people. However, he did not leave the highlands but went to take a stroll around Tangula Mountains then it was as the monkey Qianren said, the true soul had returned to the small town once again. 
He ordered the townspeople to summon all the evil cult followers through telepathy but Tian Yin could not tell what scheme he had in mind. Tian Shu returned to the Kunlun sect before his death and told Lu Zheng everything. Lu Zheng followed the trails and chased onto the highlands. When he did not find the true soul in the town, he came to Tangula Mountains immediately. He had met Wen Leong twice throughout the whole process. You don't even know if that bugger is in the mountains. He could still be on Black and White Island. After Wen Leong heard this, he frowned and asked Lu Zheng. Lu Zheng shook his head, I don't even know where Black and White Island is. Even if I did, I can't pass through Black and White Island's prohibition spell. I can only follow this lead and kill all of his subordinates, foil his plans and force him to show himself. Just as old Gu had said, no matter what the true soul did, they just had to go against him. Maybe they were slightly under-equipped to fight Tian Yin's Dharmakeya but it should not be difficult for them to annihilate the living dead of the tour town. Wen Leung nodded, what about the other two things that Bugger did? Lu Jing suddenly wore a strange expression, the first thing was about five or six hundred years ago, this thing is very mysterious. That Bugger was already in control of my uncle's Dharmakeya. When everything settled down, he left Black and White Island in a hurry. He searched for something for a very long time. Finally, he sneaked onto the Ayang Mountain of the Five Blessings. However, he was found out by a Taoist priest with a profound cultivation base, he was chased after for hundreds of kilometers. Wen Leong pondered for a while and broke into a laugh. He told Lu Zheng everything about Xiang Lu's wicked soul and the Yang sect San Wei. After he finished, Lu Zheng also broke into laughter, I get it. This bugger wanted to find the escaped wicked soul, but he ran into a young sect. He did not know that wicked soul was already contained by Hanba and the Taoist priest San Wei then was already possessed by another primordial spirit. Things were not hard to guess. The true soul went to find wicked soul, but the wicked soul's body had switched ownership. The Taoist priest San Wei only knew that an elite had come to scout the mountain and immediately jumped out to fight. In terms of abilities, of course the true soul was not afraid of Taoist priest San Wei, but he had to suppress Tian Yin's primordial spirit. He was almost counterattacked by Tian Yin's primordial spirit, he could only escape in shame. The final one was no stranger to me. Lu Zheng spoke more normally now. He had continued, that bugger wanted to find three objects, big flat cake, broken gong, and the dog. Wen Leong initially listened with a smile but when he heard Lu Zheng's final sentence, he felt that his head was heavily knocked by a castle assaulting ram for ten minutes. His heartbeat quickened, even his colors drained. Fei Fei's eyesight was sharp. She glanced at Wen Leong with astonishment. Then, she stretched out a cold finger and rubbed gently in between his brows but she did not ask him anything. The unorthodox doctrine sects of the world sect had been searching in a frenzy for the big flat cake, broken gong and dog these few years. The right cultivation path's five blessings leaders such as Lu Zheng had known this for a long time, it was no secret to them. However, the outsiders did not know that the person who knew about the locations of these three treasures was the important personage who is significant to the destiny of the right and evil path of the cultivation world. It was almost confirmed that it was the uncle of heaven-telling Sex Wei Mo, who was currently hiding in Wen Butsao's place of birth, life, sickness and death. Before Wen Leong went to the highlands, the Wen family had set out to find this man. Their area of the target was confirmed in a dozen old men in the place. Whether it was Wen Leong or the old demon rabbit Bu Lu, or the few Wen elders, they only treated this as a crucial point in the battle between good and evil. Nobody could have guessed that this matter was related to nine-headed Xiang Lu. The objects that Xiang Lu searched for mattered more than good or evil. Wen Leong took a deep breath. He tried hard to calm the fright that welled up within him. He dared not tell the matters of his family to Lu Zheng. He was worried that Lu Zheng would immediately make the sword-controlling gesture and send the thousand swords of Kunlun to the Nine Peaks Mountain after he finished. Even if he wanted to say it, he would have to wait until Lu Zheng had completely calmed down. Although Fei Fei did not understand what had happened, she seemed to have seen through Wen Liang's thoughts. She questioned Lu Zheng, why did that bugger look for these three objects? Lu Zheng unexpectedly shook his head, this matter was also mentioned at my uncle's deathbed. 
he couldn't go into details about any complications. He only said that Bugger was looking for these three objects. Xiang Lu's true soul had only gone active in recent years. He left Black and White Island a few times. Even Tian Yin was not very sure of his intentions. In addition to that, they were running out of time, the clues he said were also blurry. Although Gu Xiaojun was a mere mortal, he had wonderful sources. He knew that the world sect also searched for these three objects recently. He frowned, those unorthodox doctrine sects aided that bugger in his search for the objects there also controlled by Xiang Lu. After he finished he shook his head, logically speaking, that shouldn't happen. Although the world sect is treacherous, they clearly knew Xiang Lu's harm. They shouldn't be so foolish to help him. The way I see it, that bugger must have kept his identity a secret or offered some generous rewards. When the people of the world sect witnessed that bugger's magical powers, they wanted to seize this opportunity to bring about their own upswing. That's why they searched for them like a swarm of bees. When Leong had already calmed himself. Only the true soul knew the whereabouts of Grand Master Tuasia. Even if Wen 9 and Wen 13 knew, the true soul could not possibly have told them the whereabouts of Grand Master Tuasia forthrightly. Nevertheless, it would be another story if this big flat cake, broken gong and dog, was really helpful to Xiang Lu's wicked soul. Perhaps, not only Grand Master's whereabouts, even the way to defeat Xiang Lu's true soul was related to these three objects. When Butsao was a big household, they had plenty of big flat cakes but whether these three objects were treasures, people or some metaphor, no one knew. Luckily, the Wen Butsao had already found the location of Wei Mo's uncle and got a head start. After he was finished with the issues in the highlands, finding Wei Mo's uncle and searching for the three objects would be his priorities. Wen Leong sighed without reason. The matters had grown more and more complicated. Many clues that seemed unrelated had all strung up with each other, but they made matters worse and more difficult to handle. He shook his head and decided not to think about it. He returned the conversation back to the topic, if Cone Nail, the water element of the Nine Heavens Cone Nails returned to Black and White Island and restored the demon subduing formation, what will happen to that bugger? Lu Zheng had not spoken when Guo Huan opened his mouth rigidly, since the true soul had already escaped, he was unrelated to the great demon subduing formation. Even if the great formation was reactivated, he would not be affected. At the end of the day, we still have to settle that bugger. We can either destroy him completely or let him return to Nine Head's body, then reactivate the formation. If we left him outside He, shattering eight cone nails and nine cone nails would be of no difference to that bugger. Little Supreme Leader Lu Jing finally told them everything about Xiang Lu's true soul. Everyone was not in a good mood. Not only because the three sword immortals of indomitable spirits had passed away, it was also because there was a constant change of events in the cultivation world, changes happened abruptly and were too severe. Amongst the five blessings who have stood for thousands of years, it was Jilong sect's supreme leader, the enlightened person ZK who first lost the treasured weapon of his sect and committed suicide on Nine Peaks Mountain. The second elite, the enlightened person Qin Niao broke his own arms and led his entire sect back to the mountains and retired from the world then, a young sect's enlightened person San Wei's two split bodies and the original body died and most of his elite disciples also died in action. Only a split body who had most of his powers sealed was left behind, a young sect existed in name only almost a thousand Kunlun sect disciples were trapped by the firecrackers, only little supreme leader Lu Zheng and the seventy-two esteemed sword seniors were left. The first family of the rogue cultivators, painting towns Leong Shoujin and Leong Tian died, leaving the sole elite Leong Wen supported his entire household. These sects had all stood tall and proud despite a thousand years of challenges. They were the symbols of utmost power in the cultivation world. However, with the appearance of the peerless sword immortals and demon immortals, they crumbled loudly like tattered straw houses. They were flattened by others like a joke. Compared to them, the true elite forces had shuffled their decks and started over. Changli lay dormant for two thousand years and saw daylight again, Cone Nail appeared out of nowhere, Hanba mounted the stage in full regalia, Sanwei had switched souls twice. 
Black and White Island Sword Immortals returned to the mortal world the happenings that followed were either the clearance of misunderstandings and formations of alliances or the brutal killings and plots out of revenge. Up until now, Cone Nail and Hanba were badly wounded and escaped from the world, they secluded themselves in some unknown place nothing was left of Sanwei's true body, only a dying spirit was left in the jade knife as it lingered on with its final breath Changli prepared herself to look for enlightened person Tian Yin to find out Tuasye's whereabouts the three sword immortals of Black and White Islands were martyred at the same time. Nine-headed Xiang Lu had another walker in the mortal world whose controlling abilities were not inferior to Chang Li's or that of the true soul of Tian Yin's Dharmakeya. Everyone sighed with emotion. This storm was too cold and cruel. What made everybody's skins crawl was that all of this was but a beginning for nine-headed Xiang Lu. They sighed. A white-robed youth poked out half a body from the upper parts of the ice wall. His expression was slightly anxious, I don't see the shadows of my uncles, and there had been no word from my brothers who went out to fetch them. Hua Xiaoyao had worry written all over his face. He moaned for a while and lifted his head to give the command, bring me Hua Xiaobao. His voice barely faded, when Leong saw a white flash before his eyes. Another white-robed youth jumped out of the ice wall. He looked to be about 18 years of age. He was slightly younger than most of Hua family youths. He had a cleanly shaven shiny head, long and fleshy ears. He simpered as he rubbed his palms and asked, What's up? Hua Xiaoyao hesitated towards the densely packed outsiders in front of him. Finally, he picked Wen Leong, Hua Xiaoba is the one among us who's the most familiar with the bug's temperament. I'll now lead some men to fetch the elders. I'll leave him here to keep you company. That bunch of firecrackers shouldn't break the spell, but in case anything happens, you only need to listen to his instructions and you won't be overwhelmed by the bugs. After he said this, he instructed the little fat boy Hua Xiaoba, look after Uncle Quan, look after the bugs. Hua Xiaoba glanced timidly at the malicious-looking seventy-two esteemed sword seniors, the giant pangolin the size of a small house, the fierce-looking head lama and he nodded with a bitter expression. His eyes lit up when he saw Tutatunt. He chuckled in a silly manner. He seemed to have felt that the African brother was pleasing to the eye. Hua Xiaoyao whistled to his other disciples. He leaped and burrowed into the ice. When Leon grabbed his arm, I'll go with you. Then, he said to little supreme leader Lu Zheng, you guys stay here and guard the Kunlun disciples and the bug tide. The Tibetans are after these bugs. We might still have a fierce battle here. Lu Zheng nodded, don't force yourself when you meet the enemy, just escape. Even if that bugger himself came, the Kunlun sword formation can still hold up for a while. The giant pangolin naturally did not want to leave when Liang sighed. Rang Yong also took a step forward and wanted to follow them. Their situations were similar to Wen Liang's after they clashed with the Tibetans of Great Xia's nine tripod cauldrons, their joints were almost shaken loose but they were not badly injured. They recovered after half a day's rest. White-robed Hua Xiaoyao was overjoyed. He instructed the three cultivators to not move their life vitalities rashly and to put away all their magic. Then, he grabbed Wen Liang's wrist and leaped towards the ice wall. Wen Liang only felt a chill down his body as if he was amidst icy cold river water. Then, with Hua Xiaoyao's force, he plunged into the thick ice wall without restriction. He flew swiftly forward. The five elements art of escape could bring people along. The giant pangolin had also brought the dwarf Taoist priest along as he shuttled back and forth. However, the passenger cannot cast any magic during the process of escaping, or else he would break his companion's art of escape. It was relatively fine if it was water escape or earth escape, at most they would only have to dig themselves out or swim out, but it would be more troublesome if it were fire escape or metal escape. As the giant pangolin could not cast any magic, it could only use its demonic body. It was pushed and pulled by a bunch of white-robed disciples. They followed close behind with great effort. Hua Xioyo had already sent a few batched of disciples to fetch the elders of their family but he had not heard from any one of them until now. However, even if the family elders did not come, the living dead would be on their doorsteps by now. Guo Huan had killed a dozen last night, this morning a bunch of elites joined forces and destroyed eight of them, there were no more movements ever since. 
Every white-robed disciple used their full force to cast the art of escape. They were like robust silverfish, they flew swiftly within the ice layers. When Leung dared not exert even an ounce of force with his body. He merely followed Hua Xiaoyao as they speeded past. After an unknown period of time, Hua Xiaoyao turned sideways and gave Wen Leung a hand sign. He signaled that they have reached the Hua family's campsite. Then, he waved behind him. Other than the Hua family disciples who towed Wen Leung, Rang Yong, and the pangolin, the other white robed youths scattered suddenly. They put a great distance between them. Everyone's expression was full of alertness. Everyone hid among the ice cap. They silently probed the snow covered peak above them with their telegnosis abilities. After they confirmed that there were no signs of the enemy, Hua Xiaoyao glanced incredulously at Wen Leung. He spread his hands and made a hand sign that said there was nothing. Wen Leung felt incredulous. There was nobody nearby. Chapter 214 This was the Hua family's campsite, which was located on top of the snow covered peak. Although Wen Leung's telegnosis ability could not detect the embodiment of true water of the Hua family disciples, the white robed youths naturally had their own way of finding their kin. However, within Hua Xiaoyao's current telegnosis ability, there was only emptiness around them. Not only were there no enemies, their own elders were also not there. Even the disciples who were dispatched earlier were not there. Hua Xiaoyao could not find anybody. He waved at his clansmen behind him. A white-robed youth took a shallow breath. Then, he turned and flipped upwards out of the ice cap. The way the Hua family disciples moved and acted, including their sign language, was an obvious show of their well-organized training. They were not similar to ordinary obscure cultivators but more similar to special troops who hid in the snow-covered peak. Wen Leon could not help but glance at Hua Xiaoyao in surprise. Unexpectedly, Hua Xiaoyao's body shook. His colors suddenly turned pale, whiter than snow. The white-robed disciple, who Hua Xiaoyao sent, immediately vanished from Wen Leyang's telegnosis ability the moment the disciple broke through the surface. Then, a light knock penetrated the thick ice layer and propagated into everyone's ears without a pause. The knocking sound shifted continuously. Wen Leyang was hit with a sudden realization after a while. Someone was moving about above them. The person would knock every time he stopped on top of a Hua family disciple's head. In no time, the few dozen Hua family disciples including Wen Leong, the Lama and the Pangolin were roll-called by the person. The white-robed youths, who had the embodiment of true water, could not escape from the opponent's telegnosis ability. The knocking sound paused for a brief moment. The person above them seemed to know that they were reluctant to come out and started a second round of knocking. However, the sounds this time were clearly much more impatient. It had a hint of urgency. The ice layer beside Wen Leung was quickly tinted with cold killing intent with the knocking sounds. Countless bone-piercing coldness condensed into invisible knives and pressed on them mercilessly from every direction. The force of the cold ice surged everywhere. Although the jade knife Guo Huan was deep in his shackles and could not move, nobody could compete with his experience. He suddenly squalled, get the FCK out. You can forget about getting out at all if you dally any longer. Hua Xiaoyao made a split-second decision. He howled, break. Every white-robed youth responded in unison. They followed their leader and flipped onto the ice cap. Wen Leong shuddered. The power of the poison of life and death rolled with the faulty punch. He followed closely beside Hua Xiaoyao and rushed outside. Rang Yong and the Pangolin Patu also flexed their magic powers. They broke out of the ice amidst loud crackling sounds. Not only could the person above them notice the Hua family youths who had the embodiment of true water, the person could also activate his magic without making a sound. Even a great demon, such as the giant Pangolin, was forced out of the ancient ice by him. They had nowhere to run. Even if it was Xiang Lu's true soul above them, they had no choice but to risk their lives. In the blink of an eye, when Leong only felt his head feeling light, he had already broken the surface. He was about to look for the enemy when his entire body tensed. An extremely thick and heavy force enveloped him in layers and firmly imprisoned him. When Leong felt that he was like a big rooster, 
which was spreading its wings to leap but was suddenly cast with the immobilization spell. His swift and fierce aura stopped abruptly. He was suspended in mid-air and could not move a muscle. The roar of the Hua family youths around him, the Lama's mantra, the giant pangolin squall also vanished abruptly the instant they broke the surface. When Leon was frustrated and angered. He did not have the time to think about what was going on. He desperately urged the poison of life and death, which curled up within his limbs and bones. Just when he was about to break the spell with a faulty punch and break free of his shackles, a magnificently beautiful, yet strange sight suddenly projected into his eyes. It was a forest of towering icicles, which pointed straight at the blue sky like graceful and sharp spears. Every icicle was a dozen of meters in height. Their base perimeters were the hugs of five people. There were not even any dents on them as if every cone was carefully crafted by the most outstanding craftsmen. Under the shine of the sun, they looked like lines of simple and sophisticated poems, which twinkled with flowing light, like live spirits, they giggled and winked at him. There was a person who bared his teeth within each icicle. Some wore white robes with savage and angry expressions, some were in tatters and had cold, lifeless gaze. When Wen Leong saw a bald head lama, he was hit with a sudden realization. They had just broken through the ice surface and they were frozen within the icicles. The Tibetans, the Hua family elites who were sent up to the snow-covered peak, the white-robed youths who accompanied him just now, even the head lama, the pangolin and Wen Leong were frozen into huge ice lamps. It was acceptable for the Tibetans but even the Hua family members who knew the art of water escape and spent their lives shuttling within the ice cap became frozen in an ice shell. The level of surprise was equal to a giant carp who wore a wetsuit and swam in the water with an oxygen mask. The icicles seemed to also have the embodiment of true water. They were clearly displayed before Wen Liang's eyes. However, when he scanned the area with his telegnosis ability, there was only emptiness on the snow-covered peak. At this moment, a clear scream like a nightingale's was heard. It brought with it a trace of genuine apology and a trace of cute playfulness. It came behind Wen Leung. Then, a fair finger knocked lightly on his icicle. With a paw, the icicle shattered into pieces. Wen Leung only felt his body went light and dropped to the ground. Then, a mild fragrance that was quietly elegant wafted with a pitiable young lady who appeared before Wen Leung. She seemed to want to caress Wen Liang's face with her small hands as she asked in a heartbreaking tone, I hope I didn't hurt you. Wen Liang's heart almost jumped out of his mouth. He swayed and retreated backwards as fast as lightning. He could not help but exclaim in surprise, Cone Nail. No wonder the embodiment of true water of the white-robed youths was exposed. No wonder even Hua Xiaoyao could not detect any movements when people were frozen into icicles. Compared to Cone Nail, the Hua family was nothing but a mud fish, she was the true dragon here. Whether it was magical powers or their selling price according to their weight, the Hua family could not even compare. In Cone Nail's white dress, she appeared frail and weak amidst the biting cold wind of the snow covered peak. When she saw Wen Liang's look of hostility, her eyes reddened immediately Why, why are you like this? I won't hurt you. Since the day Wen Liang met Cone Nail, she always had this pitiable look. Not long ago, when Leon even fought Cone Nail with Grand Master Chongli at the Miao Stockade village. He dared not have an ounce of carelessness, why are you here? At the Miao Stockade village, Cone Nail escaped with heavy wounds and went missing. Unexpectedly, she appeared on the snow-covered peak. Cone Nail blinked. A sparkling tear rolled sadly down her cheek. It fell heavily and shattered into crystals. When Leong snorted, he shook his head resolutely as he vowed not to be moved. He hesitated. He worried that he had not made a strong point so he added superfluously, it's useless even if you cry. Cone Nail stomped her feet in anger. She suddenly floated. When Leong almost fell backwards with fright. His cultivation base was not bad but it was nothing in the face of Cone Nail. The exertion of force and a thunderous strike was only a show to make himself feel braver. Luckily, Cone Nail did not pounce on him but lifted her leg and gave the thickest icicle near them a flying kick. Amidst the clear shattering sounds, the giant pangolin squalled. It dropped to the ground and ran. 
Cone Nail's voice was as cold as cutting gold and breaking jade, hold it. Put two froze on the spot as if it was just cast with the immobilization spell. It dared not move as it said with a pleading face, Grand Aunt, please unfreeze me. Patu was not the smartest one around but it clearly understood. Cone Nail wanted to use it as a punching bag. That was why she released it. Cone Nail yelled again enraged, come back. Patu took step after careful step in front of Cone Nail. It glared at Wen Leon with its big eyes and cursed in a muffled voice, you should learn from me, do whatever the immortal tells you. It even had the preparation to die. If it knew that Cone Nail was here, it would not have followed even if it were beaten to death. Cone Nail was unaffected by that trick. When the giant pangolin stood in front of her, like a little girl who was just bullied, she mercilessly grabbed Patu's body. Patu was like a giant prawn that had its tail cut off. It wailed and leaped into the air as its body tensed up. Cone Nail was also startled by it. She opened her jade white palm, it was empty. Then, she looked at Wen Leon as if she was wronged, her tears flowed with clicks, I haven't removed its scales, it's it's not a good thing. Then, she pointed with a finger. A huge icicle abruptly appeared. It froze the giant pangolin, which was doing a somersault in mid-air in an instant. Wen Leon almost cried. He relaxed his body and shook his hands, don't don't you trouble anyone else. What do you want? Wen Leong had understood the moment Cone Nail's body swayed. Even though she was heavily wounded, it would not be difficult for her to defeat him. The giant pangolin had been frozen twice in such a short span of time. It had no chance whether it fought or ran. As Cone Nail saw that Wen Leong no longer stored his energy for an attack, joy appeared on her face. After she heard Wen Leong's words, her eyes bulged as if happiness came too suddenly to her and she could hardly believe it herself, are you serious? I can do whatever I want. When Leong had not spoken when Cone Nail pouted, I don't want anything. I just wanted to ask if I've hurt you by mistake just now. When Leong said with a bitter smile, you already knew that I was under the ice surface. You were the one who froze me and now you're asking if you've hurt me. You think this is funny? Cone Nail let out an air. She stopped her crying in shock. She changed into a smiling expression as if she had just swapped faces, you've gotten smarter. When Leon took a deep breath. The cold air on the snow-covered peak cleared his mind. He said with a straight face, I have something to ask you. Cone Nail nodded strongly as she was overwhelmed by this unexpected favor. Her delicate face was full of the glow of excitement. Although when Leon was used to seeing her like this, he still felt strangely happy. He could not help but show a hint of a smile. However, his question did not even have a trace of happiness, you know it well that I would return you to Black and White Island to restore the demons of doing great formation even if it meant my own destruction. Why did you not kill me? In shock, why would you think that I'd want to kill you? If I had wanted to kill you, you would have died over ten times in the gold-consuming lair and another ten times at City God Temple of Shanghai. When Leon snorted and shook his head, please stop counting I know that you didn't kill me, that's why I'm confused. There seemed to be a helplessness in Cone Nail's smile, I wanted to kill Chang Li to get revenge for her breaking me two thousand years ago I hunted Hanba because he almost killed Tian Shu as for Leon Shoujin Hee Hee. That geezer did not treat me as a human, why should I treat him as a human? But you saved me before and was willing to talk to me with a smile. Why would I want to kill you? As she said this, Cone Nail paused before she continued, I didn't kill you before because you were a nice person with disappointing abilities but you saved me before. No matter what, I am a divine beast formed by the condensation of positive energy of the world by the embodiment of heavenly water. As long as I'm not provoked, I won't simply kill someone. As such, I won't kill you now. Let me ask you, if somebody wanted to kill me, of course you won't agree to it, am I right? Wen Leong nodded. Of course he could not let Cone Nail die. Although the true soul had escaped now and the situation was more complicated than before, Cone Nail's importance was beyond a doubt. The great condition for resubduing Xiang Lu was to protect her. The one who wants to kill me the most under the heavens is Xiang Lu. As she said this, 
Kone Nail pointed at the Tibetans, these living dead were all Xiang Lu's subordinates. There might be more who will be willing to do Xiang Lu's bidding. You have helped me kill those who want to kill me. Besides, your cultivation base is disappointing, you won't trouble me but you can help me settle my troubles. I don't understand why you'd think that I would kill you. Wen Leong pondered for a while. He felt that he was more of a benefit to Cone Nail than harm. He smiled bitterly and nodded. Cone Nail paused briefly. There was a hint of curiosity in her expression and tone as well as some confusion, how could Xian Lu also have subordinates now? She was originally the demon subduing water element heaven's cone nail. She could sense that the other eight heavens cone nail still existed and she could detect that there was Xian Lu's aura on the living dead people's bodies. She did not understand, if the heavens cone nail still existed, it was impossible for Xian Lu to escape Black and White Island and recruit subordinates. That was why she had that question. She seemed to have thought of something fun as she asked carefully, could it be Wicked Soul had taken control of Hanba? It's natural for these living dead to treat Hanba as their boss. Although her voice was soft, she could not conceal the secret joy of seeing people's misfortune no matter what. When Leong understood that Kone Nail was still unaware of the happenings on Black and White Island. He shook his head and diverted the topic, why are you here? Last time, when Tian Shu was badly injured in City God Temple of Shanghai, Kone Nail was mad with rage. Wen Leong was worried that if he told her about the deaths of the three enlightened persons right now, Kone Nail would go berserk and kill everyone present. This woman had a violent streak all along. He dared not be careless. Kone Nail frowned slightly. She seemed to notice that Wen Leong was hiding something on purpose. She stared at him intently. In a flash, she started pouting and spoke as if she was wronged, Chang Li and Hanba almost killed me when they set me up the last time. I have only managed to suppress my wounds after cultivating these few months. Wen Leong smiled bitterly. Kone Nail was still wounded, she had only suppressed her injuries but she could easily freeze so many people including great cultivators like Rang Yong and the giant pangolin. Among the cultivators, the difference between every level was as wide as the world. The difference in quality could never be substituted with quantity. Although that cat demon Chang Li is hateful, her cultivation base is indisputable. Even if my wounds have fully healed, I might not even get my revenge. When Kone Nail spoke about Chang Li, she did not use naming taboo in front of Wen Leong, that's why I came here to try my luck and see if I can find the heavenly water spirit. Kone Nail was the embodiment of true water. If she could find the heavenly water spirit, not only would her wounds heal, her prowess and magical powers would improve tremendously. She and Chang Li were elites on the same level, but strictly speaking, she was slightly inferior to Chang Li. Other aspects aside, her experience in fights was greatly behind Chang Li's. As for tricks like plotting and sneak attacks, she was even more inferior to Chang Li. Kone Nail had an easy time when she plotted against Wen Leong, but she was the one who fell to all plots at the Miao Stockade village. She had not realized that she had fallen into Chang Li's trap long ago. That was why, whether it was for healing or increasing her powers to get revenge, finding the heavenly water spirit was the easiest way to achieve it. Hence, she came to the highlands. As she said this, a perplexed look suddenly appeared in Cone Nail's gaze, there are heavenly water spirits in every river, stream and lake, but I had only thought of coming here when I was wounded as she said this, she shook her head. It was obvious that she, herself, did not understand why had she wanted to find the heavenly water spirit on Tangula Mountains. Wen Leong coughed. Kone Nail seemed to wake up from her dream. She smiled apologetically at Wen Leong and explained softly, it's always comfortable to be talking to you. Wen Leong was wary from his experience of being tricked by Kone Nail, his gaze was filled with suspicion, you told me directly that you wanted to find the heavenly water spirit to fight Grand Master Changli. Kone Nail's expression was slightly exaggerated. These acts had turned into a cuteness of a young girl on her beautiful face, it's only right that you'd help Chang Li, why should I lie to you about such things after she finished, she saw that Wen Leong still did not understand. She added another truth, besides, you can't stop me, you can't foil my plans. Wen Leong was extremely dispirited. He did not know whether he should cry or smile. 
He mumbled as he stated his determination, if you want to fight Chong Li, I'll have to. Kone Nail smiled again without waiting for him to finish and there was an unprecedented pity on her face. This made Wen Leong suddenly feel that the Kone Nail now was genuine and filled with truth, like a snow sashuria that bloomed happily under the sun. It wafted a fine fragrance which can be felt but could not be smelled, it's precisely because you've said that that I like like to talk with you. I'm not going to Black and White Island because I want to see what it feels like to be a person, be it a good person or a bad person. I'll laugh when I'm happy, cry when I'm sad, beat and curse when I'm angry. If I've done all those, then I'll be satisfied. Besides, Cone Nail smiled even more brilliantly, I've finally understood one thing. The experience of being a person is sweet precisely because it didn't matter if you were right or wrong, all that matters is that if you're close or not. For those who are close to me, anything they do is right, even if he did crimes that were past forgiving, as long as he treats me well, then he's emperor. Chang Li treated you well, she's your empress. It's only natural for you to help your empress. The crisp laugh ended abruptly. Cone Nail suddenly retracted her smile. She muttered with some quietness amidst the wind on the snow-covered peak that was colder than a blade, but who's my emperor? Then, she blinked. Her eyes regained the pitiable feeling, you're also here to find the heavenly water spirit. Wen Leong had not spoken. Cone Nail stretched her fair palm and patted Wen Leong's shoulder lightly, then you're in luck. If you come with me, you can at least have a glance of the heavenly water spirit. As she said this, she stuck out her tongue playfully again, but you can only see it, I won't share it with you. Wen Leong exclaimed in surprise, how did you know about the heavenly water spirit? Cone Nail nodded with pride. She stretched out a finger like a spring onion and counted the white-robed Hua family disciples who were frozen in icicles, these obscure cultivators are fools. They were so close to the heavenly water spirit for a thousand years but all they cared about was foolishly looking after the bugs. However at least they did one thing right, they managed to breed so many bugs. Actually, you can find the heavenly water spirit if you just follow the bugs. After she finished, Cone Nail hastily shook her head at Wen Leong, don't ask me how I knew about this trick. I just know as she said this, she wore a perplexed and puzzled expression again, I was dizzy after I was heavily wounded. I first thought of coming here then I thought of this way. I have never heard of these bugs before this. During this meeting, Cone Nail would expose her true natures every now and then. When Leung chuckled and said to Cone Nail, let me discuss with you about. He had not finished when Cone Nail puffed up her beautiful chest suddenly. Her face was full of excitement. She replied loudly, sure. When Leung was startled by her. He could not help but laugh. If he could put their differences aside, he would admit that Cone Nail was cute. He pointed at Cone Nail who froze Rangyong, can you release Master Lama? He's a learned man, he knows a lot about reincarnations and past lives. He might just be able to decipher your situation. Cone Nail cheered, all right. We'll beat him up if he can't. Then, she tapped with her slender finger. The icicle shattered and the head Lama Rangyong jumped to the ground. Wen Leong was terse and concise. He told the head lama about Cone Nail's situation. Cone Nail was very anxious. She quickly opened her mouth after Wen Leong finished, Master, why did I want to find the heavenly water spirit? Why did I know the way to search for this treasure? Rang Yung smiled and did not say anything. He folded his arms behind him and paced. Wen Leong was slightly puzzled at first. The Lama was clearly pondering about this matter, but normally, his brows were tightly knitted when he racked his brain, yet he pondered with a smile this time. After a while when Leong understood. Rang Yung was worried that Kone Nail would not be confident in him and beat him up. Rang Yung then asked Kone Nail about the things that happened after her rebirth and retention of the memories of Black and White Island. He finally smiled happily. Wen Leung also sighed deeply as he knew that the Lama would not be beaten up. Master Rang Yung cleared his throat before he opened his mouth slowly, the demon subduing heaven's cone nails cannot move but were called divine beasts and not divine instruments. The most important factor is that divine beasts have souls and are living whereas divine instruments, though they have primordial spirits, they did not have living souls. 
Hence, divine instruments can only be counted as non-living things. They would have instinctual reflexes when they meet their masters but they can never think for themselves, nor would they have a will or memory of their own. At the gold-consuming lair, whether it was the Leung disciples or Cone Nail herself, everybody referred to her as a divine beast. It even made when Leung misunderstood for a while that they were talking about the giant pangolin Patu. After Cone Nail was reborn, she retained all her memories of being a demon subduing heaven's Cone Nail on Black and White Island. It was precisely because of this that she did not want to return to the Great Formation. Nobody would have picked a life where one could only think and see but could not move. Rang Yong spoke very slowly. It was not that he could not decipher Cone Nail's strange memories but he had trouble picking the words, there's only two factors that can make the demon subduing heaven's Cone Nail into a divine beast. One is form, the other is soul. One can only be counted as successful if one had the form and the soul. About these two things the way I see it, the person who refined the heaven's cone nail had first refined the heaven's cone nail soul before refining their form. As he said this, a sudden terror rose on cone nail's small face, you're saying, that the things I remember, are our back then are. Cone nail rd for half a day and did not finish her sentence. When Leon was anxious for her sake. Master Rang Young unexpectedly nodded and said confidently, that's right, exactly. Chapter, 215 After the head lama finished his sentence, he added, When you were badly injured, you regained your memories of what happened before you were a heaven's cone nail. Cone nail appeared incredulous. She shook her head strongly, No, demon subduing heaven's cone nails absorbed spirit primordial energy of the world to invoke the force of the universe. They only had spiritual sense after absorbing the energy we were cone nails even before we came to life, not the other way round. Rang Yong also shook his head. His expression was more serious than Cone Nails, the Lama could not estimate the profoundness of the heavens Cone Nails demon subduing great formation. However, if it was like you have said and you were Cone Nails before you were given life, we cannot explain the matters which you could not understand as well. When Leong saw that the two of them were glaring at each other and he was worried that the Lama would be beaten. He immediately chuckled at stood in between them, it's not so important whether the soul or the form came first. He had not finished his sentence when Cone Nail and the Lama glared at him fiercely at said at the same time, of course it's important. When Leon was startled. This was his first time seeing Cone Nail's expression of wanting to eat a person. He looked at her with shock and laughed drilly in embarrassment. The Lama walked to Wen Leong's side and told him in a low voice, this matter is serious. It's easy to open up spiritual sense but it's hard to form souls. Even a god cannot create three spiritual and seven physical souls out of nothing do you know what I'm saying? When Leong pondered about the Lama's words and took a deep breath, the soul might be born as a consequence of some coincidence, just like Adan or Hamba fifth brother, but cannot be created from nothing. You're saying that Cone Nail was a living person before she turned into a heaven's Cone Nail. A dispirited Cone Nail stood at the side. She ignored the whisperings between Rang Yong and Wen Leong. The Lama saw that Wen Leong became more agitated as they spoke. He was worried that Cone Nail would be triggered and beat him up. He anxiously signaled Wen Leong to speak softly, there might be a possibility of spiritual sense being born out of the world's spirit primordial energy that was absorbed by the heaven's cone nail's formation. But if that were the case, we can't explain why cone nail strangely remembered Tangula Mountains and also the way to find the heavenly water spirit through the bugs. When Leon snorted. He was frustrated to the point that he only wanted to stop his feet, then you tell me how are we going to explain this? The Lama's face flushed. He had always unintentionally overestimated Wen Liang's cultivation basics, I reckon the things that she remembered should be the process of refining the heaven's cone nail of the water element. Wen Liang let out an oh no. The Lama was startled. He quickly glanced at cone nail. He sighed in relief when he saw that she was still in shock, if her past life was being a demon subduing heaven's cone nail on black and white island. Her remembrance of Tangula Mountains and finding the heavenly water spirit through the firecrackers would have happened before she was a heaven's cone nail. It was the past life of her past life. Logically speaking, cone nail's memories should have only started from the moment she subdued Xian Lu on Black and White Island until now. 
However, when Cone Nail was heavily wounded, she roughly remembered some things that were completely unrelated to Black and White Island's demon subduing activity. The heavenly water spirit was undoubtedly a necessary ingredient to refine the water element in the heaven's cone nail. That was why the Lama made the bold guess. Although this inference was unimaginably queer, it was very logical. Other than that, he could not find any other explanation. If that's the case, Master Rangyung continued, Cone Nail should be an expert in the water element magic art. Her souls and primordial spirit were extracted from her living person to refine the demon subduing heaven's cone nail of the water element. Her previous memories were sealed by another person's great magic. That's why she only remembers she was a heaven's cone nail and everything after Black and White Island. Cone Nail had been heavily wounded not long ago and her primordial spirit was affected and as a result, she recalled the things of her past life's past life. It was indeed possible. If what the Lama had said was the truth when Leon felt his body and heart turn cold. One did not have to be smart to know that the action of extracting primordial souls was an extremely evil magic. If Cone Nail was an expert who would face death willingly for a noble cause and had volunteered to become a demon subduing heaven's Cone Nail, then the other party need not have sealed her memories. If the Lama's sayings were true, the person who refined the heaven's Cone Nail must have pinned Cone Nail down first and extracted her primordial spirit to forge the heaven's Cone Nail. Refining heaven's Cone Nails to subdue demons was indeed a noble act which blessed all peoples but this method was a bit too cruel for Cone Nail. Even mole crickets and ants would drag out their ignoble existence. In the face of a serious matter such as life and death, the world is only a person's world. When Leon judged others by his standards, he would be willing to sacrifice himself to let his loved ones live, but if he should die to let every unrelated person under the heavens live, he would spit on the thought. When Leon was still slightly unsatisfied, the kindness within him naturally did not hope for such a thing to occur. He confirmed with Rang Yong in a low voice, what's the benefit of condensing the soul before refining the cone nail? Ere I think that. The Lama understood what he had wanted to ask. He sighed, a heaven's cone nail with a soul would actively absorb the spirit primordial energy of the heavens and earth. A soulless heaven's cone nail can only passively wait for the spirit primordial energy to gather there is a huge difference in power between this activeness and passiveness. After he finished, the Lama paused briefly and lowered his voice, can you look for a reason to refreeze me? I don't feel comfortable like this. When Leon looked at Cone Nail's frail frame in the gale, he felt a gush of sadness. He went over and patted lightly on her shoulder. Cone Nail was in a daze. She only turned her head absent-mindedly when when Leon patted her shoulder lightly and looked at him. When Leon was flustered. He had never seen a look like this. The gaze of the pair of beautiful eyes were obviously directed at him but it was as wispy as the enshrouding mist deep in the mountains, it looked like it enveloped everything but yet it also looked like it ignored everything. Cone Nail's gaze gradually strengthened after a long time. It was so complicated that other people could not guess. However, when Leon could feel that the Cone Nail now had truly seen him. Perplex. Shock. Sadness. Unwillingness to believe. The emotions in her eyes could not be expressed with words but it eventually erupted in a heartfelt grievance. After a loud cry, Cone Nail was like a young snow phoenix. She grabbed Wen Leon with domineeringly and violently with a tinge of recklessness and used her entire strength to wedge her head into his chest. Wen Leon could not even distinguish whether it was a blazing charcoal or a ten thousand year ancient ice that stuck on his chest. It was extremely hot yet cold. It gave him a shocking familiarity. Cone Nail who was almost unparalleled in the world was truly aggrieved now. Like a little girl who lost everything, she hid within one Leyang's chest and cried loudly. She wiped her tears and snot on his chest without a care. You've got me, had the shock of its life. It squalled and hopped onto the head Lama's bald head. It went around in circles with some lingering fear Cone Nail was the embodiment of true water, it was in tour restricting with its nature. When Leon dared not even move a muscle, neither did he want to move. He reached out a hand and patted Cone Nail's back that was slightly frail. He wanted to console her but did not know where to start. After a long while, Cone Nail finally restrained her cries. 
When she lifted her head again, she had regained her initial condition of a pitiable meekness. When she saw the wet mess when Le Yang's chest was in, a blush flashed across her eyes but it was short-lived. You've got me hastily escaped back to its old nest. It did not have the courage to face Cone Nail even for a second. When Leong laughed honestly. He pointed at the few hundred icicles in front of him and diverted the topic, what happened to them? Cone Nail's current expression was just as when Leong had first seen her. The sadness and perplexed expression were gone. Her thin lips pressed in an innocent manner, if you want to find the heavenly water spirit, you must first find the bugs. I followed the bug's trail and found these white-robed men as she said this, she offered Wen Leong a favor. She raised her hand and released the giant pangolin from the icicle again. Wen Leong knitted his brows slightly, you can follow the bug's trail. The giant pangolin immediately scolded in a loud voice, foolish boy. The immortal is the utmost element of heaven's water. How could the water element bugs escape from her? Cone Nail seemed shocked by Patu's sudden outburst. She hastily defended herself as if she had done something wrong, it's not like he said, I could sense the bugs who recognize their master from afar. For those with no masters, I can't find them if they were far away. That's why I found this campsite after some searching. Even if it was Cone Nail, she could not detect the movements of normal firecrackers. The firecrackers which had acknowledged a master would no longer have a pure water element body. Kone Nail had entered the mountain later than the Tibetans, Kunlun, Lu Zheng and the others, but she would never trouble herself with other matters. She only chased the bugs and eventually found the Hua family campsite on the snow-covered peak. Kone Nail smiled towards when Leong regained its shy composure. This made it hard to believe that she had genuinely cried loudly just a few moments ago, I didn't know that you were also on the Tangula Mountains before I came. These white-robed people had immediately activated their magic to kill me without even asking as she said this, an endless fear showed through her eyes. The giant pangolin quickly chimed in, their dog eyes were blind. How dare they raise their hands against the immortal, they deserve to be flayed. Cone Nail glanced at him and smiled as if she made a reference, alas, these people did not have scales, they are no fun. The scales on the giant pangolin's body visibly rippled from his head to the tip of his tail in a cold shudder. The Hua family elites had taken the visiting Cone Nail as an enemy. They risked their lives and attacked without hesitation. As a result, they were frozen into huge ice nails by Cone Nail effortlessly. Seeing that they were also of the water element, Cone Nail had spared their lives. She had only used some tricks to comprehend the relationship between the Hua family and the firecrackers. The Hua family had also lost a bunch of firecrackers and were looking for them frantically. Naturally, they did not know the whereabouts of the bugs. At this moment, the first wave of white-robed youths was dispatched by Hua Xiaoyao to relay the message that the bugs were already under control. Kone Nail wanted to rush over the moment she heard about this. Almost at the same time, a large crowd of Tibetans barged in and attacked the Hua family campsite. Although the living dead were terrifying, they were not even worth mentioning in Cone Nail's eyes. What truly made Cone Nail terrified was that these Tibetans were mixed with Xian Lu's aura. Cone Nail was in no hurry to find the firecrackers. She only wanted to see if there would be any skilled Xian Lu disciples who would appear after the living dead were imprisoned by her. To her, Xian Lu was her true fatal enemy. The one, who would not let her live the most under the heavens, was Xian Lu. That was why the Tibetans and Hua family disciples were frozen within icicles. However, no men of Xiang Lu appeared. On the other hand, the Hua family youths were dispatched by Hua Xiaoyao in batches until finally Wen Leong himself came. Kon Nail suddenly sighed in between her speech. She shook her head at Wen Leong, it's no use. That matter is like a needle now. If I can't get to the bottom of it, it would be meaningless for me to be a human. Don't you divert the topic again. As she said this, she looked at the head Lama Ranyong, Master, how confident are you that my soul was extracted to refine the heavens Cone Nail? Even though Cone Nail was a smart and scheming person, she had lost her calm when faced with the mystery of her own life. After understanding her own situation, she eagerly continued the topic. Ranyong snorted, 90%. Cone Nail smiled and said drilly, the Master is too humble. 
You were already sure in your heart, make it a hundred percent. Rang Yong smiled and said nothing. He did not know what to say. Wen Leong coughed softly. He earnestly soothed, let the past. Kohn Nail did not let him finish as she shook her head. Her tone was so dry that it made others' chest stifle, have you ever thought, because of this past, maybe I have sought revenge from the wrong person all along. Wen Leong was dumbstruck. He truly did not think of this. To him, Kohn Nail was Chang Li's, Hanba's, and even the Tua Xia line's great enemy. She was also their most important reliance to defeat Xiang Lu. His consolations and advice completely did away with these point of views. It was like a friend and also like a passerby who had no conflict of interests. He had only consoled her to make himself feel better, there was no why, nor were there any clear aims. Kohn Nail paused for a brief moment before she continued, I had hated Chang Li the most before this. Now that I think about it, the first time she shattered me, she let me live again as a person the second time she harmed me. She made me remember the things that happened before I was a heaven's cone nail Chang Li had become my benefactor instead. Wen Liang's eyes lit up instantly. This was the first time in his life where he felt that cone nail's thoughts could be cute. If he could truly erase the thought of cone nail's revenge against Chang Li, it would be a feat greater than building a seven-story pagoda. He smiled and wanted to hit while the iron was hot and cheered her on but Kone Nail's attitude suddenly changed, not only did Chang Li became my benefactor, that nine-headed Xiang Lu had also become my friend. Although I had subdued it for millions of years, the root of things it was the fault of the vile person who refined heaven's Kone Nail. Kone Nail had always thought that it was the primordial gods that refined the nine heavens Kone Nails. However, she now had a rough idea about the process of her turning into a heaven's cone nail. Even if it really was the Buddhas and gods who did this, they had become despicable persons in her eyes. She wanted to kill them and feel happy. Wen Leong and Rang Yong were dumbstruck. The current cone nail did not begrudge Chang Li so much but she started to begrudge the master of Black and White Island. Anyone could have guessed her most direct way of getting revenge, kill all the way to Black and White Island, shatter the other eight heavens cone nails and release nine-headed Xiang Lu. The true soul that controlled Tian Yin's Dharmakeya had already caused a headache among the peoples. If cone nail also swung the other way, by next year's dragon boat festival, Xiang Lu was bound to be able to eat some fresh glutinous rice dumplings. Once Xiang Lu returned to the human realm, the unlucky one would be his family's Grand Master Changli. When Leung anxiously waved his hands wildly and stammered, if Xiang Lu breaks free. Kone Nail did not say anything. She merely looked at Wen Leong with a happy smile, as if she admired his flustered expression. At this moment, Guo Huan snorted heavily and suddenly. He rigidly interrupted Wen Leong, foolish lad, don't embarrass yourself. Kone Nail had known that there was a Guo Huan within the jade knife and was not startled now. She laughed loudly, an old fairy is more thorough than a foolish lad. Guo Huan also chuckled. It was indistinguishable whether it was a bitter laugh or a sneer. He said to Wen Leong rudely, Tian Zhui knows it better than anyone what kind of thing Xiang Lu is. That utmost vile thing under the heavens is a natural killer and pays all its debts. How could it forgive the heavens cone nail of the water element that had subdued it for millions of years? When it breaks free, I think the first person on its list would be cone nail. Wen Leong gave an awe. He nodded in slight shock. Kone Nail chuckled and nodded, I won't release Xiang Lu. Of course, it's only a dream if you think I'd return to Black and White Island. You guys should be thinking of another way to defeat Xiang Lu, the sooner the better. Actually there's a magic cast on my body. No matter how tyrannical I am, I can never harm a grass or a tree on Black and White Island. Even if I really did return, I could never harm the other heaven's cone nail nor can I release Xiang Lu. Wen Leong was more at ease but he was still worried. He questioned closely in earnest, then what are you planning to do now? Cone nail shook her head with helplessness, I must first find the heavenly water spirit to heal my wounds, then I'll give Chang Li a good beating. Wen Leong was startled. He said in fear and anger, why re you still saying that? Cone nail laughed, before the great enemy, I'm too lazy to even think about my quarrel with Chang Li. 
However, she must promise me one thing, she cannot force me to restore the demon subduing great formation for eternity. Or else, I would rather die in glory than to live in dishonor. Wen Liang's face darkened but he said nothing. His mind was a mess and he felt uncomfortable. Kone Nail saw that when Leong did not resolutely shake his head in rejection, a happy expression quickly rose on her face. She was extremely happy but she seemed to be afraid to believe, you still care about me? When Leong's impression of Kone Nail might not be that good but, in his eyes, she was a living person no matter what. If Kone Nail wanted to kill Chongli, he would proceed without hesitation to bear this grudge but his heart will feel uncomfortable if he were to grab this living person and turn her back into a heaven's cone nail which was like the living dead. Especially now when he vaguely suspected that cone nail was originally a cultivator whose soul was extracted to make the heaven's cone nail. No matter how serious a matter subduing Xiang Lu was, to cone nail, it was an extreme injustice. Cone nail lifted her head again. She looked at Wen Leon with bright eyes, however, Hanba had injured Tian Shu, I must repay him in kind. The edge of Wen Liang's eye twitched. He was slightly heartbroken, though he did not know for whom. Kone Nail saw Wen Liang's hesitation and seemed to be truly happy, after we're done with all this, we'll go find Tian Shu and Tian Hua. We can ask them how much they know as she said this, Kone Nail suddenly shut her mouth. She stared at Wen Liang, Stop keeping me out of the loop, did something happen on Black and White Island? Kone Nail's gaze was sharp. When she asked why did Xiang Lu have subordinates, Wen Leong had diverted the topic with changes in his expression. When she mentioned Tian Shu for the second time, Wen Leong's gaze was dull. These minute changes were all observed by Kone Nail. The Jade Knife Guo Huan also interrupted Drilly, stop keeping her out of the loop. She had spent her days with the three enlightened persons of Black and White Island for a million years. Heaven's cone nails were alive but they could not move nor speak. In the long days on Black and White Island where there was no notion of time, their sole entertainment was seeing the three enlightened persons cultivate. Chat and play around this friendly sentiment which could only be described as loneliness was much deeper than vigorous gallantry, or else cone nail would not have gone mad with rage after she saw Hanbo wounding Tian Shu. When Leong pointed at the white robes and the icicles, I've told you before, you can't harm the innocent. Cone Nail waved and a huge patch of icicles shattered. Every white-robed man was released. The icicles which froze the living dead Tibetans still stood tall and the raging cold wind on the snow-covered peak also vanished suddenly. The surroundings quieted down suddenly. Cone Nail did not even glance at the flustered Hua family people. She only stared at Wen Leong and spat out one word forcefully, speak. In the boundless silence, Wen Leong's voice was slow but firm. Every word resounded steadily among the earth. Everyone else held their breaths, nobody dared to interrupt simply. Suddenly, a crisp paw was heard, a savage crack erupted under Cone Nail's feet. Wen Leong shut his mouth with shock. Cone Nail, however, opened her mouth again as cold as ancient ice, continue, talk. The three enlightened persons had died. The true soul of Xian Lu possessed Tian Yin's Dharmakeya. After the living dead butchered the evil cult followers they went up the mountain to chase away the ice bugs when Leong finally relayed everything. Kone Nail's expression did not change. She did not even interrupt him. She only waited after when Leong utterly quieted down, then she confirmed softly, are you done? Wen Leung nodded and wanted to say something. Suddenly, a shrill scream that was sharper than a wolf's howl rose from Cone Nail's mouth into the sky. At the same time, a sharp eruption resounded in the heavens. The huge patch icicle forest of a hundred Tibetans shattered in unison. The high wind at the snow-covered peak finally broke free of its shackles after being blocked. It howled and rolled wildly. It was more breathtaking than the Ninth Heaven Thunder Conjuration. The sound of wind turned into a wail. Amidst the countless flying ice shards, the icicles and the living dead frozen within them were destroyed with the lift of Cone Nail's finger. Cone Nail mercilessly killed all the frozen living dead people. Then, she looked at the Hua family disciples with a cold look, I'll borrow your ice bugs, I'll return them right after. The Hua family disciples did not dare to shake their heads. 
Whether it was her magic powers or her cruelty, the beautiful white-dressed young lady terrified them. After all, she had clearly stated that she would only borrow their bugs. When Leon was worried that Cone Nail would trouble the Hua family disciples again. He carried on the conversation, I'm not sure if that bugger had come here. Besides, there should be more living dead Tibetans lying in ambush. There was about 177 of them. Guohuan had killed a few dozens, eight of them died this morning, there's about 110 here. After the Tibetans arrived at the snow-covered peak, the only thing they did was continuously releasing the firecrackers. Finally, the truth was revealed. They wanted to use the firecrackers to find the heavenly water spirit. On the snow-covered peak, whether it was when Leong or Kunlun sect, they could treat Kone Nail as one of their own. As long as that true soul did not show itself, the abilities of the Tibetans were not worth mentioning. However, the heavy grudge that wedged between Tua Xia, Changli, Kone Nail, Black and White Island and Xiang Lu gave everyone an extreme headache. Wen Leon could not wrap his mind around this but he decided to use his clean-cut, great magic. He did not care how complicated things would get, he would just help his relatives. Chapter, 216 Hua Xiaoyao was very intelligent, he folded his hands and saluted, you can count on us to look for the living dead. Kone Nail nodded lightly towards him and smiled in a courteous manner, thank you, please inform us when you have found the Tibetans. The giant pangolin hastily shook its huge head, there is no need for the fairy maiden to handle the living dead. Petu is here to assume personal command, I will never return as long as I am not done killing the evil Tibetans. The living dead were skilled in the magic spell of Great Xia's nine tripod cauldrons. It was rather troublesome to deal with once the magic spell was launched but any living dead that was more troubling would still be cuter than Cone Nail by a million times in Petu's heart. As Rang Yong, who usually stood firm for the cause of justice, had a clearer understanding of the situation, he puffed up his chest and spoke in a low muffled voice, the living dead defiled the king, the lama would never forgive them easily. Kone Nail laughed as she nodded. She did not speak anymore but dragged Wen Leong and walked away, I am searching for the bug, you shall accompany me for a walk. Wen Leong was slightly suspicious that Kone Nail could be suffering from a psychotic break. At first, she found out about the enigma of her life. Then, she received the sad news of the death of that three sword immortals, who she regarded as her family. Yet, to Wen Leong's surprise, she could still laugh at this point. Kone Nail could see through Wen Leong's thoughts, a sense of hesitation could be seen on the pucker of her lips, the situation is very complicated have you ever thought that perhaps the three sword immortals are my enemies? Hee <laughs> hee, my only family is the enemy's disciples as she was saying that, she did not launch the escape magic spell but pull Wen Leong's hand. She spread her legs and dashed wildly into the boundless snow peak. Kone Nail had since found out the location of the bugs from the Hua family disciples that returned to their home to deliver a message, there was no need for Wen Leong to show the way. They dashed wildly all the way, Wen Leong was still running a little in the beginning but later on he was just dragged by Kone Nail as he hurtled with his feet on the ground. The dashing to her heart's content and the strong and vigorous wind seemed to become the potion that healed her injuries. Kone Nail ran for a while before her mood turned better, she lowered her head and spoke to Wen Leong, the three of them are dead. Even if I were to return to the Black and White Island willingly, the great demon executing formation would never be reformed anymore. Wen Leong was hurtling, yet his body could not help but tremble at the sound of her words. He looked up to Kone Nail from a ghastly angle, what do you mean? Even if I were to return to my formation's position, someone would still need to chant the formation conjuration spell before the great formation could be reformed to receive the essence of the universe. However, now that the three of them are dead, no one knows about the formation conjuration spell anymore. If you want to protect that Grand Master Changli of yours, you ought to figure out another way as soon as possible. Wen Leong did not try to conceal his intention anymore. He knew that he could not hide his thoughts from Kone Nail so he asked unwillingly, how about Lu Zheng? Does he know the formation conjuration spell? Kone Nail shook her head, Lu Zheng is only considered Tian Shu's titular disciple, he is not even considered the Black and White Island sect disciple. Whether it is his identity or the cultivation method he refined in, there is no way he can launch the formation conjuration spell. At this point, 
Cone Nail paused for a moment, she became all smiles again, if I could remember everything from the past. Perhaps I can find some clues it is best for you to hope that the pstard who condensed and refined the heavens cone nails is not some ancient great god and he has yet to ascend to become an immortal. However. Wen Leong laughed in a manner that was uglier than crying. Cone nails memory would need to be restored. Then he would need to seek the whereabouts of the person who condensed the heavens cone nails and hopes that this person was still a mortal not that it was not possible but the process was truly too complicated. Wen Leong heaved a sigh in his heart and responded, however. Cone Nail smiled in a slightly cunning manner, her smile was reflected into Wen Leong's eyes, such that he was feeling rather joyous as well, however, in case we manage to find this person, I am going to seek revenge from him. What are you going to do? Wen Leong pondered for a long while, he suddenly laughed, I will ask him if there are any other ways that we can suppress Xiang Lu once again without the use of the heavens cone nails. Cone Nail gave out a surprised, huh, of course there wasn't. If there was a way, why did he bother to condense the heavens cone nails in the beginning even if it was possible that he knew of other ways, if the way existed then what are you going to do then? When Leon laughed in an incomparably prideful manner, then we will request for him to suppress Xian Lu first and then I will seek revenge from him on behalf of you. Cone Nail laughed, then, what if there is not one? When Leon spoke with all apparent seriousness, even though he knew that he was purely indulging in a wild fantasy as well, then we will force him to pass down the formation conjuration spell and then I will seek revenge on behalf of you. I will detain you so you will return to the Black and White Island for the Great Formation. Cone Nail seemed to find this topic rather interesting, then what if he can be found but the time is pressing and he does not manage to pass down the formation conjuration spell. This Great Formation's formation conjuration spell is an exceedingly complicated art. Even though Tian Shu and Tian Yin were the disciples of the Orthodox sect, they had to cultivate for a few thousand years before they could launch the spell with great difficulties. Even so, the chance of success was perhaps 8 out of 10. When Leon heaved a sigh, then, there is no other way but to make him return you to the Great Formation first, and then if worst comes to the worst I will help you to seek revenge from him. Kone Nail raised her arm and lifted Wen Leong in front of him. She stared at him with interest, that person is albeit my mortal enemy, he is a living immortal who brings benefit to the world. Are you sure that you want to deal with him? Wen Leung's current posture would even startle himself, you are closer to me than that person but Chang Li is closer to me than you. Do you understand? Kohn Nail suddenly gave out a series of clear and melodious laughter but she did not speak. Wen Leung was hurtling up and down. He put on a long face as he discussed with her, can you please slow down, I can let go of you and run. I am not that slow, I will not be delaying. Cone Nail slowed down her steps as expected. She placed Wen Leong on the ground and pulled him as she ran along his side. Wen Leong was more relaxed, he was also more confident. He ran as he looked for a topic with Cone Nail, why is it called, follow the bugs and you will find the heavenly water spirit. Those bugs were freed for quite a while but the bugs did not even look for the heavenly water spirit, they were only flying around everywhere on the snow peak. Cone Nail always had a cruel heart under the cover of her sugar-coated words towards the others, she could be joking while she suddenly attacked someone. Yet she was only rather patient when she was with Wen Leong, the bugs refused to locate the heavenly water spirit because its force of water element is not enough. She was aware that Wen Leong did not know anything, so she continued to explain, the force of water, in simpler words, is the rainstorm, the deluge and even the avalanche and tsunami. It is the natural force of water in between the heaven and the earth. The bugs are not attending performing its proper duty now, but once the rainstorm and snowstorm befall, the bugs will be on their way to look for the heavenly water spirit. Upon saying that, she paused for a moment before she shook her head and laughed, do not ask me why. I just remember these things but I cannot remember the principle. When Leon was not interested in the principles and reasons, he was more concerned about the practice, so, what are you going to do after you find the bugs? Are you going to wait for the rain in the mountain? According to the Lama Rangyong, the highland is already in the rainy season by now, it is possible for rain or snow to happen soon. Cone Nail pursed her lips, I am too lazy to wait, I will release the bugs in a while. It is not that difficult to cast a spell that causes rainfall. 
When Leong was chatting and laughing with Kone Nail when he suddenly realized that he had already felt more relaxed now. The three enlightened immortals of the Tian generation name had deceased. Since there was already no way the great demon executing formation could be reformed, the conflict of interest between Tua Xie's disciples and Kone Nail was lost. The two persons walked at an extremely fast pace, they were dashing on the snow peak so swiftly such that there was no way one could see their shadows. The both of them chatted and laughed and finally rushed to the location where the Hua family youths sealed the firecrackers. The sound of a clear sword hummed all of a sudden, echoing sharply from the sky. The sharp sword's blades were aiming right at them from afar. When Leong gave out a, hey, he bawled loudly at Lu Zheng to retract his sword formation. Lu Zheng's laughter echoed from the ice fissure, he seemed to have opened his mouth in preparation to speak but before the words left his mouth. His voice turned into a perplexed scream. The sky before Wen Liang's eyes suddenly darkened. In the blink of an eye, thousands of streaks of cold radiance erupted in a loud bang. Within the heaven-shocking hum that was accompanied by the force of violence capable of causing the apocalypse. The Kunlun sword formation that was nourished by the enlightened person Tian Hua with his remnant life vitality mercilessly poured onto Wen Leong and Kone Nail. Wen Leong did not even have the time to close his eyes. He watched helplessly as the great formation of the thousands of swords, which was as fast as lightning and was rolling like a dragon, was about to crash into his body. It was difficult for the enlightened person Tian Shu, in his prime, to even resist the Kunlun sword formation. With Wen Liang's cultivation base, being caught off guard and utterly unprepared to deal with the situation suddenly a stretch of crystal clear color of white filled his pupils in a domineering manner. Cone Nail waved her hands continuously. The sound of the wind that had recently been churned by the sword radiance into pieces started roaring wildly on the snow peak once. The divine swords that were surging at the front were extinguished by the rolling frost, which also shielded Wen Leong from being drowned. When seen from afar, the thousands of swords on the snow peak charged and shot and gradually condensed into over a hundred steel dragons. Layers of snow and ice pieces kicked up boundless dust within Cone Nail's dancing sleeves. It was thick and heavy yet sharp. Two gushes of bold and vigorous force entangled one another in surges, the forces fought in rage endlessly. Cone Nail temporarily shielded when Leong against the Kunlun sword formation. Her usually crystal clear face was misted with a layer of blush soundlessly but in between her breaths, a streak of terrifying blood crept out from the corner of her mouth. Compared to the agitated sword formation and snowstorm, the blood dropped in a gentle yet weak manner. Cone Nail's severe injuries from earlier had yet to fully recover and she was launching magic spells continuously on the snow peak. Following that, her emotions fluctuated on a few occasions. Hence, when she was bracing against the Kunlun sword formation, her state of injury had deteriorated. When Leong rescued Kone Nail's life in great urgency, he could no longer care about being scared. He broke out in curses towards Lu Zheng and was about to urge the faulty punch and the metal poison stream to help Kone Nail to break out of the encirclement when his body suddenly stiffened. He was frozen into the ice spike by Kone Nail again. The Kunlun Divine Swords, which were surging and rolling, did not acknowledge Wen Leong at all. The swords howled as they swept past the ice spikes, they had only one aim, Kone Nail, who was waving around her long sleeves akin to dancing. Lu Zheng led the seventy-two esteemed sword seniors behind him as they dashed up to the snow peak. They turned pale in fear upon witnessing the scene before their eyes and started pinching their fingers into the sword control gesture one after another in an attempt to summon the sword formation that had suddenly lost control. However, their effort did not cause any effect at all. Old Gu, Fei Fei and Xiao Sha each hid behind the back of an esteemed sword senior. Something so serious was happening on the snow peak, they had to appear regardless of whether their presence was helping the situation or not. Lu Jing attempted for a few times but his effort was futile. He was jumping and cursing in exasperation, he immediately clenched his teeth and summoned his own flying sword and was about to dash forward to help Cone Nail in shielding against the sword formation. The seventy-two esteemed sword seniors were so furious that their eyes were almost widened to the point of cracking. They imitated their supreme leader and urged their personal treasured weapons as they dashed forward. Wen Leong could see the situation outside as clear as day. 
It was only then he realized that the Kunlun sword formation that was raiding Kone Nail was not launched by the Kunlun disciples. Even Lu Zheng did not understand how did the sword formation suddenly lose control. The three enlightened persons of the Black and White Island were already dead, whether it was Kone Nail's status or her relationship, she was a senior in Lu Zheng's heart. How could he stay calm and watched helplessly as the corner of Kone Nail's mouth and her clothes were tainted with bloodstains? However, the moment every single Kunlun disciple had only pounced forward, crystal clear and glistening glare circulated underneath their feet abruptly. Lu Zheng was leading his 72 esteemed sword seniors, he was also bringing along old Gu and the siblings. Similar to when Leon, Kone Nail froze them into ice spikes. The gaze that Kone Nail used to look at Lu Zheng and the rest was accompanied by a sense of unexplainable smile, why is there a necessity to sacrifice your petty little lives? She resisted the sword formation's raid. While she turned around and looked towards Wen Leon, she was still smiling gently as before, such as Tian Hua. When Kone Nail was speaking, the fresh blood that was seeping out of the corner of her mouth became even thicker. Every word she spoke was tainted with the color of blood that penetrated through the rigid glacier and echoed clearly into Wen Leong's ears. Wen Leong could not speak nor move, he was feeling very oppressed in his heart. The poisonous bones in his entire body erupted in a series of muffled popping sounds, the poison of life and death flowed then surged out of the gaps in between the bones of his limbs. Gradually converged into a poison tide and started surging wildly within his body, trying to struggle free from the ice spike's shackles strenuously. Kone Nail did not realize that when Leong was trying to break through the ice spike strenuously, she continued to laugh. Tian Hua used his remnant spirit to nourish the swords, before he died, he still did not forget about trying to detain me back to the Black and White Island. The sword formation absorbed his primordial spirit and inherited his death wish as well, that was why the sword formation did not follow Lu Zheng's control upon seeing me. It did not care about anything else but attacked me. Kone Nail's movements were already much slower than before. Her actual power was slightly inferior to Changli, but she was firmly positioned above the three sword immortals of the Tian generation. When she was in her prime, it was not difficult for her to brace or dodge the sword formation but with her old injuries flaring up, she was trapped both from the inside and the outside. In a short while, she had already turned from an unparalleled master cultivator that was calm and unhurried into a weak and fragile young woman. When Leon howled in rage from the bottom of his heart. He felt as if the strength in his entire body was about to explode. The ice spike that was frozen around him started to loosen gradually. A layer of fine fissures that could not be seen with the naked eyes was akin to being alive and started spreading in all directions rapidly. Are you trying to ask me that since there is already no one in the Black and White Island who is capable of launching the Formation Conjuration spell and that since the Great Demon Executing Formation cannot be reformed anymore? Why is that fool Tian Hua still constantly thinking about detaining me back to the Black and White Island before he died? Kone Nail was calling Tian Hua a fool in her mouth but her tone of speaking was filled with heart-wrenching pain, the kind of heartache that made everyone heartache. When Liang's body struggled gently. As long as he could move a little, he could immediately launch the faulty punch, which was rippling with the raging poison of life and death, and break through the ice spike that was binding himself. Kone Nail's gaze appeared a little distracted. She had not realized that when Leon was about to break out from the ice but continued to speak to herself, actually it is not that difficult to guess the answer, it is because Tian Shu lied to Tian Hua. Tian Hua did not even know that at his death, Tian Shu was as severely injured as he was, they were both unsalvageable. When she was pronouncing the last word, Kone Nail abruptly gave out a crisp laughter akin to the explosion of the silver vase. The laughter was only heard once. A mouthful of fresh blood so crimson it could paint the entire heaven and earth red spurted out of her mouth. The divine swords that were covering the sky hummed in unison, the sharp sword radiance finally grinded the whirling snow into powder. The wind and snow stopped momentarily. The thousand of swords halted their movements. At that moment, the time on the snow peak was akin to being dragged forcefully by the laughter and fresh blood. Crack. The magic ice spike that was frozen around when Leong was finally broken by the faulty punch. 
At the sound of a loud bang, it was shattered into countless of ice shards, when Leon exerted a long howl that was filled with rage and unwillingness from the depth of his body. At the same time, the thousand of swords broke out again and caught up to Wen Leong in less than a moment. The faulty punch was capable of breaking a magic spell but it was incapable of breaking Tian Hua's gallant soul that was still attached to the swords. This poisonous bones and poisonous meridians were as tough as steel but he could not brace the impact of hundreds of sword dragons surging and roaring. It was as if every single sword was rippling with the tremendous force of ten thousand horses stampeding. As when Leon was holding Cone Nail in his cradle, he could not move freely, he could only use his faulty punch to dissolve the batch of Kunlun divine swords that was blazing at the front and the bones in his limbs were already sore and weak. The poison of life and death that had just converged into a mighty torrent was already crushed by the continuous impact. When Leon could only feel his throat warming, the vision before his eyes was filled with golden sparks. A gush of countercurrent surged out from his chest uncontrollably. He bawled and spat out a mouthful of fresh blood as well. When Leong spat out a mouthful of blood, it was only then he realized that Cone Nail in his cradle was still conscious. Her pupils were no longer misted by the slight injustice and pity that were constantly there on usual days, instead it was replaced with a form of interest. Just like a little girl that accidentally discovered a new way to play with the doll, that form of little satisfaction and little curiosity and also a little joy, little, but enough to send the adults into blushing in embarrassment. Cone Nail looked at Wen Leong with interest. From her view, Wen Leong stubbles on his chin and the two pitch black holes of his nostrils were obvious. A gush of fresh blood so hot that it made one felt anxious poured onto her lively face. It also enticed her eyes. The first round of sword rain was forcefully resisted by Wen Leong but the thousands of swords were still shuttling back and forth in the sky, surging and shooting like the shadow that followed its form. Just as when Leong spat out the fresh blood and could no longer resist anymore, his chest suddenly felt warm. You've got me, stiffened the sharp stings on its entire body, like a hero, but even more like a drunken boor. In its almost bitter ululation, it suddenly bounced once and jumped onto Wen Leong's shoulder. A gush of boiling air enshrouded onto the snow peak with a loud bang. It was unknown since when the blue sky was already covered in majestic-looking fire clouds, the thundering fierce flames burned enchantingly. Streaks upon streaks of thick fiery snakes probed out its body swiftly and left behind a tinge of charred marks in the air. The fire snakes then returned into the clouds again. A red-colored giant sword that could only be described as blotting out the sky and covering the sun was surging within the raging fire. Under, you've got me's ululation, the swords appeared in a loud bang and floated in front of Wen Liang's body firmly. The giant sword gave out a heaven's thunder and hellfire-like loud hum. On the red-colored giant sword, for enormous words, molten metal fire bell, could be seen. Every single stroke was written with utmost disposition and arrogance. The thousands of swords converged into hundreds of mighty sword dragons yet it did not manage to surge past the molten metal fire bell's obstruction. The Kunlun sword scattered over and over again and converged over and over again. The ice sheet on the ground started melting rapidly. The mushy ice sludge was filled with the shattered divine swords. When Leon was both surprised and joyous, just as he was about to raise his hand and poked it, you've got me's tiny head, he could not even exert an ounce of strength. He lied diagonally on the ground with cone nail, none of them could budge an inch. A squall suddenly echoed from the ice fissure, a black head, a skinny head, a white head and a plump head stuck out from the ground surface. Ji Song carried the Hua family's uncle Quan on his back, Tuta Tunt was holding the fat and plump Hua Xiaoba who was on garrison duty. They climbed onto the surface together. The moment Hua Xiaoba arrived on the ice sheet, he immediately behaved like his buttocks were burnt by fire, he squalled and stuttered as he ran everywhere, firecrackers. 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 Firecrackers following that he realized the presence of flying swords shuttling through the entire sky, a group of Kunlun disciples that were frozen into ice blocks. His mouth was agape from astonishment, he stood on the same spot at a loss of what to do, he paused for two seconds then he pouted his lips and wailed loudly. At this moment, a muffled thunder surged and shot through the sky abruptly. The vision before when Liang's eyes blurred, 
cold rain penetrated through the fire clouds and poured onto the snow peak, it was raining raining heavily. As the molten metal fire bell that was summoned by, You've Got Me, was blocking against the Kunlun sword formation, it was also enshrouding the area with the heated airstream. It was also rippling layers of fire clouds. The coldest sky on the snow peak was suddenly surged by the hot airstream, condensed into thick and heavy dark clouds and the heavy rain poured down like a tilted basin. The Kunlun sword formation was not conducted by anyone. It raged for a long while and finally regained its calmness gradually and slowly retracted its offensive intent. It floated unwillingly in the midair for a moment before it gently hummed and disappeared into thin air. The molten metal fire bell quieted down. Its thundering fire vanished as it stabbed onto the ground in a mighty yet overwhelmingly arrogant manner, soundlessly yet despising the heaven and earth. Just as the rainstorm started, the snow peak that was still in a chaos earlier and quieted down abruptly, there was only the swooshing sound of rain on the surroundings that carried along slightly uneasiness and knocked onto the slush ice sheet. Cone Nail lied under the rain, her mouth cracked into an enjoyable smile. She raised her chin gently, yet her body convulsed occasionally. The mighty power of Thousand Swords earlier had already scattered her life vitality but she was smiling earnestly and sincerely as her charming head pillowed on one Liang's shoulder. She was basking in her most fancied rainwater. Enduring, you've got me's most hated rainwater, it cruised on one Liang's chest, neck and face arrogantly. Its route was undetermined but it was only drawing circles. Nevertheless, in the midst of its movement, it dodged away from Cone Nail cautiously. When Leong was filled with puzzlement, You've Got Me saved his life by summoning the molten metal fire bell but when they were dealing with the monkey Qian Ren. You've Got Me was also ovulating with excitement, yet it could not even light up a cigarette when Leong lied on the ground and was pondering when a pitch-black-colored huge face leaped into his vision. Then, he saw a row of ghastly pale teeth. Tudatunt was giving him a joyous smile, yet in the eyes of Wen Leong he appeared absolutely terrifying. Tudatunt had yet to smile to his heart's content when he suddenly disappeared without a trace. Wen Leong's vision was replaced with an anxious and plump face, Hua Xiaoba had pushed the African brother away. He put on a long face as he looked at Wen Leong, where in trouble the fire element gigantic treasured sword broke the magic spell that was freezing the firecrackers cast by Hua Xiaoyao, the bugs are struggling free now. Fortunately, when Cone Nail was fighting against the Kunlun sword formation earlier, the movement she created was rather humongous, that the firecrackers that had taken control of the Kunlun disciples brought along its masters and escaped deeper into the ice layers, so those firecrackers that had escaped were the masterless ones. Before Hua Xiaoba could finish talking, You've Got Me abruptly stopped moving, it exerted its power and raised its tiny head strenuously. It whipped its head as if it was smelling the air on the surroundings when it suddenly squalled. It slammed its tail as it pried open Wen Liang's mouth with great efforts and dove head first into his mouth and refused to come out anymore. Tudatunt started screaming in surprise, he bent over his body in preparation pull Wen Liang. Yet, the moment his pitch black colored fingers came into contact with Wen Liang, his body suddenly shook vigorously. He fell and sat on the ground, his mouth cracked into a ghastly smile, his body sank into the ice sheet inch by inch. Ji Song who was carrying Uncle Quan on his body also squalled. He spread his legs and ran away. The icy cold temperature that was piercing the bones abruptly surged out from underneath the ice sheet. Just like the cold water that was frozen for millenniums under the ice that drowned when Leong soundlessly and in an uncourteous manner. Hua Xiaoba widened his mouth and cried loudly, we're in trouble. Thousands of firecrackers melted into each other, in a shape that appeared formless to the eyes but the size was enough to fill a neighboring small-sized pond and swallowed when Leong and Cone Nail into nothingness. Perhaps it was because the great enemy, you've got me, was in Wen Leong's mouth, or perhaps it was because Cone Nail's art of ancient ice was too miraculous. Even that the firecrackers could not see through the people who were still frozen in the ice spikes, such as the Kunlun disciples and Old Gu. After the bugs swallowed Wen Leong, the bugs shook ever so slightly and started swimming joyously in the rainwater. Chapter 217 From its appearance, the bug tide was like a mini swamp. It was a single entity that was purer than the waters of Namso Lake and clearer than the ancient ice on Jelaindong Peak. However, when Leong, 
who was deep in its midst, felt a chilling coldness emanated by the countless bugs, which were enveloping him in layers. The bugs used all their strength to burrow into his body, especially his mouth. He did not know whether it was because You've Got Me was inside his mouth. When Leong felt that his teeth were about to be pushed away by the bugs. The firecrackers were of an alien species on the snow mountain and were deeply related to the heavenly water spirit. Due to their nature, they preferred to cultivate with humans. These bugs practically did not let go of any holes. The head Lama Rangyong had almost suffered a big loss because of this. Of course, for cultivators, if they suffered a loss like this from the beginning but managed to hold on until the end, it would be a great blessing instead. When Leong could clench his teeth but he could not shut his ears and mouth. Luckily, the force of the poison of life and death could already flow freely within his body. When he was invaded by the bugs, the poison flowed out and sealed Wen Leong's seven orifices and every single pore. It had temporarily blocked the bugs that wanted to surge into his body frantically. Hua Xiaoba was flustered. He was only a little fat boy, who was about eight years old. When he was confronted with such an incident, even if he was familiar with the bug's temperament, he was still at a loss. He stood at the edge of the bug tide and shouted, It's fine even if you let the bugs in. They do not harm people he had reared the bugs and they would not pounce on him. When Leong did not need his reminder. He already knew the firecracker's habits from Hua Xiaoyao yesterday but You've Got Me, which was in his mouth, was irreconcilable with these water element firecrackers. He would be fine even if he was controlled by the th firecrackers, but his Buddha's light bug would not be so lucky. You've Got Me was also dumbstruck. It curled up pitiably in Wen Liang's mouth and dared not move. After the huge sword, molten metal fire bell flashed its powers, it had quieted down. It did not care about You've Got Me's current predicament. Wen Leon loved You've Got Me almost as much as his own life. You've Got Me had saved his life many times. Besides, in Jelandong, the living dead Tibetans, whose true soul could not be seen, might still ambush them. Wen Leon could not let the firecrackers control him no matter what. Even the men of Kunlun sect, who were profound disciples and had been refining qi since young, they still had to be modified by the bugs for some years. If Wen Leong was controlled, he would be more than sixty years old when he leaves the ice surface. Hua Xiaoba was frustrated. He suddenly knitted his brows and scratched the back of his bald head in confusion. He was flustered. He had just remembered that the bug's tide did not immediately dive into the depths of the ice layer after it captured its master like it normally would but it flowed slowly and happily on the ice cap with pleasure. Cone Nail was heavily wounded and was on the brink of death, she could hardly move. She leaned on Wen Liang's body and fell into the bug tide with him. Nevertheless, she was the embodiment of true water. The firecrackers were not interested in her. Hence, no bugs pounced on her. They left her alone to sink along with Wen Liang. Amidst the stormy and ice-cold water element bug tide, Cone Nail seemed to have regained some vitality. She leaned on Wen Liang's chest and opened her mouth softly, Do you still remember, I told you that, with the force of water element, these bugs can bring us to the heavenly water spirit. When Leon gritted his teeth and shut his eyes, he looked unrelenting. He dared not answer Cone Nail. Even though the poison of life and death had already sealed off his body, the range of his telegnosis ability was also pitiably small. He only knew that he was still floating on the ice cap. Cone Nail suddenly smiled, I have promised you before, that I would bring you to see the heavenly water spirit. The old heaven has eyes after all, I'm able to fulfill my promise halfway through her speech, she seemed to suddenly think of something. She frowned and shut her mouth. Cone Nail's life vitality was in a mess right now. She was heavily wounded and in a dangerous condition. Her self-protection magic art had already disappeared. Fortunately, when Liang's drifting telegnosis ability could see her, or else when Liang would think that she was dead if she had gone silent halfway through her speech. As it rained heavily, it was dark on the snow-covered peak. The dark clouds seemed to press down on them from above. Occasionally, a muffled thunder could be heard as if a giant had fallen down from the sky when Leong suddenly grunted. His body clearly felt that the firecrackers, which swarmed around him wildly expanded in the pouring rain. 
After a brief moment, Cone Nail spoke again. Her voice sounded tired, but compared to before, it was more hopeful, now, my life vitality is a scattered mess. If we followed the bug tide and managed to find the heavenly water spirit, he he, maybe I won't have to die she was halfway through her speech when her little fingers tightened weakly. When Leon used all his strength and could only manage to grab her finger lightly. The bug tide would sway and move sooner or later. They would not abandon Wen Leon but they might not tow Cone Nail around the world with them. The firecrackers expanded swiftly. Every bug doubled in size. The bug tide was like a stretching octopus as it visibly expanded. Hua Xiaoba cried and wailed, this is absurd. The Hua family bred and reared firecrackers but they had done it in a cave sealed by prohibition spells. They never released the bugs throughout these thousands of years. These bugs would escape as soon as they see snow. It was too difficult to capture them once they left the prohibition spell. Even Hua Xiaoba, who was most familiar with the bugs' temperament, did not know that the bugs would grow bigger when they encountered meteoric water. After the few thousands of firecrackers expanded to their maximum potential by absorbing the rainwater, a layer of silver wave rippled. The wave brought one Leong and Cone Nail along as it plunged into the ice layer. Hua Xiaoba leaped up hastily. Like a clumsy little bear, he wagged his buttocks and chased the bug tide closely and escaped into the ice cap. The ice cold bug tide towed one Leong and Cone Nail and dove to the bottom of the ice layer. It only stopped when they bumped into the rigid mountain rock. Then, loud rubbing sounds were heard. Hua Xiaoba, who followed closely behind them, squalled noisily, their bodies have expanded, they want something to eat. Cone Nail's eyes lit up. She pressed her lips as if she thought of something. Under the ice cap was hard mountain rock. Strips of crystal mineral veins were exposed. After the firecrackers expanded, they started to nibble on the crystal mineral impatiently. In the blink of an eye, the crystal mineral, which was sparkling with a bluish hue, had lost its luster. The crystal components of the mineral vein had completely been eaten up by the bugs and turned into bald rocks. The purity of the mineral vein was very poor, it could not satisfy the firecrackers' appetite. The bug tide was like a swarm of locusts, which went after wheat fields. They rolled along the mineral vein between the ice layer and frozen peak and moved towards the southern slope of the snow-covered peak. Strangely, they seemed to lose their interest in the mineral vein after they tasted the previous crystal rocks. It was as if they felt that the crystal rocks tasted bad and went in search of a tastier meal as they raged along the mineral vein. When Leon clearly felt that the firecrackers had grown stronger after they nibbled on the mineral vein. However, they were currently in a hurry to look for food, they did not have time to deal with one Leon and You've Got Me. They only pulled one Leon and You've Got Me snugly as they roared and flowed. They effortlessly shook little fat boy Hua Xiaoba off their tails. Cone Nail leaned on one Leon's body. She gracefully said in a soft voice, I finally understand why we can find the heavenly water spirit by following the bugs. Although the Hua family disciples knew how to rear bugs, they were completely clueless about the causes and consequences. If the heavenly water spirit could be divided into various levels. The heavenly water spirit of Jiangandira Glacier must be the most exquisite amongst them to be able to give birth to great waters that nurture the lands, such as the Yangtze River. The ice river crystal rocks, which were scattered on the snow line, were also born from this special treasure. The firecrackers like to eat the crystal rocks to absorb the utmost water element force contained within them. The rainwater on the snow-covered peak was a rootless meteoric water, it could hasten the growth of the firecrackers greatly. After the firecrackers increased tremendously in size, their need towards the glacier crystal rocks also reached a higher level. The crystal minerals, which were not pure enough, could no longer satisfy them. That was why the bug tide stopped eating and sprinted along the mineral vein in search of purer crystals. As she said this, Cone Nail paused for breath. Her face flushed redder. To others, it was a healthy color, but to her, it was a look of grave wounds, the crystal mineral originated from the heavenly water spirit. The purest mineral must be near the heavenly water spirit. Every word of hers was strained but she was worried that when Leong did not understand. She patiently continued to explain, 
there are tens of thousands of mineral veins here, they intertwine with each other and are extremely complicated. Even if outsiders know that they can find the treasure by following the mineral veins, they will have to search one by one. They may not be able to find it even when the world ends. These bugs are different. It is in their nature to search for the purest mineral rocks. Naturally, they can find the original mineral vein. Although the firecrackers were intelligent, they were just bugs. Their greedy nature prompted them to search for the purest crystal mineral. The other mineral veins, which they overlooked along the way, were actually sufficient for them to fill their bellies. That was why, whether it was a firecracker or a patch of bug tide, as long as it was sprayed with the snow-covered peak's rainwater and grew in size, one could follow them to look for the purest ice mountain crystal rock. Naturally, one could find the heavenly water spirit. Cone Nail had almost exhausted all of her energy after talking for such a long time. She finally closed her eyes with a smile and said no more. The Jade Knife Guo Huan clicked his tongue in amusement after he heard Cone Nail's words. He was knowledgeable but this was his first time hearing such an unimaginable thing. When Leong felt as if he was tied to a speeding train. He was pulled along at lightning speed by the bugs over the snow-covered peak and raced towards Jiangandiru Glacier on the southeastern slope of Jeladaindong. He felt dizzy and sleepy along this trip. Savage ice columns and mottled, winding mineral veins swept across his telegnosis ability ceaselessly. He did not know how much time had passed, suddenly his body felt heavy and the entire bug tide scattered and shattered loudly. The firecrackers, which were larger than leopard cats, were not worried that they might escape. They detached themselves from the bug tide and sprawled on a perfect, flawless huge crystal ground surface and started to nibble wildly. For some time, crunching sounds erupted loudly, making one's hairs stood on its end. A few thousand firecrackers suddenly scattered. Nobody bothered about when Leon. They fell over each other and fought for the glacier's crystal rocks. Although his telegnosis ability could see the surroundings, Wen Leong still could not help but silently open a slit in his eyelids to take a detailed look at his surroundings. Flowing ambient light quickly surged into Wen Leong's eyes. He had never even dreamed that he could be in such an enchantingly beautiful world that could only be described as majestic and magnificent. The crystal under his feet was as smooth and shiny as a mirror. It expanded outwards in all directions in one patch, appearing boundless. There was no mineral vein or crystal shrub, this was a world of crystal. The sky was crystal, the earth was crystal, they were brilliant enough to serve as a mirror. Other than that, there was nothing else. Thousands of trickles flowed happily under the giant crystal wall. It was unknown where they came from and it was unknown where they went. The giant empty space and the mysterious brilliance contrasted each other. They even made Wen Leong feel that his body had turned unreal and blurred. Cone Nail was still leaning on his body, her bright red lips were slightly opened. She was also obviously stunned by the view before her eyes. Wen Leong could not help but took a deep breath. Unexpectedly, he had just made one move and a few big, firecrackers nearby quickly turned their heads in his direction. They flew almost at the same time and pounced towards his recently opened eyes. Wen Leong quickly shut his eyes. The few bugs collided with his face with loud sounds. Wen Leong felt that huge hammers that were swung by beef squads at full strength crashed heavily on his head. He was extremely frightened. After the bugs ate the crystal, their strength also increased tremendously. Even if he had steel tendons and iron bones, his head still buzzed from the impact. The few bugs could not enter Wen Liang's body and saw that there was no flaw for them to leverage on. They bothered him no more and returned to nibbling the crystal ground surface. Cone Nail was shaken awake by the commotion just now. She hummed, heartbroken. She wanted to wipe away the crystal shreds that were left on Wen Liang's face but she could not lift her arm no matter what. At this moment, Wen Liang lightly pinched Cone Nail's wrist. Cone Nail was an intelligent girl. After a slight shock, she asked him softly with some surprise, you've regained some strength? As she said this, she paused and instructed him seriously, don't open your mouth to speak no matter what. If it's a yes then pinch me once, if it's a no then pinch me twice. 
Then, she used all her strength to move her small hand into Wen Liang's palm. Wen Liang pinched Cone Nail softly, once. The bug tide brought the two of them and shuttled beneath the dark ice cap. He was unsure how long had gone by but when Leong had regained some strength. Other than the power of poison, which blocked his crucial points, some poison of life and death had slowly started to gather and flowed slowly. When Leong's method of practice had another perk other than bronze skin iron bones and the faulty punch, which could break the magic arts of cultivators. He could recuperate extremely fast. These firecrackers will increase greatly in strength after they finished eating the crystal, you might not be able to withstand them by then. Although Cone Nail's tone was grim, excitement rippled within her eyes. She looked like a little girl, who tiptoed to the refrigerator and wanted to secretly take a sip of soda, we must run while they're engrossed with their meal. Every pore on Wen Liang's body shut tight. His telegnosis ability could not even be extended. He could only sense the situation around him but he could not see any faraway images. He could not help but knit his brows. Even if he wanted to run, he would need to have a direction. If they could not shake off the bug's chase, they would not have a second chance. Cone Nail had a plan all along, although these bugs are the embodiment of true water, they are slightly inferior. They cannot stand the fierce purity of the water element utmost treasure, that's why they could only eat the crystal here. So, the heavenly water spirit shouldn't be here but it shouldn't be too far away either. As long as you can bring me and run to where the heavenly water spirit is, it'll mean our victory. Water harmonizes with its own. If all goes well, I can fully heal myself once I obtain the heavenly water spirit and my powers would increase tremendously. We won't have to fear the bugs then. When Leon jubilantly punched the cold little hand within his palm. He had wanted to move when he was stopped by Cone Nail's low voice, my life vitality is now scattered, my primordial spirit is very murky. I don't know where the heavenly water spirit is, we'll have to find the direction first. After she finished, she paused briefly. She summoned softly, Guo Huan, use your telegnosis ability to scout ahead. Guo Huan knew that the matter was important. He did not leave the others hanging as he normally would. He said directly, I can't pick up any spiritual vitality of a treasure. However, we came to this crystal central region from the northwest, it shouldn't be wrong to continue in this direction. Go southeast, young lad, get ready. Cone Nail sniggered. She laughed at such an anxious moment. She asked Wen Leong softly, do you know where southeast is? Wen Leong pinched Cone Nail twice without hesitation he had shut his pores tight and held his breath all this while. He was already dizzy and had no sense of north, south, east or west. The jade knife was amused. He had been with Wen Leong for quite some time, he was already used to Wen Leong slipping at crucial moments. He pondered and directed, the direction in which your brows are pointing is southeast. Then, he saw Wen Leong's brows moving in a wild manner. He added, left brow, outwards. Wen Leong raised his left brow and pinched cone nail once to get her ready. You've got me, seemed to also know that its master was about to make some great move. It flipped inside his mouth. Its body curled up into a ball and wedged itself under his tongue. If it were not for the firecrackers all around them, when Leong would have liked to spit it out. At this moment, Guo Huan and Kone Nail suddenly grunted in unison. From the direction in which they came, a group of people in tattered clothes and lifeless expressions were running towards them. It was unknown what trick the living dead used but they caught up with the bug tide and rushed all the way here. Cone Nail cursed angrily, useless pangolin, I should have skinned him just now she had not yet finished when Wen Leong suddenly exerted force in his hips and abdomen. He leaped with a straight back like a fake corpse. He cradled Cone Nail within his embrace and summoned his entire strength. He rushed towards the central region of the crystal world like a swift angry leopard. He wanted to shoot past the firecrackers, and also to find the heavenly water spirit before the living dead did. With his current strength, he had no hopes of withstanding the living dead's attacks. The huge group of firecrackers was indifferent to the living dead, who appeared suddenly but they burned with rage when Wen Leong leaped suddenly. Almost all of them abandoned their meals and chase while their heads and tails shook. The largest bug ricocheted, 
its body rippled with the cold color of the water as it desperately wriggled its long tail and flew towards them. Wen Leong cursed silently in his heart. The arrow has been knocked and must be fired. He could only grit his teeth and accelerate with all his might. He had every intention of shooting past these few thousand of firecrackers. Luckily, the bugs had disassembled the bug tide and went in their own directions, or else Wen Leong would not have been able to leap out even if they did not move. However, something made Wen Leong feel surprised and happy. The firecrackers that had just leaped up suddenly fell down with a thud. They all seemed to be drunk and started drawing clumsy circles on the crystal. They occasionally let out a chuckle, which sounded like a simper. Cone Nail was quickly filled with joy, these bugs swallowed the crystal too fast, they can't digest the power contained within it for now. Run when Leong did not need her urgings. He used all his strength, like a chess piece, he skipped and hopped as he carefully avoided the firecrackers, which ran in circles on the ground and swiftly made his way through. The living dead did not stop either. Occasionally, a savage color of blood flashed across their lifeless eyes. A group of almost a hundred people also rushed through the bug formation loudly but they were not as quick as when Leon. They did not seem to think too much about fighting for the heavenly water spirit. In no time, when Leon had shaken them off. When Leon ran for dozens of minutes before he finally understood. The firecrackers had brought them to a giant crystal or cave the place where the bugs nibbled on the crystal must have been the entrance. The deeper they went, the narrower it became. Under their sprint, the boundless vast mouth of the cave gradually turned into the narrow cave body, which was no more than a dozen meters in diameter. The entire cave was covered with a thin layer of crystal. Clear trickles surged outside the crystal. Suspicion grew in Cone Nail's eyes. Wen Leung too could not help but lowered his head and looked at her. The jade knife snorted and said directly, someone was here. The crystal walls around them would have an occasional sword mark of nicks left by axes. The deeper they went, the more obvious the man-made cut marks were. Even remnants of immortal art seal script symbols appeared. Cone Nail bulged her eyes in astonishment, she seemed to be lost in thoughts as she spoke, this or cave was excavated by someone else using immortal art. It seemed that, under the thick ice cap of Jiangandira Glacier, a giant cone-shaped crystal was wedged into the mountain. After that, someone followed the direction of the cone and excavated a cone-shaped or cave. When Leong dared not slow down. He frowned and muttered, that's impossible. His voice sounded as if he had a hot tofu inside his mouth or that he had a short tongue. The ore cave was enshrouded in the force of water element. You've got me, did not want to crawl out of Wen Leung's mouth no matter what, it rolled and flipped around his tongue. The entrance of the crystal or cave was very wide, its diameter must have been dozens of kilometers. Wen Leung could not detect its boundaries with his eyesight or his telegnosis ability. Whether it was the crystal ground surface or the crystal vault, it was as smooth as a mirror. Before the firecrackers started nibbling on it, there was not even a grain-sized dent on it. However, the terrain under his feet started to become uneven. The walls and ceiling of the cave were spotted with knife and axe marks. If this or cave was truly excavated by humans, it was illogical for the wide spaces to be smooth whereas the cramped spaces were full of holes. Cone Nail could guess at Wen Liang's thoughts. She smiled bitterly and explained, It's not what you think. This huge crystal was made by the brewing of the heavenly water spirit for millions upon millions of years. Its purity naturally decreased from the insides to the outsides. Although the exterior is large, its purity is a world apart compared to the interior one did not have to use many resources to do away with huge chunks of crystal at the ore cave's entrance. It could even be done nicely with finely cut edges. But the deeper one went, the tougher it became. Can you understand? As she said this, she gave another example, the crystal rock near the heavenly water spirit is diamond whereas the crystal rock at the ore cave's entrance can only be considered as tofu. The effort that was spent excavating these two regions was not on the same level. That was why he could make nice cuts for the vast entrance, but he left so many knife and axe marks in this narrow space. Although when Leon was sprinting along, it did not hinder him from speaking. He was still slightly puzzled, then why did the person go through so much trouble? 
shouldn't it be enough just to make a hole big enough for a person to enter? Why did he need to make such a big hole, even if it's tofu? Cone Nail smiled. Before this, when Wen Leong spouted silly talk, her smiles always brought some scorn with it, now it was a hint of interested exuberance. If I gave you a crystal cone with a base diameter of dozens of meters and asked you to go through it to find the end, what would you do? I'm afraid that if you tunneled a thousand times, you'd have a thousand times of coming out halfway or deviating from your course. If you had the strength, you would start by going inwards from the side and dig out as much of the cone's interior as you can. That way you can't go wrong. The streams outside the walls were the edges of the giant crystal. The person who excavated the crystal had followed Cone Nail's plan. He only left a layer of crystal wall, which was close to the streams, and dug his way in. Needless to say, it was to find the heavenly water spirit. When Leon was hit with a sudden realization. He could not help but said with a smile, luckily someone had dug this place out in the first place, or else, even if we followed the bug tide to the outside, we could only stare at this crystal rock larger than a mountain and stomp our feet. As he said this, his expression changed suddenly. He seemed to have thought of something. He asked Cone Nail uneasily, someone had been here before, then could the heavenly water spirit be taken away already? If he could excavate this or cave, then the person's magical power must be. He had not finished when Guo Huan suddenly growled from within the jade knife. At the same time, a refined, cultured and slightly friendly voice sounded beside Wen Liang's ear, there's water outside the crystal walls, the heavenly water spirit should still be here. Then, a figure flashed and firmly blocked their advance. Wen Leong abruptly stopped in his tracks. Before the other person appeared, his telegnosis ability did not detect anyone else's presence. A cultivator's body appeared in long robes. He looked to be in his thirties. His face was like a silver lake and had the looks of a soldier. Three strands of long beard swayed gently with the breeze. When Leung's heart fell, he already knew who had appeared. On the snow-covered peak and under the skies, he could not find a second person like this. Tian Yin's Dharmakeya possessed by Xiang Lu's true soul. They had gone through several dangerous situations. They had chased from the small town all the way to Tangula Jiangandiru Glacier. Wen Leong had always thought that they were lucky. They had faced the Tibetans several times but Tian Yin had not shown up. He thought that maybe Tian Yin was not in Jiangandiru Glacier after all. Tian Yin seemed to have seen through Wen Leong's thoughts. He unexpectedly flashed a smile at Wen Leong, actually, I have only just arrived, or else I wouldn't have let you guys run rampant for that long. Tian Yin's voice was soft and pleasing to the ears but he seemed to only have a good voice without sufficient vital capacity. Every word of his took his entire strength and was rigidly squeezed out of his throat. Although he clearly knew that the other person was the utmost evil in the sky, Wen Leong still felt some warmth in his heart. He seemed to be affected by Tian Yin's smile. He could not restrain himself as he nodded strenuously. Chapter 218 not only Xiang Lu's true soul had caused the death of the two enlightened persons Tian Shu and Tian Hua, he had also suffered their agonic counterattacks. In addition to that, Tian Yin's soul also made an agonic retaliation. Both his primordial soul and his body were shaken. Once he completely harmonized with Tian Yin's Dharmakeya, he had immediately made his way here. When he reached the snow-covered peak, he made it just in time for the storm, which when Leong and Cone Nail were brought away by the bug tide. He then gathered his subordinates and went in a hot pursuit. After he entered the ore cave, he did not use the firecrackers to lead the way but ran off on his own to the depths. When Leong and Cone Nail were like fishes on a chopping board in his eyes, they could never escape the palms of his hands. When they entered the ore cave, all they thought about was to find the heavenly water spirit and had completely disregarded their badly wounded enemy. They had come to the end of the ore cave to look for the treasure. Not to mention when Leong, Cone Nail was not far from death as her primordial spirit had been damaged and Guo Huan's soul was weak, hence, nobody noticed that Tian Yin had flown past them. Tian Yin's smile grew thicker when he saw Wen Leong nod. Genuine happiness showed in his eyes. However, he suddenly gave a flying kick and sent Cone Nail, who was in Wen Leong's embrace, flying. 
Cone Nail almost shattered her silver tooth. She managed to swallow her wail but could not stop the gushing fresh blood that spurted out of her wound. It drew a mottled and forlorn line of blood on the ground. When Leong howled in fury. His body had not managed to make any movement when the vision before his eyes went dark. A huge force, which he could not repel, hit him. He did a somersault and fell to the ground Tian Yin's fanciless punch had landed on Wen Liang's head. His strength was heavy but it had a perk, it did not inflict more harm upon him and scatter the poison of life and death, which Wen Liang had so strenuously gathered. Cone Nail landed far away. Her whole body shivered as if she was in fear but her gaze was unrelenting as she stared at Tian Yin. Tian Yin looked at Cone Nail with a smile, I'd hate to see you die. As he said this, he paused briefly before he continued, I'd hate to see you die so soon. You had subdued me. Tian Yin frowned in pain as if he wanted to calculate the years he had spent in agony on the Black and White Island. Finally, he smiled bitterly and shook his head, he had given up, let's say five thousand years. It mustn't have been that short but let's go with it. As he said this, Tian Yin smiled again as if he was satisfied with his own leniency, from this day on, you'll die a little every day, for five thousand years. Cone Nail snorted, you haven't learned how to speak like a human. Tian Yin also smiled with Cone Nail, that's why I don't like it when there are people in this world. When Leong was still struggling to get up. Tian Yin's smile vanished. He kicked Wen Liang's body, which had just arched itself down. He made a helpless expression, you cannot go any further. I have saved Cone Nail's life by stopping you guys. Wen Liang spared no effort to gather the scattered poison of life and death within his body. His gaze was full of extreme hatred as he glared at Tian Yin. Tian Yin pointed at the walls of the ore cave when Leong had only noticed now that four big words were written with beautiful strokes on the cave's wall. After a while, Tian Yin saw that when Leong had no reaction. He was first astonished, then he found it slightly funny and annoying, you don't know how to read? When Leong ignored him but silently, he felt helpless. He really did not recognize these ancient characters. Even the knowledgeable three-inch nail when Bushuo misread Cleansing Magic River as Flowing Sand River. Dot. Hence, his knowledge was not even worth mentioning. Tian Yin pointed at the big words and pronounced them one by one, Thirteen shall not pass. Do you think that the old man would be so generous as to go through so much trouble to excavate such a passage and allow others to come and take the heavenly water spirit? The old man even left behind thirteen prohibition spells. If you guys barged in foolishly, she'll die forthrightly. As he said this, Tian Yin politely nodded towards Cone Nail. Thirteen shall not pass was the thirteen prohibition spells that would have to be faced by anyone to obtain the heavenly water spirit. Although Wen Leong did not know who the old man was, his eyes darkened. He mustered his strength, not to launch a surprise attack on Tian Yin. It would be a fool's dream to defeat Tian Yin with his strength. He wanted to find an opportunity to pick Cone Nail back up and rush inwards. Although this thought was also absurdly funny, it was slightly more practical than a sneak attack. Let alone when Leong who only had 5% of his powers left, even Tian Yin must stop before the prohibition spells of this old man, who could excavate such or caves. A flurry of clumsy and heavy footsteps echoed. It sounded messy and lifeless. Almost a hundred living dead had caught up. The ore cave that was not wide to start with became even more cramped. Every living dead stood beside Tian Yin, their stoic faces had shown an unprecedented respectfulness that could only be described as fanaticism. Cone Nail sprawled on the ground and carefully thought through Tian Yin's words, ignoring the living dead's arrival. After a while, she lifted her head and looked at Tian Yin, who is that that old man that you've mentioned? Unexpectedly, Tian Yin shook his head. He did not reply Cone Nail's question directly but he said strangely, Heavens Cone Nail, have you ever thought that even though you had subdued me for millions of years on the Black and White Island, the opposite was also true? You were also imprisoned by me for millions of years. Cone Nail let out an, ah. It was unknown whether it was due to Tian Yin's statement that was out of the blue or because it was too cold in the cave, her thin body shuddered. Tian Yin paid no more attention to Cone Nail but he made a gesture to the Tibetans behind him. 
On one side, there was Xiang Lu's true soul, on the other side, there was the living dead who exited samsara and believed in the nine-headed snake. They did not need words to understand the intentions of the other. The huge group of living dead immediately stepped towards the deep or cave they left behind eight living dead, who were carrying a heavy luggage and were standing straight beside Tian Yin. The huge group of living dead cramped into the deeper parts of the ore cave other than the sound of their footsteps, there was no other sound. There were no thunder or fire nor were there any arrows, poison or mercury. The prohibition spell's effects were not what Wen Leong had expected to be. Guo Huan grunted in surprise within the jade knife. He helped Wen Leong to ask the question, where's the prohibition spell? Tian Yin smiled again, you hadn't been talking. I thought you'd wanted to sneak an attack on me. What are you smiling about? Tian Yin's voice was rude but his tone was dispiriting, if I can still activate the demon body breaking spell, you'll be lying down by now. Tian Yin was amused to the point of laughter by this nondescript statement, of course the prohibition spell is there. The prohibition spells were extracted and refined from every component from the five elements and Bagua. They're known as 13 shall not pass but Tian Yin's smile suddenly sharpened, try to think about this, that old geezer had excavated such an or cave to find the heavenly water spirit. Even if his cultivation base reached the heavens, how much energy was left after he obtained the treasure? Even if Guo Huan was experienced and knowledgeable, he was also befuddled by Tian Yin's words as he said in a rage, are you saying that these prohibition spells are powerless? They can't even harm that group of living dead. Tian Yin continued to smile. Even when faced with Guo Huan, he was still filled with the modesty of an elder, of course not. He had already expended a lot of energy, that's why even though there are thirteen prohibition spells, they only affect the spirit and not man. Whether you are the great Luo gods or the Arhat divine dragon, there's bound to be some element that restricts you among the five elements and Bagua. As long as you walk into the prohibition spells, I can guarantee you that your soul will be destroyed. As he said this, he looked at Cone Nail again and smiled as if he were mentioned something, he's a master in soul art. Even though Guo Huan was inside the jade knife and had nobody, Wen Leong could still hear him shudder. Guo Huan was shocked. After that, he ignored Tian Yin and explained to Wen Leong of his own accord, soul art is an ancient magic. It does not need life vitality to activate but it needs another type of magical power. The more profound a cultivator's cultivation base, the stronger his primordial spirit will be and the more he'll be afraid of this soul art. Wen Leong nodded without fully understanding what Guo Huan had told him. After all, even Guo Huan did not have a complete understanding of this theory. He had given up all hope of understanding what kind of magic soul art was, it was sufficient for him to have a general idea of it. Guo Huan pondered for a while. He shook his head in the jade knife and sighed, this old man is truly meticulous. Tian Yin was in a good mood. Hence, he explained patiently, even if it's me. I wouldn't recklessly barge into this, thirteen shall not pass if I'm not merged with my true body but he couldn't even have dreamt that there would be a huge number of living dead who exited samsara and had no soul nor body. Wen Leong let out a muffled grunt. He finally understood why Xiang Lu's true soul had gone through so much trouble to recruit these living dead. He suspected that the gathering of materials to execute the art of devilry was all a play. Tian Yin's main objective of recruiting them was to pass, thirteen shall not pass and obtain the utmost treasure of water element. If that's the case, the person knew that you would come and take the heavenly water spirit sooner or later. Is that why he sealed the ore cave? Guo Huan understood the use of the prohibition spells but he did not understand the intention of the person who left them behind. A disdainful expression appeared on Tian Yin's face, of course not. He's no god, how could he tell what would happen now? I have said it before, that old man was a narrow-minded fellow, he wouldn't let anybody else tread the shortcut he created. Tian Yin was speaking when his gaze shifted slightly and moved from the jade knife to Wen Liang's face, now you understand why I have not killed you until now. His voice barely faded when laughter sounded from Kone Nails, Guo Huan's and even Wen Liang's mouths. They were truly amused this time. Wen Liang shook his head with all his might. He was befuddled by this sudden statement. Tian Yin was astonished. He asked with a shock, you truly did not know. 
When Leung had an impatient look, would I be laughing if I knew? Stop talking nonsense, cut to the chase. His voice was muffled, he still had the hot tofu of the you've got me brand inside his mouth. Whether it was Tian Shu, Tian Hua or Kone Nail, Guo Huan and even Tuo Xia, whom Tian Yin only met once, the people, who Tian Yin had associated with, were all intelligent people. He finally understood that he had truly met a stupid person. He smiled bitterly and replied, your method of practice originates from the outside and is unique, you also have a good foundation. I want to preserve your body and find a home for the third brother. As he said this, he paused. He was worried that the group still did not understand and he added, third brother is the escaped wicked soul which you mentioned, he can't possibly be imprisoned for a lifetime. When Leong could no longer smile. Tian Yin had not killed him because he had taken an interest in his body to save it for the wicked soul. Tian Yin continued, I'll wait till the bugs regain their senses and let them live with you. After a few years, they'll turn you into the embodiment of true water, then I'll throw you into thirteen shall not pass to destroy your body and soul. Then, my plan will have succeeded. When Leong still did not understand, although he had no intentions of discussing this topic, he could not restrain himself as he asked, why don't you throw me in now? Is it just to add the embodiment of true water? You might have to wait for decades. Tian Yin was stunned again. He fiercely stomped his feet a moment later and cursed, why don't you understand anything? The jade knife Guo Huan broke into laughter and interrupted Tian Yin, you aren't the first one to say that. He explained to Wen Leong while he laughed, you don't have any primordial spirit now. The soul refining prohibition spell will naturally have no effect on you. If you're the puppet of the bugs for a few years and turn into the body of water element, then you'll have a water element primordial soul. Only then, you can be destroyed by the prohibition spell. Lastly, he concluded, the point is this, 13 shall not pass cannot affect you now. This set of prohibition spells deals with cultivators, an ordinary person won't be affected in the least if he walks in. When Leong was stubborn in his non-comprehension, he asked Tian Yin rhetorically, then why did you have to recruit the living dead? Won't it be better to find a few normal persons to help you find the heavenly water spirit? He did not wait for Tian Yin's reply when Guo Huan scolded, you would head. How can normal people get past the bugs? When Leong had only understood right now why Guo Huan had exclaimed that this old man is meticulous. Thirteen shall not pass was only directed to cultivators but did not affect normal persons. However, normal persons would not be able to pass through the thick ice cap and enter the ore cave even if someone got into the cave by some coincidence, they would be snatched away by the firecrackers that were hibernating to be their master. When the normal person obtained a water element body, they would have primordial spirit and could not pass through the prohibition spell. However, that person had not thought that these firecrackers would not stay wild and were surprisingly tamed by the Hua family. In the recent thousand years, if a great avalanche truly happened and someone got into the ore cave through sheer luck, they would have been able to find the heavenly water spirit. However, the probability of this situation happening is almost none. When Leung finally understood. Tian Yin had talked to them in good naturedly to wait for the bugs to come and possess them. In the end, it was about taking his body. When he thought of this, he could not help but look at the hole not far before him. He calculated the odds of which he could leap and shoot past Tian Yin and rushed inwards, he wondered if it was more probable than a frog speaking. Kone Nail had not died because Tian Yin wanted to torture her slowly. When Leong had not died because Tian Yin wanted his body. Guo Huan grunted, what about me? Tian Yin wore a surprised expression, why didn't I kill you? Why don't you ask me why should I kill you instead? As he said this, he showed an excited smile, not only will I not kill you, I'll help you remold your demon body and quench your demonic primordial energy. Guo Huan was dumbstruck. At this moment, Kone Nail suddenly opened her mouth and said drilly, there aren't any pure and strong demonic primordial energy left under the heavens. He thought of his third brother, naturally, he can't bring himself to kill you. Xiang Lu's true soul possessed Tian Yin's body. Although he was not able to make any grand moves due to the restrictions of Tian Yin's body and soul, he had left the Black and White Island many times to familiarize himself with the great powers under the heavens. 
when he was forced to retreat by Taoist priest San Wei and he sneaked into a young sect, he already knew that the wicked soul was no longer in a young sect. If he had seen Tuo Xie before, naturally he would know that the wicked soul was controlled within Hanba's body and he must have thought of a way to break it. Tian Yin chuckled and nodded towards Kone Nail, I see you're smarter. Kone Nail regained her pitiable expression. She knitted her brows and smiled weakly, it's not that I'm smart, it's just that I know you better. You save people to eat their flesh, you plant trees to set them on fire, you smile to make others cry. Guo Huan seemed to be more at ease ever since he knew that he was not going to die. His tone was much jollier, talk to me, what do you want to do to the heavenly water spirit? When Leung also opened his mouth, where did my grandmaster go? Kone Nail desperately tried to sit up pitiably. She had been heavily attacked by Tian Yin just now but her body had strangely regained some strength. She knew in her heart that the other party did not wish for her to die so soon. She asked Tian Yin almost at the same time as well, who was the person who excavated this cave? Who was I before this? Every mystery converged on Tian Yin. The three persons questioned him in unison. Tian Yin quickly laughed. He shook his head, full of joy, to Asye's whereabouts. The heavens cone nails past life. You guys cannot die in peace if I did not tell you. Wen Leong growled. He just wanted to curse when his surroundings suddenly turned cold. The few thousand firecrackers had digested the power of the crystal. They had formed a bug tide and had arrived without a trace and enveloped Wen Leong again. The bugs did not pounce on dead people. Wen Leong had known this all along but he did not know why the bugs seemed indifferent to Tian Yin and dealt with Wen Leong with their entire strength. These bugs were more than a hundred times greater than when they originally started. At the instant the bug tide rushed forth, when Leong only felt as if a thousand and six hundred mountains collapsing and the debris crashed down him from all directions. When Leong shut his mouth tight. He gently pressed, you've got me, with his tongue inside. He had struggled continuously on the snow-covered peak but he still arrived at the worst-case scenario. He knew that he would not last long among this current bug tide. Tian Yin glanced at Wen Leong with some excitement but his mouth did not stop. He replied Guo Huan's question, my true body had nine heads, and every head had a soul. When you and the cat demon shattered the heaven's cone nail, I have escaped together with the third brother. Nine head ten souls had become nine head eight souls. As he said this, he sighed in slight frustration, I have miscalculated. Xian Lu's true soul thought that he could control Tian Yin quickly but due to an accident, he had toiled with Tian Yin's soul for two thousand years. Tian Yin's body also could not harm the remaining Heaven's Cone Nails on the Black and White Island. The water element Heaven's Cone Nail had shattered and the demons of doing great formation had been broken. But the eight wicked souls that remained had lost the leadership of the true soul and labored hard to little avail as they made their own decisions. That was why he could not return to the mortal realm until now. Actually, I had never thought of it last time that third brother would also seize the opportunity to escape. That's what foiled my grand scheme. The nine souls can understand the world completely if they stayed together. As long as the nine souls stayed in each of their heads, even if I'm not inside the true body, I can still direct them to join forces and break the cone nails. As he said this, he scolded fiercely, cursed that third brother. He's always this rash. The public had always thought that Xiang Lu was a water demon but in truth, it was the third brother who always jumped the gun during a fight. When Tian Yin mentioned the escaped wicked soul, although his tone was heavy, a genuine kindness showed on his face. When the nine souls were refined, even if the true soul was not within the true body, it could still direct the entire body. That was why the true soul had bravely escaped with his heart at ease. He had not thought that the wicked soul within that head had escaped without hesitation after the heaven's cone nail was shattered as if it had been subdued for too long. The nine souls could not connect with each other, which meant that the true soul could not control them, leading to the current situation. Even amidst the surges of the firecrackers, when Leong could not help but exchange a surprised look with cone nail. Both of them did not know this side of the story. If that wicked soul had not escaped, Xian Lu could have returned to the mortal realm a thousand years ago. 
If that were the case, the wicked soul, which was currently sealed within Hamba fifth brother's body, had helped them a great deal. Tian Yin continued, I'm the eldest among the nine of them, my soul power is connected to theirs. I had now obtained eight body parts of the staunch believers. After I obtain the heavenly water spirit and extract some of my own primordial soul, I can reforge the water soul. Tian Yin had deliberately planned his actions on the highlands. He intended to cast the art of devilry at the end, sacrifice some of his own soul power and reforge the wicked soul, which was missing from the water element head. The souls in Xiang Lu's heads each represented an element. However, they were not completely pure and strong. There was some mixing of the other eight elements of the other wicked souls. This was the same for the escaped wicked soul. It had all nine elements but its water element was the most outstanding. That was why Tian Yin needed the utmost water element treasure. The heavenly water spirit, with the eight materials of metal, wood, fire, earth, sun, moon, stars, and finally his own soul power would be required for him to create a new wicked soul. After he succeeded, he would replant it into that head. Then, the nine souls could be connected. Under the true soul's control, the success of breaking free from the remaining eight shaking heaven's cone nails would be within his grasp. Tian Yin's requirement of the evil cult followers was that they only needed to form eight teams however, when he controlled the living dead, he also discovered an unnamed monster sealed under the Tibetan Buddhism sect Mandala. He only wanted to reforge the new wicked soul and did not wish for any new problems to crop up unexpectedly. He was even more worried that this monster would cause him more trouble if it ever broke free. That was why he ordered the living dead Tibetans to select nine troops and left the strongest team behind to protect the seal, preventing anyone to break the seal and release the monster. When the true soul made these arrangements, he had practically taken control of Tian Yin. Initially, he would have shown himself on the highlands during the elimination rounds in the small town, but when he saw that Tian Xu and Tian Hua were badly injured, he could not let this opportunity slip past. That was why he moved to harm them. However, in doing so, he suffered the desperate retaliation of Tian Yin. He had lost control of the body temporarily. As a result, he did not make it to the great showdown in the small town, or else when Leong and his group would have been ground to dust by him. Speaking of Tour Town alone, when Leong had barely escaped. Nevertheless, he was almost dead now. He did not feel especially lucky but the Jade Knife Guo Huan was still happy. After Tian Yin finished reminiscing, when Leong brought up a new question, what about the wicked soul that was trapped inside the zombie's body? Wouldn't it be easier for you to think of some way to save it and replant it into the head? Tian Yin shook his head sadly. Undeniably, this body had been humanized after being controlled by Xiang Lu. The former Tian Yin did not have such rich expressions, third brother is nourished by the corpse's energy inside the demon figurine. It is beyond hope. I can help it break the prohibition spell, but I cannot get rid of the corpse's energy. It can never return to the head. I can help it procure some demonic primordial energy and give it a good body to keep it alive. Guo Huan did not felt wronged or angered but laughed, it had foiled the grand scheme, but you're quite kind towards it. A kindness that could only be described as seriousness appeared on Tian Yin's face again, it had been bullied for these two thousand years, it had suffered a lot. I'm the big brother. I blame him and hate him, but I truly love him and dote on him. Every time the escaped wicked soul was mentioned, Tian Yin would be slightly overwhelmed with emotions. Even when Leong could tell that these feelings came from the bottom of the heart. However, this time, nobody had thought that just when Tian Yin's state of mind was slightly shaken, suddenly, a yell filled with stern majesty erupted like thunder, Gopaka. Everything inside the ore cave changed into something else entirely. Chapter 219 the shout was like a thunder. Gopaka. Thousands of golden light beams suddenly erupted from the crystal or cave a glossy golden giant Arhat statue dropped down from the sky and abruptly landed on Tian Yin's head. At the same time, a Zen chant sounded from the jade knife with a flowing rhythm. The Buddhaghosa of Prajna Paramit drowned the entire or cave like crashing waves from a raging sea. Tian Yin had always been keeping his guard up against Guo Huan's self-destructing demon body-breaking spell. 
but nobody would have thought that the one who activated his magical powers was the other primordial soul who was out cold within the jade knife. What surprised the others even more was that the primordial soul was Taoist priest Sanwei, but the magical power he activated was the prized Buddhist magic art. Gopaka a name was one of the 900 arhats who resided on Mount Kailash. He was one of the 16 arhats who kept the peace. The 16 arhats had been ordered by Buddha to not enter nirvana but stay in the mortal world for eternity. The arhat's golden body arrived with a boom. It had already slammed Tian Yin under itself since its appearance. Tian Yin did not even have the chance to crush the jade knife. In his haste, he threw the jade knife away and pushed upwards with all his might. He wanted to push this arhat as heavy as Mount Tai away. Unexpectedly, when he had just activated his life vitality god's power, suddenly, a soft pop was heard and the base of the arhat shattered. The entire arhat statue was like a jacket, enveloping Tian Yin within itself. Currently, the jade knife had not even touched the ground yet nor did Guo Huan had the time to laugh out loud. The golden-bodied arhat shook violently and cracks upon cracks appeared on its body in an instant. It cracked and healed. Then, the face of Gopaka's golden body strangely transformed into Tian Yin. The Zen chant of Prajna Paramit did not stop but there was a touch of anxiety in the tone. Tian Yin's laughed villainously with a ferocious and furious face. His body which was still enveloped in the golden arhat shook clumsily. Then, he extended one arm and strenuously reached for the jade knife which was still flipping in midair. The golden-bodied arhat seemed to be destroyed by Tian Yin. Lines of mottled cracks erupted and expanded. The speed of its recovery obviously could not keep up with the power of Tian Yin's struggle. At this moment, when Leong finally gave in to the firecracker's invasion. He quickly opened his mouth and spat out you've got me fiercely. He saw you've got me making a beautiful return arc in mid-air because it was unwilling to leave its master and he scolded, scram. Save yourself his voice barely faded when his mouth suddenly felt cold. A firecracker, which was the equivalent of at least shoe size 54, curled itself and crawled into his mouth. You've got me wailed and its little body leaped up. It did a somersault in mid-air, the bristles on its body stood up. Amidst the shrill howl that almost made itself cough blood, it mercilessly pounced on Tian Yin's face. You've got me was mentally connected with Wen Leong. It understood that its master would not die after being controlled by the bugs, but if Tian Yin did not die, Wen Leong could never live. A pure silver giant tide rose suddenly among the bug tide and chased after You've got me. Water and fire interrestricted each other, their nature was irreconcilable. The firecrackers had chased after Wen Leong relentlessly partly because You've Got Me was hiding inside Wen Leong's mouth. Cone Nail also seized this opportunity to attack. Amidst the flapping of her sleeves, her thin frame was wrapped in an unprecedented air as she pounced towards Tian Yin almost in unison with You've Got Me. San Wei's primordial soul had suddenly attacked and Gopaka had appeared. Tian Yin was sealed by the Arhat's golden body but managed to transform its face as he broke out of the cocoon. You've got me was spat out. Cone Nail suddenly attacked. The bug tide rolled. Everything happened in the blink of an eye. The jade knife only fell to the ground with a pleasing clank after the wave caused by the bug tide covered Tian Yin, who was inside the Arhat's golden body, Cone Nail, You've Got Me and the Eight Living Dead. Almost at the same time, a muffled loud explosion shot towards the sky from Wen Liang's mouth. The size 54 firecracker had flattened its head and crawled into Wen Liang's mouth. Wen Liang did not have time to think about how gross it was as he reflexively shut his mouth with all his might. The scattered poison of life and death managed to turn, although its power of poison was not much, it unexpectedly imploded the bug within his mouth. The poison of life and death was the chaos within the five elements poison. It was the great ancestor of all toxins. Although the water element poison of the firecracker was thick, it did not have any grounds for retaliation under the poison of life and death. However, when Leong had understood then, why these bugs were called firecrackers, and not bangers. The explosion led to a series of explosions. In the bug tide where everyone was in harmony, the explosion of one bug affected the other bugs like firecrackers. 
In no time, the entire bug tide erupted. Once the firecrackers exploded, not only was the sound terrifying, what made it worse was that they would release the utmost water element poison, which they had accumulated throughout their lives. In the blink of an eye, all hell broke loose in the ore cave. Other than the jade knife, the bug tide had enveloped everybody else. With the loud explosions, the bug tide had turned into a real poison tide. It was an utmost cold and pure poison tide of the water element. Amidst the explosions, a clear and pleasant but wild and gallant laugh and a hysterical scream intertwined with each other. Suddenly, a monster, which was rotten beyond recognition, struggled to escape the poison tide. It squalled with a voice that was uncertain if it was a wail or a furious howl and stumbled as it escaped towards the exit of the ore cave. A brief moment later, a weak young lady, who made one's heart shudder, stood up from the poison tide with a genuine happiness. She staggered as she walked before Wen Leong and smiled with bright eyes. Cone Nail was originally the embodiment of heavenly water. Even if the firecrackers released more poison of water, they could not harm her. However, this was not the case for Tian Yin. Before the firecrackers grew up, they did not need much effort to kill a cultivator with poison. Now, not only had they grown bigger, their toxicity had also increased greatly. In addition to that, several thousands of them had gathered together. Whether it was Tian Yin's body or peerless demon immortals like Hanba and Changli would not have been able to withstand a poison as pure and strong such as this. Tian Yin's Dharmakaya was heavily wounded. If it died, the true soul could exit the body and possess another one but there were only two others before him. One of them had poor cultivation base by Xiang Lu's standards, the other was gravely injured and on the brink of death. The jade knife could accommodate a soul but even a fool would not consider that abode. The true soul had pondered and felt that even the heavily wounded Tian Yin's Dharmakaya was much better than these few people. That was why Tian Yin activated his life vitality to nullify the poison and escaped. If one were to look upon the world, those who had a quality that contested Tian Yin's body, other than the near-dead Cone Nail and badly injured Guo Huan, there was only the cat demon Changli. It was only natural that the true soul would hate to part with such a rare body. As for the eight living dead who bore the ingredients, they did not even have the chance to struggle before their bodies were destroyed by the utmost water element poison. Weakness was written all over Cone Nail's face but her gaze was bright and joyful. She stood before Wen Leong and carefully opened her fist. You've got me, was stunned. It coiled up within Cone Nail's fair and delicate palm and shivered you've got me, could not summon the erratic molten metal fire bell but it unintentionally led the bug tide towards Tian Yin. Who struggled to break free of the Arhat's golden body shackles. Then, when Leong, pulled the string and the bug tide exploded. The bug tide had turned into a crashing wave of poison of water in the blink of an eye. It sent Tian Yin running and killed eight living dead with poison. The initially scattered poison of life and death within Wen Liang's body was suddenly active. It was like a group of earthworms that was almost dehydrated to death but was finally blessed with pouring rain, it swam out as it waged its head and tail and started to greedily gobble up the poison of water which invaded his body. The poison of water had substance but had no form. It flowed lightly and noiselessly after it erupted. It treated Wen Leong like the toilet's funnel as it surged towards him with great momentum. The extremely familiar heavy feeling which left a deep impression on Wen Leong became clearer and clearer. An immense pressure flowed from the poison of water's envelope, making him hard to move. However, the poison of life and death cheered and leaped as it flowed rapidly among his tendons and bones. It rushed out of every corner of his body and formed a great torrent in the blink of an eye. It absorbed and assimilated the poison of life and death wildly. A great calamity had turned into an unexpected happiness. The few thousand firecrackers had expanded and ate the crystal. The poison of water in the bugs did not increase in purity and strength but the volume of the poison increased tremendously. This strange poison was more majestic than the poison of earth and poison of metal, which he had absorbed before. If his body was not remolded by the poison of life and death and the force of yin and yang, his body would not have been able to withstand this monstrous poison of water. The poison of life and death howled and swirled. When Le Young's stamina was restored in the blink of an eye following the assimilation of the poison of water. 
only a fraction of the poison of water outside when Liang's body had been assimilated. The other poison still surged and flowed in great force, firmly shackling him. He could hardly move his body but his mind was clear. His eyes lit up when he saw that You've Got Me was also miraculously alive, curling into a ball out of fear within that fair and delicate palm. The red and white contrasted finely with each other. Cone Nail's satisfaction was full of naivete. She was not afraid of the poison of water by nature. She stood beside when Leon and smiled clearly, I've saved your bug, how will you thank me she had not finished when the word, me, turned into a muffled, wah. A mouthful of bright red fresh blood spurted out of her mouth without warning and sprayed onto Wen Liang's face. Cone Nail's body went askance and she fell limp beside Wen Leon but her palm was still held high. She propped You've Got Me up in mid-air and did not let it drop into the poison of water. Even under the immense pressure of poison of water invading his body, Wen Leon could not restrain himself but growled hoarsely, his gaze was anxious and helpless. Young lad, she's dying. Guo Huan's voice was still so rigid, but it had a slightly anxious tone to it right now. She's already an arrow at the end of its flight and she had taken a blow when she attacked Tian Yin just now. If you want to save her life, you must find the heavenly water spirit and return here. His voice barely faded when a stifling long howl suddenly sounded from the 36,000 pores on Wen Liang's body. Wen Liang's eyes were bloodshot and his whole body shivered. He was like a hatchling that was desperately trying to break free of the shackles of the eggshell, he used all his energy and stood up but still looked powerless. Under the terrifying pressure of the poison of water, he slowly walked towards the depths of the ore cave. He walked very slowly. He looked as if he would fall down at any moment. The angle at which his body slanted put his eyes a few feet from the ground. When he moved, the poison of water that had just calmed down a little would surge and roll again. The raging poison waves roared and beat on the surrounding crystal rock walls. One particularly huge wave surged and wiped the four big words, 13 shall not pass from the wall with a loud muffled bang. Every step he took seemed like the end of the world. When Leon could not even say a word. He could only make muffled moans from his throat. He vanished at a turn in the ore cave from Cone Nail's tear-filled eyes. The roar of the surging poison of water was further and further away. Finally, it vanished with Wen Liang's departure. The ore cave was once again enveloped in silence. Kone Nail sighed as she shuddered. Her arm went limp, she could no longer prop, you've got me up as it fell softly beside her. The poison of water had left. You've got me, tried to calm its frightened self, but it missed its master and took pity on but was afraid of Kone Nail who saved it. He went around in circles in frustration. Occasionally, it spiked up its barbs and poked the living dead's bodies to vent its anger. At this moment, Guo Huan's voice sounded again, Hey ugly, you won't die yet, right? San Wei's primordial soul's voice was tired and aged, his voice was so dry it made people suffocate, living or dead, it's all the same he had not finished when his voice went hoarse. It was obvious that it took a lot from him when he activated his magical powers. If the primordial souls of San Wei and Guo Huan, which resided within the Jade Knife, had bodies of their own, their abilities should be on par with the peerless demon immortals such as Kone Nail, Chong Li, and Hanba. Tian Yin had obtained Tian Shu's and Tian Hua's life vitality force by trickery, his cultivation base must have been a tad higher than Chong Li and the others. However, among these peerless people, if they did not have a proper fight, it would be hard to say which one of them was stronger. San Wei did not have a body, he activated his magical powers using his primordial spirit. The power was slightly inferior, but even so, it had caused Tian Yin a great loss as he was caught off guard. San Wei was continuously tortured by the body which the wicked soul had left behind for more than a thousand years. His life's biggest wish was to kill the wicked soul in order to cleanse his dharmakeya of the foulness and evil energy. He was extremely familiar with Xiang Lu's aura. That was why he had woken up the moment Tian Yin showed up. He had been in a deep slumber all this while and his primordial soul had the chance to recover. Hence, he could directly activate his magical power without having to use demon body-breaking spell. Guo Huan and San Wei lived in the same dorm. Guo Huan knew that San Wei had already woken up. 
Hence, Guo Huan distracted Tian Yin to create an opportunity for San Wei to attack. San Wei's primordial soul had just activated his magical powers. He was now exhausted and was adjusting his breath to cultivate himself. Guo Huan initially had a question, but he had to let it go for now. When Leon took step after step towards the depths of the ore cave his feelings could only be described with one word. Mountain. There was a huge mountain before him. He could not dig through it nor could he pass it. He could only push the mountain with his hands if he wanted to advance forward. There was a huge mountain on top of his head which made him unable to straighten his back and lift his head, he could only use the entire strength of his abdomen to not let himself fall down. There was also a huge mountain behind him. He could not shake it off nor could he escape. He could only tow the mountain along as he advanced with his feet. The poison of life and death absorbed the poison of the utmost five elements, then assimilated them to turn it into Wen Liang's own strength. However, this process was not completed in one stroke, he had to take it slow if the power of poison was vast. When he first absorbed the groundbreaking toad Xiu Er's poison of earth at the Miao Stockade village, Wen Liang could not move for almost a whole year. A few years went by with the flick of a finger, he also absorbed poison of metal, the force of Yin and Yang of the Yin army and a Buddhist prayer bead and the Wen family's hundreds of poisons. Besides, his body was remolded after the poison veins, the force of life and death within his body could not be equated with what he had then. When the water rose, the boat rose with it. The force of his poison of life and death was great but the poison of water of the few thousand firecrackers was stronger than Xiu Er's poison of earth by leaps and bounds. The water element poison was absorbed by the poison of life and death but it could not enter into his body all at once. Hence, they accumulated a scary force and pressed tightly on Wen Leong from all sides. Judging by the situation, the current Wen Leong was in a similar predicament as the time when he was inside the toad's stomach. However, the only difference was that he had a strong body and tough bones now, he could manage to walk as he gritted his teeth. His tendons and bones could still hold together but they were on the verge of breaking apart. There was only the sound of raging waters in the ore cave as expected, the thirteen powerful prohibition spells were not activated. Wen Leung also could not tell the difference between this part of the cave and the outside, other than it was narrower in here. It truly was as what Guo Huan had said, the prohibition spell, which Guo Huan's true soul dared not challenge, had no effect whatsoever on normal people. After he walked for a while, the living dead Tibetans, who had entered the cave beforehand, started appearing and wanted to kill him. The living dead were like maddened rhinoceroses and were rushing towards him fiercely. When every living dead appeared, they were wet. Countless drops of water trickled down their hair and clothes. If when Buzwa was here, he would certainly ask with a smile, they must be Thais. Did they just go to Songkran the water sprinkling festival? The living dead all wailed and crashed onto the ground the moment they set foot on the silvery poison of water. They struggled briefly but stopped moving in a while. When Leong had not expected this to occur. It was a little amusement to this arduous journey. The Tibetans were not afraid of death. However, without Tian Yin's direction, every one of them had a one-track mind, they could not reach Wen Leong. Every step he took was like a thousand years, the next step was as endless as eternity. Wen Leon walked along the path of corpses for an unknown length of time. When his gaze scanned the corpses, he faintly sensed that something was wrong somewhere, as if he had overlooked something but he could not put a finger on it. He was pondering when suddenly a loud thunder, which could have shattered the heavens, erupted beside his ear. Then, thousands of lightning bolts erupted and fiercely pierced his eyes. In comparison, the boom released by the thunder's heart sand was like a mosquito's buzz, and it was a soft mosquito when Leong felt as if two huge waterfalls crashed into his ears from the left and right. He was caught off guard and fell to the ground. He only calmed down after a brief moment. The huge sound just now was not a thunder, but the sound of water. The strong light which had tried to blind him was not lightning, but it was the shining sharp glare of water. It was only now when Wen Leong gritted his teeth and sat up again did he notice that he had reached the end of the ore cave. Before he took his final step, he could not sense even a bit of the light of water, nor had he heard the sound of water. With just one step, everything had turned into this situation. 
There was only an emptiness in front of his eyes, an extremely colorful emptiness. It even made when Leong felt as if he had already vanished, there was only endless water. When Leong was suddenly unsure whether to laugh or cry. The end of the ore cave was not what he expected. A small table was placed at the end of the ore cave there was a golden box on top of the small table. The golden box contained a water bead which color was still unknown. He wanted to take the water droplet out of the box to let Cone Nail drink. The ore cave was truly an ore cave it was excavated from the exterior of the Jiangandira glacier all the way into the empty mountainside. If it was not for Wen Liang's slow pace, he might have just fallen over into the mountainside from the edge of the ore cave. If he looked up from the depths of the mountainside, the ore cave was starkly a cliff that stuck up abruptly. When Leong now stood on the edge of the cliff. There was a huge waterfall that hung below the cliff. The waterfall was so majestic that it made one wanted to cry, laugh, and scream wildly. It roared and crashed fiercely onto the mountainside. The sound of water roared like the howl of a giant dragon. When Leong took a deep breath. He tried hard to calm his thoughts. The ore cave was connected to the empty mountainside. Along the way, there were only clean, flawless and pure crystals. There was also a waterfall which hung close to the end of the cave, but where did the water come from? Of course, the water came from above. At the end of the ore cave, a giant stalactite, which source could not be seen, was like a divine all that pierced the sky. It hung silently. It was so transparent that it was easily missed by the casual observer. The visible parts of the stalactite were rounded and smooth as if they were polished by countless master crafters. Their surface was smooth and level, it was suffocating in its perfection. Only the tip of the stalactite was slightly flawed as if a finger pad sized chunk was chipped off, it was slightly strange. The roof of the ice stalactite could not be seen but its tip hung just a few meters from where Wen Leong stood. A drop of clear water hung on the tip of the ice stalactite, shiny and showed signs of dripping. The moment when Leung noticed it, it broke free of the ice stalactite with a light laugh like a playful elf. It twinkled as it fell. That drop of water crashed onto the edge of the ore cave. When Leung squalled and fell on his buttocks again. This small drop of water fell and crashed onto the edge of the ore cave it erupted into a thousand meter dark color torrent. A drop of water had been shattered, most of it scattered in all directions as if cast with some magic of the gods. They quickly turned into a thousand of surging and roused water dragons in midair. They flowed along the mountain's peak and converged into a waterfall as they flew straight down with a cold resolution. The remaining parts stayed on the crystals of the ore cave silently. This water droplet that flowed down from the ice stalactite was impressively the legendary heavenly water spirit. After all, there would not have been another droplet in this world that could form a waterfall. Wen Leong was delighted but worried. He was definitely delighted to find the heavenly water spirit but God knows how many years this stalactite was needed to form this single drop of water, what were the odds that one drop of that water just dripped when he arrived. Luckily, the heavenly water spirit did not seem too precious for this ice stalactite. After some time, another drop of water condensed slowly. When Leong raised his eyebrows and stared in anger as he stretched out his shaking hand, at the same time he tried to lean back as much as he could. A drop of water was a waterfall, the heavenly water spirit must have some weight. It was highly probable that he would be smashed down the mountainside by this force as heavy as a mountain when he received the water in his palm. After a while, another drop of heavenly water spirit appeared. Finally, within Wen Liang's longing and anxious gaze, it shook ever so slightly and dripped lightly. There was no terrifying weight as he had imagined. Wen Liang only felt an indescribable coolness which penetrated his marrow spread quickly from his palm and emanated to his whole body in the blink of an eye. In an instant, even his hair shivered in cold. Wen Liang did not have the time to cheer when a huge wave rose amidst a loud boom. It crashed on him heavily and he fell to the ground. The heavenly water spirit immediately erupted into a monstrous wave of water once it was disturbed. It scattered with vigor in all directions and eventually flowed out of the ore cave's edge and formed the thousand-meter waterfall again. The most extreme nature of water could not be affected by external forces. 
If there was even the slightest disturbance, it would erupt with a bang and turn into normal water. Chapter, 220 When Leon was both anxious and furious. An idea flashed through his mind and he scolded himself loudly, silly me. He turned around and ran back to comb through the living dead's corpses. If the living dead entered the cave to retrieve the heavenly water spirit, they would naturally carry along a container capable of holding the precious water on their bodies. He was engrossed in saving Cone Nail's life earlier that when he saw that the poison of water killed the living dead, he only felt delighted. It never crossed his mind that they could already be carrying along the heavenly water spirit. Somewhere on one of the living dead's bodies was a golden box. A drop of heavenly water spirit was contained in the box. He took out the box and fed the drop of water to Cone Nail when Leung's imagination was similar. The only difference between his current imagination and his earlier imagination was that the table that was displaying the golden box turned into the living dead. It was unknown how long had passed. The sound of a raging hiss echoed through the ore cave under the heavy compression pressure of the poison of water, when Leong had exhausted his laborious efforts to search through every single corpse of the living dead. However, he did not manage to discover anything. Let alone the golden box, there was not even a golden tooth. Except for the person who dug the ore cave, there was not a single person in between the heaven or earth who knew what the heavenly water spirit was. Even the evil deity Xiang Lu who originated from the primitive ages did not know as well. Everyone had their hearts set on the same thing. There was some golden box with a drop of water. The living dead also just dashed to the edge of the ore cave earlier, they were just the same as when Leon. They stretched out their hands to catch the water and splashed their faces and bodies with water. When Leon ran back towards the edge of the ore cave again. He stared in bewilderment as the heavenly water spirit slowly condensed then gently dropped down and transformed into the surging and turbulence torrent. He suddenly gave out a raging cry from his chest. Cone Nail was on the verge of death, the heavenly water spirit was close within his reach, yet there was no way he could bring along the precious water capable of saving her life. When Leung felt so oppressed he wished that he could exert all the strength of his body to kick and crush that ice stalactite. When Leung's eyes were bloodshot. He shot the ice stalactite with a gaze that was even more furious than when he was glaring at Tian Yin recently. Nevertheless, he was still an honest and virtuous person, unlike his grand master Chang Li who acted recklessly. After all, all the descendant of the Yen and Huang emperors loved the Yangtze River. He was not willing to destroy the source of the river that nurtured the spiritual water of Huaxia no matter how furious he was. Just as he was squalling continuously out of exceeding helplessness and oppression, a drop of heavenly water spirit flowed along the ice stalactite with ease and grace. Just as it was stagnating on the tip of the broken chunk, it slowly rolled around in a ghastly manner before it finally trembled and dropped down. When Leong suddenly quieted down. His bloodshot eyes glared around. He raised his head absentmindedly as he looked towards the stalactite's tip that was only a few meters away from the top of his head. He squalled as he turned around and ran once again. At this moment, when Leong suddenly understood his African brother. When one's emotion reached its ultimate point, the use of any language became pale and weak. Only the hoarse squall from exhaustion could soothe the oppressed chest ever so slightly. One after another living dead's corpse were being dragged by Wen Leong to the edge of the ore cave until they formed a pile of corpses that was neither high or low. Wen Leong raised his head again and looked up to the ice stalactite that was hanging a few meters away. He finally exhaled a breath. His body went limp and at the sound of a thud, he fell to the ground. After exerting his strength to run for a few rounds, under the surging of the tremendous force, he could obviously felt fine fissures appearing on his limbs and bones. Even the coldness of the poison of life and death could not suppress the agonizing pain. The sensation was akin to the agony that he felt just after digging through the Mount Amaze mountainside. However, this was even stronger and even more vigorous, so strong that he almost thought that he would faint on a few occasions and considered everything solved. When Leong panted heavily, he was feeling quite fortunate in his heart as cold air in the land of the utmost water element could at least help him to retain a sober and calm mind. As long as his spiritual intelligence still existed, he could continue to work or should he say continue to crawl after he crawled up onto the corpse pile, the ice stalactite was still hanging inversely in silence. 
its tip was well within Wen Liang's grasp. Wen Liang inhaled a few deep breaths and stretched out his hand slowly. Grasping onto the ice stalactite's tip abruptly, he clenched his teeth and widened his eyes so much that his eyes almost popped out of the sockets. He roared loudly in rage. At the sound of a th pop, the ice stalactite's tip was broken off by him into an ice chunk the size of a thumb. The heavenly water spirit was of a pure element and disposition. It would immediately erupt into layers of mighty waves no matter which surface it came in contact and transforming into normal water, which was futile at saving Cone Nail's life. It was as if there was nothing else under the heaven that was capable of containing it for it to retain its true form. However, the heavenly water spirit flowed down along the ice stalactite in a winding manner. The disciples of Wenbutsao had been associating with poisonous vermin ever since they were young. They understood the same principle. All the living creatures under the heaven interpromoted and interrestricted one another. Any vermin with incisive and strong poison would certainly have some detoxifying antidote within seven steps from its lair. The heavenly water spirit before Wen Liang's eyes was the same. If there was an item capable of containing its true form in between the heaven and the earth, it would only be this ice stalactite. Wen Liang was not the first person who discovered the heavenly water spirit. The ice stalactite's tip was initially chipped off, which was supposedly caused by that old fellow who dug out the ore cave and left behind the prohibition spells in the beginning. He had the exact same thinking as Wen Liang, which was to use the ice stalactite to bear the true form of heavenly water. When Leung broke a tiny chunk of ice stalactite then he cautiously formed a depression mark into it. His expression was anxious as he raised the ice high up and connected it under the ice stalactite. After a long while, one more drop of heavenly water spirit finally dragged along its crystal clear mark and gently dropped down. In that flash, when Leung's heart almost jumped out of his throat. He felt as if he was not catching a drop of water but Sister Lin Daiyu whose body was covered in precious pieces of jewelry. The loud howling of the heavenly water covered the entire place, yet it could not conceal the crisp sound of that gentle drop. A drop of heavenly water spirit enshrouded with the essence of the sun and moon rolled faintly into the small indented bowl made from the ice stalactite. It rippled mischievously for a moment then became quiet. When Le Young's cheer that was so joyous and gratifying echoed in between the thundering sounds of water. When Leon almost stopped with each step he took. He dragged the heavy firecracker's poison of water and returned with the small bowl of ice stalactite. Guo Huan suddenly gave out a series of laughter. You've got me, realized that its master finally returned, it jumped up from the jade knife in a crooked manner and hastily ran and dodged the poison of water. It turned around its head strenuously and ululated in cheers towards Wen Leong. On the other hand, Cone Nail was lying sideways on the crystal unmoved. The fair skin on her arms and cheeks had unknowingly darkened. When Leung anxiously used his unoccupied hand to help her up and helped her to lean her head on his chest. Cone Nail. Her body was soft yet icy cold. From the moment when Leung appeared until she was supported by him, she did show any responses. Only a glimmer radiated from the seams of her eyes that were almost closing. She was utterly not looking at the precious in Wen Liang's other hand but she was only staring at his eyes. Her gaze that could be extinguished at any moment appeared earnest and joyous. When Wen Liang realized that she was still alive, he felt relieved in his heart, yet he hesitated when he raised the wine cup again. He looked towards the jade knife slightly undecided and asked strenuously, so I am just supposed to pour pour it down. Pour. Gua Han's answer sounded sonorous and forceful, Poor poor I guess. That drop of heavenly water spirit glided soundlessly from the ice stalactite cup into Cone Nail's mouth. Cone Nail's body trembled slightly. Her cinnabar red-colored lips parted gently. Her breath smelled like the orchid as she gave out an extremely gentle moan. When Leon gazed at her in anxiety. A moment later, a smile that was as beautiful and bright as the glowing full moon bloomed all of a sudden. Just as mentioned by Cone Nail in the past, the heavenly water produced an immediate result. After she swallowed the precious of the water element, Cone Nail's expression and the color of her skin became flushed and smooth immediately. Cone Nail's laughter sounded unsurpassable but her voice sounded a little fatigued, I am fine, Booty would like to sleep for a while. As she was saying that, 
she did not acknowledge Wen Liang's response. Her body was akin to a kitten as she curled with great efforts and squeezed into Wen Liang's cradle joyously. She closed her eyes and within a few seconds, her uniformed breathing could be heard. She had truly fallen asleep. Even Guo Huan could not help but lower its voice, her primordial spirit is almost completely scattered. She will need to sleep for a while before she can properly induce the divine power of the utmost precious of water element. It is best that you do not move so she can sleep proper lido not mavido noto no. On the outside of the body, the shimmering silver-colored cold poison of water continued to surge majestically as before. It wrapped Wen Leong in layers. The poison of life and death in his body continuously circulated and absorbed the poison of water into his body to assimilate but Wen Leong was already unaware of these matters. He could not hear what Guo Huan was saying. After his body was completely relaxed, the muscles, bones, blood and flesh of his entire body felt sore and fatigue as if all his bodily parts were continuously peeling away and fusing together. His body felt limp as he fell to the ground. He was knocked into deep unconsciousness. During that period, Guo Huan spoke in its rigid voice occasionally. You've got me ululated loudly from afar. Occasionally, Kone Nail who was lying on his body trembled strongly he could not tell if everything that was taking place was a reality or a dream, he did not know how long had passed when his entire body rippled with a gush of joyous agility. When Leong suddenly opened his eyes. He realized that, you've got me, was behaving like a small train that drove past his face in a rumble. The bug was turning in circles. When Leong stretched out his hand and grabbed onto, you've got me. You've got me, stretched itself strenuously in his palm as if it was trying to glue every inch of its body onto his skin. The ululation sound from its mouth sounded so friendly it was out of the world for Wen Leong. Not a drop of the poison of water waves that had gathered around him before he was knocked unconscious was left. It had vanished completely. Another two more cheers were heard. The first cheer sounded agile and pleasant, akin to a bird that was chirping gently in the distant hills, while the other cheer sounded dry and rigid. Akin to a blind bear that was chewing on dried branches before his eyes cone nail and Guo Huan laughed simultaneously and asked, Are you awake? Similar to every time after he was done absorbing strong poison, when Leong felt that his entire body was comfortable, just like he had just taken a cold shower in the hot summer. His body felt cool yet his muscles and bones felt warm. There was an unspeakable energy in him, there was an unspeakable easiness in him. Kone Nail and Guo Huan spoke simultaneously again, they asked in unison, How do you feel? When Leong did not care about himself. He stuffed, you've got me, into his chest pocket. His hand picked up the jade knife while his other hand pulled cone nail, are all of you all right? Guo Huan burst out laughing, what else can happen to the old father? Cone nail also laughed simultaneously, as good as before. I can fight with Chang Li again. Wen Leong was startled. After he was certain that cone nail was only joking, he sniggered. Yet, there was a slight unwillingness in his laugh only as good as before. I thought you said that you would achieve vast improvement in your cultivation power. Do you want me to get you more of the heavenly water spirit? As he was saying that he was touching and feeling the ground, where is that small bowl of ours? There is no need for you to do so, that drop that you gave me had yet to be fully digested, any more would be a waste. Cone Nail shook her head, the heavenly water spirit's power of utmost water element is vast and boundless. It is originated from the same source as my embodiment of heavenly water, even a drop is enough to allow me to make a vast improvement in my cultivation power, however as she was saying that, her expression turned peculiar. Cone Nail was halfway through her speech when she suddenly diverted the topic conversation out of nowhere, there are procedures and sequences for the process of deriving power from the five elements. One must first restore one's health then establish a firm foundation of primordial spirit, and finally strengthen the body. In simpler words, the first step is to heal the injuries, the second step is to refine the spirit and the third step is to cultivate the body. When Leong nodded absent-mindedly, he did not understand what Cone Nail was trying to tell him. There was a sense of uncertainty in Cone Nail's expression, but this time, after the heavenly water spirit helped me to recuperate my injuries, the remaining energy surged into my primordial soul entirely. 
Not that my primordial spirit became bigger and stronger but there was another gush of energy that was entangling and colliding with the heavenly water spirit. The more she explained to Wen Leung the more he was confused. Guo Huan could not help but interrupt from the side. If it was looking for a new job, the most suitable position for it would be to become an MC, there is an incisive seal in her primordial spirit. The power of heavenly water spirit is currently gathered around the seal. The power of water element that is attempting to refine her primordial soul must first surge past the seal. There was another gush of energy in her primordial spirit. Not even Cone Nail was aware of that in the past. It was only after the power of heavenly water spirit entered her body and after she was done recuperating her injuries and was in the process of refining her soul, she noticed its existence indistinctively. As she had suddenly recalled the remnant memories of Jeladaindong Peak, the bugs and the heavenly water spirit, she discovered that perhaps someone had sealed away her memories. After experiencing the peculiar operation mode of the power of heavenly water, she had deduced that it was the case after the discussion with Guo Huan. One was a demon suppressing heaven's cone nail with a belly full of schemes, while the other was a great demon immortal with extensive knowledge. If this was the results based on the two persons' deduction, it would not be too different from the truth. When Leon let out a he. His tone of speaking was filled with his feeling of injustice for Cone Nail, the person who condensed the heavens Cone Nail, did he really tamper with your primordial spirit and sealed your memories? Cone Nail nodded with an indifferent expression. When Leong started searching for the small bowl again. Cone Nail shook her head and gave a forced laugh, the heavenly water spirit's power of water element is resisting the seal in my primordial spirit. It will take a long period of time and laborious efforts as it is akin to dripping water that wears through a stone. It is useless even if you can conjure a deluge. Moreover, my primordial spirit cannot contain so much power of true water, even if I were to absorb any more of the heavenly water spirit now, I will need to wait until this drop of spiritual power is exhausted before I can discuss any further. If the seal is not broken, my primordial spirit will be broken by it first. When Cone Nail was talking about this, she suddenly reacted to the situation. Her tone was slightly ghastly, the heavenly water spirit are there many of them in there? Even her eyes were sparkling as she was speaking. When Leong smiled as he nodded. He explained about the sequence of events that took place after he passed through the prohibition spells. As he was not a good speaker, the exceedingly complex procedure was described by him in a dull manner. Yet, Cone Nail laughed. She laughed for a while before she used her previous piteous expression to wash away her emotions. Cone Nail's tone was filled with pleading that made Wen Leong terrified in the past, yet it made him at a loss of whether to be annoyed or amused right now. By the time this drop of heavenly water spirit is used up, please help me to fill up with a new drop. As she was saying that, Cone Nail procured the ice stalactite small bowl the size of a thumb and waved about. When she was first awakened and when Leong was still unconscious, she stored up this small bowl cautiously, if you can promise me that, I will run if I ever see Changli in the future. I will never seek revenge on her and I will not fight her. Even Cone Nail was unconvinced by her own words. She frowned as she pondered laboriously for a moment, then her huge eyes suddenly brightened. She smiled as she pulled Wen Leong, why don't we profess each other as relatives? In the future, if I were to meet your Grand Master Changli, since we are a family, naturally I will not fight her. Guo Huan burst out laughing. It spoke in an all-round manner, just marry him, just marry him. Then you will naturally be a family with him. Wen Leong was startled, yet Kon Nail laughed aloud as she shook her head, I will not marry him. He is a good man but he is not good enough for me to marry Hymer else, why don't I just call myself when Cone Nail hereafter? She was halfway through her speech when Cone Nail suddenly shook her head ferociously, I cannot become relatives with you otherwise I will become Chang Li's disciple and disciples' disciples. I will never enjoy even if I become all invincible in this world. Rather than becoming your relative, I might as well become Tuasye's relative. Cone Nail finally nodded. She was rather satisfied with her arrangement. Wen Leong was at a loss whether to laugh or to cry but he was feeling delightful in his heart. There was no one on the black and white island capable of launching the magic incantation spell. The only conflict that existed between Wen Butsao's lineage and Kone Nail suddenly vanished into nothingness. 
Grand Master Changli acted recklessly and crushed the heaven's cone nail, yet she also managed to draw out cone nail's remnant memories miraculously. In the eyes of cone nail, Chang Li's action had actually helped her. The enmity vanished like ash and smoke. After the Snow Peak was engaged in a series of dangerous events, Kon Nail and Wen Liang stuck together in life or death during the journey. Perhaps it was not considered soul-stirring but to the both of them, whether it was the current moment or when they recalled about this event in the future, this would be a great and beyond joyous event. The distance between the both of them also vanished with the wind. This form of relationship was perhaps unrelated to the love between a man and a woman but it was a wonderful time knitted with the life and death situation. Wen Leong was filled with joy as he watched Kon Nail. Kon Nail was filled with joy as she watched Wen Leong. However, in between Wen Leong and Kon Nail, there was still a knot that could not be loosened no matter how. It was Leong Shoujin. The moment he thought of the Leong family's lineage, Wen Leong's face turned dull. Kon Nail seemed to understand what he was thinking. A sense of dimness penetrated from her smile. She spoke gently, about this matter, we will discuss further after we settle Xiang Lu. Following that, she fisted her hands and arched her back, she exhaled a breath strenuously as if this helplessness that was already beyond salvageable could be blown away. She laughed happily once again. Wen Leung also did not speak again. He hung the jade knife back onto his neck and asked in hesitation, within Cone Nail's primordial spirit, the power of heavenly water spirit is charging at the seal. Will that make her as he was saying that, when Leong pointed to his head, his understanding of the primordial spirit was that it was a brain cell, an enormous brain cell. Guo Huan was stunned for a moment before it understood Wen Leong's question, so you are afraid that she might turn crazy? That is utterly two different matters. The power of utmost precious that is entangling with the seal and the seal itself are two gushes of powers that are unrelated to cone nail. Cone Nail's movements and routines and the launching of her supernatural power will not be affected. We can only see if the seal is tougher in the end or the utmost precious is more incisive. Wen Leung finally felt relieved. Judging by Guo Huan and Cone Nail's statement, sooner or later that seal would be broken and in the final analysis, there would come a day when the seal's power was exhausted. After all, the heavenly spirit was still condensing underneath the ice stalactite drop by drop continuously and they also had the small bowl. As Kone Nail declared herself as the relative of Chang Li's husband, she was pleased with herself for a moment. Then she returned to Wen Liang's side, pestered and urged him continuously, show us quick. Since you have already absorbed so much poison of water, you must have some new abilities now. Wen Liang stretched out his hand and gestured for a few times. He laughed in embarrassment, I do not feel anything different, maybe my power is slightly stronger than before, my bones and muscles are slightly tougher, my telegnosis ability is clearer and spreads further. On the other hand, Cone Nail frowned in puzzlement. She stretched out her hands and gestured in exaggeration, so much poison of water is absorbed by you but you do not feel anything special. When Leong smiled arrogantly, he could not conceal the mannerism of a small man intoxicated by success of his, currently I think that I am not any less stronger than the giant pangolin. Cone Nail was not courteous at all. She directly exercised her position as Tuasye's elder sister as she scolded, what a good-for-nothing young lad. Such vast and thick poison of water, even Tian Yin could not endure that. Yet, after you had completely absorbed it, you are only of an equal match to Patu. Wen Leong was stunned. He knew very well in his heart how strong his power was. It was true that his power was vastly enhanced but he was absolutely not as powerful until he could evenly rival the top master cultivators such as Kon Nail and Chang Li. The Grand Master Kon Nail pondered for a moment before speaking to Wen Leong, explain your cultivation method in detail to me. Wen Leong nodded. He immediately explained, the poison of life and death can assimilate the strong poison of five elements. Every time it assimilates an element, it will be added with a new element of attribution from the moment his meridians and muscles were shattered in the beginning until he cultivated into the domineering cultivation method of his ancestor when Latsi, a few years had already passed. He absorbed the strong poison on multiple occasions, so he had figured out some form of pattern. Every element of the utmost poison of five elements would add a little attribution to Wen Liang's poison of life and death. 
While the poison power in his body was vastly enhanced, the poison of life and death would rise to a certain level before he could achieve the breakthrough to a new level. When Leong was afraid that Kon Nail could not understand his explanation, he concluded, let me just put it this way, the poison of five elements is just the poison of life and death's meals and nourishment. After the poison of life and death is fully fed, only then it will allow me to thoroughly remold myself, turn my human body into a saint. The poison that truly allows me to upgrade myself is not the utmost poison of five elements but the poison of life and death. In the Red Leaves Forest, the poison of life and death remolded Wen Liang's poisonous meridians. It did not refine his soul but directly caused the body to complete the process of a cultivator's so-called foundation establishment and marrow washing. Wen Liang's actual power had already exceeded an ordinary level cultivator's power. When he absorbed the poison of earth in the Miao Stockade village and dug through the mountain on Mount Amei, the poison of earth completely combined with the poison of life and death. The poison of life and death also turned from stagnant into a poison tide that flowed with his intent. From then on, his cultivation power was vastly enhanced. He had already possessed the power to fight against the first-rate master cultivators of the five blessings like the enlightened person Qin Yao. Following that he refined the two bronze and Mo Ya strong poison of metal element in the gold-consuming lair. Then, he was countercharged by the drought spirits that was summoned by Hamba the drought deity in the city god temple of Shanghai, such that his poison power of metal element was increased by many folds. However, whether it was the poison of earth or the poison of metal, it made when Liang's actual power grew but never to the degree of being thoroughly remolded. It was only when he arrived in the painting town of Shanghai, the power of yin and yang fused with the poison of life and death and the strong poison prohibition spells that were bred on the Nine Peaks Mountain for two thousand years. The poison of life and death grew and flourished and it used the strong poison to remold Wen Liang's body. Such that he was strong enough to rival with the demon monk Bu Lu from the Great Mercy Temple that had cultivated for almost two thousand years. This time after he had absorbed the poison of water, it was true that his cultivation power was vastly enhanced. Wen Leon could feel that he should be able to race against the giant pangolin Patu. However, even though his power and body became stronger, it was unlike the transformation of an ordinary person to a not bad cultivator's actual power but more like the leap of a cultivator's actual power to a thousand-year-old demon's level. The old demon rabbit Buli's cultivation base was albeit weaker than Patu, strictly speaking, the two demons were still of the same grade. They were both of the same fine standards of 60 to 80 marks but the demon rabbit scored 61. While the pangolin scored over 70 marks the two persons were still a full grade away from the excellent level of 80 to 100 marks. This form of distance was perhaps differed by the score of one but the difference was like the distance between the heaven and the earth. Even if the old demon rabbit were to risk its life, he could surely fight against Patu for at least half a day. However, even if Patu were to sacrifice its body full of scales, in the eyes of the good hands like Chong Li and Kon Nail who were stronger than it by a level. It was nothing but a dung beetle and could be crushed to death at the rays of their hands. Kon Nail listened patiently until when Leong was done speaking. She muttered to herself for a moment before she shifted her gaze to the jade knife hanging on his neck, what does Guo Huan think about this? Guo Huan let out a, he. It spoke in a resolute and decisive manner, this is related to the corpse. The poison of life and death, the poison of life and death. The power that is gathered from the five elements is all the poison of life that is assimilated by the poison power within his body. Even if it were to expand any bigger, the power that is displayed is still limited. However, after it had fused with the poison of death, it was capable of thoroughly remolding his body. When he first condensed and refined his poisonous meridians, he had Yin Chi's poison of corpse. Afterwards, when he remolded his body, he had the ghost energy of the countless soldiers of the Netherlands. The Jade Knife Guo Huan statement enlightened Wen Leung suddenly. Chapter 221 Wen Leung's body has been upgraded twice now. It was only after the Yin and Yang forces have been fused completely that his actual power received a qualitative leap. The poison of life and death in his body has absorbed the utmost poisons of the five elements but this had only enhanced the yang's disposition in him. In order to really upgrade himself, he still needs an equal amount of malevolent forces from the corpse poison as a supplement. 
This matter was directly related to his cultivation method and actual power. Wen Liang's heart wavered from unease as he listened to the explanation. It took him a moment before he reacted to the situation and asked Guo Huan, why had you not told me that earlier? Guo Huan had pretended to be comatose all along yet he seems to be able to speak impressively with sound reasoning right now. It was certain that he had spent some time pondering on this matter in the past. Guo Huan's answer was completely uncourteous, I've never treated you as family in the past. When Leung burst out laughing, so, we're family now. Guo Hua ignored him. When Leung pondered by himself for a while longer before he heaved a long sigh, so. Where can I find such a swift and forceful corpse poison the utmost poisons of the five elements were already difficult to find things like the Yin Qi or the Yin Army were, by contrast, easier to chance upon than to plead for. It was already a situation stranger than fiction for him to have discovered that twice. Zhui Zi gathered herself forward mysteriously. Her intentionally lowered voice carried a sense of apparent encouragement, there's fifth brother Hanba, I can help you. No way. When Leong was startled, this was an absolutely rotten idea to him. Zhui Zi pouted her lips and her expression showed boundless injustice. Her agile eyes rolled around before she finally gave up on the idea of encouraging Wen Leong to kill Hanba. She then refocused the topic of discussion once again, other than expanding the poison of life and death, there should be one more useful feature of the utmost poisons of the five elements. Zhui Zi frowned as she said that and pondered as she spoke, the thick earth and sharp metal are mainly involved in establishing one's foundations and providing support. That was why it had remolded your poisonous bones. If you had first absorbed strong poison from the other three elements, the body parts which would be remade might not necessarily be your bones. The jade knife huffed in agreement as it praised, you have a point there. Wen Leung hummed in a slightly peculiar tone before he chuckled and asked Guo Huan, do you need her help for something? Judging from Guo Huan's cranky temper, it was rare for him to compliment others in the past. Therefore, Wen Leung was surprised when Guo Hua had laughed in tacit agreement with Zhui Zi. The water poison's poison tide which was transformed from thousands of ice bugs had even overwhelmed Tian Yin but the power it produced after being assimilated by the poison of life and death was very limited. When Leung had felt rather joyous when he awakened but after he had pondered about it for a while, he began to feel reluctant. He inhaled deeply and exerted his strength to urge the poison of life and death in his body to circulate continuously. After a long while, he suddenly exclaimed in surprise. He turned his palm upwards with his thumb raised and a drop of dark grey-coloured liquid appeared soundlessly on the tip of his thumb. The lustrous and dazzling colours of the crystal or in the cave reflected in the grey-coloured droplet before turning into the grey colour of death that suffocated them. Zhui Zi did not notice his small movement as she stretched her body lazily from the side. Guo Huan reacted as expected as he laughed in an earnest manner, you've spent these days taking care of that one boy of yours, you never even slept at all. You must be tired. When Leong raised his head in astonishment. He contemplated for a moment before he suddenly squalled, how many days has it been? Even though Zhui Zi's action was suspicious with the intent of showing off, it would certainly take more than ten days or a half a month's time for this great demon to feel slightly tired. When Leong felt cold sweat cover his skin as he pondered about this fact it had taken him a year to absorb the earth poison at the Miao Stockade village and there was so much water poison this time. Putting the three-month agreement from the monkey Qian Ren aside, perhaps if he was to return home now, he would just be in time to bear witness to Wen Bushuo marrying his son off. Guo Huan may be friendly to Zhui Zi but he did not provide such good service to Wen Leong as he scoffed rigidly, how would I know? I'm not wearing a watch. After this outburst, he paused for a moment before he added, also, I don't own a cell phone. Wen Leong looked at Zhui Zi once again who shook her head innocently, I don't have those as well. Wen Leung gulped and fused the grey-coloured droplet on his fingertip back into his body with a wave of his hand. Zhui Zi had not paid attention when Wen Leung had formed the liquid and only noticed it now. She asked curiously, what's that? It's the poison of life and death. We can discuss more as we walk. As Wen Leung was speaking, he pulled Zhui Zi up and began to dash rapidly towards the outside of the ore cave. Wen Leong had only run forward two steps when he suddenly stopped moving as if he had recalled something. 
He frowned as he hesitated for a while before he stretched out his hand and plucked the jade knife up. He then asked for the small ice stalactite bowl from Zhui Zi and ran back into the cave swiftly. It did not take long before he returned with a small drop of heavenly water spirit in his hand. He chuckled as he spoke to Zhui Zi, we've destroyed their bugs so we must at least show some respects to them, right? Zhui Zi helped him to seal the heavenly water spirit with a magic spell. The both of them then departed once again and rushed to the outside world. The poison tied in Wan Liang's body was surging with splendid and tremendous force as he dashed out with Zhui Zi. Guo Huan, who was in the jade knife, was praising Zhui Zi, after the heaven's cone nail had been awakened, she had refused to move an inch away and guarded you. She even refused to go out to get some fresh air. Naturally, she would not know how long it has been. Young lad, you must always remember her loyalty. Zhui Zi giggled but her attention was still concentrated on that drop of poison of life and death which had condensed out of Wen Leong, so, that droplet earlier was the liquid form of the poison of life and death. It does not seem any peculiar to me. Wen Leong, on the other hand, shook his head, the peculiarity is not in the poisonous liquid but in the cultivation method. After the water element had been dissolved away, the poison of life and death could follow my heart's intent when it was circulating until it could flow out of my body. In the past, it had only been able to circulate within my body. When I was fighting desperately, I still needed to use the faulty punch to force the poison's power out of my body. However, I can directly convert the strong poison into liquid now and let it flow out of my body. Do you understand what I'm saying? When Leon was a clumsy speaker. It was even more difficult for him to express his intention with words when it comes to explaining about his cultivation method. In the past, there was no way the poison of life and death could flow out of his body by itself. He could only depend on the faulty punch's strength to display it and push it into the enemy's body. The metal poison stream beneath his feet was formed from veins woven from the utmost metal poison. In the final analysis, it was still the metal elemental poison stream and not the poison of life and death which was circulating outside his body. However, right now, when Leong was capable of directly forcing the poison of life and death out of his body like a venom. Zhui Zi stopped walking abruptly. Within her stern gaze, there was a glimpse of surprise which could not be suppressed. She stretched out her fair-skinned palm and spoke in a manner which does not tolerate rejection, give me a drop now. Wen Leong does not understand her purpose but he nodded absent-mindedly. With the gentle flick of a finger, a drop of grey-coloured venom rolled about before it dropped onto Zhui Zi's palm with a plop. The grey-coloured venom disappeared in a flash. Soon after, a dim layer of greenish-grey colour suddenly spread across Zhui Zi's palm. It crept all the way to her elbow quickly before it gradually slowed down. The jade knife Guo Huan gasped softly in astonishment as Zhui Zi's gaze was also filled with shock. After a moment, she exhaled a long breath and muttered to herself, what an incisive poison. Soon after that, she circulated her life vitality to disperse the poison. The hideous-looking greenish-gray color on her forearm gradually dissipated as she spoke, I was not intentionally resisting the strong poison earlier but only used my self-defense life vitality to dissolve the poison of life and death. That arm of mine is considered crippled before I can disperse the poison. Ever since the early times, poison was an unorthodox material to a cultivator because they can use their life vitality to defend their body. Once the presence of toxicity has invaded their body, it would immediately be dissolved by the cultivator's life vitality. This makes it seem as if cultivators were immune to all poisons. However, once the toxicity's damage was stronger than the cultivator's life vitality, the cultivator could be killed by the poison. Even a top master cultivator like Tian Yin had only barely managed to escape at a rush under the endless water poison. The poison was a force and the life vitality was a force as well. In the final analysis, it was still a match of which force was the stronger one. Wen Leong understood the principle and he pondered Zhui Zi's words for a while. Suddenly, he felt the ore cave before his eyes brighten abruptly. The strong poison in his body could flow outside now. He probably could not bring out a huge amount but he could still splash out a basin full of venom and survive. 
Since one drop of his venom was capable of crippling one of Zhui Zi's arms, if he was to scatter a stretch of life and death venom, perhaps even Tian Yin would have to admit defeat if he was to attack Wen Leong again. Zhui Zi observed Wen Leong as he scratched his ears and cheeks in excitement. She burst out laughing as she shook her head, don't get too happy yet. If I had been fully prepared, even if you were to splash out the blood and essence in your entire body, don't think that you could even touch a single strand of my hair. Your body and your powers are not strong enough. You won't survive if you only depended on this drop of venom to fight me. Zhui Zi's smile suddenly vanished as she spoke and her tone of speaking was earnest yet solemn, I will never harm you. Chang Li and Hanba will not harm you as well naturally. Based on your current level of cultivation, there's only one person who is a direct threat and is capable of killing you right now. When Leung nodded, he knew who she was talking about. Zhui Zi continued to speak sternly, that's why you can never tell anyone else about your self-defense method. If Tian Yin was to come fully prepared, if you were to fight against him hereafter, you would definitely be killed by him. Wen Liang's current ability was no different from someone spitting saliva. His ability paid particular attention to strike where the enemy was unprepared and appeared when the enemy least expects it. After he has absorbed a good amount of water poison, his power had not increased to a corresponding level but he now possesses the ability to splash out his venom. This could, in a way, be considered as a consolation prize. When Leung felt elated and the vision before his eyes brightened as he dashed out of the ore cave with Zhui Zi before immediately crashing headfirst into the thick ice sheet. Zhui Zi laughed as she asked him, Do you want me to bring you along with the escape spell or do you want to run together? The speed is almost the same. The ice escape was albeit energy conserving but they could not talk. When Leung and Zhui Zi pounded their way out of the ice sheet together. There was a raging snowstorm outside and it was incomparably cold. It seems that it was winter already. The Jiangandiru Glacier was located on the Jeladaindong Peak's southeast slope. After they had clearly identified the direction they started dashing wildly towards the snowy peak. The act of running to one's pleasure in the boundless snowstorm was an intense experience but when Leong was not foolish enough to take off his shirt. On the contrary, he pulled his clothes tightly around his body and asked, Guo Huan, how long will this jade knife last? After casting the demon body breaking spell several times on the snowy peak, the jade knife was covered in fissures. It looks as if it would shatter at any moment. Guo Huan replied, He, this young lad still has some conscience in him. This jade knife, in its current condition, can last one year at most and six months at least. It can't hold on beyond that. FCK, this old father can even hear the sound of it crumbling little by a little every day. When Leung nodded, I will beg Grand Master Chang Li after we get home and find out the location of your immortal's cave. Guo Huan's tone of speaking, on the other hand, does not sound impatient. He then laughed out loud, it'll be best if you can locate this old father's split body but in case you can't locate me, then I'll need to trouble the heaven's cone nail fairy maiden. When Leung was a little confused and he peered at Zhui Zi strangely, you know where his split body and his immortal's cave is? Zhui Zi was dashing wildly like the swift wind. She shook her head as her mouth cracked into a charming smile. This time, the few of them have managed to unite their efforts to deal with Tian Yin. Zhui Zi and Guo Huan's enmity in the past had disappeared like ash and smoke. Although Zhui Zi does not know the location of Guo Huan's immortal's cave, she had a backup plan. If they truly could not find Guo Huan's split body, Zhui Zi would help Guo Huan to capture a cultivator and toss them into the ore caves, 13 shall not pass prohibition spells. The plan was to use the prohibition spells to wipe away the other party's primordial soul and then cast a spell to help Guo Hua possess the body. A cultivator's human body was supposed to be a great soul vessel to bear a primordial spirit but in most cases, no matter how strong the traveling primordial spirit was. It would never be able to defeat the body's original master unless that primordial spirit was some primitive monster like Xian Lu's evil soul or the true soul. Amongst the two, the true soul was much stronger than the evil soul. The true soul had been capable of seizing Tian Yin's Dharma body which was good enough to declare himself the sword immortal while the evil soul could only possess the body of an ordinary cultivator, that of the Taoist priest San Wei. 
In the cultivation world, San Wei was no one but a small character with some reputation back then. Zhui Zi's idea actually uses the same principle as Xiang Lu's evil soul in the Jade Knife. That evil soul had attached itself to the Taoist priest San Wei's true body a thousand years ago. The actual power of Guo Huan's split body would be around 20 to 30 percent of the god level. There were not many cultivators in the world who could measure up to him but if Guo Huan's split body truly could not be found. Then it was still better for him to have a body than to leave his primordial soul to be scattered in the air after the jade knife shatters. However, the many factors of looking for and capturing that person, or the quality of that person's body, would depend largely on Zhui Zi's mood. Therefore, how could Guo Huan not flatter Zhui Zi as much as he could now? When Leung finally understands now that whether it was Changli, Hanba, Zhui Zi, or Tuo Xie, though they may be top master cultivators, none of them could be considered as good people. He would never have thought of such a malicious solution to that problem. Once Zhui Zi had finished explaining the matter, she looked at Wen Leung and smiled. I'll be looking for a someone who had committed the most wicked sins to toss into the 13 shall not pass prohibition spells, I won't put you in a difficult position. Guohua hastily chimed in, uh, it's still best if you can find me a human body with good qualities and still damned to be punished. However, if you can't find someone like that, then it will be more important for you to judge based on the body's quality. When Leon was at a loss of whether to cry or to laugh, I think you are better off looking for that split body of yours. However he frowned and asked Zhui Zi in a slightly puzzled tone, even if you could find a cultivator who deserves to be damned and toss them into the prohibition spells to wash away their primordial soul, how will you remove them later? When Leon had already puffed up his chest proudly as he spoke for not many people could bore through the ice sheet as well as enter and exit that the thirteen shall not pass prohibition spell unhindered. In fact, he might be the only person who could do that. I'll tie a rope around that person's leg and all would be settled. Zhui Zi burst out laughing as she took away the prideful expression on Wen Leung's face in one moment. Wen Leung laughed too, as long as Grand Master Chang Li is willing to help, Guo Huan can return to his Dharma body once again and there would be no need to be too concerned over this matter. Still, on the contrary, that method of yours could be an effective way of saving another person's life. Wen Leung and knocked lightly onto the jade knife as he spoke, tell me this first, the primordial soul who had dealt with Tianin earlier, what was that about? San Wei's primordial soul which had been hidden in the jade knife had immediately woken up after Tianyin's appearance. It had been waiting for the opportunity to launch an ambush but after that, it then conversed with Guo Huan for a short period of time before it fell into a deep sleep that it has still not awoken from. Guo Huan explained the rough idea of events which had taken place back then, Huffing at the end, this primordial soul had been a monk in the beginning. When it lost its dharma body's shackles, it recuperated for a period of time but the ability to launch its supernatural power was still the cultivation base which had been branded into his bones since the beginning. The ability to summon the arhats and use the golden dharma body and godly appearance to restrain the evil devil was supposed to be the Buddhist sect supernatural power. Even if Wen Leong was unaware of the cultivator's abilities, just by looking at the bald arhats which had dropped down from the sky, he could tell that the person who was casting the spell was no Taoist priest. If it had not been for the great mercy's power of mindful training contained in this primordial soul, its cultivation would not be suffering from the possessed evil soul's torments. The primordial soul had spent over a thousand years deliberately scheming day and night to oppose Hanba. In the final analysis, it was still trying to execute Xiang Lu's evil soul in order to cleanse the malevolent energy from its dharma body. Now that its cultivation has been destroyed, the primordial soul was albeit weak and fragile but it could free itself from the agony that entangled good and evil akin to purgatory in a thousand years. This primordial soul's key reason to kill Guo Huan also no longer exists. In addition, its primordial spirit had originally contained a righteous cultivator. It had launched its supernatural power to save them so when Leong felt that he was ready to help the soul right now. Due to the enhancement of his cultivation power, when Leong's eyes were shining blacker and brighter than before. He laughed as he asked Guo Huan, so will he regain his memories? Guo Huan shook its head in the jade knife, how will I know about that? I will let you know when he has awakened. When Leong nodded and no longer wasted time to speak nonsense. 
The poison of life and death surged as he exerted his strength to dash wildly but he ended up being dragged by Zhui Zi like a human kite which flew close to the ground. Soon, when Leong and Zhui Zi were hiking up the snowy slope on Jeladaindong Peak. As he dashed through the landscape, the sound of crying suddenly echoed and a bald, fat boy staggered as he ran towards them. It was the Hua family youth who had recently lost the bug tide, Hua Xiaobao. Hua Xiaoba still looked the same and Wen Leong was secretly relieved. He had been afraid that Hua Xiaoba would turn into an old man. Hua Xiaoba ran towards them with snot and tears on his face. He pulled a long face as he stuttered and asked, Where did all of you go? Where's the bug tied? Before he could finish his sentence, a whistle echoed once and again, a large batch of white-robed youths appeared from beneath the ice sheet. The person leading them was Wen Leong's acquaintance, Hua Xiaoyao. Hua Xiaoyao realized that Wen Leong and Zhui Zi had returned safe and sound. There was a sense of joy in his face but before he could speak, Zhui Zi pursed her lips first, the bug tide is gone. Not even a firecracker is left, they are all dead. The smile on Hua Xiaoyao's face immediately froze as he stood on the same spot in astonishment. He did not know whether he should feel angry or heartache and he clenched his fists so tightly until his knuckles popped. His entire body trembled slightly. When Leong hastily took out the small bowl from his chest pocket which had been sealed by Zhui Zi's magic spell. He then presented it to Hua Xiaoyao, this is compensation for the Hua family, it's the, heavenly water spirit. The Hua family had been cultivating in the water elemental cultivation method for generations. Hua Xiaoyao was the best amongst the white-robed youths and he could sense that the drop of clear water in the small bowl was enshrouded with tremendous force despite being separated by Zhui Zi's seal. H squalled once as he sat on the ground with a thud. His expression was a combination of fear and panic with a deep sense of surprise. He stared in bewilderment at Wen Leong as his lips quivered but he could not even say one word. Zhui Zi urged him impatiently, foolish boy, this is an enormous creation. Why aren't you taking it? There's only this drop here, don't blame us if you accidentally destroy it. Upon saying that, she suddenly recalled something and added, remember to return that small bowl to me. Hua Xiaoyao seems to have just had a rude awakening as he gulped strenuously. He accidentally bit the tip of his tongue and, judging by the grimace on his face, he was feeling rather pained as he stretched out his hand and received the, heavenly water spirit. Soon after, he stood on the same spot once again. His entire person was like an ice sculpture as he stood there absent-mindedly at a complete loss for words. It was only until Zhui Zi had raised her hand with a smile and slapped him soundly on the head did Hua Xiaoyao regain his senses. He then roared at the people behind him loudly, Hua Xiao Duo, Hua Xiao Duo, get over here. Accompany accompany the Sword Immortal's honored guests. The rest of you, escort me back to the house to visit the family's leader. A young maiden jumped forward as she answered in a cheerful voice and walked to the front of Wan Leong. She then bowed and saluted him. After Hua Xiaoyao finished giving out his instructions, he felt that he had been discourteous and looked at Wan Leong with a piteous expression. Wen Leong burst out laughing as he waved his hand, off you go, off you go. Hua Xiaoba was still standing at the front. He raised his bald little head as he continued to cry and pester as before, will all of you please return my firecrackers. Return my bug tied before he could finish his sentence, Hua Xiaoyao had covered his mouth and pulled him away. The large group of Hua family disciples then disappeared into the ice sheet in the blink of an eye, leaving behind a white-robed young maiden named Hua Xiao Duo. Wen Leung finally remembered something as he asked Hua Xiao Duo with a slightly impatient tone, how long has it been since I've left? Hua Xiao Duo blinked her huge eyes. Her expression was at first perplexed before it turned hesitant. Finally, she made up her mind in the end as she said, two months. Wen Leung was surprised at her reaction, he had only asked about the time but Hua Xiao Duo had nodded her head strenuously like she was risking her life as she repeated her answer, it has been two months. Wen Leong exhaled a long breath. He calculated the time and reckoned that he could still rush back to the small town of Tuer to help the dog-headed eagle to exterminate the bugs. Hua Xiao Duo realized that Wen Leong looked satisfied and immediately felt relieved. She chuckled, those friends of yours are still frozen in the ice spikes. 
we've been taking care of them carefully all this time. It was only then that when Leung suddenly recalled that the little supreme leader Lu Zhang, the Kunlun Sect 72 esteemed sword seniors, Old Gu, Fei Fei and Xiao Sha were still frozen in the ice spikes. He quickly looked at Zhui Zi, they won't be frozen to death, right? It may have been alright for cultivators like Lu Zhang and the Kunlun Sect's disciples but the trio of Old Gu were just common people. Even if they had been placed in a freezer, not to say being frozen in the ice spikes, they would have been frozen to death by now. Zhu Zi laughed with complete confidence, don't worry, they won't die. She pulled Wen Leong along as she spoke. Her sleeves floated in the air and her feet almost do not seem to touch the ground as she rushed towards the location where the frozen Kunlun sex disciples were. That stretch of ice spikes was still as lustrous and dazzling as before, there were not even any signs of them melting in these two months. Whether it was Lu Zheng with the most profound cultivation base or the common person Gu Xiaojun with a human's body, all were sound asleep in the ice spikes. Near the bottom, Rang Yong and Pe Tu were leaning against the base of the spikes, dozing off from boredom. After Zhou Zi had removed the magic spell, a group of people immediately dropped to the ground like living koi fishes. In the midst of the pressing affairs, Wen Leong managed to catch only Fei Fei. By the time Lu Zhang and the rest were awakened, not only were they not dull, they were brimming with health and vitality. Back when Zhou Zi had cast her freezing spell, her purpose had been to retain their lives. The magic spell was a supernatural power which focused on using the water element as moisture not only was it not harmful to them, it also helped to take care of their primordial spirit. Wen Leong did not waste any time talking nonsense as he explained the sequence of events in its entirety to the crowd. Everyone, including Lu Zheng and Rang Yong, stared in bewilderment upon hearing his explanation. Following that, under the guidance of Hua Xiaoduo, the crowd went over to take a look at the Kunlun sect disciples who were in the process of being recognized as the masters by the firecrackers. The large batch of Kunlun Taoist priests still retained their prior ghastly appearances with spurious smiles. There was also the addition of Tudatunt, whose mouth was opened wide with his teeth bared. His pitch-black complexion appeared unusually striking. The matter on the snowy peak was considered settled, the most urgent matter right now for Wen Leong was to exterminate the bugs for the dog-headed eagle in order to exchange the lives of Qin Zhui and the dwarf Taoist priest. Wen Leong did not wish to procrastinate any longer. He refused to wait for the Hua family's elders to come over so he instructed Hua Xiaoduo to request for the Hua family to take care of Tudatunt and the Kunlun sect's disciples. Following that, he joined Zhui Zi along with the three of Old Gu's men, Rang Yong and Pe Tu as he embarked on the journey once again. They soon left the mountain and headed towards the small town of Tuer. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng was unaware that the whereabouts of the Big Flat Cake, Broken Gong and Dog, had been hidden amongst the Wen Butsao's disciples. Since he had nowhere else to be at this time, he had stayed behind on the snowy peak to guard the disciples of his sect. He made an agreement with Wen Leong that they would stay in touch if anything was to happen before the two parties then bid their farewells. Zhu Zi had wanted to stay behind on the snowy peak temporarily. Firstly, this was due to the fact that the water elemental atmosphere on the snowy peak was thicker than anywhere else. This location would be beneficial for the heavenly water spirit to recharge the seal. Secondly, because Zhu Zi had retained some memories of this place, she was trying hard to look for some traces to see if she could remember more about her past. However, Zhu Zi was worried that the monster beneath the small town of Tuer would harm Wen Leong after he had exterminated the bugs so she finally decided to head to the small town with Wen Leong first. Once they have completed this mission, she would then return to this place by herself. Regardless, the scheme design which was adopted by Tian Yin to remold Xiang Lu's water elemental evil soul had failed in the end. He had been severely injured as well when he escaped so Xiang Lu's true body which was suppressed beneath the black and white island could not struggle free from the heaven's cone nails for the moment. When Liang's cultivation power has been vastly enhanced and Zhui Z2 has received the opportunity to break the seal as well as to regain her lost memories. They have even become friends from foes so this trip to the snowy mountain could be considered to have a successful conclusion. As they left the snowy peak, you've got me, crawled onto Wen Liang's shoulder and oyulated at the molten metal fire bell which was standing upright between the heaven and earth. 
That giant sword responded with a joyous hum filled with indomitable spirit but its gigantic sword's blade still remained diagonally in the snow-covered land. It appeared enchantingly dazzling when seen from afar dazzling in an arrogant and unyielding manner. Chapter, 222 The group walked with quick strides towards their destination. When Leong had planned to carry Fei Fei on his back just like he did when they had first come over but Chui Zi was reluctant to let Wen Leong bear any more burdens. She placed the giant pangolin in front of everyone else and it was the giant pangolin who carried the Fei Fei siblings, Chui Zi, and Wen Leong on his back without any complaints. On the contrary, the head lama Rangyong did not receive such careful treatment. Instead, he carried old Gu as he trotted behind the giant pangolin. At this point, old Gu, Fei Fei, and Xiao Xia's mission had been accomplished and they were actually hitching a ride back. Since it was the rainy season on the highland, the snowstorm had sealed the mountain pass and roads. The only effective form of transportation were the cultivators. Tian Yin had disappeared without a trace after he was severely injured but no one has the strength to look for him now. Those with great abilities like Chang Li and Zhui Zi would run the risk of being possessed if they found the true soul while those with weaker abilities would end up dead if they were to find Tian Yin. Both Zhui Zi and Wen Liang's heads hurt each time they thought of how they could deal with Tian Yin. According to Zhui Zi's personal opinion, even though a master cultivator at the level of Chang Li, Guo Huan or herself was not afraid Tian Yin's cultivation base, once they truly faced him in battle, they would be forced to retreat out of fear. In the end, Zhui Zi sighed before she said to Wen Leong, I think we ought to figure out a way to look for that big flat cake, broken gong, and dog. These three items are important to Tian Yin and ought to be related to Xiang Lu. She then laughed desperately, if we're lucky, perhaps these three items may even allow us to restrain the true soul. No one knows what the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog meant and they understood even less about the purpose of the items however. It was possible that these three items could be similar to the heavenly water spirit which was capable of freeing Xiang Lu from his shackles. It was also possible that these three items were related to the crucial point of subduing the true soul and even the nine-headed monster itself. Anyhow, they would need to search for these items more laboriously. The speed that the group of people spent on their return journey was much faster than when they had first entered the mountain. In less than a few days, they have arrived back in the small town of Tuer. What surprised Wen Leung the most was the moment they had entered the town, they saw that the dwarf Taoist priest was happily strolling around the town. Other than the dwarf Taoist priest and the Chilean immortal sex disciples in the town, there were a dozen Wen Butsao's disciples as well. Moreover, the leader this time was not one of the family elders or the two brothers Bushuo and Buzwa. Instead, it was the other good hand of the death trademark known as Wen Make. Before they arrived, Wen Make had received the news from the disciples who had been posted outside the town. His joyful expression still showed some fatigue as he welcomed them from afar. He grabbed Wen Liang's arm, I thought that something had happened to you, why has it taken so long for you to come back? Wen Liang chuckled as he shook his head, I was held up for two months on the snowy mountain. Before he could finish his sentence, when Make widened his eyes, two months. I've been in this small town for over three months. If I were to include the time spent when the Chilean disciples had departed to Nine Peaks Mountain and the time taken for the family elders to prepare the medicinal materials, you've left the small town for at least four months. What? When Leon almost jumped as he squalled. Ever since he had left the dog-headed eagle, he circled around the lake and was delayed for a few days as he entered the mountain. Following that, he spent another few days hiking up the mountain and experienced an adventure there. Finally, he had been held up in the ore cave for two months. When he totaled everything up at this point, the sum does not exceed seventy days. When Leon was halfway through his calculations when Zhui Zi suddenly laughed. She raised her small, charming face as she asked, Do you still remember that ugly little girl named Hua Xiaoduo? You had asked her how long we were in the ore cave and she told you it was two months. Wen Leong shook his head despite not understanding the situation. He muttered, that young maiden is actually quite beautiful. Zhui Zi pouted her lips but burst into delighted laughter soon after, try to think about her expression back then, she had been clenching her teeth anxiously like she was hiding something. Wen Leong still does not understand the situation. 
Guo Huan Tu laughed aloud in the jade knife abruptly, I understand now, I understand now. Those obscure cultivators have not come into contact with other people in thousands of years, how could they be expected to calculate time in such a detailed manner? At most, they could probably tell that a year has passed based on observing the four seasons. Since a year is made up of fourteen or nine months, they would be unable to calculate that. The group finally figured out that when Hua Xiaoduo had said, two months back then, she had given an estimate when Leong had spent a full three months in the ore cave as he absorbed the water poison from the firecrackers. When Leong inhaled the cold air as he turned around and peered at the giant pangolin and the head Lama Rangyong. The Hua family was an obscure cultivator family, it was still excusable that they could not calculate days and dates but how was it possible that the both of them had not felt that something was amiss? Patu and Rangyong looked at one another. They then rubbed their palms and laughed during the period of time when Wen Leong was trapped in the ore cave, the two brothers had slept and woken and slept and woken again. By the time they thought of counting the days, Wen Leong was almost at the point of leaving the cave. After that, when they had heard that it had only been two months, they felt rather joyous as the urgent matter was not delayed. Wen Make could not make head or tail of their conversation. He laughed grudgingly as he shook his head and continued to explain, I was counting the days until it was almost three months from the day you had left the small town. Since you were nowhere to be found, I had acted on my own and brought the medicinal materials to exterminate the bugs for that monster. When Make was one of the top good hands of the death trademark and his status was almost the same as the Bushuo and Buzwa siblings. He was a capable and experienced man with profound poison cultivation. He had learned of the course of events the immortal sect disciple who had witnessed it. He then waited for three months but with the deadline approaching and no sign of Wen Leong, he had taken the medicinal materials for exterminating bugs and headed down with a few other Chilean immortal sect disciples. Wen Leong felt both ashamed and wretched as he pulled Wen Make, who was a decade older than him, along. He does not know what to say and Wen Make misunderstood his intention, Wen Make smiled gently as he procured a carrot from his bag and stuffed the carrot into Wen Leong's hand. The giant pangolin looked slightly incredulous as he glared suspiciously at Wen Make, just by depending on your effort, it had been enough to annihilate those iron mound like dung beetles. Wen Make laughed, those bugs were only slightly larger than usual and the bug's temperament was exactly the same as an ordinary dung beetle. We had blended the medicinal materials according to Wen Leong's recipe back in the mountain. As long as the dosage was adequate, any child from the one family could successfully complete the task as well. Wen Make's expression was unlike the rest of the one Butsao's arrogance he appeared humble yet cool but there was a gush of malevolent energy in the depth of his gaze which was as piercing than a knife. The poison had been specially concocted to deal with those dung beetles. There was utterly no suspense in the extermination process, the biggest problem was to avoid the giant dung beetles ambush. Inside the dog-headed eagle's body, naturally, the monkey Qian Ren was responsible for the issue of safety. It was only then that Wen Make could finally exterminate all the bugs. The dung beetles were then completely exterminated and the monkey Qian Ren kept its promise as it elatedly released the dwarf Taoist priest. At this point, Wen Leong could not help but frown, what about Qin Zhui? At this point, the dwarf Taoist priest had strolled over in a relaxed manner and said to Wen Leong, the young lad was taken by the monkey. Heh, what a great creation that was. The head Lama Rangyong and Gu Xiaojun simultaneously laughed aloud. They then spoke in unison, right enough. During the time after they had left the dog-headed eagle, they had mentioned that the monkey Qian Ren and the ugly youth Qin Zhui were unusually suited to one another. To their surprise, they never expected to hear upon their return that Qin Zhui had stayed behind in the dog-headed eagle's stomach. Ever since all of you have left, Qin Zhui's treasured weapon had been destroyed and he had been severely injured. He did not dare to act rashly so he had waited earnestly. However, the monkey Qian Ren constantly pointed out his faults in a petty manner. Qin Zhui was bullied until he could no longer endure it so he jumped up and fought the monkey desperately. The dwarf Taoist priest's hostility towards Wen Leong had already diminished without him realizing it. He had not waited for their inquiry as he took the initiative to explain the whole story, each time the both of them started to fight, I would offer my assistance. The ugly boy Qin Zhui was albeit not much of anything but I was even more disgusted by the monkey. 
When Leon managed to a dash of admiration in his forced smile the monkey's actual power was universally recognized. Since the dwarf Taoist priest had dared to assist Qin Jui, of course, he spilled the courage of risking his life as well. The Taoist priest paused for a moment at this point as he laughed shyly, the moment I stepped forward, I was immediately sealed by the monkey Qin Jui was still severely injured and he was not prepared to fight the monkey at all. The monkey too did not attack mercilessly, it only kicked each time Qin Jui stood up. This happened continuously until the beginning of the fourth day when Qin Jui stopped moving completely. I pounced forward desperately to take a look and discovered that the muscles and bones of this young lad's entire body had been totally crushed. The monkey, on the other hand, laughed and said that though Qin Jui's approach not too shabby, his foundation establishment was too weak. According to the monkey, it was actually helping him to remold his muscles and bones. It then continued without listening to my protests, using its own life vitality to wash Qin Jui's marrow and rebuild his foundation establishment. Finally, it used the ancient wood spell to help him remold his muscles and bones. When Leon looked at Jui Zi in slight surprise but Jui Zi ignored him completely. Her face was rippling with piteous fear and she only cared about looking at the dwarf Taoist priest. Instead, it was Guo Huan who chuckled as he explained, break first, then build. The monkey had destroyed Jui Zi's rotten foundation first. It then used a great magical power to help Qin Jui remold his bones and muscles. This is supposed to be the specialty of the wood elemental magical arts. It was only at that moment that Qin Jui and the dwarf Taoist priest realized that the monkey was not filled with the lust to kill. On the contrary, it was being kind and hospitable. Qian Ren's temperament was eccentric, it has obviously taken fancy to Qin Jui yet it refused to profess its intention straightforwardly. Qin Jui was sincere, honest and clueless in his behavior and he was addicted to the cultivation of martial arts. Still, he does not lack wit and when presented with such a big meat pie which had fallen from the sky, he would definitely open his mouth wide and receive the pie. Moreover, Qin Jui was indeed feeling injustice on behalf of the monkey Qian Ren from the bottom of his heart. Guo Huan, Jui Zi, the monkey Qian Ren, as well as the Taoist priest San Wei in the Jade Knife, were the four great demon immortals who had joined hands and forged the four great unusual injustices in the cultivation world. The dwarf Taoist priest had no understanding of this form of profound wood elemental magical art. He continued, When I was released, Qin Jui wanted me to pass you this message. He says that soon, he would go to the Nine Peaks Mountain and fight you in a battle once again in order to seize back his nineteen. Before the dwarf Taoist priest could finish his sentence, Zhui Zi suddenly trembled. Her gaze was filled with fear as she looked at him and said, Why have you been looking at me constantly? Do you still bear a grudge against me? Zhui Zi's voice was choked with sobs and Wen Liang knew that this was how she behaved when she was prepared to fight someone. The dwarf Taoist priest was startled, he felt injustice but he refused to submit so easily so he clenched his teeth and spoke, I was not looking at you I had been looking at Wen Liang all the while I really wasn't looking at you. It was only when he was speaking to Zhui Zi that his gaze slowly shifted away from Zhui Zi's face. According to the monkey Qian Ren, the dog-headed eagle was his flesh armor. In simpler words, it was the outermost layer of his body. Now that the dung beetles and eggs have been completely killed by the Wen family's marvelous poison, he has sealed the entrance on the dog-headed eagle's head and started to recuperate his body with a calm mind. He had no plans to greet Wen Leon and the others at all. All he wanted to do was to wait for the dog-headed eagle's muscles and bones to grow back to its prior form before he would see the light of day once again. Qin Zhui had volunteered to stay behind to cultivate with Qian Ren. To him, it was a blessed destiny as great as the heavens. Others could only envy him or feel happy for him. As Zhui Zi saw that they no longer needed her help here, she then bade farewell to Wen Leong to return to the snowy mountains by herself. Guo Huan cautiously reminded her from inside the jade knife, my body. Zhui Zi burst into laughter. She then waved her hand and did not even turn around as she spoke, in another two to three months, whether the seal could be broken or not or if I do manage to recall my past or not, I'll come to find you. If you still can't locate your immortal's cave by then, I will help you to capture a new split body. She was speaking when she suddenly stopped walking and turned around, looking at the giant pangolin in excitement. 
Patu fell to the ground but it was Guo Huan who was rather virtuous and sincere. He felt that it was difficult for him to use an acquaintance's body so he burst out laughing, the one with a tail, I will never want it. Zhue Zi's gaze shifted in the midst of her gentle laugh as she peered at Wen Leung deeply. Soon after that, her body swayed once before she completely vanished without a trace. Pe Tu was finally able to exhale a long breath of relief. He then acted courteously for a long while towards Wen Leung and Guo Huan and even carried the dwarf Taoist priest. Finally, with a series of hissing and howling, he left the place feeling pleased and contented. Now that the Chilean mountains have lost the exquisite ice, the Chilean immortal sex disciples have also lost their home. They could only wander around without a purpose when Leong pondered in his heart and thought that once the black and white islands matter has been settled and everyone was still alive, perhaps he could ask Chang Li or Zhui Zi to help him. He still wants to figure out a way to help the Chilean immortal sect. This debt of theirs may never be fully compensated but at least they could still receive some compensation. The head lama Rang Yong too said his farewells and left. He had made up his mind that he would help Wen Leung vanquish Xiang Lu but he had other matters to settle on the highland first. Anyone with good sense could tell that the lama was going to make arrangements for his funeral affairs. He was a heavenly walker on the highland so before he could leave the highland, he would need to locate his successor first. The important matter on the highland has been concluded, those who had joined the group too began to leave on their own. The three members of Old Gu's party have a connecting flight in Lhasa before they will return to their unit. Wen Leung suddenly felt a sense of loneliness after an exciting event had ended but he soon shook his head and laughed. He may be reuniting with some of these people really soon. Other than Wen Leung, the others were mostly common people. The number of passengers has suddenly increased sharply but the cultivators have each left on their own accord. Fortunately, the small town of Tuer was not too distant from Lhasa and even though it was already winter, the weather was favorable and there were no more snowstorms which could freeze through a yak's marrow. The remaining people were all quite kind. All of them were too embarrassed to let Wen Leung alone do the heavy lifting. The Wen Butsao's disciples and Gu Xiaojuan's group wasted no time as they too embarked on their journey. During the past few months, it was unknown how many snowstorms have swept through the highland. The area was an endless stretch of white. Occasionally, a faint line of some small animal's footprints could be seen imprinted in an askew manner into the snow. That added a sense of exuberant joy of life into the silver-colored sky and land soundlessly, bringing a sense of warmth to the people who were trudging through the snow. At least everyone could confirm that this stretch of snow-covered highland was truly alive. Along the way, Wen Leon wanted to catch up on their family affairs with Wan Make but Wan Make only laughed as he shook his head. I had been guarding the workshop with the workshop leader for quite some time so I don't know much about family affairs. Instead of me telling you what I know, which is superficial, you might as well ask the family elders when you get back. Wan Make has a high and respected status in the death trademark. In addition, he was more than a decade older than Wen Leon. He refused to disclose about the situation in the family and dismissed Wen Leong's inquiry with one sentence. However, Wen Leong was tenacious as he continued to ask, How about Wen Bushuo and Wen Buzhua, are they in some kind of trouble? When the Wen family had sent someone to reinforce Wen Leong, the best candidates were no doubt Wen Bushuo and Wen Buzhua. As long as these two siblings could move, the Wen elders would never have asked Wen Make to take on this mission. Unexpectedly, when he heard the names Wen Bushuo and Wen Buzhua, Wen Make and the rest of the Wen family disciples immediately sniggered and became elated. Wen Make shook his head as he laughed forcefully, they are both all right. However, this time, they really could not make it a hem. It's best that you don't ask any more questions. Everything is splendid at home, you will naturally find out the specifics of the situation once you've arrived at home. Wen Make's temperament was such that he would refuse to talk about matters which he does not have a thorough understanding of. Just as Wen Leong was growing restless, he suddenly stopped walking. He pondered for a moment suspiciously before he waved his hand at the others. He then sprinted towards a diagonal crossroad. Perhaps it was an enemy or perhaps it was a meat-filled steamed bun. Not one person knew what had Wen Leong had discovered. The Wen Butsao's disciples whistled to one another and were about to spread out when Wen Make scolded softly, confused boys. No one is allowed to spread out, 
continue to follow behind Wen Leung. They were aware that their powers were far more inferior to Wen Leung's. Not only would spreading out be unhelpful to him, it could also distract Wen Leung even more. Wen Leung's expression was a little puzzled but he did not seem to be too nervous. He brought the crowd along as he sprinted in the direction of the diagonal crossroad for about one to two kilometers before he suddenly came to a stop. Fei Fei and Old Gu looked into each other's eyes out of puzzlement. All they could see was the same stretch of boundless white snow before their eyes. They could not tell if there was anything different about their surroundings yet one make suddenly raised his nose and sniffed the air. Soon after, he was slightly shocked as he spoke softly, such a strong and vigorous water poison. When Leung Tu has discovered that familiar scent unintentionally from his telegnosis ability which had been spread out far and wide. He recognized it as the utmost purest water poison from the firecrackers. Only then did he rush over to investigate. Ever since he had left the Or Cave, his cultivation power has become vastly enhanced and his telegnosis ability was clearer and wider by several times. Even the Hua family disciples could not hide from him now. When Leon made a fallback gesture towards the others. Following that, he growled softly and his body rippled with the faulty punch as he dashed into the thick snow in front of him. He resembled a small but dense whirlwind which had suddenly broken through the snowy ground. The snow surged skywards with a thundering loud noise as when Leung's body spun around ceaselessly. In the blink of an eye, within the distance of dozens meters circumference, the snow was blown away by the tremendous force erupting from Wen Leung. The frozen ground, covered with shriveled and hideous grass, contained a dozen lamas' corpses which lay about chaotically. There were many flying swords and treasured weapons scattered around the corpses. Xiao Sha squinted her eyes in a slightly ghastly manner, are they all cultivators? Fei Fei, on the other hand, asked at the same time, how did they die? When Leong first eradicated the strong poison and then checked whether all the lamas were fully dead. Only then could he feel relieved to let the others examine the corpses as well. These cultivators had died before it started snowing on the highland but before their bodies could decay, the snowstorm had covered them up and froze their corpses solid. When Leong picked up a half-square remnant cinnabar red-colored dharma mudra from the ground. He was just about to examine it when there was an unexpected sound of a muffled bang. The half-square dharma mudra suddenly shook ferociously and exploded into a black-colored talisman. When Leong squalled as he raised his hand and shielded himself from the supernatural power which suddenly charged towards him. As when Leong was shielding himself against the talisman, he felt as if he was being electrocuted. One side of his body felt like it was simultaneously being torn apart by two opposing strange forces. He fell onto his back on the ground while the talisman too lost its strength simultaneously and turned into a puff of smoke which dissipated into the air. After the half-square Dharma Mudra in his hand has released its final burst of power, it then turned into a stone without any magical properties. When Leong felt that he had been a bit too boastful earlier as he jumped up from the ground. His actual power right now has exceeded that of the old demon Rabbit Bulu and he was now a matched rival of Patu. He had managed to turn his human body into a saint's body and he has a penchant for fighting at close range yet he was defeated by a half-destroyed and masterless treasured weapon. The crowd was a little dumbstruck. To them, the most incisive cultivator on the highland should be the head Lama Rangyong but these corpses' actual power when they were alive could be no less inferior than that of Master Rangjung's. Xiao Sha narrowed his eyes as he inhaled a deep breath and praised emotionally from the bottom of his heart, on the highland, there are still hidden dragons and crouching tigers, talented people who still remained in concealment. Fei Fei frowned. She was at a loss whether to laugh or to cry as she peered at her brother. She then shook her head and said, look closely, these people are not lamas. The magic art that they cultivated was not the same as the Tibetan Buddhism sect supernatural power which was cultivated by the lamas. Old Gu nodded in agreement as he continued the topic of conversation from the side, lamas do not use flying swords, dharma mudras or Taoist banners. Remnants of treasured weapons covered the ground but none of the treasured weapons looked like the Tibetan Buddhism sex bone instruments used by Rangyong. On the contrary, these were the treasured weapons frequently used by the cultivators of the central plains. Judging by their attire and appearance, the deceased had the features of men who had lived for a long time on the highland. 
They were probably not llamas but they had been living on the highland for a long while and had feigned the identity of llamas to carry out activities. When Leong and Old Gu looked at each other. They had both thought of the same thing, since when had this group of master cultivators, who were completely unfamiliar yet with such shocking powers, appeared in this world. As they discussed the matter, when Make was examining a few corpses with agile movements. He was filled with uncertainty as he spoke to Wen Leong softly, every single one of their bones and muscles had been broken by a tremendous force but their fatal injury was water poison. The utmost purest and utmost strongest water poison. Xiao Sha pondered for a few seconds before she suddenly squalled. She glared at Wen Leong as she stuttered, the person capable, capable of using poison to poison these master cultivators, if it wasn't you, could it be your family's grand grand master who has reappeared in the mortal world? The face of every one family disciple under one make revealed a glow of excitement and incredulity. Still, when Leon coughed. He was apparently startled by Xiao Xia's deduction as he shook his head hastily, no, there must be someone else who was the assailant. Upon saying that, he did not wait for the others to refute as he spat out two words in a resolute and decisive manner, Xiang Lu. Xiang Lu's body had been poisoned by the firecracker's water elemental strong poison. He was severely injured when he had escaped from the snowy peak. Following that, he could have arrived here and had a ferocious battle with these cultivators before he finally forced all the water poison in his body into these cultivators' bodies. Old Gu and Fei Fei looked at each other as they nodded in agreement simultaneously. Wen Liang's speculation was apparently more dependable based on the timing and cause of death. Moreover, Wen Leong was certain that the strong poison which had killed these cultivators was no different from the firecracker's water poison which had been absorbed into his body. A short while after, a Wen Butsao's disciple cautiously picked up a piece of folded hide which had been frozen solid from the chest pocket of one of those corpses. That Wen family disciple did not speak but he stuffed the hide into his chest pocket and used his body heat to melt the ice. Once that was done, he carefully unfolded it and presented it to the crowd. Chapter, 223 The hide contained a very simple map which was marked with the coordinates and distance from La Sa to the small town of Tour. Fei Fei rubbed the area between her brows in distress, these fake llamas had been headed to the small town of Tour. They were. Perhaps they were the descendants of King Gezer's other warriors. They must have sensed the destruction of the mandala seal which was used to suppress the golden monkey. They were rushing here to stop it when they unexpectedly bumped into Tian Yin and were then killed in cold blood. Fei Fei's hesitant tone of speaking which was filled with uncertainty slowly became more convinced. Other than her speculation, there was no better explanation. Xiao Sha shook his head again, they are imitation brand llamas. Old Gu interrupted him before he could finish his sentence who decided that the master cultivators that King Gezer had left behind were real lamas. During King Gezer's reign, Buddhism has yet to spread into Tibet. Even if King Gezer was a Buddhist, his inferiors may not necessarily have become monks and lamas. Still, on the highland, having the identity of a lama does allow one to carry out tasks more easily. Nothing else could be found on these corpses anymore. It seems that they had brought their treasured weapons along as they rushed ahead on their journey. As a result, they were completely annihilated before they could reach the small town. Wen Leong peered at Wen Make and Wen Make understood Wen Leong's intention. He laughed grimly as he shook his head, fate was indeed strange. If these people had not been killed by Xiang Lu, the Wen family disciples who were transporting the medicinal materials to the highland would certainly have been mercilessly slaughtered by the other party. Gu Xiaojun was not a criminal police and he was even less of a community police. He was too lazy to pay attention to this type of cultivator's murder case in the desolated mountains. The group was making arrangements to bury these corpses when Wen Leong suddenly sat on the ground. His telegnosis ability which blanketed the surroundings had suddenly trembled ferociously without warning. It was not a person or some other thing which had triggered his telegnosis ability. Instead, it was a burst of formless and tremendous force. It felt like an enormous tide rippling with a force capable of sweeping away the snowy land. It had appeared out of nowhere and was roaring as it swept its way from the direction of Tour Town. Soon after that, a long, loud, and sonorous hum echoed through the sky. When Leong chuckled, 
patting the dust from his buttocks as he stood up, the dog-headed eagle has freed itself. Xiao Sha stomped his feet in frustration. He should have waited in the small town of Tour for a few more days. He had hoped to capitalize on Wen Make's popularity after he had successfully helped the dog-headed eagle to fulfill Xiao Sha's wish for a group photo with that creature. Wen Liang's vast telegnosis ability shook vigorously as Qian Ren, who had been sealed away for thousands of years, surged skywards on the hurricane raised by the dog-headed eagle. Near Wen Liang's feet, one of the frozen solid cultivator's corpse suddenly stood up stiffly. Its movements were rigid and clumsy but also as fast as lightning as its claw-like hands slashed towards Wen Liang's chest brutally. It was a zombie. Wen Liang's reaction was unbelievably swift just as the pair of ghost claws came into contact with his shirt, his hands were already positioned before his chest. A muffled sound was heard as Wen Liang gripped tightly onto those two ghost claws. Wen Make and the others have only just reacted to the situation at this point. They shouted one after another and were about to pounce forward when Guo Huan shouted uncourteously from the jade knife, Everyone, scram. None of you here is useful to him. When Leong was green with rage as the recently enhanced poison of life and death in his body circulated vigorously. His hands twisted once, twice, and three times strenuously. He exerted his strength on the third twist and the cultivator's corpse jumped away ferociously before it staggered and fell back. Wen Leung spread his arms out but he did not continue to attack. Instead, he fell back a couple of steps to protect his companions who were behind him as he watched that dull-looking zombie which seems immune to pain with a cold stare. The zombie's fingers had been twisted together into a crooked mess like it had been put through a ringer. Beneath its skin and flesh, its bones were visibly throbbing with a series of small waves. These waves caused its metacarpal bones to collide with its carpal bones which then collided with the bones its forearms the force rippled outwards through its arms, scapulae, spine and traveled downwards all the way to its feet. The popping noise of its bones cracking sounded like exploding beams which merged together into a muffled orchestra within the zombie's body. Ten seconds later, the 206 bones within the zombie's body had been completely crushed by Wen Liang's three strikes. The zombie fell limply on the ground after its bones had been shattered. However, it still attempted to raise its head with great effort. Its expressionless face suddenly filled with ferocious enmity as, within the explosive sound of bones cracking. It shrieked in a manner which sounded like a curse, the person who defies the heavens can never atone for their sin even if they were to die a million times. After that, its body stiffened abruptly and stopped moving completely. When Leong and the others looked at each other, not understanding the situation which has just happened. Only Guo Huan scoffed in a rigid voice, these cultivators had been heading here to suppress the monster and reseal the mandala. When the dog-headed eagle broke free from its shackles, the remnant power of the corpse's primordial spirit was awoken by the spiritual primordial energy released by Qian Ren. That was how it became a zombie. In the small town of Tuer, a series of crystal clear and loud. Rousing cries accompanied by the shaking of a humongous spiritual primordial energy was released as the monkey Qian Ren finally struggled free from the seal which had trapped it for an unknown amount of years. It could finally see the light of the day once again. When Leung nodded with lingering fear, that zombie's power earlier was not inferior to the old demon rabbit Bu Li's power. The fact that the corpse and the scattered treasured weapons could still possess such power shows how strong was their actual power was in life. It was unfortunate that they had bumped into the recently defeated Tian Yin who had just escaped from the snowy peak. After he had dealt with the zombie, Wen Leung felt rather relieved in his heart. After all, Qian Ren was the only one who was filled with enmity and vengeful feelings but was not a top demon immortal who had suffered in Chang Li's hands. He was enjoying the good feeling of purely committing a good deed, it felt rather pleasant. The piercingly cold and bold spiritual primordial energy was soon restrained by Qian Ren and the loud cries were heard further and further away from them. It seems that the direction where the dog-headed eagle was headed was different from Wen Liang's group. Wen Liang was afraid that there would be more cultivator zombies so he sent the others away as he blasted a huge hole using the faulty punch. He then buried those corpses before the group departed and rushed towards La Sa once again. However, what was even more joyous and surprising to Wen Leong was that two days later, 
when the highland's old city of La Sa was visible to the eyes, Qin Zhui had screamed and shouted all the way until he had caught up to Wen Liang's group. Qin Zhui still looked hideous as ever. He was unlike the other cultivators who became more fair-skinned and high-spirited the longer they cultivated. Wen Liang had no clue and he could not tell if there was even any transformation in Qin Zhui. On the contrary, it was Guo Huan who burst into laughter within the jade knife, this young lad is a little more interesting now. Qin Zhui pounced over and did not say a word as he gave Wen Liang a crushing bear hug. He finally released his grip when their bones creaked. Wen Liang's body erupted with goosebumps as he asked Qin Zhui, are we even that close? Had you really missed me that much? Qin Zhui burst out laughing, I'm so happy that I'm afraid I might strangle people to death if I was to hug someone else. The ugly youth Qin Zhui has become a disciple of Qian Ren's sect. After his marrow was washed and his foundation re-established using the wood elemental magical art, he continued his cultivation as the dog-headed eagle's body healed. Qin Zhui's cultivation was complete once he had completely absorbed and refined the life vitality that Qian Ren had inserted into his body. It was then that the master and disciple emerged from their closed-door cultivation and left the small town of Tuer. In the eyes of a cultivator, Qin Zhui's creation was virtually comparable to the destiny of becoming an immortal. His cultivation power has been vastly enhanced in a few short months. It was especially rare that his foundation establishment was reforged, such that there was an exceedingly huge room for improvement in his cultivation thereafter. However, Qin Ren could only help him to this extent. His future achievements in cultivation wholly depended on Qin Zhui's own power of understanding and favorable opportunities. Wen Liang squinted his eyes as he raised his head and looked at the sky. The blue sky appeared smooth and boundless but there was no sign of a dog or an eagle. Wen Liang then asked Qin Zhui in slight puzzlement, where is your master? Is he not with you? Qin Zhui sniggered as he shook his head, that grand old man had stayed in the dog-headed eagle for a long period of time but this was the first time he is guiding the dog-headed eagle to fly in the sky. Ah! Uh. His control is unstable and the eagle was flying up and down. He was afraid that he would embarrass himself so he refused to leave with me. He said that he wanted to understand this flesh armor thoroughly on the highland first and he would meet me on Nine Peaks Mountain after a while. Wen Liang nodded as he smiled but he was startled when he heard Qin Zhui's final sentence, the Nine Peaks Mountain. You're meeting your master at my home. Wen Make has a rough idea of the dog-headed eagle's size. His eyes rolled up as he pondered for a moment on the number of lambs the Wen family has to prepare before Qian Ren arrives on the Nine Peaks Mountain. Qin Zhui nodded in a natural and righteous manner, of course we will meet at Nine Peaks Mountain. I will request nineteen to bear witness by the time I've returned, we are still going to fight each other in a battle too. The ugly youth rubbed his palms and his face was filled with excitement, after I have come out to the outside world this time, I'm at least not weaker than you. He suddenly jumped up as fast as lightning and punched the ground. The ground, which was covered in a layer of thick snow, did not even shiver under his punch and not even a piece of ice shaving floated into the air. Old Gu and the rest were filled with puzzlement yet when Liang's brows throbbed. Both he and Guo Huan in the jade knife praised at the same time, awesome. Qin Zhui's brows, eyes, nose, and mouth almost struggled free from his face out of pride. He clapped and waved his hand pompously, let's go back to the Nine Peaks Mountain. After the jade knife Guo Huan was finished with his praises, it laughed at Qin Zhui, your ability is truly no less inferior to the old demon rabbit but you're still no match for the current Wen Liang. Qin Zhui widened his small eyes strenuously as he sized Wen Liang up and down and asked cautiously, you again? What have you done again? Before Wen Liang could speak, Guo Huan exaggerated and recounted their encounters on the snowy peak from the start until the end. By the end of the story. Qin Zhui's expression has become even more hideous than the zombie earlier but he was still unyielding and persisted to return to the Nine Peaks Mountain with Wen Liang so that they could measure their powers against each other in front of Nineteen. Fei Fei sized Qin Zhui up and down a few times before she smiled and spoke to Wen Liang, he's not speaking truthfully from his heart. You ought to be careful, I can tell by his look that he still has an ace up his sleeve. The large group of people continued on their journey once again. 
Xiao Sha and Fei Fei kept looking back frequently but that piece of snowy land which had been punched heavily did not seem to show any change as before. It was only when the next spring had arrived and the snow on the highland melted away that it was possible to see a hole the size of a fist on the ground. It was so deep that one could not see the bottom of the hole. Dozens of enormous fissures emanated from the hole in all directions, with the longest at almost a thousand meters. In Lhasa, Gu Xiaojun brought along the Fei Fei siblings as they hastily boarded the earliest flight and left. They had not even asked where the flight was heading to. When Leon was truly interested to inquire whether there were any scheduled flights from Lhasa to Zigaz. The next day, the remainder of Wen Liang's group boarded a train headed to Sichuan. This trip to the highland was bittersweet but it can be considered as a successful one. Many good things had happened during this trip. Wen Liang managed to crack Tian Yin's grand scheme of forging a water element evil soul. Even though the heavenly water spirit was never ending, there was only one qualified evil cult follower left and that was Tudetunt. Zhue Zi had cleared up her misunderstanding with Wen Butsao's disciples because of her relationship with Wen Liang. The addition of Zhue Zi in their group brought a strong assistance when it comes to dealing with Xiang Lu. As for the three youths, Wen Liang, Qin Zhui, and Lu Zheng, each has received a vast enhancement of in their cultivation power. The bad things which had happened were even more severe. Xiang Lu's evil soul had gained control over Tian Yin and the enlightened Tian Shu and the enlightened Tian Hua had been killed. No one else was capable of chanting the formation conjuring spell which could reform the great demon executing formation. On the other hand, Zhui Zi's memories from the past and the monkey Qian Ren's freedom were still an unpredictable variable. The whereabouts of the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog too suddenly became an important and urgent riddle to be solved at this moment. When Leon called his family and it was first grandfather who picked up the call personally. The old man was elated and urged when Leon repeatedly to hurry back. Since it was difficult for him to talk about their family matters in the call, he would wait for when Leon to return home before he explained any further. The train ride took two whole days to reach Chengdu from Lhasa. When Leong and Qin Zhui slept soundly all the way. They had both received a vast enhancement in their cultivation power and as they were always busy during the day, they had not felt tired then. However, once they fell asleep on the train, they did not wake up again until they had reached their destination. The both of them still yawned constantly and their eyes were so red even the old demon rabbit Bulu would run away in shame. The moment the group came out of the train station, a few ferocious-looking young lads surrounded them immediately. Qin Zhui shook off his drowsiness in an instant as he felt for the tang knife behind his back habitually. Wen Liang hastily stopped him as these were Wen Butsao's disciples and Wen Liang's fellow brother disciples. Wen Make frowned a little as he placed himself between those disciples and Wen Liang. In the internal management of Wen Butsao, there were two systems which were quite distinct from each other in the Wen family village and the place of birth, life, sickness, and death. Even though Wen Make has been tasked by the Wen family to run the errands this time, all authority and responsibility were entrusted to Fourth Elder Wen as the leader. In accordance with the usual routine, the Wen family would not send anyone to welcome them at the station. Even if someone were to come, they should be people from the death trademark instead. Wen Butsao disciples had lived this way for the past 2000 years. Even though everyone held the surname of Wen, an established rule was still an established rule. The Wen family disciples who had come to welcome them immediately took out a letter written on cattle hide and some bamboo chips the size of a palm from his chest pocket. He then passed these items to Wen Make with a solemn face. The moment Wen Leong and the others saw the bamboo chips which were glowing from prolonged rubbing, their expression changed drastically. Everyone from the Nine Peaks Mountain knows about these bamboo chips without exception. These were the letter talismans which belonged to the family elders. In the past, for exceptionally important matters, it was enough for the family elders to use one person's letter talisman to assign a disciple to the task. However, there were a total of five bamboo chips this time. The letter talismans from all four grandfathers and first uncle Wen Tuanhai had all been brought here. Wen Make examined the letter talismans before he passed them to Wen Liang's hand. He then removed the envelope which was stamped with the four family elders and first uncle Wen Tunhai's heirloom seals. 
There was only a sparse row of large and thick characters written with powerful strokes in the letter. It said, Wen Leon, head to Crow Ridge on Southern Chuan immediately upon receiving this command. You are not allowed to question why. Under this command was a haphazard arrangement of stamps from the four Wen family elders and first uncle Wen Tunhai's heirloom seals. Under these stamps was another row of smaller letters which said, the rest of the Wen family disciples should hastily return home, when Leong will go by himself. This row of smaller words was almost obscured by the stamps it was apparent that they had added the words later when they have thought of it. When Make's face was filled with disbelief and he glared at the Wen family disciple who had delivered the letter, what's going on? For any Wen Butsao disciple, whether it was an heirloom seal or the letter talisman, only one was needed. There was no need for such a messy array of stamps or to deliver so many letter talismans that were equal to the token of authority. The Wen family disciple who had delivered the letter knows that an important matter was on hand. His expression was solemn as he shook his head, I was running errands outside the mountain and when I returned, Uncle Nine and Uncle Thirteen were waiting for me at the foothill. They had asked me to deliver this letter to all of you. Uncle Nine and Uncle Thirteen had the letter talismans of the four grandfathers and first uncle in their hands. This was equal to the presence of our five family elders. We dared not procrastinate as we rushed all the way here. The letter talismans and the heirloom stamps were real but there was such a huge pile of items and the use of inappropriate wordings in the command. In addition, the ones who had passed command were one nine and one thirteen. This matter was becoming more suspicious every minute. Wen Leon wasted no time as he immediately fished out his cell phone and called the family. He called each of the four grandfathers, first uncle Wen Tuanhai, and finally Wen Xiaoxin. He called every single phone number that he knew in the family yet to his surprise, none of his calls were picked up. He eventually called the landline and no one answered as well. Wen Leon pondered for a moment and gave Luo Wangfu a call with the same results. The gentle voice in the automated message of, the person you are calling is unavailable right now has gradually turned horrible to Wen Leon after he had listened to it so many times. Wen Leon then called the old demon Rabbit Bu Lu but only received the message that the number was barred because he owed the company money. Wen Leon was dumbstruck as even his call to the landline had gone unanswered. Unless Nine Peaks Mountain has been taken over by the government. Everyone was feeling rather apprehensive when Wen Leong's cell phone suddenly rang. It was an unknown number but Wen Leong felt like a drowning man who has suddenly grabbed hold of a life buoy. He immediately picked up the call and exhaled a long breath of relief soon after. He asked in a loud voice, First uncle, what's really going on? He then informed his first uncle about the matter which has just taken place earlier. Wen Tuanhai's voice in the call sounded very peculiar. He said, the heirloom seals and letter talismans belonging to me and the four grandfathers has been stolen. Also, every cell phone and landline phone in the village has been tossed into the well. We are still scooping the phones out from the well at this moment on the other end of the call, first grandfather's raging roar echoed from afar. First uncle paused for a moment before he spoke through clenched teeth, those tube stars when nine and when thirteen, it was all their fault. Wen Leong hummed in agreement and he muttered to himself, I had talked to First Grandfather on the phone before I boarded the train. First Uncle's voice was filled with grievance as he said, they had tossed the phones into the well that very night. Wen Leong was at a loss whether to laugh or to cry. He did not know what else to say but he finally understood that the letter talismans, the heirloom seals, and the secret message were part of his two favorite uncle's trick. He hastily read the content of the secret message to Wen Tuanhai before asking, the two uncles how was it possible for them to steal all these items from your hands? Wen Tuanhai cursed ferociously, those two sonifaches have received a vast enhancement in their cultivation power, no one else in the family except for you is worthy to be their opponent. Wen Leong was shocked, he understood better than anyone else about the two silly uncle's abilities. Even though they had mastered the faulty punch, they were still much weaker than the first uncle and they were no match for the four grandfathers. Yet, to his surprise, they have now somehow managed to steal these important authenticating objects. They even managed to steal the entire village's phones without being discovered. This was a little too unbelievable and he suddenly recalled something as he asked in astonishment, could it be the cultivation method left behind by the Grand Master? 
My two uncles he was halfway through this sentence when he felt that it was impossible, even if someone in the family has managed to crack the mystery of the Grand Master's legacy cultivation method in the Jade Talisman. They would not have allowed someone without an intelligent mind like the ninth and thirteenth uncle to cultivate first. First uncle sighed heavily as he acknowledged Wen Liang's statement, what do they want from you by asking you to meet them at Crow Ridge? He was halfway through his speech when he was suddenly enlightened, those tube stars had been constantly professing their wish to become the number one master cultivator on Nine Peaks Mountain. They were afraid that the family elders would never agree to the fight so they tried to trick you to fight them on Crow Ridge. Bring the both of them back to me, fourth grandfather has already been driven to madness by rage before he could finish his sentence, Wen Leong could not refrain himself anymore as he laughed out loud. Wen Tuanhai laughed as well, everything at home is fine, there's no need for you to worry. Chengdu is located in the middle of the Shu state, it's not that far from Crow Ridge. It is also convenient for you to return home, just remember to bring your uncles along. Wen Leong nodded in agreement but he was a little puzzled, I thought all the cell phones in the village had been tossed into the well, does this mean that you've come out of the mountain? Wen Tuanhai immediately lowered his voice and spoke with a furtive voice, come out of the mountain, my SS. I'm the head of the country, how will I there are certain calls that I make which are not convenient for your first aunt to hear. That was why I had hidden another cell phone somewhere else which I could use to send a text message or something occasionally. Wen Leong burst out laughing, so, I'll send the others home first. Shall I buy some cell phones before I return home? Wen Tuanhai was startled, boy, are you seeking your doom? First grandfather said that he would try to see if the cell phones can still work after drying them out. Wen Leong nodded he could imagine first grandfather's expression as he mentioned that. He laughed grimly as he diverted the topic of conversation, how are the abilities of ninth uncle and thirteenth uncle now? When Tuanhai ground his teeth, his forced laughter carried a sense of pride, anyhow, I cannot tell but Ji Fei, Shui Jing, and the old man Gongye can't even catch their shadows now. However, they will never be as strong as you. The seven fat men are very close to the both of them. They refuse to fight the two uncles for they are the mother of King Wind Rain Rainbow. Wen Leong could no longer laugh about it for Ji Fei and Shui Jing were amongst the strongest of the rogue cultivators. Though they were no match for the master cultivators from the famous sects of the Five Blessings, they were skilled in everything including treasured weapons, supernatural power, and martial arts cultivation. Judging by first uncle's words, his two silly uncles were now almost at the same level the two rogue cultivators. When he had first learned of Grand Master Tua Xie's message in the Jade Talisman, he already knew that once the three magic arts of poison, corpse, and witchcraft were combined into one, the cultivator would achieve vast improvements in their cultivation power though he really had not expected that improvement to happen so soon. When Tuanhai laughed grimly once more and his tone of speaking turned solemn once again, it's best that you be more careful these days. The world sex members have become agitated, they had attacked the Jilong sect recently and triggered their great mountain ceiling formation spell before a fierce battle ensued. The Kunlun sect had disappeared overnight, there was nothing but emptiness in the Yushu Palace. Moreover, there was also the presence of a devil's trace on Mount Ame. Two divine monks had rushed back to Mount Ame two days ago to take charge of the overall situation. When you find my ninth and thirteenth brother, I want you to return home immediately. Wen Leung nodded. No one understood the situation in Kunlun sect better than himself. These disputes between the righteous and evil paths were not related to them and only two complete sects were left in the righteous path of the five blessings. Even the one-word palaces, Brothers of Xia Ma Wei, had turned into, Brothers of Xia Ma. It would be odd if the world sect had not seized the opportunity to counterattack. Wen Tuanhai gave him some advice and was just about to hang up when he suddenly recalled something. He laughed as he asked Wen Leong, the position of, number one master cultivator on Nine Peaks Mountain, you're not trying to compete for that, right? Wen Leong huffed as he shook his head and laughed. He understood that his first uncle was albeit furious but he still loved and protected his brothers anyhow. He reassured his first uncle repeatedly before he ended the call. He then laughed as he informed the others about the course of events which had just taken place. The corners of Wen Make's mouth were twitching as he tried to resist the urge to laugh. He resisted for a long while before he finally gave in, 
laughing as he waved his hand at the remaining disciples, all of you, return to Nine Peaks Mountain first. I will accompany Wen Leong to look for our family's number one master cultivators. Chapter 224 Chengdu was located near the center of Sichuan province. There was still some distance between where they were now and the Nine Peaks Mountain which was located the west of the Chuan region. However, they were closer to the Luo family's Crow Ridge. The other disciples obeyed their orders and returned to the mountain as Wen Leong, Qin Zhui, and Wen Make headed to Crow Ridge in search of the two foolish uncles. Their itinerary was neatly planned out by Wen Make so Wen Leong and Qin Zhui were not worried in the slightest. As expected, personnel from the death trademark were all men of long experience. Wen Make was not inferior to the Bushuo Buzwa brothers in terms of his capabilities and experience. It was dark when they reached their destination. Crow Ridge was a vast mountain. Wen Leong and Wen Make exchanged a helpless look as none of them knows where the two foolish uncles were. The duo was still discussing whether they should call the Luo family for help when Wen Leong's cell phone rang. Wen Leong was delighted when he saw Grand Elder Wen's name on the caller ID. The two foolish uncles have rare moments of intelligence sometimes. They had not thrown every cell phone into the well, they had kept the best one for themselves. Wen Leong picked up the call and spoke into it for a while. Wen Nine, who intentionally lowered his voice said slowly on the other end, Where are we? Wen Leong was astonished. He pondered for a while and replied carefully, you guys should be on Crow Ridge. Where are you? Wen Leong tried hard to suppress his laughter, I'm also on Crow Ridge. Wen Leong was surprised when his ninth uncle did not complain or ask why they could not see him. Instead, his uncle replied drilly, Crow Ridge is bigger than I thought. Wen Nine's voice had no humor in it and was solemn and serious. Wen Leong could restrain himself no longer as he gave the cell phone to Wen Make and hugged his stomach as he laughed. Wen Make placed the cell phone to his ear. Wen Nine said something which made his expression change quickly. He shouted in a low voice, don't he had just said one word when a loud boom came from a faraway call. A brilliant firework shot towards the sky and tore the night sky apart in the blink of an eye. The multitude of stars instantly paled in comparison. The silver-colored pattern hung high in the sky and did not scatter for a long while. Not only does it lack beauty, it also gave off waves of killing intent. Wen Leong immediately lost his ability to smile. He too recognized this firework, it was the cannon signal used by the Wen Butsao to gather their disciples. Its effects could compete with an arrow that pierced the sky which brought thousands of troops and horses to meet. This type of firework cannon signal has not been used by the Wen family for a long time but it was not obsolete. Not long after the first cannon signal, another glow flickered in the faraway sky. The Wen Butsao were influential people in the Shu state. Just because they had not troubled themselves with worldly affairs for 2000 years does not mean that they do not step out of their homes. Their disciples were everywhere in the Chuan region and the Shu state. These disciples immediately passed the message on once they saw the signal. These old objects have been passed down for generations and have not been in use for over a hundred years but the Wen family disciples have preserved them so they were as good as new and could be used. When the situation arose, they would methodically follow the protocol. To the other Wen family disciples, the family could not be reached by phone. Unless it was something important, it was logical for them to assume that it would not have been communicated via the cannon signals. Wen Make, who was well experienced, put down the cell phone weakly. He smiled bitterly at Wen Leong, those two have even stolen the signal cannons and wanted us to go find them at the spot where the signals had been fired he was halfway through his sentence when another bang was heard. The foolish uncles had lit another cannon signal. One signal for imminent danger two signals for landslides and floods three signals for Yama's call. Throughout the two thousand years when the Wen Butsao had resided in the Chuan and Shu regions, it was only a few hundred years ago when countless strong enemies had come to seek revenge from ancestor Wen Latsi. Two cannon signals had been fired at once then. Wen Leung squalled. He pulled Wen Make and immediately ran towards the direction from which the firework had been fired. At the same time, he quickly called first uncle to have him inform the Wen family disciples to not fluster themselves and act as if they had seen nothing. 
He had just ended the call when the third cannon signal exploded. Then there was a fourth, a fifth, a sixth. From afar, the disciple who was in charge of passing down the signal looked at the multiple layers of fireworks in the sky. His dried throat rolled as he turned and stammered to an older one Butsao man, Father, we do not have that many cannon signals left. The old man stomped his feet and cursed, Yama has called, hurry over and help them. He then rushed out but barely ran two steps when his cell phone rang. The old man glanced at his phone and declined the call. He even muttered, unfamiliar number. Not only was this family affected, currently, the one Butsao and Yerching do, whether they were from the branch family or the main family, were all in a flustered mess. Wen Tuanhai was so angry that he started cursing at home. Nobody had picked up his calls. When Danyang sneered and threw his aside glance. Other than the glow of the cannon signals, an eerie dark green light also floated in the sky silently. It was a spirit guiding light from Crow Ridge. Someone else had fired signal cannons at their doorstep and the people of the Luo family were flustered. A cold voice sounded continuously with the clashing of metal, the one and Luo family's marriage is at hand but this cannon signal speaks of death. When the shout rang out, the entire Crow Ridge was quickly wrapped up in the aura of the netherworld. Ghostly cries and wolves' howls accompanied a sickening corpse stench which filled the air wantonly. When Leon opened his mouth. He wanted to shout but he does not know what he should shout about. He turned and looked at one make who was carried by him as he ran. The latter hesitated and then shouted, Misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. Other than the word, misunderstanding, when Make truly does not know what else he could shout about as well. The cannon signal had risen from a call under Crow Ridge. When they got to that place, a big group of Luo family elites was already gathered there. Each of them led green-faced zombies with ferocious fangs but the expressions of the living were far worse than the zombies. The leader was someone that they know, it was his brother-in-law, Luo Wangjen. When Leon heaved a relieved sigh and he quickly hopped over. Luo Wangjen felt a human figure flash before his eyes. He had just opened his mouth to curse when he saw that it was Wen Leong. His ashen face then relaxed somewhat as he frowned and asked, What's the matter? Wen Leong blinked for half a day. In the end, he could only squeeze out one word, misunderstanding. Wen Make flopped down from Wen Leong's shoulders limply. He was feeling a slight case of motion sickness. He bolstered himself as he saluted Luo Wang Jen with cupped fists, the Luo disciples did not barge in to capture the men, we Wen Butsao owe you a debt of gratitude. Luo Wang Jen grunted as his expression turned into anger and helplessness. He pointed at a huge tree at the entrance of the call, it's not that we didn't want to enter. On the huge tree, a row of big words had been carved in a crooked manner. It said, no one else may enter besides Wen Leon. Qin Zhui was astonished, you didn't enter because you weren't allowed to. Luo Wang Jen took a deep breath as he tried hard to calm his nerves. He flashed a bamboo letter token which looked like the ones the one elders had used, this was also hanging from the tree. It's the letter token from the Luo family elders. As he said this, Luo Wang Jen rolled his eyes. He then glared at Wen Leong with burning eyes, what's the meaning of this? How had the men inside obtained my elder's letter token? Wen Mate did not have to say anything as Wen Leong finally understood what had happened. He clenched his teeth and stifled his laughter before asking Luo Wang Jen in a low voice, aren't the two Luo elders visiting as guests at the Nine Peaks Mountain now? If Wen Nine and Wen Thirteen could steal the Wen family's letter token, they could also steal the Luo family's letter token. He reckoned that the cell phones of the two Luo elders had also been stolen and tossed down the well too. As expected, Luo Wang Jen nodded, the two grandfathers and my elder sister are at the Nine Peaks Mountain. He trusted Wen Leong very much. If it had been another Wen family elite, his expression would not have been this nice. Guo Huan could no longer hold it in within the jade knife and he laughed loudly, are these two uncles of yours truly fools? Wen Liang's smile also had a tinge of annoyance in it. He had wandered everywhere on Nine Peaks Mountain so he was extremely familiar with them. This series of events was not something which the two of them could have conjured up on their own. Of course, Wen Leong does not hate his silly uncles but someone else does. He could roughly guess who the perpetrator was. 
Wen Meik pulled Luo Wang Jen aside. Wen Leong did not know what he said but it must have been reasons which somehow served as an explanation. Luo Wang Jen was a well-behaved child, he felt at ease when he saw that Wen Leong has arrived. He nodded hesitantly and asked his family's elites to stand down. He said to Wen Leong with a sad face, you must give me an explanation for this. If you guys leave happily after such a ruckus, the two grandfathers would tear me apart when they return. Wen Leong nodded in agreement, deal. I'll fetch the stamp and write a commendatory letter for you signed by Grand Elder Wen himself. He then gave the elders letter tokens to Wen Meik. He then instructed Wen Meik and the other Luo family elites to go and send away the Wen family disciples who were making their way here. After he had settled this matter, Wen Leong made towards the call. Qin Zhui naturally wanted to see what all the ruckus was about. The call was not very deep. A great big tree leaned on the mountain at the end of it as it grew with some gloominess and strangeness. Its branches intertwined and let off a stern aura. Huge, dried gnarls covered the tree trunk, making it look like a giant toad. The two foolish uncles were not under the tree, they were in it. It was late winter and even in the land of Shu, the temperature was below zero. The leaves of the strange tree had already fallen completely and only bald branches were left. It could not even hide the two of them. The two uncles had covered their heads with black cloths with two holes cut out for their eyes. Two pairs of mischievous eyes were looking left and right in terror. They did not look at Wen Leong or Qin Zhui but were staring outside the call. Wen Leong kept a straight face on purpose and restricted his voice into a rigid and cold tone, Who are you two what do you want by calling me here? After all, it would not take too much of his time and he could not bring himself to spoil his two foolish uncle's fun. Wen Nine finally noticed him. He quickly made a silencing gesture and lowered his own voice, are the corpse ghosts still outside? Wen Leong understood now that the two of them had hidden in the tree because they had been afraid of the corpses. He suppressed his laughter and nodded. Wen Nine and Wen Thirteen looked at each other before they sighed in unison and jumped down from the branches. They then circled Wen Leong and although he could not see their faces, the eyes which were visible from the holes of the black cloth had turned into crescent moons. The last time Wen Leong had seen the two of them running in circles like this was when he had just achieved Wen Lotzi's art of poison and woken up from their puppet show. He felt a tingling warmth in his heart. The expression on his face was as if he was facing a great enemy but his narrowed eyes could not turn sharp no matter what. Wen Nine made a complete circle before he stopped and asked Drilly, I heard that you're the number one elite of the Nine Peaks Mountain. Wen Leong had not replied before Wen Thirteen sneered suddenly. He used the same dry tone and asked, Are you hungry? As he said that, he took out three carrots from his chest pocket. He tossed one to Wen Leong and gave his big brother another. Finally, he looked at Qin Zhui who was standing to the side. He hesitated before breaking his carrot into two, passing half of it Qin Zhui. Wen Leong's heart was so warm that it almost made his ribs melt. He started to nibble on the carrot. The two foolish uncles gesticulated then rolled up the black cloth which covered their heads up to their noses. They exposed their mouths and started crunching loudly on the carrots. Wen Thirteen did not forget to instruct Wen Nine Drilly, next time, remember to make a hole for the mouth. Wen Nine nodded in all apparent seriousness. Wen Leon took his time with the carrot so the two foolish uncles were much faster than him. They gobbled up their carrots in no time but they were shy to urge him on. They gritted their teeth and fretted in front of him. Finally, Wen Leong placed the last bite of carrot into his mouth. Wen Thirteen was too impatient to wait as he spoke, we had called you here to Crow Ridge for the name of the Nine Peaks Mountain's number one elite. He had not finished speaking when Wen Nine suddenly frowned. He gently tugged his brother's clothes and said in a low voice, that's not right. Wen Thirteen nodded calmly, what's not right? Why are we fighting for the Nine Peaks Mountain's number one elite on Crow Ridge? As Wen Nine said this, he raised his arm and scratched the back of his head. The two holes in the black cloth mask had been pulled to the back of his head. Wen Thirteen's gaze was confused immediately, what's wrong with that? Qin Zhui laughed. He then reached out and patted Wen Thirteen's shoulder, if you're competing on Crow Ridge, you're then fighting for the number one elite of Crow Ridge. 
When 13 was out of ideas and he looked at 19 with shock. The probing intent of his gaze needed no words, he was pondering if they should fight for the name of Crow Ridge's number one elite first. When 9 shook his head as if he was troubled, it's not that simple, he's not Crow Ridge's first elite. He then paused briefly. He ignored when Leong and muttered in a low voice, the first elite of Crow Ridge is currently on the Nine Peaks Mountain. When Leong was worried that the people of the Luo family would go crazy if they took too much time. He desperately tried to suppress his urge to laugh as he imitated the tone of the two foolish uncles and gave them a hint, Nine Peaks Mountain's number one elite would still be Nine Peaks Mountain's number one elite no matter where he goes. As long as someone could beat me, then wherever he they are, they would become Nine Peaks Mountain's number. He had not even finished speaking when the two foolish uncles were overjoyed. They each let out a strange laugh and pounced towards Qin Zhui from both sides. No matter how much of a martial maniac Qin Zhui was, he was unwilling to fight the two foolish uncles. He swayed his body and fled like a breath of vapor as he pointed at Wen Leong with anxiety and anger. He said to the two foolish uncles, he's the number one elite of the Nine Peaks Mountain. Wen Nine and Wen Thirteen immediately responded in unison, before you beat a dog, you must first find out who its master is. Wen Leong quickly caught up. He laughed and explained to Qin Zhui, what they meant was to shoot the rider before shooting the horse, don't he was halfway through his speech when Wen Leong suddenly could not smile anymore. Although Qin Zhui had not used his full strength, he was still able to retreat very quickly. His marrows had been cleansed and his base was reinforced by Qian Ren. His life vitality force now rivaled that of old rabbit demon Bulis. He was as quick as a phantom as he advanced and retreated while the two foolish uncles followed close on his tail. They were like two shadows as they followed Qin Zhui closely on his left and right. The force of the faulty punch rolled and surged, attacking Qin Zhui like a tempest. The force of the punch even made a dull hum in the air. Although the two foolish uncles were not as skilled as Qin Zhui, they were easily above the elites of the righteous cultivation path's five blessings. They had spent a dozen years in the Great Mountain and knew each other's thoughts well. When they joined forces, they could even put up a fight against the little rabbit demon Shan Duan. When Leong had not expected for his two foolish uncles' art of poison to improve so much after they had figured out their Grand Master's secret method of practice. Their abilities were even better than when he had just refined the Yin Chi's poison and the Hundred Bugs poison. Tuo Xie's method of practice was similar in theory with Wen Leong's experiences but Wen Leong had an extremely poor basic foundation back then. He had only practiced the faulty punch for two years while his two foolish uncles had soaked in the faulty punch for dozens of years and were only second to the five Wen family elders. Whether it was the foundation of the body, the use of art of poison, or the transfer of energy, they were far superior to Wen Leong. This was why, after they had learned Grand Master Tuo Xie's method of practice to combine the three arts, they had become much more accomplished than Wen Leong was. Qin Shui's eyes also lit up. It was not easy to meet an opponent at the same level as the little rabbit demon Shan Duan. He laughed and wanted to stop and receive the blows when suddenly his vision blurred. Wen Leong had wedged himself between him and the two foolish uncles. He received Wen Nine and Wen Thirteen's attacks as he desperately winked at Qin Zhui. Qin Zhui snorted and restrained himself. He chuckled and exclaimed with wonder, they're too strong. I can't beat them. He then turned around and ran out. Wen Leong received the punches but extended his fighting style. He gave full play to the faulty punch incisively and fought into a ball with his two foolish uncles. For some time, the call was filled with the sound of wind roused by the flurry of punches and kicks. Occasionally, the delighted cheers of the two foolish uncles and the pained cries of Wen Leong could be heard. They fought for several minutes before Wen Leong put on a show that he could not beat them and dodged around with limp limbs. Wen Nine laughed and asked loudly, Little Tai, uh, you, who's the number one elite on Nine Peaks Mountain? Wen Thirteen had grown more and more sympathetic to Wen Leong as they fought until he began to feel reluctant to hit him. Still, he was worried that Wen Leong would not admit defeat and he quickly joined Wen Nine in his persuasion, I have another carrot here. Wen Leong shouted defeat in his haste. He panted heavily and jumped to one side as if he had a million misgivings and glared at the duo, 
where have elites such as you two come from to have such profound cultivation bases? When 9 and when 13 laughed loudly. They did not put up their guard against the possibility of Wen Liang's sneak attack. They both removed the black cloth mask that covered their heads. He jade knife Guo Huan snorted and reminded Wen Liang in a low voice, You've had your fun, now ask them what's this all about. They really are fools. It was foolish of them to steal the Wen family elders' letter tokens and seal stamps to forge an order, to throw every communication tool into the well which turned the Nine Peaks Mountain a communication vacuum. To bring the cannon signals to lead the way for fear that Wen Leong could not find them, to even steal the Si Buyao's letter token to prevent the people of the Luo family from disturbing them. Even Wen Leong himself could not have been so meticulous, let alone his two foolish uncles. If there was a flaw, it was that they had used too many letter tokens at the train station and had left too many seal stamps on the secret order. However, to be honest, if it was not for the cell phone which first uncle had kept stashed away, when Leon would have still rushed towards Crow Ridge suspiciously. After all, Chengdu was close to Crow Ridge and it was not really a detour. At most, it would have only taken a day out of their schedule. From this perspective, one could even say that the two foolish uncles' selection of Crow Ridge as the location for the fight for the Nine Peaks Mountains number one had also been carefully planned. Wen Leong nodded. However, when he saw the true faces of the two warriors, he still sighed and moaned as he exclaimed in surprise. He willingly gave the title of Nine Peaks Mountains number one to them. Wen Thirteen kept his promise as he gave Wen Leong a carrot. Wen Leong split the carrot into three. He asked with a smile amidst loud crunching sounds, the two uncles have inherited Grandmaster Tuasye's mantle. Who else in our family other than the two of you? He had not finished speaking when when Nine lifted his chin with pride, it's only us brothers. The others won't do, they had distorted their arts. When Thirteen was still blind in his foolishness as he added more nonsense, only the two of us brothers had not distorted our practice. When Leong stopped chewing in astonishment. He pondered for a while before he was hit by a sudden realization. He clearly understood that the Jade Talisman mentions the combination of Grand Master Tuasye's three arts into one. As long as the one disciples were well trained in the faulty punch, it was enough for them to adjust the levels of poison within their bodies to the most balanced state. However, in two thousand years, countless extraordinary persons have cropped up amongst the one Butsao. They poured their hearts out to research poison and finally brought their Grand Master's strange art to even greater heights. They refined poison into their bodies after the faulty punch. Their art of poison was improved but then no one could ever achieve the combination of the three arts. It was like a multimillionaire's son who had been stranded in society and was taken in by a small-time merchant. Although he does not worry about food and clothes, at the same time, he had lost the chance to inherit a huge fortune. There were already a small number of inner disciples in the Wenbutsao. Only the brothers Wen Nine and Wen Thirteen have met the conditions for the combination of the three arts and only practiced the faulty punch without refining the five elements of poison into their bodies. Other than the words, God's will, Wen Leong could not think of any other way to describe what he was thinking right now. However, he felt happy for his two foolish uncles from the bottom of his heart. He smiled and returned to the topic, why did the two of you ask me to come to Crow Ridge? Isn't it much easier to compete at home? You two would have become the true Nine Peaks Mountains number one then. To emerge as the Nine Peaks Mountains number one from Crow Ridge feels like a bastard who had ascended the throne. When Nine shook the black cloth mask in his hand, if we had battled at home, would Big Brother allow us to wear this? If we hadn't worn this, would you have gone all out on us? When Thirteen quickly mimicked his brother's actions and shook his black cloth mask as well. When Leon was suddenly silenced by his rhetoric question. He smiled bitterly and shook his head. He does not have Wen Yibin's interrogation abilities and could not think of how to make the two uncles talk. He pondered for a while and decided to speak directly. He still had a puzzled expression as he asked, what happened? The letter tokens of the four grandfathers and first uncle, the seal stamps on the secret order, and our cannon signals. A genuine satisfaction appeared on Wen Nine's and Wen Thirteen's faces. When Wen Leong saw it, he could not help but think of that stormy night in the Red Leaves Forest some years ago. 
He recalled the expressions of his two foolish uncles as they gave him chocolates and played dead to fool him. He could no longer restrain his laughter. When Leon was not too concerned about how his two foolish uncles had tricked him to Crow Ridge, he already has an idea of the perpetrator behind this. This person was six feet tall with a face like a jade ornament. He has the bearings of an immortal and he was skilled in small tricks. He would not lay idle if the world was at peace. He had stayed at one family village for a long time and had been his first ever disciple a few years ago. At this moment on Crow Ridge, things had just quieted down when there was suddenly an uproar. A chilly wind accompanied by ghostly wails followed a few spirit guiding lights as they rose to the sky with a boom. Almost at the same time, a thunderous voice said, Crow Ridge manipulates corpses to exorcise demons. Heavens forbid, kill them all. Amidst the yelling, countless glowing magical weapons fiercely shattered the stars and the moon. Battle cries began to sound from the outside. When Leong and the two foolish uncles were dumbfounded at the same time. Guo Huan, however, sneered as he said, this is just too coincidental. Chapter 225 Crow Ridge was suddenly thrown into chaos. When Leon had no time to talk nonsense as he brought his two foolish uncles and ran out of the call. His vision blurred as Qin Zhui rushed in front of him covered in fresh blood. When Leon was startled. Qin Zhui wiped the blood from his face as he chuckled, it's someone else's blood. It's the demons of the world sect. However, they are no ordinary enemies and have covered the whole mountain. Their cultivation bases were uneven and they had barged into the mountain from all directions. When the commotion had just occurred, Qin Zhui was already outside and had done one round of killing. He could be considered as a rogue cultivator and he has some knowledge about the cultivation world's matters. He was sure of his enemy's background the moment he had engaged them. Crow Ridge was similar to the Wen family. They were ordinary sects who did not trouble themselves with the secular world. However, the elites of the world sect had not picked a fight with the five blessings but have come here to cause trouble instead. When Leong took a deep breath as he shook his head and decided not to ponder upon all this. He then patted Qin Zhui's shoulder, go and help one make gather the one family disciples who are headed this way. If the people of the world sect harms anyone. He has not finished speaking when Luo Wangzhen led a bunch of centipedes and ran towards the call. He had not gone too far just now as he wanted to wait for Wen Leong to come out and give an explanation about the letter tokens. He had not expected the mountain to be attacked and did not have the time to think too closely before he came to find Wen Leong. The Luo family would not be afraid even if the Jade Emperor had attacked, let alone cultivators. This wild streak has nothing to do with their abilities. The Luo family was like the Wen and the Miao, they were born fearless. However, with Wen Leong here, Luo Wangzhen naturally treated him as the mainstay. If an assault rifle was offered to someone, who would have discarded that in favor of their bow? The two Luo family elders and Mumu had gone to the Nine Peaks Mountain earlier on. Now, Luo Wangzhen was the one who called the shots on Crow Ridge. The younger ones have different personalities but they also had their own ideas. After they discussed briefly, they came up with a plan. Qin Zhui was to find Wen Make and help him to fend off the enemy. At the same time, he would gather the Wen Butsao disciples who had been summoned here by the cannon signals. These ordinary disciples would be of no help if they were to face cultivators. They would be instructed to retreat immediately after they had gathered. Luo Wangzhen also gathered his disciples and activated their prohibition spells to defend the important spots on the mountain. Wen Leong would escort Luo Wangzhen back to the village first. Then, they would go after the enemy chieftain and find out why the world sect has come to Crow Ridge. The two foolish uncles naturally followed beside him, when Leon dared not leave them in anyone else's care. Qin Zhui was the first to rush outside to meet up with Wen Make. Luo Wangzhen took a few steps before stopping. He then took out his own letter token and passed it to Wen Leon, after we return to the village, you'll be acting on your own. There are still some Luo family disciples on this mountain. It'll be easier if you had this. He was halfway through his sentence when his eyes suddenly bulged and he shut his mouth. When Nine also has a bamboo letter token in his hand as he swayed it before the Luo family disciples with satisfaction. 
both letter tokens belonging to the two Luo family elders had been stolen. One of them was still hanging from the big tree inside the call while the other was in Wen Nine's hand. Wen Leong quickly snatched the letter token from Wen Nine's hands before secretly returning it to Luo Wangjian after they had gone some distance. Not long after, Wen Leong had escorted Luo Wangjian back to the village. He brought his two foolish uncles and went headlong into the mountain to hunt the enemy. However, they soon realized that the world sect who had barged into the mountain had only set fires and had not killed anyone. From the mountaintop, magnificent glows flashed by magic weapons could be seen everywhere. Waves of booms and yells of magic chants filled the entire big mountain and raised a hubbub. It was unknown how many world sect cultivators had threatened to annihilate the Luo family. After they had entered the mountain, they scattered like a bunch of headless flies and made a scene wherever they went. They had no direction, they did not search for the enemy nor did they look for the village. They simply ran about wildly in the big mountain and continuously released their magic weapons to clear the way. They behaved atrociously as if they were maddened but their targets were rocks and trees. Some of them even seemed to be bored as they tossed their magic weapons upwards to hit the birds. However, whenever the members of the world sect encountered Wen Leong, they immediately howled and rushed forward for a fight. In Wen Liang's opinion, their cultivation's bases were not worth mentioning but what was strange was that when these people saw him, they would immediately have a despaired expression as if they know that they would surely die but they did not retreat. When they were captured, they had countless ways to commit suicide. Wen Liang labored for a whole night but he could not retain a living enemy. When dawn came upon them, the Wen family disciples had already left Crow Ridge under Qin Zhui's escort. Qin Zhui then rushed back and met up with Wen Leong. His experience was even weirder. If he ignored the members of the world sect, they would just go about their own business and risk their lives with rocks and trees. When Qin Zhui appeared, they turned around and ran. They killed themselves the moment they were captured. Other than their wails, they did not leave any other clues behind. The world sect had not come for a battle, they looked more like they had just gotten a dose of drugs and come here to act crazy. Wen Leon became angrier as he fought. He had rushed around for a whole night and at least a hundred world sect members had died before his eyes. None of them were killed by him nor could he fish any information out from them. Qin Zhui was also extremely bored. In the end, he simply sat down and shook his head with contempt, I'm not fighting anymore. They're all f***ing lunatics. Wen Leung also stopped on his two foolish uncles whose fighting spirits had soared. He calmed down and pondered carefully for a moment. His expression soured the more he thought about it. He then took out his cell phone and checked the reception. The infrastructure on Crow Ridge was much better than the Nine Peaks Mountain, his cell phone received full coverage even in the depths of the mountain. Qin Zhui knew that Wen Leung has thought of something and he quickly asked, what's the matter? Wen Leung shook his head. He quickly dialed first uncle's number but when it connected, it was first aunt who picked up. Her tone was unfriendly from the onset but she passed the phone to first uncle with a laugh when she heard that it was Wen Leung. First uncle's voice was dazed, it seems like he was not fully awake yet. Wen Leung's heart was much relieved. First uncle seemed to be aware of the Wen Leung situation and did not wait for him to open his mouth when he said something. Wen Liang's expression was suddenly delighted and he ended the call with a giggle. Qin Zhui was burning with anxiety. He immediately pulled Wen Liang's arm and barraged him with questions. Wen Liang looked happy as he asked Qin Zhui strangely, Am I too kind? Guo Huan, who had stayed silent until now, suddenly laughed, Foolish young lad, you finally learned to use that brain of yours. Qin Zhui was filled with impatience and he asked angrily, Enough of your riddles. What's going on? Wen Leong pulled his two foolish uncles along and sat down on a rock he had found. He spoke as if he no longer cared about the world sect cultivators who were making a mess around them. He chuckled and said to Qin Zhui, these world sect people had not killed anyone but had only chopped down trees. They're not here to besiege Crow Ridge. This was indeed puzzling at first but when I thought about my two uncles, I finally understood why. He then pointed at Wen 9 and Wen 13. Guo Huan chuckled and chimed in, someone wants to keep Wen Leong here in Crow Ridge. 
why would there be such a coincidence if it was otherwise? When Leong had just arrived on Crow Ridge when the place was immediately attacked. Qin Zhui was completely puzzled. He pondered for a while before he asked, you're saying that someone instigated them both to lure you here to Crow Ridge? That person then arranged for these people from the world sect to attack the mountain just to keep you here. When Leong nodded in silence. Qin Zhui continued, that doesn't make sense. They would be doing a much better job of keeping us here if they had attacked Luo family village directly. When Leon was amused as he returned the topic to where it initially was. He pointed at his own nose and said, I'm too kind. These men don't wish to begrudge me, they only wanted to stall me hence they did not want to kill anyone unnecessarily. Other than me, they would run away when they see someone else. As for the world sect members who risked their lives when they saw me as he said this, a tinge of helplessness flashed across his face, the perpetrator knows that I'm soft-hearted and he wants to use human lives as retribution. If I ever want to investigate this matter, they had already thrown a hundred lives into my hands. What more can I say? If the world sect had formed a group to attack the critical areas of the Luo family's village, they would not be able to control the number of casualties. Currently, the Wan, Miao, and Luo families were of the same breath and branch. Once someone in any of the three families was killed, the grudge would be set. When Leong had heard that the world sect was a treacherous bunch but he had never thought that the other party would be willing to throw away these many lives to avoid a grudge against him. At least the one Butsao would never be this cruel to their own people. Qin Zhui shook his head and suspicion was written all over his face, since the other party doesn't dare to harm anyone, we can just move our butts and head off. Let's leave them here in Crow Ridge. When Leong smiled bitterly and shook his head, would I dare to do that? That's why I said that I'm too kind. Guo Huan interrupted rigidly, as if you could. The world sect has disregarded their lives just because they were unwilling to cross you. However, once they discover that they can't stall you, what would they do then? In the time it takes to burn a joss stick, they would form up properly and attack the Luo family. When it comes to that, you won't have a chance to choose if you want to stay or not. When Leong narrowed his eyes and nodded, the world sect has stabbed him with a soft knife. As long as he was held back on Crow Ridge, there would still be an opportunity to meet in the future. If he disregarded everything now and forced his way back to the Nine Peaks Mountain, they would then fight to the death. Qin Zhui finally caught up with Wen Leong's train of thought. He pondered as he said, they don't want you back home because they had something else planned for Nine Peaks Mountain he was halfway through his speech when he leaped up, 19 is still at your home. He made as if to run outside. When Leong stopped him as he smiled and nodded, home will be fine, relax. They would sacrifice their own people on Crow Ridge just so they would not cross me. Regardless of what they plan to do on Nine Peaks Mountain, so long as it's not the last resort, they won't fight to the death. Qin Zhui dared not place his wife's life as a wager. He exerted his strength and broke free of Wen Liang's grasp. A layer of malevolence seethed out of his eyes, then what if it's their last king resort already? Wen Liang scoffed, at most, only the fish will die but the net will not be torn. No matter how big the fish, it's futile to wish that it can break our family's net. He then lowered his voice, First uncle had told me just now that Grand Master Changli has arrived at the Nine Peaks Mountain two days ago. Only the four elders and first uncle know about this. Qin Zhui immediately felt delighted. He chuckled and nodded continuously, then the net can't be torn, it won't be torn. The fierce name of Changli had pierced Qin Zhui's ears like thunder. Changli had made a promise to Wen Liang back at the Miao Stockade village that she would return to the Nine Peaks Mountain once she has recovered. She would then bring him to the Black and White Island and question Tian Yin about Grand Master Tuasie's whereabouts. When Chang Li reached Nine Peaks Mountain two days ago, she was not one to trouble herself with rules and displays of courtesies. She had not sent her greetings in advance and instead, ascended the mountain and entered the village like a puff of smoke. Naturally, the prohibition spells on the mountain had not detected her. As she entered the village, she had bumped into the two shabby Nine Peaks Mountain No. 1 elites who were stealing phones from every room in the dark of night. Chang Li had followed the two of them around the mountain for one whole night. She witnessed them writing the letters, stamping the seal, 
stealing the cannon signals and tossing the cell phones into the well. In the end, she looked on with a giggle as they left the mountain. Only after that did she go to look for Grand Elder Wen. Chong Li was a peerless demon immortal. Every strand of her hair was a scheme. Although she does not know the details of the situation, she understood that the two foolish uncles could never have planned their tricks so meticulously. The world sect had been causing trouble everywhere. They emerged from their low-key status for the past thousand years and directly attacked the Jilong sect, one of the five blessings. The two rabbit demons had returned to Mount Amei and when Leon was not home to them, the Nine Peaks Mountain would be at its weakest now. Chong Li had thought another step ahead. She felt that the world sect has suddenly made their move to divert the two rabbit demons. Someone had then persuaded the two foolish uncles to stall Wen Leong from returning home. They have made such a huge ruckus outside that the world sect must have had something big planned for the Nine Peaks Mountain. No matter how one puts it, all this was most probably because of that person who knows about the big flat cake, broken gong, and the dog, in the red leaves forest. Everyone was weighed down with worry but Chang Li was overjoyed. She then lay in wait silently on the Nine Peaks Mountain. She counted the seconds to when world sex members would make their move. This was why only the elders had known about her return to the Wen family village. The four Wen elders and Wen Tuanhai made five old foxes together. When the two foolish uncles had escaped, they could instantly tell that someone had incited them and plotted against the Wen family. If their trump card Chang Li had not shown up, they would never have been this calm about the situation and would have been in a flustered mess. Nine Peaks Mountain has deployed its big net silently, all that was left was for the enemy to show up. When Leong had initially thought that it was the Taoist monk Ji Fei who had instigated his two foolish uncles. When Crow Ridge was under attack, he realized that the enemy's scheme was behind this. After he had called his first uncle on the phone, he could then roughly guess the process of the incident. Guo Huan listened to Wen Leong's analysis as he laughed and exclaimed. Interesting, interesting. It's a shame that I'm here. Wen Leong understood the old demon's sadness so he quickly diverted the topic, the one who had instigated the two uncles should be on Nine Peaks Mountain. Otherwise, they wouldn't have known about heaven telling sex master and it seems like this person has a close relationship with the uncles. Qin Zhu was too lazy to guess who it was so he turned and directly asked Wen 9 and Wen 13, who was the one who had taught you guys the plan to steal the cell phones. He had not finished speaking when the two foolish uncles pouted and showed their stubbornness in unison, we had thought of it ourselves. Wen Leong laughed and he shook his head at Qin Zhui, the opponent has his ways of not letting us know his face. As he said this, he sat in between the two foolish uncles affectionately. He made a serious face, I'm I was Nine Peaks Mountain's number one elite. I had kept it a secret so how did you guys manage to find this out? When Nine did not answer the question but asked with a frown in return, why had you kept it a secret? When Leon was dumbstruck. He stammered before he continued, number ones always keep it a secret. It's a resort to fight their enemies. When Nine and when Thirteen looked at each other. They nodded and said, if that's the case. When Nine reminded his brother, then the both of us will also keep it a secret. When Thirteen agreed forthrightly before he quietly asked Wen Leong's ear, what's keeping a secret? Wen Leong was very patient. He ignored the battle cries of the world sect outside and did not look at Qin Zhui's face which was full of anxiety. He explained to his uncle Thirteen slowly then lowered his voice greatly, how did you guys know about this? When Thirteen secretively fished out a crumpled and almost torn piece of paper, passing it to Wen Leong. Wen Leong looked at it and shook his head with a bitter smile, I said so, didn't I? We won't get anything out of my uncles. As he said this, he passed the piece of paper to Qin Zhui. Qin Zhui could already guess the contents without having to see it. What was written was that Wen Leong was Nine Peaks Mountain's number one and that the brothers could only establish themselves after they have defeated him. It also mentioned that Wen Liang's number one identity was a secret so they could not make the challenge a public affair and they could only fight outside the mountain. The last part was a densely written set of instructions regarding the methods to descend the mountain in secret. It was written in great detail and even specified which well they should throw the cell phones into. However, the letter had left one thing out. 
It was not too detailed on the matters of the letter tokens and the seal stamps on secret orders. This was why the two foolish uncles had given it their all and used all the letter tokens and seal stamps of the one family. What was worth mentioning were the rows of beautifully elegant brush strokes which filled the paper, it was prettier than embroidery. When Leong looked at Qin Zhui and asked, 19's handwriting. Qin Zhui shook his head, I've only ever seen her hit someone, I've never seen her write he then shook his head and was obviously unwilling to discuss too much on this topic. He stood up with a frown and pointed in the direction of the loud noises, what should we do then? Should we just stay put here on Crow Ridge and be stalled by them? The great show is on Nine Peaks Mountain. Nineteen is also on Nine Peaks Mountain. Guo Huan was indifferent, as long as Wen Leong stays, the world sect will have a tacit agreement with you guys. They'll make their mess and you guys can mind your own businesses. If you want to kill somebody, they'll die in your face. If you want to sleep, then cover your ears. As long as the people of Crow Ridge don't die, everybody will be safe until we hear from the Nine Peaks Mountain. However, Guo Huan's voice hardened, if a Wen family or a Luo family disciple was to die on Crow Ridge, the world sect would surely go all out and kill you guys. Everyone under the sky is the same nobody wants a grudge but nobody wants to be the target of revenge as well. When Leong was still smiling but his smile was not very sincere now, I don't have any tacit agreement with them. Qin Zhui was also roused and he gave a rotten suggestion from the side, let the Luo family pull their troops out. Once someone dies, we'll fight iron with iron. With the two of us here, victory will be assured. When Leong was angered to the point of amusement. Crow Ridge was the home of his in-laws. The current person in charge was his brother-in-law. In the future, the young men here will only have two identities, that of the big brother-in-law and the little brother-in-law. He picked up a branch and drew on the ground in a flurry, our opponents have come prepared. Once we leave or if anyone from the Luo family dies, they will immediately change formation without needing further orders from above. Still, there should be a variable here which none of them could have predicted and it's only if it was out of their expectations that they would go and ask for their leader's opinion about the next course of action. With this variable and the both of us, it shouldn't be too difficult to follow the messenger to find the leader. Guo Huan seems to know what Wen Leong was thinking about as he smiled and chimed in, we can only break this stalemate without bloodshed if we find the world sex leader. When he finished speaking, he praised loudly, you've truly become more intelligent. When he saw Wen Leong's smiling face, Qin Zhui was so anxious that he would have picked up a rock to smash his face. He balled his fists until they made cracking sounds and said angrily, Stop keeping me guessing, you weren't like this before. Wasn't I stupid before? A satisfaction without shrewdness that could not be concealed appeared on Wen Liang's face. His smile had Wen Buzwa's shadow, this variable is my death. He pointed a steady finger at his own nose as he said this. The people from the world sect knows about my abilities. They had fallen over each other to fight all out with me because they knew that I couldn't be killed so easily. If I died now, everyone would be dumbstruck. What should they do next? They'll naturally go and ask their leader if they should seal the mountain and kill everyone or if they should furl all their banners and retreat with silenced drums after when Leong finished, he giggled and hugged his two foolish uncles. Qin Zhui was astonished, who has the ability to kill you? When Leong minded his own business and went over the details in a soft voice with his two foolish uncles. He then pointed at Qin Zhui. A dozen world sect cultivators brandished their magic weapons as they howled and sprinted along a small, deserted hill. Suddenly, a figure who looked like a nightingale dropped down from the sky and firmly pinned one of them down. The other cultivators were astonished at first but when they saw that the person who had appeared was Wen Leong, they immediately cried sharply, bared their fangs and pounced. When Leong ignored them as he picked up his prisoner and made to leave he did not expect the world sect prisoner in his custody to suddenly laugh as he leaped up. The prisoner had cast an unknown spell which then caused his body to explode loudly, spraying fresh blood into the sky. At the same time, a lightning-like figure jumped out from the nearby forest without warning. He was enveloped in a wild force as he flew towards Wen Leong. When Liang's face was full of shock as Qin Zhui hit him continuously in mid-air, taking advantage of Wen Liang's unprepared state. 
Finally, he let out an extremely reluctant growl as his body fell to the ground limply like a torn gunny bag. A dark, gray liquid flowed out from beneath him and spread out in the area of over a dozen meters in the blink of an eye. The two world sect cultivators had not paid any attention to their feet. They did not even have the chance to wail when they were poisoned to death. The world sect had been running around the mountain for a whole night so they know that other than Wen Leong, there was another young, ugly elite who was with him. Nobody expected that the both of them would fight each other. It was enough as long as the world sect knows he had died. Wen Leong, Qin Jui, and even the two foolish uncles' cultivation bases were much more profound than these ordinary world sect members. A rabbit which was passing by would not be able to distinguish whether the two black bears which were hugged into a ball were hooking up or fighting with their lives. From the world sect's perspective, Qin Jui's every punch was filled with his full strength. It was as if he had suddenly turned into the master of the world and channeled the strength of an entire mountain to beat Wen Leong up wildly. After Qin Jui had beaten the water out of Wen Leong, he quickly turned and stared at the world sect. At this time, two angry howls rose towards the sky. Wen Nine and Wen Thirteen did not talk nonsense and their eyes were so bloodshot that they seemed to spurt out blood. They rushed towards Qin Jui like phantoms from his left and his right. A handful of world sect members who had no intention of blocking their way had no time to evade them and were knocked around until their bones were crushed. Qin Jui's expression was malicious and evil as he counterattacked Wen Nine and Wen Thirteen with the same savage moves. However, unbeknown to him, a layer of greenish gray fine hairs had started to silently grow on his face. The world sect's members were truly dumbfounded. Even after Qin Jui had spat out dark bluish blood and escaped from the two foolish uncles in retreat, they still do not understand what had just taken place. Wen Leong lay on the ground and did not move. The grayish black poison liquid flowed lifelessly and left a sickening stuffiness wherever it went. There was something which wriggled continuously in the blood which Qin Jui had just spat out. The remaining world sect members did not huddle over to confirm if Wen Leong was dead or not. However, logically thinking, when the art of poison was exhausted, that person would be done for. They discussed the matter together in a low voice. When Leong who was playing dead was dumbfounded. Qin Jui, who had stealthily doubled back was also dumbstruck instead of using their legs to go find their leader, the world sect cultivators took out cell phones from their pockets instead. The world sect was obviously more digitally adept than the mountain sect. Guo Huan grunted softly as he observed from within the jade knife, this is also a f***ing variable. Chapter, 226 Tu Mi was sitting quietly on a tree which was only as thick as a person's wrist. Her plump body contrasted terrifyingly with the slender branch beneath her buttocks. From afar, it looked almost like a millstone-sized fruit had grown on a small blade of grass. What was most interesting was that she was swaying with the branches in the wind. A dozen people who were dressed in different attires were standing around that small tree. There was a fierce-looking middle-aged strong man who looked like a butcher and neat, solemn-looking old professor a quiet young lady with long hair and also a red-haired ruffian covered in tattoos. From the nearby mountain, the howling of magic weapons could be clearly heard. These people, however, were indifferent to it. They gathered in small groups and were sitting or lying down casually as they chatted softly. They occasionally lifted their head to look at the big mountain as their sharp eyes contained an almost undetectable anger. The one who lost his patience first was the shrewd-looking professor. He patted his buttocks before standing up and walking to the tree. His wrinkled face was filled with impatience as he bowed to Tu Mi who was swinging with the tree, Great Master Tu, I don't understand. Tu Mi lowered her head and smiled shyly, say it. She was so plump that her body shook in waves when she laughed. The old professor felt as if an oily wave had just crashed loudly onto him. The old professor could not help but take a step back. He hesitated briefly before he gritted his teeth as if he had made a grand decision, we can't hit or kill anyone, the sons who encounter the young lad dies, the sons who don't will continue to run around in the mountains. We had joined the cloud heavenly sect and waited patiently for a thousand years for revenge, not to learn learn, learn a monkey show. He had just finished speaking when the ruffian, who looked to be about eighteen years of age, jumped up and scolded, 
Great Master Tu's plan is profound in her own ways, since when are you in charge of us? The old professor ignored the ruffian. He remained bowed in front of Tu Mi but his eyes have quickly turned bloodshot. However, this malevolent mannerism vanished as quickly as it appeared from his body. The ruffian was unwilling to show weakness as his right arm blazed into flame with a muffled bang. He glared at the old professor and said, Old demon, you better put your bloody eyes away or I'll dig them out. The others quickly shouted and pulled the two away from each other. They were all tangled up with one another when Tumi suddenly let out a sweet greasy sigh and shook her head at them. She said softly, I'm sorry. The old professor and the ruffian were astonished. They hastily relaxed their forms and bowed towards the small tree, we are unworthy to receive such an address from Great Master Tu. Tu Mi did not wait for them to finish as she straightened her body and leaped from the tree. Her body, which was easily 200 kilograms, was as light as a fallen leaf as she swayed with the wind and landed gently on the ground after a long while. She then reached out and helped the two of them up. The fat flesh on her face was full of apologies as she chuckled, I know that everyone is repressing their urge to lash out. The sons are all heroes and great men but they had been dispatched by me into the mountains to make a scene and to be killed. However, this is the difficulty of this errand. If it was easy, the cloud heavenly sect would never have needed to get into this fight. Tumi then shook her head, we have to accomplish it yet we cannot plant any more grudges. When we get the word from Nine Peaks Mountain, it'll mean the success of our operation. The old professor was still unsatisfied, in the cultivation world, the five blessings were the respected ones. We have vowed to kill these small fries and clowns, what grudge do we fear to create? The ruffian has no intentions to get into trouble with the old professor. He was like the professor and also has a rage within him but had only used the opportunity to express himself. He now nodded in agreement, we're not even afraid of the heavens so why should we fear a rock that's in our way? Tumi snorted, have you heard of the cat demon Chongli? The ruffian shook his head and was slightly perplexed. The old professor, on the other hand, pondered for a while before he squalled, the great master can't mean that two thousand years ago. The one who had provoked all the cultivators under the heavens by smashing the high lord statue and destroying exquisite ice. A scantily dressed and charming young married woman could not help but interrupt, she had fought a heaven-shaking battle two thousand years ago but she disappeared after that. Tumi was still smiling but her eyes were filled with cold vigilance, she has returned a few years ago. Crow Ridge has a deep connection with that cat demon and as for a foe like this, heh. She took a deep breath and looked at her bunch of henchmen, do you still think that we can provoke such a foe? The group of world sect elites looked at each other. Two thousand years ago, the cat demon had single-handedly turned the cultivation world upside down. In the end, even the three sword immortals of the Black and White Island and the peerless demon immortal mountain ghost Guo Huan had also been involved. They surrounded the cat demon and fought a heaven-shaking battle. This battle was the legend of legends to even cultivators of the current generation. Tumi continued to mutter in her thin voice, not only is that one youth in the mountain's cultivation base astonishing, he is also especially close to the cat demon. Our sons who had died in his hands tonight will be regarded as compensation to the cat demon. No matter how wild and intractable the world sect was, they also knew that they could not provoke the cat demon. Tumi only sighed softly when she saw that the group had remained silent. She wanted to say a few words to comfort her subordinates when a ringtone suddenly sounded from the professor's body. The professor's face quickly turned pale the moment he listened to the phone. He then looked at Tumi with dumbfounded eyes as he said with a shaking voice, that one, when young lad is dead. A muffled thud was sounded. Behind the fat lady Tumi, a huge pit which was a dozen meters wide and eight meters deep had suddenly appeared in the ground. Tumi's fat body shuddered and her reddish face turned whiter than a mothball. She stared at the professor and asked hoarsely, impossible. What happened? They had an internal conflict. The professor then repeated his subordinate's description of Wen Liang's death. Finally, he added, but he should be dead. There was poison all around him so the sons couldn't get close to him. Tu Mi howled shrilly and fiercely. The buttery tone and aura which she gave off suddenly turned into a burning anger which made everyone as silent as cicadas in late autumn. 
She then said to the others, have the suns form up. Wait for my signal and we'll attack Crow Ridge. She looked at the professor, lead the way. If when Leon has truly died, they could not leave a single survivor on Crow Ridge. The elites of the world sex cloud heavenly sect received their orders and left. The professor was the only one who was leading to me towards the depths of Crow Ridge and as swiftly as the wind. The professor ran as he asked to me in a low voice, Great Master Two, could it be that the young lad has faked his death to lure us? To me was so angry that she started yelling. She gritted her teeth as she said, Who dares to wager? We must confirm if he's dead or alive. She paused after that and showed a slightly sorrowful smile, If he's playing dead, worst comes to worst I'll throw my life at his feet as the sons have done. At the end of the day, we must keep him here on Crow Ridge. As she said this, she also took out her cell phone and dialed a number. She then relayed Wen Leyang's situation to someone on the other end of the phone. Crow Ridge, which had been filled with the sounds of explosions, suddenly quieted down. The world sect cultivators who had been blasting everything they saw had recalled their magic powers. They then aligned themselves in a prearranged direction and silently lay in wait. Wen Leong did not move as he lay on the ground. He had released the poison of life and death to make his death seem more realistic but he forgot that it would create an impassable barrier for the world sect members. He had wanted to jump to his feet when he saw the world sect member make a phone call but when he saw that they had not left and were keeping guard anxiously instead as if waiting for someone, it made him feel hopeful again. This variable has changed much faster than he had anticipated. While he was feeling uneasy, an extremely fat figure suddenly floated in like a breeze. There was a formal-looking old man beside the fat lady. He wore a suit and leather shoes with a stern and serious expression. When the world sect members saw the fat lady, they immediately knelt on the ground. Toomey sighed and waved her hand lightly, I don't blame you guys, get up. The professor tossed a talisman seal into the liquid poison of life and death to test its toxicity. The talisman had immediately turned into a puff of green smoke with the sound of a bang before it had even touched the liquid. The professor took a cold breath and exclaimed in a low voice, What poison is this? Toomey frowned. She naturally had no way to deal with a poison which even Joy Z could not handle. She hesitated slightly before she spoke to unmoving Wen Leong, If you're not dead, I'll apologize to you by giving you my life. Please don't hold it against us. She waved her arm in preparation to cast her magic powers to blast the corpse. As expected, when Leong immediately leaped up as he waved his arms frantically and smiled, Don't hit me, don't hit me. He had not finished speaking when Guo Huan's sharp voice rang deep within his eardrums, This fat little girl was prepared to die, get straight to business. When Tu Mi saw that he was still alive, two starkly different expressions of joy and resoluteness appeared on her fat face at the same time. She then laughed loudly, so be it, my life is also a token for pardon. I hope that you'll look upon the hundreds of world sect members' lives on your hands and investigate no further. When Le Young's expression suddenly changed as he yelled in a low voice, the world sect scheme on Nine Peaks Mountain is related to my Grand Master's survival. What you're intending to take is the one family's life giver, even the lives of everyone under the heavens would not suffice. If you want to die, Nobody will stop you but you'll be dying in vain. The professor howled with rage, then what more do we have to say? You're staying on Crow Ridge no matter what. As he said this, he quickly leaped up. His eyes turned into a blood-red color again as he prepared to pounce on Wen Leong. Unexpectedly, his vision blurred and he did not have the chance to cast his magic powers when Wen Leong had closed in on him. A punch which was neither light nor heavy hit him squarely on the stomach. The life vitality which he had just gathered and almost released was immediately shattered by this single punch. The professor squalled as he crashed heavily onto the ground. Although he had fallen in an awkward position, when he got back up on his feet, there was no trace of injury on him. Tu Mi was greatly shocked. She had only now understood now why Wen Leong must be kept here on Crow Ridge. She had only known that Wen Leong had a profound cultivation base but she had not expected him to be as powerful as this. The professor was amongst one of the best elites of the Cloud Heavenly Sect, his cultivation base even rivaled those of the Five Blessings First Class Elites. 
the professor was unable to even take one of his punches and Wen Leong had not even used his full strength. When Leong broke the professor's attack and continued to talk to Tu Mi, I've lured you out because I'm sick of all this pretending. Call your men back and cease your struggling. It's no use. Tu Mi shook her head, we can't stop you but if you're willing to see the entire Luo family being annihilated, then be my guest and leave. The secret order from Nine Peaks Mountain was to stall Wen Leong. If they let him return home, the world sect members would be unable to do anything against his cultivation base which even rivaled Patu's. To capture the elite within the Red Leaves Forest would be nothing but a joke. When Leon shook his head and he suddenly diverted the topic, who are you in the world sect? He wants to return home but he also does not want these world sect people to trouble the Luo family with their life and death struggles. The reason why he had lured their leader out was to break this stalemate but ultimately, he still felt at ease knowing that Chong Li held the fort at home. He does not mind spending a little more time with talking. I'm the master of Cloud Heavenly Sect, to me. To me was in no hurry either. She would rather die than let Wen Leong leave so it was in her favor if she could stall for a while longer. Wen Leong frowned in surprise. The old rabbit demon had told him before that the world sect was currently divided into the four heavenly sects of Wing, Cloud, Lightning, and Thunder. Tu Mi was the leader of one of the four heavenly sects so she should have a relatively high position within the world sect. The master was the boss. However, in order to close a deal, would boss would take her own life for this just cause? At this time, Qin Zhui had brought the two foolish uncles and returned with a chuckle. They then stood behind Wen Leong. Guo Huan laughed rigidly as he spoke to Qin Zhui, young lad, show them some skills. Qin Zhui did not waste any time as he let out a fierce yell and lifted his arm. He charged towards Tu Mi who was standing a distance away from him. Tu Mi felt the world spin as things as large as the surrounding mountains and as small as the pebbles and dried grass beneath her feet surged vigorously towards her with Qin Zhui's punch. The instant she was about to be submerged, it disappeared with a loud noise and turned into a gentle breeze. As one of the four masters of the world sect, Tu Mi's cultivation base was certainly not weak. On a one-on-one -on -one battle, she could easily triumph over the five blessings elites at the level of Taoist priest Qin Yao. Even if she was to go against the former Jilong sect supreme leader ZK, she could still hold her own. However, she had no way of parrying Qin Zhui's punch. She understood in her heart that she was far inferior to Wen Leong and Qin Zhui. Wen Leong smiled and spoke enigmatically to Tu Mi, do you understand now? Tu Mi nodded with some difficulty. They had only wanted to stall Wen Leong. Since he knows that something was going on at Nine Peaks Mountain, he could have let the ugly man rush to the Nine Peaks Mountain first to deal with the problem but these two young men had stayed behind instead. Wen Leong heaved a long sigh. For the first time in his life, he felt that it was indeed easy to converse with an intelligent person, whether we return home or not would not have a big impact on the outcome. Even if all the elites of the four heavenly sects of wind, cloud, lightning, and thunder of the world sect were to go to the Nine Peaks Mountain, they would not have any hope of winning. He then paused before he continued, the elite who's guarding my home could crush us with a little finger, let alone you guys. To me finally understood. When Leong had not been worried about the situation back home at all. If the world sect scheme on Nine Peaks Mountain had no chance of succeeding, then their sacrifice here on Crow Ridge held no value at all. When Leong continued, the big flat cake, broken gong, and the dog, are not the shortcut for you guys to defeat the righteous path. Let's not talk about how you guys have no chance of success on Nine Peaks Mountain, even if you do really capture that person, do you know what the consequences will be? Guo Huan made some noise from within the jade knife, his voice was cold as he enunciated each word clearly, the cat demon Chang Li the divine beast ice cone nail the zombie hanba the three families of one. Miao, and Luo the five blessings of the righteous path the highland Tibetan Buddhism sect cultivators and even the entire government would pour all their resources to annihilate the world sect. You should ask yourselves which of these peerless demon immortals or the other forces could you guys defeat? When Leong did not let Tu Mi hesitate as he immediately continued the conversation, the world sect had secluded themselves in the world for a thousand years because, ultimately, it was the five blessings who had restricted their own forces. When every force is refined into one, 
would there be anywhere else under the heavens for you guys to establish yourselves? The person whom you guys want to capture isn't the mascot of the world sect but your hangman's noose. The peerless cultivator who had entrusted this task to you is a vile spawn that everyone would be happy to kill. Chu Mi's expression was now extremely sour. Finally, she gritted her teeth in contempt as she took out her cell phone and placed it beside her ear. She had not ended the call just now so her conversation with Wen Leong and the others had been heard by the person on the other end of the phone in its entirety. Her entire person then relaxed as if she had just heard a special pardon. She then spoke softly to Wen Leong, one moment please. In no time at all, a figure swiftly flew into Wen Leong's telegnosis range. Wen Leong scoffed and muttered a curse. He then smiled bitterly as he shook his head at the nearby mountain forest, what rank are you? His voice has barely faded when a fat figure emerged from the forest. When nine and when thirteen smiled as they answered, he's the eldest, he's called the fourth brother. The person who had appeared was indeed one of the seven fat rainbow brothers. When he heard the two foolish uncle's voices, he shot them a friendly look but he stopped several meters before when Leong and moved no closer. The two foolish uncles exchanged a puzzled look. The only outsiders on Nine Peaks Mountain were the Rainbow Brothers, Ji Fei, Shui Jing, One Word Palaces 19, and Gongya from Mount Pan who had come to help them refine the Ningjiao. Initially, when Leong had suspected that it was Ji Fei and Shui Jing who had instigated the two foolish uncles to pull this prank. However, the world sect had then shown themselves and they found out that the matter was related to the Red Leaves Forest. If it were Ji Fei and Shui Jing, the great monk would not have told them that they had found the cultivator inside the place of birth, life, sickness, and death. Gongye had been invited to refine the treasures so they were not under suspicion either. No matter how he looked at it, the only possible culprits left were Nineteen and the Rainbow Brothers. Wen Leong was not really surprised when the leader of the Rainbow Brothers had shown up. The Rainbow's leader's face no longer kept his usual silly look. His expression was grim and serious as he looked at Wen Leong and said, I have shown myself. Naturally, you can roughly guess the cause and effect of things. The ones who had instructed the wind and rain when 9 and when 13, was us. The ones who had plotted against the Red Leaves Forest was also us. But since we never harmed even a single plant of the Wen family, I only beg you to tell me one truth, who's on the Nine Peaks Mountain? Wen Leong did not lie as he said two words, Chong Li. The rainbow's leader's expression turned cold and he nodded at Wen Leong, please give me one minute. As he said that, he took out his cell phone. After he dialed the number, he did not hide from them as he said in a low voice, Chong Li's on the mountain, cease and plead guilty. Guo Huan was surprised as he asked with a smile, fat man, you believe that it's Chong Li just because he had said so. Will you be begging for our mercy soon? Wen Leong does not know whether to laugh or to cry. Guo Huan was extremely quick at picking up these terrible words. The rainbow's leader sighed, actually, it's not much of a difference whether Chong Li is on the mountain or not. We could not even get past the prohibition spells in the Red Leaves Forest. Something clicked for Wen Leong. He had personally experienced the prohibition spell of the Red Leaves Forest so he was very familiar with its effectiveness. It was plenty enough to stop the average cultivator but it would be too weak to stop the Rainbow Brothers. The Rainbow's leader seemed to guess what Wen Leong had thought as he rubbed his fat face resentfully, the elders have already refined the Ning Jiao's poison and used it in the prohibition spell. I made that call because I was worried that if the six of them was to have any intention of harming others out of rage, things will get messy. He turned and waved at to me as he said this, have the sons retreat. After the subordinates have retreated, the rainbow's leader looked at Wen Leong again. His mouth opened with a smile, the big flat cake, broken gong, and the dog, are these three things truly useless to us? Wen Leong nodded, not only are they useless, they'll kill you all. He then did not hide anything as he roughly told the rainbow's leader about Xiang Lu's true soul. The rainbow's leader's expression turned dark as he listened on. The world sect had been ordered by Tian Yin to search for these three objects. At the end of the day, they were to find these three treasures so that Tian Yin could defeat the five blessings. 
The only thing they knew about Tian Yin was that he was a cultivator with boundless abilities but they would never have guessed that Tian Yin was Xiang Lu's true soul. As for what the big flat cake, broken gong, and the dog were, they were as confused as when Leon on that matter. Currently, everyone under the heavens was looking for the big flat cake, broken gong, and the dog. Even top demon immortals like Chang Li and Zhui Zi have involved themselves so it was no longer something which the world sect could meddle in. It was just as when Leong had said, it was better for the world sect to not search for these objects because once they have found it, they would not experience a meteoric rise but complete annihilation instead. When Leong roughly laid out the situation to them. He then questioned closely, do you guys know who Wei Mo's master is in the Red Leaves Forest? The Rainbow's leader shook his head unexpectedly, we don't but we have a way of telling. As long as we can enter the Red Leaves Forest, this matter will be a piece of cake. When Le Yang's eyes lit up as he smiled, what way? Pray tell. He gazed at the fat man and could not recognize that face without its usual silly look and naive look. It seems like it was only just yesterday when they had both been trapped on the side of Mount Amei and had drooled as they chewed on lichen. To Wen Leong, this friendship brought a sweet aroma each time he thought back on it. The Rainbow's leader smiled casually, damn it. We've gone through all this trouble for nothing. If you need the way to find him then we'll give it to you. However. He was halfway through his sentence when his smile became embarrassed. I'm not with the six of them and it's mainly because I'm worried that the sons would lose their tempers. They can't harm you but it wouldn't do for them to harm the people from the Luo family. This was why I had come here personally. When Leon looked at him suspiciously. He had not understood his meaning. The Rainbow's leader saw that when Leon was perplexed and his expression also turned gloomy. He rubbed his hands and continued, although the seven of us brothers have some schemes within our hearts, we never had any intentions of crossing the one family. We had a splendid time on Nine Peaks Mountain. If anyone was looking for trouble with the Nine Peaks Mountain, us brothers would be the first to counter that. When Leon was not too stupid after all as he finally understood the fourth brother's words. He could not help but laugh, be done with this foolishness. If I had truly regarded you as an opponent, I wouldn't have wasted my time to talk nonsense with you. The Rainbow's leader sighed in relief as he smiled. His expression then resumed its former silly look, the method is a magic art. I'll tell you the chant later however, you won't do. You can't learn it unless you have life vitality. We'll pass it on to whoever you name. When Leon smiled, why should we go through so much trouble when you can always help us find that person when we get back? The Rainbow's leader was astonished when he heard this. When Leon continued with a smile, you now know the process of the whole event. If I had given this person to you for free, would you dare to take it? After he had finished, when Leon knocked himself on the head, I'm out of my mind. Maybe by the time I'm back on Nine Peaks Mountain, Grand Elder, Grand Master Changli and the others would have already found that obscure cultivator. All the seven Rainbow Brothers know how to distinguish the obscure cultivator's magic. They could not fight on Crow Ridge and they have also surrendered on Nine Peaks Mountain. When Leong and the others do not have to rush back home and the people back home would have found the obscure cultivator already. When Leong looked at the Rainbow's leader, will you be coming back with me? The Rainbow's leader nodded. His six brothers were still on Nine Peaks Mountain so he had definitely wanted to go back. When Leon was unwilling to waste any more time. He immediately gave Luo Wang Zhen and Wen make a call. Once that was done, he left Crow Ridge with his two foolish uncles, Qin Zhui, and the Rainbow's leader. Wen Make had readied a car. The group then embarked for Nine Peaks Mountain. Chapter, 227 After they boarded the car, when Leong felt considerably more steady now so he turned to ask the Rainbow's leader behind him, are you and your brothers the immediate superiors of the four heavenly sects? The Rainbow's leader nodded as he answered in a natural and righteous manner, that is, of course, the four heavenly sects are only a setup, everything is decided by us brothers. The old demon rabbit had once said that there were no clearly distinguished boundaries between the four heavenly sects. The lesser members do not even know which heavenly sect they belong to. The organization of the world sect was utterly just a heap of loose sand, a disunited mess. 
Unless, above the four heavenly sects, there was still a big boss. In this way, in a large-scale system was still fine if the small area's boundaries were blurred. Even though the situation might appear chaotic, they could still effectively confuse the mountain sect and would bring more advantage than disadvantages in comparison. Moreover, think about this yourself. After the wind, cloud, lightning, and thunder, wouldn't it be about to rain? The rainbow's leader suddenly mentioned something which sounded irrelevant. One Leon nodded. He was feeling a little confused when the rainbow's leader laughed and said, when the sky has turned clear after the rain, then the rainbow would appear. That's the origin of the Rainbow Brothers nickname. The people in the car laughed. The Rainbow's leader had not needed Wen Leong to ask before he had confessed everything entirely. The seven brothers were the supposed leaders of the world sect. When they had first met Wen Leong on Mount Amei, that green-robed and favus headed old man who was known as father to them was their loyal valet servant. However, due to the world sect's decline, they had picked up another job with their father under the recommendation from Painting Town. They helped Fifth Brother Hanba to capture demons and in return, they were paid with the Painting Town's exotic flowers and herbs which had been accumulated over millenniums. Their father possessed a swift and forceful cultivation method. He had a high-order position in the organization which killed demons and extracted their primordial energy. His initial plan was in case World Sect had to fight against the organization, he could receive protection from Hanba but as a result, he had not expected that he would die tragically on Mount Amei in an accident. The seven fat men appeared honest and foolish to outsiders on most days so no one would regard them as harmful people. Wen Leung too had been naturally tricked by them. At this point, the Rainbow's leader suddenly switched the topic of conversation, about ten years ago, Tian Yin had found us. Don't ask me how he had found us, I don't know that as well. The Rainbow's seven fat men were extremely secretive in their identity. However, based on Tian Yin's ability, if he was to put some effort into searching for them, it was really not a difficult task for him to capture them. Tian Yin showed some of his skills and managed to completely subdue the Rainbow Brothers. After that, he went straight to the point and proposed that the world sect must make great efforts to search for the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog. However, Tian Yin had no idea at all whether these were actually three items, persons or signs. However, Tian Yin did provide a clue for them. He informed them that was in order to crack this riddle, they would need to find the person who had first spoken of this riddle and that person was Wei Mo's master's brother who had rebelled against the Heaven Teller sect. This person was capable of performing a disguise spell so even a profound master cultivator could not tell who he was. The two parties made an agreement that after the world sect has helped Tian Yin to locate these three items, Tian Yin would help them to kill the supreme leaders of the five blessings and the first ten best master cultivators in those sects. Finally, Tian Yin passed down the method which could break the magic disguise spell. He also left behind a wooden bell which they could use to call him anytime and from anywhere before he floated away. The Rainbow's leader cautiously took out the wooden bell which had been stuffed with cotton from his chest pocket. This form of communication magical instrument could be seen anywhere in the cultivation sex so it was not considered as a rare item. Wen Liang's expression was terrified. He widened his eyes as he asked the Rainbow's leader, so, is Tian Yin aware that Wei Mo Marshall Uncle was hiding in the Red Leaves Forest? The Rainbow's first brother hastily shook his head. He laughed as he said, we've not contacted him since then so don't worry. The world was a boundless place and to search for one person in the midst of billions of people, especially if that person was under a magic disguise spell, was not an easy task. The world sex members investigated the whereabouts of this heaven teller sex martial uncle as they paid close attention to the fluctuations of spiritual vitality in the world. Whenever the sign of an extraordinary treasure appeared in reality, they would immediately rush over to investigate. This resulted in the elites of the Wen and Luo families being trapped in the Great Mercy Temple, as well as the Wicked Witch of the Miao Stockade Village who had visited the Nine Peaks Mountain in secret and all sorts of other events. It was only until a few years ago that the World Sect finally found out that the Heaven Teller Sect was cultivating obscurely on Mount Amei. The Rainbow Brothers then lingered for days and nights on Mount Amei as they simultaneously schemed against the giant pangolin Patu. 
They had forced the Pandalin to escape by burrowing underground so that they could look for the Heaven Teller sect. When Leung knows about the events which had taken place after that. The Rainbow Brothers' main work and sideline had been carried out together they were searching for the Heaven Teller sect while they also killed demons and extracted their primordial energy. They then spent their free time to create an even higher economic value for themselves yet somehow, they had provoked the big and small demon rabbits which had then drawn in Changli and Wen Leung as well. Third Brother Wei and the Favis headed man had perished altogether and that group of people, as well as Wei Mo, were then trapped on the mountainside. Wen Leung frowned as he asked the Rainbow's leader, how about the One Word Palace then? The reason why they had met Wei Mo was because the One Word Palace's third brother Wei had made an appointment to meet Wei Mo on Mount Amei. Wei Mo had also mentioned that the One Word Palace was also searching for the whereabouts of his martial uncle. The Rainbow's leader shook his head, the One Word Palace is one of the righteous path's five blessings. What they do is not related to us at all so whether they are looking for Wei Mo's martial uncle to do fortune telling or for the three treasures, I do not know. When they were on Mount Amei's mountainside, the seven fat men were already aware that Wei Mo does not have the slightest idea of the whereabouts of his martial uncle. However, after they had freed themselves, they still decided to follow Wei Mo to make certain. After all, the Heaven Teller sect's divination skills and calculations were miraculous so perhaps Wei Mo could calculate the whereabouts of his martial uncle. At the very worst, they would only pester Wei Mo to recalculate the three treasures after he was finished with his calculations of small-numbered worldly affairs. Thus, the seven brothers had gone from adventure mode into development mode as they lurked on the Nine Peaks mountain along the way. At this point, Wen Leung interrupted and asked out of puzzlement, but why was there a necessity for all of you to hide on the Nine Peaks mountain? You could have just seized the opportunity to abduct Wei Mo. The Rainbow's leader laughed bitterly as he shook his head, how could it be that simple? The moment we had rushed back to the mountain with you we were just in time to witness Qin Yao creating trouble on the mountain. This was then followed closely by the arrival of that old demon rabbit. Fuck, he had stayed there all the while and had only left a few days ago. The old demon rabbit's abilities were far superior to us brothers. We dared not act rashly even when he had been exhausted and was healing from his injuries. Moreover, the fat man paused for a moment, Wei Mo had started to calculate the moment he had arrived at your home. When he mentioned that the Wen family village was incalculable, we had begun to feel suspicious but anyhow, as long as Wei Mo was still alive, he will be the same no matter where he is. Also, your family's meals are quite impressive. The seven fat men had lingered in the Wen family village because of Wei Mo. It was only a few months after when Leong had remolded his poisonous bones that the Gongye family had come to the mountain to refine the Ning Jiao's corpse. At that point, the entire Wen family in Wei Mo were already aware that his martial uncle was hiding at the place of birth, life, sickness, and death. The Rainbow Brothers were still acting innocent and foolish on most days and they were very familiar with Wei Mo then so they had easily tricked him to reveal the truth. However, as the old demon rabbit Bu Lu was still guarding the Nine Peaks Mountain, they had not been able to take any action. After that, when Leung had visited the Miao Stockade village then went on a long-distance trip to the highlands, the Rainbow Brothers could not wait anymore. They decided to summon the world sect to ambush the Five Blessings in order to draw away the Great Mercy Temple's master cultivator who was residing on the Nine Peaks Mountain. Still, they were in big trouble this time as the few of them had spent the entire year not paying attention to political affairs. In addition, the situation of the four heavenly sects had been chaotic since the beginning. For the purpose of launching an all-round plan, they would need to assemble all the manpower they could get. When Leong was dumbstruck, it took him a long while before he burst out laughing, so what you're saying is that it has taken you more than half a year to assemble your manpower in an orderly manner? The Rainbow's leader gave a heavy humph in reply, the people below me are all useless good for nothing. By the time they had assembled their manpower, when 9 and when 13 had turned into master cultivators. The combination of these two persons' power was no less inferior than the small demon rabbit Shan Duan's. Moreover, when Leong was almost on his way home so the Rainbow Brothers had complained incessantly. They then contrived the trick which deceived the two silly uncles and also destroyed hundreds of cell phones in the Wen family village. The plan was only officially launched yesterday night. 
The Rainbow Brothers were rather merciful towards the one family they had some scruples towards when Leon and they even more terrified of Chongli. This was why they had left an appropriate margin for unforeseen circumstances in their plan. Their only intention was to seize Wei Mo's martial uncle. To a normal person's thinking, if that time bomb who was significant to the destiny of the righteous and the evil path of the cultivation world were to leave his house. Not only would that not be a bad thing, they should celebrate with a meal of noodles instead. No matter how much they thought about it, they never anticipated that, the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog, would become the one family's and the world's lifeline. If they had truly seized Wei Mo's martial uncle, the joint efforts of many master cultivators and forces would wipe away the world sect. There was utterly no other ending. The Rainbow Brothers had been a little selfish when they thought of a plan to seize Wei Mo's martial uncle. Since these three items were imperative even to a master cultivator like Tian Yin, certainly these items would be exceptionally important to the world. If the Rainbow Brothers had found these items and it was not useful to them, the two parties would then keep to their promise. However, if they were to realize that these items were really some powerful treasures, they would then reconsider whether they would want to fulfill the exchange with Tian Yin. Therefore, before they had found those items, they would not reveal any information to Tian Yin. It was also because of this selfishness that Tian Yin does not know about the whereabouts Wei Mo's martial uncle in the Wen family's Red Leaves Forest. The Rainbow's leader finally finished explaining the long sequence of events which had taken place and exhaled a long breath. He felt a cold sweat on his back as he realized that he and his brothers had been doing tasks for Xiang Lu's true soul all along and that they were unknowingly dealing with the evilest creature in the entire world. When Leon considered the entire sequence of events once again and he could finally thoroughly understand the events from the beginning to the end. He felt relieved as well and laughed, to rein in one's horse at the brink of a precipice you've avoided imminent disaster at the last minute. Qin Zhui, on the other hand, inquired closely from the side, what about your actual powers? In the past, the actual power of the seven of you combined is still not as strong as that fat subordinate of yours, to me. The Rainbow's leader chuckled, we have the treasured weapons which had been passed down from our ancestors for generations which are capable of shielding our life vitality. There's always a good reason why we pretend to be slightly foolish on most days. He had not answered the question directly for that actual power was a skill which could protect one's life, especially since they were the leaders of the world sect who were hated by everyone. It makes sense that they would be reticent to reveal that to anyone else. The fact that he was even willing to discuss this matter was because of their close friendship. Qin Zhui sniggered but he did not inquire closely anymore. The seven brothers had tarried for a few years on the Nine Peaks Mountain and had dreaded the old demon rabbit, Bu Lu, all the while so their ability was still limited after all. At the moment, based on Wen Liang's current level of power and his understanding of the cultivation world, other than a few top demon immortals, he has almost no other opponents who could match his abilities. His situation was similar to that of Guo Jing's in The Legend of the Condor Heroes other than someone like Dong Xie and Shi Du, the masters of the martial art world like Sha Tong Tian and Peng Lian who were of no match for him. As for Patu, his position was at most akin to Mei Chao Feng. Guo Leong still had space for improvement while Mei Patu would remain stagnant over there forever. When Leong was starting to have a headache, the possibility of aliens conquering the earth was too small yet they could not even walk out of a market without turning into penniless vagrants. It was unknown whether he was acting friendly intentionally or because he had managed to vent about his thoughts which had been oppressed in his stomach for years and got it off his chest. The Rainbow's leader was very excited as he joked with the two silly uncles during the trip. The three of them appeared very intimate. Guo Huan suddenly spoke and asked the two silly uncles, since we are about to return to the Nine Peaks Mountain, are the both of you afraid? When Nine and when Thirteen were stunned simultaneously, what's there to be afraid of? Guo Huan laughed, the family elders will be punishing you both for the sin of stealing. The two silly uncles gazed into the eyes of one another in astonishment before they spoke in unison once again, you mean the number one master cultivator would be punished as well? The sky has turned dark before when Liang's group finally reached the Nine Peaks Mountain. First uncle Wen Tuanhai led a group of disciples with the two rogue cultivators, Ji Fei and Shui Jing, as they went down the mountain and welcomed the group personally. 
They chatted and laughed all the way but kept a brisk pace and soon arrived at the village. They then went straight away to the new village chief's house to pay a formal visit to the four grandfathers. There were a lot of people in the big house Changli was imitating the first grandfather by sipping her tea smilingly while fourth grandfather was sitting on the side without a smile on his face. When he noticed that when Leong has returned, he only nodded his head gently and squeezed out a smile from within his wrinkles. Second and third grandfather, on the other hand, were not in their seats. Their seats have been occupied by Crow Ridge's two Luo elders. The Miao family's second mother and little Chi Maojiao were there as well, it seems that the crowd had been waiting for Wen Leong to return. The Rainbow's six brothers were squeezed in a corner of the room and were signaling to one another with their eyes. When they saw that their eldest brother has returned, a gloating expression could be seen in their gaze. Mumu was not in the big house. According to their ancestors' custom, a couple was not allowed to see each other after the engagement and before the wedding. The moment Mumu had heard that when Leong was returning to the mountain, her little face blushed as she ran away. When Leong paid his respects to the crowd before he began to explain the entire course of events and his encounters during this highland trip. He talked about the matter of the small town of Tuer, the Kunlun sect, Master Ranyong, the tragedy of Black and White Island. The dog-headed eagle, Xiang Lu's true soul, the Hua family, Zhui Zi, the firecrackers, and the heavenly water spirit Dot. The listeners felt uneasy but Chang Li's eyes occasionally smiled until they turned into crescents and occasionally widened while they filled with gloomy iciness. Xiang Lu's matter has apparently exceeded everyone's expectations. After Wen Leong had finished his explanation, the crowd did not speak for a long while. Chang Li was the first one who broke the silence, she realized that everyone was frowning and pondering so she spoke softly. There's no use for us to think too much on this matter, we ought to find out what is the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog, is first. Her voice was lowered as if she was afraid that she would startle them. There was a glimmering glow in her eyes, enticing and silky soft. Wen Leung noticed that the rest of the six rainbows fat men were on the scene. He wanted to ask about the red leaves forest when Guo Huan suddenly coughed once in the jade knife. Chang Li did not wait for Guo Huan to speak as she laughed and said, In three months' time, I will bring you to locate your immortal's cave I will then help to return your soul to your split body. If you were to succeed in your cultivation in the future, feel free to look for me for revenge at any time. Upon saying that, she paused for a moment, you can count that on me as well on the enmity of Misu for destroying your human body, there's no need for you to look for Hanba to vent your anger. Guo Huan's voice was hard and rigid, it sounded lofty and in high spirits, forget about it, I'll thank the heavens and the earth just for not killing me. Wen Leong had not expected that Chang Li would make a promise to Guo Huan so easily. He was puzzled but Guo Huan sniggered and said to him, Young lad, Chang Li had promised to help me all because she knows that I had saved your life on multiple occasions. I'm not boasting here, I can't tell if we would be friends or foes in the future but you ought to understand Chang Li's intention in protecting her young. Chang Li raised her chin. She looked at Wen Leong in anticipation her expression was just like a young maiden's who had just brewed a mug of sweet soup for an adult and was waiting for the adult to praise her. Wen Leong was stared in bewilderment, he was pondering whether it was appropriate for him to kneel for her but he was not well versed in how to express gratitude. In the end, he had laughed shyly and his mannerism was extremely like the Rainbow's seven brothers. The people in the big house suddenly laughed. Chang Li frowned as she turned to the side and asked First Elder Wen, why do you think that Xiaoyi and Mumu like him so much? First Elder Wen has a close relationship to Chang Li since the beginning, he knows that his Grand Master hates feigned flattery so he burst out laughing as he said, us six old men have puzzled over this matter for a few years. He has even included the two elders of Luo family. As expected, the two Luo family elders nodded heavily in agreement. When Leong hastily diverted the topic of conversation, have we found Wei Mo's martial uncle? First Elder Wen and Grand Master Chang Li shook their heads in unison. When Leong immediately turned around and looked at the Rainbow Brothers. One of the fat men hastily waved his hand, no it's not that we don't want to help but there are prohibition spells in the Red Leaves Forest. When Leong was furious, he was about to speak when he realized that fourth grandfather's old face was blushing. First grandfather sniggered and shook his head, when you were on the highland, 
many events have also taken place at home. I'll explain those to you one by one but first uncle will first tell you about the Ning Jiao's poison. When Tuanhai's face fell as he looked at first grandfather, the person that you do not dare to offend, I would not dare to offend even more. He peering secretively at fourth grandfather through the corner of his eyes as he said that. When Leon was confused as he looked at one person next, he does not understand what was going on. The two elders from Luo family, on the other hand, were overwhelmed with joy, the Ning Jiao's rare poison has been broken down by these old men but they had not broken down the poison completely. The two elders and the one family's four elders have held grudges against each other for a long time. Since there was now an opportunity, they started to tell the story. The Ning Jiao's rare poison was similar to the poison of life and death in Wen Liang's body. It seems that its toxicity now should not be more incisive than the poison of life and death but even so, the four elders had racked their minds in order to refine Ning Jiao's poisonous blood. They had truly spent a lot of laborious effort and time to break down the strong poison at long last. When the old demon rabbit had left the Nine Peaks Mountain, Fourth Grandfather was worried that there could be some unforeseen incidents so he had changed the prohibition spells in the Red Leaves Forest to the Ning Jiao's strong poison. When Leon nodded uncertainly as he backed up Fourth Grandfather, if he had not done so, their world sect would have already seized that person earlier. First Elder Luo burst out laughing, that's right, that's right. However, after this new prohibition spell has been laid down, these elders were unable to break the spell again. They had been discussing earlier on that they would wait for your return then send you to the place of birth, life, sickness, and death to absorb all the strong poison of the prohibition spell. When Leung exclaimed in understanding, he was at a loss of whether to cry or to laugh as he looked at Fourth Grandfather, you can't break the spell. W what do you mean? Fourth Elder Wen gave an icy cold humph and did not acknowledge Wen Leung. After the Ning Jiao's strong poison has been fused into the Red Leaves Forest's prohibition spell, there was a slight change in the poison's toxicity. The recipe which had been initially refined in order to break down the strong poison was useless. This time, even the Red Leaves Forest's prohibition spell was turned into an isolation strip. The people in the forest could not come out and the people outside the forest could not enter as well. Right now, the group had been only able to shout to each other from across the forest. When Xiaoyi, who has been staying in the Red Leaves Forest these days, was also now trapped in there as well. Fortunately, there was still plenty of food in the Red Leaves Forest. Changli found the matter to be amusing as well, I'm not afraid of the Ning Jiao's poison but if I had charged into the forest forcefully, I would destroy the entire Red Leaves Forest to its root. Your money-grubbing grandfather could not bear to part with the forest so he had said that he would wait for your return and see if you could absorb all the strong poison. It was only then that when Leong understood why they were still unable to locate Wei Mo's martial uncle. He laughed as he nodded, it is done, I will try now. First grandfather chuckled as he waved his hand, there's no need to rush, we will discuss our family matters first and enter the mountain together next daybreak. When Leong nodded honestly and he hastily diverted the topic of conversation away from the red leaves forest. He asked in slight puzzlement, where are second and third grandfather? The moment he had spoken, first grandfather has blushed as well as the fourth grandfather. The two elders of the Luo family were even more elated and the second mother too could not resist any more as she explained the matter in her crisp voice. Tuasye's cultivation method has seen the light of day again. When Leong had used his cell phone to record the Grand Master's words in the Jade Talisman. He had then returned with the voice recording to Nine Peaks Mountain. For such an important matter, the one, Miao, and Luo families would naturally gather on the Nine Peaks Mountain and discuss how to crack their Grand Master's cultivation method. The three families' descendants were all facing the same issues during the past 2000 years, they had cultivated the foundation skill which had been passed down from Grand Master Tuasia into something else. The Wen family prioritized toxicity and they used the faulty punch as a foundation to refine the poisons from the five elements into the body, in the process destroying the balance of toxins in the body. The Miao clan planted an exceeding powerful fatal move in their birth year spell so that their birth year spell was tainted with malevolent energy and there was no way they could pass this spell to other people. The Luo family grew corpses but in order to achieve tacit understanding between the human and the corpse, the master and zombie almost never left each other's side. 
the current Crow Ridge disciples were almost all tainted with some extent of corpse's energy. They could only control the corpse but they could never control the autonomy of their meridians like the one family disciples. However, amongst the three families, there were one or two persons there who could fulfill Grand Master Tuasie's cultivation method with great difficulties. Naturally, the two silly brothers Wen 9 and Wen 13 were the representatives of the Wen family. They had only cultivated in a faulty punch but due to their limited intelligence, they could not cultivate a poison recipe which was suitable for themselves. In the end, they had profited from their misfortune. Little Chi Maojiao from the Miao family had inherited 10% of Grand Master Tuasie's witchcraft power from the Jade Talisman and his birth year spell was recently abolished as well. Tuasie's utmost purest witchcraft power then helped him to forge his purest birth year spell once again. The representative from the Luo family was Mumu. As Adan was lovable, she had been willing to sacrifice her power in order to protect the zombie baby. The toddler's corpse had then gained a sense of humanity somehow and when Adan had turned into a half-dead body afterward, even though Mumu had constantly lived with Adan, she was not tainted by the corpse's energy. It was supposed to be a satisfactory conclusion for everyone but the four elders of the one family had been unwilling to give up. Tuasia had stated that poison, witchcraft, and corpse were born of the same root. They nourish each other and grow together. When the mastery of poison cultivation was achieved, three persons should soar together. The disciples from the other two families, one was the young big dragon's root while the other was the direct heir of an inner disciple. However, the one family's chosen ones were two silly men. This was why the four family elders of the one family decided to make a risky move after they had a discussion about this. Other than the two silly uncles, the one family also selected five other persons. Each of them had been selected to represent one of the poisons from five elements, second grandfather, third grandfather, Wen Bushuo, Wen Buzwa, and the final addition, Wen Tuanhai. First elder Wen was the head of the family while fourth elder Wen was head of the workshop so they were not part of the formation. The result was immediately evident after the second and third grandfather as well as the brothers Bushuo and Buzwa had broken their meridians, they were immediately poisoned by their own poisons in succession. Fortunately, the old demon rabbit Bulu was still on the Nine Peaks Mountain. Though the art of poison of these four elites of the one family was of an ordinary level, they were finally rescued in the end. First Elder Wen had witnessed four of his men collapse, he was sincerely convinced so he did not allow Wen Tuanhai to seek his doom as well. During those days, the Wen family village was very busy, buzzing in a chaotic mess.